Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 328 The dragon and the phoenix were the two most powerful races in the world. It was said that before the human race reproduced, the dragon and the phoenix were the rulers of countless worlds. They were also the two most powerful races in ancient times. Although it declined later on, the dragon and phoenix that were left behind were still respected and feared by people. Pure dragons and phoenixes were rare now, but they were still known as the two overlords among the divine beasts. The demonic beasts that had a close relationship with the dragon and phoenix were basically either divine beasts or pseudo-divine beasts. For example, the blue wave dragon could be classified as a pseudo-divine beast because it had a few traces of dragon bloodlines in its bloodline. Of course, its strength was enough to rank it as a pseudo-divine beast. Lu Yoqing's true dragon form was probably even more powerful than He Yuliang's. From the looks of it, there were really many hidden dragons and crouching tigers in the exploration team. Wu Ji Patriarch's true form was a divine beast teal-eyed toad, Lu Yu's true form was a pseudo-divine beast blue wave dragon, and He Yuliang's true form was an even more terrifying divine beast golden dragon. In addition, Shang Wan Fei was among them. Although he was an individual cultivator and belonged to the human race, his cultivation strength was undoubtedly the best among them. Such a lineup could probably dominate the world outside. Furthermore, even Su Feng Yu, who was like a true god or demon king, would find it difficult to win against the combined forces of these four people. Gu Mingzhou finally understood his position. Whether it was in terms of cultivation or experience, he was the worst. I didn't think that fellow Daoist Lu's true form would be the legendary true dragon, and a golden dragon at that. If I offended you earlier, please forgive me. Thinking of this, Gu Mingzhou finally couldn't hold back the shock in his heart. He cupped his hand slightly at the huge golden dragon that was winding in the void behind him and sighed. However, only Gu Mingzhou knew how much of what he said was true. In any case, because of Wei Lin's matter, everyone was suspicious of the river of forgetfulness tribulation. It was better to take the opportunity to show weakness and shift the aggro. Ha, huh, why? Are you shocked? Now you know the difference between us. Without waiting for Lu Yoqing's reply, He Yuliang, the blue wave dragon with a similarly large body, opened his bloody mouth and said smugly. Lu Yoqing's four dragon claws grew into five sharp claws as if he had enlarged his hands into claws, but they were even more terrifying than human hands. The nails were slender and extremely sharp, flashing with a cold light. Five clawed golden dragon. A huge wave was set off in Gu Mingzhou's heart. There was a saying in the ancient book, the dragon is like nine beasts, with four limbs and four claws. Occasionally, it will mutate, and its claws will have five fingers. In accordance with the nine and five, he was supreme. In other words, a true dragon that was known as the supreme divine beast usually had four claws. Those who had five claws would shake even more violently and be known as the supreme of the dragon clan, also known as the dragon among dragons. What kind of existence was this? Dragons were widely acknowledged as one of the most powerful races in the world. The five-clawed golden dragon was known as the most powerful being in the dragon clan. How is it? Are you even more shocked? When He Yuliang saw the expression on Gu Mingzhou's face, he instantly became even more proud and laughed non-stop. Although Brother Lu is not an adult yet, his cultivation is already at the peak of the mortal realm. He can transform into human form. If he can survive the thunder tribulation and open the inheritance, his cultivation will definitely take a qualitative leap. I didn't expect Brother Lu to be a dragon among dragons, a five-clawed golden dragon. It's really shocking. Gu Mingzhou nodded slightly and walked out of his shock. He did not refute He Yuliang and agreed. Powerful divine beasts all had inheritances hidden in their bloodlines. This kind of inheritance would only be opened after the divine beast had passed the lightning tribulation. If a divine beast obtained a bloodline inheritance, their cultivation would enter a period of rapid improvement. On the other hand, the five-clawed golden dragon was even more terrifying than those divine beasts with inheritances. Even if it didn't cultivate much, it would quickly become a leader after receiving the inheritance. 
If it cultivated diligently, its cultivation would be extremely terrifying even without the bloodline inheritance. Paul Master He, you're too kind. Although I'm a five-clawed golden dragon, I found out too late. Hence, I've been slothfully cultivating. As a result, I've been cultivating for 40 to 50 years, but there's still a long way to go before the lightning tribulation. In the face of He Youliang's praise, Lu Yucheng appeared to be modest. I don't think you've eaten the essence fruit. I wonder how you can still have such an abundant amount of spiritual energy in this confined world. Lu Yucheng's question hit the nail on the head, and it could even be said that he had hit Gu Mingzhou's sore spot. Gu Mingzhou naturally wouldn't mention Master Qin's existence easily. Unless he had no other choice, Gu Mingzhou would definitely keep the matter of Master Qin a secret. This was also the reason why Gu Mingzhou had only joined the battlefield at the end and had not asked about the essence fruit. He wanted everyone to ignore this point. However, it was obvious that his plan did not succeed. Even though He Yuliang, Sheng Wanfei, and Wu Ji Patriarch had not noticed it yet, Lu Yucheng, who was a five-clawed golden dragon, had hit the nail on the head and hit the nail on the head. As expected, before Lu Yucheng's voice could fade away, the other three people immediately focused their gazes on Gu Mingzhou. Not only were their gazes filled with doubt, but they were also suspicious, wary, and vigilant. This was no wonder. After all, in this world that was similar to the demon world, the only people who could still have an abundant amount of spiritual energy were those who had taken the essence fruit, and the rest were from the demon race. Of course, Gu Mingzhou, who had Master Qin, was an exception. Faced with the four people's doubts, Gu Mingzhou's brows furrowed tightly. He kept thinking of ways to hide the matter of Master Qin. However, a sinister and sharp voice suddenly broke Gu Mingzhou's awkwardness. You haven't even made a move yet, and you're already fighting each other. How can you be worthy of being my opponent? Just obediently become food. Before he could finish his words, the entire sky suddenly darkened, and the sound of something breaking through the air rang out. Swish! Countless pitch-black thorns, each of which was more than three meters long, flickered with cold light and revealed their sharpness. They were densely packed and overwhelming. The storm caused by the explosion of the thorns gradually weakened and calmed down. This caused the spikes that the nine nether poisonous hedgehog had suddenly released to shoot toward the five people without any obstruction. We'll talk about my matters later. Now, get rid of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog as soon as possible. Gu Mingzhou changed the topic and grabbed at the air in front of him with both hands. With a swoosh, a long spear appeared out of thin air and glowed with fire. It suddenly swept toward the dozens of thorny spears that were shot in front of him. Bang! Bang! Although the sky full of thorns looked extremely sharp, they were still unable to withstand a single blow from the divine weapon spear. The long spear was like a destructive force. With just a sweep, twenty to thirty thorns broke in front of his waist and exploded. You make it sound nice, but who knows if you're plotting something. Everyone's spiritual energy will dry up without the essence fruit, so why are you still fine? Even though Gu Mingzhou had forcefully changed the topic, He Yuliang still refused to let go. Chapter, 329 The most important thing now is to get rid of the demon. As for the other things, we can talk about them later. He said. When He Yuliang was still pestering him, Shang Fei suddenly spoke and made the final decision. As he spoke, Shang Wan Fei raised his hands and made a circle in front of his chest. His spiritual energy overflowed and he struck out at the thorns that were shooting in front of him. The seemingly easy palm shattered the thorns in the air the moment it was thrown. Even the thorns behind were sent flying by this palm. Since island master Shang Wan has spoken, I will spare him this time. If I find out that you're similar to that Wei Lin, I, He Yu Yang, will attack you. Even though he had listened to Shang Wan Fei for the time being, He Yuliang still warned Gu Mingzhou. Once bitten, twice shy. He Yuliang was frightened by Wei Lin's betrayal, so he's worried that he's also a demon. Gu Mingzhou looked at He Yuliang's hundred meter long body and thought to himself. He had already guessed He Yuliang's thoughts. Of course, this was within reason. After all, the reason why there was no spiritual energy in this world was similar to the broken world of the devil world. 
There was only demonic energy and no spiritual energy. The main reason why Wei Lin wasn't affected and his cultivation didn't decrease was that his main body was actually a clone of the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog, which belonged to the Devil World. And Gu Mingzhou was not affected even if he didn't rely on the essence fruit. With his spiritual energy, people would naturally associate him with the demon race. This was also the reason why he Yuliang had chased after Lu Yuqing after he had raised his doubts. Don't worry, Hall Master He. I'm a genuine human cultivator. Knowing he Yuliang's doubts, Gu Mingzhou immediately cupped his hands and explained. Although he didn't care about he Yuliang's suspicion, in the current situation, even Sheng Wan Fei, who had the highest cultivation, was no match for the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. If they wanted to escape and even defeat the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog, they could only work together. The fewer doubts they had, the better. I hope you're telling the truth. Otherwise, you'll end up like these thorns. He Yu Yang clearly knew that with the enemy in front of them, it was not wise to have internal strife. As He Yu Yang shouted, he swung his wriggling dragon tail and instantly swept across the sky. The blue wave dragon's tail was clearly much more powerful than Gu Mingzhou's spear. With just a sweep, the hundreds of thorns that were falling from the sky and were about to land on their heads were instantly swept away. The dragon's tail did not directly destroy the thorns. Instead, with the great power of the dragon's tail, it directly swept back the hundreds of falling thorns, which hit the endless number of thorns behind them. Bang! 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 The thorns collided with each other and exploded at the same time. Not only did it form a storm above everyone's head, but it also blocked the thorns that were falling from the sky behind. This is really wonderful. No one responded to He Yo Yang's words, but his beautiful tail wagging made the eyes of the surrounding people light up. Especially the five clawed golden dragon on the left, Lu Yuqing, who opened his mouth to praise. Lu Yuqing also imitated He Yu Yang his fierce golden dragon tail sweeping out, instantly sweeping back the thorns that had shot at him from the left. He used the thorns that his dragon tail had hit to shoot back, colliding with the thorns behind him and causing an explosion, temporarily blocking the danger on the left. Wu Ji Patriarch opened his bloody mouth and shot out a long, scarlet tongue. The long tongue was swift and fierce, like a bolt of lightning. In a flash, it had already entangled dozens of thorns. His spiritual energy seeped out, but he suddenly threw back dozens of thorns. The spines that were reinforced with spiritual energy shot out one after another, crashing into the endless stream of spines behind them. Since Wu Ji Patriarch had added refined spiritual energy to the thorns, they were even more powerful. Each spike could pierce through almost ten spikes, causing a large number of explosions. It formed an even larger storm that swept across the entire void, completely protecting the space behind everyone and the space under their feet. He Yo Yang's method was instantly learned by Lu Yucheng and Wu Ji Patriarch, and they were able to block the thorns that shot at them from all directions, allowing everyone to escape danger and be temporarily safe. Island Master Shengwan, we have to take the initiative. I don't know how long the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog can release these spikes, but if it can release them endlessly, we won't be able to hold on for long if we don't have a way to recover our spiritual energy after the storm is over. Not long after he blocked the sky full of thorns, the huge body of the five-clawed golden dragon that Lu Yuqing had transformed into suddenly started to move in the void. The huge and ferocious dragon head flew over Gu Mingzhou's head and floated above Sheng Wan Fei as he spoke worriedly. What are you afraid of? The five of us can't even handle a hedgehog. Without waiting for Sheng Wan Fei's reply, the blue-eyed toad said domineeringly. Among the five people who were trapped now, other than Gu Mingzhou, there were two divine beasts, a pseudo-divine beast, and Sheng Wan Fei, who had only passed the Thunder Tribulation. With such a lineup, it would not be an exaggeration to call them the strongest organization in the outside world. Therefore, it was understandable for Wu Ji Patriarch to be so arrogant. However, Wu Ji Patriarch's arrogance didn't give him the right to do so. Even if the five of them joined forces, they still didn't have the confidence to win against the mysterious Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. If it was a one-on-one -on -one battle, no one present, be it the Divine Beast Five-Clawed Golden Dragon, the Blue-Eyed Toad, the Pseudo-Divine Beast Blue Wave Dragon, or Shang Wan Fei, was his opponent. 
Wu Ji Patriarch didn't see the situation clearly, but that didn't mean Shang Wan Fei didn't. Shang Wan Fei was one of the strongest here in terms of shrewdness, insight, cultivation, and experience. He was naturally not as short sighted as Wu Ji Patriarch. Liu Yocheng's right, the current situation is not suitable for us to choose to fight to the death. We will lose without a doubt. Shang Wan Fei looked at the storms in all directions. He seemed to have thought of something, and his right index finger and middle finger formed a sword finger, pointing at the raging storm in front of him. Whoosh! The dazzling golden light shot out and into the storm. The void storm did not stop the golden light at all. In fact, it even affected it, allowing it to pass through. As expected. Seeing that the golden light had pierced through the storm without any damage, Shang Wan Fei's face suddenly lit up and he said in surprise. Shang Wan Fei's words immediately attracted everyone's attention. Lu Yucheng, Wu Ji Patriarch, and even Gu Mingzhou all looked in the direction of Shang Wan Fei's finger in unison with puzzlement. If Shang Wan Fei's speculation was correct, it meant that everyone could use the storm as a cover to attack the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog and take the initiative. In the face of the crowd's doubts, Shang Wan Fei once again shot out golden light from his sword fingers, which pierced through the storm and answered the crowd with facts. Island Master Shang Wan, now that you can discover the secret of the storm, do you think that the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog, which often uses its thorns to attack, also knows it? Gu Mingzhou suddenly had an ominous feeling and immediately said. Chapter, 330 Humph, you're not stupid, kid. Then I'll use you to break the restriction first. Gu Mingzhou did not even have time to react before the beast's sharp claws suddenly stabbed into his lower abdomen. Bang! A muffled sound rang out, and a dark red color suddenly appeared. The unrivaled force pushed Gu Mingzhou out of the storm behind him and he instantly crashed into the altar in the ancient temple yard. A deafening sound that shook the heavens and earth resounded through the firmament. In fact, the entire island began to shake violently at the same time as the loud noise. It was like an earthquake, more like an island sinking. The old and dilapidated temple was shaken to the point of collapse by this sound, and the debris fell all over the ground. The circular altar was lit up by an endless amount of light. It was so bright that it was blinding. It seemed to reach the heavens and earth, illuminating the world. Buzz! Under the light, the void started to shake. In the sky above the altar, the battle was the fiercest. It was as if the void was about to be torn apart and the weather changed. Ripples that were hard to see with the naked eye instantly spread out and swept across the sky. A vast amount of black energy appeared and quickly surged into the bodies of the people on the island. The most obvious was the fishermen in the old temple. They were like small vortexes, crazily absorbing the black energy that emerged. As the black energy entered their bodies, the fishermen, who were no different from humans, began to change. The roar of a beast suddenly rang out in the old temple. The first to change was the bald devil monk who was praying on the altar. His entire body was surrounded by thick black energy, and he became extremely huge. He had a pointed mouth and ape-like cheeks, making him look like a giant ape. He was at least ten meters tall. With a ferocious face, it bared its teeth and howled into the sky. After the demonic monk turned into a huge demonic beast, the fisherman standing behind him also let out a roar. Their body grew bigger, turning into a black tiger with buck teeth, and a ferocious python. In the end, all the fishermen in the old temple started to demonize, turning into all kinds of ferocious demonic beasts. They roared continuously, and their eyes revealed a fierce light. From the moment the nine nether poisonous hedgehog suddenly pierced through the storm and attacked Gu Mingzhou to the moment the restriction was broken and the demonic energy was released, all the fishermen in the old temple had undergone a beast transformation. The entire process happened extremely quickly. By the time everyone came to their senses, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog that had attacked Gu Mingzhou had already retreated. Shang Wan Fei and the others didn't even have time to make a move before they once again hid in the storm. The storm no longer blocked his vision under the bright light from the altar. Although they cannot see the face of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog while hiding in the storm, they could clearly see a black shadow half the size of a human. Although Shang Wan Fei and the others saw the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, they did not pursue it. 
Instead, they all looked at the altar that was glowing. The fishermen all had a demonic change, but it didn't attract their attention at all. They only stared at the altar. At the end of the day, everyone's purpose in coming here was the Qin Emperor's inheritance. As for other matters, they were of no importance. Ha ha ha. The 10 year old seal has finally been broken. When the four of them looked at the altar, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog in the storm let out a sinister voice and said excitedly. The restrictive barrier was opened so easily. Lu Yuching still couldn't believe his eyes as he asked doubtfully. Judging from the sudden emergence of the dense demonic energy, I'm sure that the demonic power that has been confined in this world has been released. I'm afraid that the Qin Emperor's restriction has already been broken. In the face of Lu Yuching's doubts, Shang Wan Fei said with certainty. In that case, the Qing Emperor's inheritance Wu Ji Patriarch excitedly said before Lu Yuching could reply. The Qing Emperor's inheritance is mine. The Blue Wave Dragon suddenly spoke and interrupted him. At the same time, its 100 meter long body suddenly shot out and flew toward the altar. You dare! He saw that He Yu Yang had actually made the first move, flying toward the altar in an attempt to seize the inheritance. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog in the storm was instantly enraged, and its pitch black body also flew toward the altar. The inheritance has appeared. Next, it'll depend on your luck. Shang Wan Fei said with a cold expression. He also jumped up and quickly headed for the altar. Before Shang Wan Fei could say anything, Lu Yucheng and Wu Ji Patriarch had already moved and flew toward the altar before He Yuyang did. He Yuyang was very fast, and he was also the first to move. Therefore, when Shang Wan Fei and the other two flew over, the Blue Wave Dragon's 100 meter long body was already close to the altar. It did not stop at all and was about to drill into the bright light. Several thorns attacked. The sharp thorns glinted with a cold light and were incomparably fierce. They instantly shot toward He Yuyang. He Yuyang wanted to enter the sacrificial altar, but he didn't expect the nine nether poisonous hedgehog to suddenly attack him. He was caught off guard and was shot by several spikes. Although the sharp thorns hit He Yuyang, they did not pierce through the blue wave dragon's body. They only shattered a large portion of its dragon scales, making a metallic sound. Even so, He Yuyang was still in great pain. He turned around and opened his bloody mouth, leaping toward the nine nether poisonous hedgehog to bite it. It was obvious that the nine nether poisonous hedgehog was prepared. When He Yuyang turned around to bite him, its four short limbs moved in the air and it instantly turned into a black light. In an instant, it went around the blue wave dragon's mouth and suddenly appeared on the dragon's head. It then shrank into a spiky ball and suddenly smashed toward the dragon's head. Crack! The scales on the blue wave flood dragon's head with short horns suddenly broke, and its skin and flesh were torn open, with blood oozing out. He Yu Yang was in pain. He rolled his huge dragon body to shake off the nine nether poisonous hedgehog that was stuck on his head. However, the ferocious attack of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog made He Yu Yang, who had been blinded by the inheritance, come back to his senses. He no longer flew toward the altar. Instead, he hovered in the air and stared at the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. You abandoned us, but in the end, you still have to wait for us here, right? Wu Ji Patriarch said sarcastically while dragging its toad's body. Humph. He Yu Yang was infuriated by the loss. He snorted coldly at Wu Ji's mockery. If we don't get rid of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, no one can get the inheritance. He knew he was in the wrong and did not refute it. Please calm down. The matter of the inheritance needs to be put aside for now. Getting rid of this demon is the most important thing. Shang Wan Fei calmly analyzed the situation. Island Master Shang Wan is right. We are no match for the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. Why don't we work together to get rid of the beast race and then fight for the inheritance with our own abilities? Lu Yuching suggested. Wu Ji Patriarch and He Yu Yang nodded in approval. Since that's the case, let's work together to get rid of the demon. Then, we'll fight for the inheritance with our own abilities. Shang Wan Fei said in a clear voice. Before he finished speaking, Shang Wan Fei made the first move. 
As he opened and closed his arms, his spiritual energy gushed out. The spiritual energy formed a multicolored tiger, which was extremely huge and ferocious. It suddenly pounced toward the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. Two dragon roars sounded at the same time. He Yu Yang, the blue wave dragon, and Lu Yucheng, the five clawed golden dragon, also moved when they saw Shang Wan Fei make his move. The two 100 meter long bodies twisted in the air at the same time and rushed toward the nine nether poisonous hedgehog at the same time. Wu Ji Patriarch was not to be outdone. A long scarlet tongue that was three fingers wide shot out, directly attacking the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. They attacked the group of nine nether poisonous hedgehog and started killing them. Chapter, 331 In an instant, the wind blew and the clouds churned. The void trembled and the world dimmed. True core strength and demonic energy twisted and entangled, colliding continuously. Even the dazzling light from the altar was overshadowed by the beautiful battle. The demonized fishermen in the old temple were so frightened by the fierce battle that they fled in panic. None of the people who were fighting in the sky noticed. As they were fighting, a figure stood up shakily on the dazzling altar and suddenly disappeared. In the dazzling light, Gu Mingzhou, whose lower abdomen was covered in blood, stood up from the broken altar with a pale face. Through the bright light, he could see the people fighting in the air. He was about to speak when a green light suddenly flashed under his feet. The sacrificial altar trembled, the world turned upside down, and heaven and earth flipped. The world seemed to have undergone a complete change at this moment. Before Gu Mingzhou could react, he felt his body fall involuntarily and was instantly engulfed by darkness. A strong suction force landed on Gu Mingzhou. Even if he used all the spiritual energy in his body, he could not resist the strong suction force. His body fell uncontrollably into the abyss and into the endless darkness. This was a very long process. Even when the spiritual energy in his body was gradually exhausted and dried up, the fall continued. As time passed, the speed of the fall gradually increased. The sound of the wind howled in Gu Mingzhou's ears. In the pitch black space, he could not even see his fingers. Even the light above their heads was gradually disappearing until it was completely gone. He seemed to be in endless darkness. Just like when he was deducing the river of forgetfulness, Boundless darkness filled his left and right, boundless and silent. No matter how Gu Mingzhou called out to Master Qin or tried to sense Jing Wudao, there was no response. It was as if he had once again fallen into loneliness. The only thing that accompanied him was darkness, boundless darkness. Different from the deduction in the river of forgetfulness, there was a constant whistling of the wind in his ears, as if reminding him that he was falling, and it never stopped. This allowed Gu Mingzhou to stay awake at all times, remain cautious, and maintain his desire for life. It wasn't like the darkness in the river of forgetfulness, where one's mind was worn out, loneliness was unbearable, and one was willing to die. During the long fall without knowing the end, he also felt a little impatient. How long had he been falling? It was one thousand feet, ten thousand feet. He gradually lost his patience, but his descent didn't stop. It was like a bottomless pit, so deep that one could not see the bottom. This was the Qin Emperor's inheritance. The clone of the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog had searched for this place for the demons. Since Wei Lin dared to bring Gu Mingzhou, Sheng Wan Fei, and Wu Ji Patriarch here to prepare for the sacrifice. This was enough to prove that this was the location of the Qin Emperor's inheritance. The powerful restriction seemed to be able to imprison the world and suppress something that Gu Mingzhou did not know about. Although he didn't know what it was, he could sense that it was an ominous thing to all living things in the world. At that time, he had desperately stood up on the altar, and what he wanted to say to the people fighting outside was to remind them to escape. Unfortunately, before he could open his mouth, he fell into the darkness of the bottomless pit. However, he was even more certain that the Qin Emperor's inheritance was located here. Since this was the location of the Qin Emperor's inheritance, there would naturally be more than just darkness. He had been falling for a long time. According to his senses, he had fallen at least 10 million feet. If there was a planet's core, they would probably be very close by now or even have already reached it. However, the downward momentum did not seem to have any intention of stopping. 
Could it be that there's more to this? Gu Mingzhou pondered in silence. This endless fall made him feel even stranger. He quickly had a guess in his heart and immediately looked around in the darkness. Everything in the world had an end. White was extremely black, far was extremely close, fast was extremely slow, and moving was extremely still. The so-called bottomless pit would never exist. There was no such thing as an endless pit in the world. There's definitely a place that I haven't discovered. Thinking of this, Gu Mingzhou's gaze became sharper in the darkness. Even though he couldn't see his fingers in the darkness, Gu Mingzhou, who was certain that he had missed something, continued to observe carefully. Sure enough, under his persistent gaze, he soon found traces in the darkness. There were some strange black dots that were slightly green, red, and yellow in the darkness. The three primary colors were basically condensed as if they were one but also seemed to be scattered. They were particularly conspicuous in the boundless darkness. The strange black dot seemed to be moving with Gu Mingzhou's fall. His vision was stable. Even though he could still feel himself falling rapidly, the strange black dot remained in his sight, never disappearing. Could it be there? Gu Mingzhou instantly noticed something amiss. But how do I get there? Even though he found some clues, a new problem emerged. Although the strange black dot did not seem to be moving, Gu Mingzhou felt that he was moving. He kept falling rapidly. It was almost impossible to get over without spiritual energy. There must be something I don't know. Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself. Since the Qing Emperor had left behind an inheritance, he would definitely leave behind a path to obtain it. He did not hesitate any longer. He spread out his hands that were originally protecting his body and touched his left and right. However, just as he stretched out his right hand, he seemed to touch something in an instant. He was so frightened that he quickly retracted his right hand. What is it? Gu Mingzhou clenched his fists and was extremely cautious. Is it? It? What answered Gu Mingzhou was an echo that gradually faded away, lingering and continuous. There's actually an echo here. This continuous echo had also diluted the shock he had received by a lot. Could it be that the feeling just now was a stone wall? He recalled the feeling just now. It was hard and cold, like a stone. Following his conjecture, he held his breath and slowly stretched out his right hand, which had been retracted to his chest, and quickly felt something again. It was cold to the touch and extremely hard, like a stone wall. As he couldn't see, he could only reach out his left hand and feel around with both hands. Gu Mingzhou suddenly realized that even though his entire body was under the strong suction force and the wind was howling in his ears, he could still move without stepping on anything. With this new discovery, he was overjoyed. Without any hesitation, he groped the stone wall with his hands and walked on the void toward the black spot he had seen earlier. Gu Mingzhou's vision was almost completely lost, causing his speed to be extremely slow. He was almost moving as he carefully approached the black spot. As he got closer to the black dot, the tricolored light emitted by the black dot became brighter and brighter. In the end, his vision was basically restored. The black dot, which did not seem big, gradually became bigger as he approached, and finally, it became an oval-shaped hole. The three-colored light he had seen earlier was coming from the two-meter-high hole. However, it was very strange. Even with the illumination of the tricolored light, be it behind him or under his feet, there was still nothing. It was pitch black. Chapter, 332 The Zhou Dynasty He Chuan sent Lia and his youngest daughter He Yingying back to the plains. After all, the Xiongnu people had many things that required Lia's decision, and this female king had left for a long time. After sending Lia off, he Chuan prepared to continue his search for the alternate dimension. He also wanted to meet world god Su Feng Yu and the experts hidden in the freezing cold land. He wanted to see how powerful those so-called experts were and how much Gu Mingzhou, the son of destiny, had grown. Just how lucky was the son of destiny? However, just as he was about to leave, a few powerful auras lingered above the capital. They should be from the Heavenly Sword sect. He Chuan placed his second daughter, Hia, back into Kai Lian's arms and muttered to himself. 
He had already received news that the sects from the New World had returned to the Central Plains and were beginning to recruit disciples. Shen Chang'e's revenge would definitely come, which was why He Chuan had not left yet. If he left, then no one would be a match for the experts of the Heavenly Sword sect. Empress Changning, Kai Lian, and his children would all be in danger. Young Master. Kai Lian said worriedly as she hugged her daughter. Don't worry, they're just cultivators from the New World. He Chuan lightly patted Kai Lian's hand twice and flew up, heading toward the auras. The people from the Heavenly Sword sect could sense He Chuan's aura as well. They stopped flying and waited for him in the air. I didn't expect this expert from the Zhou dynasty to be so confident. Not only did he not run away when he knew we were here, but he even took the initiative to come and find us. The left protector of the Heavenly Sword sect said. You are indeed courageous to take the initiative to fight. The right protector nodded. Humph. No matter how bold he is, he must atone for his sins with his death today. Otherwise, the reputation of the Heavenly Sword sect will be damaged. The seventh elder placed his hands behind his back and squinted his eyes as he looked forward. The reason why the Heavenly Sword sect had sent out their elders and left and right guardians were that they were afraid that He Chuan would escape. It should be known that if an Earth Realm master wanted to escape, it would be difficult to catch him. In the seventh elder's opinion, He Chuan had taken the initiative to fight because of the people of the capital. In the eyes of some cultivators, ordinary people were no different from ants. To them, it was almost unreasonable for He Chuan to take the initiative to fight for ordinary people. They were high and mighty cultivators, and it was already very kind of them not to use ordinary cultivation methods. They would not be like He Chuan, who took the initiative to fight just because of the aura. If he could achieve Taishan Wangqing and find a place to hide and cultivate, they really couldn't do anything to He Chuan. This is his weakness. The seventh elder is wise indeed. The left protector flattered him without leaving a trace. That's right. Thanks to the seventh elder's plan, this Zhou dynasty expert didn't dare to escape. The right protector didn't show any weakness and immediately flattered him. Ha, huh, that's for the best. We don't have to take the initiative to look for him. I'd like to see just how powerful that so-called expert is to be able to kill Shen Chang'e. The seventh elder was very pleased with the two's flattery. Listening to their conversation, He Chuan seemed to be dead for sure. It was no wonder that they were so confident. The mysterious Heavenly Sword sect was second to none in the New World. They had hundreds of human realm warriors, and the seventh elder was a third-rank earth realm warrior. The seventh elder could do whatever he wanted in the New World, not to mention the Great World, where spiritual energy had just recovered. He didn't take He Chuan seriously at all. Killing He Chuan would be as easy as drinking water. Just as they were talking and laughing, a golden ray of light shot over. When they looked up, it was still a few thousand meters away, but after two breaths, the golden ray was already in front of them. The person was He Chuan. He was wearing a white brocade robe with a high-quality Hetian jade hanging on his waist. His eyes were bright like stars, and his brows were sharp like swords. At first glance, one would think that he was a young master from a rich family. He had a calm and reserved temperament. He Chuan had a warm smile on his face as his gaze swept across the three powerhouses in front of him. The left protector was at the peak of the mortal realm, the right protector was at the first rank earth realm, and the seventh elder was at the third rank earth realm. The other party did think highly of him. Sending these three was enough to destroy the seven major sects of the previous martial arts world. However, He Chuan didn't care about this. He had already stepped into the sixth rank earth realm, so he had no problem dealing with the three people in front of him. The fifth rank earth realm was a threshold. Not only was it very difficult to cultivate, but there would also be inner demons and thunder tribulation. Fortunately, he didn't leave otherwise, even if all the warriors in the mortal realm and saint cultivator realm worked together, they wouldn't be a match for these three. This was the power of a self-cultivation sect. In the past it was always said that saints cultivators were ants. Now, it seemed that if one had not reached the mortal realm, one would not even be able to touch the threshold of cultivation. It was only after entering this level that one would understand how terrifying cultivators were. Duke He 
I'll give you a chance. As long as you apologize to the world and become a disciple of my heavenly sword sect, I'll let this matter go. I'm just cherishing talents, but if you don't, you'll be punished with your soul destroyed for killing my disciple. The seventh elder arrogantly placed his hands behind his back and looked up at the sky. It was as if he had already given Hichuan a great gift. Furthermore, once they returned, their life and death would be decided by the heavenly sword sect. Accepting him as a disciple was just a lie because Murong Fu wanted Hichuan's secret. As long as they could reach the heavenly sword sect, they would have many ways to make Hichuan talk. Cut the crap. Let's action speak. I really want to see how powerful the cultivators of the new world are. He Chuan waved his hand, not wanting to listen to his nonsense. He could hear the other party's plan from here. Moreover, as an expert on the sixth rank earth realm, wouldn't it be a joke to surrender without a fight? Good. Very good. I wanted to give you a chance, but you didn't know what was good for you. Then, you can die. The seventh elder didn't waste any more time and immediately dealt with Hichuan. The sword intent was monstrous as if it was going to pierce through the sky. It was earth shattering as it fell in Hichuan's direction. The real sword was formed by the endless spiritual energy of the heaven and earth, and it seemed like it was going to devour Hichuan. The sword contained a sharp sword intent and a terrifying pressure of a master of the earth realm. The thousand meter tall mountain beside him couldn't withstand the sword intent and collapse. The sword intent alone could destroy the mountain. Using a sword. I'll play with you then. Before He Chuan could finish his words, a sword appeared in his hand. Without any fancy attacks, he simply pulled out his sword and stabbed. Even a three year old child could do these two moves. But it was this move that destroyed the seventh elder's terrifying sword intent. The clouds in the sky were split into two by the sword as if someone had split the entire sky in half. The seventh elder's face turned pale. The heavenly sword sect used the sword as their foundation and cultivated unparalleled magical powers. This move of the seventh elder required at least a hundred years of cultivation. However, He Chuan easily broke it. How could he not be shocked? Chapter 33 In the Ancient Alternate Dimension Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate, when he approached the cave, he directly stepped into the cave without hesitation. Just as he stepped into the cave, the whistling wind by his ears and the strong suction on his body both disappeared. The sudden ease made Gu Mingzhou immediately breathe a sigh of relief and feel incredibly light. He refocused his gaze into the cave. The long tunnel had smooth rock walls, and under the continuously changing three-color light, there was even light reflection, making the entire long tunnel occasionally show a colorful and mottled scene. Like a rainbow at the edge of the sky, it was imprisoned in the tunnel, beautifully magnificent and extremely beautiful. The Qing Emperor's inheritance must be at the end of this tunnel. I must obtain the Qing Emperor's inheritance. Gu Mingzhou immediately walked along the tunnel and strode into the depths. The long tunnel was beyond his expectations. His body was injured, and without spiritual energy, his recovery ability was not strong, causing his speed to be much slower. Even so, his walking speed was much faster than ordinary people's. After walking for three incense worth of time, he almost walks a hundred miles. Such a distance was equivalent to walking from the center of the island to the edge. When he felt exhausted, the end of the tunnel finally appeared in the colorful light. A cave the size of a house appeared before his eyes. The cave was empty, and there was a circular altar in the middle, which was almost the same as the altar in the old temple. Similarly, the altar here was not empty. In the center of the altar, there was a green stone tablet. Above the stone tablet, three rotating crystals of red, yellow, and green were floating. The crystal slowly rotated above the steel. The light that came in from nowhere shone on the triangular crystal, dividing the sunlight into three and refracting the bright light. As the crystals spun, they shot into the tunnel, forming a long, colorful tunnel. It was very mysterious and rare. However, Gu Mingzhou's gaze did not stay on the tricolored crystal for too long. He focused all his attention on the stone tablet in the middle of the altar. It was engraved with dense golden engravings, looking extremely profound. 
But Gu Mingzhou did not understand what the words in the small seal script mean. These small seal script characters gave Gu Mingzhou a feeling that they were not only profound but also seemed to contain some kind of powerful power. When people saw them, they subconsciously thought that they were extremely powerful and peerless spells. Could this stone tablet be the Qin Emperor's inheritance? Gu Mingzhou stopped in front of the altar and stared at the stone tablet. He read the words and muttered to himself. He didn't approach immediately but started to pace around the altar. They had to search for it while ensuring their safety so that they could obtain the inheritance. As a cultivator who had been in the cultivation world for so many years, safety had long been his first priority. If he was too reckless, there would be a danger. The better something was, the more dangerous it was. He paced around the altar twice and seemed to have accidentally touched something, causing the altar to suddenly burst out with a bright light. Buzz! The entire cave began to shake. A chubby figure appeared out of thin air in front of the altar's stone tablet. A fat middle-aged Daoist dressed in a simple green Daoist robe had the appearance of a sage. Even with his hands behind his back and a smile on his face, he still made people shudder and respect him. Qing Emperor! Gu Mingzhou shouted. The fat Daoist priest who suddenly appeared was the Qing Emperor. He looked exactly the same as the Qing Emperor. Gu Mingzhou recognized him at a glance. However, the Qing Emperor he saw this time was much more agile and no longer mechanical than the Qing Emperor he had seen before. He smiled as he floated above the altar, staring at Gu Mingzhou in silence. I am Gu Mingzhou, a cultivator of the Zhou dynasty. Greetings, Qing Emperor. He was a little creeped out by the Qing Emperor's stare and felt uncomfortable all over. He quickly cupped his hands and bowed. Surprisingly, the Qing Emperor, who had ignored He Yuliang, Sheng Fei, and the others' questions in the hall earlier, actually nodded slightly after Gu Mingzhou spoke. Just as I guessed, the first one to arrive here is you. The Qing Emperor said something that made Gu Mingzhou surprised and confused. You've already guessed it. Gu Mingzhou suppressed the surprise in his heart and asked in confusion. Yes, I am. From the first time I saw you, I could feel the inheritance I left here was about to be taken away, and I guessed that it was you. In response to Gu Mingzhou's question, the Qing Emperor nodded slightly again. Why me? Gu Mingzhou did not wait for the Qing Emperor to finish speaking and quickly asked. There was no such thing as a free lunch. He believed that meat pies would fall from the sky, but he didn't believe that such a good thing would fall into his hands. You also have the broken realm of the Great Tao. The nature of your destiny goes without saying. Other than this, there's also your identity. What is my identity? Gu Mingzhou frowned and asked in confusion. Gu Mingzhou could basically guess what the Qing Emperor had said. The remnants of the heavenly Tao in the world must have been something created by the Venerable Lord. Gu Mingzhou didn't know what kind of identity he had, given how unlucky he was. At the same time, he also thought of a person who seemed to have appeared out of thin air. However, because of his identity, he was willing to save him with his life and was not afraid of death when facing the powerful Su Funyu. Zhou Yuanba Up until now, his understanding of Zhou Yuanba was still limited. Although he wasn't a great philanthropist, how could he not be grateful for the life-risking rescue from a stranger? And a deep sense of guilt. Even if Zhou Yuanba was willing to die without any complaints. But in Gu Mingzhou's heart, he still felt a pang of deep and strong guilt. And the cause of this knot in her heart was Gu Mingzhou's so-called identity. He didn't expect that the Qing Emperor would actually mention his status again, causing him to have no choice but to take it seriously. You should be asking yourself. As if he could read Gu Mingzhou's mind, the Qing Emperor said softly under Gu Mingzhou's urgent gaze. But I didn't know. If Gu Mingzhou knew, why would he ask? You had too many identities in the past, but to be precise, those were not your identities. They were just little cultivators born in the prison world. The Qing Emperor reconfirmed Gu Mingzhou's identity. He was the unlucky fellow now and a cultivator with great fortune. There was no need to worry about his identity. An imprisoned creature. The goal that they needed to strive for should be to break through. He broke through the world and the cage. 
a creature that was imprisoned. Break through the world, break through the cage. In the face of the Qing Emperor's sincere and earnest words, Gu Mingzhou appeared even more confused. He muttered to himself and kept repeating himself. These were too profound for him and he had never heard anyone mention them before. In his opinion, the Zhou dynasty was already big enough. Chapter 334 All of this is nothing more than a fantasy to you now. You don't have to think about it. If you can reach the level of your predecessors, you will naturally know. Qin Emperor shook his head and said as he looked at Gu Mingzhou, who was a little hysterical. The Qin Emperor, who was floating above the sacrificial altar, pointed his right hand at the tricolored crystal above his head like a sword. The tricolored crystal that was slowly rotating suddenly shot out a brilliant light beam. The beam of light was of three colors red, yellow, and green. It showed the essence of color and was dazzling. It quickly entered the stone tablet. The stone tablet trembled, and the densely packed small golden seal engraved on it seemed to come to life. From the first word onwards, it suddenly jumped out. The words were as dense as dragons and flew toward Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou didn't even have time to move before the countless small whips, like dragons, instantly sank into the space between his eyebrows. He was stunned and his mind shook. Five golden words appeared in his sea of consciousness, nine turns heavenly devouring technique. It was five small golden seal characters, but each of them was so big that they almost filled Gu Mingzhou's entire sea of consciousness. The five characters were formed by the small seal between his eyebrows. There were more than a thousand small flags, and if one looked closely at the five large golden words, they seemed to be extremely dense. The five words didn't take too long to form. Two breaths later, thousands of small golden flags were scattered again. It was the same as when he saw it on the stone tablet. Each word was profound and each sentence was concise. Even if it was engraved in his mind, making it difficult for him to understand. However, he understood the meaning behind it almost instantly. The Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique As its name suggested, it was an extremely powerful devouring technique. After it was completed, one could even have the ability to devour the heavens. Of course, this was only recorded in the small seal script. How powerful was it? It was still unknown whether he could devour the sky after he cultivated it to the great completion. It didn't matter if the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique could devour the sky in the end, it had something that could attract all the cultivators in the world, devouring. The word devouring here was naturally not as simple as eating but absorbing. It was a little similar to the legendary star-sucking great skill, which could devour the power of others and absorb the enemy's cultivation base into one's own body. This was what truly made people afraid, shocked, and yearned for. After all, since ancient times, no matter what realm a cultivator reached, their cultivation base was mainly based on long-term perseverance and accumulation. Sometimes, one needed to use spiritual pills or heavenly treasures to help break through the bottleneck. However, the main part was still to absorb and refine the spiritual energy on his own to stabilize his realm. The Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique was completely different. Everything that was absorbed through it would be added to the cultivator's body. If this spell technique were to be spread to the outside world, it would also cause the cultivation world to go crazy over it. This was undoubtedly the fastest way for cultivators to improve their cultivation base. It was also the most attractive part of the Nine Revolutions Heaven Devouring Art. What a terrifying cultivation technique! The breathing technique is nothing compared to this. Gu Mingzhou, who was cultivating at lightning speed, could not help but be shocked when he roughly understood the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique. The breathing technique occupied a very important position in Gu Mingzhou's heart. After all, it could quickly improve one's cultivation. However, it paled in comparison to the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique, which could directly devour the cultivation base of others for its own use. The Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique also had its weakness. According to Flamey's records, although the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique was a Tao art that cultivated devouring, it was also divided into nine realms. At the first level, the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique was of little value to cultivators. It could only devour inanimate objects or rather, 
cultivators who were on the verge of death and had fragile lives. Any living being with the slightest ability to fight back or tenacious vitality could resist the nine turns heavenly devouring technique, causing the devouring to fail. The second level was slightly better, although it also required the target to be dead. However, the cultivation base that it could absorb was almost one-third of the cultivation base of the devoured person. However, the extremely harsh conditions of the target to be devoured still made this seemingly high and mighty peerless technique as insignificant as chicken ribs. Only after reaching the third level, the initial stage of the nine turns heavenly devouring technique, would it no longer be of little value. After reaching the third realm, the conditions for the object that could be devoured changed. As long as the devoured person's cultivation was below the cultivators at the time, or was seriously injured, he could use the nine turns heavenly devouring technique to devour the person. As the realm of the nine turns heavenly devouring technique increased, the range of targets it could devour also increased. After devouring it, the cultivation base he could absorb also increased. When it reached the fourth or fifth realm, it could devour cultivators of the same cultivation level. At the sixth or seventh level, it could devour cultivators who were slightly higher in cultivation than itself. When one reached the eighth or ninth level, they would become truly terrifying. They would ignore the other party's resistance and directly devour them. Especially when one reached the ninth level, the nine revolutions heaven devouring art was cultivated to perfection. It was the most terrifying, and there was nothing in the world that could not be devoured. Devouring the heavens and earth, absorbing all things, was called devouring the heavens. It was precisely because the technique was divided into nine levels, also known as the nine turns, that the word nine turns was added before the heavenly devouring technique. It was then, called the nine turns heavenly devouring technique. It could be said to be an insanely powerful and terrifying cultivation technique. Unfortunately, the level of this cultivation technique depended on the amount of energy it absorbed. This also meant that if he wanted to improve the nine turns heavenly devouring technique, he had to constantly devour other cultivators. Although Gu Mingzhou was not a kind person, he was also not an evil person who killed the innocent. If he were to increase his cultivation to kill innocents, devour living beings, and plunder cultivation, he would definitely not do it. However, now that things had come to this, even if Gu Mingzhou was unwilling to practice, he could only practice. Because after the five golden characters were scattered into thousands of small characters, Gu Mingzhou understood this technique. He didn't even try to cultivate it. In just a hundred breaths, he had already cultivated it. Fortunately, he had already cultivated the nine turns heavenly devouring technique. However, whether he wanted to devour, plunder, and increase his realm was still in Gu Mingzhou's hands. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but open his eyes and let out a long breath. It would naturally devour its own enemies or evil people without thinking. As for others, Gu Mingzhou would definitely not devour and plunder them by force. Looks like you've already mastered it. Just as Gu Mingzhou made his decision, the Qing Emperor, who was standing on the altar, suddenly spoke. Ah! Uh. Due to the shock brought by the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique, Gu Mingzhou had forgotten about the Qing Emperor for a moment. It was only when the Qing Emperor spoke that he recalled that an ancient powerhouse was standing in front of him. The cultivation technique is actually devouring, so there are no changes in me now. Gu Mingzhou, who had come back to his senses, quickly explained. Because he could not devour anything now. Chapter 335 Gu Mingzhou felt a little regretful. After all, the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique was a technique passed down to him by the Qing Emperor. What if the other party had other ideas? The nature of this cultivation technique is to devour. You haven't tested it yet, but you need to cultivate it well. It will help you to soar in the future. Qing Emperor did not mind at all. Instead, he laughed and explained. I'll give you the inheritance here, and I'll return the favor. We'll meet again. Qing Emperor cupped his hand slightly at Gu Mingzhou with a smile on his face. His figure gradually faded until he disappeared. Thank you, Qing Emperor, for bestowing this technique on me. If there's a chance in the future, Gu Mingzhou will definitely be willing to be crushed to pieces to repay you. Gu Mingzhou hurriedly knelt down and respectfully sent the Qing Emperor off. 
As the saying goes, one who teaches others is a teacher. Although the Qing Emperor had only taught Gu Mingzhou spells, he had already regarded him as his master. I'll give you another gift for your words. Before the Qing Emperor completely disappeared, he once again let out a forthright laugh and said. Then, the Qing Emperor disappeared from the cave. The tricolored crystal that was spinning above the altar suddenly fell to the ground. Bang! Bang! The tricolored crystal immediately shattered, turning into a red sword, a yellow token, and green armor. Before he could take a closer look at the three items, several gusts of wind suddenly came. Whoosh! The four of them landed at the entrance of the cave and stared at Gu Mingzhou. The food that this king has his eyes on, don't even think about running away. An eerie and sharp voice sounded in the tunnel. A gloomy voice rang out in the tunnel and echoed into the cave. The faces of Sheng Wan Fei, Wu Ji Patriarch, Lu Yucheng, and He Yuliang, who had just appeared at the entrance of the cave, changed. Now, the four of them had unkempt hair and dirty faces and were covered in injuries. They were in a sorry state. Sheng Wan Fei, who had the strongest cultivator, was now pale and covered in wounds. He had obviously been seriously injured. When the sinister and sharp voice rang out, the four of them, who were originally looking at Gu Mingzhou, turned to look behind them in unison. Gu Mingzhou was surprised by the appearance of Shang Wan Fei and the others, as well as the current situation of the four people. However, when he heard the familiar voice, his heart sank and he stared at the tunnel. Previously, it was Wei Lin. Now, it was the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. A black figure the size of half a man in the long tunnel quickly moved toward the cave. Although the black shadow was still some distance away from the cave, under the faint white light, one could vaguely make out its outline. It was the terrifying demon with spikes all over its body, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. Food, even if you run to the ends of the earth, you can't change your fate of being eaten. The Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog couldn't wait to make an arrogant sound. To Gu Mingzhou's surprise, Sheng Wan Fei and the others, who had not been afraid of the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog and were united, were now standing in front of him. After hearing the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's arrogant voice, they uncharacteristically didn't refute it. Instead, as if they had seen something terrifying, they simultaneously retreated and flew toward Gu Mingzhou. Island Master Sheng Wan, you are. Gu Mingzhou subconsciously retreated to the edge of the altar, keeping a distance from He Yuliang, Wu Ji Patriarch, and the others. My young friend Mingzhou, it's great that you're fine. This demon is too strong. Even if the four of us join forces, we're not his match. You have to be careful later. Before he could finish, he was interrupted by Shang Wan Fei, who had calmed down. Gu Mingzhou could tell Shang Wan Fei and the other three people who were left outside should have already fought with the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. It was obvious that Shang Wan Fei, Wu Ji Patriarch, He Yuliang, and Lu Yucheng, the Four Great Master, had joined forces to fight the enemy, but they had not been able to defeat the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. Thank you for your reminder, Island Master Shang Wan. I'm very grateful. But is this demon really so powerful that even the four of you together are not its opponent? Gu Mingzhou cupped his hands and asked Shang Wan Fei, his eyes fixed on the nine nether poisonous hedgehog that was quickly approaching in the tunnel. If what Shang Wan Fei said was true, that the four of them couldn't defeat the nine nether poisonous hedgehog even if they joined forces, then the people in the cave would probably not be able to leave alive. In terms of strength, this demon is no match for us. It's a pity that the spiritual energy in this world is extremely thin. Our cultivation has been weakened a lot, which is why we can't resist it. Lu Yuching spoke first. He was extremely dissatisfied with being defeated by the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. If we were outside, we would be able to fight against this Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog with the support of my spiritual energy. He Yuliang said. Speaking of which, you brat actually profited from a disaster and entered this place first. Did you already take away the Qin Emperor's inheritance? He Yo Yang's eyes were like torches as he stared at Gu Mingzhou and asked coldly. If Gu Mingzhou dared to nod his head and admit it, He Yo Yang would probably attack him without hesitation. In the hearts of all cultivators, the Qin Emperor occupied an absolutely powerful position. 
the inheritance he left behind was naturally enough to move everyone's heart. When he Yu Yang said this, Gu Mingzhou immediately felt three pairs of eyes staring at him. Shang Wanfei and the others still attached great importance to the Qin Emperor's inheritance when they were being chased by the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. I've also just arrived here, and I haven't had the time to obtain the Qin Emperor's inheritance. Gu Mingzhou naturally wouldn't admit it as he was being stared at. He immediately denied it. He Yu Yang and the other three did not believe him. Don't try to trick us. Since you've just arrived, how do you explain what appeared on the altar? Wu Ji Patriarch had now returned to his human form and was covered in blood. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to finish speaking, he pointed at the three items on the altar. Although I came in earlier than you, most of my time was wasted in the bottomless pit. Otherwise, I would have taken away the three treasures on the altar long ago. How could you see them? Gu Mingzhou waved his hand and said sincerely, feeling wronged. Maybe you did it on purpose. Is it to gain our trust? He Yu Yang clearly did not believe Gu Mingzhou's explanation. Believe it or not Gu Mingzhou looked angry. He pointed at He Yu Yang but did not say anything else. He did not give any explanation. Although he said this, he became more and more cautious. It was obvious that even after taking out these three treasures, he still could not gain the trust of the crowd. If He Yu Yang and the others were suspicious of him, they might attack. He had to be on his guard. If he really obtained the Qing Emperor's inheritance, I'm afraid he would have taken away the three treasures long ago. Moreover, when we entered just now, we also encountered that strange endless darkness. Shang Wanfei glanced at the three treasures on the altar and said after a pause. The three treasures flickered with a strange light. They were definitely not ordinary items perhaps the Qing Emperor's inheritance was among them. He Yu Yang and the others didn't believe Gu Mingzhou's words, but they had to somewhat believe Sheng Wanfei's words. Wu Ji Patriarch and the others looked at the three treasures with greed. This was the inheritance treasure of an ancient great emperor. Who wouldn't be tempted? Chapter 336 Now that we're facing a great enemy, if we don't deal with the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog, I'm afraid none of us can get the Qin Emperor's inheritance. Let's work together to defeat the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog first, and then we can discuss who the inheritance should belong to. How about it? Shang Fei said in a low voice with a touch of disdain on his face when he saw the changes in the three men. I agree. Lu Yuching expressed his support. I also agree. Wu Ji Patriarch also expressed his opinion. My cultivation is the weakest, but I'm willing to do my part. Gu Mingzhou said hesitantly. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog that was chasing after the cave arrived at the entrance of the cave while everyone was talking. Hundreds and thousands of thorny shadows shot out in an instant, as fast as lightning. The black shadows were densely packed like a wall of thorns. They pushed forward and attacked Sheng Fei and the other four. Defensive Formation Sheng Fei's expression immediately changed and he lead the attack. He waved his arms and a vast amount of true core strength whizzed out. The Four Elements Defensive Formation was a defensive formation created based on the Eight Trigrams Formation. This formation wasn't a secret formation, but it was the most difficult to crack. Because its defense was in line with the Heavenly Tao, it was extremely strong. It was also combined with an ancient celestial formation, making it very powerful. As a result, the four phases of defensive formation had always been able to give the opponent a headache, whether it was used for defense or to break the enemy. Although Gu Mingzhou had never seen the formation before, he had once assisted the soldiers in the Zhou Dynasty's bandit suppression operation and had some understanding of the four elements of defense formation. This formation needed to take up four positions, which were the east of the Great Peace Azure Dragon, the north of the Reunion Black Tortoise, the south of the Happiness Vermilion Bird, and the west of the Red Mouthed White Tiger. The east of the Great Peace Azure Dragon sect was the core of the formation. It was in charge of commanding, adjusting positions, and resisting the enemy. The Vermilion Bird, Black Tortoise, and White Tiger were mainly defending and attacking. He could also keep people with the four of them to support and maintain the stability of the formation. Shang Fei, who was the first to make a move, was suspended in midair. 
A vast amount of true core strength gushed out madly, forming a circular shield around him, leaving the south, west, and north sides. It was obvious that he occupied the central position of the Green Dragon. It was clear that Sheng Wan Fei, He Yuliang, Wu Ji Patriarch, and Liu Yuqing had already used this formation. Even if they didn't cooperate, they probably had some discussions and plans. Gu Mingzhou did not even have time to react. He Yuliang, Wu Ji Patriarch, and Liu Yuqing had already leaped into the air. As if they had already planned this beforehand, they instantly occupied the west of the white tiger, the north of the black tortoise, and the south of the vermilion bird. In the blink of an eye, only the support's position was left. The position used for swimming and closing in was left for Gu Mingzhou. Was it a coincidence that Gu Mingzhou, who had the weakest cultivation, was in charge of the most important part of the enemy's attack, or was it a hidden intention? Mingzhou, my young friend, hurry up and take the position. If the formation fails, I'm afraid it won't be able to stop this wave of attacks from the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. While Gu Mingzhou was hesitating and doubting, Shang Wan Fei, who had made the first move, urged him nervously. The shadows of the thorns filled the entire cave, forming a wall of thorns. Those who remained could only block and had no chance of dodging. Gu Mingzhou did not dare to hesitate any longer. He watched as the swift and violent thorny wall was about to come. If they were to delay any longer, everyone present would probably suffer. He instantly opened his arms and released some of the spiritual energy that he had just recovered from the Qin Emperor's inheritance. In an instant, the spiritual energy of the others was fused together. With the support of the other four, the light shield Shang Wan Fei had released earlier expanded immediately. Light flowed and ultimately formed an impenetrable, hard light shield. The coldly shining wall of thorns immediately attacked, instantly crashing into the four elements defense array. Bang! A loud noise rang out in the narrow cave space. The echo rumbled, the mountain shook, and gravel rolled down. The wall of thorns, which contained the cultivation of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, was blocked by the defensive formation formed by the five of them, despite its ferocity. It was gradually destroyed following the loud noise. However, even though the four elements defensive formation was able to block this ferocious attack, it still shook violently and its light flickered. The five people's expressions changed. Shang Wan Fei even waved his arms, constantly adjusting the spiritual energy that gushed out of the five people's bodies to maintain the formation and block the attacks. Before the thorns disappeared, they still contained a wave of majestic inner strength, which directly overflowed into the formation, causing everyone to suffer a shock. This was especially so for Gu Mingzhou, who stood at the forefront of the formation and controlled its flow. He was almost the first to be attacked. As soon as the wall of thorns hit the formation, a huge pressure suddenly fell on Gu Mingzhou, forcing him to use all his strength to support it. After blocking the first wave of thorns, Gu Mingzhou had no ability to resist the spiritual energy that seeped into the formation. He was hit on the body without any resistance. Pfft. Fresh blood spurted out of his mouth like clear water. After the array blocked the wall of thorns, Gu Mingzhou could no longer hold on. He lost control of his body and flew out of the range of the four elements defense array, falling straight down. My young friend, Mingzhou. Sheng Wan Fei, who was in control of the formation, instantly noticed Gu Mingzhou's condition. To his surprise, Sheng Wan Fei broke away from the formation and flew toward him quickly, as if he wanted to catch him. Gu Mingzhou's heart felt warm. He didn't expect that Shang Wan Fei would ignore the danger of the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's sneak attack and leave the formation to save him at this critical moment. Even though he was heavily injured, his life could be in danger at any time. Ahem, Island Master Shang Wan, don't worry about me. Be careful of the Nine Nethers. Before he could finish speaking, the anxiety on Shang Wan Fei's face disappeared instantly and was replaced by a sinister smile and the smugness of his scheme succeeding. Not good. Shang Wan Fei's sudden change made Gu Mingzhou, who had just put down his guard, have an ominous premonition in his mind. Shang Wan Fei's right hand, which had been about to catch Gu Mingzhou, suddenly turned into a palm, and his spiritual energy burst out and hit Gu Mingzhou. The wind from the palm attack came. Gu Mingzhou, who was seriously injured, did not have time to block at all. 
he did not even have the ability to block and was instantly hit in the chest. A soft muffled sound rang out, and blood spurted out of Gu Mingzhou's mouth again. Caught off guard, it splashed directly on the sneering Shangguan Fei's face. Gu Mingzhou's falling body suddenly accelerated like a bolt of lightning, and he instantly crashed into the mountain rocks. Broken rocks flew everywhere, and the intense muffled sound echoed in the cave for a long time. Shang Wan Fei flew down from the air, his hands behind his back, staring at the place where Gu Mingzhou had fallen. Immediately after, he Yu Liang, Lu Yuqing, and Wu Ji Patriarch, who had been maintaining the formation, actually withdrew it. He floated down from the air and landed behind Shang Wan Fei, looking at Gu Mingzhou. Whether it was Shang Wan Fei, He Yu Liang, Lu Yuqing, or Wu Ji Patriarch, all of them had sinister smiles on their faces. Island Master Shang Wan is indeed a wise man. This kid has really become our prisoner without any ability to resist. He Yu Liang, who was standing behind Shang Wan Fei, complacently flattered him with a smile. Chapter 337 Why? Gu Mingzhou's face was extremely pale, with traces of blood still remaining at the corner of his mouth. He held his chest with his left hand, staggered up from the ground covered with tortoise shell cracks, and asked in confusion. They were supposed to fight the nine nether poisonous hedgehog together, so why did they suddenly turn hostile? Moreover, Gu Mingzhou had never expected that the person who had fallen out with him would be the always graceful Shang Wan Fei. This was really unbelievable. In front of benefits, all our enemies. Do you really think that no one will know about the matter of you obtaining the Qin Emperor's inheritance just because you don't say it? Hearing this, Shang Wan Fei smiled brightly and was about to answer smugly, when a gloomy and sharp voice suddenly rang out and answered first. The one who spoke was the poisonous hedgehog. No one knew when he had flown into the cave and was suspended above Shang Wan Fei and the other three. He shook his spikes and stared at Gu Mingzhou. Shang Wan Fei and the other three, who had been like enemies just a moment ago and were envious at the sight of each other, did not guard against the approach of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog at all. Instead, they were more like friends approaching them without the slightest discomfort. No matter how stupid Gu Mingzhou was, he could see the clues. You guys are working together. Gu Mingzhou was on the verge of collapsing as he spoke with a pale face. Although he didn't want to believe it, the truth was right in front of him. He couldn't believe it. Before he could finish, he started coughing violently again. His body was in severe pain. Even though he had stood up again, his entire body was still on the verge of collapse, like a candle in the wind. Gu Mingzhou's injuries were too severe. He had been seriously injured by the nine nether poisonous hedgehog sneak attack on his lower abdomen. Although he recovered a little later, the internal strength in the thorns had damaged his injury in the battle just now. Especially Shang Wan Fei's fatal blow, although he obviously did not kill him and held back. However, it was obvious that he was prepared to directly cripple Gu Mingzhou. His palm was so fierce that it almost instantly destroyed Gu Mingzhou's eight meridians. If Gu Mingzhou had not used his spiritual energy to temper his body in the past, the meridians in his body would have long disintegrated and he would have become a useless person. His body was in a terrible state now. It was messy scattered, and broken. It was already a miracle that he could stand up. With his serious injuries, he was bound to be captured by Shang Wan Fei and the others, as well as the even more terrifying Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Haven't you heard of this saying? The one who answered Gu Mingzhou was neither the Poisonous Hedgehog nor Shang Wan Fei. Instead, it was Wu Ji Patriarch who had returned to his human form. He glared at Gu Mingzhou and said in disdain. Kid, I'm afraid you didn't expect that you would have this day, did you? Do you still remember how you tortured me in the stone house? I'll made you pay it back double today. Wu Ji Patriarch walked out, as if he really wanted to attack Gu Mingzhou and avenge his humiliation. What Gu Mingzhou had done to Wu Ji Patriarch in the stone house still left him brooding. It was no wonder. After all, Wu Ji Patriarch was a big shot. In his eyes, Gu Mingzhou was just a lucky clown. He, who was high and mighty, was humiliated by a clown whom he had always looked down on. Naturally, he would take it to heart. He had always been a vengeful person. 
Otherwise, he wouldn't have prepared for a hundred years and even lowered his status to cooperate with others just to destroy the Seven Demons Hall. Gu Mingzhou naturally knew Wu Ji Patriarch's personality, so he had the intention to kill him in the stone house. This kind of person had to be eliminated at the root to prevent future trouble. Otherwise, it would be endless trouble for them to grow again in the spring breeze. It was a pity that the situation was inappropriate at that time. Gu Mingzhou had to bear with it because of Shang Wan Fei's existence. Shang Wan Fei and the others, who were irreconcilable with the demons, suddenly changed sides and cooperated with the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. Gu Mingzhou was disheartened and felt that he could not escape this calamity. Gu Mingzhou was all alone. Although he had received the Qing Emperor's inheritance, how could he escape from everyone with his old and new injuries? However, if you want to kill me, you will have to pay a price. As he thought about it, he summoned the spear in his body and prepared to counterattack when Wu Ji Patriarch attacked. I attacked just now because I had no other choice. If you are willing to hand over the Qing Emperor's inheritance, I will ensure that you leave this place safely. What do you think? Shang Wan Fei, who didn't say anything, suddenly reached out and stopped Wu Ji Patriarch, pulling him back. He himself took two small steps closer to Gu Mingzhou. With a warm smile on his face, Shang Wan Fei politely cupped his hands at Gu Mingzhou. If one didn't know about his past deeds and actions, one would probably think that he was a modest gentleman. But unfortunately, after he suddenly attacked Gu Mingzhou with his palm and almost broke all the meridians in Gu Mingzhou's body, Gu Mingzhou had a new understanding of this hypocrite. He he, you promise? Gu Mingzhou pointed at Shang Wan Fei and then moved to the left and right. He pointed at He Yuliang, Lu Yuqing, Wu Ji Patriarch, and the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog floating in the air behind Shang Wan Fei and said with a cold smile. He knew that it would be difficult to escape today, so he no longer hid anything. He wouldn't let them get the inheritance so easily. The Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring technique was too terrifying. It must not fall into the hands of any one of them. Otherwise, it would be a huge disaster for the entire world. Hence, he definitely could not hand over the inheritance. Cultivators would truly disappear from the world when they used soul obliteration. All that was left was a useless body. I didn't expect you to be such a tough nut to crack. This king has a hundred ways to obtain the inheritance from your soul. In the face of Gu Mingzhou's fearlessness in the face of danger, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog spoke at an appropriate time and said with disdain. The poisonous hedgehog's seemingly casual words hit Gu Mingzhou's heart. The Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring technique must not fall into their hands. However, even committing suicide to destroy one's own soul could not destroy the heavenly devouring technique. This made Gu Mingzhou feel a heavy sense of helplessness. However, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's words had yet to be verified. The obliteration of the divine soul was not an ordinary death. It was the true meaning of the soul scattering. He didn't believe that the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog would be able to obtain the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring technique after its soul was destroyed. This kind of thing, it was better to believe it than not. There must be no mistakes caused by the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring technique. Toad, you seem to have a grudge against this kid. I'll give you a chance to take revenge. Just leave him alive, and you can do whatever you want. The poisonous hedgehog suddenly changed the topic and looked at Wu Ji. Old hedgehog, although I'm not convinced by you, I fully agree with your decision. Thank you. Wu Ji patriarch sneered and cupped his hands at the poisonous hedgehog. Wu Ji sex patriarch pushed Shang Wan Fei away and walked toward Gu Mingzhou with a sinister smile. Shang Wan Fei wanted to stop him, but he seemed to have thought of something. There was a moment of hesitation in his eyes, but in the end, he gave up the idea of stopping Wu Ji Patriarch and looked at Gu Mingzhou coldly. Gu Mingzhou pursed his lips slightly, his expression was grim. He stared at the approaching Wu Ji Patriarch and clenched his right hand again. The spear appeared in his body and he was ready to fight. Chapter, 338 He knew Wu Ji Patriarch's strength very well. If he was at his peak, he might be able to resist. But now, he was so heavily injured that he couldn't even stand. He probably wouldn't even last half a round against Wu Ji Patriarch. What should I do? 
Gu Mingzhou pursed his lips, feeling extremely anxious. The most effective way to protect the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring technique was to destroy the soul. But looking at the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's confident look, it was probably very difficult. He even began to regret obtaining the Qing Emperor's inheritance, the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring technique. You've encountered some difficulties. The voice that was filled with vicissitudes of life and kindness was neither ear piercing nor loud. On the contrary, it was a little low and ordinary, without any special characteristics. Gu Mingzhou's expression changed drastically when he heard the voice. At this moment, he suddenly felt like crying. He was like a child who had left home and reunited with his parents. An indescribable emotion instantly surged into his heart. Excitement, excitement, grievance. In an instant, a huge wave was set off in his heart. This voice was not only important to Gu Mingzhou, but it was also intimate and even inseparable. It was a pity that the inextinguishable voice of Su Fenyu's birth on Tianling Island had come to an abrupt end and disappeared since then. However, in the time that the voice had disappeared, he had been thinking, waiting, and anticipating the return of the owner of the voice. He had been waiting for this day and night and he was finally back. Old Zhao even if there were thousands of words in his stomach, the words would only become names when they reached his mouth. Old Zhao. Zhao Qinkuan. The seemingly sage-like old man was actually an old naughty child who did not care about trifles. He was a mysterious cultivator from the upper realm, but he was inexplicably imprisoned in a strange reincarnation. The relationship between Zhao Qinkuan and Gu Mingzhou was that of a teacher and a friend. In Gu Mingzhou's heart, they were like family. They had finally reunited after a long time, and their hearts were instantly filled with waves. What? As soon as Gu Mingzhou finished speaking, Wu Ji Patriarch, who was slowly approaching, suddenly asked in confusion. He didn't know what was going on in Gu Mingzhou's mind, but he was constantly paying attention to the changes in him. Wu Ji Patriarch had seen Gu Mingzhou's methods before. Even though Gu Mingzhou was seriously injured, he still didn't dare to let his guard down. Ah! Gu Mingzhou instantly recovered from his emotions. He knew that he had misspoken and was now surrounded. Don't say anything, kid. We can catch up later. Calm down and wait for Wu Ji Patriarch to attack you. When everyone is unprepared, Yul Zhao Qinkuan's voice continued to ring in Gu Mingzhou's mind. Zhao Qinkuan told Gu Mingzhou his plan, and the originally flustered Gu Mingzhou immediately calmed down and returned to his original cautious and frightened expression. Let me test the power of the three I toad. Gu Mingzhou suddenly extended his right hand. Whoosh! The long spear flickered with a cold light and appeared in his hand out of thin air. Just as he moved his spear, the injuries on his body were affected again, and he coughed violently. He even staggered and was on the verge of collapse. Even so, he did not show any fear. He gritted his teeth and held the spear with both hands as he stared at Wu Ji Patriarch. In the eyes of Wu Ji Patriarch, it seemed like Gu Mingzhou was already at the end of his rope. Wu Ji Patriarch, who was still a little wary of Gu Mingzhou, immediately calmed down. Ha, huh, you're at death's door, and you still don't know what you're doing. I'll let you know the consequences of offending this patriarch today. Wu Ji Patriarch couldn't wait any longer. The spiritual energy in his body burst out, and he instantly closed in on Gu Mingzhou and fiercely struck out with his palm. The wind from his palm whistled, and his spiritual energy curled around it as he attacked Gu Mingzhou's chest. Although the palm looked ferocious, he had not used his full strength. In fact, he had not even used half of his strength. Although Gu Mingzhou looked like an arrow at the end of its flight, the usually cautious Wu Ji Patriarch still had some reservations. The main purpose of his first strike was not to hurt him but to test him. This move has no power. Don't use force to resist it and feign defeat. Zhao Qinkuan saw through Wu Ji Patriarch's thoughts and warned him. Understood. Out of his trust in Zhao Qinkuan, Gu Mingzhou chose to trust him unconditionally. He immediately staggered forward and thrust his spear at Wu Ji Patriarch. You don't know what's good for you. Wu Ji Patriarch saw Gu Mingzhou staggering over. His steps were chaotic, but not a trace of spiritual energy flowed out. He easily dodged the long spear, 
instantly stuck to Gu Mingzhou's chest, and struck out with his palm. Bang! Bang! As expected, Gu Mingzhou, along with his gun, was instantly sent flying 100 meters backward. He crashed into the mountain wall behind him and rolled onto the ground. Gu Mingzhou, who had rolled on the ground, immediately vomited blood and looked dispirited. I thought you would be very powerful after obtaining the inheritance. I didn't expect you to be so weak if I had known you were so weak, I wouldn't have needed to use my previous plan. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog let out a sharp laugh and shook its head. Old hedgehog, you're wrong. The reason why he's so weak is mainly because of island master Shengwan's palm just now. I guess his eight meridians have been broken. When Lu Yuching heard this, he immediately became dissatisfied. That's right. If island master Shengwan had not injured Gu Mingzhou severely, it would have been extremely difficult for us to capture him. Now that he has obtained the Qing Emperor's inheritance, do you think we can stop him if he wants to escape? Before Lu Yuching could finish, he Yuliang continued. I've just been born and my strength hasn't recovered yet. Otherwise, I wouldn't even care about you, let alone this little cultivator. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog said unhappily. It didn't care about the face of Shang Wan Fei and the others at all, which immediately caused the four people to be dissatisfied and frown at the same time. Since we didn't manage to determine the winner up there, why don't we settle it here? Lu Yuching angrily said. Don't say that I'm bullying you, you can still come at me together. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog trembled in the air and retreated. Its spike stood upright as it entered the battle mode. Serious matters are more important. Don't forget our agreement. Shang Wan Fei turned to look at Wu Ji Patriarch. The fat on Wu Ji Patriarch's face trembled slightly. He revealed a bright smile and turned to look at Gu Mingzhou, who was lying on the ground. I won't kill you. I'll just let you have a taste of my own pig killing technique. As he spoke, Wu Ji Patriarch immediately dashed forward and quickly approached Gu Mingzhou. His fat and broad hands turned into claws and suddenly clawed at Gu Mingzhou's collarbone. The wind from the claw was sharp, and his spiritual energy surged. Obviously, Wu Ji Patriarch was not going to show any mercy. He wanted to cripple his opponent. Just as he was about to grab Gu Mingzhou, who was lying on the ground, he suddenly looked at Wu Ji Patriarch and smiled. Wu Ji Patriarch noticed Gu Mingzhou's change and couldn't help but be shocked. However, the attack was too fierce, and he was already close to Gu Mingzhou, so he had no time to stop. He could only grit his teeth and continue to channel his spiritual energy, making his attacks even more ferocious. He wanted to finish this as soon as possible. A red glow shot out of Gu Mingzhou's body. It was as fast as lightning, and in an instant, it went to meet Wu Ji Patriarch. Chapter, 339 Blood spurted out of the cave. It was sudden and without warning. It was especially eye-catching as it swept across the sky. Spurt. Blood gushed out like a fountain, drawing a beautiful arc in the air and splashing to the ground. There was also a fat right arm in the shape of a claw with a green sleeve. It was cut off at the arm and flew into the air before falling to the ground. His heart-wrenching cries of pain reverberated in the narrow cave. Ah! Wu Ji Patriarch's chubby face was almost completely twisted at this moment. His brows were furrowed, and he looked ferocious and terrifying. He was pale and in pain. The right hand that was originally reaching out towards Gu Mingzhou had disappeared, and his right shoulder was empty. Even though his left hand was tightly covering the broken wound, he could not stop the blood from flowing. The sudden turn of events caught Wu Ji Patriarch by surprise, and he found it hard to accept. Or perhaps his right arm had been cut off, causing him to be seriously injured. His heart-wrenching cries echoed in the air. His face was twisted, but he gritted his teeth and his eyes were spitting fire. But he staggered back and didn't dare to say anything. Under Wu Ji Patriarch's eyes, the red figure gradually stabilized on his right side. Holding a three-foot-long sword as thin as a cicada's wing, it cut across the chest and stopped in the air with the sword tip pointing to the ground. Fresh blood remained on the blade, flowing down the blade and sliding to the ground. One, two, three. Jing Wudao. 
Wu Ji Patriarch gritted his teeth as he saw the man in red, and the name popped out. The person who suddenly appeared was Jing Wudao. Jing Wudao had been arranged by Zhao Qinkuan. The first person Zhao Qinkuan contacted was not Gu Mingzhou, but Jing Wudao. He had only come up with this plan after understanding Gu Mingzhou's situation. This was part of the plan. He wanted Gu Mingzhou to show weakness, let Wu Ji Patriarch approach him, and at the critical moment, he called out Jing Wudao to catch him off guard. They had succeeded in deceiving the unsuspecting Wu Ji Patriarch, and even cut off his right arm, severely injuring him. However, Zhao Qinkuan's plan was not as simple as it seemed. There were many other plans. For example, when Jing Wudao suddenly appeared and severely injured Wu Ji Patriarch, attracting everyone's attention in the cave, a purple dwarf the size of a palm was emitting a faint purple light from Gu Mingzhou's robe, slowly enveloping his entire body. Sheng Wan Fei, who had been watching Gu Mingzhou and Wu Ji Patriarch from the cave, was the first to react. Leaping up, his long robe fluttered in the wind as his spiritual energy surged. He passed Wu Ji Patriarch and went straight for Jing Wudao. Brother Wudao, be careful. Gu Mingzhou quickly reminded him. Sheng Wan Fei's cultivation and strength were almost the best among the people present, unlike Wu Ji Patriarch. But his worry was obviously unnecessary. Since Jing Wudao had been arranged by Zhao Qinkuan, he was naturally very clear about what will happen after. When Sheng Wan Fei attacked, Jing Wudao swiftly threw out the soft sword in his hand, which was like a thin snake, and quickly stabbed out. The flexible sword seemed to pierce through the void as it flew toward Sheng Wan Fei at a rapid speed. Naturally, Sheng Wan Fei did not dare to block the sword with his palm. No matter how conceited he was, he didn't dare to fight back when he saw Jing Wudao cut off Wu Ji Patriarch's right arm. What's more, Sheng Wan Fei had fought with Jing Wudao before. Although he had won, he was no longer in his prime. After such a long period of training, he had long lost his previous confidence and had become extremely cautious. Seeing that Jing Wudao was not afraid of him at all, Shang Wan Fei suddenly felt a lot warier and did not dare to block the sword with his palm again. When Jing Wudao brandished his sword to stab him, Shang Wan Fei immediately withdrew his palm and flipped in the air. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, he actually landed not far from Gu Mingzhou. The retreating Wu Ji Patriarch roared and charged at Jing Wudao. Island Master Shangwan, help me kill this thief. Wu Ji Patriarch flew into the air and transformed into his true form. He turned into a small mountain-sized teal-eyed toad with his mouth wide open and his scarlet tongue shooting out. The long tongue was like an arrow that had left the bow as it tore through the air, swift and violent as it directly attacked Jing Wudao. Wu Ji Patriarch's true form was not part of Zhao Qinkuan's plan, and it was even more unexpected for Jing Wudao. Although there was a flaw in his plan, Jing Wudao was also slightly surprised, just like when he was dealing with island master Shangwan, the flexible sword become even fiercer than before. Kill. The sword as thin as a cicada's wing bent like a long whip when Jing Wudao's voice sounded. It wrapped around the teal-eyed toad's long tongue when it was about to approach and instantly suppressed the ferocious scarlet tongue. Wu Ji Patriarch's attack was swift, but Jing Wudao stopped him in a blink of an eye. He immediately became anxious. Shang Wan Fei immediately activated his spiritual energy, but he did not attack Jing Wudao. Instead, he slapped Gu Mingzhou with his right palm. Gu Mingzhou's attention was all on Jing Wudao. He didn't expect Shang Wan Fei to actually attack him at this time. After Master Qin's magical treatment, he recovered half of his strength and immediately retreated. What was Shang Wan Fei's cultivation level? Even though Gu Mingzhou had suddenly recovered, it did not stop Shang Wan Fei's attack at all. Instead, his spiritual energy became stronger and his attacks became fiercer, instantly pressing toward Gu Mingzhou. However, Gu Mingzhou's retreat had bought Jing Wudao some time. Jing Wudao immediately activated his sword technique, and the sword that was wrapped around the teal-eyed toad's long tongue suddenly straightened up. A powerful force instantly overrode the long tongue. The teal-eyed toad's long tongue had grown with its cultivation, and it was comparable to a living artifact. It was naturally extraordinary. Even though the soft sword released a powerful force, it was still unable to hurt the long tongue at all. 
it only shook it away. Jing Wudao was surprised by the hardness of the long tongue. At this moment, Jing Wudao did not have time to think. He immediately tapped the ground with the tip of his foot and suddenly slashed at Shang Wan Fei. Like a transparent sword, it instantly pierced through the void and went straight for Shang Wan Fei's arm. Seeing that he was about to hit Gu Mingzhou, Shang Wan Fei immediately gave up the idea of attacking and quickly withdrew his palm and retreated. After his sword was missed, Jing Wudao didn't follow up with another attack. Instead, he flipped in the air and landed in front of Gu Mingzhou. Are you alright? Jing Wudao asked softly. I'm fine. Gu Mingzhou quickly replied. It's you, kid. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog flew over quickly, and the thorns on its body shot out. Whoosh! The sky was filled with thorns and they attacked at the same time. Lu Yucheng and He Yuliang also reacted, and the two of them circulated their spiritual energy as they flew into the air. Brat, die! Seeing this, Shang Wan Fei immediately waved his palm and suddenly slapped. The wind from the palm whistled as the thorns followed behind, their power even more ferocious. Jing Wudao didn't know how powerful the nine nether poisonous hedgehog's thorns were, but the threatening aura they emitted was enough to make him apprehensive. Let's go. Jing Wudao grabbed Gu Mingzhou and said in a deep voice. Gu Mingzhou knew what was going on. Without waiting for Jing Wudao to speak, a transparent token the size of a palm instantly flew out and floated above his head. The token shone brightly, and several curtains of light hung down, instantly enveloping Gu Mingzhou. The void trembled and the cave shook. Gu Mingzhou, who was enveloped by the light, disappeared instantly, leaving behind a shadow that swayed in the wind. Hundreds of sharp thorns followed and pierced through the shadow. Chapter 340 It was noon, and the sun hung high in the sky. Other than the dilapidated old temple on the island, the smoke-filled bluestone city and the thatched cottages built by the sea had all been reduced to ruins. Between the broken walls, ferocious demonic beasts were wandering around, sniffing under the scorching sun. The roars of the beasts continued to ring out, and it was extremely terrifying. Dozens of ferocious demonic beasts that were emitting black energy were sleeping in it. Some of them were in front of the door of their bedrooms, and some were in the corridor of their side bedrooms. There were even some who were lying on the altar that was emitting a faint light, sticking to the bottomless round black hole, lying on the edge, and from time to time, they would let out a shocking snore. A bright light suddenly appeared among the dozens of humongous ferocious magical beasts that had fallen into a deep sleep. It shot out from the bottomless circular black hole. The light was swift and violent. In the span of a breath, it disappeared into the sky. The magical beasts lying around the edge of the black hole were clearly awakened by this beam of light, and they leaped up from the altar. It was a magical beast that was similar to a cheetah but the size of an elephant. Its entire body was as black as ink, and the corners of its bloody mouth were cracked to the root of its ears. Two rows of inch-long fangs were exposed outside of its lips, and its entire body exuded a faint black aura. Its blue pupils revealed a fierce light, and it let out a low growl as if it was demonstrating its strength. It looked around, looking for something that had awakened it. However, that beam of light had long disappeared. Where could he find it? In the end, the demonic beast found nothing. It shook its head in confusion and looked up at the sky. He lay down on the edge of the black hole again, his eyes closed slightly, ready to continue sleeping. Just as the demonic beast closed its eyes, the bottomless black hole suddenly emitted a green light. Then, a green toad the size of a small hill came out of the black hole. With its previous experience, this leopard-type magical beast was clearly much more intelligent. As soon as the giant toad came out of the cave, it was instantly awakened and roared. Its four strong limbs suddenly stomped on the ground, and it suddenly jumped up and pounced at the toad fiercely. Wu Ji Patriarch had come to chase Gu Mingzhou, but didn't expect to be targeted by a huge demonic beast the moment he came out of the cave he immediately dodged in fear. The leopard-type demonic beast was obviously even more furious after its attack was missed. It raised its head and roared at the infinity, and the black energy became even thicker. The roar of the leopard-type demonic beast woke up the other demonic beasts in the ancient temple. Instantly, 
dozens of huge demonic beasts jumped over and surrounded the floating Wuji patriarch. They bared their teeth and looked ferocious. The black energy that they emitted actually connected together in a strange way, forming a huge, ferocious beast-shaped figure in the sky. It looked like a dragon yet not a dragon, like a bird yet not a bird. Its body was winding as it occupied the sky and looked down at the infinity. What? Wu Ji Patriarch was shocked when he saw the terrifying beast's shadow above him. He could feel the aura of death from the huge beast. While Wu Ji Patriarch was still in shock, the leopard-like demonic beast attacked him again. The dozens of demonic beasts surrounding Wu Ji Patriarch also swarmed forward. They leaped into the air and pounced fiercely as if they were walking on flat ground. Wu Ji Patriarch was shocked. He wasn't afraid of the demonic beasts, but he was wary of the giant beast above him. He didn't dare attack them directly. He hurriedly leaped into the void again. The beast's shadow above his head gave him too much of a shock, and he did not dare to get close. He jumped into the gaps between the magical beasts that were pouncing on him. Even though Wu Ji Patriarch was now a teal tide toad with the body of a small mountain, it was extremely agile, and it just happened to jump out of the gap between the beasts. Wu Ji Patriarch didn't stop at all after escaping the encirclement. His thick legs touched the ground, and he jumped up again. After a few jumps, he disappeared into the sky. The shadows of the beasts in the sky made him feel uncomfortable, and he wanted to leave this place as soon as possible. Now that he had the opportunity, he naturally wouldn't stay for even a moment. The leopard-type magical beast let out an unwilling roar as it watched the teal-eyed toad disappear. Although it could leap, it was a beast after all. It couldn't fly, so it could only watch the infinity leave. It was obvious that it was extremely angry that the people who had disturbed its rest had escaped one after another, and it roared continuously. At this moment, the several dozen magical beasts behind the leopard-type magical beast all turned their gazes to the black hole in the center of the altar. The leopard-type demonic beast also noticed the abnormality and gave up on running away. It turned to look at the black hole. The originally dull and unremarkable bottomless black hole suddenly burst out with a bright light. Then, four figures flew out. The leopard-type magical beast immediately let out a roar and pounced on the four figures without seeing their faces clearly. The tens of demonic beasts that were watching the black hole's transformation all jumped up at the same time and pounced toward the four black shadows that had appeared. The deafening roar pierced through the ancient temple and went straight to the nine heavens. A white light streaked across the clear sky. The white light seemed to be unable to withstand the huge weight. Just as it was about to fly out of the island, it suddenly smashed into the beach at the edge of the island. The sand flew and the sea retreated. A moment later, the waves hit the shore. In the waves, the dust and sand settled, and two figures stood on the shore, letting the waves hit their ankles. Cough Gu Mingzhou coughed violently, his face flushed red. Are you alright? Jing Wudao hurriedly asked in concern. I'm fine. We've escaped, right? Gu Mingzhou quickly waved his hand and smiled. He raised his head and looked around to confirm the situation. Just like what old Zhao said, the instant talisman can still be used even in a cave with restrictions. Jing Wudao nodded. Even spiritual energy can be isolated in the cave, the instant talisman can't be restricted. Gu Mingzhou spread out his right hand's five fingers, and in the palm of his hand lay the broken transparent jade slip. The broken jade slip was the instant talisman. At the critical moment just now, he had relied on this instant talisman to escape the cave and escape from the encirclement of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog and the others. It was the most important part of Zhao Qianquan's plan. The whole plan was to use Jing Wudao's appearance to attract attention, and then let Master Qin take the opportunity to treat Gu Mingzhou's injury so that Gu Mingzhou would have the ability to activate the instant talisman. Both Zhao Qianquan and Jing Wudao could only be regarded as spiritual bodies, and could not use instant talismans at all. Moreover, Master Qin was not reliable. Even if he could use it, it would only allow him to escape on his own. He would not be able to take Gu Mingzhou with him. Hence, Zhao Qianquan's plan was to let Gu Mingzhou recover his cultivation and use the instant talisman. The plan had indeed succeeded. 
it's a pity that the instant talisman, which could have been used five times, has lost its effect. Gu Mingzhou looked at the fragment in his hand and sighed. The instant talisman had saved him more than once, and now that it was broken, he felt sad. The instant talisman was made for cultivators to use. Now that its power has been exhausted, it can be considered to have died of old age and ended its duty. Zhao Qinkuan grabbed the instant talisman in his hand. The small green toads with disgusting meat lumps on their backs appeared in pieces. Chapter 341 Wu Ji Patriarch Seeing this, Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao said in unison. There were a total of five fragments in Zhao Qinkuan's hand. On the thumb-sized fragment, a jade-green toad emerged. The strange toad was only a few millimeters in size, but its eyes and brows were clear. One could clearly see that there were vertical eyes on its forehead and in between its eyes. On its uneven back, there were tiny tumors. Although they were not big, they covered its entire back. At first glance, it really did look like Wu Ji Patriarch's true body. It's not Wu Ji Patriarch. I can't feel any of his aura. Zhao Qinkuan looked at the toad on the fragment carefully and denied his previous opinion. He shook his head and said. It was very similar to Wu Ji Patriarch's true form, a toad. However, he couldn't feel the existence of any power. Even if it's not Wu Ji Patriarch, I'm afraid it's related. Jing Wudao speculated. This toad should represent the teal-eyed toad and not the Wu Ji Patriarch, but I don't know why it appeared on the fragment of the instant talisman. Zhao Qinkuan said, shaking his head. It's very likely that the person who made this instant talisman infused his blood essence into it during the refining process. Before Zhao Qinkuan could finish his sentence, Master Qin said. If Wu Ji Patriarch could sense the bloodline of inheritance on the instant talisman, he would have chased after Gu Mingzhou to get the inheritance. Just as they were chatting, a clear beam of light shot over. The black shadow gradually grew larger, like a flying mountain. Wu Ji Patriarch. Even from a distance, Gu Mingzhou could still recognize him. The green light and black shadow were Wu Ji Patriarch. How is this possible? My divine sense actually didn't discover him. Zhao Qinkuan also recognized the person, but his face turned ugly and he said in disbelief. This was too terrifying. The fact that Wu Ji Patriarch Sex Patriarch was able to avoid Zhao Qinkuan's divine sense meant that his cultivation was at least stronger than Zhao Qinkuan's. Although Wu Ji Patriarch is powerful, he can't be stronger than old Zhao. Did he hide something from us? Gu Mingzhou was equally shocked. In terms of understanding Wu Ji Patriarch, Gu Mingzhou was undoubtedly the clearest. Wu Ji Patriarch's cultivation was at the peak of the human realm, and he was only half a step away from the earth realm. It was impossible for him to avoid Zhao Qinkuan's divine sense. This was not good news. If Wu Ji Patriarch had really been hiding his cultivation, he would have been terrifying. Not to mention Gu Mingzhou, Jing Wudao, Zhao Qinkuan, and the others whose lives were on the line. Even Sheng Wan Fei, He Yuliang, Lu Yucheng, the nine nether poison hedgehog, and all the demons in this world would probably not be able to escape this calamity. Gu Mingzhou's expression was grave. Is it very powerful to be able to avoid your divine sense? Master Qin joked as if he didn't know what was at stake. You don't understand. How can Wu Ji Patriarch compare to you? To be able to avoid my divine sense, his cultivation must be extremely terrifying. Zhao Qinkuan sighed as he stared at the black shadow in the sky. Is being able to avoid your divine sense terrifying? It's because of the teal-eyed toad in your hand, just conceal the toad's aura. You're making a fuss over nothing, useless. Master Qin said in disdain. Because of this? Zhao Qinkuan looked at the fragment in his hand doubtfully. He immediately closed his fingers and put the fragment away. Sure enough, he found Wu Ji Patriarch rushing over. Huh, I see. Zhao Qinkuan laughed. Phew so it's this fragment's doing. Gu Mingzhou also heaved a sigh of relief and said. Even though Wu Ji Patriarch didn't hide his cultivation, he's still very difficult to deal with. Gu Mingzhou said worriedly. Wu Ji Patriarch's cultivation wasn't terrifying, but when the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, 
Sheng Wanfei, and the others arrived, it would still be disadvantageous for Gu Mingzhou. Let me ask you, is the Qin Emperor's inheritance that you previously obtained a cultivation technique that can devour other people's cultivation? Zhao Qinkuan asked in a serious tone. It's the heavenly devouring technique. Gu Mingzhou nodded slightly. Since that's the case, use Wu Ji Patriarch as your stepping stone to improve your cultivation. Zhao Qinkuan stood up and looked back at the approaching ancestor Wu Ji. Although I've learned the heavenly devouring technique, my realm isn't high enough. I can only devour non-living things that are weaker than me and have no ability to resist. Gu Mingzhou quickly refused. Just beat this toad until it's half dead. Before Gu Mingzhou could finish, Master Qin answered first. Not bad. You're the hope of all of us now, so don't underestimate yourself. Since you can devour those who can't fight back, then let Wu Dao beat him until he can't fight back. Zhao Qinkuan nodded at Master Qin in agreement, then turned to Jing Wu Dao. It might have been difficult before, but with your guidance, it won't be difficult to defeat Wu Ji Patriarch. Jing Wu Dao quickly cupped his hands. I'll leave this to you. Zhao Qinkuan turned his gaze to the approaching infinity. Jing Wu Dao instantly flew up to meet Wu Ji Patriarch. Wu Ji Patriarch saw Jing Wu Dao and immediately stuck out his tongue. The tea lied toad's long tongue pierced through the void and suddenly stabbed at Jing Wu Dao. Break! Jing Wu Dao was clearly prepared for this. When the long tongue approached, he swung the soft sword in his hand. The swift and fierce flexible sword transformed into a long snake. Wu Ji Patriarch had already suffered a loss, so he wouldn't fall into the same place twice. Seeing the soft sword coming, the long tongue suddenly changed its direction in the void, making a sharp turn and directly bypassing the soft sword. It then suddenly turned around and instantly attacked Jing Wudao. The tongue's sudden and agile change was clearly beyond Jing Wudao's expectations. Jing Wudao, who had been on the battlefield for a long time, wasn't too shocked. He immediately accepted the challenge with all his heart. The soft sword, which had missed, drew a flower in the air before returning to guard his chest, protecting himself. Wu Ji Patriarch was still a little afraid of Jing Wu Dao's flexible sword. They didn't dare to face him head on. When it saw Jing Wu Dao draw his sword to protect himself, it quickly turned its tongue and instantly circled behind Jing Wu Dao, wanting to attack him from behind. Zhao Qinkuan, who had been paying close attention to the battlefield, urged. Zhao Qinkuan seemed to trust Jing Wu Dao very much. At Zhao Qinkuan's urging, Jing Wu Dao didn't say anything but he immediately gave up on the idea of turning around to block. It dodged the tongue and flew toward the mountain-like toad. Wu Ji Patriarch didn't expect Jing Wu Dao to take such a risk. He ignored his attack and came to him. Wu Ji Patriarch would not let go of such a great opportunity. He didn't even think about it and immediately retracted his tongue, quickly winding it around Jing Wu Dao. The long tongue attacked quickly but retracted even faster. The moment Jing Wu Dao approached Wu Ji Patriarch, the tongue returned and wrapped around him without giving him a chance. Whoosh! Jing Wu Dao seemed to be caught off guard. Before he could attack Wu Ji Patriarch, he was bound tightly by the long red tongue. Gu Mingzhou wanted to help. Chapter 342 Zhao Qinkuan, who was floating in midair, suddenly flew over and stopped Gu Mingzhou. Don't be impatient, you have to believe in Wu Dao, Zhao Qinkuan said calmly. But Gu Mingzhou was still worried. He wanted to retort, but when he saw Zhao Qinkuan's confident smile, he swallowed his words. Jing Wu Dao, who was tightly bound by the long tongue, suddenly revealed a smile. Wind slash. The flexible sword was immediately tossed high into the air. Jing Wu Dao, who was bound, suddenly put his hands together in front of his chest. In the cloudless sky and the weather suddenly changed, and dark clouds gathered. It wasn't thunder, but an endless hurricane that rose from the ground. Like a giant dragon roaring, it was as fast as lightning and arrived in an instant just as Wu Ji Patriarch was feeling smug. The tea lied toad crashed into the mountain-like body. Boom! A thunderous boom erupted in the air. It was deafening and resounded throughout the universe. The endless hurricane that rose from the ground shattered. 
The hurricane that filled the sky fell from the sky and dissipated like a drizzle. In the hurricane, Jing Wudao's scarlet tongue, which was dozens of meters long, went limp as if it had lost its life. How is this possible? The one who was the most shocked was Wu Ji Patriarch. His round eyes were filled with shock, and his mouth trembled as he spoke in a weak voice. Although he had been hit by the huge dragon formed by the hurricane, the teal-eyed toad was still as intact as before, as if it had not been damaged in the slightest. The powerful pressure that originally came from the teal-eyed toad had been completely wiped out by the hurricane. Wu Ji Patriarch seemed to have used up all his energy after saying those words. He fell to the ground as if all his energy had been drained. Bang! Dust and sand flew in all directions as the teal-eyed toad's hill-like body smashed into the ground, creating a huge pit. Although it wasn't covered in turtle patterns, it was still a shocking sight. Many of the bumps on the toad's back had cracked open, and thick green mucus flowed out and mixed into the sand. Harvest the fruits. Zhao Qinkuan said to Gu Mingzhou. Let's eat. Master Qin jumped up and down excitedly on Gu Mingzhou's back. Gu Mingzhou didn't say anything and followed him. As the dust settled, Jing Wudao, who was in the sky, also leaped down and landed beside the round pit created by the teal-eyed toad. Wudao, are you okay? Gu Mingzhou's attention was never on the teal-eyed toad. What he cared about the most was Jing Wudao, his friend. With old Zhao's guidance, this immature teal-eyed toad won't be able to hurt me. Although he said that, Jing Wudao's forehead was covered in sweat, his lips were dry, and his breathing was weak. It had already exceeded the maximum load Jing Wudao's body could bear, and he was extremely weak. I have some vitality condensation pills here, quickly take them. Gu Mingzhou took out three vitality condensation pills from the Qianquan bag at his waist and treated Jing Wudao's injuries. He was worried when he saw Jing Wudao being entangled by the teal-eyed toad's long tongue. Jing Wudao did not stand on ceremony and took the vitality condensation pill. After consuming it, he immediately sat cross-legged down and began healing his injuries. Can't you focus on the main point? Zhao Qinquan pretended to be displeased and said angrily. Wudao's safety is the main point. Gu Mingzhou answered seriously. Come over and see if you can use the heavenly devouring technique on Wu Ji Patriarch in his current state. Zhao Qinquan did not want to argue with Gu Mingzhou about this. He admitted defeat and changed the topic. Gu Mingzhou walked over to Wu Ji Patriarch, who was lying on the ground. Jing Wudao's attack was so powerful that it almost killed Wu Ji Patriarch. However, Wu Ji Patriarch was a divine beast after all, and the tea-lied toad wouldn't die so easily. It was still alive, and its nostrils were as big as fists as it kept breathing. I'm not sure if I can use the heavenly devouring technique. I can only try. Gu Mingzhou said without hesitation. You must do your best. If you can't devour Wu Ji Patriarch in this state, we can only retreat and hide in the endless sea. Zhao Qinquan said in a solemn voice. Understood. Gu Mingzhou nodded and said. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog alone was enough to fight against Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao. With the addition of Shang Wanfei, He Yuliang, and Lu Yucheng, it would be impossible for Gu Mingzhou to leave this place. Gu Mingzhou did not immediately use the heavenly devouring technique. Instead, he circled around Wu Ji Patriarch to find a devouring point. Although the Nine Turns heavenly devouring technique was freakish, there were many restrictions in the early stages of devouring, which made the originally powerful spell technique become useless. If Gu Mingzhou had enough time to devour low-level demon beasts and slowly improve his level and cultivation, he would definitely become stronger in the later stages. The current situation did not allow him to do so, so he could only take a risk and find a weak spot to devour and use the heavenly devouring technique. If he wanted to successfully use the heavenly devouring technique in the early stage, he had to use his mouth as an entry point to devour. The effect was the best, and the success rate was the highest. Unfortunately, Gu Mingzhou still couldn't find the ideal place even after walking around Wu Ji Patriarch twice. Instead, he was disgusted by the green pus that flowed out of the open flesh on Wu Ji Patriarch's back. This huge toad was really hard to eat from head to toe. Tealide toads have almost no weakness. 
I suggest you consider the meat that has been broken open. Zhao Qinkuan seemed to see through Gu Mingzhou's thoughts and immediately reminded him. You're not joking, are you? Gu Mingzhou pointed at Wu Ji Patriarch, who was lying in the deep pit. The pustules on his back were bursting and gurgling with pus. The central point of the teal-eyed toad's meridians is also the place where he excretes the impurities in his body. Therefore, it's best to start from there. Zhao Qinkuan nodded and explained. Ha, huh, I'm afraid this kid is just pretending to be innocent. He's just disgusted by the abscesses on Wu Ji Patriarch's back. He's planning to live in seclusion on the vast ocean before the enemies catch up to him. Master Qin seemed to be certain Gu Mingzhou wouldn't eat the pustules of the teal-eyed toad, so he didn't hide his sarcasm. Who says I don't dare? Gu Mingzhou was provoked by Master Qin, and his pride suddenly appeared. As if to prove himself, he immediately stepped closer to the meat bun. Enduring the pungent smell, he reached out his hands and pushed away the thick green liquid, revealing the tender white skin inside. Without the slightest hesitation, he stuck his head out and took a bite. Just as Zhao Qinkuan had said, the skin of the almost invulnerable teal-eyed toad split open where Gu Mingzhou bit it. Hot blood immediately surged into Gu Mingzhou's mouth. At the same time, the nine turns heavenly devouring technique in his memory was activated. Dust and sand flew up, and Gu Mingzhou's face instantly turned red. Gu Mingzhou was not a pampered child of a rich family. Since he was young, he had followed his father up the mountain to hunt and helped his mother with the housework, so not only was his skin not fair, but it was also a little yellow and dark. Even after he became a cultivator and no longer lived a poor life. However, his skin didn't turn white because of this. Although it was no longer black, it was still yellow. However, when Gu Mingzhou used the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring technique, he suddenly turned red. This red was not the red of shyness, nor was it the red of suffocation. Instead, it was like fresh blood flowing across the red skin, neither purple nor black. It was like a red-hot iron weapon. Although it was red, it was beautiful. Chapter 343 The Devouring Continued At this moment, Master Qin, who had been lying dormant on Gu Mingzhou's shoulder, suddenly jumped up. With a flash of purple light, he instantly entered the sea a hundred meters away, causing waves. Step back. Zhao Qinkuan didn't care about Master Qin at all. His eyes were fixed on Gu Mingzhou. As Master Qin dashed out, he quickly retreated and said in a deep voice. Jing Wudao rose to his feet almost at the same time as Zhao Qinkuan's warning, and he retreated swiftly. Just as Zhao Qinkuan and Jing Wudao were retreating, a heat wave suddenly burst out from Gu Mingzhou's body. A heat wave that was hard to detect with the naked eye was like a bubble that suddenly popped into the sea. It spread instantly and burst. Even though Zhao Qinkuan and Jing Wudao had retreated several miles in advance, they could still feel the scorching heat coming at them. Their faces were burning, and they had no choice but to retreat. Gu Mingzhou, who was bent over on the back of the teal-eyed toad, was not moved at all. He buried his head in the broken meat and sucked hard, like a baby drinking milk. It was very inelegant. Not only did the flush on Gu Mingzhou's face not subside, but it became even more intense. It was so red that it looked like blood was about to drip out, making people worry. Zhao Qinkuan and Jing Wudao couldn't help but frown in worry. Zhao Qinkuan, in particular, had wanted to help Gu Mingzhou complete the use of the heavenly devouring technique in the shortest time possible. To improve Gu Mingzhou's cultivation. After all, even though Gu Mingzhou was already in the mortal realm, it would still take a long time for him to cross the chasm and reach the earth realm. Especially in this world, even though the Qing Emperor's restrictions had been broken, the demonic energy that had been confined had been released, and spiritual power was recovering. However, the space between heaven and earth was so large that even if there were no restrictions now, it would still take a long time for it to return to normal, or at least reach the recovered spiritual energy concentration of the great world. Zhao Qinkuan had said before that the path of cultivation was to be steady and steady. Otherwise, there would be many obstacles in the later stages, and they might even encounter bottlenecks that were difficult to overcome. However, this was a special period. It was obviously unrealistic for Gu Mingzhou to progress steadily. 
there was not much time left for him. He had to improve his cultivation as soon as possible. Gu Mingzhou naturally understood this, and he really did not have much time. His parents had passed away a long time ago. Even if there was a technique to bring the dead back to life, the longer they dragged on, the more changes would occur. There are many powerful people, and any one of them could easily kill the nine nether poisonous hedgehog and Shangwan Fei. The risk was too great. In the outside world, there was still the powerful Su Fenyu waiting for him. In this world, there were also the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, Shangwan Fei, and the others who could endanger his life at any time. It was said that another powerful being had appeared in the great Zhou dynasty. He Chuan, the husband of Empress Changning, was the one who had killed Meng Ao. Although he had no conflict with He Chuan now, who knew if they would meet again in the future? All of this forced him to raise his cultivation as soon as possible. Even if Gu Mingzhou did not want to cultivate the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique, which seemed powerful but was actually extremely cruel, he had no choice but to cultivate it. He even followed Zhao Qianquan's arrangement and devoured Wu Ji Patriarch's cultivation who he was familiar with. Although it looked brutal, Gu Mingzhou had no choice but to do it. And since he chose to do it, not only could he not go back on his word, he had to do it beautifully. Therefore, when he used the first revolution of the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique to devour Wu Ji Patriarch's cultivation base, he felt a burning sensation that pierced his bone marrow and soul. He endured it silently and determinately. It was a burning pain. The flame seemed to be spreading from the inside out. First, it burned his internal organs, then his bones and muscles, and finally his skin and flesh. From the moment Gu Mingzhou bit through the tender meat in the teal-eyed toad's meat, the bitter green blood gushed into his mouth, and the hot feeling instantly penetrated Gu Mingzhou's throat. As he subconsciously circulated the heavenly devouring technique, the scorching heat that almost spread from his mouth to his abdomen was not absorbed and weakened. Instead, it was like adding oil to the fire. Instantly, it rose up from his internal organs as if it was going to burn his entire internal organs, causing his body temperature to rise. Then, extremely thin white smoke rose from his body and floated into the sky with hot air. Large drops of sweat dripped from his face. The drop fell on the twitching body of the teal-eyed toad and fell into pieces, falling into the sand. Gu Mingzhou's face was flushed red, and he was sweating profusely. It wasn't just his face, his entire body was sweating profusely, especially his back, which was already soaked in sweat. The strange thing was that the large beads of sweat that kept flowing down Gu Mingzhou's face fell to the ground, but they did not leave any water stains on the sand. This was because the heat waves that were constantly emitted from Gu Mingzhou's body were too hot, so much so that the beads of sweat had already evaporated in the process of falling. Jing Wudao, who had already retreated to the seaside, subconsciously clenched his fists and made a cracking sound. He looked at Gu Mingzhou nervously, his face full of worry. Old Zhao! Aren't you being a little too hasty? After all, Gu Mingzhou has just started practicing the heavenly devouring technique Jing Wudao did not look at Zhao Qianquan when he spoke. However, Zhao Qianquan did not notice it at all. Or rather, he was not in the mood to pay attention to anyone or anything other than Gu Mingzhou. Don't worry, I trust him. Zhao Qianquan pursed his dry lips and stared at Gu Mingzhou as he spoke in a deep voice. He was waiting and also on guard. If Gu Mingzhou showed any signs of abnormality, he would not hesitate to consume his soul power and take Gu Mingzhou away. Right now, Zhao Qinquan was starting to regret his decision. He felt that he was too anxious, or perhaps he had overestimated the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique, which was why Gu Mingzhou was in danger. Gulp, gulp Gu Mingzhou frowned and swallowed a large mouthful of blood. The taste was a little bitter, a little sweet, and a little numb. Furthermore, there seemed to be a strange aura slowly entering Gu Mingzhou's body. There was more of that scorching aura. Every mouthful of blood he swallowed felt like he was swallowing charcoal. His entire body twitched, and the pain was indescribable. In particular, the strange aura that Gu Mingzhou felt made him feel even more uncomfortable. He felt uncomfortable all over and twitched even more. Gu Mingzhou was not the only one twitching. The hill-sized teal-eyed toad was also twitching. 
Although it had been severely injured by Jing Wudao and was on the verge of death, it was still alive. However, he could still feel and sense it. Previously, it did not understand the meaning of Zhao Qianquan and Gu Mingzhou's conversation. Even when Gu Mingzhou pried open the sarcoma on his back and bit open his skin, he was still very confused. The confusion didn't last for long. As the firm and stable Dao foundation in his Dantian gradually cracked. When it flowed along his meridians to the place where Gu Mingzhou had bitten it, this old toad that had lived for more than a hundred years finally understood Gu Mingzhou's actions. The other party was devouring his cultivation. Chapter 344 At the same time, Wu Ji Patriarch felt his life slipping away. This was hard for Wu Ji Patriarch to accept, and he even panicked. Even though they were on the verge of death, they still began to resist and resist with all their might. It wanted to stabilize its cultivation. This was the only way to ensure that its life would not be in danger no matter how serious its injuries were. Wu Ji Patriarch's resistance was a fatal attack on Gu Mingzhou, who was already struggling to devour. The blood that he had just sucked into his mouth was instantly spat out by Gu Mingzhou, mixed with his own dark red blood. Even though Wu Ji Patriarch was on his last breath, his resistance could still cause damage to Gu Mingzhou. If you can't do it, just give up. Zhao Qinkuan's expression turned even uglier as he finally advised in a deep voice. He was prepared to forcefully interrupt the devouring process and save Gu Mingzhou. Just as Zhao Qinkuan was about to forcefully interrupt Gu Mingzhou's devouring of the teal-eyed toad, a weak but determined voice suddenly sounded. Don't interfere. I want to try. It was Gu Mingzhou's spiritual sense. It was extremely weak, and it even revealed a firm tone that could not be changed. Gu Mingzhou wanted to try again. Even though he felt like he was in a volcano, the heat from the inside out caused his blood vessels to burst, his veins were visible, and he even felt dizzy. He didn't know if this was because of the heavenly devouring technique or because he had devoured cultivation beyond the realm of the heavenly devouring technique allowed, but he still persevered and didn't want to give up. At the same time, the nine turns heavenly devouring technique that was engraved in his mind was running wildly. While he was frantically circulating the first level of the nine turns heavenly devouring technique, he tried to forcefully circulate the second level of the nine turns heavenly devouring technique. This was because the strength of the first level was not enough for Gu Mingzhou to devour the powerful cultivation of Wu Ji Patriarch. He wanted to try his guess and jump directly from the first level to the second level. The moment he reached the second cycle of the heavenly devouring technique, a pure and vast amount of spiritual energy entered his dantian. Boom! The giant pillar that was emitting a bright green light suddenly shot out of Gu Mingzhou's body and went straight into the clouds. They floated in the sky and suddenly merged together, instantly forming a square altar. The nine-sided square altar looked real, but it also seemed illusory. It was incomparably huge, like the base of a mountain floating in the air, covering the sky and emitting a bright light. The seven colors combined with black and white were dazzling and eye-catching, illuminating the world. The wind rose, and the clouds retreated. Auspicious signs fell from the sky, and the scorching sun lost its brilliance. The light of the entire world and all living things in the world were blocked by the huge altar floating in the sky. This was respect, but also a rejoicing. When the nine green beams that burst out of his body suddenly merged in the sky, the heavens, the earth, and all living beings congratulated him in their hearts. At this moment, the whole world was celebrating. The thin and lowly life had successfully become the favored child of the heavenly Tao, condensing a Tao that belonged to itself and building a path that belonged to cultivation. Auspicious signs descended from the sky to express their congratulations. However, they were different. Some were strong, some were weak, some were vast, and some were not obvious. However, they were all similar. Every time this happened, the living beings in the world would become more and more confused about their attitude towards the heavenly Tao. After all, everyone knew that the heavens were unkind and the heavenly Tao was merciless. They didn't understand why there were so many obstacles in their cultivation, and why they didn't hesitate to send down lightning tribulations to punish the heavenly Tao of heaven and earth. Auspicious signs would suddenly descend and they cultivated to the great success stage. 
In fact, many people thought that the heavenly Tao was expressing its goodwill to this cultivator who had a chance of escaping its control. However, did the heavenly Tao really need to express goodwill to living beings? Of course not. The heavenly Tao had its own pride and dignity. It didn't need to show any goodwill to any living being. Even if heaven and earth collapsed and the great Tao was destroyed, they would not lower their heads. This was the heavenly Tao. Zhao Qinquan's gentle gaze was fixed on the sky when the nine pillars of green light shot out of Gu Mingzhou's body. Or rather, he was staring at the nine pillars. When the nine pillars combined into one and formed the foundation of Tao, auspicious signs descended from the sky and the whole world celebrated. His originally gentle gaze suddenly flickered and his expression became serious. He knew what this phenomenon meant. As long as a cultivator had built their Tao foundation, it meant that they had passed the test of the heavenly Tao and had the qualification to enter the upper realm. The more qualifications a world had, the greater the position that the heavenly Tao of that world would occupy in the upper realm. When the cultivator left the world and ascended to the upper realm, the heavenly Tao would still remove the karma that belonged to the heavenly Tao from their bodies, and the creation that belonged to the heavenly Tao. Of course, it was worth celebrating. Therefore, whenever a living being formed their Tao foundation and obtained the qualification to enter the upper realm, regardless of their clan, the heavenly Tao would send down auspicious signs as a form of encouragement. Of course, this wasn't a secret. It was just a well-known secret among the higher-ups of the cultivation world. The reason why Zhao Qianquan's expression was so grave was that when he saw this auspicious sign, he was reminded of a sentence from the war god of the upper realm. It seemed casual, but it was full of lament and dissatisfaction. The heaven and earth were heartless, and the heavenly Tao was emotionless. All living beings were, in the end, ants and chess pieces. At that time, Zhao Qinquan was still young and thought that it was just a casual sigh. However, after experiencing the ups and downs of the world for a hundred years, he could not help but recall the words from a hundred years ago when he saw the auspicious sign from the sky. The heavens and earth are heartless, the heavenly Tao is emotionless, and all living beings are ultimately just ants and chess pieces. Zhao Qinquan looked up at the auspicious sky, and his heart was in turmoil. His expression was calm like he was talking to himself but also asking the heavens. Soon, he woke up from his confusion. What happened back then, no matter if it was right or wrong, had already been done. Why should he be bothered now? However, they were just ants without any ability to resist. Perhaps he was not even a chess piece, so who cared about the result? Zhao Qinquan immediately suppressed the matter that was buried deep in his heart and turned to look at Gu Mingzhou. He finally smiled and said with satisfaction. Zhao Qinquan had already woken up when the Qin Emperor was about to pass on the nine turns heavenly devouring technique to Gu Mingzhou in the name of inheritance. At that time, Zhao Qinquan did not inform Gu Mingzhou. He did not want to interrupt Gu Mingzhou and the Qin Emperor's conversation. Thus, he first went to find Jing Wudao, who was in seclusion to recuperate, to find out what had happened during this period of time and the current situation. After understanding the situation, he began to plan his way out. It was also at this moment that he heard what the Qin Emperor had passed on to Gu Mingzhou. The Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique it was a magical technique that could devour and plunder the cultivation base of others. The original escape plan had turned into the current immortal creation plan. He wanted to make Gu Mingzhou immortal. This was because they still had an opponent who was so powerful that he had no choice but to feign death to avoid them. In the sky, the enormous nine-sided altar was gradually shrinking. As the altar became smaller, the feeling of nothingness gradually disappeared, and the altar slowly solidified. Chapter, 345 The altar, which had originally covered the sky, shrank and fell from the sky. It landed above Gu Mingzhou's head and floated motionlessly. Gu Mingzhou, who was lying on the back of the teal-eyed toad, also slowly stood up and looked up at the altar floating three feet above his head. Dao Foundation There was no surprise, excitement, or extreme excitement. There was only a simple sentence. He looked at the Tao Foundation and couldn't help but sigh. Three years ago, he had once formed his Tao Foundation in the wilderness of the Zhou dynasty. 
However, the moment he had it, he was destroyed by the violent lightning tribulation and almost died. Later, he was captured and imprisoned. When he came out again, the world changed and his parents died. Gu Mingzhou had once thought that he might never see his collapsed Tao Foundation again, nor would he see his parents again, let alone the desire to live. Some people didn't give up on Gu Mingzhou and stayed by his side. They weren't good at comforting him, but they always accompanied him and comforted him. He was the old man who was floating by the sea, Zhao Qinkuan. Thank you. Gu Mingzhou did not put away the Tao Foundation in the air. Instead, he turned to Zhao Qinkuan and bowed deeply. Zhao Qinkuan had spent more than two years getting the most sincere words from Gu Mingzhou. Zhao Qinkuan did not move, nor did he reject Gu Mingzhou's bow. Because he knew the other party's temper and understood his current mood, he nodded slightly. You're welcome. Zhao Qinkuan put away his playful and mischievous look. When he had successfully built his foundation, the god of war, who had been floating in the air, had revealed a gratified smile. Many thanks. It was still two simple words, but it was unknown how much weight they contained. This time, it was to thank Jing Wudao. You're welcome. Jing Wudao's arrogant and cold face revealed a smile. The third eye on the teal-eyed toad's forehead suddenly opened. Wu Ji Patriarch's third eye were closed, and he was breathing weakly. Whoosh! A bright green light suddenly shot out. It was like a waterfall crossing the sky, instantly shooting toward Gu Mingzhou. You dare! Be careful! Two angry shouts sounded at the same time. Zhao Qinkuan and Jing Wudao had already lunged forward at almost the same time as the voice rang out. They had retreated too far earlier, how could they make it in time? They had never expected that Wu Ji Patriarch, who was already on the verge of death, would still have the power to counterattack and launch a sneak attack after Gu Mingzhou devoured his cultivation. This made Zhao Qinkuan, Jing Wudao, and even Gu Mingzhou extremely surprised. In particular, before Gu Mingzhou could realize what was going on, the dazzling green light had already arrived in front of him. His expression changed drastically. Although the green glow was shot out quickly, just this extremely bright green glow alone was enough for Gu Mingzhou to instantly know the source. This was because he had seen green glow more than once. And every time it appeared, it would bring with it a terrifying pressure. This was the killing move that the teal-eyed toad clan was most proud of, the most powerful attack, the third eye. Gu Mingzhou did not even think. The moment the green light entered his eyes, he retreated without thinking and chose to dodge. The attack of the teal-eyed toad's third eye was an attack that gathered all the cultivation of its body. Even though the teal-eyed toad's cultivation had been devoured by Gu Mingzhou's nine turns heavenly devouring technique, the aura emitted by the green light alone was enough to make people's hearts palpitate. The aura was simply too terrifying. It was a hundred times stronger than any of the killing moves that Wu Ji Patriarch had used before. Once hit, even if Gu Mingzhou was already in the Foundation Realm, he would at least end up with his cultivation crippled or even die on the spot if he tried his best to block it. Thus, the instant the green light entered his eyes, he chose to dodge it without hesitation. The Wu Ji Patriarch had obviously planned this for a long time. How could he let Gu Mingzhou escape so easily? In order to ensure the success of the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring technique, he had not kept his distance from the Wu Ji Patriarch. Instead, it directly stuck to the back of the teal eyed toad. Even after he successfully used it and built his Tao Foundation, he still didn't leave his side. After all, with Wu Ji Patriarch's condition, no one would think that he could still fight back after his cultivation was devoured by Gu Mingzhou. However, not only did he have the power to fight back, but it was also his most powerful killing move. It was as fast as lightning and as fast as thunder. Coupled with such a short distance, how could Gu Mingzhou escape? The speed of the green light was very fast. Just as he was about to retreat, it had already arrived in front of Gu Mingzhou. Without any hesitation, it instantly collided with him. Boom! It was as if thunder had exploded in the sky, or a volcano had erupted. Dust and sand flew in the air, and the wind and clouds retreated. The entire coast of the island suddenly became muddy and hazy. Everything happened in a split second. It was too fast. 
Zhao Qinquan and Jing Wudao arrived at the same time, but they split into two. Zhao Qinquan rushed into the dust and sand without hesitation to look for Gu Mingzhou. Jing Wudao's flexible sword suddenly appeared and turned into a white light, instantly slashing toward the unmoving teal-eyed toad in the sand pit. Pfft. Under Jing Wudao's command, the flexible sword plunged into Wu Ji Patriarch's mountain-like body. Green liquid and red blood gushed out. The Wu Ji Patriarch didn't move at all, as if the sharp sword in his back wasn't stabbing him. It wasn't because the Wu Ji Patriarch was powerful, but because his life had come to an end when he had used the killer move. An expert of a generation had died just like that. Why do you have to do this? Jing Wudao was suddenly at a loss when he saw Wu Ji Patriarch die after using the last of his life to execute a killing move. However, Jing Wudao didn't hesitate too much. His complicated emotions flashed past. That was because Gu Mingzhou's life and death were still unknown. Even he did not dare to take the ultimate move released by the Wu Ji Patriarch head on, let alone Gu Mingzhou. Putting away his emotions, Jing Wudao's right hand flicked in the air, and the flexible sword on the Wu Ji Patriarch's back returned to his hand. The dust and sand fell like a drizzle, but it did not last long. The dust settled very quickly. Gu Mingzhou and Zhao Qinquan were standing in front of him, completely unharmed. You're fine. Jing Wudao asked in disbelief. I'm fine. Gu Mingzhou said softly with a complicated expression. Gu Mingzhou was unscathed in the face of Wu Ji Patriarch's final counterattack. When the terrifying green light appeared, Master Qin blocked the final fatal attack. Jing Wudao's expression changed as well. His cold and expressionless face turned into a dazed expression of disbelief as if he had lost his soul. In the instant Jing Wudao was stunned, a dense killing intent spontaneously rose from his body and soared into the nine heavens. At this moment, an extremely familiar voice was heard. What are you guys doing? Master Qin isn't dead yet. His voice was so annoying. The palm-sized purple dwarf had already lost its divine aura. Gu Mingzhou didn't answer Master Qin's question. Instead, he stared at the blackthorn in Master Qin's hand. The blackthorn pierced through Master Qin's body and stuck in the sand. It was the nine nether poisonous hedgehog that had set up the trap earlier. Wu Ji Patriarch, who was on the verge of death, could still release such a powerful and fatal attack after Gu Mingzhou had devoured all his cultivation. Chapter 346 It wasn't Wu Ji Patriarch's last ditch counterattack, nor was it a deadly attack that he had planned for a long time. They were the thorns that the poisonous hedgehog had left in the body of Wu Ji Patriarch. They were meant to deal a fatal blow to the enemy when Wu Ji Patriarch died. Zhao Qinquan frowned and shook his head helplessly. Why did Wu Ji Patriarch and the poisonous hedgehog use this move as if they had planned it? Gu Mingzhou's footsteps were light and soft as if he was afraid of touching something. He walked to Master Qin's side and bent down. He reached out to hold the blackthorn, but he couldn't help but stop in the air. He looked at Master Qin and said slightly. Can you hold on? His voice was like footsteps, very light and gentle as if he was afraid of startling something. Hurry up and pull it out. Do you want Master Qin to lie on the beach like this? Master Qin didn't seem to care at all and shouted arrogantly. However, Master Qin's injuries were too serious. His proud cries had become a little hoarse. In the end, Gu Mingzhou still reached out to hold the thorn. His spiritual energy surged out and he pulled it out suddenly. Gu Mingzhou instantly pulled out the thorn that was stuck in the sand. Master Qin instantly turned into a purple ray and entered his Dantian. There were no unnecessary words. Without the suppression of the thorns, Master Qin entered Gu Mingzhou's Dantian. However, Gu Mingzhou knew that Master Qin's injuries were too serious. He didn't want Gu Mingzhou to worry, so he chose to hide and recuperate alone. Gu Mingzhou did not say anything. He just stood up and looked down at the blackthorn in his hand. The altar that had just been built and was floating in the air suddenly shone with light. An even more intense killing intent gushed out along with a raging fiendish intent. Gu Mingzhou was very angry. Your Dao Foundation has just formed and still needs to be nurtured. You'd better hold it in first. 
When Gu Mingzhou released his killing intent, Zhao Qianquan floated over and said. He changed the topic and had the other party first collect the Dao Foundation that had condensed in the sky into his body. How could Gu Mingzhou not know what Zhao Qianquan meant? He could only smile bitterly and shake his head. He threw out the blackthorn in his right hand and inserted it back into the sand. The altar that was floating in the air disappeared. There was a nine-colored altar in Gu Mingzhou's Dantian, which was floating quietly. His Dao Foundation released nine colorful pillars that connected Gu Mingzhou's meridians and began to nurture them. The Starting Point of Cultivation The path of cultivation was endless. The Dao Foundation was only the first step of cultivation, and it was like the beginning of many moves. It was equivalent to the starting stance on the path of cultivation. When Gu Mingzhou formed his Dao Foundation, it would also mean that he had truly stepped into the ranks of cultivators and was truly qualified to begin to fight against the heavenly Tao and fight against fate. There was no doubt that after the Tao Foundation, there was a higher realm and a longer path for Gu Mingzhou to walk. However, Zhao Qinkuan had never mentioned anything about his future cultivation path. Even when Gu Mingzhou asked, he chose to keep his mouth shut as if he had some concerns. Since Zhao Qianquan was not willing to say, Gu Mingzhou naturally would not ask. However, even though he had successfully established his Tao Foundation, there was no lightning tribulation from beginning to end. All cultivators would be punished by the heavenly Tao. Lightning tribulations would be sent down to obstruct or test them. Only by passing the test of descent could one establish a Tao Foundation. No matter if it was a human or a demon, there was no doubt that they were going through tribulation. Could human cultivators really only survive the foundation establishment lightning tribulation once? This was a question that Zhao Qianquan had raised to Gu Mingzhou, and it was now proven. Human cultivators might only be able to go through the lightning tribulation once in their lives. The heavenly Tao's judgment on all living beings was always the most terrifying. However, could a Tao foundation without the tempering of the lightning tribulation still be considered a Tao foundation? No one knew the answer to this question. Without the tempering of the thunder tribulation, one could not wash away the karma of the heavenly Tao, could not be recognized by the upper realm, and could not gain enlightenment from the guidance of ascension. Gu Mingzhou was still restricted by this world and could not break free from the restraints of the heavenly Tao. Instead, he stated his goal firmly. Gu Mingzhou pulled out the blackthorn from the beach again. He narrowed his eyes and walked toward the center of the island. The target was obvious. He had been forced to escape and had changed his mind. He had to return to the old temple. To find the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, Shang Wan Fei, He Yuliang, and Lu Yuqing. He wanted everyone to suffer his anger. To take revenge for his friend. Zhao Qinkuan and Jing Wudao instantly understood Gu Mingzhou's meaning, but their faces revealed a gratified smiles. Jing Wudao reached out to stop Gu Mingzhou. I know you want to take revenge, so I won't stop you. But I'm afraid it'll be difficult for you to do so with your current strength. The one who spoke was not Jing Wudao, but Zhao Qianquan, who had not moved at all. He did not know what Zhao Qianquan was up to, but he knew that Jing Wudao and Zhao Qianquan must have discussed this beforehand. What's the plan? Gu Mingzhou asked. The so-called immortal creation plan is very simple. We'll help you rear the nine turns heavenly devouring technique, just like Wu Ji Patriarch just now. Zhao Qinkuan said seriously. As expected. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. When Zhao Qinkuan was talking about the immortal creation plan, he had already guessed it. According to the nine turns heavenly devouring technique that the Qing Emperor had passed on to Gu Mingzhou, the only way to quickly increase one's cultivation realm in the early stages of the heavenly devouring technique was to continuously devour. However, every time it devoured, it meant its life. This was the reason why Gu Mingzhou did not want to cultivate the heavenly devouring technique. He was not afraid of killing people, but he did not want to kill people for the sake of cultivation. Don't worry. If you want to kill the nine nether poisonous hedgehog and the others, why do you care about the means? As long as we achieve our goal. Zhao Qinkuan was still waiting for Gu Mingzhou to figure it out, and he said indifferently. Gu Mingzhou did not know how to answer. He had to kill the poisonous hedgehog and Shang Wan Fei, 
but he was still a little worried about using them to improve his cultivation. Su Fengyu is still waiting for you outside. Zhao Qinkuan continued. Upon hearing Su Fengyu's name, Gu Mingzhou recalled the bald brawny man named Zhou Yuanbao. Good. What should we do? The moment this figure appeared, the hesitant Gu Mingzhou became extremely determined. The plan is to hunt for now, and our first target is He Yu Yang. For some reason, even though there was such a big commotion on the beach, it did not attract the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, Shang Wan Fei, and the others. Whether it was the battle between Jing Wudao and Wu Ji Patriarch, they were all shocked. Whether it was the heavenly auspicious sign caused by the foundation establishment, it was enough to alarm the people on the island. It was impossible that they didn't notice the strange movements here. However, for some reason, that group of people did not appear. Just because they didn't come didn't mean that Gu Mingzhou wouldn't go. Zhao Qinkuan's plan was very clear. Since a group battle was not enough, they would have to take them down one by one, hence the name hunting. Zhao Qinkuan's target was obviously He Yu Yang. Gu Mingzhou knew the reason without asking. Right now, other than the magical beasts that had suddenly mutated on the island, the main opponents were the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, Shang Wan Fei, Lu Yucheng, and He Yu Yang. No matter if it was the nine nether poisonous hedgehog or Shang Wan Fei, they were undoubtedly the most powerful existences. Chapter 347 Starting to attack them was no different from digging one's own grave. Although He Yu Yang's cultivation level was higher than Lu Yucheng's, Lu Yucheng's true form was a five clawed golden dragon, a divine beast. It was easy to defeat him, but difficult to kill him. Compared to He Yu Yang, who was a blue wave dragon, he was much more difficult to kill. Hence, Gu Mingzhou could understand why Zhao Qinkuan had targeted He Yu Yang first. However, it was very likely that they were still in a group, which would make the plan useless. If they didn't split up, then their goal of gradually breaking through would naturally lose its effect. Since he had chosen to fight the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog head-on, he naturally couldn't leave Wu Ji Patriarch's body behind, which would give the mutated demonic beasts on the island a chance to improve their strength. After the discussion, Gu Mingzhou used his inner sight to check on Master Qin, who was in his Dantian. Although the weak vitality was almost inaudible, the strong aura of recovery made Gu Mingzhou feel at ease. At least he wouldn't die from this. As for his injuries, he could only slowly recover. The killing intent in Gu Mingzhou's eyes grew stronger. He raised his head and looked in the direction of the center of the island. It was as if he could see the ancient temple inside through the lush and towering trees. Master Qin ended up in this state because he tried to save him. He had to take revenge. Not only for Master Qin, but also for himself. The current Qingxia city had long been reduced to ruins. The residents who originally lived inside all turned into ferocious beasts of different shapes and sizes after the restriction was broken. The ferocious beasts were of all shapes and sizes, and they looked extremely ferocious. A faint black mist floated around their bodies, adding a mysterious color to their ferocious faces. After returning to its original form, it seemed to have forgotten all its memories as a fisherman and destroyed the entire Qingxia city in a fit of beastly nature. However, in the depths of their memories, they still had deep feelings for Qingxia city. Hence, the magical beasts continued to gather in the ruins, unwilling to leave. The ruined Qingxia city was still their home. This situation didn't last for long. In the northwest of the ruins, a roar suddenly came from the dilapidated old temple. It was the roar of anger. The beasts were instantly awakened and stood up one after another. A bloody killing intent rose. The demonic beast continued to roar. The ferocious beasts all rushed towards the old temple. The pitch black hole was in the middle of the altar, and it seemed bottomless. A bright light suddenly burst out and shot up into the clouds. It was like a bright lamp in the dark, extremely eye-catching. When the light shot up into the clouds, dozens of fierce beasts pounced into the light without hesitation. You dare! Dozens of ferocious demonic beasts were sent flying back and fell to the ground as if they had been hit hard. Dust flew and whales filled the field. These huge ferocious beasts had thick skin and flesh. After receiving such a heavy blow, 
they turned over and stood up as if they had not been injured at all. Their eyes were filled with ferocity as they stared at the bright light. The wind blew. The dazzling light that shot out from the black hole gradually dimmed after repelling the dozens of demonic beasts. Four figures appeared. They were the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, Shangguan Fei, He Yuliang, and Lu Yuqing. Previously, Gu Mingzhou had used the instant talisman to escape from the underground cave while Jing Wudao had attracted attention. Only Wu Ji Patriarch had reacted. The others were a step too slow. The four of them finally got out of the strange black hole, but before they could check the situation, they were attacked by dozens of huge beasts. Fortunately, although the ferocious beasts were ferocious, they were still vulnerable in front of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, which was also a high-level demon king. Before they could steady themselves, the light enveloping them faded away, and a strong wind blew in their faces. Azure Spirit Leopard When the Nine Nether Poison Hedgehog saw the demonic beasts, its eyes lit up. I'll deal with this magical beast. The sinister voice came out of the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's mouth again. His body instantly darted out like a shadow, and before Shangguan Fei and the other two could react, he had already met the Azure Spirit Leopard. Dozens of spikes shot out from the back of the poisonous hedgehog, aiming at the Azure Spirit Leopard. The fact that Gu Mingzhou and Wu Ji Patriarch had escaped under the Azure Spirit Leopard's eyes one after another had clearly infuriated the ferocious demonic beast. Now that he saw his fellow clansmen attacking him, he was instantly furious. Facing the whizzing thorns, he didn't retreat. Instead, he advanced and directly met them. When the Azure Spirit Leopard neared the sharp spikes, its body suddenly burst into flames. The flame was a strange black color. At the center of the flame on the fur of the Azure Spirit Leopard, there was a faint blue flame. It looked very different from ordinary flames and even cultivation flames. It was very strange. This seemingly strange black flame seemed to have a very powerful burning ability. The sharp thorns that cultivators didn't dare to face immediately sizzled and emitted black mist when they came into contact with the flames. With a loud sizzling sound, the sharp thorns stopped in the air and quickly melted in the black flames, turning into black smoke and dissipating in the air. The sharp thorns that had given Shangguan Fei and the others the most headaches were broken by the black flames. The dozens of spikes on the back of the nine nether poison hedgehog were quickly burned to ashes by the black flames. Huh, the heavens are really helping me. Seeing that its attack was easily neutralized, the nine nether poison hedgehog was actually happy instead of angry. It let out a sinister smile, and its small round eyes brightened. The Azure Spirit Leopard naturally didn't know what the poisonous hedgehog was thinking. As the strongest existence among the low-level magical beasts, the fury in its heart grew even more intense when it saw the smile on the nine nether poisonous hedgehog's pointed mouth, and it bared its teeth and roared. The roar pierced through the clouds. The Azure Spirit Leopard was extremely enraged. Without waiting for the surrounding thorns to burn away, it pounced at the nine nether poisonous hedgehog again. This king will treat you well. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog seemed to be happier when faced with the furious azure spirit leopard and even started to tease it. The nine nether poison hedgehog didn't dare to let his guard down. The azure spirit leopard's body was burning with black flames that could even destroy the sharp thorns on its body. If it was infected by the flames at close range, it would probably be unable to protect itself. As he spoke, the nine nether poison hedgehog did not hesitate and leaped away, dodging the ferocious attack of the azure spirit leopard. The viridian spirit leopard clearly realized the difference between it and the poisonous hedgehog. As a cheetah, it was not as agile as the hedgehog. The flames on his back grew even more intense, and he didn't even pause for a second before he turned around in the air and pounced toward the nine nether poisonous hedgehog again. The attack this time was clearly different from the previous one. It seemed to be the same movement, but it was much faster and more agile. The azure spirit leopard unleashed its full power, and its body immediately turned into a shadow in the void, chasing after the nine nether poisonous miasma with extreme speed. Whoosh! Before the Nine Nether Poison Hedgehog could react, the Azure Spirit Leopard had already attacked. It instantly appeared above the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's head. Its forelimbs, which had sharp claws, were shining with a cold light. 
the smile on the poisonous hedgehog's face instantly disappeared. It took out its thorns and shot them out before the azure spirit leopard could get close. Hundreds of densely packed thorns that were more than 100 feet long shot out at the same time, attacking the azure spirit leopard. The azure spirit leopard was not afraid at all. Even in the face of the wall-like thorns, it did not retreat. Instead, it pounced down. The black flames on its body instantly engulfed the thorns. This was beyond the leopard's expectations. Although the black flames on its body could burn the thorns, they were too close. Before the thick black flames on its body could burn the spikes to ashes, the spikes had already pierced into the leopard's body. Chapter 348 Even the sharpest parts of the spikes were still very sharp. They were even burning with black flames as they stabbed into the wounds of the azure spirit leopard. In an instant, fresh blood flowed out and thick dewdrops burst out. Roar! The azure spirit leopard cried out in pain. The body that was pouncing over slowed down unconsciously. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog, which had been at a disadvantage, took advantage of the momentum to gain the upper hand. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog was obviously smarter than the azure spirit leopard. It seized the opportunity and immediately avoided the attack range of the azure spirit leopard. Its strong limbs moved in the air as if it was walking on flat ground. It circled to the top of the leopard's head, and with a shake of its body, its thorns flashed and shot out again. Hundreds of thorns shot out at the same time, not giving the leopard any chance to react. They shot into the black flames and hit the leopard before it was completely burned. The azure spirit leopard roared in pain again. It finally realized the difference between it and its opponent. Its strong body darted out of the old temple like lightning, and it chose to escape without hesitation. You want to leave now? Isn't it too late? The nine nether poisonous hedgehog sneered and jumped in the air with its short limbs, ready to give chase. At this time, the dozens of fierce beasts that had been repelled finally reacted. They rose into the air one after another and pounced toward the nine nether poisonous hedgehog one after another, blocking the way and trying to save the azure spirit leopard. You reckless thing! Who's your master? The nine nether poisonous hedgehog stopped in its tracks. Seeing that the azure spirit leopard was about to escape, it was instantly enraged. Its entire body trembled as the spikes on its back shot out ferociously. The dozens of ferocious demonic beasts were still fearful and suspicious at first. They only wanted to block the way and didn't directly attack the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. However, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog's action of shooting out its thorns had obviously angered them. They immediately bared their teeth and fearlessly pounced toward the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog realized that its actions had been wrong, and it had actually caused the low-level magical beasts that had been subservient to rebel. However, since things had come to this, he could only face it. He was determined to get the azure spirit leopard, so how could he give up just because of a few low-level demonic beasts? Although the nine nether poisonous hedgehog was not afraid of these demonic beasts, he did not want to be entangled by them. Otherwise, with the speed of the azure spirit leopard, he would be able to escape from his range of control very soon. He did not choose to face the dozens of demonic beasts head on. Instead, he turned around and fell from the sky. He wanted to circle around the demonic beasts and chase after the azure spirit leopard. The hundreds of demonic beasts that had been alarmed in the ruins of Qingshir city earlier had come and surrounded the ancient temple, blocking the nine nether poisonous hedgehog's path again. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog became anxious as it watched the duck fly away. It immediately turned its eyes to the altar. You guys help me block these idiots for now. I'll thank you when I capture the azure spirit leopard. The poisonous hedgehog asked Sheng Wan Fei, He Yu Liang, and Lu Yucheng, who had chosen to watch from the sidelines, to help. Although he had said it once before, Sheng Wan Fei and the others obviously did not do as it said. In the hearts of Sheng Wan Fei and the other two, the top priority was to pursue Gu Mingzhou. They were unwilling to get entangled with these brainless and difficult demonic beasts. When the poisonous hedgehog was fighting with the azure spirit leopard, there were obvious battle fluctuations in the southeast direction. Sheng Wan Fei and the others wanted to go over and check it out, but they suddenly heard the request of the poisonous hedgehog and hesitated. We'll help you this once, 
but we can only help you stall for a few minutes. Whether you capture the Azure Spirit Leopard or not, we have to leave in case Gu Mingzhou escapes. Shang Wan Fei pondered for a long time and immediately made a decision. Even if Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao joined forces, Wu Ji Patriarch could hold them off for at least a hundred breaths. Shang Wan Fei had never expected that after Zhao Qianquan's guidance, Wu Ji Patriarch would be instantly killed by Jing Wudao and Gu Mingzhou. All right. Seeing that Shang Wan Fei had agreed, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog knew that he Yuliang and Lu Yuqing would naturally not object. Its adult-sized body immediately took two steps back and looked at the dense and slowly approaching ferocious demonic beasts. Go! Shang Wan Fei didn't want to waste any more time. He reached an agreement with the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog and attacked directly. He jumped up and floated in the air. His yellow robe fluttered, and his aura soared. His spiritual energy surged and surrounded his body. He tapped his feet in the air and left a few afterimages in the air as he instantly rushed towards the group of demonic beasts. These low-level demonic beasts were obviously not very intelligent, and they were only ordered by the Azure Spirit Leopard to stop the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. They didn't expect that someone would dare to attack them at this time, and they even sensed a dangerous aura from Shang Wan Fei. This made the demonic beasts extremely angry. They immediately gave up on blocking the way and pounced on Shang Wan Fei. Huh, Island Master Shang Wan, let me give you a hand. Lu Yuqing laughed loudly when he saw that Shang Wan Fei had already made his move. Then, he leaped into the air, and the figure of the golden dragon appeared above his head. He opened his arms and rushed straight into the crowd of demonic beasts, joining the battlefield in an instant. Together with Shang Wan Fei, they fought against the hundreds of demonic beasts. In an instant, the hundreds of demonic beasts that had surrounded the ancient temple gathered and continued to launch strong attacks on Shang Wan Fei and Lu Yuqing. They ignored the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog and even He Yuliang, who had yet to make a move. Island Master Shang Wan, I owe you a favor for this matter. The poisonous centipede of the Nine Nether was overjoyed when it saw that the obstacle had been cleared. As it sent a message to Shang Wan Fei, its strong limbs tapped lightly in the air and it quickly flew out of the old temple like an arrow leaving the Xian realm. It was extremely fast and violent, and it instantly shot toward the Azure Spirit Leopard. Only He Yuliang was left on the altar, while Shang Wan Fei and Lu Yuqing, who were engaged in an intense battle, were left. Their eyes flickered, as if they had made up their minds about something. With a wave of their right hand, their swords appeared out of thin air, ready to join the battle and help. However, at this moment, the originally clear sky suddenly darkened. The sky changed color, and the sun lost its light. The nine green pillars shot up into the sky in the southeast. The wind rose, the clouds retreated, and the light was bright. They were nine enormous green pillars that seemed to hold up the sky. They suddenly shot up into the sky from the southeast. The nine green pillars seemed to be controlled by someone in the dark as they intertwined in the sky. The two green lights suddenly collided. The thunder exploded, and the air billowed. The nine giant pillars suddenly disappeared and turned into a platform that almost covered half of the sky, emitting nine colored light. The entire world and everything in the world paled in comparison. Sheng Wan Fei, He Yuliang, and Lu Yuqing all paled at the same time. This was the process of a cultivator building their Tao foundation the auspicious realm for a cultivator to successfully build their Tao foundation. It must be Gu Mingzhou. He was already at the pinnacle of the venerable realm before this. He's the most likely to have built his Tao foundation. Lu Yuqing coldly said. Previously, he did not care about Gu Mingzhou. It could even be said that he did not care about him at all. However, he had no choice but to pay attention to it now. After all, the Qing Emperor's masses of inheritance had fallen into the hands of the other party. So what if he has built his Tao Foundation? Why would we be afraid of him? Shang Wan Fei's expression did not change much. Instead, he comforted Lu Yuqing. Chapter, 349 This brat has always been full of schemes. Although we're not afraid of him, if he chooses to run, it will be very difficult for us to catch him. He Yu Yang said in a deep voice. If that brat didn't have the ability, 
he would have died before entering the river of forgetfulness. Now that he has formed his Tao Foundation, he's probably even more difficult to capture. Lu Yucheng agreed. He has only built his Tao Foundation. The Lightning Tribulation hasn't descended yet. I'm afraid he won't be able to survive even if we don't do anything. Shang Wan Fei's gaze on He Yuliang suddenly darkened. He unconsciously raised his voice, but he did not expect to wake up the magical beasts who were engrossed in the auspicious sign. As soon as the demonic beast woke up, it let out a furious roar that penetrated the entire ancient temple. At the same time, all the demonic beasts were awakened and took the lead in pouncing fiercely at Shang Wan Fei and Lu Yucheng. The ancient temple, which had just quieted down, was filled with the roars of beasts which echoed in the sky. The magical beasts charged forward one after another, fearlessly charging forward. The battle resumed. He Yuliang, who was outside the battlefield, immediately had his eyes flash. That little thief Gu Mingzhou is very cunning and cunning. If we let him escape, it will be very difficult to find him. He Yuliang cupped his hands in the air as he spoke. He did not wait for Shang Wan Fei or Lu Yocheng's answer. He immediately turned into an afterimage and disappeared into the horizon. He Yu Yang. Shang Wan Fei's expression immediately turned ugly. How could he not understand what He Yu Yang was thinking? Gu Mingzhou had obtained the Qing Emperor's inheritance. Whoever caught Gu Mingzhou first would have the greatest hope of obtaining the inheritance. He Yu Yang said to stand on the moral high ground. In fact, he just wanted to take the opportunity to get rid of Shang Wan Fei, Lu Yucheng, and even the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog and monopolize the Qing Emperor's inheritance. Shang Wan Fei naturally saw through her little trick immediately. However, so what if he saw through it? Now that Shang Wan Fei and Lu Yucheng were surrounded by hundreds of demonic beasts, it would be difficult for them to escape, so how could they stop Yu Yang? Shang Wan Fei reached his right hand to his waist and drew out the three foot long Qingfeng sword. The blade was as thin as a cicada's wing. He immediately waved it in the air, and the sword intent shot out in all directions, injuring several demonic beasts. He was clearly angry and wanted to chase away the demonic beast as soon as possible or kill it so that he could escape and chase after Gu Mingzhou to prevent He Yuliang from taking the inheritance for himself. From Shang Wan Fei's point of view, it was much easier to obtain the Qing Emperor's inheritance from Gu Mingzhou than from He Yuliang. Obviously, Shang Wan Fei was not the only one who had this idea. Just as Shang Wan Fei was about to unsheath his sword and attack, a high pitched dragon's roar came from behind him and spread to the ninth heaven. Lu Yucheng revealed his true form as a five clawed golden dragon. The five clawed golden dragon was over a hundred meters long. With a sweep of its tail, it sent several demonic beasts flying. However, these magical beasts did not seem to feel pain. Even if they were swept away by the dragon's tail, they would quickly return. Then re enter the battlefield. Even though they were wounded by the three foot long sword and were bleeding, they did not feel any fear and continued to attack. Moreover, the appearance of the five clawed golden dragon and the sharpness of Shang Wan Fei's long sword seemed to have stimulated these magical beasts even more, making them even angrier and charging forward one after another. The battlefield at the altar of the ancient temple suddenly turned white hot, and the fighting became more intense. He Yu Yang knew that he could not hide this from Shang Wan Fei, so he flew at full speed and quickly left the old temple. Just as Shang Wan Fei had guessed, he Yu Yang's main purpose for being so active was, of course, to find Gu Mingzhou and then seize the inheritance. The Qing Emperor's inheritance was like a hot potato in Gu Mingzhou's hands. It would be snatched by others. Gu Mingzhou's cultivation was too weak after all. Even with Jing Wudao's help, Shang Wan Fei and the others didn't take him seriously. Although the current He Yuliang's cultivation was the weakest on the surface, after obtaining the Qing Emperor's inheritance, his power would definitely increase greatly. As long as he could improve his cultivation, he could even surpass Shang Wan Fei and become the most powerful existence in this world. As long as I get the inheritance, Shang Wan Fei will also be defeated by me. He Yu Yang was walking quickly through the lush forest. At the thought of this, he looked forward to the Qing Emperor's inheritance even more. He immediately increased his speed, somewhat eager to catch Gu Mingzhou. 
Just as he Yu Yang arrived at the southeastern beach of the island, a figure suddenly appeared before him. He wasn't standing tall and straight, and he was holding a black spear. He Yu Yang's pupils constricted, and he instantly landed in a towering tree to the side, his figure concealed. Hmm. The figure who was standing with his back to him sensed something and turned around in confusion, revealing a slightly pale face. The man's breathing was weak. His long and narrow eyes looked behind him as if he was looking for movement. One will search high and low only to find it when one least expects to. He Yu Yang, who was hiding among the trees, could not help but feel happy. The person in front was Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou held the spear tightly in his right hand and looked carefully at the dense forest. He could not find He Yu Yang, who was hiding, so he turned his head back as if waiting for something and looked ahead. This brat has always been cunning. Now that he has obtained the Qing Emperor's inheritance and is standing here alone, I'm afraid there's a trap. He Yu Yang began to doubt. He slowly retracted his right foot, which had taken half a step forward, and continued to hide, waiting for an opportunity. Gu Mingzhou seemed to be a little impatient from waiting. His long spear was stuck in the ground. The heavens are really helping me. It looks like Jing Wudao isn't even here. A sinister smile appeared on He Yuliang's face. His excitement made the smile on his face even more obvious. Jing Wudao wasn't around, so Gu Mingzhou was no doubt a defenseless person. He naturally didn't need to hide. Who is it? With a panicked expression, Gu Mingzhou quickly held his spear to protect himself. He turned around and shouted. Little brat, how have you been? He Yu Yang immediately leaped down from the tree branch and answered with a smile. The moment Gu Mingzhou saw He Yu Yang, his expression turned ugly, and he turned to escape. Since He Yu Yang had chosen not to hide, he would definitely not let Gu Mingzhou escape so easily. A ripple that was hard to detect with the naked eye suddenly shot out. Gu Mingzhou had just jumped up when he was instantly enveloped by it. It was as if Gu Mingzhou had hit a wall. He was instantly sent flying back, staggering backward, almost falling. What is this? Gu Mingzhou looked at the empty space in front of him in disbelief. His body, which had just stabilized, unconsciously took two steps forward and reached out to touch it. An invisible wall appeared in the ordinary void. It felt very real. He flew directly into the sky. In Gu Mingzhou's opinion, since the road ahead was blocked, the sky would not be blocked right? Just as he flew about 10 meters high, his ideas were proven wrong. Once again, he hit an invisible wall and fell to the ground, kicking up dust. Since I dared to appear, I naturally won't let you escape. He Yu Yang said directly. A barrier? Gu Mingzhou no longer thought about escaping. Instead, he got up from the ground and said in a cold voice. After two tests, he could only think of barriers when he touched a wall that he couldn't see. One had to rely on a formation to cast a barrier, and the process was cumbersome. He Yu Yang had clearly just arrived here, so it was impossible for him to set up a barrier in such a short time. Chapter, 350 Gu Mingzhou's gaze could not help but shift away from He Yu Yang, and he instantly looked at the array flag floating above He Yu Yang's head. Array flags? It was array flags that were floating above He Yu Yang's head and seemed to have set up a barrier. You have a good eye. You also have this thing and it has other uses. He Yu Yang explained nonchalantly, not hiding anything. According to unofficial records, ever since the Qing Emperor was born, he liked to seize all kinds of treasures by force. He was an extremely overbearing existence. No matter what treasure it was, as long as it caught the Qing Emperor's eye, he would immediately snatch it. It was said that the discovery of a historical site had attracted cultivators and powerful beings from all over the world to gather and discuss the distribution of the treasures. The Qing Emperor took the opportunity to plunder the treasures. They dug three feet into the ground and left nothing behind. When the powerful experts went in, they couldn't even find a strand of hair. This kind of thing only appeared in the unofficial history, so very few people knew about it or took it seriously. Now that He Yu Yang had suddenly brought up this matter that had appeared in the unofficial history, Gu Mingzhou felt that the unofficial history that he had seen earlier was more genuine. 
Gu Mingzhou's breathing quickened involuntarily. He looked at He Yuliang with some desire, but also some hesitation. After hesitating for a while, he finally said what he was thinking. Could it be that the array flags are related to the treasure? He probed. The thing relating to the nine array flags was a legendary divine artifact. You are very smart. I might as well tell you that although these nine array flags look ordinary, they are the key to the treasure pavilion when combined. He Yuliang explained. Gu Mingzhou's heart was in turmoil. The treasures left behind by the Qing Emperor were simply unimaginable. He Yuliang's face turned sinister. Gu Mingzhou shook the spear in his hand, and a red shadow suddenly appeared out of thin air. It was Jing Wudao. It's you. Jing Wudao's appearance caused He Yuliang's expression to turn ugly, and the uneasiness in his heart grew even stronger. You didn't go to pick what so called herbs at all. This is a trap. He Yuliang also quickly recovered from his shock and instantly understood the whole situation. Previously, Gu Mingzhou had followed Zhao Qianquan's arrangements and hidden Jing Wudao in the spear in preparation for the hunting plan. However, he did not expect that He Yuliang would deliver himself to him just as the plan was implemented. In the beginning, Gu Mingzhou pretended not to have noticed He Yuliang so he could launch a sneak attack and give Jing Wudao an opportunity to attack. Unfortunately, when He Yuliang heard Jing Wudao wasn't around, not only did he not launch a sneak attack, but he even revealed his identity. He wanted to kill Gu Mingzhou openly and obtain the inheritance. He was even certain of Gu Mingzhou's ending and was not stingy in telling him the secret of the array flags. Ha ha ha. I'll show you my true strength. He Yuliang knew that he had fallen into a trap, but he was not afraid at all. Instead, he became even more arrogant. He Yuliang's expression turned serious, and spiritual energy surged around his body as his robes fluttered. Gu Mingzhou frowned, and his expression suddenly turned serious. Logically speaking, even if He Yuliang was conceited at this moment, he should not have been so confident after seeing the strength that Jing Wudao had displayed in the Cave of Legacy. At the very least, he would not be so decisive. He was completely different from what Gu Mingzhou knew about him. Jing Wudao stood in front of Gu Mingzhou. His soft sword, which was as thin as a cicada's wing, instantly flew out and landed in his hand. He pointed it at He Yuliang. Make your move. Jing Wudao was extremely decisive. Wudao. Gu Mingzhou subconsciously pulled Jing Wudao back, wanting to dissuade him. Based on his understanding of He Yuliang, he wasn't as cautious as Wu Ji Patriarch, but he wouldn't choose to fight Jing Wudao when he wasn't confident. With Old Zhao's spell techniques, it's easy to deal with him. Upon hearing the words Old Zhao, Gu Mingzhou's worry immediately dissipated. Old Zhao was naturally referring to Zhao Qinkuan. Gu Mingzhou might be worried about Jing Wudao's strength, but he was completely at ease with Zhao Qinkuan. Since Jing Wudao had Zhao Qinkuan behind him, Gu Mingzhou naturally had nothing to worry about. He immediately left Jing Wudao and retreated a few steps to the edge of the enchantment to make room for him. He no longer tried to dissuade Jing Wudao. At this moment, Zhao Qinkuan's voice suddenly rang out in Gu Mingzhou's mind. Where are the core of the array flags? Jing Wudao and He Yuliang are going to fight. Inject your spiritual energy into it. Zhao Qinkuan's voice was a little hurried, and he spoke much faster. Why? Gu Mingzhou sent a voice transmission to ask. I don't have time to explain, just do as I say. Zhao Qinkuan was obviously focused on Jing Wudao and did not explain to Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou was puzzled but he still followed Zhao Qianquan's instructions and quietly took out the array flag from the Qianquan bag at his waist. Just as Zhao Qianquan had said, the battle was about to begin. I'm very curious about your identity. Since you're willing to be a guard with your cultivation and strength, why don't we mutually benefit each other? Cut the crap, move. Jing Wudao was expressionless. He held his sword with both hands and stared at He Yuliang. Since that's what you want. Seeing this, He Yuliang revealed an evil smile. A treasured sword appeared out of thin air, and he instantly stabbed down at Jing Wudao. With a flash of purple light, he had already arrived in front of Jing Wudao. To Jing Wudao, who specialized in sword techniques, 
this was nothing. Too slow. Jing Wudao suddenly spoke when the purple light approached. Even though he had made his move slightly later than He Yuliang, his speed was clearly several times faster than He Yuliang's. A cold light flashed. Whoosh! Gu Mingzhou didn't even see Jing Wudao's movements. The flexible sword had already collided with the treasured sword, causing sparks to fly and a sharp, ear piercing sound to be heard. He Yuliang's swift and fierce sword strike was blocked by Jing Wudao. The two of them instantly separated. Jing Wudao did not move an inch, as if he had not attacked at all. He continued to look at He Yuliang expressionlessly. He Yuliang somersaulted in midair and landed on the ground. The smile on his face had already disappeared, and his gaze, as he looked at Jing Wudao, became much more cautious. It seems that your strength has increased again. No wonder you dare to fight me one on one. Can you defeat me with this alone? He Yuliang was not in a hurry to attack. Instead, he held his sword with both hands and placed it diagonally across his chest as he circled around Jing Wudao, looking for an opportunity. The cold and aloof Jing Wudao still didn't answer him, not even a word. This made He Yuliang feel a little embarrassed, and he immediately stopped talking. A moment later, He Yuliang, who couldn't wait any longer, suddenly attacked Jing Wudao. Overflowing Sword Intent The sword in He Yuliang's hand glowed with a cold light, shooting out thousands of purple sword intent at Jing Wudao. The steps under his feet also began to change. It seemed chaotic, but in fact, it contained ciphertexts. It caused his entire figure to become blurry, making it difficult to track him down. Jing Wudao remained expressionless as the sword intent surged toward him. Jing Wudao's speed was very fast. His flexible sword suddenly flashed with a cold light, and his sword intent was awe-inspiring, instantly enveloping the tens of thousands of sword intent. The sound of weapons clashing rang out continuously. Resplendent sword intent shot out one after another, accompanied by a series of clashing sounds. The air in front of Jing Wudao and He Yuliang was jolted into chaos. Chapter 351 Dina Om. The sword intent that surrounded Jing Wudao suddenly changed its direction and collided with each other, quickly forming a huge sword. He Yuliang's left hand joined his right hand, and his single handed grip turned into a double handed grip. He raised the sword over his head and suddenly slashed down. Slash! The huge sharp sword that had condensed in front of Jing Wudao slashed down as He Yuliang's violet flexible sword descended. The giant sword was swift and fierce, its speed comparable to light. It was so sharp that it seemed to tear the void apart as it fell with terrifying power. Jing Wudao was still expressionless as he unhurriedly waved his flexible sword and instantly slashed out. Whoosh! The flexible sword and the huge sharp sword that was falling fiercely collided. It seemed slow, but in reality, it was a violent and sudden collision. Boom! A huge wave of air instantly spread through the array formation, raising dust and leaves. The shock wave caused Jing Wudao to take a few steps back. Wudao! Gu Mingzhou suddenly started to worry. Throw out the array flags and pour in your spiritual energy. At the same time, Zhao Qianquan's voice rang out in Gu Mingzhou's mind. The voice was even more urgent than before, so Gu Mingzhou could only suppress his concern for the time being. He immediately poured his spiritual energy into the array flag and threw it above his head. Just like how He Yuliang threw the formation flag earlier. When Gu Mingzhou threw the formation flag into the air, the formation flag spread out invisible ripples that enveloped all directions and formed a boundary. When the array flags formed a barrier, a muffled sound suddenly rang out. Bang! It was as if something had hit the wall, and the sound was extremely dull. The shock wave created by the collision of the two swords raised too much dust and blocked Gu Mingzhou's vision. After completing Zhao Qianquan's instructions, Gu Mingzhou did not pay any attention to the muffled sound. Wu Dao, are you alright? Jing Wu Dao turned a deaf ear as if he had not heard anything. He only stared at He Yuliang's position. The dust and fallen leaves in the air didn't make the visibility very high. Jing Wu Dao could only see the outline of the figure and nothing else. Why? 
Jing Wudao said in disbelief as he looked at the blurry outline. The person on the other side didn't answer. Instead, he chose to remain silent. Gu Mingzhou was even more confused. He followed Jing Wudao's gaze and also saw a blurry outline through the flying dust. However, the silhouette was not standing. Instead, it was lying on the ground, and it was obviously getting up from the ground. A gentle breeze blew past, and the dust settled and dissipated. He Yu Yang, who had originally been dressed neatly, now had disheveled hair and traces of blood at the corner of his mouth. How did you know? His voice was filled with hatred and some doubt. He was not asking Jing Wudao, but Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou was a little confused at first. He did not understand what Zhao Qianquan had meant earlier, but now that he saw He Yu Yang's appearance, how could he not understand? It was clear that He Yu Yang had no intention of fighting Jing Wudao from the very beginning. It was just a stalling tactic to delay time and distract Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao's attention so he could escape when they were unprepared. His plan had successfully fooled Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao, but it had not fooled the astute Zhao Qianquan. How could he Yu Yang compare to Zhao Qianquan's cunning and shrewdness? Based on my understanding of you, even if you're confident in defeating Jing Wudao, you'll still choose to escape in case we join forces. Gu Mingzhou said calmly. Of course, he would not reveal Zhao Qianquan's existence. Naturally, the fewer people who knew, the better. Even if he was about to die, he would not relent. Once there was a reversal, it would be a fatal blow to him. For example, He Yu Yang confidently thought that Gu Mingzhou's life and death were in his hands. He had revealed the secret of the array flag without holding anything back, but the tables had turned. Not only had he harmed himself, but he had also made an enemy. I see. When He Yu Yang heard the explanation, he looked at Gu Mingzhou with some admiration. He threw both his hands above his head at the same time. Two black lights flew out. Stop him. Zhao Qianquan's aged voice was very urgent. Gu Mingzhou did not have time to think about the reason and flew towards He Yu Yang. The long spear was placed horizontally in front of his chest in midair. Spiritual energy surged, and the long spear pierced through the air, aiming straight for He Yu Yang's back. Even though Gu Mingzhou's reaction was quick, he was still a step too slow. The two beams of black light that He Yu Yang had tossed up were already suspended in midair. The light wave spread out and enveloped He Yu Yang, blocking the long spear. The sharp sound of weapons clashing rang out. The sharp spear seemed to have stabbed into a boulder. When it was three feet away from He Yu Yang, it came to an abrupt stop, unable to advance any further. With the path ahead blocked, Gu Mingzhou did not launch a useless attack. Instead, he stopped and looked at the sky, staring at the two black lights that He Yu Yang had thrown. I almost forgot that you have three array flags. If Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao wanted to kill He Yuliang, it would undoubtedly be as difficult as ascending the heavens. It was difficult to break the barrier of the array flags. Ha ha ha. He Yuliang couldn't help but laugh out loud. You want to kill me? When Island Master Shangwan and the others come, I'll skin you alive. He Yuliang's hatred for Gu Mingzhou increased. I respected you as a man and was prepared to compete with you. Unfortunately, you didn't cherish the opportunity. After a moment of silence, Jing Wudao looked at He Yu Yang expressionlessly and said indifferently. You're talking big. As long as the barrier can hold out for the time it takes for an incense stick to burn, you'll be the ones to die. He Yu Yang said in disdain. Who told you I'm going to break the barrier? The barrier may not be able to stop me from killing you. To Jing Wudao, He Yu Yang's disdain was more like a joke. The expressionless Jing Wudao's lips curled up slightly. Kill. It was like a continuous drumbeat that spread in all directions. He Yu Yang, who was just about to sneer, looked down at his feet in a panic. He did not know what he had discovered, but his face was instantly filled with horror. He was about to fly out of the barrier. A muffled sound came from the ground, and it broke out of the ground instantly. The golden light suddenly shot out. The sword gleam exuded a heavy aura. Then, as if the sky was falling and the earth was splitting, it broke out from the ground under He Yu Yang's feet, causing the entire island to tremble. 
It sounded like a dragon's roar. The sound came from far away, but it disappeared quietly when it was close to the ear, like a real illusion. The yellow sand golden dragon swallowed He Yuliang who was in midair. He didn't even have time to say a word before he was swallowed by the dragon. As the yellow sand receded, only He Yuliang, who was in tattered clothes and had his eyes tightly shut, was left lying motionless on the ground. He Yuliang seemed to have suffered a heavy blow. His face was pale and bloodless, and he was on the verge of death. The three array flags that formed the barrier also lost their support at this moment, and the light waves receded and fell from the sky. Jing Wudao had forcefully raised his hand to grab the array flag when it fell. The falling array flag was pulled toward Jing Wudao, and he grabbed it. Pfft. Jing Wudao spat out a mouthful of blood. Wudao. Gu Mingzhou quickly stepped forward and reached out to support Jing Wudao. It's just that my soul was injured. Zhao Qinkuan explained. Sighing, Zhao Qinkuan tapped Jing Wudao's forehead with his finger. A crisp and soft sound rang out, forming ripples. Chapter, 352 With our current strength, we can't break the enchantment within an incense stick time. We can't let him escape, can we? Jing Wudao, who was originally weak, immediately recovered a little, and his aura stabilized. You've suffered great loss to subdue the enemy. The plan after this before Zhao Qinkuan could finish his sentence, he shook his head. Are you confident in devouring He Yuliang's cultivation now? Zhao Qinkuan said as he patted Gu Mingzhou's shoulder with his right hand. Gu Mingzhou didn't reply immediately. Instead, he turned to look at the weak Jing Wudao. From the conversation between Zhao Qinkuan and Jing Wudao, Gu Mingzhou could roughly make out the situation. The reason Jing Wudao was so weak was obviously that he had used a powerful spell technique just now. Gu Mingzhou walked towards He Yuliang. Without the obstruction by the array flags and barriers, Gu Mingzhou walked leisurely and quickly reached He Yuliang's side. He only looked at He Yuliang, whose eyes were tightly shut and who was barely breathing, and he actually felt some pity in his heart. Does he really have to do it that way? He Yuliang was someone Jing Wudao had risked his life to stay behind, so how could Gu Mingzhou let Jing Wudao down? He looked at the unconscious He Yuliang at his feet, his eyes no longer filled with pity. He began to circulate the nine turns heavenly devouring technique, and his dantian shook. A strange aura suddenly attacked his heart, and he could not help but freeze. Gu Mingzhou looked at He Yuliang in disbelief, but his heart was in turmoil. The nine turns heavenly devouring technique left behind by the Qing Emperor seemed to be a top notch spell technique in the world. He could increase his cultivation by forcefully devouring other people's cultivation. What was the difference between him and those brutal monster cultivators who swallowed weak monster beasts by force? What was the difference between killing and absorbing the blood of living beings to improve one's cultivation? Not to mention those who had been devoured. What are you still dawdling for? We don't have much time. If Shang Wan Fei gets here, we'll all be finished. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's hesitation, Zhao Qinkuan's face immediately showed anger. Is there no other way? Gu Mingzhou shook his head and said. You need to possess great power to save innocent lives. Zhao Qinkuan did not wait for Gu Mingzhou to finish and interrupted him. Strength doesn't differentiate between good and evil. These people who devour cultivation are all evil. Why should you feel guilty? Jing Wudao also shouted anxiously. How much blood have you shed on the path of cultivation? Now that the situation is so urgent, you want to retreat. Zhao Qinkuan seemed to have been completely enraged by Gu Mingzhou as he shouted at him. I can still kill him. At the very least, there's still a possibility of him reincarnating, but if he's devoured, he'll truly die, his Tao will be destroyed, and his soul will be scattered. Gu Mingzhou retorted. Even though Zhao Qinkuan was completely enraged, he still refused. Wu Ji Patriarch's soul was devoured by me when I used the heavenly devouring technique. Gu Mingzhou slowly raised his head and looked straight at Zhao Qinkuan. His voice could not help but turn cold. The voice was cold, sharp, and bitter. He did not blame Zhao Qinkuan. More than anything else, he was grateful. 
He also knew that Zhao Qianquan chose to hide the truth to prevent him from getting emotional. Even though Zhao Qianquan had concealed his true strength, he could still sense it. In fact, Gu Mingzhou was well aware of Zhao Qianquan and Jing Wudao's motive for doing this. He had to do his best to improve his cultivation. What Gu Mingzhou was doing now was no longer his own business. Just as Zhao Qianquan had said, on the path of cultivation, killing had become a common occurrence. Bloodshed and death were commonplace. Although he wasn't an evil person, he wasn't a merciful person either. He had been exposed to the cruelty of cultivation, so he naturally did not pity Wu Ji Patriarch. Thus, he had chosen to devour it after Zhao Qianquan's persuasion. Even if he had a grudge against this cultivation method, he could still reluctantly accept it. However, Gu Mingzhou did not expect that when he was devouring Wu Ji Patriarch, a strange aura entered his body, making him feel uncomfortable. Although he had guessed a certain possibility. However, he wasn't sure, so he decided to ask Zhao Qinquan about it later. Unfortunately, in his joy, there were still many things to do, so he naturally forgot about that matter. When he was preparing to use the heavenly devouring technique on the severely injured He Yuliang, he suddenly felt that aura again. Not only did he instantly recall the aura of Wu Ji Patriarch, but it also allowed Gu Mingzhou to verify his original guess. That strange aura was the aura of the dissipating soul. Whose soul was dissipating? Of course, it was not Gu Mingzhou. The answer was undoubtedly Wu Ji Patriarch and He Yu Yang. When the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique devoured the cultivation base of others, it was also devouring the soul of the other party. Gu Mingzhou did not mind killing people. Cultivation was a world where the strong preyed on the weak, a world of slaughter. However, he did mind this kind of behavior, which would even destroy the soul after killing. That was undoubtedly a cruel method. It was equivalent to directly wiping away all traces of their existence and disappearing from the world forever. He couldn't accept it and was disgusted. Moreover, he could clearly feel that the dissipated soul was gradually merging into his own soul. He even had an illusion that Wu Ji Patriarch's soul was staring at him with hatred somewhere in his body. Gu Mingzhou's words obviously left Zhao Qinquan speechless and at a loss for words. Do you know what I'm thinking? Have you asked me if I was willing or not? Zhao Qinquan was in a daze as he reminisced about the past. Sai, do as you wish. The furious Zhao Qinquan looked at Gu Mingzhou's twisted expression and said bitterly. Before he could finish his words, Zhao Qinquan's floating body gradually faded away. In the face of Gu Mingzhou's firm attitude, Zhao Qinquan obviously chose to give in. Gu Mingzhou was at a loss. He missed his poor life when he was young. Unfortunately, he could only recall the past. I should have supported you unconditionally no matter what choice you made, but you were wrong this time. Jing Wudao's steps were still a little unsteady, and there was disappointment on his face. But Gu Mingzhou did not know how to continue. When devouring other people's cultivation, it's a little cruel and terrifying to devour their souls as well. However, there's no such thing as reincarnation in this world. Even the Qin Emperor couldn't avoid death, let alone us. Jing Wudao slowly turned his head and looked at Gu Mingzhou again. Gu Mingzhou had not said a word from the beginning to the end. However, as Jing Wudao spoke, his head drooped even lower, almost touching the ground. How could he not know how Zhao Qianquan treated Gu Mingzhou? However, when he found out that the heavenly devouring technique could even devour souls, he felt an inexplicable anger that directly affected his emotions. Coupled with Zhao Qianquan's aggressive attitude, he was able to vent his emotions. But now, he suddenly felt regret. He began to regret his words and actions just now, and he was inexplicably angry. Gu Mingzhou raised his hand to wipe away the tears on his face. He forced out a smile and looked at Jing Wudao as if he had made a decision. He suddenly snatched away three array flags and pointed them at Jing Wudao's forehead without waiting for him to speak. Collect. A light shout came from Gu Mingzhou. Jing Wudao's body turned red and quickly entered Gu Mingzhou's body. There are some things I have to do myself. Gu Mingzhou said lightly. He looked back at He Yuliang on the ground, his fists clenched, and his tear-streaked face gradually turned cold. Chapter, 
353. The battle in the old temple was still in full swing. As the beasts roared, Shang Wan Fei's face grew uglier and uglier. He had never thought that these seemingly unintelligent magical beasts would become more and more courageous the more they fought and were so difficult to deal with. Even the sharp sword in Shang Wan Fei's hand and the claws of the five clawed golden dragon were extremely sharp. Not only could they cut through iron as if it were mud, but they could also destroy mountain rocks. But now, he could only leave wounds on the demonic beasts' bodies. He couldn't even hurt the demonic beasts' core, let alone kill them. Except for the few demonic beasts that had been seriously injured by Shang Wan Fei's sharp sword at the beginning, the other demonic beasts were still able to move despite being badly injured. They were still very aggressive and dangerous. Moreover, after a long battle, not only did these magical beasts not lose their fighting spirit, but they also became more courageous and ferocious. For a time, Shang Wan Fei and Liu Yucheng could only retreat and defend, unable to attack. About five minutes had passed. With Yi Yo Yang's speed, he was probably already engaged in a fight with Gu Mingzhou. It was even possible that he had already defeated Gu Mingzhou and was ready to take the Qin Emperor's inheritance. The usually composed Shang Wan Fei became a little flustered and became even angrier at He Yo Yang's behavior just now. The reason why Shang Wan Fei and Liu Yucheng were trapped here and He Yu Yang could escape was largely due to the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. Previously, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog had said that it would be dealt with quickly. However, it had been so long since then, and it had still not returned. It was obvious that it had not been dealt with. This made Shang Wan Fei even angrier, and he even regretted agreeing to the request. After flicking away a ferocious looking magical beast, Shang Wan Fei did not wait for the other magical beasts to pounce on him. He immediately leaped and landed directly behind Liu Yucheng, who was meandering a hundred meters behind him. Liu Yucheng sensed something and immediately let out an angry roar, his dragon breath spewing out. The dragon's tail alone swept across and instantly swept away all the magical beasts that were chasing Shang Wan Fei. Brother Lu, can we force our way out? Standing on the five clawed golden dragon's long body, Shang Wan Fei looked at the surrounding demonic beasts that were eyeing them covetously. He obviously did not want to continue to be entangled with them, so he directly transmitted his voice to Lu Yucheng. It's worth a try. The five clawed golden dragon's bloody mouth opened slightly as he swung his dragon tail to fight against the magical beasts. Don't worry and just do it. If we drag this on for too long, I'm worried that the legacy will end up in He Yo Yang's hands. If he takes the legacy away, it'll be extremely disadvantageous to us. Shang Wan Fei said worriedly as he stood with his sword in hand, vigilantly staring at the surrounding demonic beasts. Big brother, is there no other way besides the Qin Emperor's inheritance? Lu Yocheng's voice became somewhat old. He also called Shang Wan Fei big brother. If Gu Mingzhou was here, he would definitely be shocked when he heard this voice. Because this voice was very familiar to Gu Mingzhou. And Lu Yucheng even addressed Shang Wan Fei as big brother. It was a pity that Gu Mingzhou had just made his decision and did not have the time to care about these things. Don't you know what's going on? If he Yu Yang and the others were to find out your identity, would you still be able to live? Shang Wan Fei's face suddenly changed and he quickly looked around. He was only relieved when he saw no one else around. So what if they know? They're going to die sooner or later anyway. If I obtain the Qin Emperor's inheritance, they'll all become my stepping stones. When I return to the outside world, won't they still die? Lu Yuqing didn't seem to mind and said indifferently. Are you sure that person has already come out? Shang Wan Fei's nervous expression gradually relaxed and he said in a deep voice. I have a contract with Master. Otherwise, I wouldn't have let you work with that nine nether poisonous hedgehog. No matter how powerful he is now, Master can kill him with a raise of his hand. The five-clawed golden dragon continued. You've always been so arrogant. It's definitely got something to do with your temper. Shang Wan Fei said, shaking his head slightly. I really didn't expect Lu Yucheng to be Shang Wan Fei's younger brother. No wonder Island Master Shang Wan invited He Yu Yang and me to come and explore. 
The black shadow instantly landed on the roof of the old temple's courtyard gate and looked at Shang Wan Fei and Lu Yucheng, who was surrounded by demonic beasts. It was the nine nether poisonous hedgehog that had disappeared for a long time. Now, it had already changed. His body was no longer black. Instead, green patterns appeared all over his body, like a color-changing zebra. The ferocious thorns were still in a dark state, and there were no blue patterns. However, at the tip of the thorns, there seemed to be an invisible flame burning, emitting hot air, which made Shang Wan Fei's heart palpitate. When did you come back? Shang Wan Fei's expression changed slightly. He instantly stood up from the five-clawed golden dragon, his right hand holding the long sword. He frowned and stared at the dragon. He looked at the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. No it should be called the green spirit nether hedgehog now. Island Master Shangguan, don't be nervous. So what if I know your relationship? Since we're allies, why would I reveal your secret? The green spirit nether hedgehog smiled and said. Squeak. A sharp sound like grinding teeth came out of the mouth of the green spirit nether puppet and echoed in the ancient temple. The demonic beast that had been ferociously attacking Shangguan Fei and the five-clawed golden dragon with eyes full of killing intent. When he heard this sharp voice, the killing intent in his eyes immediately dissipated, as if he had received an order that could not be disobeyed. He then retreated and stopped attacking Shangguan Fei and the five-clawed golden dragon. The magical beasts that were already pouncing on the five-clawed golden dragon also turned around at the last minute and changed their attack direction. You can actually control these demonic beasts. Shang Wan Fei's face turned ugly and angry when he saw the changes. He stared at the green spirit nether hedgehog and said. I only became the leader of these demonic beasts after eating the demonic leopard. The green spirit nether hedgehog seemed to know what Shang Wan Fei was going to say and quickly explained. We're pressed for time. Let's hurry and catch that kid. The green spirit nether hedgehog rose into the air again and flew toward the southwest. Let's go. Shang Wan Fei was originally on guard. Don't worry, he won't be able to escape. The green spirit nether hedgehog said indifferently. Shang Wan Fei motioned for the five-clawed golden dragon to follow. His conversation with Lu Yucheng just now involved that person's existence. Did the green spirit nether hedgehog hear it? This important question weighed on Shang Wan Fei's mind. But in the current situation, Shang Wan Fei couldn't ask, nor did he dare to. He could only stand on the five-clawed golden dragon's back and follow the green spirit nether hedgehog, flying toward the shore. However, as he gradually closed the distance between them, a hidden killing intent flashed through his eyes. Two black shadows flashed through the forest at an extreme speed, as fast as light. They were the green spirit nether hedgehog and the five-clawed golden dragon that carried Shang Wan Fei. After leaving the old temple, they all used their maximum speed. As they shuttled through the forest, not a single leaf touched their bodies, not even the sound of the wind could be heard. This was enough to show the degree of control they had over their own strength. It was the five-clawed golden dragon that was known as a divine beast in the flying domain. It was evident that it was extremely powerful. It quickly caught up with the green spirit nether hedgehog and was about to surpass it. Chapter, 354 Lu Yucheng seemed to have received a signal from Shang Wan Fei, or perhaps for some other reason. He didn't choose to overtake it immediately. Instead, he slowed down and kept close to the green spirit nether hedgehog. The green spirit nether hedgehog sensed it. However, it had already used all of its strength, yet it was still unable to shake off the five-clawed golden dragon. Helpless, he could only bear with it. After all, the alliance was still there, so it wasn't good to fall out. Otherwise, it was likely to have the opposite effect and even cause both sides to suffer. Of course, the nether demon had other plans in mind, but only it knew the details. Thinking of the plan, the green spirit nether hedgehog finally smiled. His smile was vicious and sinister. It didn't notice the killing intent in Shang Wan Fei's eyes, who was standing on the back of the five-clawed golden dragon. Shang Wan Fei's thin lips trembled imperceptibly, a sign of his divine sense. The target of the voice transmission was, of course, the five-clawed golden dragon. It was obvious that while the nether demon was thinking about the plan, 
Shang Wanfei, and Liu Yucheng were also having some kind of secret conversation. Both sides had their own plans as they quickly flew out of the forest. It was the only island in the boundless Qing Sea, which was 10,000 miles wide. The area of the island where Qingshir Cty was located was not considered large. After all, in this world, other than the mutated sea beasts, there were only a few hundred magical beasts living, so there was not much land needed. The Qing Emperor, who was afraid of being entangled by karma, was not willing to kill them directly. However, he would definitely not leave them any living space either. The land that existed in this world was extremely small. The green spirit nether hedgehog, which was running at full speed, took Sheng Fei and the five-clawed golden dragon and crossed the edge of the lush jungle in less than half an incense stick's time. They were about to reach the coast of the island. Gu Mingzhou was sitting cross-legged on a rock above the water with his eyes closed. He did not know that danger was coming. He didn't know how long he had been sitting here, but the corner of his robe had been wet from the splashing tide, so his whole body was somewhat wet, revealing a bit of a sorry state. His face was pale and his eyes were tightly shut. The splashing water fell on his hair and soaked his robe, but he was unmoved. He sat quietly in the middle of the waves that were constantly beating on the beach. It was as if he had blended in with the surrounding night, which was very strange. There was day and night in this world, but there was no change between the sun and the moon. Only in the night sky, there would be some stars. Even with the starlight, the night sky was still very dark. Just like the island's coast now, it was gloomy, the sound of the tide was constant, and the sound of insects was gradually heard. It was very creepy. And it was in this terrifying environment that Gu Mingzhou, who had almost fused with the darkness, finally opened his tightly shut eyes slowly and let out a breath of turbid air. I guessed right, they really came. Gu Mingzhou's long and narrow eyes shot out a sharp light as he muttered to himself. He quickly looked away and turned to look at the black stick, which was stuck in the sand that was submerged by the sea. A black spear that seemed to be dancing with flames shot out from his hand and instantly pierced into the center of the thorns. Bang! The black stick that the long spear struck was instantly shattered. The long spear immediately changed its direction, and its power increased instead of decreasing, instantly stabbing toward another thorn. The unknown substance flew in all directions and fell into the surrounding tide, causing ripples. Are you sure you want to do this? The one who could not be seen and only heard was naturally Zhao Qinkuan. Previously, Gu Mingzhou had a dispute with Zhao Qinkuan over whether to cultivate the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique or not. He made a decision under Jing Wudao's advice. Just as Zhao Qinkuan had said, he had no choice but to give up his stubbornness and go against his will to do what he was unwilling to do. If he didn't improve his cultivation with the help of the heavenly devouring technique, he would be killed by Shang Wan Fei and the others who coveted the Qing Emperor's inheritance. Between life and death, he could only choose to live. Not only could he not die, but he also had to live well. If he wanted to leave this place alive, he had to choose to cultivate the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique. This was the only way to quickly raise his cultivation and defeat his opponent. As Gu Mingzhou was devouring He Yuliang, the green spirit nether hedgehog spike suddenly shot out again. Fortunately, with his previous experience, he had made preparations in advance this time, which saved him from a disaster and allowed him to devour He Yuliang's cultivation safely. He Yuliang, whose cultivation base had been devoured, died on the spot. His soul dispersed, leaving behind only his skin. With the second devouring, he completely stabilized his newly built Tao foundation and directly entered the peak of the mortal realm. He became a cultivator at the peak of the mortal realm, just like Shang Wan Fei and the green spirit nether hedgehog. After making his decision, Gu Mingzhou's confidence increased. He was ready to take the risk and carry out the plan. He wanted to directly turn the dark into the light and use his strength to defeat the strong. Gu Mingzhou was prepared to stop hiding and launch a sneak attack to defeat them one by one. He was prepared to show himself and fight them openly with his sword and spear. In the past, Zhao Qinkuan would have definitely stepped forward to stop such a crazy idea. It seemed that because of the previous argument, Zhao Qinkuan did not stop Gu Mingzhou even though he did not agree with him. 
Gu Mingzhou had deliberately placed the thorns next to him in order to attract the green spirit nether hedgehog. It turned out that his speculation was correct. Shang Fei and the others had indeed caught up. It's too time-consuming to catch and break through this place sneakily. Since I've chosen the heavenly devouring technique, I have to improve my cultivation level and leave this place as soon as possible. Otherwise, Su Fenyu might become even stronger. Gu Mingzhou said to Zhao Qianquan. There are some things that I have to make clear to you in advance. If you were to deal with any one of them, there might be a possibility of winning, but the odds of 1 versus 3 Zhao Qianquan was silent for a long time before he spoke again. It's too late to regret it now. Two black shadows flew out of the forest. The black shadow looked strange in the dark night, as it shuttled through the void. They were the green spirit Nether Hedgehog and Lu Yucheng, who had revealed his true form as a five-clawed golden dragon. Gu Mingzhou did not look at the two of them. He looked directly at the figure on the five-clawed golden dragon's back. It was Shang Wan Fei. The dragon and the phoenix were the top divine beasts in the world and were even known as the leaders of all beasts. One could imagine how arrogant they were. Even in the billions of years of history, there were very few cultivators who could tame dragons and phoenixes and control them. How could Gu Mingzhou not be surprised that Shang Wan Fei, a cultivator at the peak of the mortal realm, could be carried by a five-clawed golden dragon? Even if Lu Yucheng had a close relationship with Shang Wan Fei. However, the noble five-clawed golden dragon would not allow a human to stand on his back and use him as a means of transportation, right? Dragons had their own pride. Even if they didn't hate other living beings, especially humans who took over the world, they would still hold contempt and disdain for them. This point could be seen in Lu Yocheng's silent personality. He wasn't slow-witted or inarticulate. He was disdainful, or rather, he was too lazy to care about others. It was uncertain whether Lu Yocheng's cultivation had reached the peak of the mortal realm, but the divine beasts had a unique advantage. Even the divine dragon of the mortal realm could compete with cultivators at the peak of the mortal realm. Chapter, 355 Pen No One O oh. Shang Wan Fei's strength could not be underestimated since he could make a true dragon yield. He didn't know what had happened in the old temple. Otherwise, he wouldn't have thought this way. What one says casually is taken seriously by another. In the quiet night, the slight movement was covered by the sound of the tide. Zhao Qinkuan also noticed the green spirit Nether Hedgehog, the five-clawed golden dragon, and Shang Wan Fei. He knew that it was too late to stop him now, not to mention that Zhao Qinkuan had not done anything to stop him from the beginning. The green spirit Nether Hedgehog was very fast. It seemed to have determined Gu Mingzhou's direction and did not stop at all. He didn't even say a word and attacked. The green spirit nether hedgehog spikes stood upside down and shot out as fast as lightning, covering the sky. Gu Mingzhou didn't expect the green spirit nether hedgehog to be so decisive. It attacked without even saying a word. It was very powerful. If it was a few hours ago, he would not have been able to withstand the green spirit nether hedgehog's attack and would have been injured. However, Gu Mingzhou was no longer as weak as before after devouring Wu Ji patriarchs and He Youliang's cultivation. He was still a little afraid of the sharp thorns, but he was not helpless. Gu Mingzhou clenched his fists. His spiritual energy surged, and a long spear appeared out of thin air. He also did not hesitate. Looking at the overwhelming rain of spikes, he quickly stabbed out. The long spear emitted a bright light and thousands of spear shadows followed, madly piercing the sky full of thorns. Bang! 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 The shadow of the spear and the thorn collided in the night sky and exploded. The light was like fireworks, dazzling and wonderful. In the first exchange, the thorns that the green spirit nether gang relied on were blocked by Gu Mingzhou's spear. They were evenly matched, which showed how powerful Gu Mingzhou was now. The green spirit nether hedgehog didn't back down at all. Its attack was still fierce and didn't stop at all. In the midst of the fireworks-like collision, it instantly closed in on Gu Mingzhou. The five-clawed golden dragon followed closely behind the green spirit nether mantis and attacked together with it. However, Gu Mingzhou was already prepared. When he used his spear technique to block the thorns, 
he paid attention to his opponent. The spear was sharp, and it pierced toward the green spirit nether hedgehog like a shooting star in the dark. Before the long spear could reach him, the green spirit nether hedgehog had already changed his direction. Its four strong limbs moved in the void as if it was walking on flat ground, and it was unusually agile. The rapidly changing body turned and dodged directly. The green spirit nether hedgehog did not continue to attack Gu Mingzhou. Instead, it flew back. Gu Mingzhou could not help but look puzzled. The green spirit nether hedgehog attacked without hesitation. It was decisive and powerful as if it wanted to kill him directly. When it really approached, it inexplicably flew back, as if it had been thrown by Gu Mingzhou's spear. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to think about the reason, the five-clawed golden dragon had already attacked. It was obvious that the green spirit nether hedgehog did not inform the five-clawed golden dragon of its sudden change. This also allowed the five-clawed golden dragon to turn from a support to a main attacker. Faced with Gu Mingzhou's long spear, it had no time to dodge and crashed into it. A muffled sound rang out in the night sky. When the five-clawed golden dragon attacked, it was about to attack Gu Mingzhou. The green spirit nether hedgehog's sudden departure surprised it, but it also reached out its dragon claws to block the spear. Gu Mingzhou's spear, which was filled with all his spiritual energy, did not cause much damage to it. On the contrary, he was the one who was sent flying by the five-clawed golden dragon's ferocious claw attack. He fell directly into the tide, causing countless splashes. Fortunately, the water was only waist-deep and did not cause any damage to Gu Mingzhou. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to emerge from the tide, a dragon's roar rang out, and a figure instantly attacked with a cold glint. The three-foot-long sword glinted coldly under the starlight, revealing its ferocity. It was as if it was going to cut through the void as it suddenly slashed down at Gu Mingzhou's head. The sword's momentum was like a rainbow, like a light in the darkness, swift and fierce. Gu Mingzhou quickly pulled out his gun and directly lifted it up. Clang! A crisp sound of collision rang out. At the critical moment, the long spear blocked the sharp sword light at the right time. Although the long spear shook off the sudden and fierce sword light, the huge power carried by the long sword passed through the body of the spear and was transmitted to Gu Mingzhou. Buzz! The body of the spear trembled violently. Gu Mingzhou felt a pain in the web between his thumb and forefinger as if a huge mountain was pressing down on his body. It caused his body, which had just regained its balance in the tide, to stagger back again and almost fall into the water. Shengguan Fei Gu Mingzhou, who had regained his balance, frowned and stared at the figure who had also been thrown into the air. He knew that the five-clawed golden dragon was Lu Youqing's true form. But Gu Mingzhou had to be wary of Shengguan Fei, who was standing on the back of the five-clawed golden dragon. After all, this island master Shengguan Fei had a long reputation, and his cultivation had long reached the peak of the mortal realm. I really didn't expect that island master Shengguan would collude with demonic beasts. Aren't you afraid of being hunted down and cursed by the world? Gu Mingzhou looked at Shang Wan Fei, who was in the air and said disdainfully. In fact, when Shang Wan Fei had attacked him in the Cave of Inheritance, Gu Mingzhou knew that they had made some kind of agreement with the Green Spirit Nether Hedgehog. However, Gu Mingzhou had previously thought that it was an inheritance. Shang Wan Fei and the others were forced to call a truce with the Green Spirit Nether Hedgehog and enter the cave together to fight for the inheritance of the Qing Emperor. But now, it was clear that the truce was not temporary. This naturally made Gu Mingzhou very angry. The Green Spirit Nether Hedgehog was a demon. The demon race represented the natural demons, mainly demonic beasts. They were bloodthirsty, loved to kill, and liked to attack. They had always wanted to annihilate the other races and rule the universe. Such a race was undoubtedly the common enemy of all living beings. Especially the biggest ruling race in the world, the number one enemy of humankind. It could be said that the relationship between the human race and the demon race was simply like fire and water. After all, the human race was currently the publicly acknowledged ruler. They were very powerful, so they naturally became a thorn in the eyes of the demon race. And only when the human race declined would the demon race have a chance of realizing their crazy ideas. 
As a result, the demons would almost often launch attacks on the human race and carry out massacres. The demons' actions naturally drew the enmity of the human race. Thus, the battle between the two sides began. The enmity between humans and demons was almost irreconcilable. Between them, it would definitely be a life or death situation. The god fiends of the sacred soul island weren't real god fiends. They were just a branch of the human race. Shang Wan Fei was a powerful human, but he had actually formed an alliance with the demon race. Naturally, Gu Mingzhou's anger rose. In case, in the end, the green spirit nether hedgehog obtained the inheritance of the Qin Emperor. It was very likely that it would take all the demonic beasts on this island to the outside world. At that time, it would be a disaster for the people in the central plains and the outer regions. How could Gu Mingzhou not be angry? He was angry at Shang Wan Fei's lack of ambition and the misfortune of the individual cultivators. What do you know? After I obtained the Qin Emperor's inheritance, what's the harm in cooperating with the demon race? Besides, it's those powerful existences who are the enemies of the demonic beasts. What does that have to do with me? In the face of Gu Mingzhou's accusation, Shang Wan Fei's face showed disdain. Chapter 356 Gu Mingzhou looked at Shang Wan Fei in disbelief. He could not understand why Shang Wan Fei would say this. But Shang Wan Fei's words made sense. The matter between the human and the demon happened in the heaven realm. The main battlefield also took place in the heaven realm, and it did not have much to do with the other realms. If it wasn't for the human race's powerful cultivator in the heaven realm resisting the brutal demon race, would the various realms still be so stable now? In times of peace, many people would think that conflicts were other people's business and had nothing to do with them. It was obvious that Shang Wan Fei was thinking this way. As long as I kill you, no one will know that I'm working with the demon race. Shang Wan Fei seemed to be extremely happy. That toad and the long worm have long died in the hands of this brat. A black shadow gradually emerged from the dark night. It was the green spirit nether hedgehog that had suddenly left. Gu Mingzhou's gaze on the green spirit nether hedgehog became fearful. The connection between the two thorns hidden in Wu Ji Patriarch and He Yul Yang's bodies and the green spirit nether hedgehog was not as simple as Gu Mingzhou had thought. How did you know? Shang Wan Fei looked at the green spirit nether hedgehog with dissatisfaction and asked softly. Shang Wan Fei was very dissatisfied with the green spirit nether hedgehog's sudden dodge which forced the five-clawed golden dragon to attack. Island Master Shang Wan, you don't need to worry about this. I'm sure that the disgusting toad and the long worm are dead. The green spirit nether hedgehog did not answer Shang Wan Fei's question but said with absolute certainty. You've already lied to us once. It was not Shang Wan Fei who spoke, but the five clawed golden dragon. Lu Yoching's hundred meter long body wriggled in the dark, and his bell like eyes seemed to be spewing fire as he stared at the green spirit nether hedgehog and scolded it in a cold voice. Compared to Shang Wan Fei, Lu Yoching's temper was obviously much worse. He didn't show any mercy to the green spirit nether hedgehog. It was as if Lu Yuching would immediately attack the green spirit nether hedgehog if he didn't like the explanation. In the face of Lu Yoching's strength, the green spirit nether hedgehog did not show the slightest fear. Instead, it showed an indifferent attitude and directly ignored Lu Yuching, focusing its eyes on Shang Wan Fei. Shang Wan Island Master, do you need me to explain? The green spirit nether hedgehog looked at Shang Wan Fei with great interest and asked in a low voice. He directly pushed the problem to Shang Wan Fei, as if he knew the reason for his sudden departure. You should explain. Although I've sensed it, I'm not sure. Shang Wan Fei said. I didn't expect that island master Shang Wan didn't trust me, the green spirit nether hedgehog shook his head sadly and sighed. The green spirit nether hedgehog turned its head to look at Gu Mingzhou. Under its protruding nose, a strange smile appeared. It bent its back slightly, and the dense thorns on its back suddenly stood up one by one. A faint blue light spread out with the green spirit nether hedgehog as the center. With a whooshing sound, countless thorns broke out of the ground within a hundred miles of the green spirit nether hedgehog. 
In just a few breaths, except for the ten-mile radius where Gu Mingzhou, Shang Wanfei, Lu Yucheng, and the Green Spirit Nether Hedgehog were, the entire area up to a hundred-mile radius was densely covered with thorns. It was like a courtyard fence, directly surrounding a hundred-mile radius. The densely packed thorns covered the sky and formed one with the surrounding thorns. They were like a vast bowl that had been turned upside down and more like a prison. Not all of the spikes were upright, but most of them were hanging in the air. Only some of the spikes in the sky were upright. Regardless of whether the thorns were vertical or horizontal, their sharp tips were all pointed at Gu Mingzhou and the others. What Gu Mingzhou was puzzled about was that the thorns that appeared in a hundred mile radius were different from the ones he had seen before. Blue patterns appeared on the thorns, adding a bit of strangeness to the originally ferocious and terrifying thorns. The surface was also emitting a thin layer of flames, as if the entire area within a hundred miles was surrounded by these flames, burning. In the dark of the night, if not for the flickering light, one might not be able to notice it. It was very strange. The feeling that this flame gave Gu Mingzhou was not that of scorching heat. Instead, it was bone-piercingly cold, and it could penetrate one's heart. He could not help but shiver. If it was daytime and someone was looking over from a hundred miles away, they would definitely find that this place seemed to be a huge circle burning with black flames. The change seemed slow, but in reality, it only took a few breaths. As soon as the green spirit nether hedgehog finished speaking, dense thorns had already appeared around it, forming an encirclement. Even Sheng Wanfei, who had been mentally prepared, could not help but frown and look at the green spirit nether hedgehog with more vigilance. What are you trying to do by releasing so many thorns? In the end, Sheng Wanfei was only vigilant and did not express his opinion. On the contrary, Lu Yucheng was even more temperamental as he asked. Lu Yucheng's hundred-meter-long dragon body was about to pounce on the green spirit nether hedgehog. The appearance of the thorns didn't affect where they were, but only ten miles away. But it had appeared too suddenly, and the largest of them all, Lu Yucheng, was immediately alarmed his hundred-meter-long dragon body almost shrinking into a ball. Please calm down for now. Shang Wanfei reached out to stop him. Lu Yucheng obeyed Shang Wanfei's every word. However, the anger in his eyes didn't die down. He looked at the green spirit nether hedgehog with even more dissatisfaction. The green spirit nether hedgehog did not seem to care. It nodded slightly at Shang Wanfei and then turned its eyes to Gu Mingzhou. Every thorn in my poisonous hedgehog formation contains ice flames that can burn everything in the void. Even an instant talisman can't pass through it. The green spirit nether hedgehog said in a gloomy tone. The array formation is indeed shocking to me, and it's true that I can't break out. But I'm very confused. I wonder if island master Shang Wan can break it. Of course, Gu Mingzhou was not simply asking Shang Wan Fei. In fact, he was warning them that after he was defeated and captured, the green spirit nether hedgehog might attack them. It was very difficult for Shang Wan Fei to break through the dense thorns around it. What do you mean by that? The green spirit nether hedgehog said coldly. Shang Wan Fei had lived for hundreds of years. How could he not understand? You're underestimating me, Shang Wan Fei, by saying that it's simple. Since we've chosen to cooperate, why should we worry about the future? Shang Wan Fei didn't forget to nod at the green spirit nether hedgehog to express his goodwill. Island master Shang Wan and I are allies. How can we kill each other? Accept your death. The green spirit nether hedgehog understood what Shang Wan Fei meant and said with a smile. The green spirit nether hedgehog didn't give Gu Mingzhou a chance to speak at all. It covered a distance of 100 meters in an instant and suddenly pounced at Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou quickly turned his spear around and stabbed the green spirit nether hedgehog. The green spirit nether hedgehog didn't dodge. It faced the spear head on and its spikes hit the spear. There was a sharp collision sound. The long spear and the thorn collided and separated. Gu Mingzhou immediately staggered back. The green spirit nether hedgehog did not give Gu Mingzhou any chance. Its back shook slightly, and several more spikes shot out. Gu Mingzhou did not have time to stand still and quickly swept his spear. After shaking off a few thorns, he retreated without hesitation, 
distancing himself from the green spirit nether hedgehog. Chapter, 357 The green spirit nether hedgehog spikes were so fast and sharp that they could be shot out in an instant. It was very disadvantageous for Gu Mingzhou to be too close. Green spirit netherworld followed suit and caught up with him. The thorns on its back shot out endlessly. The thorns were like poisonous dragons as they attacked Gu Mingzhou. With no room to retreat, they could only fight. Countless spiritual energy gushed out, and the spear in his hand trembled to meet the incoming thorns. The sharp spear's radiance instantly collided with the thorns. This time, Gu Mingzhou turned from defense to attack. The direction of his long spear was no longer just to shake off the thorns, but to directly pierce them. Bang! Wherever the spear went, the thorns would shatter and explode in the air, turning into a fine powder and falling into the sea. Gu Mingzhou did not stop at all. He waved the spear in his hands and stabbed the green spirit nether hedgehog in front of him. The flames grew stronger and the spear shadows stacked up. Hundreds of spear shadows pierced through the air toward the green spirit nether hedgehog. The momentum seemed to tear the void apart, and the world changed colors. The green spirit nether hedgehog didn't dare to continue its attack. The spikes on its back shot out again to meet the spear shadow. Hundreds of thorns were crushed into powder. The spear shadow broke through the thorns and continued to stab toward the green spirit nether hedgehog through the dust. The green spirit nether hedgehog wanted to retreat, so why would it try to block the spear shadows? When he shook out the thorns, he had already retreated. When the spear shattered the thorns, he had already retreated a hundred meters. Gu Mingzhou didn't take advantage of the situation to attack. He just hovered in the air and stared at the green spirit nether hedgehog beside Shang Wan Fei with a frown. After the fight just now, Gu Mingzhou didn't feel that the green spirit nether hedgehog was very strong. This was very abnormal, even strange. Even though he had strengthened his spiritual energy through continuous devouring and re-established his Tao foundation. However, it was impossible for him to defeat the green spirit nether hedgehog so easily. In the exchange just now, it seemed that if Gu Mingzhou wanted to, the green spirit nether hedgehog would definitely die. He couldn't help but raise his guard. Gu Mingzhou stood with his spear in hand. Island Master Shengwan, because setting up the formation earlier consumed my demonic power, I'm not his match now. Please help. The green spirit nether hedgehog seemed to be very weak as if its demonic power was not enough. It's fine. Leave Gu Mingzhou to me. The three-foot-long sword in Shang Wan Fei's hand overflowed with spiritual energy. His robe fluttered in the wind, making him look like a celestial lord. The sword light lit up the dark sky. It directly flew past the green spirit nether hedgehog and headed towards Gu Mingzhou. The moment Shang Wan Fei and the green spirit nether hedgehog brushed past each other, the weak green spirit nether hedgehog suddenly flashed with a fierce light. Be careful. The dragon's roar reverberated through the air. Shang Wan Fei cursed in his heart, but it was too late to dodge. Three pitch black thorns, flickering with black flames, shot out in an instant. Almost as soon as Shang Wan Fei came to his senses, it had already approached and pierced through his chest. Blood spurted out, which was particularly eye catching in the light of the sword. Blood splattered everywhere. The sword lights were still dancing in the void like the bright moon in the dark night, illuminating the vast sea and the waves. Three ten-foot-long thorns pierced through Shang Wan Fei's body. Bright red blood was flowing down the tip of the thorns, dripping from the void and into the sea. Big brother! A sorrowful cry came out of Lu Yocheng's mouth. When the green spirit nether hedgehog sneaked an attack, he noticed something was wrong, but Shang Wan Fei had been hit before he could arrive. Go to hell! Shang Wan Fei recovered from his shock, and the expression on his face immediately changed from shock to anger. Countless spiritual energy surged out of Shang Wan Fei's body like a huge wave the three-foot sword in his hand suddenly slashed down at the green spirit nether hedgehog. It burst forth with endless light. Shang Wan Fei was so powerful that even though he was attacked by the green spirit nether hedgehog, he was still able to burst out with great power. The seemingly weak green spirit nether hedgehog didn't stop at all after shooting out its thorns. His body shot forward like an arrow, 
and within two breaths, he had already retreated more than a thousand meters away. The sword light was as bright as the sun fell and hit where the green spirit nether hedgehog had been. The sea split and a crack as thick as an arm snaked out from the tide to the shore. You're ruthless enough. Shang Wan Fei said through gritted teeth as he looked at the green spirit nether hedgehog a thousand meters away as if all his vitality had been sucked out. The thorn that had pierced through Shang Wan Fei's chest had almost taken his life. Before he could finish his words, he was already swaying and falling from the sky. Big Brother The five-clawed golden dragon, Lu Yucheng, arrived. His hundred-meter-long dragon body suddenly coiled in the void and directly lifted the falling Shang Wan Fei. Shang Wan Fei, who had landed on the dragon's body, looked even more dispirited. His sword fell out of his hand and into the tide, splashing up waves. Let's go. Shang Wan Fei became more and more dispirited as if saying these words had exhausted the last of his life. Three balls of black flames burned on Shang Wan Fei's chest and spread quickly. In an instant, the black light enveloped Shang Wan Fei. In the end, they turned into ashes and drifted into the night with the sea breeze. A proud son of heaven was annihilated just like that. Big brother. A roar suddenly came from Lu Yocheng's mouth. All of this happened too quickly. It had only been a few seconds since the green spirit nether hedgehog's sneak attack and Shang Wan Fei's death, but the battlefield had changed dramatically. Everything was a conspiracy. It was a trap that had been set up for Shang Wan Fei. The green spirit nether hedgehog had never thought of killing Gu Mingzhou. Or rather, its target was Shang Wan Fei. Perhaps it was because Shang Wan Fei was too powerful that the green spirit nether beast was always afraid of him. Dozens of thorns shot out, even more swift and violent. Gu Mingzhou knew that this was a real opportunity to attack. He shook his long spear and thrust it out to meet the whizzing thorns. The flame on the spear suddenly grew stronger, and dozens of black spear shadows shot out, instantly hitting the thorns. Clang! 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 After destroying the thorn with one strike, Gu Mingzhou did not stop and continued to execute the spear technique. Whoosh! The huge spear shadow cut through the dark sky and landed in front of the green spirit nether puppet. It was like a bolt of lightning on a clear day. The shadow of the spear formed a red mushroom cloud that slowly rose in the dark night. A force so huge that it seemed to be able to directly destroy a mountain suddenly hit the spear and was quickly transmitted to Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou flew backward like a broken zither and fell into the surging sea. He was still no match for the demon king, green spirit nether hedgehog, and was defeated instantly. The green spirit nether hedgehog's round eyes shot out a dark blue light as it looked at the place where Gu Mingzhou had fallen. It thought that its sneak attack just now could not kill Gu Mingzhou. At this moment, a dragon's roar suddenly rang out, soaring straight into the nine heavens and penetrating the entire universe. The chant contained a special mystery. It was deafening at first, crisp and clear, and pleasant at the end. It made people's minds shake and feel comfortable all over. There were too many complicated emotions in the extremely pure dragon roar. It was as pressing as the dark clouds. A towering killing intent that could not be exhausted surged out and filled the void. Die! The five-clawed golden dragon that was a hundred meters long roared as it approached. Its 100-meter-long body was like a golden light in the dark sky as it crashed toward the green spirit nether hedgehog. Chapter, 358 The expression of the green spirit nether hedgehog, who was about to take advantage of its victory and pursue Gu Mingzhou, changed. It had to give up the idea of chasing Gu Mingzhou for the time being. It turned around, bent its back slightly, and suddenly flicked, shooting out dozens of thorns. Whoosh! Countless thorns flew out, filling the sky like a rain of spears, shooting toward Lu Yucheng. The furious Lu Yucheng didn't care about these sharp thorns at all. As it neared, the dragon's tail whipped out rapidly. Pang pang. The dragon's tail slashed down like a large blade, directly breaking the dozens of thorns at the waist. Lu Yucheng didn't stop at all. His dragon tail continued to swing, and his hundred-meter-long dragon body sprang out again directly charging at the green spirit nether hedgehog. You're looking for death. 
the green spirit nether hedgehog let out an ear-piercing screech that resounded through the nether sky. The green spirit nether hedgehog's vigorous body sprang out, just in time to avoid Lu Yoching's fierce pounce, and directly floated above Lu Yoching's head. The green spirit nether hedgehog descended from the sky, its four claws flashing with cold light. It suddenly reached out and grabbed Lu Yoching's back. The sound of sharp nails rubbing against dragon scales was heard. It was sharp and ear-piercing, making one scalp itch. The green spirit nether hedgehog's sharp claws shattered its dragon scales. Golden blood oozed out, emitting a faint fragrance. Lu Yuching felt pain and let out a dragon roar. The hundred-meter-long body shook and threw the green spirit nether hedgehog away. The green spirit nether hedgehog didn't care about being thrown nearly a hundred meters away. Instead, it stared at Lu Yoching's broken dragon scale, and its round eyes revealed a strange light, as if it had discovered something. Dragon Soul No wonder you're so weak, you're just a turtle dove occupying a magpie's nest and only fused with a dragon soul. The green spirit nether hedgehog didn't continue to attack. It floated in the air and stared at Lu Yoching's hundred-meter-long dragon body. It actually showed some fear and said, pretending to be calm. Humph, even if it's a dragon soul, it's enough to kill you. Lu Yoching's voice had become somewhat weathered, very different from his previous dullness as if he had changed into a different person. The only thing that did not change was the coldness, killing intent, and anger in his voice. Sheng Wan Fei's death was obviously unacceptable to Lu Yuching, and he was furious. Even if he had to make Lu Yuching leave this place before he died and not take revenge. But Lu Yuching, who had always listened to Sheng Wan Fei, had to make his own decision. Dragons had reverse scales, and those who touched them would die. And Sheng Wan Fei was Lu Yuching's real weakness. Lu Yuching was just his alias, and the dragon was not his real body. He was a human practitioner, Sheng Wan Yun, Sheng Wan Fei's younger brother. Both the monster cultivators and the individual cultivators had heard of Sheng Wan Fei's name like thunder. Few people knew that Sheng Wan Fei had a younger brother, Sheng Wan Yun. Sheng Wan Yun's achievements were almost all thanks to the support of his brother, Sheng Wan Fei. It was because Sheng Wan Yun's life plan was almost completely designed by Sheng Wan Fei, who had provided him with countless treasures, that he could progress so fast. Therefore, Shang Wan Yun's feelings for Shang Wan Fei were as strong as blood. But the world did not know of his existence. Many people only knew Shang Wan Fei but did not know that he had a younger brother, Shang Wan Yun. It could be possible that Shang Wan Fei had done it on purpose. Until a hundred years ago, when Shang Wan Yun was besieged and framed by his companions in the process of treasure hunting, his physical body was destroyed, and his divine sense was weak. In a panic, he fell into the void but happened to fall where Su Fengyu was suppressed. In order to get Shang Wan Yun to help him return to the world, Su Fengyu had consumed his weak true soul to send Shang Wan Yun into the great world by force. It was for the sake of letting Shang Wan Yun borrow the suppression of the heavenly way to imprison the broken dragon soul for 100 years. Of course, the result was obvious. Shang Wan Yun succeeded. Thus, the five-clawed golden dragon Lu Yuching appeared in this world. However, no one knew that this Lu Yuching was not a real five-clawed true dragon, but merely a fusion of dragon souls. Shang Wan Fei didn't disclose Shang Wan Yun's identity. Instead, he asked him to use the fake identity of Lu Yuching. His name and identity could be covered up, but the relationship between Shang Wan Yun and Shang Wan Fei could not. In the ancient temple, Shang Wan Yun accidentally disclosed the relationship between the two, and even vaguely involved that their purpose of entering the cave abode was under the order of world god, Su Feng Yu. It was for this reason that the green spirit nether hedgehog had seen through the relationship between Shang Wan Fei and Shang Wan Yun, so it had taken the risk to attack Shang Wan Fei. After all, the green spirit nether hedgehog could ignore Shang Wan Yun, but it could not ignore Shang Wan Fei. If the brothers worked together, they would be able to cut through gold. The green spirit nether gang would lose without a doubt. Moreover, there was another reason that prompted the green spirit nether hedgehog to attack. The conversation between Shang Wan Yun and Shang Wan Fei had actually been heard by the green spirit nether hedgehog. It was then that the green spirit nether hedgehog knew that a world god had appeared in the outside world. 
Gu Mingzhou didn't know about the world god, Su Fengyu, and Shang Wan Fei and Shang Wan Yun might not have understood either. However, the green spirit Nether Hedgehog, who was born in the demon world, knew how terrifying the world god was. Since Shang Wan Fei and Shang Wan Yun were in contact with the world god, he had to find a way to kill the two brothers and then escape back to the demon world. Otherwise, only death would await him. On the other hand, the devil race was a powerful enemy of the heavenly Tao because they plundered the world. They were natural enemies. Naturally, the world god became the green spirit Nether Hedgehog's number one enemy. Moreover, as long as Shang Wan Fei died, Shang Wan Yun and Gu Mingzhou, who were left behind, would not be its match. The inheritance would fall into his hands. How could the green spirit Nether Hedgehog not do this? However, the green spirit Nether Hedgehog had never expected that Shang Wan Yun's original body was not Lu Yucheng, but just a dragon soul. Although he had eavesdropped on the conversation between Shang Wan Yun and Shang Wan Fei, as well as the relationship between the two, and the matter about the world god, he was still very confident. However, it didn't know the real relationship between Shang Wan Yun and the world god. It didn't know Shang Wan Yun's identity, let alone the existence of the dragon soul. Therefore, when the green spirit Nether Hedgehog found out Shang Wan Yun's identity, it became afraid. The difference between a true dragon and a dragon soul was like heaven and earth. Dragons were extremely noble creatures, and it went without saying how much they cherished their lives. Even if they couldn't win, they wouldn't choose to self-destruct. A dragon soul was equivalent to a phoenix that had fallen into the mortal world. It was treated as a chicken by others and had long put aside life and death. In a bloody battle, it would not hesitate even if it had to die with the enemy. Even the self-destruction of a broken dragon soul was not something that a demon king-level magical beast could withstand. The green spirit Nether Hedgehog regretted that it should have killed Shang Wan Yun first instead of Shang Wan Fei. Judging from the current situation, the real threat to the green spirit Nether Hedgehog was Shang Wan Yun, who had fused with the broken dragon soul. There was no medicine for regret in this world. While the nether demon was still in fear, Shang Wan Yun attacked again. His 100 meter long dragon body wriggled up and his dragon tail whipped out, but he did not attack. Instead, he landed beside the green spirit nether hedgehog and wrapped it with his 100 meter long dragon body, trying to strangle it to death. Chapter, 359 The Dragon Roared Shang Wan Yun's fierce dragon claw suddenly swung out and smashed toward the green spirit nether hedgehog with a whistling sound. The hundred meter long Lu Yocheng's dragon claws alone were larger than a human's head. His nails were sharp and flickered with a cold light. In a short distance, he was extremely fast and fierce. Squeak. An ear piercing cry came out of the nether hedgehog's mouth. It indicated that he was panicking, and he instinctively let out a cry, wanting to escape to the outside. However, Shang Wan Yun had anticipated that the green spirit nether hedgehog would run away without a fight. He hovered in the void and immediately tightened the dragon body around the green spirit nether hedgehog, wrapping it in an instant and blocking its way. Seeing that there was no way to escape, the green spirit nether hedgehog was furious and let out a sharp scream again. It no longer dodged. Instead, its hind legs pushed against the void, and its entire body was like an arrow leaving the bow, directly colliding with the dragon claw that was descending from the sky. Bang! A muffled sound exploded in the void. Lu Yucheng, who clearly had the upper hand and was full of momentum, was actually sent flying in this collision. The dragon body around the green spirit nether hedgehog was knocked back a hundred meters. On the other hand, the weaker green spirit nether hedgehog was completely unscathed. It broke free of Lu Yucheng's restraints and immediately ran away, putting some distance between it and Lu Yucheng. In the eyes of the green spirit nether hedgehog, it was too dangerous. Fortunately, Shang Wan Yun did not choose to burn his dragon soul and die with it. Otherwise, how could it have the power to fight back? It would have turned into dust long ago. Die! Shang Wan Yun, who had been knocked away, finally realized the gap between him and the green spirit nether hedgehog. He roared again and swung his dragon tail. His 100 meter long dragon body suddenly shot out, waving his dragon claws and rushing straight at his opponent. 
The green spirit nether hedgehog was afraid of Shang Wan Yun's fearless attitude, which moved it. After all, Shang Wan Yun had the body of a dragon soul. Even if it was only a remnant soul, it would be fatal for the green spirit nether hedgehog if he burned his dragon soul. The green spirit nether hedgehog would not let Shang Wan Yun get close to it again. The green spirit nether hedgehog started to move before the dragon's body got close. His four strong limbs moved quickly in the air, avoiding the sharp edge. Shang Wan Yun, who had rushed over quickly, missed. His killing intent didn't decrease, and he continued to pounce toward the green spirit nether hedgehog. There was still a gap between Shang Wan Yun's speed and the green spirit nether hedgehogs. Even though Shang Wan Yun had the dragon race's talent and was extremely fast, he was still a dragon. However, the dragon's body which was a hundred meters long was still not as long as the green spirit nether hedgehog demonic spirit. Every time Shang Wan Yun tried to approach the green spirit nether hedgehog, it would easily dodge his attack, which made him so angry that he kept roaring. Gu Mingzhou looked at the green spirit nether hedgehog, which was being chased by Shang Wan Yun. He did not choose to attack immediately. Instead, he retreated to the side to recuperate. At the same time, he observed the two people chasing each other. Although he had been defeated by the green spirit nether hedgehog and fell into the sea, he had still heard Lu Yoqing's roar very clearly. It was especially so for his usual deep voice. He didn't know Lu Yuqing, but he had traveled with him for several days, so he was familiar with Lu Yuqing's voice. However, the voice that came out of Lu Yuqing's mouth just now was very different from the previous Lu Yuqing. Instead, it gave Gu Mingzhou a feeling of deja vu. This feeling made him very uneasy. The green spirit nether hedgehog had heard the conversation between Shang Wan Yun and Shang Wan Fei by chance, so it knew the relationship between the two. Gu Mingzhou did not know Lu Yuqing's true identity, so he decided to watch from the side for the time being. Of course, he was not idle. While the green spirit nether hedgehog was busy with Lu Yuqing, Gu Mingzhou took the opportunity to contact Zhao Qianquan and ask about the dragon soul. Gu Mingzhou was confused when he vaguely heard the green spirit nether hedgehog say that Lu Yuqing was not a real dragon but a dragon soul. After asking Zhao Qianquan, he found out that the cultivation methods of divine beasts and cultivators were different but very similar. Although the cultivation of demonic beasts did not require body cultivation, it still needed to start with spirit cultivation. It was different from the cultivation techniques of human cultivators, but the goal was the same. Human cultivators had a divine soul, also known as divine consciousness. However, demonic cultivators did not have a spiritual sense. They relied on their super-strong senses. Therefore, the transformation was not spiritual sense, but a beast soul. The beast souls of monster cultivators were similar to the divine souls of human cultivators. Almost all of them had undying souls and undying bodies. When a human cultivator's physical body was destroyed, the soul left behind would be extremely fragile. If they couldn't possess or reforge their bodies as soon as possible, they would become weaker and weaker until they died. But demonic cultivators were completely different. Even if a demonic cultivator's beast body was destroyed, he could still survive in this world. Although their strength was damaged, they could continue to cultivate. Even at a critical moment, many powerful beast souls could self-destruct in a virtual beast body. When the beast soul chose to self-destruct, the power it produced was several times stronger than when it was at its peak. Choosing to self-destruct was equivalent to complete annihilation. Not only would his soul be destroyed, but he would also completely disappear from the world, leaving the cycle of reincarnation and becoming nutrients for the heavenly Tao. Even though many people didn't believe in reincarnation. However, in the long river of history, the stories of reincarnation and rebirth did exist. After a demonic cultivator's beast body is destroyed, if they can't find another demonic cultivator to possess within three years, they will lose their physical body and become a spirit soul. Demonic cultivators would be abandoned by their own clan after they became spirit souls. A spirit soul didn't belong to any living being and directly broke away from the cycle of reincarnation. For this reason, many beast souls had long forgotten about life and death with the passing of time. Self-destruction was the most common means to kill. This was especially so for divine beasts like the true dragon, 
who was incomparably arrogant and believed that dying heroically was more important than living. This was why the green spirit Nether Hedgehog was so afraid when it realized that Shang Wan Yun's true form was a broken dragon soul. If I don't like it, I'll self-destruct and drag you to death with me. After Zhao Qianquan's explanation, Gu Mingzhou became even more silent. Lu Yocheng's true identity shocked Gu Mingzhou. It also made him wary. It was not impossible for Lu Yucheng to drag the green spirit Nether Hedgehog and Gu Mingzhou to hell with him. This thought made Gu Mingzhou not dare to interfere with the two people chasing each other in the void. Even though this was the best chance to kill the green spirit Nether Hedgehog. However, thinking that he might lose his life, he had to calm down and observe the situation. The battlefield changed again. Shang Wan Yun, who had failed to catch up with the green spirit Nether Hedgehog for a long time, was completely enraged by the green spirit Nether Hedgehog. He chose not to burn his dragon soul. A scorching wave of air burst out from Lu Yocheng's 100 meter long dragon body and swept across the night sky, causing Shang Wan Yun's momentum to rapidly rise. The pressure was comparable to Su Yu's. You're crazy, you actually dare to burn your dragon soul. Are you not afraid of death? Seeing the furious Shang Wan Yun burning his dragon soul, the green spirit nether puppet shouted in horror. As long as I can kill you, what's the harm in dying? Return my big brother's life. Shang Wan Yun, whose momentum had reached its peak, moved a thousand meters in one move. He arrived in front of the green spirit nether hedgehog in an instant and whipped out his fierce dragon tail. His hundred meter long dragon body twisted in a void and wrapped around the opponent in an instant. A majestic power that was beyond the tolerance of heaven and earth burst out of Shang Wan Yun's body. Chapter 360 This was the prelude to self destruction, indicating that Shang Wan Yun's energy, which was several times that of his physical body's peak state, was about to explode in front of the green spirit Nether Hedgehog. After a long delay, Shang Wan Yun made a move that made the green spirit Nether Hedgehog and even Gu Mingzhou tremble. Self destruct. If you want to die, don't pull me along. A sharp and vicious voice came out of the mouth of the nether hedgehog. At the same time, a massive amount of energy overflowed from its body, contending with the boundless might within Lu Yocheng's body. Even though the green spirit nether hedgehog used its full power, it was like an ant trying to shake a tree in the face of the energy from the dragon soul's self-destruction. It was drowned in an instant. However, the green spirit nether hedgehog didn't want to suppress the dragon soul's self-destruction. It had other plans. The green spirit nether hedgehog's figure gradually faded away. The shadow of a giant hedgehog in the sky quickly solidified. The green spirit nether hedgehog switched places with the shadow in the sky, trying to break free. The green spirit nether hedgehog had used this move when it suddenly disappeared and appeared behind Gu Mingzhou. Just as the green spirit nether hedgehog was about to turn into a phantom, the burning spear suddenly shot out. The long spear instantly pierced the giant hedgehog phantom in the sky, igniting the entire phantom, causing the hedgehog phantom that was about to be fixed to the ground to fade. No. A shrill and frightened roar came out of the mouth of the green spirit nether hedgehog. Before he finished speaking, the scorching sun appeared in the night sky. The air blast soared to the sky, and a loud explosion rang out. The huge ball of light was like a scorching sun that descended. It rapidly expanded in the night sky above the sea, turning night into day. An earth-shattering explosion rang out. Kaboom! The sky changed color, waves of energy rushed to the sky, and the wind howled and the clouds scattered. The ocean water kept rolling, and waves tens of meters high rose up. It was as if the heavens had collapsed and the earth had cracked. It was terrifying. In an instant, the world brightened, the mountains and rivers shattered, and the sky lost its color. The spreading heat wave seemed to carry a powerful destructive force that swept in all directions. Wherever it passed, the thorns turned into dust, the trees turned into wood shavings, the mountain rocks were crushed, and all living things were annihilated. Silence. The entire world seemed to have lost its vitality and became exceptionally quiet and peaceful. All that was left behind was a huge ball of light that was as hot as the sun, silently emitting a bright light. Terrifying black cracks and spatial storms filled the light ball. 
The strong wind whistled across the sea. The ball of light finally began to dissipate, and the pitch-black spatial rift also began to gradually close up. Large amounts of seawater kept surging up from the dry coast. After an unknown amount of time, the sun-like ball of light completely dissipated, and the world returned to nothingness. The air was filled with heat, and it kept beating the tide on the coast. Numerous cracks appeared on the human-shaped mound, causing the stone powder covering it to fall. Under the sea breeze, a large number of wood chips and stone powder swirled and drifted toward the depths of the island. The figure broke out of the ground and floated in the air. Are they dead? Gu Mingzhou stood with his spear in his hand, looking at the empty sky and the island that had turned into a desert. Not long ago, this place was still an island in a sea with lush vegetation and vitality. In the blink of an eye, this place had turned into a land of death filled with dust and sand. Sometimes, life was just so fragile. The slight noise instantly alerted Gu Mingzhou. Who is it? Gu Mingzhou looked in the direction of the voice warily. Swish. The black shadow was like an arrow that had left the bow. It shot up into the sky, turned around, and was about to go far away and leave this place. For some reason, the black shadow suddenly fell from the sky and landed on the beach after flying less than 10 meters. Gu Mingzhou immediately leaped up and directly crossed the deep pit. He landed in front of the black shadow. It was a scorched-skinned animal covered in blood. His head and limbs were retracted into his abdomen to hide, making him look like a round watermelon. It was covered in blood, and thick green blood was flowing out. His entire body was trembling and twitching. Save me. The sharp but weak sound was almost inaudible, but it was still a little harsh. Green Spirit Nether Hedgehog Gu Mingzhou's eyes were filled with killing intent as he stared at the twitching black shadow on the ground. Gu Mingzhou The black shadow seemed to have realized something. Earlier, when Lu Yuqing had relied on burning his dragon soul to bind the Green Spirit Nether Hedgehog and prepare to self-destruct, Gu Mingzhou had been prepared to dodge. However, when he saw the Green Spirit Nether Hedgehog and the shadow swap positions, Gu Mingzhou decided to attack. The full power strike destroyed the green spirit nether hedgehog's plan to avoid the dragon soul's self-destruction. However, Gu Mingzhou did not expect that he, who was a thousand meters away from the self-destruction and had made preparations in advance, would still be seriously injured by the blast of air from the self-destruction. The green spirit nether hedgehog, which was at the center of the explosion, didn't die. As long as you're willing to save me, I'll agree to any condition. I can be your mount even though it realized that it was Gu Mingzhou, the green spirit nether hedgehog kneeled on the ground and sincerely asked for help. Even though its life force was extremely weak, the green spirit nether hedgehog's desire to live still occupied all of its thoughts. With the last of his strength, he kept promising to ask for help. It was enough to show his desire to live. Gu Mingzhou remained silent the entire time. A deep sense of pity welled up in his heart. He could not explain why, nor did he know the reason. It was just that when he saw the other party's pitiful appearance, he felt pity for them. However, he would definitely not save it. Along the way, Gu Mingzhou had witnessed almost all the evil deeds of this demon king-level demonic beast. Cruel, fierce. Words could no longer describe it. He knew whether it was because of the power, the temptation of benefits, nature, or some other reason. It would make the magical beast's hearts become sinister and vicious. He didn't want to know. Gu Mingzhou would not save it. Instead, he wanted to kill it completely. Even though the green spirit nether hedgehog had made it sound like it was going to die, it still couldn't escape its fate. And the killing method was to devour. He wanted to completely erase the other party from the world. The original pity was instantly swept away. The once incomparably proud and brilliant demon king was now going to become the food of others. Sometimes, fate was really funny. There seemed to be an invisible hand in the world, hidden behind all living beings, toying with all life under the heavenly Tao. Just like now. From the first time they met to the time they entered to fight for the inheritance, and even before Sheng Wan Yun, who had devoured the broken dragon soul, self-destructed. Facing the green spirit nether hedgehog, Gu Mingzhou could only choose to escape. 
no one had expected that their positions would be reversed in the blink of an eye. The insufferably arrogant green spirit nether hedgehog would prostrate on the ground and beg for mercy from the ants it didn't care about. Prosperity and decline in life never last, life has its ups and downs. The green spirit nether hedgehog kept throwing out all kinds of conditions, but he couldn't shake Gu Mingzhou's mind. He walked toward the green spirit nether hedgehog. The green spirit nether hedgehog, which was lying on the ground, seemed to sense the killing intent in Gu Mingzhou's eyes. Its body trembled even more violently. Chapter, 361 As Gu Mingzhou moved, the green spirit nether hedgehog's consciousness wriggled behind it, as if it was very afraid of Gu Mingzhou and wanted to keep its distance. Please spare my life. When I return to the demon race in the future, I will definitely repay your kindness and ask the demon lord to send the demon race's greatest treasure. The green spirit nether hedgehog sensed the undisguised killing intent. It kept slamming its head against the sand as if worshipping. The green spirit nether hedgehog's current appearance already made Gu Mingzhou feel a strong sense of disgust. How did it manage to be like a god when it was arrogant, and like an ant when it was humble? He had no dignity at all. Gu Mingzhou instantly closed in on the green spirit nether hedgehog and raised the long spear in his right hand to stab it. The spear was sharp, and it streaked through the night toward the green spirit nether hedgehog. Even though the green spirit nether hedgehog was very pitiful and covered in wounds, it was obviously seriously injured. But Gu Mingzhou was still worried. As the saying goes, a starving camel is still bigger than a horse. A ruthless and powerful demon king, even if seriously injured, still posed a fatal threat. Just in case, he was going to severely injure the green spirit nether hedgehog so that it couldn't fight back. It was just as Gu Mingzhou had expected. Even though the green spirit nether hedgehog was severely injured and showed its submission, it was not afraid. However, when he thrust his spear forward, a fierce light flashed across the round eyes of the green spirit nether hedgehog. Without waiting for the spear to approach, the green spirit nether hedgehog's body, which was covered in wounds, immediately leaped into the air. Not only did it easily dodge the sharp spear, but it also landed behind Gu Mingzhou and reached out with its sharp claws, which glinted coldly. As expected, there's still a backup plan. Gu Mingzhou was already prepared. When the green spirit nether hedgehog's sharp claws were about to reach him, he turned around and thrust his spear. Pfft! Green blood flew everywhere. The spear pierced through the front claw of the green spirit nether hedgehog and into its chest. How is that possible? The green spirit nether hedgehog's claws trembled as it spoke in disbelief. It stared at Gu Mingzhou with a complicated look. From the moment it discovered Gu Mingzhou, it never thought that Gu Mingzhou would let it go. However, the damage caused by the explosion of the dragon's soul was too great. It was heavily injured and its cultivation was almost completely crippled. For this reason, the green spirit nether hedgehog fell to the ground instead of flying a few meters away. The moment it fell, it had a bad feeling. Knowing that it had fallen into Gu Mingzhou's hands, it would definitely not let it go. Thus, he pretended to surrender and even threw away his dignity to beg for mercy. It was to secretly store up power. Only by killing Gu Mingzhou would he be truly safe. What the green spirit nether hedgehog did not expect was that Gu Mingzhou's killing intent was so strong. Even if it threw out the most precious treasure of the demon world, it could not move the other party. The plan failed in the end. It ignored the impression it had left in Gu Mingzhou's heart. Gu Mingzhou didn't know what a treasure of the demon race was. I'm the demon king. How can an ant like you kill me? An angry voice came out of the mouth of the green spirit nether hedgehog, which was still harsh. The green spirit nether hedgehog bent the spear. Then, he instantly bounced up and used the rebound force to pull out the spear that had pierced his body. The green spirit nether hedgehog broke free from the spear's restraint and did not choose to continue fighting with Gu Mingzhou. Instead, it turned around and wanted to escape. Where do you think you're going? Gu Mingzhou's right hand suddenly stabbed toward the green spirit nether hedgehog. Exterminate. The spear, which was surrounded by flames, suddenly glowed brightly and flew out. Like an arrow, it pierced through the night sky and stabbed the green spirit nether hedgehog. 
The sharp spear instantly pierced through the back of the green spirit nether hedgehog. Thick green blood spurted out like a fountain, splashing through the air and onto the ground. The green spirit nether hedgehog fell to the ground, kicking up a cloud of dust. An almost inaudible squeak came out of the green spirit nether hedgehog's mouth. Before it could even reach Gu Mingzhou's ears, it was covered by the sound of the tide that kept hitting the shore. The long spear that had pierced through the green spirit nether hedgehog drew an arc in the night sky and quickly flew back into Gu Mingzhou's hand. Why struggle? Gu Mingzhou said as he put the spear back into his body and looked at the green spirit nether hedgehog, which was losing its health rapidly. Do you think you can kill this king like this? The voice was filled with arrogance and disdain as it came from the mouth of the green spirit nether hedgehog. The reason why you're so confident is probably that you're sure that even if I destroy the beast's body, I still can't completely kill you, right? Gu Mingzhou looked at the green spirit nether hedgehog with a hint of pity. At least you're tactful. To tell you the truth, even if you kill the beast soul, the heavenly Tao will send my remaining soul back to the demon world. The green spirit nether hedgehog knew that Gu Mingzhou would never let it go, so it did not hide anything and said disdainfully. Even the method of resurrection was difficult for the demon. However, many demon supremacies were still tempted by the loyalty of the young demon king. Puny ants, our race will live forever. At the end of his speech, the green spirit nether hedgehog no longer looked at Gu Mingzhou. Instead, it looked up at the starry sky as if it was making an oath. I'd like to try and see if the demon race is immortal. Gu Mingzhou didn't care about the confusion in the green spirit nether hedgehog's eyes. He made a hand seal with his left hand and placed it in front of his chest while his right finger was placed on the narrow forehead of the green spirit nether hedgehog. Ripples burst out from Gu Mingzhou's fingertips and entered the green spirit nether hedgehog's body. A powerful suction force instantly descended. Everything in the world seemed to have disappeared, and the universe fell into darkness. There was nothing else. The powerful suction force seemed to suck out all the blood in his body, causing him to expand from the inside out. The green spirit nether hedgehog immediately contracted and expanded, its body becoming uneven. Even his soul felt like it was being gnawed at, which made the confident green spirit nether hedgehog feel fear. An even more piercing sound came from the green spirit nether hedgehog's mouth. Gu Mingzhou did not move. After using the nine turns heavenly devouring technique, he entered a state of meditation and automatically ignored everything around him. Compared to the previous two times when he was at a loss, confused, and hesitant. This time, it was clean and neat, and he was even more skilled. It felt like everything was going well. The heavenly devouring technique was circulating in Gu Mingzhou's Dantian. The devouring process of the heavenly devouring technique became even more precise. The vortex formed by the extremely pure spiritual energy produced a strong suction force and overflowed through Gu Mingzhou's meridians. It was constantly absorbing the spiritual energy of the other party. There were no complicated runes or complicated processes. It just looked that simple. Gu Mingzhou turned his attention to the green spirit nether hedgehog. The green spirit nether hedgehog's eyes were red with shock and disbelief. The suction force, in particular, was not only sucking away the spiritual energy in his body but also devouring beast souls. The green spirit nether hedgehog sensed the strange power and wanted to fight back. The strong suction force seemed to have some mysterious power. In just a few short breaths, it had devoured nearly 50% of the green spirit nether hedgehog's soul. Its consciousness was already starting to blur, and it had no ability to fight back. His entire body was limp on the ground, waiting to be slaughtered. Chapter, 362 He Chuan had no idea what had happened in ancient space. He expressionlessly looked at the shocked seventh elder. The sword move was easily broken by He Chuan. How could the seventh elder not be shocked? You are actually above the fifth level of the earth realm. The seventh elder extended his finger and said in a trembling voice. Whether it's true or not is not important. The smile on He Chuan's face disappeared, and he waved the sword in his hand again. In the face of the earth-shaking sword move with earth realm item, the seventh elder did not dare to be careless. He fully burst out his physical strength. At the same time, 
he pushed the left and right protectors to the front and turned into a stream of light, fleeing into the distance. His escape speed was so fast it left people speechless. The left and right protectors didn't even have time to react before they realized that they had been sold. Moreover, this move wasn't just a casual push. It carried terrifying spiritual energy, making them temporarily unable to move. He was afraid the two of them would escape in separate ways. If Yi Chuan came after him, he wouldn't even have the chance to escape. He was very terrified of Yi Chuan. The left and right protectors had not expected that the seventh elder would abandon them all at such a critical moment. More importantly, he had even placed a seal on their bodies, rendering them unable to move. Humph, you're actually still thinking of escaping? He Chuan sneered disdainfully. The sword in his hand seemed to shoot out an extremely dazzling light that shot directly at the seventh elder. At the same time, he slapped the left and right protectors of the heavenly sword sect with one hand. Ha, huh, you're still too young. Wait for me to report this to the sect leader seeing He Chuan wasn't chasing after him, the seventh elder thought that he must have escaped. Bang! Before the seventh elder could be happy for long, the golden sword beam instantly pierced through his chest. The sword ray instantly disturbed his divine soul, not giving him the chance to escape. With just one move, the seventh elder's soul was destroyed. Immediately after, the left and right on the left and right were captured by He Chuan and could not move. Spare me. The two protectors knelt on the ground and begged for mercy, hoping He Chuan would spare their lives. Even the seventh elder, who was so powerful, could not withstand a single blow from He Chuan. No matter how powerful they were, they didn't dare to resist. He Chuan felt a little disdainful and even a little surprised when he saw them like this. He didn't expect that an earth realm cultivator would be so weak and afraid of death. He Chuan gradually lowered his raised hand when he heard them begging for mercy. It wasn't that he was soft-hearted, but after reading Meng Ao's memories, he knew the world was vast and the human race had to face the demon race and beast race. Furthermore, the other races were born with more advantages than the human race. The current human race was weak, and it was a good thing to have some forces left. You two take two pills. He Chuan took out two goo poison pills. This was a pill rewarded by the system. Once a person took the pill, it would turn into a goo worm and enter the heart to lie dormant. For a period of time, He Chuan, who controlled the mother goo, could control their life and death at will. And no matter how far they were, they couldn't escape. Therefore, after taking the goo poison pill, their life and death were not up to them. Even the strong men of the earth realm could not escape from his control. The two protectors of the heavenly sword sect looked at each other and eventually swallowed it. If they ate it, they could still save their life. If they didn't, they would die now. They naturally knew which choice was the most correct in the choice between life and death. Otherwise, they would have gone all out just now. The new sect of the Heavenly Sword sect. In a secret room. There were hundreds of bronze tokens on it, but there were no runes on the tokens. Instead, names were carved on them. This was where the life tokens of the Heavenly Sword sect were placed. As the saying went, life tokens were made of life essence blood and a trace of the original god. When the souls of the people from the Heavenly Sword sect were killed, the life token would shatter. Kacha. A clear cracking sound was heard in the silent secret room. The disciple in charge of guarding the place changed his expression and turned to look at the seventh elder's life token. He couldn't figure out how the powerful seventh elder had died. However, the shattering of the life token forced him to believe that what he saw was the truth. Because for thousands of years, the sex life tokens had never been wrong. Not only was the material special, but also everyone's life essence blood, so there would be no accidents. However, the disciple was eager for an accident to happen. He wanted to know what kind of person could kill the seventh elder of the heavenly sword sect. Right, sect leader, I have to report this to the sect leader. The disciple in charge of guarding finally came back to his senses and remembered he had to report this matter. Very quickly, news of the seventh elder's death spread throughout the entire heavenly sword sect. Morong Fu frowned and gathered all the higher-ups of the Heavenly Sword sect. Something that was almost certain had actually encountered an accident. 
This made everyone, including Murong Fu, feel very incredulous. Are the life tokens of the left and right protectors shattered? Murong Fu sat on his seat, his cold eyes swept across the disciples in charge of guarding the life plates. Sect leader, the life tokens of the two great protectors did not shatter. Only the seventh elder's life token is damaged. The disciple in charge of guarding the life token lowered his head and said with cold sweat all over his forehead. The pressure Murong Fu gave him was too great. His back was already wet with cold sweat. It might be the seventh elder who sacrificed his life for the sake of justice to buy the two protectors a chance to escape. The third elder stroked his beard and said with a calm face and a calm heart. Of course, he knew that such a situation would never happen. When facing an expert, the three of them would definitely fly away separately. Sacrificing one's life to save others, what was the difference between that and a fantasy? Which of the cultivators here could do that? These words were just to give the heavenly sword sect some face and at least get some good luck. Humph. It's all because of your carelessness. Although the spiritual energy in the great world has just recovered, how can we be sure that there's no one chosen by heaven or that this powerhouse of the Zhou dynasty has obtained the inheritance of some ancient emperor? The great elder snorted coldly. These words were obviously insinuating that sect leader Murong Fu was not fully prepared and had caused the seventh elder to lose his life in vain. In two days, I will personally go and check it out and take revenge for the seventh elder. It was no secret in the Heavenly Sword sect that Murong Fu and the Great Elder were at odds with each other. Murong Fu was very angry that the Head Elder had caught his weakness this time. He had never thought that the Seventh Elder, who was at the third rank Earth Realm, would die. In this backward cultivation world, it was hard to imagine. When they were back in the Central Plains, it was very easy for them to recruit disciples. Many people had come because of their fame. Even some of the disciples and higher-ups of the seven major sects of the martial arts world in the Central Plains were willing to join the various sects that had returned from the New World. It was evident how scarce the spiritual energy resources of the Great World were. Under such circumstances, Murong Fu could not believe that someone in the Zhou dynasty could become a powerhouse above the third-rank Earth realm. This mysterious expert was probably not from the outside world. What secrets did he have that needed him to dig out personally? Furthermore, this secret could possibly allow his strength to achieve a qualitative leap once again. Of course, the great elder knew what Murong Fu was planning. The death of the seventh elder of the Heavenly Sword sect was something they had kept under wraps for the time being. If the other sects were to hear about this, they would definitely become a laughingstock. Chapter, 363 The Heavenly Sword sect was in an extremely awkward situation. The seventh elder had been killed in the outside world, and Murong Fu's favorite disciple, Shen Changi, had also died. The left and right protectors didn't send back any news, so they didn't know the specific situation. The Great Heavenly Sword sect was an upper-class existence in the New World. Yet, they had been repeatedly defeated in a macro world with backward cultivation. Who could tolerate such a thing? Sect leader, please think twice. You are the sect leader of our sect and you need to stay in the Heavenly Sword sect. Furthermore, we are all fighting for the light from Providence in the macro world. If other sects or demon cultivators attack us, our sect will be in danger. The third elder felt that it was better to be safe than sorry. They didn't know exactly how powerful the Zhou dynasty's powerhouses were. Things that they weren't sure about were too dangerous. If Murong Fu lost his footing and was killed or seriously injured, it would be a blow to the Heavenly Sword sect. If other sects took the opportunity to attack, could the Heavenly Sword sect resist? There was also the covetous Great Elder. No one knew what this Elder was thinking. If internal strife were to break out in the Heavenly Sword sect, it would be equally dangerous. Other than the first Elder, who was expressionless, the others all joined in to persuade him. The others could go, but not the sect leader, Morong Fu. This was because the Heavenly Sword sect had no need for him. Yes, I will consider it. Murong Fu's eyes stopped on the Great Elder for a short while before he nodded to the crowd. Humans were not the only ones in this world. Both the demonic beasts of the big world and the demonic cultivators of the new world had gathered in the big world. 
the demon race's attitude was to prey on the strong. All the demon beasts that had just started in the great world became food for demon cultivators. The Zhou Dynasty He Chuan watched as the two protectors of the mysterious heavenly sword sect took the Gu transformation pills. He made a hand seal with one hand and activated the mother Gu. Ah! Spare me! The two of them were in excruciating pain as they rolled around on the ground. The feeling was worse than death as if their hearts were being gnawed at. Remember this feeling. If you dare to have second thoughts, then the pain will be a hundred times, a thousand times more. What he Chuan wanted was for them to feel the pain first. Otherwise, the two of them wouldn't take the goo poison pill seriously and would do something behind their backs. Feeling the pain of having their hearts devoured, the two people in front of them probably didn't dare to seek death anymore. If the mother goo of the goo poison pill is not absorbed by your blood essence every three months, it will activate and let the goo worm gnaw at your heart. It will not even leave your soul behind. He Chuan said expressionlessly. Using this kind of thing to control their life and death was a bit underhanded, but it was undeniable that it was very effective against these two powerhouses who had no backbone. Since they knelt down and begged for mercy, it proved that these two people had no backbone. Unless these two could break through to the fifth rank earth realm within three months, they would not be able to cure the goo poison. As time went on, the goo worm would devour part of their cultivation and become stronger. The longer it took, the harder it would be to remove the goo poison. After a year or so, unless he Chuan took the initiative to remove it, the goo poison would follow them for the rest of their lives and they would never be able to control it. As for whether He Chuan would help them remove the special effects of the pills, the answer was obviously no. The reason he didn't kill the two was that the human race was weak. Two more powerhouses meant two more forces. Cultivators who were easily swayed by the wind could turn against him at any time if they were not restrained. Of course, with He Chuan's current strength, they probably wouldn't be able to catch up even if they were given another hundred years. Understood. Thank you for sparing my life my lord. Those who had reached the earth realm would refer to themselves as this lord or this lord. They did not know how to address He Chuan, so they could only address him as my lord. Actually, I'm quite interested in your world. Why don't you tell me about it? He Chuan crossed his arms he wanted to understand what the cultivators of the new world were like in the past. The left protector cleared his throat and began to explain in detail. A few hundred years ago, because the spiritual energy of the macro world was suppressed by the nine prefectures' cauldrons, the cultivator's realm did not advance but regressed. Even the few top masters could only barely maintain their current realm. For this reason, all the sect leaders of the cultivation sects unanimously decided to take out their respective sect's spatial magic treasure and work together to open up a small new world. After this group of cultivation sects left, the Great World temporarily ended the cultivation era and turned into a martial arts era. Although there was a small amount of spiritual energy in the New World, the space and resources were limited after all. All the major sects were in constant conflict over the treasures. No matter which world you were in, the law of the jungle would never change. Just as the various sects were fighting over the New World, the beast cultivators used some unknown method to secretly enter the New World and began to fight for resources with the human cultivators. The human cultivators were massacred, and the various sects retreated in defeat. Helplessly, the sect leaders of the various sects in the New World gathered again and set up various cultivation rules. They formed a cultivation alliance to fight against the demon cultivators. Both sides had wins and losses for hundreds of years, with countless deaths and injuries. However, there were pros and cons. The human cultivators and demon cultivators who died gave up their resources. Under such circumstances, the resources were barely enough. At this time, the two sides had a tacit understanding. Whenever the number of humans and demons increased, both sides would start a fierce battle. The elites of the survival of the fittest would stay. Those who were not talented, those who cultivated slowly, or those who were unlucky, were all gradually exhausted, leaving only the elites. However, those who are not of our race have different intentions. Although both sides had a tacit understanding, they were still secretly thinking about how to completely destroy each other. But in the last 100 years, there was a turning point. 
There was a great master among the beast race, and it was said that he had already surpassed the fifth rank earth realm. On the human side, there were only a few powerhouses at the peak of four rank earth realm, so they were at a disadvantage. If that were the case, the human cultivators would be exterminated sooner or later. At this moment, the world god Su Fengyu broke through the seal. The nine prefecture's cauldron was in tatters, and some of its fragments were missing. The spiritual energy of the great world began to recover. As for the experts of the beast race, they were obviously very afraid of the appearance of the world god. They immediately gave up on their plan to destroy the human race and buried themselves in their cultivation, hoping to increase their strength quickly so they could deal with the world god. He Chuan knew a little about world gods. They were creatures born from the heavenly Tao and had ridiculous strength. Most importantly, they could absorb blood essence and spiritual energy to increase their strength. Although it couldn't compare to He Chuan's cheat, it was powerful enough in this difficult era of cultivation. So, the human race is not in a good situation right now, and they could be destroyed by the demon race at any time. He Chuan said softly. That's right. Not only the beast race but also the demon race. Even in the heaven realm, there are enemies of human cultivators. The right protector quickly stepped forward to show off and explain to He Chuan, so the left protector wouldn't steal the limelight. Chapter 364 In fact, if it weren't for the advantage of cultivation techniques, human cultivators would have been wiped out by the demon race or other races hundreds of years ago. Moreover, although there were no masters in the human race who had reached the earth realm or above, there were more top cultivators in overall strength. Moreover, the human race had an absolute advantage in numbers. This was the only way to survive in the cracks. In general, the human race had the advantage in cultivation techniques and numbers, which was why they had not been exterminated yet. However, strength was the absolute truth. If the human race did not catch up, they would suffer a loss sooner or later. You guys go back first. If there's any news, let me know in advance, otherwise He Chuan's aura suddenly grew stronger, so much so that the left and right guardians of the Heavenly Sword sect did not even dare to breathe. The two of them were shocked. They had thought that He Chuan had used his full strength when he killed the Seventh Elder. However, it was clear that they had been wrong. That was not He Chuan's true strength. He could even be compared to the Heavenly Sword sect's Murong Fu. He Chuan glanced at the two of them and was very satisfied with their shocked expressions. After the left protector's explanation, he felt that his understanding of the world was still too lacking. He needed to send the two of them back to help him pass on the CC. Otherwise, if he knew too little about the various sects, beast cultivators, and demon cultivators, he wouldn't even know what major events were happening. He had three women and four children here, which was different from the carefree situation he had in the past. If there was any danger, he would be able to know at the first moment and react to it, so as to avoid anything that he would regret for the rest of his life. When the left and right guardians return, the Heavenly Sword sect will definitely ask about what happened. They had already thought of a reason. They didn't know what cultivation realm He Chuan was in. They only knew that the Seventh Elder was no match for He Chuan and had been beaten by He Chuan to the point where he couldn't even fight back. In the end, the three of them discussed how to escape. The seventh elder sacrificed himself and stayed behind to deal with He Chuan while the two guardians left. This thought was in line with the Heavenly Sword sects. Even if they knew it was a lie, everyone would still choose to believe it. The people from the Heavenly Sword sect believed that the left and right guardians had realized that the seventh elder was no match for He Chuan. After a discussion, the two of them had taken advantage of the chaos to escape leaving the seventh elder to fight alone. In the end, the seventh elder lost to He Chuan and died, while the left and right guardians escaped. This was the most reasonable way of thinking, and it was also the most suitable way of thinking for everyone. This was because to the people of the mysterious Heavenly Sword sect, no matter how strong He Chuan was, he was only on par with the seventh elder. Even if he was stronger, he would not be much stronger. They might not want to believe it, but He Chuan was a peak 4th rank earth realm cultivator, or even above the 5th rank. They had never considered this possibility. Of course, He Chuan was happy to see this. This group of people felt that the weaker they were, the better. 
If more people came, He Chuan could easily kill them. The Heavenly Sword sect would not be fully prepared. Moreover, he estimated that the Heavenly Sword sect would not come looking for trouble in the near future. After all, the Heavenly Sword sect could not put all its energy on He Chuan. Not only was the Demon Clan watching them, but the Cultivation Alliance wasn't united either. If anything happened to Murong Fu, then the other sects would probably take advantage of it. Not only could they eliminate their competitors, but the cultivation resources they seized could also enhance their own strength. Why not? The same was true for the Heavenly Sword sect. If a large cultivation sect suddenly declined, they would definitely take advantage of the situation. He had simply arranged a crime for the other party and claimed that he was taking revenge for the Heavenly Path. In fact, he was just snatching resources. In the thousands of years since the establishment of the Heavenly Sword sect, such things have been done many times. However, every time they did, they would always find a grand reason to do so. He Chuan was actually very disdainful of this, but he also knew that this was the law of survival in the cultivation world. The weak side had no right to survive, especially when they suddenly obtained a treasure. Immediately, there would be strong people coming to snatch it, killing and robbing. The left and right guardians had given up their dignity and escaped from He Chuan's hands. They returned to the Heavenly Sword sect poisoned by the Gu Worm. He Chuan also returned to the library pavilion, preparing to spend some time with Empress Changning and Kai Lian before leaving. After all, he didn't know Murong Fu's character. He didn't know if Murong Fu would be very impulsive and come to the capital to take revenge without care. This battle also shocked the martial arts and cultivation powerhouses of the Central Plains. This was because the great battle in their eyes had actually ended with a strong start but a weak finish. They didn't even see the exact situation before the battle ended. He didn't even know the exact location. All traces had been wiped out by He Chuan. I'm going to continue cultivating in seclusion in the library pavilion. I'll try to break through two realms before I leave He Chuan said softly as he laid his head on Empress Changning's thigh. After understanding the situation in the new world, He Chuan became anxious again. Even if he had broken through to the sixth level of the earth realm, it was not as stable as he thought. The situation was getting more and more complicated. The world god, young master Gu Mingzhou, Murong Fu from the Heavenly Sword sect, and even the demon cultivators and beast cultivators. He had to make himself stronger. Unfortunately, I can't help much. Empress Changming said apologetically. You've already made a great contribution by giving birth to Ming'er and Shuer. How can you say that you can't help? I can't do this myself. He Chuan held Empress Changming's hand and joked with her for once. He he, husband, you've learned how to sweet talk. We've known each other for almost a hundred years, but I rarely see you like this. Empress Changning couldn't help but stroke He Chuan's handsome face. How she wished she could grow old with her sweetheart. There was no need to care about the Zhou dynasty, nor was there a need to put in the effort to cultivate. She would live a simple life. She quickly threw this thought out of her mind. Whether it was her or He Chuan, they were destined to not live a simple life. She was prepared to hand over the great Zhou dynasty to Zhou Ming when he came of age. Then, she would be able to follow in He Chuan's footsteps and cultivate. To touch the supreme great Tao. She had never been interested in the affairs of the secular world. If not for Cheng En's lack of support, she would not have been able to sit on the throne and become the first empress of the great Zhou. Unlike Lia, she did not want to be the ruler of the country. If possible, it would be best to be like Kai Lian. I'm just afraid that you'll be worried. As long as I'm here, I won't let you get hurt. He Chuan said with a smile. He was making a promise. Sometimes, women needed to feel at ease. They had been with He Chuan for so long, but they had never asked for anything. He Chuan also knew his own situation. He was not good at expressing himself and did not understand romance. If he did not give them a promise, he would be letting them down. When Empress Changning heard He Chuan's promise, her eyes started to water up. She didn't need any heavenly treasures or any romance. Simple words of love were the best confession. Chapter, 365 In the Ancient Alternate Dimension 
Gu Mingzhou didn't know what had happened to the green spirit nether hedgehog. Even though he shifted his attention away from the spiritual energy vortex in his Dantian, he didn't pay attention to the green spirit nether hedgehog, but to the pure spiritual energy that his body had devoured. The demon race was different from the human race. They did not cultivate their bodies and did not need to accommodate the power of heaven and earth. What Gu Mingzhou was worried about was the consequences of devouring the demonic power into his body. Could the human body contain demonic power? If he could, would he become a demon? If he couldn't, where would the devoured energy go? Would it overflow quietly, or would he explode and die? He had only thought of killing the green spirit nether hedgehog's soul with the heavenly devouring technique and had not thought of this. Now that the problem was stacked in his mind, he had to pay attention to the strange demonic power. The green spirit nether hedgehog was worthy of being a demon king. The demonic energy in his body had turned into pure demonic power, and it was enormous. Gu Mingzhou felt even more uneasy when he sensed the green spirit nether hedgehog's inner power. He even regretted that he was too decisive and didn't think it through. Fortunately, the problems he was worried about did not happen. For some reason, the spiritual energy transformed from demonic energy and devoured into Gu Mingzhou's body through the heavenly devouring technique did not repel the demonic power. On the contrary, it was undergoing some kind of change when it entered his body. Gu Mingzhou did not know what had happened, but he could clearly sense that the refined energy that was devoured could merge with each other. This result made him heave a sigh of relief. He couldn't help but smile with a hint of relief. As he continued to devour the demonic power, the rapidly spinning spiritual energy vortex began to slow down. It was as if the burden was too great, making it difficult for it to spin. Although he had some doubts about the changes in his Tao foundation, he was not surprised. The feeling of swelling came from his lower abdomen. It was bizarre and embarrassing, and it was hard to speak. At this moment, Zhao Qinkuan's shadow appeared. Gu Mingzhou, who had been paying attention to the changes in his Dantian, did not notice Zhao Qinkuan. Zhao Qinkuan did not speak after he appeared. Instead, he stared at Gu Mingzhou's lower abdomen. Zhao Qinkuan's eyes were deep. Sink your energy into your Dantian and condense your inner energy to protect your body. Zhao Qinkuan finally spoke and transmitted his voice to Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou was at a loss. When he heard this familiar voice, his worried heart instantly relaxed. He immediately did as Zhao Qinkun said. He sank his energy into his Dantian and relaxed his entire body. He let go of his physical body and cut off his perception. He condensed his inner energy to protect his physical body and allowed his soul to change his Tao foundation. The moment he did as Zhao Qinkun said, his Dantian immediately crumbled and his spiritual energy raged. Even though Gu Mingzhou had cut off his perception, the heart-wrenching pain caused by the collapse of his Dantian made Gu Mingzhou's face twist and his body tremble. The horrifying scene of his Dantian shattering made him subconsciously withdraw his finger from the forehead of the green spirit nether hedgehog and stop devouring. Endure. This was the state of breaking the core and melting the foundation, entering the earth realm. Zhao Qinkuan noticed the change in Gu Mingzhou's mood and quickly reminded him. As Zhao Qinkuan spoke, Gu Mingzhou could not bear the intense pain in his body. His face twisted and a heart-wrenching roar came out of his throat. The long howl that seemed as if it was facing the sky went straight into the clouds and resounded through the dark night. His face was twisted to the extreme, and blood began to flow out of his gritted teeth. His body trembled even more violently, and spiritual energy continued to burst out of his body. In the blink of an eye, his entire body started to bleed, making him look ferocious and terrifying. Gu Mingzhou continued to devour the huge amount of demonic power from the green spirit nether hedgehog. Cultivation is a long journey. Zhao Qinkuan looked at Gu Mingzhou with reluctance and regret, but more of it was emotionless coldness and unshakable determination. He continued to shout loudly. Only by enduring the collapse of your Dantian can you complete the shattering of your core and melting your foundation. You can then use your Tao foundation to replace your Dantian and advance to the earth realm. Zhao Qinkuan spoke very quickly. It could be seen that he was a little nervous and anxious. When Gu Mingzhou heard this, it was like a calming pill that instantly stabilized his somewhat panicked mood. 
he suppressed the thought of stopping the devouring and pressed his finger on the forehead of the green spirit nether hedgehog even more tightly. The pain in his body made him unable to control his strength carefully. When the spiritual energy from the collapse of his dantian swept through his entire body, it did not cause much damage to Gu Mingzhou. He only had to endure the pain caused by the collapse of his dantian. He could clearly feel the collapse of his dantian, and he was still suffering from intense pain. However, there was no blood or flesh in his body. In fact, his collapsed dantian did not even suffer any physical damage. He was even more pleased with this outcome and he trusted Zhao Qinkuan's words even more. He had broken through the peak of the Tao Foundation realm and entered an even higher realm. After he cultivated and reached the peak of the mortal realm, he was able to reach a higher realm by devouring the pure demonic power inside the green spirit nether hedgehog. As he endured it, his collapsed Dantian rapidly changed. The pain in his Dantian finally stopped and his Tao Foundation began to shrink slowly. In the end, it perfectly merged with Gu Mingzhou's physical body and replaced the original position of his Dantian. This was a short process, only a few breaths of time. But to Gu Mingzhou, it was as if he had experienced 100 years, and it was deeply engraved in his heart. The pain receded very quickly. A heart-wrenching pain receded like the tide, and Gu Mingzhou's body instantly relaxed. In the end, he was still able to endure the sudden pain the immense pain caused by the collapse of his Dantian. Gu Mingzhou had already become a strong cultivator of the earth realm. Gu Mingzhou, who had just relaxed, was about to withdraw his right hand from the forehead of the green spirit nether hedgehog. Gu Mingzhou didn't know why this sudden change occurred, but he could feel the terrifying aura. If the vortex collapsed, the damage it caused would be enough to crush Gu Mingzhou's body into pieces. He had no choice but to forcefully stop the devouring process. Even if doing so would cause great damage and even cause cracks to appear on his Tao Foundation. He had no choice but to do this. Otherwise, it was very likely that he would be crushed to pieces and die. The core energy vortex that was about to collapse suddenly formed a small whirlpool. It was like a gear that connected the two ends, turning the two parts into power. Not only did it not cause the vortex to collapse, but it also became more stable. Even the devouring power instantly increased. The stabilized spiritual energy vortex devoured the demonic power even faster. Even the black spiritual energy that was transformed from demonic power seemed to be pure. Could it be the third level of the heavenly devouring technique? Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself in disbelief as he looked at the spiritual energy vortex in his body that had stabilized. The third level of the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique appeared in his mind. According to the description of the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique, the third level was different from the first two levels. It was no longer like the second level. It increased the speed of the vortex's selection and the devouring power. Chapter 366 Pen No. 1 O. Oh. During the process of devouring, the vortex would rotate in reverse, forming a vortex inside the vortex. Then, it would rotate in the third rotation. It was exactly the same as the spiritual strength vortex that was changing in Gu Mingzhou's body. This meant that not only had he entered the earth realm, but he had also cultivated the third level of the heavenly devouring technique. The third level of the heavenly devouring technique was a qualitative leap. After cultivating to the third cycle, the spiritual energy whirlpool would last forever, and it would be condensed in the Tao Foundation without dissipating. There was no need to use the heavenly devouring technique to form a vortex again before devouring, so time and efficiency would be increased. Most importantly, Gu Mingzhou would no longer need to touch the other party's body to devour their cultivation. However, the prerequisite for devouring was that the other party had to be unable to resist. Otherwise, if he were to encounter strong resistance while using the heavenly devouring technique, it was very likely that it would cause a backlash and seriously injure him. I actually reached the third level of the heavenly devouring technique. After confirming the changes in his body, Gu Mingzhou had mixed feelings. The cultivation method of the heavenly devouring technique required constant devouring and plundering. From the beginning, he had been resistant to this kind of harmful thing. At this rate, Gu Mingzhou probably didn't need to harm anyone at all. It would be enough to just get rid of his future opponents. 
This discovery made Gu Mingzhou, who regretted cultivating the heavenly devouring technique, smile. From this moment on, he would no longer have any scruples and become even more terrifying. Devouring without any qualms was no joke. As long as he could severely injure the other party in advance, he could directly devour them from a distance. If it was in the past, he might have some scruples or even disgust. However, after a series of changes, the knot in his heart had been untied, and the heavenly devouring technique was more suitable for him. Even if both sides were injured, he could still directly devour them from a distance. The advantages outweighed the disadvantages. When facing an enemy, he could attack fearlessly and with all his might. The third level of the heavenly devouring technique was truly terrifying. Ha ha ha. Zhao Qinkuan nodded at Gu Mingzhou with some relief. The demonic power inside the green spirit nether hedgehog was at least twice as strong as the refined energy inside Wu Ji Patriarch and He Yuyang combined. It was unbelievable. Zhao Qinkuan was equally shocked. The green spirit nether hedgehog's strength is definitely not weaker than what it appears to be. Zhao Qinkuan's expression turned ugly as if he had thought of something. It can't be. Gu Mingzhou was shocked. He looked at the green spirit nether hedgehog, which had fallen into a coma with its head lowered, and felt the demonic power flowing in its body. If that's the case, you've got a great deal. Maybe you can directly break through to the second level of the earth realm. Zhao Qinkuan raised his right hand, and a golden light shot out from his index finger, which instantly sank into Gu Mingzhou's forehead. Countless complicated runes suddenly appeared in Gu Mingzhou's mind. The Earth Realm is the first step in cultivation. Zhao Qinkuan's voice rang out as he began to explain the path of cultivation. Cultivation was supposed to be a heaven-defying act. The Heavenly Tao could indulge living beings in their cultivation because it could not stop them, and it would not care. In fact, all the energy absorbed by cultivators in the later stages of cultivation belonged to the vast universe. When cultivators died, the essence of life absorbed from the outside world would be absorbed by the Heavenly Tao as a supplement. Even if the Heavenly Tao had the ability to stop it, it would not. After all, a powerful existence like it was not inexhaustible and still needed to be replenished. The universe was a mysterious existence, so it was naturally not strange for such a possibility to exist. Although the so-called secrecy reaching method had clear methods and steps, it was not simple. Outside the world, however, was not stable. There were spatial storms everywhere that could even wipe out souls. It was extremely terrifying. According to Zhao Qinkuan, the integration of the Tao Foundation and the body was the Earth Realm. Although he could not understand the meaning of these complicated talismans, it was not a problem for him to follow the instructions and guide the pure spiritual energy in his body to copy the talismans. However, the inscribing process was extremely difficult. Gu Mingzhou spent the time it takes for two incense sticks to burn. He only stopped reluctantly when he was drenched in sweat and his spiritual sense was in a trance. He shook his head at Zhao Qinkuan, who was full of anticipation. The Tao Foundation in his body was formed by the purest spiritual energy in the world. His body was harder than a boulder and invulnerable. Pure spiritual energy flowed on the surface, making the surface of the entire foundation extremely smooth, increasing the difficulty of inscribing. After a hundred attempts, he was unable to leave any traces. After this period of concentration, he had consumed a lot of spiritual energy and it had almost dried up. Even the demonic power left in the green spirit nether hedgehog's body had been completely consumed. It's easy to say that it's an inscribing array, but it's challenging to do it. Many people are stuck at this level for their entire lives. Zhao Qinkuan seemed to see Gu Mingzhou's disappointment, and the anticipation on his face changed, as he expected. Gu Mingzhou's gaze fell on the corpse of the green spirit nether hedgehog. He looked at his opponent, who was covered in wounds and scabbed with green liquid. He was already dead. Since he's already dead, let's find a place to bury him. For some reason, Gu Mingzhou heaved a sigh of relief. The green spirit nether hedgehog's soul had been torn apart and devoured by Gu Mingzhou's heavenly devouring technique. This meant he would completely disappear from the world. His soul would be scattered and he would never be able to come back to life. 
Since that was the case, there was no point in keeping his corpse, so it was better to bury it. He sat down cross-legged to cultivate and recover his spiritual energy. When the five-clawed golden dragon's dragon soul exploded, although it did not mainly attack Gu Mingzhou, it still caused him quite a bit of damage. In addition to that, he had concentrated on copying and carving for the time it took for two incense sticks to burn, which made him extremely exhausted. Before he could absorb any spiritual energy to replenish himself, he had already fallen asleep. With Xiao Qinkuan on guard, Gu Mingzhou could rest in peace. He slept all the way until the evening of the next day before he woke up. In the alternate dimension without the sun and moon, it was already dark in the evening. The receded tide came back again, and the waves slapped the beach. Zhao Qinkuan stood alone on the beach, his back facing Gu Mingzhou as he looked out at the sea. No one knew what he was thinking, and he did not even notice that Gu Mingzhou had woken up. Feeling that the spiritual energy in his body had recovered a little, Gu Mingzhou stood up from the tree stump. As he moved his body, he looked around. The island looked even more withered during the day. Its previous lush was long gone. As far as the eye could see, the entire island was like a desert, with dust flying in the air as the wind blew. The hundreds of fishermen who had turned into demons had probably turned into dust along with the trees and flowers on this island. Perhaps they were blown into the sea, or perhaps for some other reason, they all disappeared. On the entire island, there were only Gu Mingzhou, Zhao Qinkuan, and three corpses. The bodies of Wu Ji Patriarch, He Yuliang, and the green spirit Nether Hedgehog were neatly arranged on the beach. Gu Mingzhou unconsciously walked to the side of the corpse. The Wu Ji Patriarch, He Yuliang, and the hairless green spirit Nether Hedgehog were all formidable men with many treasures on them. Chapter 367 Gu Mingzhou, who originally wanted to search their bodies, suddenly felt uncomfortable when he walked over to their bodies. After thinking for a moment, he finally gave up. He turned around and walked toward Zhao Qinkuan. You're awake. Gu Mingzhou did not deliberately lower the sound of his footsteps, so Zhao Qinkuan could still sense it no matter how lost in thought he was. What are you looking at? Gu Mingzhou asked. Watching the waves rise and fall, watching the sea water drift, watching the boundless sea and sky connect. Zhao Qinkuan replied. You're in a good mood. Gu Mingzhou did not think about what would happen after that. Should he return to the great world to fight against Su Fen Yu or find a way to ascend? You should ask yourself what you want to do next, but I do have something I want to do. Zhao Qinkuan said slowly. What is it? Gu Mingzhou asked with some doubts. Zhao Qinkuan smiled without saying a word. Instead, he stretched out his right hand and opened it. Five array flags made of black jade lay quietly in his palm. Shangguan phase formation flag. It wasn't destroyed when the dragon soul exploded. Gu Mingzhou saw the origin of these array flags and asked in confusion. When Shangguan Fei was attacked by the green spirit nether hedgehog, his body was turned into ashes. Even if the formation flag was not destroyed, it should have fallen into the hands of the five-clawed golden dragon. Later on, the five-clawed golden dragon's self-destruction was so powerful that it destroyed the entire island. Gu Mingzhou thought that the five array flags had also disappeared at that time. The Qing Emperor's things cannot be destroyed so easily. Zhao Qinkuan said. Now that the nine formation flags have been gathered, I'm very interested in the Qing Emperor's treasury. Why don't we go and take a look first? He Yuliang once said that the nine array flags could open a void passage directly. The end of the passageway was connected to the Qing Emperor's treasure vault. I want to know how the Qing Emperor's treasury is like. Gu Mingzhou said, a little embarrassed. Huh, let's go to the treasure pavilion to take a look now. Zhao Qinkuan nodded and smiled. He handed the array flag in his hand to Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou took out his four array flags at the same time and threw them into the sky, infusing them with his spiritual energy. Buzz! The nine array flags that were thrown up suddenly collided in the air and revolved around each other. Instantly, endless light burst out and they began to spin rapidly. The terrifying energy waves continued to spread from the array flag, 
like an invisible giant hand, constantly spinning in the void. A black crack instantly appeared in the void. It gradually expanded as if the sky was splitting open. Countless spatial storms swept over and wreaked havoc. Let's go. Zhao Qianquan waited for the crack in the void to stop expanding and stabilize at two meters wide before he turned to look at Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou seemed to have thought of something. He suddenly turned around and looked at the three corpses. Instead of answering Zhao Qianquan immediately, he turned around and pointed. The black light shot out and landed on the three corpses of Wu Ji Patriarch, He Yuliang, and the green spirit Nether Hedgehog. The ground began to sink, and it only stopped after completely burying the three bodies. Then, he turned the sword fingers on his right hand into a palm and struck at the deep pit. Countless grains of sand flew up and fell into the deep pit. In an instant, the wind stopped and the earth stopped. The corpses of He Yuliang and the other two had disappeared, but a new grave had appeared where they had been. All right, let's go. Gu Mingzhou nodded in satisfaction and turned to Zhao Qianquan. Zhao Qianquan laughed without saying anything and entered Gu Mingzhou's body. He was originally a spiritual body, and his main spiritual soul was still imprisoned. Naturally, he could not pass through the void channel nor be protected by the array flags. He could only return temporarily. Gu Mingzhou looked above his head. Due to the terrifying cracks formed by the rotation of the array flags, countless spiritual energy gushed out madly and directly entered the nine connected array flags. The ring formed by the rapidly spinning array flags slowed down. The light screen descended and enveloped Gu Mingzhou. He and the nine array flags in the air all entered the crack in the void. The wind howled, and the terrifying spatial rift began to close up. Just as the spatial tear was about to completely close, a streak of white light suddenly flew toward the horizon. The speed of the white light was very fast. The wind it produced almost split the sea surface, forming magical and special waves on the boundless sea. After flying for 10,000 miles, he crashed into a huge rock. Bang! Countless waves collided with each other, creating huge ripples that spread in all directions. The huge reef that appeared in the sea did not shatter from the violent collision. It's intentional. It seems like the prison is going to be broken this time. The plump Taoist priest stood on the reef and looked at the crack in the already closed void. The plump Taoist priest had retracted his right hand and was currently holding the white light that had shot out. The light faded away, revealing a palm-sized mini palace. Above the palace gate, a horizontal board was hung, and the words hidden treasure could be vaguely seen. The ocean of the extremely cold place was vast and boundless. But now, it had lost its former peace and became turbulent and turbulent. In the sea breeze, there was a strong smell of blood, which was nauseating. If one looked carefully, one would be able to see a figure in the waves. It was a demon cultivator hiding at the bottom of the sea. It occupied a hundred miles of the sea. The beast cultivators who had lived at the bottom of the ocean for a long time and never came out had suddenly appeared in front of the world for some unknown reason. Looking in the direction the demon cultivators were moving, they could vaguely see the islands in the sea through the clouds and mist. That was the final destination of the demonic cultivator army, the floating jade island. The floating jade island was known as the three major islands for itinerant cultivators. The floating jade island was the largest island, even larger than the sacred soul island and the Yen Emperor Island combined. It was also known as the land in the sea. However, floating jade island differed from the Yen Emperor Island and sacred soul island. There were not only human vagrant cultivators living on the floating jade island, but also demon vagrant cultivators. Among them, Bird-type beast cultivators were the majority, while animal-type beast cultivators were secondary, and human rogue cultivators were the least. This was because the island master of the floating jade island was a true blue flying-type demon clan itinerant cultivator, the godly beast Kuen Pang. This was the main reason why there were so many bird-type demonic cultivators. The rules had existed on floating jade island for a thousand years. The reason why the races could live in harmony with each other was that nothing had happened on Floating Jade Island since it was ruled by Kuen Peng. The Floating Jade Island was not famous among the three main islands, but it was undoubtedly the most stable and peaceful island. 
the living beings on the island did not fight for fame and fortune. They lived a life of being aloof from worldly affairs. They were the ones who truly cultivated and did not care about worldly affairs. However, the current floating Jade Island was no longer peaceful. The killing aura continued to blow along with the sea breeze. The creatures on floating Jade Island, who had always been aloof from worldly affairs, were terrified and restless. Even though they didn't see the huge group of demons, they could sense the killing intent and the smell of blood. He could guess the source of the killing intent by thinking of the Yen Emperor Island and the Sacred Soul Island that was destroyed one after another. However, there was no one present on the throne reserved for the floating Jade Island Master. Has your Leopard Tribe received any news about demonic cultivators? The Leopard Tribe was the fastest, and they were also the most well-informed outside the island. Where are they now? What are they trying to do? The discussions and inquiries in the hall were all focused on the Leopard Clan's Beast King, Lin Mu. To be honest, two hours ago, those brutal demonic cultivators had already entered the sea within a thousand miles of the floating Jade Island. They are now rushing towards the floating Jade Island. Lin Mu sighed and said helplessly. Chapter, 368 The hall became even noisier as discussions and disputes broke out. It was quite lively. Silence. An angry shout came from the depths of the hall. Like a special bell, it instantly quaked the noisy discussion in the hall, causing the hall to quieten down. Everyone looked in the direction of the voice. From the depths of the hall, six people hurried over. The young man at the front was wearing a long golden robe with dragons and phoenixes painted on it. He had a slender figure and a serious expression on his fair face. A sword hung from his waist. Who allows you to talk so freely and speak without thinking? The person didn't sit on the throne in the main hall. Instead, she walked around the stage to the front of the crowd and berated them. The scolding voice was loud and clear, but it was a little strange as if this loud voice was deliberately pressed out, echoing in the wide hall. Everyone in the hall fell into silence and didn't dare to continue speaking. Right protector, we know that we shouldn't have disturbed the floating jade hall. However, the situation is very dangerous now that the demon cultivators at the bottom of the sea are pressing down on us. The king has not appeared for a long time, which makes us very anxious. A human race rogue cultivator said. You're just a bunch of clowns. Look at how scared you are. You've really lost the face of the floating jade island. The right protector said in disdain. Protector, you're wrong. The demonic cultivators at the bottom of the ocean are not the same as before. I don't know why they've become so powerful. They've already conquered the two big islands Yenhuang and Sacred Soul Islands, and now they've changed their target to our floating Jade Island. I'm afraid. The Leopard Clan's Beast King, Lin Mu, walked out from the crowd and stood side by side with the Human Clan's Dao Foundation cultivators. Afraid of what? Yenhuang Island and Sacred Soul Island are just puny humans. They were not powerful, to begin with. It's just that our king was merciful and didn't bother with them. Otherwise, what qualifications do they have to stand alongside our floating Jade Island? The right protector interrupted Lin Mu's words. She disdained the Sacred Soul Island, Yenhuang Island, and the human race in one breath and shouted. The right protector's words infuriated all the itinerant human cultivators in the hall. Right protector, I know that you humans have some grudges, but you can't underestimate the sacred soul island and the Yenhuang island because of this. The two island masters are both at the peak of the Dao Foundation realm. The human cultivator who had spoken earlier cupped his hands and said with his head held high. The human cultivators raised their heads and puffed out their chests as they looked straight at the right protector. Their words were neither haughty nor humble, and they were sonorous and powerful. They immediately won the cheers of the human cultivators behind them, and applause followed. Wang Meng, did you eat a bear's heart and a leopard's gall? How dare you speak to me like this? Are you courting death? It's not a problem for me to kill you. The right protector's face turned ugly. She reached her right hand to her waist and pulled out her sword. She pointed it at the human representative and shouted coldly. Right protector is really powerful. Now that we are facing a great enemy, 
you don't want to protect floating Jade Island. Instead, you are showing off your strength here, delaying us and even intending to commit murder. I really admire you. I wonder if you really dare to disobey the king's order and stain floating Jade Hall with blood. Wang Meng, however, was not afraid at all. He still held his head high and puffed out his chest as he shouted. Do you really think that this protector doesn't dare to kill you? Die. The anger inside the right protector's brows grew. The sword light swayed and the cold light was dazzling. The sword in the right protector's hand was like an arrow leaving the bow. It carried a strong cold intent and instantly stabbed Wang Meng's chest as if it was going to penetrate his body. Floating Jade Hall suddenly fell silent. Everyone held their breath and looked over in shock. They were surprised the right protector had drawn his sword without saying a word. They were worried Wang Meng would be too confident and be seriously injured. However, they were also puzzled as to whether the right protector's sharp sword would hit Wang Meng. Under everyone's watchful eyes, the sharp tip of the right protector's sword stopped three inches away from Wang Meng's chest. The coldness of the sword had almost cut through Wang Meng's clothes. Wang Meng let go of the sword hilt behind him and looked to the side with a frown. If the right protector's sword dared to advance half an inch further, Wang Meng would attack without hesitation. Even though they were both in the mortal realm, Wang Meng might not be a match for the right protector. But if they really fought with their lives, it was hard to say who would die and who would be injured. What's wrong? You want to stop me? The right protector's anger turned into dissatisfaction. She turned her head and looked behind her. Now that we're facing a great enemy, it's not the time to show off. If the king finds out, the consequences will be very serious. A clear but equally loud voice came from the depths of the hall behind the right protector. The figure walked out of the darkness. It was a middle-aged man, his angular face a little pale. He was wearing a purple robe with dragons and phoenixes drawn on it, and he was carrying a treasure sword that gave off a cold light. His figure was thin, tall, and straight like a pine tree, and there was a smile on his pale face. He walked over with his own pressure. Right protector, you must not. Now that the enemy was in front of them, there was no need for internal strife. The Wang clan leader was doing this for the safety of floating Jade Island. I hope that Lord Protector will be magnanimous. At this moment, the leopard king Lin Mu, who was standing beside Wang Meng, finally recovered from his shock. He quickly stepped forward and cupped his hands. I hope that Lord Protector will be magnanimous and let Wang clan leader off. Lord Protector is magnanimous. Before Lin Mu's voice had died away, Everyone in the hall had also recovered from their shock and advised him in unison. What if I don't? The right protector turned a deaf ear to everyone's shouts and didn't put down the sword in her hand. She only stared at the person coming out of the darkness and said. Since I've shown myself, I naturally won't let you mess around. The purple-robed man stopped three feet away from the right protector and said indifferently. You've met the king. The right protector asked in surprise. When the king came back just now, he guessed you would do something out of line, so he asked me to come as soon as possible to take charge of the situation. The purple-robed man nodded. The king still remembers me. The right protector's eyes were a little confused, and the sword pointing at Wang Meng fell unconsciously. Even if the king's cultivation reached a bottleneck and he chose to seclude himself for decades, how could he forget you in his heart? The purple-robed man smiled again and walked toward the right protector. Even though you're not the king's biological daughter, you're still his only daughter. Go back to the side hall and rest. Leave this to me. The purple-robed middle-aged man's voice became softer and softer. As he approached the right protector, he slowly reached out his right hand and gently grabbed the falling sword, trying to take it from the right protector's hand. You're talking nonsense. You've never even seen the king. The right protector's right hand, which was held by the purple-robed man, instantly broke free. Then, with a flash of sword light, he suddenly slashed at the purple-robed man. The sword intent was sharp, like a falling meteor, and instantly attacked. The purple-robed middle-aged man was caught off guard and subconsciously retreated. However, he was still a step too slow. The sharp sword intent instantly cut through his front lapel and cut his chest. Pfft. 
The bright red blood was particularly eye-catching, and it appeared in the bright hall, causing everyone to be stunned. Everyone knew the right protector's temper. However, they did not expect the right protector would dare to attack in the floating jade hall, where killing was forbidden. The right protector actually dared to attack the left protector. Chapter 369 Everything happened in a blink of an eye, so much so that no one could react in time. Fresh blood spurted out in the hall. What shocked them even more was that the purple-robed middle-aged man rose from the ground and formed a seal in front of his chest. Buzz. The left protector's sword unsheathed on its own and instantly hung in front of the left protector. A cold light shone from it, and a dazzling light burst forth. It then stabbed out at the right protector. Countless sword energies instantly filled the entire roof of floating Jade Palace and rapidly descended. The right protector had suddenly awoken and wounded the left protector by surprise, but it had been an unintentional move. She had only wanted to break free of the left protector's hand and force him to retreat. For some reason, the left protector did not dodge. This result made the right protector, who had just brandished her sword, feel regret. She looked at the left protector, whose chest was covered in blood, and hesitated to speak. She had not expected the left protector to strike back without the slightest hesitation. Before she could react, a dazzling sword fell from the sky and instantly pierced her chest. Countless drops of blood, like clear water, flew out along with the sword that had pierced through the right protector and splattered all over the hall. You! The right protector's eyes went wide as she stared in disbelief at the left protector floating in the air. The words were at the tip of her tongue, but in the end, she didn't say them out. She fell to the ground with a bang, her breath dissipated. She was killed in one strike. Wan Meng's eyes were wide open as he looked at the fallen right protector in disbelief, speechless. It wasn't just Wang Meng. Even the leopard clan's beast king, Lin Mu, and the others were completely stunned the moment the right protector fell to the ground. It had happened in such a dramatic way. First, the right protector had attacked and injured the left protector. Then, the left protector had counterattacked and killed the right protector. It happened so quickly that no one had time to react. The left protector was injured, while the right protector was dead. Dark red blood slowly flowed across floating jade hall. It pierced through the right protector's sword and returned to the scabbard on the left protector's back. The left protector's expression changed the moment the sword returned to its sheath. Fresh blood spurted out of the left protector's mouth. His face turned even paler, and he fell from mid-air to the ground. Left protector. Just as everyone was in a daze, the bear clan's king, Xiong Tian, suddenly let out a cry of surprise. His burly body ran towards the left protector, and he knelt on one knee to help the left protector up. My lord, left protector, the leopard clan leader also recovered from his shock. He lowered his head and looked at the right protector who had fallen in front of him, exclaiming in disbelief. Lin Mu, who had a dazed look in his eyes, knelt on the ground and picked up the right protector's body with his hands. Tears streamed down his old face as he let out a sorrowful cry. What did I just see? The left protector killed the right protector. Didn't you see that it was the right protector who made the first move? The right protector has always been arrogant and has a fiery temper. How dare she be so presumptuous in the main hall and even injure the left protector? She deserves to die. But, no matter what, the right protector is still the king's daughter. The right protector is not the king's biological daughter. It is said the right protector tried to assassinate the king. The discussion in the hall started again. Everyone was shocked by this sudden change. Regardless of whether they supported the left protector or defended the right protector against injustice, they could only discuss and only dare to discuss. Shut up. Wang Meng came back to his senses, he was furious when he heard the discussion about floating Jade Island from 10,000 years ago. Although the human race was weak on floating Jade Island, their cultivation was not inferior at all. Wang Meng, the leader of the itinerant cultivators of floating Jade Island, had broken through to the mortal realm for almost sixty years. The strength he displayed was enough to make everyone fear him. The patriarchs of the various clans turned around one after another, signaling for their clansmen to keep quiet. 
The hall that had just been filled with discussions immediately quieted down. When the hall was quiet again, Wang Meng turned around and looked down at the dead right protector. His right hand reached behind him and clenched the hilt of his sword. He looked at the left protector with cold eyes. Left protector, why did you kill the right protector? At this moment, a cold question suddenly rang out in the hall. His cold voice reverberated throughout the hall. The leopard clan elder, who was holding the right protector's body, placed it on the ground and turned to stand up. His aged face, which was covered in tears, was filled with anger. He stared at the left protector who was being helped up. Left protector, why did you kill the right protector? The same question came from Lin Mu's mouth. Lin Mu, what do you mean? Didn't you see that it was the right protector who made the first move? Without waiting for the left protector's reply, Xiong Tian, who was supporting the left protector, took the lead and spoke in a loud voice. The right protector was wrong in the first place, but she didn't do it on purpose. Otherwise, do you think the left protector would still have the power to fight back? Lin Mu sneered. The right protector's temper had flared up, and she had drawn her sword in an attempt to break free from the left protector. However, in the instant that she attacked, she realized the left protector did not dodge. Thus, although the sword projection was sharp, it did not contain spiritual energy, so it did not possess much destructive power. Even if the left protector was stronger than the right protector, facing those sword attacks, even if she didn't die, she would still be heavily injured. How could she have the power to fight back? It was impossible for the left protector not to realize the sword that struck his chest had not actually caused any harm. But the left protector completely ignored this and ruthlessly killed the right protector. This was really puzzling. This was also the reason why Wang Meng, who had a different opinion from the right protector, had locked his eyes on the left protector and held his sword vigilantly when he saw the right protector's death. Not only did the left protector ignore that point, but Xiong Tian also began to defend the left protector for some reason. That's nonsense. Do you think the right protector can kill the left protector just because of her profound cultivation? Xiong Tian continued to explain. Even so, why would the left protector kill the regretful right protector? Lin Mu laughed in anger and changed the topic. What a big joke. The right protector is arrogant and despotic and is famous throughout the entire floating jade island. If she wants to kill the left protector, can't the left protector fight back and protect himself? Xiong Tian replied. Even if it was a counterattack, did he need to use his strongest sword intent to kill? Wang Meng said in a cold voice. He was still staring at the left protector. His right hand, which was tightly gripping the hilt of his sword, had already slowly pulled out a three-foot-long sword. What do you mean by that? Xiong Tian was not afraid of Lin Mu, but he was wary of Wang Meng. When he saw Wang Meng pulling out his sword, he was a little flustered. I just want an explanation. Wang Meng had already completely drawn his sword and pointed it at the left protector. Almost at the same time that Wang Meng pointed at the left protector, the Bear Clan members in the Jade Hall unsheathed their respective weapons and pointed them at Wang Meng. The human cultivators in the hall also pulled out their weapons and directed their spiritual energy at the Bear Beast cultivators. You guys are the bold ones. The rogue cultivator who had entered the mortal stage shouted loudly. Put down your weapons. Are you guys trying to rebel? You humans are sinister and vicious. I'm afraid you've long wanted to seize the floating jade island, aren't you? I think you're the one who's talking nonsense. You silly bears, I've long wanted to kill you. The scolding began, but no one made the first move. Chapter 370 They were all waiting for Wang Meng or the left protector's orders. As for the other clansmen, they had also made their choices. They pulled out their blades and joined the two sides. Most of them joined the bear clan, and only the leopard clan barely joined the human clan. The killing intent in the hall spread. There seemed to be a bloody light. Wang Meng, do you know what you're doing? Don't think that you can do whatever you want just because your number of rogue cultivators has increased. This is the floating jade island. The left protector did not give Wang Meng or Lin Mu a chance to speak. He looked at the two people in the hall who had drawn their swords and scolded. 
The left protector seemed to have been completely enraged by the changes in the hall, and he immediately infused pure elemental energy into his voice. His voice buzzed in the hall, instantly suppressing the discussions and calming the killing intent that had just been ignited. In the face of the angry left protector, everyone in the hall, except Wang Meng, Lin Mu, and Xiong Tian, was stunned. They didn't dare to make a sound, only looking at their respective clan leaders, not knowing what to do. The guards who had followed the right protector out of the depths of the main hall retreated upon hearing this. No one left the main hall. What's wrong? My words don't matter. The left protector's pale face twisted even more, his face darkening. A vast and boundless pressure suddenly exuded from the left protector's body. The pressure was not directed at everyone in the hall, but at Xiong Tian, Lin Mu, and Wang Meng. Back down. Xiong Tian was the closest to the left protector, so he naturally felt the terror of this pressure. He hurriedly called out to the Bear Clan members. Clan leader when the Bear Clan cultivator heard this, he immediately felt indignant and said. I said back down. Xiong Tian did not give his clansmen a chance to speak and interrupted them. Yes. The dozen or so bears turned around and retreated to the back of the hall. What are you guys doing here? All of you, leave first. Xiong Tian looked at the other clans after they left the hall. Clan leader. When the leopard clan's clansmen heard this, they quickly cupped their hands and bowed to Lin Mu. You guys go out first. Lin Mu replied softly, suppressing the anger and sorrow in his heart and still staring at the left protector. However, the human cultivators were different. Do you think that Floating Jade Island is owned by you rogue cultivators, just like Yanhuang Island and Sacred Soul Island? The left protector's eyes were filled with killing intent. No matter if it's the Great Zhou Dynasty, Sacred Soul Island, or Yanhuang Island, they have nothing to do with us. I hope the left protector can watch your words. Wang Meng held his head high and puffed out his chest fearlessly against the pressure emanating from the left protector. He stared at the left protector and waved his hand at the dozen or so human cultivators behind him, indicating that they should leave. The individual cultivators did not hesitate. After receiving Wang Meng's signal, they immediately put away their swords, turned around, and walked out of the hall. Soon, only the left protector, Xiong Tian, Lin Mu, Wang Meng, and the right protector's corpses were left in the spacious floating jade hall. The hall became a little deserted. There's something I didn't want to tell you, but it seems like I have to say it now. After everyone had left the hall, the left protector retracted his pressure and weakly turned around to look at the empty throne on the stage. I've already been to the place where the king is in seclusion, but the king isn't there. What? Wang Meng and Lin Mu asked at the same time. On the other hand, Xiong Tian seemed to have already known about this and remained unmoved. He continued to support the left protector quietly. This is impossible. If the king has come out of seclusion, how could he not see us? Wang Meng said, shaking his head. That's right. If the king were to come out of seclusion, we should be the first ones to be notified. Lin Mu also reacted and questioned. Whether you believe it or not, this is the truth. It was unknown where the king in seclusion is, and no one knows where he was going. This also means we cannot resist the million-strong army of underwater beast cultivators. Rather than the entire island being annihilated, it's better to the left protector turned around and said. What do you mean? Wang Meng interrupted the left protector's words and said coldly. The left protector was not angry at being interrupted. Instead, he sneered and did not answer Wang Meng. The left protector's meaning is that you should surrender as soon as possible instead of getting the entire island destroyed. You might even be able to keep your life. After all, it's better to live than die a good death. On the other hand, Xiong Tian, who was supporting the left protector, smiled and said. Xiong Tian's tone was filled with pride. He lifted his chin and kept sizing up Wang Meng and Lin Mu as if he was declaring something to the two of them. Nonsense. Do you even know what you're saying? As soon as he finished speaking, Lin Mu, whose eyes were still red, clenched his fists and shouted. Of course, I know what I'm talking about. As long as we can surrender and offer up the floating Jade Island, 
they won't kill us and will let us continue to live on the floating jade island. Xiong Tian replied with a disdainful smile. You've really let the king down. We, the living beings of the floating jade island, have been cultivating for hundreds of years. Have you forgotten who was the one protecting us? If not for the king, would floating jade island have been able to live a peaceful life for the past few hundred years? Lin Mu was so angry that he laughed and rebuked in a cold voice. Now that your bear clan has risen, you're no longer the drizzling bear that drifted on the sea without a fixed residence. Do you want to destroy floating jade island? I'm against it. Lin Mu continued. I'm saving the floating jade island. The king has abandoned us. Your so-called persistence is the destruction of the floating jade island. As long as we surrender and hand over these wandering human cultivators, we'll be safe. Xiong Tian looked at the furious Lin Mu, and the smile on his face gradually disappeared, replaced by anger. Can the words of those guys be trusted? Lin Mu said, shaking his head. Compared to the hundreds of thousands of living beings on the floating jade island, what's wrong with sacrificing less than 20,000 humans in exchange for our safety? The left protector finally spoke again, his eyes on Lin Mu. Is this the reason why you killed the right protector? As Wang Meng spoke, he tightened his grip on his sword. That's right. You all know the right protector's temper. Her feelings for the king have long surpassed foolishness and reached the level of loyalty to the death. If she knows that we are going to surrender the left protector shook her head. So you killed her. Wang Meng said with a cold smile. She must die. The right protector said decisively. However, he subconsciously looked at the right protector with pain in his eyes. Is being alive really that important to you? Wang Meng continued to ask. It's important. The left protector slowly retracted her gaze and turned to look at the empty throne again. He softly uttered two words. Heaven destroys those who don't look out for themselves. So, you want to surrender first? Wang Meng asked softly. Chapter, 371 The situation forced me to do this. The left protector said softly. Is there really no possibility of change? Wang Meng raised the sword in his right hand and pointed it at the left protector. What can you do? Kill me. The left protector chuckled. It seems that you, rogue cultivators of the human race, are living too comfortably. Do you think you can kill the left protector with your abilities? Xiong Tian looked at Wang Meng with even more disdain. If Brother Wang is not worthy, what if I join in? Lin Mu and Wang Meng stood side by side as they spoke. You're crazy. Xiong Tian coldly said. Is there really no way to change it? Wang Meng ignored Xiong Tian and nodded at Lin Mu. When he looked at the left protector again, he repeated his question. I heard that your cultivation has improved a lot. I really want to give it a try. The left protector turned around and waved at Xiong Tian, signaling him to step back. Wang Meng immediately leaped up and his spiritual energy surged. He held his sword with both hands and slashed at the left protector. The ocean water was raging, and huge waves surged up into the sky. Dozens of seagulls the size of half a man flapped their wide wings and soared into the sky. In the end, they split up and flew in all directions, roaming the blue sky. The eyes of these seagulls emitted a dark blue glow, allowing them to be unafraid of the bright sunlight on the dome. It could clearly see the movement of the grass within a radius of several dozen miles. They were the eyes of the floating jade island to monitor the surroundings, constantly monitoring the situation within a 500 miles radius of the floating jade island. Because of their existence, they were able to discover in time anything that might endanger the floating jade island, allowing the guards on the floating jade island to react in advance. As the seagulls took to the sky and scattered in all directions, a sharp arrow suddenly broke through the waves and instantly shot one of the seagulls. The arrow pierced through. The seagull didn't even have the chance to react before it was pierced by the sharp arrow. Its two wings subconsciously flapped randomly, but in the end, it was to no avail, and it fell to the sea. The death of their companion instantly caught the attention of the other seagulls. They issued warnings and wailed, and the speed at which they scattered immediately increased. 
As the flock of seagulls wailed, the sound of something breaking through the air was heard again. Whoosh! The sharp arrows that glowed with a cold light broke through the sea surface and shot into the sky. It was as if it was raining, forming a rain of arrows. Even though the seagulls had already warned them, resisting the sudden rain of arrows was still difficult. In an instant, dozens of seagulls were hit by the arrows. They were all injured and lost their ability to fly. They fell from the blue sky and into the hell of Hades. The huge waves came and instantly swallowed the seagulls that fell into the sea, completely disappearing from this area of the sea. More than 10,000 figures appeared in the waves. The huge whale suddenly broke out of the water, splashing up countless waves. It transformed into a tall and sturdy human figure in the air and landed on the sea. Looking at the huge island in the distance and the hundreds of sails that had turned into black dots, a smile flashed across his face. He suddenly raised his right hand. Kill. Behind the burly man, tens of thousands of silhouettes immediately moved, setting off monstrous waves as they sneaked toward the black dot in the distance. The killing intent instantly filled the entire surface of the Sea of the Netherworld. It is sunset. The bright sword light instantly shone on the floating jade palace and suddenly shot towards the front of the platform. The still pale left protector's face revealed a cautious expression. His purple robe fluttered in the windless air as dense spiritual energy began to revolve around him. When the sword ray approached, the sword on his back flew out again. The light shone brightly and instantly slashed at the incoming sword ray. Bang! It set off a huge wave of air that swept across the hall. As dust filled the air, the left protector stretched out her right hand, which had been forming hand seals in front of her chest, and instantly grabbed the sharp sword that had bounced back. He leaped into the air and an infinite amount of light shot out. Pure spiritual energy filled the sky and condensed into the sword, slashing toward Wang Meng who was floating in the air. A dazzling sword radiance flew out instantly as if it was going to cut through the void. With great power, it headed straight for Wang Meng. Wang Meng wanted to dodge, but it was too late. Helplessly, he could only madly activate the spiritual energy in his body and condense it into the sword in his hand. He looked at the sword ray that was rapidly approaching and slashed. The sword, which had gathered all of Wang Meng's spiritual energy, suddenly exploded with countless dazzling lights. The sun, moon, and stars seemed to lose their light at this moment, and the palace was covered in white light. The black dot of the sword and the sword light collided in the air. A blast of air a hundred times more powerful than before instantly swept across the floating jade palace. The earth trembled, the palace shook, and the sky seemed to be collapsing. Wang Meng, who was holding the sword with both hands, had a change in expression. The bright red blood was particularly eye-catching in the vast white palace as it scattered in the air. Wang Meng's body was sent flying like a broken zither. As the light faded, he fell in front of the hall. The left protector didn't take advantage of the situation to pursue an attack. Instead, he turned her sword around and descended from the sky. Finish him off. The left protector was expressionless as he nodded at the surprised Xiong Tian. Yes. Xiong Tian recovered from his shock and cupped his hands at the left protector. He walked toward Wang Meng as he replied. A figure suddenly flew up and landed in front of Wang Meng, blocking Xiong Tian. If you want to kill Wang Meng, you'll have to do it over my dead body. Lin Mu's face was determined, and his arms had been animalized revealing sharp claws that flashed with cold light, aiming at Xiong Tian's chest. Don't force me. Xiong Tian said in a deep voice. He had tried to persuade Lin Mu repeatedly because of their hundred-year friendship. However, Lin Mu continued to persist, which increased the anger in his heart. What are you chatting about? The left protector suddenly felt uneasy and urged. Xiong Tian's gaze toward Lin Mu was filled with killing intent, and his spiritual energy gushed out from his burly body. At this moment, the tightly shut doors of the hall suddenly opened. The underwater demonic cultivator army is attacking the island. The one who pushed open the door was a guard of the floating jade palace. It was the demonic cultivator of the leopard clan who had specially come to inform him. The upper echelons of the various clans who had gone out earlier all looked at the hall in unison. Wang Meng, 
who was heavily injured, fell to the ground. Lin Mu, who was standing in front of Wang Meng. Xiong Tian, whose fists were tightly clenched and his elemental energy circulating, and the left protector, who had a calm expression on his face. Brother Wang. Immediately, some of the human cultivators exclaimed. The rogue cultivators of the floating Jade Island surrounded Wang Meng in an instant. Some of them checked his injuries, while others drew their swords and glared at Xiong Tian. Even though they knew that it was very likely the left protector had done it, they could not help but point their spears at the Bear Clan's king when they saw Xiong Tian, who was about to attack. My king, are you all right? The members of the Leopard Clan also rushed over and stood on both sides of Lin Mu, looking at Xiong Tian vigilantly. Meanwhile, the Bear Clansmen quietly stood behind Xiong Tian and pulled out their blades. The meaning was self-evident. The floating Jade Palace was once again in a stalemate. They were tit for tat, and no one was willing to take half a step back. Chapter, 372 What do you want? The vanguard of the underwater beast cultivators has already attacked the island. According to the reports of our scouts, the million-strong army behind them will be here soon. The old Seagull clan leader walked out and stood in the middle of the confrontation as he said angrily. The Seagull clan leader's voice was filled with sorrow and anger, and it echoed in the palace. Wang Meng didn't say anything. He took a few pills from his clansmen and sat down cross-legged in the hall to heal his injuries. The rogue human cultivators surrounded him to his left and right, forming a protective circle. Lin Mu did not say anything. The tears on his face had dried up, but he stood tall and proud in the hall in front of Wang Meng, looking at the left protector behind him. Since the clan leader did not speak, the members of the leopard clan naturally did not speak either. Xiong Tian also retracted his spiritual energy and turned to look at the left protector with a questioning look. The other clan standing at the entrance of the hall didn't move either. They were still a little confused. He had not recovered from the attack of the underwater demonic cultivator army and the changes in floating Jade Palace. The scene was very quiet. If we delay any longer, floating Jade Island will really be finished. The Seagull clan's leader stomped his feet in anger. His gaze swept past Lin Mu, Wang Meng, and Xiong Tian, and finally stopped on the left protector. Left protector, the king is not here now. You should be temporarily in charge of floating Jade Island. Say something. The Seagull clan leader looked at the left protector and asked. The ones attacking the island now should only be the vanguards of the underwater demonic cultivators. The snake and bear clans each led the other clans' armies and entered the beach from the left and right. Anyone who enters the island will be killed. The left protector seemed to be thinking about something and spoke after a long while. Yes. The snake clan outside the hall and the bear clan inside the hall replied at the same time, and then hurriedly left. The bear clan left at Xiong Tian's signal. It's best to defend for now. At least, we can protect floating Jade Island for the time being. I'll activate the Dao protecting array now. The clan leader of the Seagull clan immediately heaved a sigh of relief. He turned around and hurriedly left the hall, bringing with him a dozen other members of the Seagull clan. In the blink of an eye, the palace fell silent again. In addition to the left protector, Xiong Tian, Lin Mu, and Wang Meng, who was recuperating, there were more than a dozen human cultivators and more than a dozen leopard clansmen. The leopard clan is the fastest on land. Now, the leopard clan is in charge of reporting the battle situation at the front. Any situation must be reported immediately without any delay. The left protector spoke once more as she watched the figure gradually disappear. In the face of the left protector's order, the members of the leopard clan looked at each other and did not move. Instead, they looked at Lin Mu. Although the left protector was in the highest position on the floating Jade Island, in the hearts of the various clans on the island, he was still inferior to the clan leader. Even though the left protector had given the order, no one from the leopard clan moved. They were waiting for the clan leader's orders. Lin Mu did not say anything. The underwater demonic cultivator army has already attacked. The matter between you and me will be settled later. If the floating Jade Island cannot be defended, I will do that thing you object to. 
The left protector clearly understood the situation, and let out a long sigh as he admitted defeat. That matter, of course, referred to surrender. Lin Mu hesitated. He wanted nothing more than to kill the left protector and avenge the right protector. He was the one who raised the right protector. The depth of their feelings was self-evident. However, Lin Mu knew he was no match for the left protector with his cultivation alone. Moreover, this matter concerned the safety of floating Jade Island, which made him feel conflicted. He subconsciously looked behind him, wanting to ask for Wang Meng's opinion. Let's focus on the overall situation and defend the island first. Wang Meng seemed to have noticed Lin Mu's gaze. He slowly opened his eyes and nodded. Right now, protecting floating Jade Island was the most important thing. Otherwise, if the floating Jade Island was captured, hundreds of thousands of living beings would probably die tragically. What was the difference if he didn't take revenge when the time came? Do as the left protector says. At the thought of this, Lin Mu no longer insisted and gave an order to his clansmen. Yes. The members of the Leopard clan replied in unison and immediately rushed out of the hall. Although I've already sent the Snake and Bear clans to fight the enemy, the Leopard clan and the Human clan should still deploy some men to patrol the entire island just in case. This is to prevent any fish from slipping through the net and to prevent the enemy from entering floating Jade Island from other places. At this moment, the left protector suddenly called out to the leopard clan cultivator. The leopard clan accepted the order and left quickly. The human cultivators looked at Wang Meng in unison. Wang Meng naturally knew the meaning of the left protector's actions. He wanted to divide the power of the two clans. However, this was not unreasonable at this critical moment, so he could only nod in agreement. Unlike the leopard clan, the human cultivators did not leave on their own. Instead, they helped Wang Meng up and walked out of the hall. Wang Meng did not object, and the left protector, Xiong Tian, and Lin Mu did not stop him. Since Lord Protector wants our two clans to join forces to protect the island, why don't you leave with me and we can discuss countermeasures later? Wang Meng, who was supported by a human rogue cultivator, suddenly stopped at the entrance of the palace and turned back to Lin Mu. Lin Mu did not expect Wang Meng to say that. However, he quickly regained his senses. He thought about how Wang Meng and the humans had left, leaving him, the left protector, and Xiong Tian in the hall. The consequences were self-evident. Lin Mu couldn't help but shiver. He quickly picked up the right protector's body and walked toward Wang Meng. Better this way. Neither the left protector nor Xiong Tian expressed their opinions on this. He just quietly watched Lin Mu hold the right protector's body until they completely left the hall. A smile appeared on Wang Meng's pale face. He looked past Lin Mu and at the left protector behind him. Then, he quickly retracted his gaze and turned to walk out of the hall. Left protector, the human clan is willing to sacrifice itself in times of life and death. However, you must be careful if you intend to harm us for your own benefit. A cold voice, with a strong sense of warning, came from outside the hall and echoed throughout the entire floating jade palace. Lord Left Protector, are we really going to let them go? What about the underwater beast cultivators? Xiong Tian cupped his hands and asked the Left Protector. I know what I'm doing with the underwater beast cultivators. On the other hand, Wang Meng and Lin Mu are not easy to deal with, the Left Protector said indifferently as she looked out of the hall. With protector's strength, you can just kill them directly. Xiong Tian said. It's very easy to kill them, but the humans and leopards will go on a rampage. I'm afraid the other clans will be terrified and not meet the requirements of the Lord. We need fresh lives as sacrifices. The left protector said indifferently. Let them jump around for a while. They won't live for long anyway. You go and check the sacrificial array. The left protector continued. Yes. I'll go now. Xiong Tian walked into the depths of the hall, leaving the left protector behind. Looking at the floating jade palace, the left protector's face was filled with sorrow and even twitched slightly. How do you feel when you return to floating jade island and find out the island you've been managing for hundreds of years has become a dead island? A slightly sinister voice reverberated in the empty floating jade palace. 
Chapter, 373 The low sound of a bugle horn came from the north shore of the floating jade island. It was filled with killing intent, ferocity, and the smell of blood as it spread throughout the entire northern shore of the floating jade island. In the sound of the horn, the deep-sea demonic cultivator broke out of the water and rushed up to the floating jade island along with the surging waves. He rushed into the individual cultivators guarding the floating jade island. Kill. For the floating jade, for the clansmen, for the king, kill. I swear to protect the floating jade island. A loud shout resounded on the north shore of the floating jade island. The rogue cultivators of the various clans living on the north shore of the floating jade island all drew their weapons at this moment. With a strong will to face death, they charged at the underwater demonic cultivators who were charging onto the island. The war had completely begun with the sound of the horn. The underwater demonic cultivators and the floating jade wandering cultivators were mixing together here. Blood began to flow, and spiritual energy shot out in all directions. Lives continued to be lost, but the living continued to charge. Some were charging into the island, while others were protecting their homes. The sounds of charging, roaring, fighting, and wailing. All kinds of voices from different clans mixed together on the northern shore of the floating jade island. The continuous sounds indicated that the battle was about to begin. The spiritual energy flowed continuously, and blood splattered. In the blink of an eye, the north shore of the floating jade island fell into a chaotic battle. In the end, the unaffiliated floating jade island's cultivators could not resist the battlefields filled with brutal and bloodthirsty underwater beast cultivators. Even though there were not many underwater beast cultivators who really rushed to the north shore, the floating jade island's rogue cultivators who stayed to guard the north shore could not resist them and were gradually pushed to the shore by the underwater beast cultivators. Ten meters, a hundred meters, a thousand meters. Soon, the army of underwater beast cultivators that had launched the attack had already destroyed the floating jade rogue cultivators' guards as easily as breaking dry weeds and smashing rotten wood. They quickly stood firm on the shore. In a short period of time, the underwater beast cultivator army had occupied more than half of the northern shore of the floating jade island and had completely established themselves on the island. Hundreds and thousands of demonic cultivators flew out from the extreme cold and landed on the north shore of Floating Jade. The north shore of Floating Jade Island was about to fall. At this moment, a white light suddenly shot out from the center of the Floating Jade Island and soared into the sky. The extremely bright white light shot into the sky like fireworks and exploded. Buzz! It wasn't a loud explosion, but an invisible light wave spread out and instantly enveloped the entire floating jade island. Whoosh! Immediately after, the water of the freezing cold land that was constantly patting the floating jade island's shore came to an abrupt stop. The endless waves that followed suddenly stopped when they approached the shore. In the void, it was as if they had hit an invisible wall and collapsed. It was not just the waves. Even the army of underwater beast cultivators who had just gained a foothold on the north shore of the floating jade island, other than the 2,000 beast cultivators who had already entered the shore, were also sent flying out of the land of extreme frost. They crashed into the invisible wall in the void and were bounced back, falling back into the land of extreme frost. Bang! From the explosion of the bright light beam to the spread of the invisible light wave, the entire process only took a few short breaths. The entire floating jade island seemed to have been shackled and completely enveloped. The birds flying on the island were unable to fly out of the island. The vanguard of the underwater beast cultivators outside the island was also unable to enter floating jade island and was isolated outside the island. The island's protective formation has been activated. The beast cultivators don't have any reinforcements. Charge with me and kill all these intruders. A furious roar suddenly came from behind the retreating floating jade guard. The voice was dignified and authoritative, and it was obvious that spiritual energy had been infused into it. Instantly, the entire north shore of the floating jade island was filled with fighting spirit, causing the guards who had lost their will to fight to be filled with fighting spirit. The floating jade island's rogue cultivators quickly attacked. On the left were a snake with a human head and a snake's body, while on the right was a burly bear with a bear head and a human body. 
The rogue cultivators of the two clans arrived in a grandiose manner. They quickly merged with the defeated North Shore guards and launched a fierce attack on the 2,000 underwater beast cultivators on the shore. The battlefield suddenly changed, and the retreat was almost one-sided with the powerful and brutal underwater beast cultivators. The killing became even more intense, and blood splattered, forming a river. Broken limbs flew and piled up into a mountain. Countless corpses of humans, demons, birds, and beasts covered the entire north shore of the floating Jade River. The situation on the coast had changed dramatically. The North Shore Guards, who had been on the verge of complete defeat, quickly turned the tide with the help of the Snake and Bear clans. They even killed the 2,000 brutal demonic cultivators who had come ashore in one fell swoop, leaving no one alive. When the rogue cultivators of the floating Jade Island had the upper hand, the situation was turned around by the alliance of the Snake and Bear clans. This was also a death order from the Left Protector. Whoever landed on the island needed to be killed first and reported later. The Snake and Bear clans that had come to the North Shore to assist had indeed carried out this order thoroughly. However, the decisive action of the individual cultivators of the floating Jade Island had obviously angered the 800 demonic cultivators who were blocked outside. The impact on the invisible barrier became more violent, and the spiritual energy was like a curtain of rain, crazily attacking the invisible barrier. For floating Jade Island to be able to stand in the depths of the extreme cold for hundreds of years without collapsing, and even live in a fairyland in the sea, aloof from worldly affairs, its foundation was naturally not to be underestimated. This island's protective formation alone was led by several island masters and continuously tempered by a million Dao Foundation cultivators. Even a master of the fifth level of the earth realm would have to put in a lot of effort to break it, not to mention these monster cultivators of the human realm. Even though 800 beast cultivators took turns attacking the island's protective formation, they could not shake it at all and still firmly enveloped the floating jade island. As time passed, the seemingly intense battle gradually calmed down. The floating jade island's individual cultivators scattered on the beach and looked at the demon cultivators outside the formation with disdain. After a long period of attack, the 8,000 demonic cultivators outside the formation finally showed signs of fatigue. They stopped their continuous attacks and floated on the sea, staring cautiously at floating Jade Island's rogue cultivators. The invisible confrontation between the two sides began. Right at this moment, the freezing cold land that had gradually regained its calm suddenly had a huge wave. In the huge waves, a figure as large as a mountain broke through the waves and appeared. It was actually a huge killer whale. As the killer whale flew out of the sea, it transformed into a human form and condensed into a burly man. He stepped into the void and arrived in the sky. He looked at the invisible formation that was flowing with spiritual energy and revealed a strange smile. The floating jade array has been activated. It will take at least four hours to close it, which is enough time for us to carry out our next plan. The burly man's eyes flickered as he muttered to himself. The floating jade array has been fully activated. We can now start the sacrifice. Before he could finish his words, the burly man turned around with a fierce expression on his face. Yes. The 8,000 beast cultivators who had stopped their attacks were immediately invigorated and began to move. They formed a formation outside the formation, emitting a demonic purple light that shot into the sky in the opposite direction of the floating Jade Island. About 500 miles away from the north shore of the floating Jade Island, the ocean was rolling and roaring. In the waves, the army of beast cultivators could be seen. Chapter, 374 The army of demonic cultivators did not continue to advance toward the floating Jade Island. Instead, they stopped and split up in the middle of the waves, forming a formation similar to that of 8,000 demonic cultivators, facing the north shore of the floating Jade Island. Song Chang is already here. The burly man sitting cross-legged in the sea suddenly opened his eyes, and two rays of light shot into the sky. It seems that sixth yen isn't completely useless. Set up the formation. Song Chang stood up from the sea and jumped out of the sea in an instant. He stepped on the waves and looked into the distance. The man in white, Chui Pan, waved his folding fan and walked toward the million-strong army of beast cultivators. A demonic purple light suddenly appeared on the distant horizon. 
It was as fast as lightning and approached Song Chang in the blink of an eye. Activate the formation. Almost at the same time as the purple light fell, a voice came from the sea. Before he could finish his words, the huge waves suddenly stopped and calmed down. Countless underwater beast cultivators broke out of the water. The million-strong army occupied an area of a hundred miles, but they were not chaotic. They instantly formed countless small formations to form a huge formation that covered a hundred miles. The demonic purple light fell on the center of the six-pointed star array. Sacrifice Song Chan, who had jumped out of the sea, shouted at the same time as the purple light fell. A wave of air swept through the entire array. The purple pillar of light shot up into the sky, straight into the clouds, and rapidly shot towards the floating jade island 500 miles away. Their speed was very fast, and they crossed the 500 miles sea distance in two breaths. In the six-pointed star formation formed by 8,000 beast cultivators, the burly man, Sixth Yen, who was the transformed killer whale, suddenly raised his head and stared at the purple light in the sky. The 8,000 beast cultivators in the formation looked in the direction of the purple light with respect. About 20,000 floating jade rogue cultivators of the snake and bear tribes on the north shore of the floating jade island looked at the purple light beam that was shooting towards them. Their faces were heavy and their hearts could not help but be in their throats. Even with the isolation of the island's protective formation, they could still sense the terrifying power of the purple light pillar, which made them worried. Could the floating jade island protecting formation really withstand this attack? No one knew, and no one asked. Because they knew that the results would be revealed very soon. The speed of the purple light pillar was as fast as ever. In an instant it swept past the 800 beast cultivators in front of the north shore of the floating jade and slammed into the floating jade array. Bang! Like a thunderbolt on a clear day, it suddenly exploded and shook the entire floating jade island. The light of the floating jade array swirled, and the spiritual energy scattered and shook violently. Even so, the floating jade array was able to withstand it and did not collapse. After the violent shaking, it quickly returned to normal. It remained still and continued to shroud the floating jade island, separating the two places. Phew! Great, the island's protective formation was able to withstand the powerful attack. The floating jade island can be saved. The guard on the north shore of the floating jade island said excitedly. Of course. It said that even the king can't break the protective formation of the floating jade island. How can a few inexperienced underwater beast cultivators break it? Floating Jade Island is invincible. Excited yells shook the heavens the moment the floating jade array blocked the purple light pillar. Silence. Look at what that is. While everyone was excited, the commander of the snake tribe, Han Yu, who was sitting cross-legged on the beach, suddenly stood up and looked up with his brows furrowed. He raised his hand and pointed at the place where the purple light pillar had hit the floating jade array. The invisible light screen of the floating jade array that was hit by the purple light pillar began to flow with purple light and spread rapidly. In the blink of an eye, the light screen was dyed purple. It did not stop there but expanded rapidly as if it was going to dye the entire floating jade array purple. As the purple light circulated in the array, an extreme death aura filled the entire array. Continue. Outside the floating jade array, Sixth Yen looked at the rapidly spreading purple light and a strange smile appeared on his face. He waved to the 8,000 beast cultivators behind him. As Sixth Yen's voice rang out, the 8,000 beast cultivators in the double formation immediately released their demonic spiritual energy without any reservation and quickly merged it into the array. The entire process was silent. The purple pillar of light that shot up into the sky stopped the floating jade array silently. It was as if they were connected and were in close contact with each other without repelling each other. This time, after the purple light beam came into contact with the floating jade array, it did not dissipate. Instead, the 8,000 beast cultivators below continued to pour demonic elemental energy into the array, causing the purple light beam to solidify and continuously pour purple light into the floating jade array. The entire formation of the floating jade island had changed from its original shapeless state to a purple light shield. It appeared demonic and dazzling and was rather beautiful. 
in the core region of floating Jade Island, in the lush forest. The wild rabbit ran out of the forest, seemingly excited and jumping to its heart's content. When the wild rabbit jumped, its body suddenly exploded in mid-air. Blood filled the air, forming a blood mist in the air. Pieces of flesh flew out several meters away. The cheetah that was about to pounce on its prey suddenly exploded. Then, there were wild boars, slithering vipers, and running elks. As time passed, the purple light in the floating jade array became more intense taking new lives from small to big, from moving to still. More and more animals began to explode out of the blue. In an instant, not even their bones were left, leaving behind only a mist of blood. The floating jade array, which was originally filled with a strong aura of death, was now filled with the smell of blood, and it was getting stronger and stronger. Such a strange thing was gradually affecting the rogue cultivators. Several rogue cultivators in the center of floating Jade Island exploded almost at the same time, turning into a mist of blood that floated into the sky. The strange things didn't stop there. More and more rogue cultivators began to explode without any warning. They turned into a bloody mist and scattered across the floating Jade Island. A terrifying aura filled the entire floating Jade Island. The smell of blood and the strange events were like the god of death's scythe harvesting lives. The scythe was suspended above the head of the living being as if it would fall at any time to harvest lives. The hundreds of thousands of living beings on floating Jade Island fell into a nightmare. On the northern shore of the floating Jade Island, the snake and bear tribe itinerant cultivators, as well as the surviving guards of the northern shore, were cautiously looking up at the sky. They were continuously pouring purple light into the floating jade formation and were silent. One of the snake cultivators suddenly exploded and turned into a bloody mist that scattered in the air. It attracted the attention of the 20,000 or so rogue cultivators around, but he did not speak. The tenth one. Han Yu looked at the gradually rising blood mist, his face became even gloomier, and he muttered in a deep voice. After the floating jade array turned purple, the body of the tenth wandering cultivator on the north shore of the floating jade exploded. The sudden explosion intensified the oppressive aura. Ignorant rogue cultivators, are you panicking? Do you really think we are going to attack the island? We wanted you to activate this great floating jade array with an extremely strong defense so that you would be trapped in your own cocoon. Outside the floating jade array, Li Huang, who was standing in front of the 8,000 demonic cultivators, looked at the gradually rising blood mist through the barrier flowing with purple light and sneered. Chapter, 375 The floating jade array is the protective array of the floating jade island. It is to protect the floating jade island from external invasion. How is it a trap? Han Yu immediately retorted and denied it. I said you were ignorant, but you didn't believe me. Just wait and see. When the blood array completely covers the floating jade array, it will be grave for all of you. Sixth Yen laughed. Han Yu's face turned even uglier. He sneered as he looked at the blood mist that was gradually dispersing and the 20,000 rogue cultivators who had their eyes on him. Wishful thinking. Even if what you said is true, don't forget that the floating jade array is in our hands. If the situation you're talking about really happens, we'll remove the formation. Han Yu said in a clear voice. Needless to say, Han Yu's explanation not only refuted Sixth Yen but also appeased the fear of the surrounding rogue martial artists. If what Sixth Yen said was true, when the blood formation completely dominated the floating jade formation, all the living beings in the formation would self-destruct and sacrifice themselves to the formation. In that case, couldn't they just remove the floating jade array? After all, the floating jade array was under the control of the floating jade island. The floating jade array is no longer under your control. It means the person controlling the floating jade array is actually one of our people. Facing Han Yu's explanation, Sixth Yan's face showed disdain. His words were neither light nor heavy as if he was joking or teasing the rogue cultivators. However, there was a bit of confidence in his words, making it impossible to judge whether it was true or false. However, the rogue cultivators on the north bank of the floating jade island were all determined to be fake. How is that possible? Nonsense. Sixth Yan's words were immediately retorted by floating jade island's rogue cultivators, who expressed their disdain. 
The core of the floating jade array was in the floating jade palace. It was the core of the floating jade island and was equivalent to the base camp of the floating jade rogue cultivators. It was also the spiritual pillar of the floating jade island's rogue cultivators. Its defense was the most secure place on floating jade island, so how could there be any problems easily? To the floating jade island's rogue cultivators, this was simply nonsense. While the rogue cultivators were retorting 6th yen, Han Yu's face grew darker. 6th yen's words were so confident that it was obvious that he had planned this. If that was the case, they would have to believe him when he said the array was actually in their hands. If what 6th yen said was the truth, it would be a disaster for the tens of thousands of living beings on floating Jade Island. From the previous rogue cultivator's bodies that exploded for no reason, it could be seen that this so-called blood array was simply unsolvable. Without the control of the floating jade array, the blood array would no doubt become the most lethal weapon instead of its original protective function. I knew you wouldn't believe me. It won't be long before you receive the news. I guess they've already taken action. Sixth Yen ignored wandering cultivator floating jade's rebuttal. Instead, he looked into the depths of the island and said with a big smile. Such a performance immediately made Han Yu more convinced of what he had said before. Could there be a problem with the floating jade palace? Han Yu turned around and looked at the center of the floating jade island as he thought to himself. However, Han Yu immediately denied his thoughts. The army of beast cultivators had no chance to enter the floating jade island, so how could they possibly seize control of the floating jade array? However, a terrifying thought emerged in his mind. It was true that the underwater beast cultivators did not enter the floating jade array, but a certain rogue cultivator on the floating jade island could hide his evil intentions. Han Yu could not help but shiver at the thought. It was easy to dodge an open spear, but hard to defend against a hidden arrow, not to mention a traitor. The spies hidden by his side were the most terrifying existences. Because you don't know when he will stab you in the back, a fatal stab. The clan leader Xiong Tian and the left protector have started a rebellion. They seized control of the floating jade array and sealed the floating jade palace. Just as Han Yu was guessing in his heart, the leopard-headed rogue cultivator suddenly rushed over and shouted before he even reached the North Shore beach. What? Nonsense, how could the clan leader betray us? The rogue cultivators on the North Shore couldn't accept the news brought by the leopard clan. The bear clan's individual cultivators, in particular, firmly believed that the clan leader would not betray them. Some Bear Clan's individual cultivators even thought the Leopard Clan's individual cultivator was slandering them and was about to step forward with their weapons to kill him. Han Yu appeared calm. He stepped forward to stop the impetuous Bear Clan cultivator and looked at the Leopard Clan cultivator who had come to report. What happened on the floating Jade Island? Han Yu asked in a deep voice. Although he suspected there was a spy on the floating Jade Island, he would not have thought of the left protector. Xiong Tian could accept it. After all, he was only one of the ten floating jade wandering cultivator clans. But the left protector was completely different. There were even rumors in private that the next island master of floating jade island would be the left protector. It was truly unbelievable that the left protector had suddenly betrayed the island. Not long ago, hundreds of our compatriots self-destructed for no reason, causing quite a bit of panic. At that time, Clan leader Wang Meng and clan leader Lin Mu, who were patrolling, immediately checked the situation and thought that there was a problem with the floating jade palace. They immediately went to request to shut down the floating jade array. The disbanded cultivator of the leopard clan did not know what Han Yu was thinking at this time, so he quickly and respectfully answered Han Yu. However, who would have thought the left protector and Xiong Tian would work together with the beast cultivators and not only sneak attack the guards of the main palace? He had even sealed the floating jade palace and seized control of the floating jade array. The news has been sent to all corners of the island. Clan leader Lin and the other clan leaders have issued the floating jade secret order. General, please take a look. The leopard clan cultivator took a golden token from his pocket and handed it to Han Yu respectfully. Han Yu did not expect that not only had hundreds of rogue cultivators died on the floating jade island but the floating jade secret order had also been issued. The result shocked him. 
No matter how distrustful Han Yu was, the floating jade secret order in front of him confirmed the words of this leopard clan individual cultivator. The most important token on the floating jade island. It would only be issued when the floating jade island was in a crisis. How did this happen? Han Yu said in a daze. This meant that as long as the left protector did not open the floating jade array, all the living beings on the island would be imprisoned forever. After the blood array was completely corroded, the sickle that was hanging above the heads of the floating jade loose cultivators would immediately fall. At that time, the floating jade island would be destroyed. Hundreds of thousands of rogue cultivators would all die without a doubt. The rogue cultivators guarding the north shore of the floating jade island recovered from their shock. They found clues from Han Yu's expression and knew the truth of the news. This was undoubtedly a shocking nightmare for them, who were fighting to the death to protect the floating jade. There were even many rogue cultivators who left the group and ran toward the island. They wanted to go home to protect their wives and children. Even if they died, they wanted to die with them. When the 20,000 or so rogue cultivators were in a riot and fleeing in panic. Some of the rogue cultivators who were running suddenly exploded, turning into a mist of blood that floated into the sky. The floating jade island fell into a state of panic. Han Yu did not stop them. Instead, he looked at the rogue cultivators who were leaving inside. Because he knew they would not be able to escape. Chapter 376 In front of the floating jade palace, tens of thousands of wandering cultivators had gathered, almost surrounding the entire floating jade palace. At the forefront of these tens of thousands of itinerant cultivators, Wang Meng led the nine rogue cultivators with the foundation of Dao of the human clan. He, the leopard clan leader Lin Mu, the eagle clan leader Ao Bai, and the seagull clan leader Hai Qing looked at the tall bronze door in silence. The bronze doors of the floating jade palace, which were usually open, were now tightly shut. There was spiritual energy circulating on the bronze door, and light waves flickered. It meant that the palace protecting formation had been activated, and even hundreds of Dao Foundation cultivators would find it difficult to break through. Brother Wang, we can't go on like this. I think those demonic purple rays will soon fill the floating jade array. If we don't shut it down Lin Mu looked at Wang Meng and did not finish his sentence. This was because Lin Mu knew even if Wang Meng had the highest cultivation, he would not be able to break through the palace's protective array in a short time. Moreover, who here was a match for the left protector and could take back control of the floating jade array from him after he had broken the palace protecting array? You really can't judge a book by its cover. I didn't expect the left protector to betray us. Hai Qing stomped his feet in frustration and said angrily. Hai Qing had always trusted the left protector the most ever since the beast cultivators from the bottom of the ocean came. Hai Qing even believed the left protector was the most influential person to save floating Jade Island. The result was disappointing. The left protector wasn't there to save them from dangerous existence, but the most destructive one. What's the use of saying all this now? I suspect that the king has already been killed by the left protector. Ao Bai, the chief of the Eagle Clan, looked at the purple light in the sky with a sharp gaze and said coldly. The Eagle Clan was the closest to the floating Jade Island Master. They were the only ones who were concerned about the safety of the Island Master. It seems like floating Jade Island is doomed. Hai Qing's wrinkled old face was filled with unwillingness. He raised his head and looked at the floating jade array that had almost turned purple. Other than the center in the floating jade palace, there was no other solution. Wan Meng didn't pay attention to the words of the other patriarchs. He fell into silence alone and lowered his head in deep thought. As if he had made a decision, his eyes flashed with determination and he suddenly walked towards the door of the floating jade palace. Wan Meng's speed was very fast, and he arrived at the floating jade palace's entrance without anyone noticing. Everyone's eyes turned to Wang Meng, but they only watched. They didn't know what Wang Meng was thinking. Left protector, do you really have the heart to see the hundreds of thousands of rogue cultivators on floating jade island die? As long as you come out and close the array, I will surrender on behalf of the rogue cultivators of the human clan. Wang Meng's voice was crisp and clear, and it spread throughout the entire floating jade palace. 
The eyes of the nine rogue cultivators standing behind Wang Meng dimmed when they heard his words. They knew Wang Meng's choice to surrender meant he agreed to the human cultivators' request to sacrifice their lives. However, even though they were sad, they didn't object. A person who was willing to exchange life for a life was worthy of their respect. Even the tens of thousands of independent cultivators in the floating Jade Palace looked at Wang Meng with respect. Wang Meng's choice was undoubtedly to sacrifice the rogue cultivators of the human clan in exchange for the safety of the hundreds of thousands of rogue cultivators on floating Jade Island. Even if he chose to surrender. However, the left protector in the floating Jade Palace was clearly not satisfied. I gave you a chance, but you didn't cherish it. I can only kill all of you. The left protector's voice rang out from the floating Jade Palace. It was sinister and cold. Is there no room for maneuver? Wang Meng said, not giving up. I'm going to destroy the entire floating Jade Island. If you want to blame someone, blame the king. The left protector's voice was filled with a bit of resentment. Wang Meng finally knew the reason for the left protector's betrayal. It was because of that incident back then. If your majesty had exterminated the weeds and uprooted them, would the floating Jade Island have faced such a crisis? Wang Meng stopped trying to persuade him. When the left protector brought up old scores, he knew he could not change his mind. Not only Wang Meng, but Lin Mu, Ao Bai, Hai Qing, and the other elders of Floating Jade Island also fell silent after hearing the left protector's words. In front of the Floating Jade Palace, which was filled with the aura of death, there was an inexplicable pressure, a heavy pressure. The pressure was suffocating, and the rogue cultivator's forehead was covered in sweat as he trembled. Bang! Suddenly, a rogue cultivator's body exploded for no reason and turned into a bloody mist. Immediately after, several rogue cultivators exploded. Wang Meng's clenched fists made a crisp sound, indicating that he was suppressing his crazy anger and endless anger. Yi Xiu! Wang Meng turned around and shouted. Your subordinate is here. A green-robed man, who was about the same age as Wang Meng, replied. From today on, you are the new clan leader of the human clan. After the floating jade array is opened, if you can reach an agreement with the underwater beast cultivators, you will be the sacrifice for the human clan's rogue cultivators. Wang Meng's expression was grave. Leader. Yi Xiu shouted. He felt an ominous premonition from Wang Meng's words, so he wanted to stop him. I'm asking you, did you hear me clearly? Wang Meng interrupted him and shouted angrily. I heard you clearly. Yi Xiu's face showed a struggle, but in the end, he nodded. Clan leader. Brother Wang. The other eight unaffiliated Dao Foundation cultivators and the various clan leaders reacted almost at the same time and shouted. They weren't sure what Wang Meng wanted to do, but they knew he was leaving his last words. Wang Meng. Even if you self-destruct, you won't be able to break the defensive formation. The left protector's voice came from the palace. He could clearly sense Wang Meng's thoughts. Left protector, when you brought up the incident a hundred years ago, I knew that I couldn't change your mind, but I couldn't change mine either. Wang Meng smiled. I don't want you to do useless things and waste your life. Could it be that you think that without you, they would be a match for me if they joined forces? The left protector's voice once again sounded through the tightly shut bronze door. If you were at your peak, even if all of us attacked at the same time, we might not be able to kill you. But what about now when you're seriously injured? Wang Meng continued his analysis. What nonsense are you talking about? The left protector's voice was rather nervous, even trembling with surprise. With your powerful cultivation, you chose to be a coward in the sealed palace. This means that you are afraid of something. Wang Meng said slowly. That's simply a bunch of nonsense. The left protector coldly snorted. Countless spiritual energy immediately gushed out of Wang Meng's body, as if it was burning with invisible flames. His body was like lightning as he charged toward the tightly shut bronze door. Open. Wang Meng, who had crashed into the bronze door, was burning with a raging fire. He was really like a small sun. 
The human clan's rogue cultivators and the various clan leaders saw through Wang Meng's plan and stood up in unison to stop Wang Meng. In the end, it was too late. Wang Meng's cultivation base was above theirs. Now that he had ignited his soul and all his spiritual energy, his cultivation level had increased rapidly. How could they catch up? A thunderous sound that shook the heavens and earth resounded on the floating jade island. The dazzling light pierced through the clouds, and the world lost its color. The grand and magnificent floating jade palace shook violently under this powerful impact. The roof exploded, the tiles shattered, and the walls cracked. The originally sturdy protective array was now under a powerful impact. It flickered rapidly and was difficult to resist. Chapter 377 The Great World The Heavenly Sword Sect The left and right protectors returned. Before returning to the sect, the two of them found a very hidden place and continuously studied ways to solve the problem of the goo poison pill. Of course, they were unwilling to be controlled by Hichuan. However, the goo worm was too close to the heart and could not be resolved. If the goo worm felt threatened, it would immediately counterattack. The heart piercing pain made them unable to use their spiritual energy. They didn't even dare to continue trying. However, they had given up after the first attempt. With no other choice, they could only return to the Heavenly Sword sect. As for the excuse, it was similar to what everyone had thought. The two protectors were labeled as cowards, but this was not something to be ashamed of in the world of cultivation. If it were any other cultivator, they would have run for their lives. Compared to what had happened, no one would care. They didn't dare to mention being controlled by Hichuan. They kept this matter to themselves. Otherwise, if Murong Fu knew, he would definitely kill them both. The act of being a spy in the Heavenly Sword sect was not allowed. He is above the fourth rank earth realm. And you're not too sure about the details. After Murong Fu and the elders heard the left protector's story, they were extremely shocked. It had only been a few years since the spiritual energy in the great world had been restored, but someone had actually cultivated so quickly. This situation was beyond their scope of understanding. It's a good thing that the seventh elder sacrificed himself for us. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to come back alive. The left protector acted as if he still had a lingering fear and made the story very realistic. Just who is this Duki? He's actually able to develop his Tao Foundation under such circumstances and become an expert at the lower realm. Murong Fu's face was gloomy. He thought to himself he was lucky that he didn't go to the capital to find He Chuan in person. Otherwise, he might have failed without knowing the details. From the beginning to the end, this group of people had never thought the left and right protectors would lie, kneel down and beg for mercy without any dignity, and even become He Chuan spies. However, this excuse also made everyone believe the lie that the two of them had made up. I didn't expect that someone from an abandoned great world could cultivate so quickly. The first elder who had been silent before finally spoke. He Chuan's cultivation was a blessing to the human race, but it was not a good thing for the Heavenly Sword sect. After all, Shen Changyi and the seventh elder had both fallen at He Chuan's hands. If they turned hostility into friendship, the Heavenly Sword sect would lose face. However, if they didn't reconcile, Murong Fu would have to consider a lot when facing the mysterious strong man. If he wanted to kill them, he had to be fully prepared. Otherwise, if he let a powerhouse above level 4 of the Earth Realm escape, it would be like buying a time bomb, which might explode at an unexpected time. Therefore, the elders of the Heavenly Sword sect and Murong Fu were in a dilemma as to what they should do. I heard that the demon cultivators from the bottom of the ocean in the freezing cold land suddenly appeared and swept through the three islands. If internal strife were to break out in the human race now, it would probably be a disaster for the entire human race. The second elder, who was the oldest among them, suddenly stood out. His words were a way out for the heavenly sword sect. They also needed a way out. Humans and demons were destined to be unable to live in peace. Now, the demon race was taking advantage of the weakness of the human race and wanted to exterminate the human race. Moreover, they were in a great world, and the alliance in the new world had probably already fallen apart. Even if they did not add insult to injury, the other sects would not help. 
thinking about it, the risk was really too great. Even the sect leader Murong Fu did not dare to take it. But Shen Changyi and the seventh elder's deaths were they going to let it go just like that? Murong Fu let out a long sigh in his heart. A sense of powerlessness welled up in his heart. Ever since he became the sect leader, it was rare to see such a sullen scene. The Cultivation Alliance It was made up of the top ten cultivation gangs in the New World. The sect leaders were all above the fourth-rank Earth realm. I heard that the reason why the demons in the freezing cold sea are so arrogant is that a big demon is about to break through to the fifth level of the earth realm. If he can survive the nine purple thunderbolts, the human race will be in danger. One of the sect leaders said. Back when the human race was at its peak, the demon race was weak and unable to survive on the continent. Helplessly, they began to migrate to extremely distant lands of extreme cold. The reason why the demon race had been hiding for hundreds of years was that they were accumulating their strength in the dark and waiting for an opportunity to take revenge. When the nine prefectures' cauldrons sealed the world god, the spiritual energy in the central plains was quickly depleted. However, the demon race in the freezing cold land profited from this misfortune. Although the spiritual energy was also gradually disappearing, there was still a trace of spiritual energy left. The demons took this opportunity to distance themselves from the human race on the path of cultivation. On the other hand, Sacred Soul Island, Yenhuang Island, and Floating Jade Island also had human rogue cultivators, but they were not very united. They often fought over cultivation resources, resulting in the death of some human cultivators and the demon cultivators of Floating Jade Island. Furthermore, the three islands had fallen one after another. The demon race would advance here sooner or later. The key was that there was still a world god who had disappeared. When they heard that a great demon was about to break through, the sect leaders present all looked troubled. If it weren't for the fact the various demon race fought for themselves, the human race would probably have long since ceased to exist. As the demon race was different, the competition between the races was intense. Everyone wanted to become the ancient demon king, and no one was willing to submit to the other. Even the most harmonious floating jade island was actually the same in secret. The human race and the demon race were fighting openly and secretly, and the various races of the demon race were also fighting, which gave the human race some breathing space. It's very difficult to break through the fifth-rank earth realm. If you are not fully prepared, you will most likely die. I think this powerful monster will most likely fail. Murong Fu said in a deep voice. However, no one would believe this. If he wasn't 80% sure, why would the great demon release the news? Murong Fu's words were just to comfort people's hearts and not let them panic too much, in case the alliance fell apart early. In the face of life and death, there would definitely be people who would retreat. There were even some people who would surrender to the enemy to ensure their safety and choose to live on in a humble manner. If the Cultivator Alliance was backstabbed, then the hope of victory would be even slimmer. If it really doesn't work, we'll completely give up on the new world and put all our energy into the great world. After all, the Central Plains is a treasured land nurtured by heaven and earth. The heavenly root will preserve the bloodline of the human race. Murong Fu continued. The great world's rules limited the demon's abilities. However, in that case, he would have to give up on the new world completely. That place had also been opened up for hundreds of years, and many humans had followed there. After a long period of reproduction, the population of the new world was quite large. Although the spiritual energy was not as abundant as in the current great world, it did not affect ordinary people. Many people were not willing to return to the great world. If they were to give up, it would be the blood of tens of millions of people. It was not realistic to bring all of them back to the great world, so the current plan was a little uncertain. However, the news from Floating Jade Island was not very optimistic. Chapter, 378 Bang! 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 The array that surrounded Floating Jade Palace exploded into fine powder one after another, scattering in the air. Even the tightly shut bronze door cracked and collapsed under the impact of this powerful force. Wang Meng disappeared in an instant, and the formation was annihilated. The magnificent and glorious floating jade palace became a dilapidated palace. 
clan leader. Several exclamations sounded at the same time in the dust. The human clan's rogue cultivators flew to the front of the floating jade palace and reached out to catch the tattered robes that were flying in the air. They were the remains left behind by Wang Meng after his soul was destroyed and his corpse was gone. Clan leader. Yi Xiu took Wang Meng's robe with both hands. The heavens were filled with sorrow. Kill the left protector and avenge clan leader Wang Meng. Ao Bai, the clan leader of the Eagle Clan, was also shocked by Wang Meng's actions. He let out an angry roar, drew his sword from his waist, and took the lead in rushing towards the broken floating jade palace. Charge! Kill the traitors! We'll take revenge for the clan leader! Under the lead of Ao Bai, the tens of thousands of rogue cultivators who had surrounded the palace rushed into the palace like a flood. The doors and windows were all shattered, and the walls were filled with cracks. The two figures on the stage gradually became clear in the light. Protector, what do we do now? What's wrong? Xiong Tian asked anxiously as he lowered his head and looked at the left protector who was sitting cross-legged on the ground. Don't worry. This Wang Meng is indeed a hero. Unfortunately, although he guessed that I was seriously injured, he was still one step too slow. The left protector, who was sitting cross-legged on the ground, suddenly smiled. He looked at the dense crowd of wandering cultivators and said. Before the left protector could finish his words, the entire floating jade island suddenly turned dark purple. The floating jade array had been completely eroded by the blood array. The bodies of the rogue cultivators who had rushed into the floating jade palace suddenly exploded. Flesh and blood flew everywhere. The bodies of a few more individual cultivators exploded, and the strange explosions continued. More and more wandering cultivators turned into blood mists and floated into the sky. The tens of thousands of rogue cultivators who had been rushing madly toward the palace looked around in panic. They were likely to be the next ones to explode. All the rogue cultivators fighting spirits and burning anger were extinguished in an instant. The aura of death seeped deep into their bones, causing everyone to shiver. Everyone, look! What's that? The rogue cultivators who had yet to enter the floating jade palace suddenly pointed at the sky and exclaimed. The voice of this eagle clan cultivator was loud and clear, almost penetrating the entire floating jade palace. It caused all the wandering cultivators, who were wrapped in the aura of death and had a dazed expressions, to look up at the same time. The human cultivators, Hai Ching, Ao Bai, the other clan leaders, and even the left protector and Xiong Tian who were sitting in the hall, all looked up at the same time. In the floating jade palace, the floating jade array that had turned purple blocked the light. In the invisible sky, a terrifying and powerful aura suddenly descended. What a despicable formation! It's sucking the blood essence and soul of living beings. A cry of alarm came from the sky. Before he could finish his words, a huge spear shadow that was a thousand feet long suddenly descended from the sky and stabbed the purple floating jade array. It was a huge spear shadow that was a few hundred meters long and several meters thick. Its entire body was black, but it was burning with flames as if the entire dome was going to be burned. It descended from the sky like a divine punishment and stabbed the purple floating jade array. Boom! It was like a thunderbolt on a clear day. However, there was no blinding light or surging true core strength. Following the explosion, the floating jade array which had been dyed purple by the blood array cracked. Crackle. Pitch black cracks, with the place where the long spear pierced as the center, were like a winding poisonous snake, quickly spreading in all directions in a formation that enveloped the floating jade island. In an instant it was covered with pitch black cracks, crisscrossing each other in a ferocious and terrifying manner. The giant spear that stabbed into the formation was suddenly pulled back. The floating jade array, which was already covered in hideous cracks, collapsed completely as if it had lost its pillar with the removal of the flaming spear. The originally indestructible floating jade array, which even the combined efforts of 8,000 beast cultivators could not shake, did not even last two seconds under the shadow of the flaming spear that suddenly descended from the sky. Whether it was the tens of thousands of individual cultivators inside and outside the floating jade palace, the people who were running away in a panic, or even the 8,000 seabed demon cultivators outside the floating jade island, 
At this moment, all of them looked up in shock and disbelief at the broken floating jade array, which turned into specks of crystal light and gradually dissipated between the heaven and earth. How is that possible? In the floating jade palace, the left protector, who was originally full of confidence, looked up at the floating jade array in disbelief. He revealed a bitter expression and muttered to herself in shock. How did this happen? On the shore of the floating jade island, the disdain and smugness on Li Huang's face had disappeared and was replaced by a dumbfounded look as he looked at the shattered floating jade array and the purple light pillar. Behind Li Huang, the original formation had already dispersed. The 8000 C demon cultivators looked up with pale faces and blood at the corners of their mouths. They were equally shocked and in disbelief. Who is it? Indeed who is it? In the ocean 500 miles away from the floating jade island, Sixth Yan's expression was gloomy, and the veins on his neck were bulging. He looked at the floating jade island and roared. Behind him, the white-robed Song Chang's eyes flickered as he stared at the void. He seemed to have noticed something and was silently thinking of countermeasures. The million demonic cultivators that had formed countless small formations and formed a huge formation had also dispersed. Airwaves surged out and set off countless waves in the surroundings as if expressing some kind of anger. As for the millions of scattered demonic cultivators, although they were not as injured as the 8,000 demonic cultivators on the north shore of the floating jade island, their faces were pale with fear and doubt as they looked up into the void. All the living beings within a thousand miles looked up at the sky. The purple crystal light floating in the sky looked up at the place where the flame spear had disappeared. As the purple light faded, the sun once again shone on the earth, restoring the light of the floating jade island. Long live the king, your divine might is like a prison. The tens of thousands of rogue cultivators inside and outside floating jade palace knelt on the ground and kowtowed. They shouted. In the hearts of the floating jade rogue cultivators, the only person who could show his divine might and save all living beings at the moment of life and death on the floating jade island was the supreme, godlike king in their hearts. Countless purple crystals gradually disappeared, and a pitch black void passage appeared. Standing in front of the void passage was not the man in the crown and dragon robe that they had expected. Instead, it was an ordinary looking young man in a worn out robe. The man's face was filled with doubt. He held his spear behind his back and looked down at the tens of thousands of rogue cultivators prostrating before him. He smiled awkwardly. Not the king. Outside the floating jade palace, the rogue cultivators who were prostrating on the ground realized the difference and shouted in disappointment. A human. Could someone have broken through the shackles and surpassed clan leader Wang Meng? Chapter 379 Impossible. I've never heard of such a person in the human clan. It's probably a certain lord who traveled here and couldn't stand the vicious methods of those demon cultivators, so he took action. Perhaps he's a friend of the king's. Knowing that our floating jade is in trouble, he especially comes to help. It seems that our floating jade can be saved. Very quickly, the identity of the man who appeared in the sky was widely discussed, and there were many speculations. No matter what they guessed, in the hearts of floating jade island rogue cultivators, this expert who could break floating jade island array with a single spear strike was on their side and had come to save them. However, what they didn't know was that while they were discussing, the man floating in the void had shifted his gaze away from them and looked toward the north. He looked around the vast sea with a puzzled expression. This is a freezing cold land. I've actually returned to freezing cold land. Didn't old Zhao say that the passageway would lead to the Qing Emperor's treasure pavilion? The young man said in disbelief as he looked at the boundless Black Sea. The young man who had suddenly appeared and broken the floating jade array was Gu Mingzhou. At that time, Gu Mingzhou wanted to look at the treasure pavilion left behind by the Qing Emperor. It was also Zhao Qianquan's wish. Neither Gu Mingzhou nor Zhao Qianquan had expected they would not see the treasure pavilion after flying for three days and three nights along the void passageway. Gu Mingzhou, who had just walked out of the void passageway, found that there was a formation under his feet that could forcibly absorb the blood essence of living creatures, and it was working. Therefore, he immediately broke it. It was not until he broke the formation that he realized he was not in the Qing Emperor's treasure pavilion. 
Instead, he had returned to the original great world. He was confused and could not figure it out, so he could only ask Xiao Qinkuan. I reckon that the information was wrong. There is no such thing as the Qin Emperor's treasure pavilion. However, since you've returned, it's better to hide your identity. Su Fengyu is still in this world, and you may not be his match now. Zhao Qinkuan's explanation cleared up Gu Mingzhou's doubts. He had only heard about the existence of the Qin Emperor's treasure pavilion from He Yuliang. Shang Wanfei and the others had no idea about it, so it was impossible to tell whether it was true or not. But now, Gu Mingzhou had already determined that the news was fake. After all, the passage was not the treasure pavilion, but a freezing cold land. The greater the hope, the greater the disappointment. Originally, he had hoped to obtain treasures from the Qin Emperor's treasure pavilion to use against Su Fengyu. Now that his hope had been shattered, he naturally felt a little sad. However, this kind of sadness did not last for long. It only lasted for a moment. His mind was focused on the formation that he had just broken. The reason why he decisively broke the formation was that he thought it was a defense set up to protect the treasure pavilion, and also because he sensed a powerful suction force from the formation. It was somewhat similar to the heavenly devouring technique he cultivated, but it was more brutal and domineering than the heavenly devouring technique. It could directly and forcefully devour living souls. For example, Su Fengyu's method of absorbing rogue cultivators from Tianling had made Gu Mingzhou wary, so he made a move decisively. This large array with a suction force was exactly the same as the method Su Fengyu had used earlier. The relationship between the two was probably not simple, and this large array was likely to have come from Su Fengyu. Gu Mingzhou could not help but take such a guess seriously. If this formation was really related to Su Fengyu, then Gu Mingzhou had to save them. After confirming where he was, Gu Mingzhou looked down at the countless creatures kneeling on the ground. If not for Gu Mingzhou's decisive action, these living beings would probably have turned to dust, their souls scattered, and their bodies and cultivation destroyed. The method of setting up a formation was simply cruel to the extreme. It was more similar to Su Fengyu's style and methods of doing things in his impression, and it made the guess in his heart more and more real. Could it be floating Jade Island, one of the three great rogue cultivator islands? Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself. He had been to Yenhuang Island and had some understanding of Sacred Soul Island. The wide island beneath his feet was not the same as Yenhuang Island he had been to, but it did not match Sacred Soul Island either. So, the only island left was floating Jade Island. Of course, he was only guessing and not sure. In that case, let's check it out first. Gu Mingzhou's spiritual sense overflowed, instantly enveloping the island beneath his feet. With Gu Mingzhou's current cultivation, he could use his spiritual sense to check the island, although he could barely do it. Just as he released his spiritual sense, everyone in the floating jade palace knelt on the ground and kowtowed in thanks. The left protector, who had been sitting in front of the hall, slowly stood up. He wanted to escape from the back of the palace with Xiong Tian while no one was paying attention. Now that the floating jade array had been broken and a mysterious mighty figure had appeared, it was obvious that the situation was over. If he stayed here any longer, he would have been killed by the tens of thousands of wandering cultivators even if the one million demonic cultivators managed to attack the island. Traitors were always hated by the world, no matter the reason. Thus, the left protector had no choice but to flee. From the moment he stood up, a pair of eyes had already locked onto him. When the left protector turned around with Xiong Tian, an angry shout rang out in the hall. It's too late to escape now. The dazzling sword light soared into the sky. Whoosh! The sword intent rose and illuminated the palace. A sharp sword rose from the crowd, emitting countless sword gleams and attracting everyone's attention. The one who attacked was the new clan leader of the human clan's rogue cultivators, Yi Xiu. Yi Xiu and Wang Meng had a very close relationship. Their love was as deep as water, and they were as close as brothers. The moment Wang Meng had broken through the palace's protective array and chosen to self-destruct, Yi Xiu's goal had been to kill the left protector and avenge Wang Meng. If it were not for the left protector and Xiong Tian's betrayal, 
seizing the core of the floating jade array and sealing the floating jade palace, the rogue cultivator of floating jade would not have been in danger, and Wang Meng might not have died. The three-foot-long sword in Yi Xiu's hand was originally Wang Meng's. The sword slashed across. Gu Mingzhou, who was in the sky, quickly understood the situation on floating jade island as his spiritual sense spread. Then, he sent his spiritual sense into the mind of a low-rank cultivator to understand the entire floating jade island. The demon cultivators at the bottom of the sea suddenly attacked and attacked two islands in succession, directly destroying the islands. Now, he turned his attention to the remaining floating jade island. As for the strongest expert of floating jade island, the island master had chosen to go into seclusion and had yet to appear. Such a situation caused floating jade island to be without a leader for many years. Disputes were endless on the island, and there were undercurrents surging among the various clans. However, floating jade island's tens of thousands of rogue cultivators should be able to withstand the attacks of the underwater demonic cultivators with the help of the floating jade array. To everyone's surprise, the demonic cultivators at the bottom of the sea were well prepared. Not only could they release the blood array that transformed the floating jade array, but they could also make the left protector of floating jade island rebel at the critical moment and seize control of the floating jade array. The consequences would have been unimaginable if Gu Mingzhou had not appeared in time to break the floating jade array. He didn't pay any attention to the battle in the floating jade palace below. Instead, he turned his attention to the north. According to Gu Mingzhou's understanding, the demon cultivators in the underwater freezing cold land did not leave their homes and never surfaced. Even two years ago, when cultivators and individual cultivators were constantly fighting, they had always ignored it. Chapter 380 But now, it had suddenly appeared and started a thunderous attack. It had destroyed the Yan Huang Islands and the Sacred Soul Islands, killing countless people. His actions were brutal, but his actions were very strange. In particular, when they attacked the floating jade island, the blood array they released corroded floating jade array. The aura was very similar to Su Fengyu's, which made him even more certain that the sudden appearance of these underwater beast cultivators was definitely related to Su Fengyu. Since Su Fengyu was able to threaten the entire world, the battle on floating jade island was naturally insignificant. Moreover, what was happening on the floating jade island was their internal affairs. It was not convenient for Gu Mingzhou to interfere. Instead, the one million beast cultivators who were hiding on floating jade island and were related to Su Fengyu were more important to him. After thinking about it, Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate at all and quickly flew towards the north shore of floating jade island. The 8,000 demonic cultivators who had been blocked by floating jade array once again charged onto the shore. Gu Mingzhou also discovered there were millions of underwater beast cultivators, only a few miles away from floating jade island. A million demonic cultivators were pressing down. More than half of the bear and snake clans stationed on the north shore had fled after the strange arrival. Even the 10,000 rogue cultivators left had long lost their will to fight. Even the left protector of the floating jade island had betrayed them. They could not see any hope at all, so how could they still have any fighting spirit? Facing 8,000 underwater beast cultivators, they were naturally defeated. Without waiting for the million demonic cultivators to arrive, Li Huang led the 8,000 demonic cultivators to attack the shore. Soon, the north shore was completely occupied. Countless rogue cultivators were killed, and even more fled. Although Han Yu's will to fight did not diminish, he was also powerless. Looking at the north shore that was gradually being occupied, he finally turned around and fled. The battle situation was already very clear. It was not something he could turn around. If he stayed here, he would die without a doubt. He could only retreat for now and make plans. Li Huang, who had always regarded Han Yu as a thorn in his side, did not think so. If not for the sudden appearance of Han Yu's reinforcements, the demon cultivators would have already conquered the North Shore. They would still choose to retreat. However, after watching 2,000 of their brothers die helplessly on the spot, Li Huang hated Han Yu to the core. How could he let him escape so easily? Han Yu, you can't escape. Seeing that Han Yu was about to turn around and leave, Li Huang did not hesitate and leaped up. 
In mid-air, Li Huang opened his hands in front of his chest. Suddenly, a broad axe appeared in his hands, and he brandished it in the air with great might. As if it was going to split the sky, it suddenly slashed at Han Yu. He was going to sacrifice Han Yu's blood to the army. In an instant, blood splattered everywhere. The few itinerant cultivators in front of Han Yu were turned into vengeful spirits under the axe. Han Yu knew the other party would not let him go, so he no longer chose to retreat. He rushed to the front of the crowd, and the long whip in his hand lashed out like a snake, instantly hitting the axe. A sharp sound of friction resounded in the air. A sneer appeared on Li Huang's face as he spun the broad axe in his right hand in the air, instantly binding the long whip. Then, he raised his left hand and chopped down with the sharp broad axe. It's you. The main palace of floating Jade Island. The three-foot-long sword glowed with a dazzling light. The sword radiance flickered and the sword shadow was long. It illuminated the broken floating jade palace with brilliance as it attacked the left protector. Grieving over Wang Meng's death, Yi Xiu didn't hold back and directly used his strongest attack. Even if he wasn't his opponent, he would never give up. You're looking for death. The left protector, who was about to leave with Xiong Tian, was furious. His spiritual energy howled as he struck out with a single palm. The wind from the palm flew out from the left protector's right hand and attacked the hull. After flying dozens of meters away from his palm, it expanded to the size of a roof and instantly collided with Yi Xiu's sword. Bang! Yi Xiu, who had attacked aggressively, was suddenly sent flying, ruthlessly falling into the crowd. Defeated with a single palm. The difference between the two was too great. Humph. The left protector's pale face turned even paler. He snorted coldly and turned around to walk toward the main palace with Xiong Tian. He had only taken two steps when hundreds of rogue cultivators swarmed out of the hall. Lin Mu of the Leopard Clan was in the lead. Left protector, since you've chosen to betray us, you must bear the consequences. Lin Mu's gaze was cold, not giving the left protector a chance to answer. The hundreds of Leopard Clan cultivators behind Lin Mu surrounded the left protector and Xiong Tian. As their spiritual energy flickered, countless weapons slashed out at the same time. You think you can stop me? The left protector showed no fear in the face of the hundreds of unaffiliated cultivators. He suddenly attacked when countless weapons were approaching. A vast sea of spiritual energy gushed out of the left protector's body, shooting in all directions. It was like a sharp sword, and wherever it passed, blood would spray into the air. The hundreds of frenzied rogue cultivators fell to the ground with injuries. The left protector's cultivation base was evident. Left protector, now that things have come to this, you should just surrender. The tens of thousands of rogue cultivators outside floating Jade Palace quickly surrounded the left protector and Xiong Tian. After being blocked by Yi Xiao and Lin Mu, the left protector lost her best chance to escape. Left protector, surrender. You've already failed. Surrendering is your best choice. Since you have chosen to betray the king, you must be punished. The dozens of extreme mortal realm cultivators in the hall looked at the left protector. You think you're worthy of me surrendering? The left protector slowly retracted her right hand, glanced at Lin Mu, and then ignored him. If you were at your peak, we might not be able to stop you. But you are injured now. Lin Mu shouted. Even if I'm injured, I'm not someone you can hope to reach. The left protector stood in front of Xiong Tian without any fear. Unrepentant. As you wish. A halberd in Ao Bai's hand suddenly appeared out of thin air. His spiritual energy surged out as he pointed at the left protector. Although Hai Qing was old, he was still full of energy. Without a word, he strode to Ao Bai's back and pulled out a huge machete from his waist. Following closely behind, Dozens of rogue cultivators from various races surrounded their bodies with true core strength and drew their weapons, ready to fight. Lin Mu, who was standing behind the left protector in the depths of the hall, drew his sword and clenched it. The battle began at the first touch. Ha ha ha. You're all underestimating me. The left protector had changed so quickly that everyone turned to look at her in confusion. If we don't make a move now, when will we? 
At this moment, a sinister voice sounded. A cold light shone in the hall. The thick and broad saber was filled with killing intent as it streaked across the sky. He wasn't pointing at the left protector, but at A.O. Bai who was standing at the forefront. Be careful. Lin Mu quickly reminded A.O. Bai. As soon as the left protector opened his mouth, A.O. Bai had already sensed the danger and dodged it. However, he was still a step too slow and his left shoulder was cut by the sharp blade. Blood spurted out. The bloodied left arm was thrown high into the air and quickly fell to the ground. Under the gaze of tens of thousands of wandering cultivators, it rolled to the side. Die. A.O. Bai's expression was ferocious. Without caring about the injury on his left shoulder, he brandished his silver halberd and stabbed Hai Qin. The one who suddenly cut off Ao Bai's left arm was the old Hai Qin. Floating Jade Palace fell into silence again. No one would have thought that after the left protector and Xiong Tian betrayed them, clan leader Ao Hai would also betray them and severely injure Ao Bai. The left protector was very calculative. After losing the two powerful rogue cultivators, Wang Meng and Ao Bai, it was really hard to keep the left protector. Chapter 381 why? Lin Mu asked in disbelief. He couldn't accept this result. Hai Qin's wrinkled face remained calm in the face of Lin Mu's scolding. Instead, he used both of his hands to swing upwards, parrying Ao Bai's silver halberd. Hai Qin dashed toward Ao Bai as fast as he could. His blade whistled through the air as if he was going to kill Ao Bai. If Ao Bai were to die, the bear clan leader and the left protector of the seahorse clan leader would lose their strongest opponent. Out of the remaining tens of thousands of rogue cultivators, more than half of them would probably choose to defect. The dozens of extreme mortal realm cultivators who had just recovered from the shock naturally knew this. Seeing Hai Qing attack again, they immediately moved to stop him. Lin Mu, who was on the opposite side, also rushed over anxiously, wanting to help. Unfortunately, the left protector had clearly anticipated this. The left protector made the first move, blocking everyone. Xiong Tian immediately stopped Lin Mu. In the main palace, the situation of the battle changed once again. Spiritual energy shot out, and the battle began. Almost all of the mortal realm individual cultivators were entangled and stopped, unable to help Ao Bai. As for the individual cultivators below the mortal realm, how could they stop Hai Qin? They were forced back by the two blades. Hai Qin didn't stop. He leaped up and approached Ao Bai. He raised his broad saber high above his head and slashed down. The blade flickered and moved extremely fast. As for the heavily injured Ao Bai, he was unable to dodge and could only wave his halberd to block. However, how could Ao Bai, who was extremely weak, resist? Whoosh! The silver-white halberd was instantly knocked away by the big saber and flew across the sky, falling to the side. However, the huge blade didn't seem to be affected at all. Instead, it continued to fall towards Ao Bai. Ao Bai was unable to dodge or defend. Without any support, he knew that he was going to die. But he stopped struggling and stared at Hai Qin with hatred, waiting for the blade to fall. Just as the sharp blade was about to behead Ao Bai, a cry suddenly came from beneath his feet. The voice was clear and sweet. However, it also contained a pressure that caused one to shiver. On the northern shore of the floating jade island, the sharp broad axe that flickered with a cold aura finally stopped three inches away from Han Yu's face, unable to advance any further. It wasn't that Li Huang didn't want to cut him down, nor was it that he was merciful enough to let Han Yu off. Instead, it was because Li Huang's body, which was about to land on the ground, was unable to take even half a step forward. The broad axe in his hand couldn't move an inch. Li Huang stopped in mid-air uncontrollably. An inexplicable gust of wind suddenly attacked Han Yu's back. Li Huang, who weighed over 90 kilograms, was sent flying backward despite his still body. The strong wind carried a huge force, causing Li Huang to stagger back dozens of meters as if he had been blown away by the strange wind. Who is it? Who dared to before Li Huang could finish his sentence, he stopped abruptly. He raised his head in disbelief, his face filled with shock. 
It was not only Li Huang, but also Han Yu, who had escaped death, the remaining hundreds of floating Jade Islands rogue cultivators, and the thousands of underwater beast cultivators who were gradually surrounding them. At this moment, they all raised their heads, their eyes filled with doubt. The young man placed his hands behind his back and gently floated down from the void. Long time no see, stupid shark. The position where the man landed was very accurate. He was not close to the rogue cultivators or the beast cultivators, but just between the two sides. He looked at Li Huang with a smile and nodded. Li Huang was different from the other rogue cultivators and beast cultivators. He was shocked. It was not only because he had fallen from the sky, but also because the terrifying lord in the sea of beast cultivators had heard of it more than once. Every time his lord mentioned this person's name, it was filled with infinite killing intent, making him tremble all over. Gu Mingzhou, you're actually still alive. Li Huang's shock turned into joy. In fact, there was an inexplicable sense of excitement. Others might not know, but Li Huang was extremely clear about it. Gu Mingzhou's position in his lord's heart was very deep. If he could capture Gu Mingzhou and present him to his lord. Thinking of this, the joy in Li Huang's heart turned from excitement to excitement. He looked at Gu Mingzhou with desire and greed. I didn't expect you to still remember my name after such a long time. Gu Mingzhou's hands were still behind his back as he looked at Li Huang with a calm expression. The change in Li Huang's expression piqued his interest. Gu Mingzhou spoke very calmly, but he did not notice that when Li Huang called out Gu Mingzhou's name, Han Yu and the hundreds of unaffiliated cultivators standing behind him could not help but clench their weapons. Since the person was acquainted with Li Huang, it would be fine if they were enemies. However, if they were old friends, then they were enemies. Even if Gu Mingzhou knew, he would not care at all. Gu Mingzhou, who had reached the earth realm, had improved both his cultivation and state of mind. He didn't even care about the cultivators who had reached the mortal realm, let alone these small fries. He was now extremely interested in Li Huang, who could barely be considered an old friend. He recalled that he was the one who was wanted in the sea. Back then, Li Huang had chased after him and fled in all directions before finally leaving the sea area. At that time, Gu Mingzhou was insignificant like an ant in front of the tiger shark in the extreme human realm. He had already transcended the mortal realm and entered the earth realm in just two years. Li Huang, on the other hand, did not improve. He was still a beginner-level mortal realm demon cultivator. In front of Gu Mingzhou, he was insignificant, like an ant. Fate was really interesting at times. Li Huang's heart palpitated a little under Gu Mingzhou's gaze. The joy that had just welled up in his heart was instantly swept away. It was only then that he suddenly realized that the current Gu Mingzhou was no longer the Gu Mingzhou that he had chased and fled from. To be able to make his terrifying master worry about him, and to be able to stop his attack so easily just now, was enough to show that the other party was powerful. Of course. I remember. What are you doing here? Li Huan swallowed a mouthful of saliva and said nervously while tightly holding his broad axe. The previous excitement disappeared, leaving only panic. He could clearly sense an extremely strong and dangerous aura from the other party. If you can appear here, why can't I? You looked at me with an interesting gaze just now. What's going on? Gu Mingzhou slowly approached Li Huang. What do you mean by what happened? Li Huang subconsciously retreated as he cautiously stared at the person who had arrived. He knew what Gu Mingzhou was asking but did he dare to say it? He would definitely not dare to mention anything about his lord. Why are you underwater beast cultivators here on rogue cultivator islands instead of staying underwater? Where did that blood array come from? Gu Mingzhou looked at Li Huang with a calm expression. As he walked closer, he asked softly. I don't understand what you're talking about. Upon hearing Gu Mingzhou mention the blood array, Li Huang could not help but tremble and quickly shook his head. Is that so? Gu Mingzhou's gaze instantly turned cold as he stared at Li Huang. The corners of his mouth curled up slightly. From his appearance to the mention of the blood array, Li Huang's performance had been captured in his eyes. Chapter 382 It was obvious that Li Huang knew a lot of things, but he was unwilling to say them. 
However, Gu Mingzhou had a hundred ways to make him speak. Stop him. Li Huang sensed danger from Gu Mingzhou's gaze. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to approach, he leaped into the air without hesitation, turned around, and ran without stopping. Hearing the commander's order, thousands of beast cultivators raised their weapons and rushed toward Gu Mingzhou, trying to stop him. Gu Mingzhou's gaze was fixed on Li Huang, not caring about the demon cultivators who were charging at him. Because he disappeared in an instant. Li Huang, who had just flown out of the shore, was suspended in midair. His body was directly fixed in the void. Gu Mingzhou appeared silently. You think you can leave? Gu Mingzhou's expression remained calm, and the corners of his mouth curled up slightly. As he spoke, he extended his right hand and gently placed it on Li Huang's head. What are you doing? Li Huang cried out anxiously in shock. Unfortunately, his body, which was floating in the air, could not move at all. Since you won't tell me, I'll have to do it myself. Spiritual energy surged out of Gu Mingzhou's right hand that was on top of Li Huang's head as if it had entered Li Huang's head. With Gu Mingzhou's current cultivation, he was much stronger than Li Huang. However, his spiritual sense, which had yet to transform, was still very weak. It was fine to corrode the sea of consciousness of low-level cultivators, but it was still extremely dangerous to corrode the sea of consciousness of mortal realm cultivators. However, he had no intention of eroding Li Huang's sea of consciousness. He was only trying to scare him. This was because he could only obtain what he wanted by making Li Huang feel fear. I'll say it, I'll really say it. Li Huang's face turned pale as he begged for mercy in a panic. Let's talk about the source of the blood array and its use. Gu Mingzhou raised his right hand slightly, still three inches above Li Huang's head, and asked. That blood array is Li Huang quickly replied. Before Li Huang could finish his sentence, a dense killing intent suddenly came from the distance. Kill! Shouts rang out. On the north shore of floating Jade Island, the seawater churned, and huge waves rose up into the sky. Millions of underwater beast cultivators emerged from the waves one after another and madly rushed toward the shore of the floating Jade Island. The army of a million demonic cultivators had arrived at the floating jade. Gu Mingzhou looked at the millions of demon cultivators who were filled with killing intent and madly rushed up the floating jade. He could not help but be slightly moved. If he didn't make a move, floating jade island would probably be destroyed, and tens of thousands of rogue cultivators would be killed or injured. At the thought of this, Gu Mingzhou turned back to look at Li Huang and slowly retracted his right hand. In the end, he decided to give up on questioning Li Huang for the time being and stop the one million demonic cultivators first. The most important thing was to save them. Just as Gu Mingzhou retracted his right hand, a bird's cry suddenly rang out from within the floating jade island. The voice was clear and sweet. However, it also contained a pressure, its power was really strong, causing one to shiver. Following that, the giant Kuanpeng that blotted out the sun suddenly rose up from the floating jade island and flew into the clouds. It spread its wings, exactly covering the floating jade island and flapping in the sky. The wind blew, the clouds retreated, and the sky changed color. It was an extremely violent wind, and the airflow contained countless elemental energy. They descended from the sky and landed on the ground like sharp swords, revealing their sharpness and sweeping the floating jades. The powerful qi waves were like sharp weapons, rapidly spreading out and sweeping away the floating jades as if they were harvesting. Whoosh! Everything on the floating jade island, as long as they were above the ground, was cut off by this gust of wind and instantly turned into fine powder. This was especially true for the underwater beast cultivators who had come from the floating jade island. In an instant, nearly 10,000 demonic cultivators were cut in half at the wastes. Blood spurted out as they died on the spot. Fortunately, this gust of wind seemed to have been specially identified and did not hurt the floating jade rogue cultivator. It was only aimed at the demonic cultivators at the bottom of the sea. Even so, the degree of blood was chilling. It was precisely because of this unyielding method that the million-strong naval force that was charging madly at the floating jade island stopped in the sea and did not dare to cross the lightning pool. The smell of blood permeated the floating jade island, 
fresher and more pungent than before. Gu Mingzhou's gaze swept past the corpses on the ground and finally stopped at the sky. The light gradually dimmed, and the giant peng bird that seemed to cover the sky quickly shrank in size. It descended from the sky and whizzed over. Kuen Peng. Gu Mingzhou looked at the giant bird that was flying over and shouted. The Lord of Floating Jade Island was the most secretive of them all, Kuen Peng. The sudden appearance of the giant bird naturally made him think of Kuen Peng. However, Gu Mingzhou had never seen a Kuen Peng bird before, nor did he know the Floating Jade Island Lord. How is that possible? Master clearly said that he was trapped. Li Huang appeared to be extremely nervous. Even though he was confined in a void and unable to move, he still could not stop trembling. Two figures flew over from the sea and landed on Gu Mingzhou's left and right. They surrounded him and stared at him. Huh, it's really like I've worn out my iron shoes in a long search, but I found it without any effort. The burly man looked at Gu Mingzhou and laughed as if he didn't see Kuen Peng flying over. The burly man faced the man in white from a distance. He merely fanned himself and looked at Gu Mingzhou in silence. Sixth Yen Gu Mingzhou turned to the burly man and said. Ha ha ha. You didn't expect us to meet again, did you? Sixth Yen didn't care about the approaching Kuen Peng at all. Instead, he seemed to want to reminisce with Gu Mingzhou and spoke with a smile. Gu Mingzhou didn't answer Sixth Yan's question. Instead, he looked at the man in white. Both Li Huang and Sixth Yan had interacted with Gu Mingzhou before, but Zhou had never seen the white-robed man before. Furthermore, his cultivation was not any weaker than Sixth Yan's. How may I address you, fellow Daoist? Gu Mingzhou's gaze finally stopped on the man in white and he asked softly. The white-robed man didn't stand on ceremony. He closed the folding fan in his hand and cupped his hand slightly. Song Chang. So it's protector Song Chang. Gu Mingzhou said, suddenly enlightened. Although he didn't know the white-robed man, Song Chang, he still had some understanding of the various forces in the land of extreme cold. The Samsara Hall is gone, what protectors? I'm just a person running around now. Song Chang shook his head and said with a sorrowful expression. Gu Mingzhou didn't feel conflicted. Instead, he turned around and looked at Sixth Yen again. I didn't expect all of you old acquaintances to come. Why don't the rest of you show up? Gu Mingzhou looked around at the void. Wu Ji Patriarch was dead, so he didn't know the other protectors. However, some people were existences with vivid memories. They were the people who wanted to kill him in the freezing cold land. Do you really not know, or are you just pretending? As early as three months ago, some people have already become sacrifices for my lord. What do you mean by bringing it up now? Sixth Yan's face was filled with hatred as he retorted. The sacrifice of the lord? Gu Mingzhou was just making a logical deduction. He didn't expect Sixth Yen to have such a huge reaction and place so much importance on the word sacrifice. It seems that fellow Daoist doesn't know about the changes that occurred in the sea of demonic cultivators. Song Chang saw Gu Mingzhou's expression and quickly explained. Three months ago, the sea of demonic cultivators in the depths of the freezing cold land had undergone a major bloodbath. Chapter 383 Almost all of the higher-ups of the sea had become sacrifices for his lord. There was only one force in the freezing cold land. I see. Gu Mingzhou instantly guessed the cause and effect. The lord they were talking about was most likely the Su Fengyu that Gu Mingzhou had guessed. Gu Mingzhou broke away from the pursuit, and Su Fengyu entered the freezing cold land, killing many people from the three seas and becoming king alone. If that was really the case, Su Fengyu was most likely the one who had destroyed Yenhuang Island and Sacred Soul Island, and attacked Floating Jade Island with an army of millions of underwater beast cultivators. But why did he do that? With the means that Su Fengyu had displayed at that time, if he wanted to absorb the blood essence and soul of living creatures to strengthen himself, he would have to be careful. He could directly attack and forcefully devour it. Why would he go through so much trouble to have the army of a million beast cultivators set up a blood array to absorb the blood? Gu Mingzhou could not figure it out. He had seen Su Fengyu's forceful devouring methods. 
those who were being devoured had no ability to resist at all. Su Yu's actions were much simpler and faster than the formation of a million-strong army. Could it be that Su Yu has other motives? Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. This was the only possibility that could explain why Su Yu did not use any quick methods but instead tried to command millions of demon cultivators. The Lord will be here soon, hurry up and do it. Sixth Lu was the first to attack. His right hand suddenly patted Li Huang's shoulder, directly breaking Gu Mingzhou's confinement. The spiritual energy around Sixth Lu's body surged out, and he turned into a ferocious giant lizard that was nearly a hundred meters long. It opened its bloody mouth and suddenly rushed down from the sky, trying to swallow Gu Mingzhou. However, the situation was different from what Sixth Lu had imagined. Li Huang, who had broken free from his restraints, did not attack Gu Mingzhou together with Sixth Lu. Instead, he turned around and ran away from his original spot. Sixth Lu didn't see Gu Mingzhou capture Li Huang. However, Li Huang was different. He had just experienced the strength of his opponent and knew the difference between the two of them. Sixth Lu and Song Chang couldn't match up to him. Therefore, he chose to escape. Gu Mingzhou looked at the ferocious giant lizard and Li Huang, who had broken free of his restraints and turned to escape. His face was calm, and he seemed to casually extend his right hand. The burning spear followed Gu Mingzhou's right hand and stabbed at the giant lizard. When Sixth Lu saw Gu Mingzhou brandish his spear, he was shocked. Although he had never seen Gu Mingzhou attack before, the memory of the flame spear that had suddenly descended from the sky and broken the floating jade array was still fresh in his mind. However, the spear in Gu Mingzhou's hand gave him the same feeling as the huge flaming spear shadow. At this moment, Sixth Lu realized that the other party was no longer the young man who had fled from his pursuit. It was too late to regret. He pounced extremely quickly, but Gu Mingzhou's spear was even faster. The long spear instantly pierced through the giant lizard's open mouth. Pfft. Thick blood spurted out, and Sixth Lu's round eyes dimmed. Killed in one move. There were no magnificent moves, no vast spiritual energy, and no terrifying pressure. It was so simple that he only had to raise his hand and thrust his spear. Sixth Lu didn't even have the time to regret it as he was instantly pierced by the spear and died on the spot. This was the power of the earth realm. The Tao Foundation replaced the Dantian, and the strength of the cultivator would increase by several times. There was a huge chasm between the human realm and the earth realm. Just as Zhao Qianquan had said, a cultivator could only be considered a true cultivator after reaching the earth realm. Previously, Gu Mingzhou did not understand the meaning behind it. However, after he broke through that realm and entered the earth realm, he suddenly realized the true difference between the two. The killing on the shore stopped. Regardless of whether it was the fierce and bloody underwater beast cultivators or the floating jade rogue cultivators who were desperately defending, they all stopped fighting and looked up. He looked up at the blood that was scattered in the sky, and at the hundred-meter-long giant lizard that had stopped moving. To them, this was even more shocking than when the Kuan Peng appeared and killed tens of thousands of demonic cultivators. After all, the tens of thousands of demon cultivators killed by the wind were only low-level demon cultivators. And the person Gu Mingzhou had just killed was the spiritual pillar of the million beast cultivators, the commander of the army. To capture the bandits, first, capture the king. Compared to the death of nearly 10,000 low-level demonic cultivators, the death of the commander, Sixth Yen, was obviously more important. Sixth Yen couldn't even last one round before he died. The million demonic cultivators were terrified. There were even demonic cultivators who had started to escape, and more and more of them were coming. The underwater beast cultivators who originally had the upper hand quickly retreated into the freezing cold land after Sixth Lu's death. Shouts resounded on the floating jade island again. This time, it wasn't the screams of the battle, but the excited shouts of the floating jade rogue cultivators. Gu Mingzhou did not care about the changes in the battlefield below. He expressionlessly pulled back his long spear. His spiritual energy seeped out and wiped away all the blood on the spear. Gu Mingzhou did not take another look at the giant lizard that was nearly a hundred meters long, nor did he care about Li Huang, who had escaped. Instead, 
he looked at the man in white, Song Chan. From Sixth Lu's sudden attack to Gu Mingzhou's killing, it seemed like only a short time had passed. However, his spiritual sense had been locked onto Song Chang. As long as he moved slightly, Gu Mingzhou would definitely notice immediately. A spear in the open is easy to dodge but an arrow in the dark is hard to defend against. If Song Chang took advantage of the time when Gu Mingzhou was killing Sixth Lu to launch a sneak attack from behind, although he wouldn't be too concerned, it would still be troublesome. For some reason, from the beginning to the end, Song Chang had no intention of making a move and only watched coldly from the side. It was as if he wasn't on the same side as Sixth Yen. You're pretty good. Gu Mingzhou put away his spear, looked at Song Chang, and spoke after a long while. These four simple words expressed his admiration for Song Chang. He had a good eye for people. When Gu Mingzhou had killed Sixth Yen earlier, he had deliberately left a gap behind him without any defense in order to test Song Chang. As long as the other party took the opportunity to launch a sneak attack, he would be the one to die immediately after Sixth Lu. Even though Song Chang's strength was not inferior to Sixth Yan's, Gu Mingzhou was still confident he could kill him. This was the unique confidence of a cultivator in the Earth Realm. Song Chang's face was a little pale. He looked calm, but in fact, his heart was already in turmoil. When he found out that Li Huang had been imprisoned by Gu Mingzhou, he had already guessed Gu Mingzhou's strength. It was only when Sixth Lu made his move and Gu Mingzhou's extremely calm expression made he completely give up on attacking. It was the calmness unique to the strong. It was not intentional or blind arrogance. He was extremely confident. It was this kind of confidence that made Song Chang realize the gap between him and Gu Mingzhou, and he eventually gave up. And it was his decision to save his life. Gu Mingzhou was not someone who would kill the innocent, but he would not show mercy to those who wanted to kill him. When Li Huang chased after Gu Mingzhou in the past, he did not cause him any harm. He only wanted to capture Gu Mingzhou, so he did not have much killing intent back then. However, Sixth Yen was different. This person was extremely brutal. Whether it was the pursuit back then or the sudden attack just now, Gu Mingzhou could sense his killing intent. Thus, his ending was destined. Chapter 384 Song Chang's pale face showed a bitter smile. Gu Mingzhou's praise made him feel helpless and desolate. Sixth Lu didn't have time to feel it, but Song Chang did. Thinking back to the young man who was threatened by Wu Ji Patriarch two years ago, he was nothing in front of Song Chang and could be killed with a flip of his hand. In a short period of time, the young man had already grown to become a top existence in the world. Song Chang could feel that even if the Wu Ji Patriarch returned, he might not be Gu Mingzhou's match. The only person who could suppress Gu Mingzhou now was probably the terrifying lord. Song Chang sighed in his heart and shook his head. Judging from Gu Mingzhou's display of strength and the sudden appearance of the Golden Winged Eagle, the underwater beast cultivator's attack on the island had failed. In that case, it would be better to leave directly. At the thought of this, Song Chang cupped his hand slightly at Gu Mingzhou and still did not speak. He turned around and waved at the million strong army of beast cultivators who had retreated into the sea. He ordered the retreat and flew directly to the freezing cold land. Gu Mingzhou stood with his spear in his hand and watched Song Chang leave, he did not stop him. Song Chang might know a lot of secrets, but if he was forced to stay, the millions of beast cultivators who had already retreated would probably be killed. They would not hesitate to make a comeback. Even with Gu Mingzhou and the master of the floating Jade Island holding the fort now, if they were to fight, no matter who won or lost, blood would flow like a river and corpses would cover the land. That was not something Gu Mingzhou wanted to see. He could let Song Chang go and allow the million strong demonic cultivator army to retreat, but some people were not willing to. The master of floating Jade Island was the rapidly approaching Kuen Peng. The Kuenpeng now was thousands of times smaller than when it first came out. Its wings were only a dozen meters wide when spread. However, Gu Mingzhou felt that it was more real, condensed, and powerful. It was so powerful that even he felt a sense of danger, and it was an aura that Gu Mingzhou was not familiar with. The master of floating Jade Island was a cultivator of the mortal realm. Before Gu Mingzhou could be shocked, 
just as Song Chang turned to leave, the master of Floating Jade Island arrived. However, he passed by Gu Mingzhou and transformed into his human form without any hesitation. He was tall and sturdy and wore a dragon robe. He was mighty and powerful. As soon as he appeared, he pushed out his palm without hesitation and attacked Song Chang. The palm wind was sharp and carried a great power that shook the entire void. It was as if the entire void, including Song Chang, was about to collapse. Gu Mingzhou's expression changed. Song Chang's eyes glowed red. His long robe fluttered, and his spiritual energy shot out in all directions as he pushed his palm forward to meet the attack. Bang! The thunder exploded, the wind blew and the clouds dispersed, and the sky changed color. Countless spiritual energy exploded like fireworks in front of Song Chang. A dazzling light burst out between his palms and shot into the sky. The wind and clouds moved slowly, and the world was silent. All the living beings were looking at the sky. The two palms collided, and the figure seemed to be still. Everyone held their breath. It seemed like a long time had passed, but it also seemed like an instant. In the next moment, the dazzling light gradually faded. Song Chang slowly retracted his palm without moving an inch. On the other hand, the powerful attack of the floating Jade Island Master staggered back and fell into the void. The change in the situation exceeded Gu Mingzhou's expectations and shocked the millions of living beings in Floating Jade. From the master of Floating Jade Island's rapid attack and powerful attack to Song Chang's retreat. The entire process happened in an instant. The result shocked everyone, including Gu Mingzhou. He was shocked by the aura that the Lord of the Floating Jade Island gave him. It was the aura of the Earth Realm. Not only did Song Chang resist the master of the Floating Jade Island's fierce attack, but he even had the upper hand. What shocked Gu Mingzhou, even more, was that the moment Song Chang turned around, he actually sensed Su Fengyu's aura on Song Chang. The island master of Floating Jade Island fell from the void and stopped in front of Gu Mingzhou. He stabilized his body and stood with his hands behind his back, staring at Song Chang. His long hair was a little messy, his dragon robe billowed, and he was full of killing intent. Song Chang was still as calm as ever. He opened the folding fan in his hand and fanned it slightly. His pale face turned solemn as he stared at the island master of Floating Jade Island without saying a word. The world fell into silence. When the flowing spiritual energy dispersed and the dazzling light dimmed, everyone held their breath and looked at the three people in the sky. The master of Floating Jade Island finally moved. The master of Floating Jade Island did not say anything, but his expression turned grave. Slowly spreading his arms, his dragon robe fluttered in the wind and his long hair swayed in the wind. All the spiritual energy in the world instantly gathered in front of him. With a shake of his body, he pushed out his right palm once more. It was like an eagle's cry, ringing out in the silent world. The vast spiritual energy that had originally gathered in front of the island master of Floating Jade Island suddenly condensed into a huge golden eagle as he pushed out his palms. It spread its wings, covering a hundred meters, and pounced toward Song Chang with the power of heaven and earth. Lu Youqiang, since this senior has already decided to leave, why do you want to keep me? Song Chang's face was pale as he flapped his folding fan slightly. He did not even look at the huge golden condor that was whistling over. He only stared at the lord of the floating jade island and sighed. The folding fan in Song Chang's hand was thrown at the huge golden eagle's wing. Whoosh! A strong wind suddenly rose and blew toward the huge golden eagle. The golden eagle, which had looked fierce and powerful, was blown by the wind and began to split into pieces. By the time they arrived in front of Song Chang, it had already turned into specks of light and were floating in the air. The moment you asked the left protector to seal my place of seclusion, it proved that you and I have reached a point where we can't rest until one of us is dead. The master of Floating Jade Island did not continue to attack. Instead, he stared at Song Chang and replied. With that, the master of Floating Jade Island extended his right hand into the air. Spiritual energy filled the air as the palm wind whistled past. It was invincible, but the moment it left the north bank of the floating jade, it suddenly disappeared without a trace. 
the purple-red beams of light appeared, intertwining with each other and quickly spreading. In just a short moment, it had enveloped the entire floating jade island. As far as the eye could see, these crisscrossing purple-red beams were like a cage that enveloped the entire floating jade island. Even though they didn't know what these purple-red beams were for, there was no doubt that this would be the second round of attack on the island after the million underwater demonic cultivators retreated. This attack was obviously more terrifying than the previous attack of using the blood array to erode the floating jade array. The island master of floating jade island realized this, so when Gu Mingzhou was about to let Song Chang go, he made a move and made Song Chang stay. Solve future problems? That's what you all said back then, right? Seeing that his scheme had been exposed, Song Chang did not show the slightest panic on his face. Instead, he showed a disapproving look. He looked up at the sky with a nostalgic expression on his face. I didn't participate in that incident back then. The floating Jade Island master shouted loudly. Why are you living beings always so self-righteous? You were like that back then, and you are still like that now. Do you think you can kill me with your strength? Song Chang turned a deaf ear to him. Instead, he retracted his gaze and turned to look at the lord of the floating Jade Island. What if I'm at it? Gu Mingzhou, who had remained silent, immediately made a move. Chapter 385. He was very fast. This was the first time he had used his full speed since he entered the Earth Realm. At the same time as Gu Mingzhou, the master of floating Jade Island also rushed over. The two figures formed an encirclement at the same time, surrounding Song Chang and attacking at the same time. From the moment the master of floating Jade Island attacked Song Chang when he chose to retreat, Gu Mingzhou had already begun to have doubts. As the island master of floating Jade Island, he should not let his personal desires affect the overall situation and start a war that had just been quelled again. Even if Song Chang was no match for the master of the floating Jade Island, even if the master of the floating Jade Island had entered the Earth Realm. However, in the face of an army of a million demonic cultivators, two palms were still unable to withstand four palms no matter how strong the cultivation of the island master of floating Jade Island was, once the million demonic cultivators attacked the island, it would be a very painful disaster for the floating Jade Robe cultivators. Letting Song Chang go and letting the demonic cultivator army retreat was the wisest choice. However, the master of floating Jade Island did not make such a choice. Instead, he chose to attack without any room for objection or doubt. This made Gu Mingzhou very surprised and confused. Moreover, Song Chang's performance shocked Gu Mingzhou instantly. He even began to agree with the floating Jade Island master's choice. Gu Mingzhou was convinced of his guess when the master of floating Jade Island released the purple-red light that had enveloped the entire floating Jade Island. Song Chang had no intention of retreating at all. Instead, he was prepared to launch another attack after leaving the floating Jade Island covered in the purple-red light. Through the brief conversation between Song Chang and the floating Jade Island master, Gu Mingzhou had a new understanding of Song Chang's identity. This guy was not Song Chang at all, but Su Fengyu, whom he was afraid of. This was also the main reason why Gu Mingzhou had chosen to take action immediately. Su Fengyu's terror was engraved in Gu Mingzhou's heart and bones. Even Gu Mingzhou, who had reached the Earth Realm, did not have the slightest confidence in killing him. No matter what the reason was, it was a great opportunity for Gu Mingzhou to kill the other party. Even if they were unable to kill Su Fengyu, there was still the master of floating Jade Island. The two Earth Realm cultivators working together were enough to shake the world. It was definitely enough to kill the seriously injured Su Fengyu. This was the reason why Gu Mingzhou had chosen to attack. This was an opportunity that could not be missed. The floating Jade Island Master was barehanded, but the moment he attacked, two giant golden wings suddenly appeared on his back. It spread its wings, which were dozens of meters long, and flapped them slightly at Song Chang. A strong wind immediately whistled out, stirring up the void. On the wings that appeared on the back of the master of floating Jade Island, golden feathers stood up and shot out. Whoosh! Hundreds of golden feathers shot out, shimmering with endless cold light. They drew thin cracks in the void as they attacked Song Chang. Unlike the master of the floating Jade Island, 
Gu Mingzhou's movements were not as dazzling as him. He simply raised his spear and stabbed. The burning spear instantly shot out countless spear shadows and attacked Song Chang. This was the strongest spear technique Gu Mingzhou had ever learned, and it was also the first time he had used it since he had entered the earth realm. The pitch black spear shadows formed a sharp contrast with the golden feathers. However, they were even faster and fiercer. They directly broke through the air and blocked all of Song Chang's escape routes, leaving him with no choice but to take the attack head on. Even so, Song Chang, or rather, Su Fengyu's expression did not change at all. He was calm and composed as he quietly looked at the golden feathers and pitch black spear shadows that were shooting toward him. An ant trying to shake a tree, overestimating your own strength. Su Fengyu tapped his foot lightly, and his body, which was floating in the air, started to spin. The white folding fan in his hand also started to spin instantly, and he directly pulled out a flower and waved it in front of him. A strong gust of wind rose, and wind dragons whistled out of the folding fan. It was as if ten thousand dragons had come out of their caves, roaring and rushing out endlessly. A dragon's roar resounded in the sky. As it rose and fell continuously, an endless stream of wind dragons meandered out and spread out in all directions around Su Fengyu. They instantly met the golden feathers and the black spear shadows that filled the sky. The sound of the collision exploded in the void. Whether it was the feather or the spear shadow, they exploded when they collided with the wind dragon, bursting out with bright light. The three were annihilated. In an instant, it was like countless fireworks bursting out around Su Fengyu. The dazzling light shot out in all directions, causing countless sounds below. Gu Mingzhou could sense from these dazzling lights that neither the spear shadow nor the floating Jade Island Master's feather had caused Su Fengyu any harm. Based on the current situation and the power Su Fengyu had displayed, he was clearly not someone Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master could kill. It was beyond Gu Mingzhou's expectations. The two Earth Realm cultivators had joined forces, but they had not been able to move the seriously injured Su Fengyu at all. Su Fengyu's terror had probably reached another level. Even so, his battle intent was still high, and a fierce light flashed in his eyes. He couldn't kill him, but he had to at least seriously injure him again and add to Su Fengyu's injuries. The idea was confirmed. Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate at all. His long spear stabbed out again. The sharp spear radiance instantly destroyed several wind dragons. The flames on the spear immediately grew and burned. It let out a low cry, which was the soaring fighting spirit of the spear, a surging fighting spirit. The spear shadows that filled the sky instantly merged in front of the long spear and condensed into a huge spear shadow that was nearly a hundred meters long. Bang! The huge spear shadow was invincible, and countless wind dragons exploded upon contact. As the huge black spear shadow ran rampant, it attacked Su Fengyu as if it was crushing dry weeds and rotten wood. Gu Mingzhou stepped in the air and moved like lightning. He followed closely behind the spear shadow and quickly approached Su Fengyu. The long spear stabbed out again. The long spear swept out, and the void seemed to be pierced. Su Fengyu's pale face finally changed. He was surprised by Gu Mingzhou's two-style execution, and his expression became serious. He waved the folding fan in his hand like a sharp weapon and instantly hacked at the huge spear shadow. His spiritual energy shot out, and a bright light flickered. The small folding fan instantly split the destructive spear shadow in half. It turned into countless spiritual energy that scattered everywhere. This was Su Fengyu's strength. Without waiting for Su Fengyu to rest, the shattered huge spear shadow transformed into spiritual energy and the black spear flickering with raging flames arrived. The paper-like folding fan was not damaged by the spear's attack. However, Su Fengyu's entire body was sent flying by the impact. Die! The floating Jade Island Master attacked when Gu Mingzhou launched his second attack. It was only half a second slower than Gu Mingzhou. The timing was just right, and he met Su Fengyu, who was flying backward. The sound of flapping wings could be heard. The island master of Floating Jade Island wore a pair of golden silk gloves on his hands. His sharp claws were activated by his true core energy, and they shone with a cold light. As he waved it, 
it brought along five pitch-black spatial cracks and grabbed toward Su Fenyu. Su Fenyu's folding fan appeared again, blocking in front of him. With a dull sound, the folding fan in Su Fenyu's hand was destroyed by the island master's sharp right claw and turned into fine powder. However, Su Fenyu wasn't injured at all. Instead, he used the force of the collision to stabilize his body in an instant. His eyes focused slightly, and his right hand, which was holding the half-folded fan, struck out. Half of the fan's handle carried spiritual energy and instantly tore through the void, accurately striking the abdomen of floating Jade Island Master. Fresh red blood spurted out. Chapter, 386 The floating Jade Island Master's face turned sallow and his body involuntarily flew backward. Su Fenyu's casual attack was extremely terrifying, and it was not something ordinary people could withstand. Fortunately, floating Jade Island Master had reached the Earth Realm. After spitting out the blood, his body was no longer in danger. After flying backward for dozens of meters, he stabilized his body. Su Fenyu didn't take advantage of his victory to pursue an attack. Instead, he gathered his arms in front of his body and continued to push them forward. Whoosh! A vast amount of spiritual energy shot out from Su Fenyu's palms, like a flood that broke through a dam. Gu Mingzhou's entire body shone with light, and his long spear suddenly stabbed out. The cold aura of death spread, causing the spear to shine brightly. It burst forth with a terrifying power that pierced through the void and instantly collided with the vast spiritual energy. When the two collided, it was as if the heavens and earth had collapsed, and a great power was produced. The scene in the sky was shocking, and the sound of thunder was deafening. The spatial crack spread across the entire sky, like a demon devouring the sky. A spatial storm surged out from the crack, turning into a vast ocean that poured down and spread towards the floating jade island. Everything in its path was annihilated, as if it wanted to devour the floating jade island. The momentum was shocking. The living beings of the floating jade island were dumbfounded, while the rogue cultivators were so frightened that they cried out in alarm and fled in panic. Su Fenyu's strength was too powerful. Even in his injured state, he could still control the vast spiritual energy to resist the spear light. Gu Mingzhou was worried about the spatial storm that was pouring out. It would be a great disaster if it landed on floating Jade Island. The floating Jade Island might no longer exist, and all the living beings on the island would be reduced to dust without exception. Fortunately, what Gu Mingzhou was worried about did not happen. The ocean storm did not land on floating Jade Island. When it was still a hundred meters away from the shore, it disappeared for no reason. He saw the master of floating Jade Island, whose forehead was covered in sweat. The master of floating Jade Island's face regained some color. The huge wings on his back flapped out a strong wind and the floating Jade Island quickly flew away. It was obvious that it was the tornadoes created by the wings that blew away the spatial storm that was pouring down. I didn't expect you to grow to this level in such a short time. It seems that my speculation is correct. Your future is limitless. Su Fengyu said in a cold voice. Are you complimenting me? Gu Mingzhou clenched his spear tightly and quickly leaped toward Su Fengyu, stabbing out with his spear. The spear's radiance was dark and cold. It pierced through the void that had just recovered and headed toward Su Fengyu. You've indeed grown a lot, but that doesn't mean you have the qualifications to compete with me. Instead of retreating, Su Fengyu advanced and took the initiative to wave his palm to meet the sharp spear radiance. Su Fengyu's palm didn't reveal the slightest spiritual energy. He was planning to use his physical strength to take on the sharp spear head-on. Whether it was the master of floating Jade Island, the rogue cultivators of Floating Jade Island, or the army of underwater demonic cultivators, everyone held their breath and looked at Su Fengyu. Su Fengyu's confidence shocked them. What kind of confidence was this? How arrogant was this? How arrogant was this? How strong must one's body be to resist a divine weapon? How strong must one's cultivation be? Gu Mingzhou couldn't help but feel a little confused, especially when he saw Su Fengyu's confident smile. Could Su Fengyu really withstand the spear's sharpness with his physical body alone? Gu Mingzhou did not believe it. If Su Fengyu could withstand it, who in this world could kill him? 
Unwillingness instantly rose in his heart, and the confidence on Su Fengyu's face made him feel uneasy. Countless spiritual energy gushed out from his body, but the spear in his hand didn't stop at all. The spiritual energy surged up and poured into the spear, increasing its power greatly. It stabbed toward Su Fengyu's palm. Gu Mingzhou wanted to break Su Fengyu's confidence. The flames on the spear that was imbued with all his strength grew even more intense, as if they were burning the heavens. Blood splattered everywhere. The sharp spear instantly pierced through Su Fengyu's right palm without any resistance and directly stabbed his chest. Gu Mingzhou was stunned. The breeze blew, and everything was silent. Everyone looked at Su Fengyu, who had been stabbed in the chest by the long spear. Su Fengyu's confident performance just now, in contrast to the situation of his chest being pierced by the spear, was equivalent to suicide. Would the powerful Su Fengyu choose to commit suicide? He didn't know what other people thought, but Gu Mingzhou definitely wouldn't believe it. Then why did he do something that was similar to suicide? He definitely had other intentions. Not good, he ran away. The master of Floating Jade Island extended his right hand and pulled Su Fengyu's body out of the spear. Su Fengyu, whose shoulder was being held tightly by the master of Floating Jade Island, was completely limp and lifeless after being separated from the spear. He was dead. You can't run. The master of Floating Jade Island was furious. He threw away the lifeless corpse in his hand and flew past Gu Mingzhou at high speed, flying out of the Floating Jade Island. Gu Mingzhou caught the corpse that the master of Floating Jade Island had abandoned and sent his spiritual sense into it. The body that had died long ago was not Su Fengyu's at all. Previously, Su Fengyu had merged his spiritual sense and part of his cultivation into the corpse. The real Su Fengyu didn't come at all. The spiritual sense and cultivation that he had integrated into the corpse had already escaped. This explained why he had suddenly committed suicide. He wanted to divert the attention of Gu Mingzhou and the others and take the opportunity to escape. Su Fengyu successfully avoided the attention of Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island master and escaped. What kind of scheme was this? Gu Mingzhou's spiritual energy gushed out and instantly burned the body in his hand. A corpse without a soul was nothing more than a scrapped skin. The flames devoured the corpse, and drops of red blood appeared from the ashes. They fell from the sky, unafraid of the flames. He reached out to catch one drop of blood and observed it carefully. With the cultivation of the earth realm, even the bones of the human realm could be burned, not to mention blood. However, he quickly discovered a problem. This was different from the blood of all living beings. It should be the blood left behind by Su Fengyu when he fled. A voice suddenly came from behind Gu Mingzhou. This is Su Fengyu's blood. Gu Mingzhou did not look surprised at all. He turned around and looked at the island master of Floating Jade Island, who had returned at some point in time. He reached out and handed the drop of blood over as he asked in confusion. It's not human, demon, or monster. I can sense Su Fengyu's aura from this drop of blood. It's definitely his blood. The master of Floating Jade Island explained. So, Su Fengyu is already injured. Gu Mingzhou asked, a little excited. His previous thoughts of killing Su Fengyu gradually disappeared, and he tried his best to make Su Fengyu's injuries worse. Now it seemed that his goal had been achieved. He should be injured, and it's not a small injury. It might even trigger his original injury. Otherwise, with his personality, he would never choose to escape. The master of Floating Jade Island said seriously. Has the crisis of the Floating Jade Island been resolved? Gu Mingzhou said as he turned to look at the gradually fading golden light. The crisis has been resolved but hasn't been completely eradicated. The master of Floating Jade Island looked at the crisscrossing golden beams of light and said helplessly. The master of Floating Jade Island suddenly leaned forward. Dark red blood spurted out of his mouth like water. Gu Mingzhou looked nervous. He reached out to help the island master of Floating Jade Island but was rejected with a wave of his hand. Chapter, 387 There's no big problem. I was just injured when I tried to break the formation. In addition, I was attacked by Su Fengyu, so the energy in my body is a little chaotic. 
The island master of floating Jade Island reached out to wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth. He squeezed out a smile on his pale face and waved his hand. Gu Mingzhou did not know the details, but he could understand a thing or two from the conversation between the floating Jade Island master and Su Fengyu. He knew that Su Fengyu had used some unknown method to instigate the left protector to betray him and set up a ceiling formation at the island master of floating Jade Island's seclusion place while he was in seclusion. As for the floating Jade Island master, there was an 80 to 90 percent chance that he had directly charged out of the array. He must have sustained quite a lot of injuries. Coupled with the series of powerful exchanges with Su Fengyu earlier, it was normal for the energy and blood in his body to be in a mess. Gu Mingzhou looked at the dispirited master of floating Jade Island and shook his head. He knew that the current situation of the floating Jade Island master was definitely not as he had said, that his breathing was only in disorder. However, since the other party was not willing to tell him, Gu Mingzhou naturally would not ask. Everyone had their own secrets. It's all thanks to fellow Daoist for breaking the floating jade array earlier. Otherwise, it would have been too late even if I had broken out. The master of floating jade island waited for the blood on his face to recover a little before he spoke to Gu Mingzhou again. It's no trouble at all. Gu Mingzhou quickly waved his hands. Fellow Daoist, you have saved the tens of thousands of living beings on the floating jade island. How may I address you? The floating Jade Island Master laughed carefreely. Gu Mingzhou greets the floating Jade Island Master. Gu Mingzhou quickly cupped his hands. Even though both of their cultivations were in the Earth Realm, there was only a slight difference. However, the Master of the Floating Jade Island had been famous for a long time. As the Master of the Floating Jade Island in the freezing cold land, Gu Mingzhou had to show some respect. What Island Master? Since you've also broken through the shackles of the Tao Foundation and entered the Earth Realm, you're naturally on the same level as me, don't be so formal. The island master of Floating Jade Island did not seem to care about trifles. He used his right hand to pull Gu Mingzhou up from his bowing position. My name is Lu Youqiang. I'm older than you by a few years, so I'll shamelessly call you Brother Gu. You can call me Big Brother Lu or Brother Lu. The master of Floating Jade Island continued. Lu Youqiang. Gu Mingzhou had a strange expression on his face. He was very familiar with this name. He had heard Li Huang and Su Fengyu address the island master of Floating Jade Island as Lu Youqiang. At that time, he had thought that it was just a homonym, but now that he had heard it from the island master of Floating Jade Island, he was rather shocked. I didn't expect the master of Floating Jade Island to have the same name as Lu Youqiang, the one with the broken dragon soul. Interesting. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself and smiled. He did not know that Lu Youqiang, the five-clawed golden dragon, was actually Shang Wan Yun, Shang Wan Fei's younger brother and an acquaintance of his. Gu Mingzhou suspected the relationship between the five-clawed golden dragon, Lu Youqiang, and Shang Wan Fei, so he thought that Lu Youqiang was his real name. Now that he heard that the floating Jade Island master's name was also Lu Youqiang and that the two had the same name, Gu Mingzhou naturally felt a little strange. What's wrong? Is fellow Daoist Gu looking down on me? The master of floating Jade Island saw that Gu Mingzhou had lowered his head and laughed to himself after he had made his suggestion. He could not help but feel a little dissatisfied and frowned. Brother Lu, Please don't misunderstand. It's just an old friend who shares the same name as you. Gu Mingzhou saw the island master's dissatisfaction and immediately understood the reason. There's such a coincidence. Where is that fellow Daoist? I'd like to meet him. The master of Floating Jade Island said in surprise. He's not here, I'm afraid Brother Lu won't be able to see him. Gu Mingzhou thought of the five-clawed golden dragon's heroic act before his death and couldn't help but feel a little sad. This isn't the place to talk. I'll have to trouble you to help me monitor the retreating army of beast cultivators and prevent them from coming back. I have to go deal with internal affairs. The island master of Floating Jade Island noticed the change in Gu Mingzhou's mood and could roughly guess what was going on. He immediately changed the topic. No problem, he said. Gu Mingzhou cupped his hands and said. After I'm done with the affairs of the floating jade, I'll accompany brother Gu to drink. 
the master of Floating Jade Island rapidly flew towards the Floating Jade main palace. The attack of the million-strong demonic cultivator army, as well as the rebellion of the left protector and the others, had already caused chaos on the Floating Jade Island. If the island master of Floating Jade Island had not been concerned about Gu Mingzhou's cultivation, he would have probably flown out of the Floating Jade Palace to deal with it. Gu Mingzhou could understand the master of Floating Jade Island's anxiety. Looking at the endless cold land in the north, he couldn't help but sigh. A short time passed, and the world changed. The current Floating Jade Island couldn't be any more rotten. Not to mention the countless deaths and injuries, there was also the blow of the rebellion the wearing down of people's hearts, and the annihilation of their fighting spirit. To the living beings of Floating Jade Island, this was a disaster that was difficult to erase. The flames of war spread across the land, and the dried blood dyed a large area dark red. Many of the buried bodies could not be pieced together neatly, so they could only be buried in piles or burned. Broken limbs and bones covered the shore like sand and stones. As the sea washed them, they dyed the extremely cold land red. The pungent smell of blood filled the coastal area. It caused the entire floating jade island, which was about to fall into the night, to be filled with a heavy air of sorrow. The king that they relied on did not disappoint them. Although he had come out late, he had instantly killed the rebellious crowd and forcefully expelled the underwater demon cultivator army. This had restored rogue cultivator floating jade's confidence. After all, the island was still there, the king was still there, and the floating jade would be eternal. Unfortunately, such a result caused the rogue cultivator of floating jade island to rely on the master of floating jade island, Lu Youqiang. All matters on the floating jade island would be reported to Lu Youqiang for further discussion. Lu Youqiang's floating jade returned to the main palace and didn't have time to come out again. The island master of floating jade island had not forgotten Gu Mingzhou. Although he could not leave, he sent someone to welcome Gu Mingzhou. As the sun set in the west, the sky was dyed red by the sunset glow. It was a beautiful sight as it surrounded Floating Jade Island. The human clan's Floating Jade rogue cultivator welcomed Gu Mingzhou and entered the Floating Jade Palace. He was the new clan leader of the Floating Jade Island's human clan, Yi Xiu. This was due to the fact that Floating Jade Island had chosen not to interfere with the affairs of the world since its establishment. Otherwise, even if they were both humans, Yi Xiu might not be able to live in harmony with Gu Mingzhou. The hatred between rogue cultivators and cultivators for tens of millions of years was not as shallow as the hatred between the Floating Jade rogue cultivators and the underwater demon cultivators. Yi Xiu was full of admiration for Gu Mingzhou, the expert who had broken the floating jade array and saved the tens of thousands of people on the floating jade island. Gu Mingzhou also admired Yi Xiu, a loyal and fearless rogue cultivator. Moreover, they were not old, to begin with, so they felt like old friends at first sight and had a good conversation. While chatting with Yi Xiu, Gu Mingzhou finally found out about the changes in the freezing cold land. The time could be traced back to the third day after Gu Mingzhou escaped Su Fengyu's pursuit and entered the alternate dimension. At that time, Su Fengyu, who had failed in his pursuit, did not choose to continue killing. Instead, he took advantage of the intense killing in the world of beast cultivators and directly ruled the underwater beast cultivation world by force, calling himself king. The underwater beast cultivators and the three islands did not interfere with each other. Even though the underwater beast cultivators were united, the rogue cultivators did not pay much attention to it. In the cultivation world, the strong preyed on the weak and were extremely cruel. It was even more so in the underwater world of demonic cultivators. Naturally, no one would care about them. Su Fengyu didn't have any other intentions for the time being. Chapter 388 When everyone had completely let down their guard, Su Fengyu suddenly gathered millions of demonic cultivators and attacked Yenhuang Island with lightning speed. They killed all the living beings on the island, leaving no survivors. What was even more terrifying was that before the other two individual cultivator islands could react, the million-strong army of demonic cultivators that destroyed the Yenhuang Island spread the flames of war to the sacred Soul Island, which was the closest to Yenhuang Island, without stopping. With the same thunderous momentum and forceful methods, the unprepared Sacred Soul Island was immediately massacred and completely destroyed. 
Just like that, in a short period of three days, two of the three major rogue cultivator islands in the freezing cold land had been destroyed. The remaining floating jade island was bound to be jittery and uneasy. At this time, the million-strong army of demonic cultivators, which was full of killing intent, suddenly stopped their attack and returned to the depths of the extremely cold land. No one knew what they wanted to do, and no one knew if they intended to let the floating jade island go or if they had other intentions. The underwater beast cultivator didn't say anything and chose to remain silent again. The dark clouds covered floating jade island for three days and three nights. Just when the individual cultivators on the floating jade island thought the dark clouds were about to disperse, they suddenly received news a demonic cultivator army had appeared in the waters of the floating jade island. Thus, the following change in the floating jade island. It was obvious that he didn't intend to let the floating jade island go. Instead, he wanted to catch it off guard and quickly destroy the island with a thunderous momentum. Unfortunately, Su Fenyu's plan failed. First of all, they did not expect Gu Mingzhou to suddenly appear. Secondly, they did not expect the trapped floating Jade Island Master to be able to force his way out of the array. Such an accident directly caused Su Fengyu's plan to use an army of a million demonic cultivators to conquer the floating Jade Island to fail completely. However, Yi Xiu didn't know why Su Fengyu had chosen to lay low for three months before suddenly attacking. It was even more impossible to know why he was so seriously injured. In fact, many people did not even know why the left protector had chosen to defect. He was the newly appointed clan leader of the human clan's floating Jade Island's rogue cultivators. He had heard many rumors about the changes that had happened on floating Jade Island and did not know much about it. He would only be able to get the answers to these questions when he saw the floating Jade Island master again. However, the floating Jade Island Master was too busy, so Gu Mingzhou did not see him. He was temporarily arranged to rest in a palace somewhere. Gu Mingzhou naturally would not be dissatisfied. He knew that the floating Jade Island Master was busy now. Moreover, he felt that he was free and could rest and cultivate in the palace. He could even try to communicate with the heavenly lightning and guide tribulations to temper his body. It was a pity he had the experience of drawing in tribulations to temper his body once, but he couldn't draw out the lightning tribulation this time. Just as Zhao Qianquan had said, he had never heard of anyone who had been tempered by lightning tribulations twice in a row. Anyone who failed to pass the tribulation would die and turn into dust without exception. After Gu Mingzhou had failed for three consecutive days and was about to give up, the island master of floating jade finally appeared in front of Gu Mingzhou and brought him the good news. The island floating Jade Island Master was just in time to see Gu Mingzhou's dejected expression when he failed to attract lightning. Brother Gu, are you feeling frustrated because you can't attract the tribulation to temper your body? The island floating Jade Island Master did not say much. He just sat down opposite Gu Mingzhou and directly pointed out the key point without asking for the reason. It was reasonable to say that such a situation should not happen to cultivators. Gu Mingzhou was troubled by his inability to ascend, which was why he made a mistake and was seen through by the floating Jade Island Master. Brother Lu's eyes are indeed sharp. This is what I'm worried about, seeing that his thoughts have been exposed, Gu Mingzhou did not hide anything. The Tao Foundation will attract the Thunder Tribulation to temper the body and wash away karma. What else can we be worried about? The floating Jade Island Master laughed and waved his hand as he explained. This sentence directly pointed out the reason. Although I don't know why the floating Jade Island Master didn't succeed, his current situation is obviously the same as mine. He can't sense the lightning tribulation. Just as the floating Jade Island Master had said, all cultivators in the world knew the common saying, the path of cultivation is to build the foundation of Tao. It stopped at the foundation establishment stage and did not describe the later stages. Gu Mingzhou was an exception because he had failed his tribulation and had already guided the tribulation to temper his body. Therefore, after he built his Tao foundation again, there was no lightning tribulation. This also caused Gu Mingzhou to be unable to sense the power of the upper realm. One had to know that since ancient times, those who failed to pass the tribulation would have their souls destroyed on the spot. How could there be a second chance? Gu Mingzhou was a coincidental person created by the combination of various factors. 
This probability was definitely 1 in 10,000, and it was already very amazing that Gu Mingzhou would be there. Therefore, he did not think that the floating Jade Island master had the same problem as him. However, if it was not his second time building his Tao Foundation, how could the floating Jade Island master have advanced to the Earth Realm? Gu Mingzhou did not know, and neither did Zhao Qinkuan. Regardless of the reason, there was no doubt the floating Jade Island master had not ascended. He told the floating Jade Island master he had failed to transcend the tribulation and he had not died. After hearing the story, the floating Jade Island master did not show any surprise on his face. It was as if he was used to such things and found it very strange. Back then, I was too young to survive the Thunder Tribulation. Therefore, I prepared a formation in advance to weaken the Thunder Tribulation when I was drawing the Tribulation to temper my body. The island floating Jade Island Master did not wait for Gu Mingzhou to ask and explained his doubts. Who knew that it would backfire on me? For some reason, the formation isolated me from the world the moment I formed my Tao Foundation, so the Thunder Tribulation did not come. I could not complete the tribulation-inducing tempering of my body and did not sense the opportunity to ascend to the upper realm. The floating Jade Island Master's face was filled with regret. Gu Mingzhou nodded slightly. It turned out that the reason why the floating Jade Island Master had advanced to the Earth Realm and had not ascended was because of him. Compared to himself, this was both fortunate and sorrowful. Fortunately, when the floating Jade Island Master created this state, he was not affected by external factors like Gu Mingzhou. Naturally, he had fewer obstacles. Not only did he lose all his cultivation, but his meridians were also broken. He was also imprisoned and spent half a year in darkness and misery. The floating Jade Island Master's self-blame was probably more than helplessness. The past few hundred years had been a torment for the floating Jade Island Master. Especially when he saw the people around him leave him and ascend to the heavenly realm, leaving him alone to die. However, this indirectly showed how strong the floating Jade Island Master's cultivation talent was and how great his perseverance was. It was extremely rare to set up a formation that could block out the lightning tribulation. The floating Jade Island Master had used a hundred years to advance his cultivation from the mortal realm to the earth realm. After all, Gu Mingzhou had used the heavenly devouring technique to devour experts one after another before he entered the earth realm. Compared to the floating Jade Island Master, who had cultivated the Earth Realm alone, he could not be mentioned on the same level. Could it be that after so many years, you still haven't found a way to ascend? Gu Mingzhou looked at the floating Jade Island Master and asked. He was afraid the answer he got would not be the answer he wanted. Even if he had the answer in his heart, he was still unwilling to believe it. Chapter 389 Gu Mingzhou was not as carefree as floating Jade Island Master. He had many things to do. Therefore, he couldn't live in seclusion and cultivate alone for a hundred years. He didn't have much time to spend in this world. To Gu Mingzhou, the heavenly realm was a journey that he had to embark on. However, before the island master of floating Jade Island could answer, Gu Mingzhou, who had voiced the question in his heart, revealed a bitter smile. It was obvious that he had not found the way to ascend. Otherwise, why would he stay in seclusion on the floating Jade Island for hundreds of years and cultivate painstakingly? Even if he had advanced into the Earth Realm, why would he still stay here? Gu Mingzhou already had the answer in his heart. In fact, he had long found the answer in his heart, but he was unwilling to believe it. However, life was like this. Whether one was willing to believe it or not, the result would always be the same, good or bad. Look at you, which part of you looks like an almighty cultivator? Let me tell you, if you had asked me before, you might have gotten the same answer in your heart. The floating Jade Island Master laughed as he spoke. But fortunately, I've already found the way to ascend. Ha! Floating Jade Island Master's hearty laughter instantly reverberated throughout the palace. Gu Mingzhou's eyes widened in disbelief. He looked at the island master of floating Jade Island, not knowing what to say. Now, he felt as if he was in a dream. It was as if he was in an illusion, and his ears were ringing. It made him feel that the words of the floating Jade Island master were so unreal that he thought he had heard them wrongly. You didn't hear wrong, I've already found the way to ascend. 
The island master of floating Jade Island retracted his smile and suddenly became serious. He looked at Gu Mingzhou and spoke seriously. Brother Lu, is what you said true? Gu Mingzhou looked nervously at the island master of floating Jade Island and only asked after a long while. You are the benefactor of the floating Jade Island, why would I lie to you? It's just that the method is a bit dangerous, so even if I know, I don't dare to try it. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's expression, floating Jade Island master could not help but smile and pat his shoulder. Gu Mingzhou came back to his senses. He naturally knew how great the danger was. Otherwise, the floating Jade Island master would have ascended long ago and not remained on the floating Jade Island, almost falling into the trap of others. Even though he knew the method was very dangerous, Gu Mingzhou still wanted to know. He wanted to try. I wonder what the method is. He asked. No matter how dangerous it was, he still wanted to try. Having hope was better than having no hope. To be able to break through the core and fuse with the foundation in this world with thin spiritual energy is enough to prove that you are not stupid. I'm still here, so I can't figure out the danger of this method. The floating Jade Island master's face was expressionless as he retracted his gaze after a long while. Gu Mingzhou knew what the floating Jade Island master meant and also knew that he had good intentions. Anyone who found they had no way out and suddenly found a way out would very likely take a risk and fight with all their might. Sometimes, he had no choice but to do so. He had to go to the heavenly realm. There was no way to enter the heavenly realm safely. Zhao Qinkuan and Gu Mingzhou did not know anything else. No matter how dangerous the method was, he had to do it. I know, but I have no choice but to go to the upper realm. Thus, I hope Brother Lu can teach me. Gu Mingzhou cupped his hands and bowed to the island master of floating Jade Island. The way to enter the upper realm was too crucial to Gu Mingzhou. Since you insist on this, follow me. The island master of floating Jade Island stood up to support Gu Mingzhou, preventing him from bowing down. He let out a long sigh. The floating Jade Island master turned around and walked out of the palace. Gu Mingzhou did not dare to hesitate. He quickly followed closely behind the floating Jade Island master. There were too many things to do on floating Jade Island, so there was no time to repair the main palace of floating Jade Island. It was still the same as three days ago. Broken walls and debris flew everywhere. The walls were covered in cracks, and the rubble was in a mess. The roof of the front hall was almost non-existent, and it looked like an abandoned, dilapidated ruin. It had lost all of its former glory. I'm sorry, but the human clan wants to hold a memorial service for the former clan leader here. I also want the rogue cultivators of Floating Jade Island to remember the previous disaster, so I didn't repair the main palace of Floating Jade Island for the time being. I hope you can forgive me for my poor hospitality. The island master of Floating Jade Island turned to look at Gu Mingzhou and said apologetically. So it's to commemorate the clan leader, that's why you didn't repair the main palace of the Floating Jade Island. Gu Mingzhou said. The Lord of Floating Jade Island walked towards the main palace of Floating Jade Island. Looking at the dilapidated main palace of the Floating Jade Island, his heart was filled with endless emotions. However, he did not dare to stop and quickly followed. In the main palace of Floating Jade Island, many rogue cultivators were busy preparing for the memorial ceremony for clan leader Wang Meng. They were reminiscing about the rogue cultivators of the Floating Jade Island who had died in this disaster. When they saw the island master of Floating Jade Island walk in, they all bowed very respectfully and did so toward Gu Mingzhou. Compared to their respect for the island master of Floating Jade Island, these people looked at Gu Mingzhou with a hint of wariness and fear. The strength Gu Mingzhou displayed was too strong. He was comparable to the king in their hearts. The island master of Floating Jade Island gestured for the rogue cultivators to continue with their work as he continued to walk into the depths of the palace. Gu Mingzhou followed closely behind the floating Jade Island Master. He walked silently and quickly into the depths of the hall. The spiral tunnel leading to the underground was an underground palace. The underground palace, which was built entirely of bluestone, occupied almost the entire underground space of the main palace on floating Jade Island. It was extremely wide. It didn't have any decorations and looked extremely simple. 
The underground palace was in a circular shape, closely connected to each other to form a circle underground. And in the middle of the circle, the altar was emitting a heart-palpitating aura. There were eighteen corpses on the altar. Their aura had been severed, and their soul was no longer there. They are all cultivators who have been abandoned like us. They could have continued to survive in this world, but they were too anxious. These are all beings that can't attract the lightning tribulation to temper their bodies and ascend to the heavenly realm. Gu Mingzhou's face was filled with surprise as he looked at the corpse on the altar. Since ancient times, in the hearts of cultivators, the only outcome of failing to transcend the tribulation was death. An exception like Gu Mingzhou was hard to find. Gu Mingzhou was already very surprised to meet the floating Jade Island master. Now, the other party was telling him that the dozens of cultivators who had passed away on the altar had all failed their tribulations and were unable to ascend to the upper realm. They had failed in their final attempt and died. This was a little unacceptable to Gu Mingzhou. Since when were there so many cultivators who failed to pass the tribulation and didn't die? What's wrong? Are you surprised? The island master of Floating Jade Island suddenly turned to look at Gu Mingzhou, a bitter smile on his lips. I'm indeed a little surprised or in disbelief. Gu Mingzhou nodded and replied softly. The world is misled by the heavenly Tao. The floating jade island master looked away and turned back to the altar. In fact, failing to pass the tribulation didn't necessarily mean death. For some reason, in this deep underground palace, Gu Mingzhou felt a breeze blow past. It was a little cold, a little bone chilling, and made him shiver. The lightning tribulation is terrifying, but the living was more determined. They're only intentionally erasing those cultivators who failed their tribulations and became mortals who can no longer cultivate. The floating Jade Island master seemed to not have noticed the cold wind blowing past, or perhaps he had long been accustomed to it. He looked at the altar and said indifferently. Chapter, 390 Gu Mingzhou understood the intentions of those who wanted to erase the truth. It was nothing more than fame and fortune. If a cultivator with the potential to ascend appeared in a sect or family, it would bring glory and recognition to the sect or family. However, if a cultivator failed to pass the tribulation of the foundation establishment stage and was severely injured, his meridians would be broken and he would become a disabled person. This would no longer be the glory of the family or sect, but a humiliation. In order to cover up the truth of the matter, Everyone covered up the person they thought was the loser, making his traces in the world the end. Those who edited the illusions and covered up the truth would never know that cultivators who failed to pass the tribulation would be willing to drag out an ignoble existence. The floating Jade Island master slowly explained. If you fail to pass the tribulation and survive, even if you are not executed, you will lose all your resources and be abandoned by the world. The floating Jade Island master suddenly turned around. Did these seniors successfully recultivate? Gu Mingzhou felt a little upset. He looked at the corpses on the altar and asked softly. There were eighteen corpses sitting cross-legged on the altar. For hundreds of years, I've found nearly a hundred cultivators who failed their tribulations, provided them with resources, and even brought them to the floating jade island. In the end, only eighteen cultivators succeeded in their cultivation. The floating Jade Island master's eyes were slightly red as he spoke. When they re-established their Tao foundations, they finally realized the problem today. Without a second lightning tribulation to temper one's body, one would not be able to ascend to the higher realm. Hence, he began to search for a solution. However, it was precisely this method that took away their lives. Pain and regret appeared on the island master of floating Jade Island's face as he stepped onto the altar. Gu Mingzhou silently followed behind him and also stepped onto the altar. From below, one could only see a raised round altar and a corpse sitting cross-legged. However, after stepping onto the altar, he discovered that the surface of the altar was engraved with all kinds of mysterious runes. Gu Mingzhou didn't recognize the runes and had never seen them before, but he could feel an extremely overbearing and tough aura from them. The powerful suppression made him feel like he was stuck in a quagmire, and he could not help but frown. Don't worry, it's just the power of the formation, the floating Jade Island Master had already expected his performance. The suppressive force instantly disappeared without a trace. However, 
he could sense a domineering aura from the runes. What an overbearing formation. If it's activated, I'm afraid it can even suppress me. Gu Mingzhou said with lingering fear. The formation can only suppress the mortal realm to the maximum. The reason why you feel your heart palpitate is mostly because of the dozen or so who are sleeping. The floating Jade Island master pointed at the eighteen corpses sitting cross-legged in front of him as he explained. According to the floating Jade Island master, these cultivators who failed in their ascension had passed away a hundred years ago. But even if they were alive, they couldn't threaten Gu Mingzhou. How could they make Gu Mingzhou feel suppressed after they passed away? The island master of Floating Jade Island did not answer Gu Mingzhou's question. Instead, he stepped on the strange runes and walked to the center of the altar. Brother Gu, come here and feel it. The Floating Jade Island master turned around and waved his hand. Gu Mingzhou did not understand why the Floating Jade Island master had suddenly asked him to enter the array. Even standing outside the altar, he felt suppressed. If he went in, the suppression would be even more severe. Could it be that the other party didn't want to tell him the method of ascension, but had other plans? Countless thoughts flashed through Gu Mingzhou's mind. After experiencing so many changes, he didn't know when he had started to subconsciously be on guard against everything. However, he immediately shook his head secretly, feeling his own thoughts were laughable. With Gu Mingzhou's current cultivation level, the floating Jade Island master might not be able to do anything to him. Zhao Qinkuan and Jing Wudao, who were inside his body, were enough to fight against the floating Jade Island master. Furthermore, judging from the behavior of the floating Jade Island master, he was definitely not a sinister and cunning person. Perhaps the island master of floating Jade Island was only interested in his cultivation and not in any devious methods. Without hesitation, he entered the formation densely covered in symbols. The domineering energy that he had felt earlier surged out instantly and was instilled into Gu Mingzhou's body. The suppression that was as powerful as ten thousand mountains instantly filled his body, as if he was stuck in a quagmire. It was an absolutely powerful force, different from all the binding arrays he had encountered in the past. On the contrary, he felt the pressure ordinary people felt in front of Dao Foundation cultivators was suppressing his heart and soul. It made it difficult for Gu Mingzhou to move. A vast and majestic essence force gushed out of Gu Mingzhou's body and offset the suppressing force. Only then was Gu Mingzhou able to continue moving forward and step to the side of the floating Jade Island Master. From the beginning to the end, the floating Jade Island Master had not said a word. What are your thoughts? When Gu Mingzhou neutralized that force, the floating Jade Island Master revealed a gratified smile and said. Gu Mingzhou did not understand what the floating Jade Island Master meant. He recalled that if he had not used his spiritual energy in time, he would have been completely imprisoned here by that oppressive force. Very strong. He carefully recalled the process just now and simply spat out two words. At that moment, Gu Mingzhou, who had advanced to the Earth Realm, almost suffered a loss. How could he not be strong? Do mortal realm cultivators have a chance of escaping from the array? The floating Jade Island Master asked again. Not to mention a cultivator in the mortal realm, even a cultivator at the peak of the mortal realm would find it difficult to break free if they were trapped in this array. Gu Mingzhou looked at the floating Jade Island Master as he sensed the immense pressure from the formation. He had a premonition that what the floating Jade Island Master was about to say was the result he wanted to know. As long as you can use the spell formation to suppress the Dao Foundation stage cultivator who is about to undergo the tribulation, you can replace him and pass off the fake as the real one. You can seize the tribulation to temper your body and obtain the enlightenment of ascension. Floating Jade Island Master's voice resounded throughout the spacious underground palace. Gu Mingzhou felt a chill and shuddered. This is the method you thought of? Gu Mingzhou looked at the island master of Floating Jade Island in disbelief and asked. According to the Floating Jade Island master's method, the robbery alone was enough to shock Gu Mingzhou, not to mention the danger. By using this magical formation, he could suppress the person who was about to undergo the lightning tribulation and replace him to seize the tribulation and temper his body. It was indeed possible to ascend after obtaining the ascension guidance that should have belonged to another. However, no matter how terrifying the lightning tribulation was, the cultivators would have to face it. 
Even if he really succeeded and could ascend, what would happen to the cultivator whose thunder tribulation was seized? Seize someone else's. Others would steal from others, and this would continue on endlessly. After getting the answer he wanted to know, Gu Mingzhou became a little confused. What Gu Mingzhou was confused about was not the great danger that the floating Jade Island master had always been worried about, but the consequences for the cultivator whose thunder tribulation had been seized, regardless of whether he succeeded or not. This could indeed be considered a method. But it was more like a vicious and overbearing method, and Gu Mingzhou found it hard to accept. I know what you're worried about. It's also the reason why I'm hesitant and don't dare to try. The island master of Floating Jade Island could read Gu Mingzhou's mind. He suddenly reached out and patted Gu Mingzhou's shoulder in comfort. Chapter, 391 Sigh Gu Mingzhou looked up at the sky and sighed. He didn't know what to do. The world is like this. There's a problem with the rules set by the Heavenly Tao, so we can only accept it. The Floating Jade Island Master advised. Gu Mingzhou was silent. He knew what the Floating Jade Island Master meant. Cultivators only had one chance to transcend the Lightning Tribulation, and it was indeed a problem with the Heavenly Tao. Just as the Floating Jade Island Master had said, even if they did not try to seize the Thunder Tribulation, how many cultivators in the world could successfully pass the Thunder Tribulation and form their Tao Foundation? Cultivation seemed to be in search of power and immortality. However, life would always be life. The Heavenly Tao was heartless, and all living things were nothing but a joke in the face of the Heavenly Tao. If the King of Hell tells you to die at midnight, you won't live past midnight. Was the cultivation world not the same? The Lightning Tribulation was the Heavenly Tao's most powerful method of punishing all living things. Under the Heavenly Lightning, everything in the world seemed to be vulnerable. Even if he could rebuild his Tao Foundation and attract the Thunder Tribulation, the chances of him successfully passing it was extremely small. Furthermore, no mistakes could be made during the Tribulation. It was just like how Gu Mingzhou had failed his Tribulation. There were too many examples like this. How many people could really wash away their karma? 80% of it becomes their karma. Gu Mingzhou and the 18 corpses sitting cross-legged on the altar were all considered lucky existences. Although it seems like a bandit's means, as long as we ask for the opinions of others in advance, there is still hope. Not many people like us are obsessed with cultivation and want to see the wider world of cultivation. The floating Jade Island master said slowly. Indeed. Gu Mingzhou agreed with the floating Jade Island master. When cultivators formed their Tao Foundation, the chances of them transcending the lightning tribulations were even slimmer than cultivators who focused on cultivation. But they didn't want to die. If Gu Mingzhou or the floating Jade Island Master, or anyone else with more hope than him, were willing to withstand the lightning tribulation, why not? Now, he was a little tempted. The floating Jade Island Master's words caused him to waver from his initial apprehension and disbelief. It was just like what Zhao Qinkuan had said when Gu Mingzhou was hesitating about whether he should cultivate the Nine Turns Heavenly Devouring Technique. One could not judge a weapon by its quality. Everything depended on the person who used them. Seeing that Gu Mingzhou's brows had relaxed, the island master of Floating Jade Island smiled. So, don't think about what kind of consequences it will cause to others. Instead, you should think about how to overcome the lightning tribulation. The Floating Jade Island master continued. If other cultivators were involved in the tribulation, the power of the lightning tribulation would be multiplied, regardless of the strength of the cultivator. After the lightning tribulation descended, the aura of the person undergoing the tribulation had already been concealed by the formation. However, when the lightning tribulation discovered that the tribulation taker had changed, the number of lightning tribulations would still multiply. It would also change according to the strength of the cultivation. The more powerful you are, the more terrifying the lightning tribulation is. The floating jade island master suddenly turned around. A gust of wind swept out from his long sleeves and instantly engulfed the entire altar. The gale swept through the eighteen corpses sitting cross-legged on the altar. As the wind blew, the eighteen corpses on the altar, who were originally dressed in neat clothes and had their makeup on, were instantly unrecognizable. They quickly turned into charred corpses. 
Even if we find someone who is willing to give up the thunder tribulation for us to seize the thunder tribulation and obtain the opportunity to ascend, it is very difficult to succeed. The floating Jade Island master sighed as he looked at the charred corpse in the gale. What about the cultivators who are willing to sacrifice their lightning tribulations? Gu Mingzhou suddenly asked. When he saw the appearance of the cultivators who had failed their second tribulation, he couldn't help but think about this. After snatching the lightning tribulation, he failed his tribulation transcendence. What about the tribulation takers who were imprisoned in the formation and had their auras hidden? The island master of floating Jade Island did not expect Gu Mingzhou to suddenly ask this and fell silent. Did they all die? Gu Mingzhou said the answer in his heart. He eagerly hoped that the floating Jade Island master could overthrow his answer. What he received was a helpless nod from the island master of floating Jade Island, which completely destroyed the last hope in Gu Mingzhou's heart. 18 Mortal Realm Cultivators Gu Mingzhou looked at the complicated runes that were shining with a faint light and muttered to himself. There were many living beings in the world, billions of them. However, how many of them could truly step into cultivation? There were even fewer cultivators who could build their Tao foundation. The most important thing was the 18 cultivators didn't want to die. It was human nature, so what was wrong with that? Because he didn't want to die, he chose to give up the opportunity to ascend. However, it did not save their lives. Gu Mingzhou even thought that if they gave it their all, they might still have a chance. The floating Jade Island master fell silent and did not speak for a long time. The entire underground palace fell silent. You have to know that even if we didn't appear, they would still die without the ability to pass the tribulation. We are just giving them hope. Is there anything wrong with that? The floating Jade Island master's voice was sonorous and forceful, leaving no room for doubt. After saying that, the floating Jade Island master felt a little lonely and sad. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to speak, he turned and walked down the altar. Brother Lu! Gu Mingzhou quickly shouted. If the forgotten cultivator wants to ascend, this is the only way. Three days later, I will personally come to pick you up. Whether you want to learn this array or not is up to you. The floating Jade Island master interrupted Gu Mingzhou and disappeared from the underground palace without looking back. In fact, Gu Mingzhou did not know that the life and death of the 18 cultivators who had given up their thunder tribulations were not important to the floating Jade Island Master. What was important was the cultivators who had undergone their second tribulation. He, who had lost the chance to ascend to the higher world, could only watch the people around him leave he had long lost his friends. In this cruel world where the strong preyed on the weak, how could there be compassion? Cultivators who chose to recultivate would have the same fate as the floating Jade Island Master. That was why they could chat and become friends, searching for a way to ascend together. In the end, these cultivators failed and died during their ascension. The surviving island master of floating Jade Island was the one who suffered the true pain. The floating Jade Island Master could ignore the life and death of others, but he could not ignore the life and death of a cultivator who had recultivated for the second time. After all, if a cultivator failed a second time, he would feel despair. Incomparable despair. The sudden departure of the island master of floating Jade Island left Gu Mingzhou in a daze. He stood in place and stared blankly at the charred corpses around him. He could not figure out why the floating Jade Island master had left him behind to make the decision. He had advised him to think twice before he acted because the other party knew the method was dangerous. Actually, the island master of floating Jade Island did not want to be tangled up with Gu Mingzhou, so he chose to leave. As for whether he would learn this array, the floating Jade Island master would not interfere. Both the floating Jade Island master and Gu Mingzhou were the top existences in this world and their cultivation reached the earth realm. No one could change their thoughts or choices. The spacious underground palace seemed even more deserted. The presence of the charred corpses around him caused the yin energy here to be heavy. Gu Mingzhou felt a chill. At this moment, the black gas floated out of Gu Mingzhou's chest and out of the altar. It gradually condensed into Zhao Qianquan's figure in midair. Chapter 392 Old Zhao Gu Mingzhou shouted at Zhao Qianquan. 
Zhao Qianquan would not appear for no reason. Since he had chosen to come out, there must be a reason. Sure enough, just as Gu Mingzhou was looking at Zhao Qianquan in confusion, the latter suddenly raised his hand, signaling for Gu Mingzhou to keep quiet. Instead, he frowned and looked at the altar. Gu Mingzhou was in a dilemma. He desperately wanted to ascend to the heavenly realm, because there were too many reasons for him to go there. However, he was somewhat resistant to the floating Jade Island Master's method, not because of the danger but because of the overbearing and ruthless method. The method of seizing the tribulation was to help others transcend the thunder tribulation, or to be more accurate, to seize the thunder tribulation of others. Moreover, there was a domineering suppression formation, which looked simple. In fact, it was very dangerous. Just by looking at the eighteen charred and unrecognizable corpses, he could guess that it was close to the truth. The lightning tribulation was targeted. Since the appearance of the heavenly Tao, all cultivators had been wary of it and could not be provoked. Anyone who dared to provoke the lightning tribulation would be bombarded by it. The heavenly Tao was extremely overbearing. One of its most domineering aspects was that when a cultivator attracted the lightning tribulation, the space enveloped by the lightning tribulation would not allow any living being to appear except the person undergoing the tribulation. Whether it was intentional or not, it would be seen as a provocation by the lightning tribulation, which would increase the power of the lightning tribulation and destroy all the living beings enveloped by it. If he was strong enough to withstand the lightning tribulation, this method would naturally work. However, according to the floating Jade Island Master's description and the surrounding charred corpses, the lightning tribulation would become stronger and more terrifying after the tribulation snatching. How confident were they in choosing this method? Gu Mingzhou had seen the power of the lightning tribulation before. It was so terrifying that even though he had entered the earth realm, he still had a lingering fear and was not confident that he could survive it. But there was no other way, so he was conflicted. Now that Zhao Qianquan had appeared, it was only natural that he wanted Zhao Qianquan's advice or choice. However, Zhao Qianquan was fully focused on the complex runes on the altar, leaving Gu Mingzhou to wait quietly. The runes on the altar were so abstruse that even Zhao Qianquan had to spend the time it took for two incense sticks to burn to read them. During this time, he even floated around the altar dozens of times before he tiredly retracted his gaze and turned to look at Gu Mingzhou. The big bird is right. Using this formation, we can hide the aura of the cultivator undergoing the tribulation and replace him. Zhao Qianquan said. I know that, but Gu Mingzhou wanted to say something, but he did not finish his sentence. He knew that Zhao Qianquan was most displeased with his indecisiveness. I know what you're worried about. You don't have to worry about this. Zhao Qianquan did not fly into a rage. Instead, he spoke calmly. Gu Mingzhou heaved a sigh of relief and nodded. He wanted to see how Zhao Qianquan would explain himself. Do these cultivators who failed the heavenly tribulation have anything in common? Zhao Qianquan floated into the formation and pointed at the eighteen charred corpses. Gu Mingzhou did not understand what Zhao Qianquan meant. He could only look in the direction pointed by him. His eyes swept over the charred bodies, but he did not find anything. From their shattered dantians, I can see that they're all in the middle stage of the mortal realm. Zhao Qianquan explained when he saw Gu Mingzhou shake his head. What does this mean? Gu Mingzhou still did not understand. At least you should know that your cultivation is much higher than these people. They can't pass the lightning tribulation because they are in the stage of guiding the tribulation to temper their bodies. Zhao Qianquan replied. Could it be? Gu Mingzhou seemed to have caught on to something, but he was not sure. It's because they're not strong enough, but their realm can only barely withstand the lightning tribulation. Zhao Qianquan interrupted Gu Mingzhou. Zhao Qianquan flew out of the altar. The formation was suppressing him, and he did not want to stay any longer. Gu Mingzhou was completely convinced by Zhao Qianquan's words. His words were reasonable and even more convincing than the island master of Floating Jade Island. Gu Mingzhou, who was hesitating, immediately made his decision. He was worried about the method of snatching the tribulation and the damage caused by the person snatching the lightning. There were many other ways of taking tribulations apart from being forceful and overbearing. 
There were also many cultivators who were unwilling to undergo the lightning tribulation and were willing to give it up. Zhao Qinkuan was giving them more confidence. It was a good thing for the cultivators undergoing the lightning tribulation. His worries were completely resolved. He decided to learn formations and prepare for the calamity. He had to go to the heavenly realm. The formation on the altar was more profound than Gu Mingzhou had expected. With Zhao Qinkuan's help, he could not understand it in a short time. It was within his expectations. He had never come into contact with formations, let alone one that was formed by countless complicated runes. To him, it was like a fantasy, like a heavenly book, difficult to start. After a discussion with Zhao Qinkuan, they finally decided to let Zhao Qinkuan copy the altar's formation. After they comprehended it, Zhao Qinkuan would be in charge of setting up the formation while Gu Mingzhou would seize the tribulation. However, the main problem was to find a cultivator who was willing to give up the lightning tribulation. In fact, it was not difficult. You could simply find a cultivator who was about to break through to the mortal realm and promise him that he would become a cultivator of the mortal realm. Then, you could take his thunder tribulation. After the discussion, Gu Mingzhou no longer cared about the altar's array. He sat down cross-legged on the empty square, checked on the situation of Master Qin and Jing Wudao, and continued to refine his spiritual energy. Zhao Qinkuan was left behind to circle the altar to observe the formation and copy the runes. Master Qin's injuries had started to recover. Although the situation wasn't good, it was good news for Gu Mingzhou. After all, Master Qin had become like this because he had taken the damage for him. Jing Wudao's situation was much better. After Jing Wudao confirmed that Gu Mingzhou was safe and sound, he shifted his focus to Master Qin. He protected Master Qin every day and provided him with spiritual energy to heal his injuries. After making sure that Master Qin and Jing Wudao were fine, Gu Mingzhou retracted his spiritual sense. He was fully focused on copying and studying the runes given to him by Zhao Qinkuan. It was more profound than the altar's runes, but it could be traced, unlike the altar's runes, which made him helpless. However, it was extremely difficult to form a formation. It wasn't just because of his cultivation, but also because of his experience and talent. There was also the restriction of the heavenly Tao of this world. The maximum power a cultivator could display was at the peak of the mortal realm. Occasionally, people who were ascending would be suppressed and unable to display their full power. Just like a bottle, if the water was not filled, it would be very difficult for it to overflow. To reach the earth realm, one had to comprehend heaven and earth. In this world, the heavenly Tao would not allow cultivators to touch the heaven and earth, so how could they comprehend it? This was also the reason why the floating Jade Island Master and the cultivators who had recultivated for the second time were so desperate to take part in the tribulation. After all, not being able to ascend to the Heaven Realm meant that their cultivation was at most at the Earth Realm. It would be difficult for them to advance further. Gu Mingzhou had to study all the complicated runes repeatedly until he was familiar with them and could directly inscribe the ultimate mortal realm. The entire process was extremely dull and uninteresting and the failures continued. The failures continued, but Gu Mingzhou had no choice. He could only keep copying and try to succeed as soon as possible. Chapter, 393 After the slaughter, freezing cold land finally returned to peace. The waves gradually spread, and the seabirds soared. A huge wave suddenly came from freezing cold land where the sea and the sky met. The wave covered a thousand miles and quickly rushed toward the Zhou dynasty in the north. Soon, the rarely seen wave slapped the southern coast of the great Zhou dynasty. Whoosh! The waves rolled and the flood burst. In an instant, the terrifying ocean water directly swallowed the coastal area within the Zhou dynasty. The whistling waves, the collapse of the houses and trees, and the wails of living beings were like breaking dead branches and weeds as they quickly invaded the Zhou dynasty's shore and spread toward the land. Not only that, even the neighboring countries were struck by the monstrous waves, causing floods and deaths. The continent had shrunk by one-tenth. The land and sand that were originally above the sea were all swallowed by the sea and turned into a vast ocean. The unprepared Zhou dynasty suffered countless casualties. Corpses were strewn across the sea and the land was filled with whales. 
While the Zhou dynasty was putting all of its resources into resisting the flood, it suddenly launched an attack on the east. With great momentum, they quickly took over Persia country and invaded the entire southern half of the Zhou dynasty's land, taking it for themselves. On the other hand, England suddenly gathered its national strength and announced that they would form an alliance with the underwater beast cultivators in freezing cold land. They raised their flags and began to march on the road to the Zhou dynasty. The war between the two countries began. The Tragic Kingdom War began. He Chuan didn't take part in the battle between mortals because he was waiting. He was waiting for someone to make a move against the Zhou dynasty, for example, the world god Su Fenyu. After becoming a supreme cultivator, killing mortals would always be troublesome, so He Chuan left everything to Empress Changning to deal with. A gale without a source suddenly swept through the entire underground palace of the floating Jade Island. Gu Mingzhou, who was sitting in the empty square, opened his eyes slightly in the bone chilling wind. Two rays of light shot out from his eyes. His cultivation base had once again advanced in these short three days. However, Gu Mingzhou had not been able to carve the runes. He had not even been able to leave a mark on the Dao Foundation. The hardness of his Dao Foundation was hard to shake. It was mainly because he had not found the correct inscribing method. He had stopped his cultivation because the three-day period given to him by the floating Jade Island Master was about to arrive, and his days in the underground palace were coming to an end. Gu Mingzhou stood up from the ground and turned to look at the altar behind him. Or rather, he was looking at Zhao Qianquan on the altar. Zhao Qianquan, who was in charge of studying the altar's powerful suppression formation, did not rest at all during Gu Mingzhou's three days of cultivation. He studied the formation day and night. Fortunately, it was a powerful cultivator like Zhao Qianquan. If it were Gu Mingzhou, his spiritual sense would have dried up long ago and he would not be able to continue studying. As if sensing Gu Mingzhou's gaze, Zhao Qianquan, who was floating beside the altar, turned to look at Gu Mingzhou and nodded. After three days and three nights of research, Zhao Qianquan, who had condensed his soul, was also showing a deep sense of fatigue. How is it? Gu Mingzhou could see Zhao Qianquan's fatigue and asked with a little heartache. I didn't let you down. After studying it day and night, I already have some understanding of formations. I've already completely copied it, and it won't be long before I can use it. Gu Mingzhou smiled and bowed to Zhao Qianquan. No need to be so polite. Helping you is also helping myself. Zhao Qianquan floated to Gu Mingzhou's side and said. Before he could finish his sentence, Zhao Qianquan's thin figure suddenly turned into a black ray and entered Gu Mingzhou's Dantian. The sound of light footsteps came from behind Gu Mingzhou. It should be the floating Jade Island Master who is here to bring me out. Gu Mingzhou looked in the direction of the voice. But what surprised Gu Mingzhou was that the owner of the footsteps wasn't the island master of floating Jade Island, but Yi Xiu, whom Gu Mingzhou had met before. Could something have happened? Gu Mingzhou's expression changed slightly. Before he left, floating Jade Island master had said that he would personally come to pick him up three days later. However, the one who came to pick Gu Mingzhou up was not the floating Jade Island master. Instead, it was someone else. Even though Gu Mingzhou knew this person, he still felt that something was amiss. With the identity of the island master of floating Jade Island, regardless of cultivation or status, he had already become a powerful being. He was no different from the emperors of those countries in the Zhou dynasty, so he would naturally keep his word. Since he said that he would come personally, then no matter how busy he was, he should still come. After all, Gu Mingzhou was a powerful cultivator who was on equal footing with him. It was enough for floating Jade Island Master to pay attention to. In the end, the other party did not come. He couldn't help but have doubts about this. Even though Yi Xiu had a smile on his face, worry and nervousness could be seen in his eyes. I'm here on the orders of the king to bring Senior out. He seemed a little anxious and quickly walked down the stone steps. He came to Gu Mingzhou and cupped his hands. He had a very awkward smile on his face and said respectfully. Gu Mingzhou looked at Yi Xiu without saying a word as if he hadn't heard him. Yi Xiu had a strange feeling. I'm here on the king's orders to bring Senior out. Please follow me. 
Yi Xiu repeated his words and turned around to return. However, Yi Xiu didn't move. He turned his head to look at Gu Mingzhou. He was very aware of the airflow around him. He could clearly sense Gu Mingzhou had no intention of moving. Gu Mingzhou had no intention of leaving. Is there anything else, senior? Please leave this place with me. I'm here on the king's orders to bring senior out. This was the third time Yi Xiu had said this to Gu Mingzhou after he had entered. He was clearly anxious and terrified. When Yi Xiu said it for the third time, Gu Mingzhou could sense fear in his expression. Yi Xiu was afraid of Gu Mingzhou. They had chatted before, and they had a great time. Gu Mingzhou's gaze was cold as he looked at Yi Xiu. What do you want to do? Sensing the change in Gu Mingzhou's gaze, Yi Xiu's expression changed drastically, and the fear hidden deep within his heart was revealed. It seemed that something had indeed happened to floating Jade Island Master. Gu Mingzhou didn't say anything, but he came to a conclusion in his heart. He was observing Yi Xiu's performance. Even the slightest change in expression could confirm Gu Mingzhou's thoughts. I'm sorry. The long period of cultivation has caused me to be a little tired, so I was a little dazed and couldn't suppress the spiritual energy in my body. Gu Mingzhou returned to his usual gentleness and apologized to Yi Xiu. No it's fine. Yi Xiu's forehead was covered in a cold sweat. He didn't know if it was because of his nervousness or the pressure from Gu Mingzhou's gaze, but his answer was a bit incoherent. In that case, let's go. Gu Mingzhou said. Yi Xiu was clearly stunned. Gu Mingzhou's words were out of his expectations. All right, please follow me, senior. But in an instant, an excited smile appeared on his face and he nodded repeatedly. Gu Mingzhou had no problem with that. Chapter 394 Yi Xiu bowed and gestured for Gu Mingzhou to go first. His face was very respectful, but Gu Mingzhou could tell he was smiling. Yi Xiu was secretly happy and rejoicing. Was it because he had left this place? The thoughts that had flashed past Gu Mingzhou's mind gradually emerged. Three days ago, the floating Jade Island master asked me to enter the library of the floating Jade Island. Did he tell you about this? Gu Mingzhou suddenly turned his head and said as he passed by Yi Xiu. Oh my, I almost forgot. The king asked me to bring Senior to the library pavilion first. Yi Xiu didn't expect Gu Mingzhou to suddenly speak. He came back to his senses and seemed to have suddenly thought of something. That's good. It seems like I'm fortunate enough to be able to read the cultivation techniques of the floating Jade Island today. Gu Mingzhou nodded in satisfaction and walked up. Yi Xiu followed behind Gu Mingzhou and secretly wiped the sweat off his forehead. He let out a long sigh of relief and hurriedly followed behind Gu Mingzhou, walking up the steps. However, Yi Xiu didn't notice the moment Gu Mingzhou turned around, his face turned cold. The stairs leading to the surface were still in a spiral shape, winding like a dragon, connecting the underground palace to the surface. This was Gu Mingzhou's second time walking up the steps, so he was quite familiar with the way. For some reason, Gu Mingzhou felt a strange silence as he walked up. Gu Mingzhou's pace was very fast, and Yi Xiu followed closely behind. The two of them didn't say anything and just walked quickly toward the ground. Yi Xiu's breathing suddenly became hurried and he began to pant. That was a sign of nervousness. But what was Yi Xiu so nervous about? The light on the ground was getting closer and closer, and the door leading to the depths of the floating jade palace could be vaguely seen. There's something I forgot to ask you. Gu Mingzhou, who was walking forward with his head lowered, suddenly stopped. What? Yi Xiu didn't expect Gu Mingzhou to suddenly stop and almost bump into him. He hurriedly stopped, his face a little panicked. Exterminate. Gu Mingzhou didn't seem to notice Yi Xiu's panic and looked at him. As Gu Mingzhou's voice rang out, an invisible wave of air instantly swept through the long staircase. Yi Xiu sensed something strange. His right hand grabbed the sword at his waist and prepared to pull it out. Let's go. What are you waiting for? A voice suddenly came from in front of Yi Xiu. Yi Xiu followed the sound and saw Gu Mingzhou, who had been standing in front of him, 
had already walked to the door of the palace and was about to step out. In a daze, Yi Xiu immediately let go of the sword at his waist. Although he felt strange, seeing Gu Mingzhou about to step out of the hall, the doubts in his heart disappeared. He quickly chased after Gu Mingzhou. And when Yi Xiu walked towards Gu Mingzhou, the Gu Mingzhou in his eyes also turned around and stepped out, directly walking through the palace doors. Yi Xiu, who was originally calm, suddenly became ferocious the moment he saw Gu Mingzhou walk out of the hall. Countless spiritual energy burst out of his body. The sword at his waist flew out, and he leaped towards the palace door. Kill. His voice was incomparably loud and clear, instantly passing through the hall door and reverberating through the floating jade hall, breaking the original silence. At the same time Yi Xiu's voice rang out, the silence in the rear hall of the floating jade palace was broken. Suddenly, an endless amount of power burst forth, and a terrifyingly large wave of energy swept through the entire floating jade temple. Deafening explosions rang out continuously. The heat waves rolled and dust flew everywhere. The floating jade palace seemed to have set off a storm of energy that could shatter the heavens and earth. It was as if it wanted to annihilate everything within the palace. Countless figures jumped out from all directions, swaying in the dust-filled hall. Yi Xiu raised his sword. As soon as he stepped out of the hall, he raised his sword without thinking and slashed at Gu Mingzhou. Whoosh! A resplendent sword light shot out from the treasured sword in Yi Xiu's hand. It carried boundless power, as if it wanted to split the void apart, and instantly slashed at the figure. Rubble flew and the palace shook slightly. In the dust cloud, a crack that was dozens of meters long appeared and meandered to the corner of the wall. On both sides of this tens of meters long, hideous crack, dust was falling and flying. The broken corpses that were split in half were scattered on both sides of the crack, and hot blood was constantly spurting out of the broken corpses. In the vast rear hall, as the dust settled, several figures were gradually revealed. They had big shoulders and round waists, and they either had human bodies or beast heads. There were turtles, snakes, water dragons, clams, fish, prawns, and dark eels. It was extremely terrifying. There were thousands of them scattered in all directions of the back hall, forming an encirclement. They all looked at Yi Xiu, who was floating in the air, in shock. Ha, ah, I didn't fail my mission. This kid is finally dead. An existence that surpasses the Tao Foundation is only a so so. Yi Xiu floated down from the sky and landed in front of the palace door leading to the underground palace. It was as if he didn't see the gazes of the surrounding beast cultivators. Through the gradually settling dust, he looked at the blurry corpse on the ground and couldn't help but laugh. His voice echoed throughout the floating jade rear hall. However, Yi Xiu didn't get the response he wanted. The back hall was very quiet, and no beast cultivator made a sound. Yi Xiu finally noticed that something was wrong. The excitement on his face gradually faded. His eyes couldn't help but narrow as he looked at the two corpses on both sides of the crack. Not him. How is that possible? Yi Xiu's expression changed drastically as he asked in disbelief. He realized that the body that had been split in half was not Gu Mingzhou, but the underwater beast cultivator with the body of a snake and the head of a man. In other words, his plan had failed. While Yi Xiu was still in disbelief, before he could recover from his shock, a light shout came from behind him. Nothing is impossible. You're not Yi Xiu. The one who died wasn't me. A flaming spear stabbed out from behind Yi Xiu, instantly piercing Yi Xiu's body. Dark red blood spurted out. Yi Xiu didn't even have time to react. His face was still in disbelief as a flaming spear suddenly appeared behind him, instantly piercing through his body. When the spear pierced through his body, Yi Xiu's body rapidly changed. In an instant, it separated from its human body and turned into a giant python. Its body, which was dozens of meters long, wrapped around the spear and twisted continuously. As if sensing the python's counterattack, the pitch black spear turned, and the burning flames instantly spread to the python's body, burning the tens of meters long python into ashes. The spear did not stop at all and suddenly fell. The long spear trembled in the void and turned into a black spear light. 
It flashed with sharp and cold light and shot toward the scattered demon cultivators in the back hall. The spear's shadow filled the sky as it rapidly shuttled through the palace. Blood splattered everywhere, and more than half of the demonic cultivators were injured. In the blink of an eye, the thousands of demonic cultivators fell one after another, and the dust that had just settled flew up again. Cries of alarm and fear. The quiet rear hall exploded with all kinds of screams and exclamations. The beast cultivators who were lucky enough to escape the spear shadows scattered in all directions, extremely panicked. Gu Mingzhou leaped out of the hall. His white shadow fluttered and his figure was like lightning. He instantly caught the falling spear. He looked at the demonic cultivators who were running for their lives in a panic and a cold look flashed in his eyes. Vast Yuan power gushed out of his body and gathered in the spear in his hand. Swish! The spear's radiance illuminated the rear hall and shot out with terrifying power. Chapter 395 The blood was like a fountain, spreading in all directions in the form of waves. Every time blood spurted out, it meant that the demonic cultivator had fallen. In just a few short breaths, corpses covered the entire floating jade rear hall. None of the thousands of demonic cultivators were spared. They all died. Keeping his spear behind him, Gu Mingzhou descended from the sky. His eyes were filled with endless murderous intent and anger. His spiritual sense instantly covered more than half of the floating jade island, but he did not detect any rogue cultivator. The aura of death gave Gu Mingzhou an ominous feeling. Where the spear pointed, thousands of demons would be killed. Gu Mingzhou had noticed the abnormality earlier, but he had suspected the floating jade island master and not Yi Xiu. After continuously testing Yi Xiu, they discovered that there was something strange about him. First of all, Gu Mingzhou had already interacted with Yi Xiu before. He had a certain understanding of Yi Xiu's character and temperament. But Yi Xiu, who was standing in front of Gu Mingzhou just now, gave Gu Mingzhou a completely different feeling. The second reason was Yi Xiu's anxiety and fear. Finally, she asked Yi Xiu about the library. Yi Xiu's answer was the biggest question. Because he had never talked about the library with the floating Jade Island Master, Gu Mingzhou was certain that there was something wrong with Yi Xiu. Before he stepped out of the palace, Gu Mingzhou unhesitatingly used illusion to confuse Yi Xiu. Gu Mingzhou had not used illusions for a long time. This was because the cultivation of his closest enemies was much higher than his. As for illusionary techniques, they were of little value to him. Recently, his cultivation had been constantly increasing and he had reached the peak of this world. He was powerful and had few opponents. Naturally, he did not need to use illusions to confuse his opponents and fight for his life. However, not using it didn't mean that Gu Mingzhou wouldn't use it. However, Gu Mingzhou didn't expect that he would be lucky enough to escape this crisis. What shocked him, even more, was the Yi Xiu he was talking to was an underwater beast cultivator in disguise. This python demonic cultivator's disguise was really impressive. Even though Gu Mingzhou had advanced into the earth realm, he could not see through it and almost fell into its hands. His sharp eyes quickly swept over the floating jade palace. After confirming that all the beast cultivators here were dead, he retracted his gaze and turned to walk out of the palace without hesitation. The floating jade island was filled with an aura of death, causing his heart to palpitate. In addition, as his spiritual sense spread, it almost covered the entire floating jade island, but he still did not detect the aura of the floating jade rogue cultivator. This discovery made Gu Mingzhou's ominous feeling even stronger, and he couldn't help but speed up. From the rear hall of the floating jade island, he arrived at the center of the floating jade island. However, the result was the same as his spiritual sense. There was no aura of the floating jade rogue cultivator, not even a corpse. There was only the thick smell of death. How did this happen? Such a discovery made his premonition even more accurate. This was an outcome that Gu Mingzhou did not want to see. Unfortunately, the truth was right in front of him, and he had no choice but to admit it. Over there. Just as Gu Mingzhou was about to give up, his spiritual sense that had completely covered the floating jade island finally found the aura of the floating jade rogue cultivator. Although it was weak, he was still alive. 
the aura was familiar to him. It's an acquaintance. Gu Mingzhou sped up, leaving behind a shadow as he flew quickly towards the north bank of the floating jade. His spiritual sense swept across the weak aura of the floating jade rogue cultivator. He was on the north bank of the floating jade. Gu Mingzhou, who had unleashed his full power, was almost at his maximum speed. He was even faster than when he had become the floating jade island master. Gu Mingzhou noticed the figure on the beach that had been swallowed by the tide. He immediately landed beside the cultivator and reached out to help him. At this moment, the sky suddenly changed color, and a violent wind suddenly rose. A bright and slender golden beam of light instantly appeared outside the floating jade island. As if it had descended from the sky, it spread rapidly and instantly enveloped the entire floating jade island. The beam of light that enveloped the floating jade island suddenly descended, bringing with it the terrifying power of thunder as it whipped the floating jade island. The floating jade island began to collapse and disintegrate rapidly, falling apart and leaving behind billowing dust. The white shadow flew out from the smoke and dust, shuttling through the golden light that filled the sky. It was frightening but not dangerous, and it dodged all of them. With a single leap, it covered a thousand meters, avoiding the area covered by the fierce golden light. Gu Mingzhou was suspended in the air a thousand meters away. He looked at the golden light pillar that had exhausted its power and the sinking floating jade island. His expression became more and more unsightly, and a strong killing intent filled his eyes. Gu Mingzhou flew across the vast sea, looking for a place to land. This was because he was still holding the only surviving rogue cultivator in his arms. This cultivator was seriously injured. Not only were his meridians broken, but the tendons in his limbs were also broken. His face had also been disfigured, and he no longer looked like he was before. Even so, cultivators had a strong will to survive. Under the torture of pain, he still maintained his last breath. His determination moved Gu Mingzhou. He had to save him. Moreover, Floating Jade Island had been destroyed, and it was very likely all the rogue cultivators had died or were injured. If Gu Mingzhou wanted to know what had happened to the Floating Jade Island, he could only rely on this remaining rogue cultivator. However, Gu Mingzhou did not expect that Floating Jade Island would sink. He, who was galloping at full speed, could not find a foothold within a hundred miles. With the sinking of the Floating Jade Island, the freezing cold land no longer had any land. Not even a single rock existed. There was no place to stay, which meant that Gu Mingzhou could not treat this floating jade individual cultivator. Rogue cultivator floating jade's injuries were very serious and he had to be treated as soon as possible. Otherwise, there was really no way to save him. After hesitating for a moment, Gu Mingzhou saw that the rogue cultivator in his arms was getting weaker and weaker. He made up his mind and sank into the freezing cold sea. If there was no land on the surface of the sea, he would go to the bottom of the sea. Gu Mingzhou knew that the bottom of the extreme cold sea was definitely very dangerous, but in order to save this floating jade independent cultivator, who was likely to be the only one left, he had to take the risk. A cold aura surrounded Gu Mingzhou, and it was bone chilling. Gu Mingzhou quickly activated the spiritual energy in his body and continuously poured it into rogue cultivator Fuyu's body, maintaining his vitality and keeping him warm. Gu Mingzhou's speed was very fast. As an earth cultivator, he brought the unconscious man and quickly sank into the freezing cold sea. Soon, they reached the bottom of the freezing cold sea, which was more than 300 meters deep. The seabed of the freezing cold land hadn't changed much when he left. This place was always in darkness, where the radiance of the sun, moon, and stars could not be popularized. There would be light rays occasionally, but they would only leave behind twisted green rays above. As the ripples gradually faded, they gradually dissipated. The darkness that brought about the depths of the freezing cold land not light. The situation at the bottom of the sea was a little unexpected. It was not as dangerous as he had expected. On the contrary, it was a calm and gentle scene. It was quiet everywhere and seemed particularly harmonious. It looked calm, but the storm that was coming was even more terrifying. He quickly spread out his spiritual sense and in the blink of an eye, it covered an area of a hundred miles. He confirmed that it was safe and there was no ambush. 
Gu Mingzhou immediately led the rogue cultivator and quickly hid in a lush coral reef, scaring away all the various dormant sea tribe creatures. Immediately after, he impatiently bandaged up the rogue cultivator of floating Jade Island's injuries. Then, he circulated their spiritual energy to help clear their meridians and nourish their injuries. Chapter 396 This was an extremely cumbersome and time-consuming process, and he only stopped when his spiritual sense was somewhat depleted. Even so, it could only heal half of the rogue cultivator's injuries and suppress the wound, but it could no longer continue the treatment. Rogue cultivator of the floating Jade Island's injuries were too severe. From inside to outside, there was almost no normal part of his body. His face was disfigured, the tendons in his arms and legs were cut off, his meridians were broken, and his internal organs were severely injured. Even the Tao Foundation built in his Dantian had collapsed and scattered. He was several times more miserable than Gu Mingzhou, who had been trapped in the dungeon. With Gu Mingzhou's current ability, he could not cure her in a short time. At most, he could only extend his life for a few days. Her injuries were too serious. It would be much easier if Master Qin was here. Gu Mingzhou missed Master Qin even more now. If Master Qin wasn't injured, he would definitely be able to do much more than Gu Mingzhou. The magical instant treatment method was enough to make up for what Gu Mingzhou had done. Given Master Qin's current situation, Gu Mingzhou would naturally not let him appear. Save me. Just as Gu Mingzhou was at his wit's end, the unconscious floating Jade Island's rogue cultivator suddenly made a weak sound. His right hand, which was somewhat distorted, weakly tugged at Gu Mingzhou's robe and cried for help in panic. Are you alright? Gu Mingzhou quickly grabbed the rogue cultivator's weak right hand, leaned over to check the situation, and asked softly. His face was completely disfigured and the wounds on his face had already begun to scab. His empty eye sockets were deeply sunken, making him look extremely terrifying. His eyes had been gouged out. Senior Gu Mingzhou Just as Gu Mingzhou had thought, this rogue cultivator knew Gu Mingzhou. However, he was unrecognizable, so Gu Mingzhou could not recognize him. It's alright, don't be nervous. Gu Mingzhou patted the wandering jade cultivator's shoulder and comforted him. Senior Gu. I'm Yi Xiu, do you still remember me? After confirming Gu Mingzhou's identity, the floating jade rogue cultivator seemed a little excited. His injured body could not help but tremble. You're Yi Xiu. Gu Mingzhou's face was filled with shock. He finally knew where that familiar aura came from. When he pretended to be an underwater beast cultivator, he subconsciously thought Yi Xiu had died. If the underwater beast cultivator chose to impersonate Yi Xiu, he had to make sure the real Yi Xiu couldn't appear. He hadn't expected the only rogue cultivator left on floating Jade Island that he had saved was the real Yi Xiu. Of course, the current Yi Xiu didn't have his original heroic bearing. He had become a cripple. Moreover, he was a cripple who didn't have long to live. Gu Mingzhou's heart ached at this result. Senior, I'm Yi Xiu. I beg you, please save the floating Jade Island. Yi Xiu didn't know what Gu Mingzhou was thinking. After confirming Gu Mingzhou's identity, he changed the direction of his call for help. To Yi Xiu, his life and death were nothing compared to the hundreds of thousands of rogue cultivators on floating Jade Island. Moreover, Yi Xiu knew his own body's condition, so when he found out the person next to him was Gu Mingzhou, his first reaction was to beg Gu Mingzhou to save floating Jade Island. Yi Xiu knew Gu Mingzhou was an existence on par with the island master of Floating Jade Island. There was no problem in protecting Floating Jade Island. However, Gu Mingzhou subconsciously fell silent when he heard Yi Xiu's words. He didn't know how to answer Yi Xiu. He wanted to save Floating Jade Island, but he was too late. Don't get too excited. The Floating Jade Island is fine now. Gu Mingzhou decided to hide the destruction of the floating Jade Island and comforted her. Is this true? Yi Xiu's eye sockets, which had lost their eyeballs, trembled. His hands were twisted into strange shapes, and he weakly grabbed Gu Mingzhou's robe. His entire body was trembling as he spoke. The floating Jade Island is fine now. Gu Mingzhou confirmed when he saw the excited Yi Xiu. That's good. 
Yi Xiu's trembling body gradually calmed down, as if he could finally let go of the things in his heart. Gu Mingzhou released some spiritual energy from his body and silently entered Yi Xiu's body to help him calm down. He then asked, What happened? Where did the floating Jade Island Master go? Gu Mingzhou had a conclusion in his heart. From the way the underwater beast cultivators ambushed him, he had already guessed most of it. He only wanted to know how the underwater beast cultivators attacked Floating Jade Island, and where did the rogue cultivators on Floating Jade Island go? The question that he was most puzzled about. With such a huge incident happening on Floating Jade Island, where was the island master? Killed. He would not believe it. It was almost impossible to kill cultivators in the earth realm, especially Kuenpeng, in this world. Even Su Fengyu would not be able to stop Floating Jade Island Master if he were to flee. Since it was impossible for Floating Jade Island Master to be dead, where was he? Ever since he walked out of the underground palace, he had many questions in his heart. The king has gone to the great Zhou dynasty. Yi Xiu, who had calmed down again, revealed a bitter smile and said helplessly. Floating Jade Island Master is going to the Zhou dynasty. Such an answer made Gu Mingzhou very confused. Putting aside the distance between the three islands and the Zhou dynasty, the enmity between the Zhou dynasty's cultivators and the rogue cultivators in the freezing cold land was enough to stop the rogue cultivators in the sea of the freezing cold land from entering the Zhou dynasty. As floating Jade Island master, how could he go to the Zhou dynasty in person and ask for a snub? Or was there something in the Zhou dynasty that attracted floating Jade Island master? But this didn't make sense. With the status of floating Jade Island Master, what did the Zhou Dynasty have that attracted him? Moreover, floating Jade Island had just experienced a disaster and there were many things to be done. How could the Island Master leave at this time? Yi Xiu's answer made him completely confused. Yesterday, the king received news that millions of demon cultivators from the ocean had appeared around the Zhou Dynasty. They seemed to have allied with the people and England to overthrow the Zhou dynasty. Yi Xiu could feel Gu Mingzhou's shock from his tone, so he explained. Gu Mingzhou was extremely surprised, no less surprised than when he heard the floating Jade Island master had gone to the Zhou dynasty. After the king learned of this, he gathered the rogue cultivators of the floating Jade Island and formed an army. They marched toward the Zhou dynasty to provide assistance. Yi Xiu weakly said. Those underwater beast cultivators are taking this opportunity to attack Floating Jade Island. Gu Mingzhou had a rough idea of what had happened on Floating Jade Island. They're too despicable. The moment the king left, they attacked. Furthermore, they used the night to activate a powerful formation, killing tens of thousands of rogue cultivators almost instantly. The one leading the demonic cultivator army was still Li Huang. He hated the three great rogue cultivator islands the most. He heard that his parents were killed by rogue cultivators. Therefore, he didn't hesitate to give the order to kill the weak floating Jade Islands cultivator. Yi Xiu's face revealed pain and anger. Putting aside Li Huang's identity, it was very close to what Gu Mingzhou had guessed. Li Huang was the one who reduced you to this state. Gu Mingzhou asked. The underwater beast cultivators were decisive in killing and had directly massacred the entire floating Jade Island. Why did they keep Yi Xiu? This made Gu Mingzhou very confused. Unless Li Huang had done this on purpose. That's right, it was done by that damned Li Huang. In order for his subordinate to impersonate me, he used a secret technique to cut off the skin on my face and cripple my cultivation Yi Xiu said painfully, but then he seemed to have suddenly thought of something. Chapter, 397 I've already killed the imposter. Gu Mingzhou gestured for him to stabilize. The fake Yi Xiu did not plot against the island master of floating Jade Island. Instead, he went to the underground palace and framed Gu Mingzhou. Unfortunately, he failed to kill Gu Mingzhou and lost his life instead. Swallowfish is good at illusionary techniques, and with its thick skin, it's easy for it to pass off the fake as the real one and gain the king's trust. Fortunately, I met Senior. Hearing that the fake beast cultivator was dead, Yi Xiu said in relief. Swallow fish clan. Gu Mingzhou asked, puzzled. 
He remembered that when he had killed Yi Xiao in the rear hall of Floating Jade, he had revealed his true form as a python. What's wrong? Yi Xiao heard the confusion and quickly asked. It's nothing. I personally killed the fake Yi Xiao. Gu Mingzhou confirmed. You really thought you killed a fake Yi Xiao? His voice was loud and clear, spreading throughout the coral reef. Li Huang. Yi Xiao suddenly sat up. Yi Xiao was extremely familiar with Li Huang's voice. Before he could finish his sentence, Li Huang's burly body flew out from behind the coral. He floated in the sea and looked at Gu Mingzhou. Countless figures appeared around the coral reef that Gu Mingzhou was hiding in. There were nearly 10,000 beast cultivators who surrounded the coral reef. The beast cultivators' positions fit perfectly with the formation. The beast cultivators who surrounded the coral reefs had already set up the formation the moment they came out. Perhaps because of this, they dared to attack the powerful Gu Mingzhou. To tell you the truth, the one you killed was just a beast cultivator who knew illusionary techniques. Li Huang stepped on the seawater and said to Gu Mingzhou. Don't worry, I won't let him live until tomorrow's sunset. Gu Mingzhou stretched out his right hand in the air, and a long spear appeared out of thin air. It was burning with flames and exuded a monstrous fighting spirit. We've even destroyed the massive floating jade island. Do you think you're our match? Li Huang said disdainfully, appearing to be fearless. What? What did he just say? Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to reply, Yi Xiao, who had just sat up, exclaimed. Don't listen to anything now. Wait for me. Gu Mingzhou replied. Since he won't tell you, I'll tell you Li Huang immediately revealed a playful smile. A majestic spiritual energy poured out of Gu Mingzhou's body, and his long spear whistled as it pierced Li Huang. The spear's radiance flickered, bringing with it monstrous flames. It burned the surrounding seawater, causing white smoke to billow as it headed straight for Li Huang. There is no more floating jade island in the freezing cold land. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's sharp spear coming at him, Li Huang was not afraid at all and continued to speak. Gu Mingzhou's long spear instantly reached Li Huang. Just as the sharp spear's radiance was about to pierce through Li Huang, the dazzling golden beam of light that had appeared when he destroyed the floating jade island suddenly appeared out of thin air and whipped the spear's radiance. Bang! A muffled sound came from the bottom of the sea, and countless ripples spread in all directions. Gu Mingzhou, who had attacked aggressively, was directly sent flying back. The powerful force from the spear handle shook the spear in his hand. What a powerful formation! Gu Mingzhou's gaze fell on the nearly 10,000 beast cultivators who had surrounded them. The golden light was produced by gathering the power of these individual cultivators. Are you surprised? Li Huang looked at Gu Mingzhou proudly and said. However, before Li Huang could finish his sentence, a heart wrenching cry of alarm sounded from the bottom of the sea. Li Huang, I'm going to kill you. After learning the truth, Yi Xiao shakily stood up from the bottom of the ocean. Two streams of bloody tears flowed out of his empty eyes. Although he couldn't see anything, he was still looking at Li Huang's position. Stupid blind man, you still dare to talk big. After I kill Gu Mingzhou, I'll come back and skin you alive. Li Huang's heart palpitated from Yi Xiao's stare, and he subconsciously took two steps back. Li Huang raised his hand at the surrounding demon cultivators. A resplendent golden light appeared in the air above the coral reefs, exuding a terrifying destructive power. It pointed at Gu Mingzhou from afar and also enveloped Yi Xiao. Gu Mingzhou couldn't help but tighten his grip on his spear. He cautiously stared at the five rays of light above his head and slowly retreated behind Yi Xiao. Although the dazzling golden light was terrifying, Gu Mingzhou could still dodge it. However, if Gu Mingzhou dodged, then the heavily injured Yi Xiao would probably not be able to escape death. Gu Mingzhou was ready to take the terrifying light head on. Li Huang saw this and knew Gu Mingzhou wouldn't give up on Yi Xiao, so he had his subordinates surround Yi Xiao within their attack range. Seeing that Gu Mingzhou had fallen into his trap, a cold smile appeared on his face, and his raised right hand fell. Do it! As Li Huang spoke, 
the five terrifying rays of light suspended above the coral descended and whipped at Gu Mingzhou with extreme speed. Gu Mingzhou's vast spiritual energy swept out from his body. The long spear burning with flames stabbed towards the falling light. Even though he knew he would be injured if he took the five rays of light head-on, Gu Mingzhou still chose to take them head-on. If he dodged, Yi Xiu would die. No one expected the terrifying golden light to collide with the spear. A black shadow scuttled out. Its already broken body instantly burst out with a dazzling light, emitting a blazing flame from the inside out like a scorching sun. It rushed in front of the long spear and collided with the terrifying bright light. Boom! The bright flames instantly lit up the bottom of the sea. It was a bright red like blood, emerging from the raging flames and instantly illuminating the entire bottom of the sea. Countless balls of fire burst out and flew in all directions. The seawater couldn't extinguish it, and the pressure couldn't stop it. The entire seabed of the freezing cold land seemed to have been ignited. When Yi Xiu learned of the floating Jade Island's misfortune, just like the previous clan leader, at the last moment of his life, he resolutely chose to use the most brilliant method. The flames that had burned thousands of miles under the freezing cold sea were Yi Xiu's final flames of anger, the flames of unwillingness. Gu Mingzhou roared. Not waiting for Li Huang to react to Yi Xiu's self-destruction, he instantly landed in front of Li Huang and stabbed out with the blood spear in his hand. Li Huang looked at Gu Mingzhou in disbelief. He opened his mouth slightly, but no sound came out. He lowered his head unwillingly. When Gu Mingzhou's first attack was blocked by the formation, Li Huang's confidence increased greatly. He thought he could stand on the edge of the formation and not fear Gu Mingzhou's attack. However, Li Huang would never have thought that Yi Xiu, who had been tortured into a cripple and left behind his aura to attract Gu Mingzhou, would actually unleash a shaking array formation when his meridians were broken. It was enough for Gu Mingzhou. The spear pierced through Li Huang, but Gu Mingzhou did not show any mercy. He lifted Li Huang's body up and threw him into the monstrous flames behind him. He was devoured by the flames in the blink of an eye and turned into ashes. Gu Mingzhou, with a cold expression, appeared behind the beast cultivators outside the coral and raised his long spear. A cold light flashed, and blood splattered. His figure changed again, and the same spear swept out. Gu Mingzhou, who had escaped the array, did not stop at all. He swam around the coral that was engulfed by the monstrous flames. His body was like lightning, and his spear was sharp. The monster cultivators fell into the burning flames and turned into ashes. Gu Mingzhou was like a ghost, constantly changing his position and wandering among the nearly 10,000 beast cultivators. He was simply brandishing his spear and carrying out the most primitive slaughter. Chapter 398 As the beast cultivators fell one after another, the remaining beast cultivators who set up the formation finally noticed Gu Mingzhou's change, and infinite horror struck their hearts. Wails and cries of alarm rang out continuously. The seawater churned and ripples gradually appeared. The beast cultivators who had yet to be attacked by Gu Mingzhou began to flee in all directions in a panic. In their hearts, Gu Mingzhou was simply a devil from hell. He was even more terrifying than the Su Fenyu they feared. After all, his lord's terrifying power was to directly kill a large number of people. He did not cause the demonic cultivators to feel fear at all and had already killed them. But Gu Mingzhou was different. He didn't use any spell techniques and continued to move and swing his spear as if harvesting wheat, but was taking lives. The fear that gradually rose in their hearts was something that the remaining beast cultivators could not bear. They were extremely panicked and uneasy. Gu Mingzhou's face was expressionless and there were no changes. He mechanically repeated his previous actions. His body was like lightning, and he waved his long spear, causing the demon cultivator's corpse to fall continuously. It was a one-sided vengeful massacre. Even though Gu Mingzhou knew that these beast cultivators were under Su Fenyu's orders, the sinking of floating Jade Island and Yi Xiu's self-destruction with strong unwillingness and despair kept appearing in Gu Mingzhou's mind, forcing him to kill. The fire was burning, the blood was flowing, and the demonic cultivators were getting fewer and fewer. As time passed, 
no matter where the beast cultivators fled to or how far they ran, as long as they were the underwater beast cultivators who had participated in the formation, they were all killed by Gu Mingzhou without exception. Under the long spear, he was beheaded. In a short period of time, nearly 10,000 demonic cultivators were slaughtered. The beast heads were all burned to ashes by the long spear in Gu Mingzhou's hand. Gu Mingzhou was holding a memorial. Using the head of nearly 10,000 beast cultivators to accompany Yi Xiu's self-destruction. The seawater churned endlessly, and the scattered flames ignited the surrounding underwater plants, finally beginning to gradually extinguish. Even the flames of the coral reefs, which had the most blazing flames, started to weaken as the huge coral reef was burned to ashes. Gu Mingzhou, who had killed all the demon cultivators, threw his long spear and suddenly stabbed it into the sea beside him. An intense muffled sound suddenly rang out. The long spear stabbed into the seabed, and a ferocious crack that was a thousand meters long quickly spread out. Then, Gu Mingzhou reached out and grabbed the handle of the spear. He pulled it out suddenly and stabbed it into the sea not far away. Another crack spread, and with a dull sound like an earthquake, it shook the seawater. The two cracks connected from head to tail, forming a circle. Gu Mingzhou shouted angrily. The ground, which was nearly a hundred meters deep, was like an island on the bottom of the sea. It was forcibly lifted up by the spear. The ground that Gu Mingzhou's spear had lifted up was instantly thrown to the burnt coral group and turned into a mound of soil at the bottom of the sea. He was building a grave for Yi. Or sea burial. Don't worry, I won't let the beast cultivator who impersonated you live until tomorrow. Gu Mingzhou said softly as he looked at the seabed mound that was nearly a hundred meters high. Two rays of cold light shot out from Gu Mingzhou's eyes. Gu Mingzhou's spear once again left his body, carrying a terrifying power as it rapidly shot toward the surface of the sea. He directly stood on the spear. Gu Mingzhou, who was flying on his spear, instantly broke through the sea and soared in the blue sky, continuing to fly in the direction of the Zhou dynasty. The monstrous killing intent in his heart dissipated. The sun shone with golden light, spreading over the Zhou dynasty. The coastal area, which should have been full of vitality, was now filled with the smell of blood. Spiritual energy shot out in all directions in the Crystal Element mountain range, which was covered in corpses and a river of blood. The blood-stained floating Jade Island Master's dragon robe fluttered in the wind. With a grim expression, he continuously launched fierce attacks at his surroundings. Around the floating Jade Island Master, five peak mortal realm demonic cultivators were constantly wandering in the void around the floating Jade Island Master. With special steps, they formed a formation and imprisoned the floating Jade Island Master. The five mortal realm cultivators did not fight with the Island Master of Floating Jade Island. They only dodged his fierce attacks. This was because their goal was to trap the master of floating Jade Island. Seeing the swift and fierce attacks easily dodged by the five of them once again, an ominous feeling rose in the slightly tired face of the floating Jade Island master. He began to regret his decision to come to their aid. The formation formed by the five peak mortal realm individual cultivators were obviously prepared to deal with the floating Jade Island master. This meant that the underwater beast cultivators in England had already known that he was coming when he disappeared. In other words, the support of the floating Jade Island Master was a trap set up by the underwater beast cultivators in England against the floating Jade Island Master. The floating Jade Island Master, who had brought a hundred thousand rogue cultivators to assist them, had just flown into the coastal area of the Zhou Dynasty when he was ambushed and trapped there. The floating Jade Island Master did not continue to attack. He looked at the five demon cultivators of the mortal realm who were constantly wandering around and then turned his eyes to the south where the waves were constantly surging in the direction of the freezing cold land. That was the location of the floating jade island, causing him to feel uneasy and somewhat dazed. The freezing cold land was boundless. The three islands in the depths of the sea were thousands of miles away from the Zhou dynasty. If the cultivators of the Zhou dynasty wanted to travel from the Zhou continent to the three big islands, or if the cultivators of the freezing cold land wanted to travel from the three big islands to the Zhou continent, the mortal realm cultivators had to fly day and night, and it would take three months. Even if they hated each other, it was only because they fought each other every hundred years. 
the distance between the two sides was simply too far. However, such a distance was not a problem for Kuen Peng, who was famous for its speed. As the ancient scripture said, it could soar up to 90,000 miles. The Kuen Peng speed was said to be able to fly 9,000 miles with a flap of its wings. Its speed was so fast that it left people speechless. The floating Jade Island master was Kuen Peng, so his speed was self evident. After learning about the great changes in the coastal area of the Zhou dynasty, the floating Jade Island master summoned all the individual cultivators on the island without hesitation. He directly revealed his true form and used the body of the Kuen Peng to carry a hundred thousand individual cultivators. In just one night, they arrived at the coastal area of the Zhou dynasty. In the floating Jade Island master's opinion, if he were to go all out, it would only take a night for him to travel between the Zhou dynasty continent and the floating Jade Island. Even if the underwater demonic cultivators took the opportunity to attack the floating Jade Island, he could use the newly improved floating Jade Array to stop them. It would be enough for him to return from the Zhou dynasty. However, the floating Jade Island master did not expect he would be ambushed by the underwater beast cultivators the moment he arrived at the Zhou dynasty's coastal area. He was trapped and unable to escape, so he could not take care of Floating Jade Island. Furthermore, the Floating Jade Island master did not know that when he arrived at the Zhou dynasty with a hundred thousand demonic cultivators, their base camp, Floating Jade Island, had been conquered by underwater demonic cultivators. There was no longer any Floating Jade Island in the vast and boundless extremely cold sea. The hundred thousand Floating Jade independent cultivators, who were bathed in blood, also didn't know that their homeland had been destroyed. The floating Jade Island master's right eyelid twitched for no reason. This feeling made him feel even more uneasy. However, no matter how anxious he was, the island master of floating Jade Island could not break through in a short time. Chapter, 399 The island master of floating Jade Island, who had been in the earth realm for many years, did not take the five mortal realm demon cultivators seriously at all. Now, he had to pay attention to them. Of course, Floating Jade Island Master was well aware that the formation set up by the five demon cultivators must have been Su Feng Yu's work. Only the world god who had escaped had the ability to create a formation to restrain the earth realm cultivators. According to Floating Jade Island Master's personality, he had never been interested in killing. He was more focused on cultivating a calm heart. This was also the reason why he chose not to interfere with the affairs of the world after he took control of the floating Jade Island. However, when he found out Su Feng Yu had reappeared in the world, he knew that he could not live a life of seclusion. Thinking back to the Great Battle a thousand years ago, floating Jade Island Master could guess what Su Feng Yu would do after he escaped. Therefore, he had no choice but to stop Su Feng Yu. Even if he wasn't confident. Five demon cultivators at the peak of the mortal realm kept walking around the island master of floating Jade Island. They saw the floating Jade Island master stop attacking, but they did not dare to let their guard down. If not for the array that his master had bestowed upon them, they would not have been able to withstand even a single blow from floating Jade Island master. The island master of floating Jade Island could not use all of his power now, but it was easy for him to deal with a mortal realm cultivator. The mortal realm and the earth realm seemed to be only one realm apart, but the gap between the two was a qualitative leap. It could be said to be a world of difference. Just as Zhao Qinkuan had said, the beginning of cultivation in the heavenly realm was classified as the earth realm. Only by entering the earth realm could one be considered to have truly stepped onto the road of cultivation. In other words, all the realms before the earth realm were not considered to have touched the threshold of cultivation. The mortal realm was considered half a cultivator. This was the difference between the earth realm and the mortal realm. Floating Jade Island Master stood proudly in the air with his hands behind his back. He coldly observed the five beast cultivators wandering around, trying to find a flaw. The restrictions and suppression of the formation had temporarily restricted the island master of Floating Jade Island. He could not even reveal his true body and could only stay here for the time being, causing him to become more and more anxious. While observing the five demonic cultivators, floating Jade Island Master extended his spiritual sense north along the mountain range. He was checking for reinforcements. 
Logically speaking, Floating Jade Island Master was here to reinforce the coastal areas of the Zhou Dynasty. Now that he had been ambushed, the cultivators of the Zhou Dynasty could not possibly ignore it. However, even after such a long time, the Zhou Dynasty's reinforcements still had not appeared. The overflowing spiritual consciousness returned to the mind of the Floating Jade Island Master, and his last hope for the Zhou Dynasty disappeared. No matter what the reason was, it was an ironclad fact they had not come to support the floating jade rogue cultivator. The island master of floating jade island began to regret his wrong decision in coming to help. Flames shot out from the vast freezing cold sea. The spear was burning with flames as it broke through the waves. It whistled through the air and arrived in front of the mountain range in an instant. Then, it suddenly stabbed toward the position of the floating jade island master. You're finally here. Floating Jade Island Master looked at the rapidly approaching flaming spear. His originally tired and troubled face immediately revealed a smile that carried an inexplicable bitterness. Because he sensed the monstrous killing intent. The spear radiance was sharp and the flames danced. The blazing sun in the sky lost its radiance, and the world dimmed. It was as if there was only the rapidly approaching spear in the heavens and earth. Wherever it passed, a strong wind blew and the void cracked. The five mortal realm demonic cultivators' calm expressions all changed, and their steps couldn't help but become a little messy. As the long spear approached, the five demon cultivators couldn't bear the terrifying pressure of the spear light. They gave up on setting up the formation, activated the spiritual energy in their bodies, and fled in all directions. The five demonic cultivators knew that floating Jade Island Master had a powerful cultivation and could sense the terrifying strength of the owner of the flaming spear. Therefore, they instantly chose to flee in all directions. This was because they would only lose two of their companions at most, while the other three would have a chance to escape back to the freezing cold sea. However, the five demonic cultivators had underestimated the strength of floating Jade Island Master and Gu Mingzhou's anger. A sharp and clear bird cry rang out. As the demonic cultivators fled in all directions, floating Jade Island Master, who had lost the suppression of the formation, did not hesitate and instantly returned to his Kuanpeng form. It suddenly spread its wings and covered a hundred miles. The Kuanpeng, which was so large that it covered the sky, only flapped its wings slightly and instantly caught up with the fleeing mortal realm demonic cultivator. Its sharp claws, which were shining with cold light, reached out. Pfft. Fresh blood sprayed into the air. The back of the escaping beast cultivator was pierced by the sharp claws and he died on the spot. Floating Jade Island Master, who had transformed into a Kuanpeng, did not stop. He threw the corpse away with his sharp claws and immediately swept towards another demonic cultivator. The fiery spear seemed to have predicted the escape of Floating Jade Island Master. It quickly changed its direction and stabbed toward the beast cultivators near the coast of the Zhou dynasty. Blood spurted out as the spear pierced his body. The beast cultivator's body, which was flying through the air at high speed, fell into the freezing cold sea with a parabolic trajectory. The waves swallowed the corpses. The Kuanpeng that floating Jade Island Master had transformed into caught up with another demonic cultivator and extended its sharp claws. The corpse fell to the ground. Within two breaths, three of the five powerful demon cultivators at the peak of the mortal realm had been killed, and more than half of them had died. The sharp flaming spear and the golden-winged Kuanpeng changed their direction almost at the same time and attacked the remaining two demonic cultivators. His speed was as fast as lightning. The spear and the claw pierced through two bodies. Blood spattered like water. The two lifeless bodies fell from the sky like a zither with a broken string. The Kuanpeng changed its direction again and flew toward the mountain. The light of the mountains was covered, and the sky was blocked. The intense battle stopped. The tired floating jade rogue cultivator's spirit was greatly roused as he shouted. As for the England cultivators and the underwater beast cultivator army, they had already lost their combat power when the floating jade island master escaped. They were defeated and began to retreat. Floating Jade Island Master, who was shrouding the mountain range, did not dive down, nor did he begin to massacre the demonic cultivators who had been defeated. Instead, 
he transformed back into his human form and stared at the flaming spear as if he was waiting for something. Floating Jade Island Master was indeed waiting because he had too many questions to ask. The flaming long spear did not stop, but instead went towards the demonic cultivator army that was retreating like a tide. Before the spear arrived, the pressure had already arrived. The long spear that whistled out burst forth with countless spear lights, instantly entering the defeated army. Fresh blood sprayed out, creating a beautiful scene. None of the demonic cultivators were spared, and they died instantly. The white figure descended from the sky and grabbed the flaming spear that was shooting back. A violent gust of wind whistled past, sweeping toward the retreating England army. The floating jade loose cultivators didn't press on with their victory. Instead, they looked at the young man in white who was standing with a spear in his hand. He looked very ordinary, but in the eyes of the floating jade secret practitioners and the England army, no cultivator would think that he was ordinary. Even though he was dressed very ordinarily, he was definitely not ordinary in everyone's hearts. Especially in the eyes of the retreating England army, Gu Mingzhou was like a demon. Chapter 400 Killing thousands of demonic cultivators with a single spear strike was something that had never happened in the history of the Zhou dynasty. Not only in the Zhou dynasty but even in the freezing cold land and the three rogue cultivator islands, there was an unwritten rule that overly powerful cultivators were not allowed to kill low-level cultivators. Otherwise, no matter how strong an army was, they would only be slaughtered when they encountered powerful cultivators. This was also the reason why He Chuan had not appeared. Unless he was a madman like Meng Ao, who wanted to destroy the Zhou dynasty and surround the capital. Otherwise, He Chuan wouldn't care about wars and low-level cultivators. This was because the world was made up of natural selection. It was fine as long as the people around him were not hurt. Floating Jade Island Master had the same reason. After killing the mortal realm demonic cultivator, he only boosted the morale of the enemy and allowed them to retreat. He didn't attack. However, Gu Mingzhou had done many things no one dared to do, and things He Chuan disdained to do. This was not the first time he had done this. At the bottom of the sea in the freezing cold land, Gu Mingzhou had already killed nearly 10,000 demon cultivators. In addition to the demonic cultivators he had killed this time, as well as the nearly thousand demonic cultivators he had killed in the rear hall of floating Jade Island. He had killed more than 10,000 underwater demon cultivators. If news of this spread, it would definitely shake the entire cultivation world. With Gu Mingzhou's current cultivation, even if he shocked the world, he would not be afraid. The floating Jade Island master had just recovered from his shock. Gu Mingzhou's speed was too fast, and he had killed nearly a thousand demonic cultivators in an instant. This made him a little worried. What you've done is a little too much. If this matter is known to the world, I'm afraid cultivators will form an alliance to besiege you. Floating Jade Island Master came in front of Gu Mingzhou and said in a deep voice as he felt the monstrous killing intent emanating from him. He looked at the Floating Jade Island Master and said. I've already killed more than 10,000 demonic cultivators on the Floating Jade Island. Gu Mingzhou temporarily suppressed the anger in his heart and the monstrous killing intent in his body. The island master of Floating Jade Island could sense the dissatisfaction in Gu Mingzhou's words. Is it because I didn't go to the underground palace to pick him up? That was the only thing he could think of at the moment. The situation was urgent before. England joined forces with the underwater beast cultivators and suddenly attacked the Zhou dynasty. I was worried Su Fengyu might have some conspiracy, so I came to the rescue in a hurry. I couldn't go to the underground palace to pick you up. Please forgive me. Floating Jade Island Master explained. I can forgive you, but I wonder if the other rogue cultivators on the island can forgive your behavior. Gu Mingzhou shouted coldly. What's wrong with the Floating Jade Island? Floating Jade Island Master hurriedly asked. From today on, there will be no more Floating Jade Island. Gu Mingzhou replied coldly. What did you just say? Floating Jade Island Master trembled as a majestic aura burst out of his body and soared into the Nine Heavens. When you left the Floating Jade Island with a hundred thousand rogue cultivators, the Floating Jade Island was ambushed. Now, the island has been destroyed and everyone is dead. 
Gu Mingzhou's voice was deliberately infused with spiritual energy. When it entered the ears of floating Jade Island Master, it spread throughout the mountain range. The floating jade rogue cultivators, who were immersed in the joy of victory, were pulled into the abyss by this voice. What? The floating jade island has been destroyed. That's impossible. I don't believe it. How could the floating jade island be destroyed? First, it was doubt, then rebuttal, followed by debate. In the end, all that was left was endless sorrow and wailing. Most of the rogue cultivators who were brought to the continent of Zhou dynasty by floating Jade Island Master had their family members left on the island. The destruction of the floating Jade Island meant the destruction of their families. This was also the reason why Gu Mingzhou was unhappy with the floating Jade Island Master. If he wasn't prepared, he wouldn't have left the floating Jade Island with these rogue cultivators. These floating Jade rogue cultivators might not lose their families and become loner you'll lose their morale. Floating Jade Island Master's eyes were red as he looked at Gu Mingzhou and said in a deep voice. Even though Floating Jade Island Master was heartbroken and remorseful over the destruction of the Floating Jade Island, the morale of the rogue cultivators was very important at this critical juncture. Now that the Floating Jade Island had been destroyed, the rogue cultivators had no choice but to stay in the Zhou Dynasty. This place had indirectly become their home. At this time, the rise and fall of morale were naturally extremely important. However, the news that Gu Mingzhou brought was enough to destroy the morale of the 100,000 floating jade rogue cultivators. Because they have the right to know the news because the floating jade island is filled with their relatives. Gu Mingzhou's gaze shifted from floating jade island master to the tens of thousands of rogue cultivators below. Floating jade island master was silent. He had nothing to say. If one were to say who was the saddest, it would definitely be the floating Jade Island's individual cultivators who were lucky enough to survive, not the floating Jade Island master. After all, his friends and family had either ascended to the heavenly realm or died in the long years. Let them cry. That will make me feel better. Gu Mingzhou returned to his usual self and said a little sadly. Floating Jade Island master merely nodded before turning around and flying up the mountain. I'm sorry. I'm the one who harmed Floating Jade Island. Floating Jade Island Master looked at the hundred thousand rogue cultivators, tears rolling down his face as he apologized sincerely. What is the king doing? How can I blame you for this? Upon seeing this, the rogue cultivator of Floating Jade hurriedly ran over to help the island master and said with tears in his eyes. He was not able to help the Floating Jade Island Master up. This was because Floating Jade Island Master was apologizing to all the rogue cultivators present and for the hundreds of thousands of lives that had died on the island. It's all the doing of those brutal underwater beast cultivators. We can blame anyone but the king. If not for the king's protection, how could the Floating Jade Island have been able to survive in such a cold place for so many years? This matter has nothing to do with the king. We must make the group of underwater beast cultivators pay with their blood. Yes, let them pay with their blood. Floating Jade Island Master held an extremely high position in the hearts of the rogue cultivators. Even though the destruction of the Floating Jade Island was largely related to the decision made by the Island Master, it did not affect his ability to win over the hearts of the people. In the face of the loud shouts, the Master of the Floating Jade Island, who had been bowing, slowly raised his head. His red eyes looked around at the floating jade individual cultivators around him and raised his right hand to signal silence. Everyone, please be at ease. I guarantee that this debt will be repaid with the blood of the demonic cultivators at the bottom of the ocean, and the living spirits of the floating jades will rest in peace. The floating jade island master spoke only after the silence was restored. His voice was filled with spiritual energy and instantly spread to every corner of Mount Yuan. This was the island master's promise to the hundred thousand surviving rogue jade cultivators and the lives of the lost floating jade. He continued to order rogue cultivator floating jade to rest and recuperate. Gu Mingzhou watched everything floating jade island master was doing. He knew that floating jade island master was trying to win people's hearts, but he did not interfere too much. After all, he was an outsider. The blood feud of the floating jade island still needed to be settled by the rogue cultivators of the floating jade island. 
while Floating Jade Island Master was consoling the rogue cultivators of Floating Jade Island and helping them heal their injuries. An army of nearly 10,000 human cultivators suddenly appeared from all directions. Gu Mingzhou sensed a murderous aura. It was the murderous aura of the army. While Floating Jade Island Master was appeasing the rogue cultivators of Floating Jade Island, a large number of human cultivators emerged. The army of human cultivators was not large, only about 10,000 in number. However, they had the advantage of surprise attacks. They attacked from the rear of the Floating Jade Independent Cultivator very quickly. Chapter 401 Be careful. Almost at the same time that his spiritual sense discovered the human army, Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate at all and instantly went to meet them. Right now, the floating Jade Island rogue cultivators had regained some of their morale. However, the destruction of the floating Jade Island still caused them to be immersed in pain. Unable to extricate themselves, how could they have the mood to fight? Of course, there was no lack of people with strong minds. Even after hearing the bad news, they still had the will to fight. However, after a long period of peace, a large number of rogue cultivators had emerged on the floating Jade Island, but they did not have any actual combat experience. Their true combat abilities were not strong. Gu Mingzhou's speed was very fast. He fell behind the floating Jade Rogue Cultivator and released his vast true core strength, which quickly spread into the depths. Gu Mingzhou had massacred the demon cultivators at the bottom of the sea when the human cultivators suddenly appeared. He could not attack his own kind. After all, the demonic cultivators at the bottom of the ocean were originally brutal people. Now, they were under the control of Su Fengyu and had become the killing tools of his subordinates. However, the army of cultivators in the Zhou dynasty was completely different. The first thing he did was to stand in front of rogue cultivator Floating Jade. However, he did not kill her directly. Instead, he released his pressure in an attempt to intimidate her. Whoosh! Almost at the same time that Gu Mingzhou released his aura to intimidate the other party, the wandering jade cultivators, who were immersed in sorrow, came back to their senses. They all stood with their weapons in hand and quickly entered battle preparation. The island master of floating jade island landed beside Gu Mingzhou and looked into the depths of the mountain range. After being reminded, floating jade island master immediately reacted. England has really taken great pains to deal with my floating jade. It seems that they are determined to exterminate my floating jade. The island master of floating jade island said as he stood behind Gu Mingzhou. He spread out his spiritual sense and found that it was a human cultivator who had suddenly appeared in the mountain range. This isn't the England army. From their attire, they should be cultivators from the Zhou dynasty. Gu Mingzhou looked at the army of cultivators in the distance and said softly. It was obvious that Gu Mingzhou's aura did not manage to intimidate the other party. The Zhou dynasty's army? The floating Jade Island master asked in confusion. Wasn't he here to support the Zhou dynasty? Now that the cultivators of the Zhou dynasty had suddenly appeared, he wondered if it was a coincidence or if they had ulterior motives. I'm 100% sure that he's a cultivator from the Zhou dynasty Gu Mingzhou didn't ask much and only confirmed. Floating Jade Island Master, who was still suspicious, suddenly pointed towards the depths of the mountain forest. Gu Mingzhou looked in the direction of the Floating Jade Island Master's finger and indeed saw a figure rapidly flying over from the opposite army. It was only when the figure was less than 100 meters away from Gu Mingzhou that he could see his face clearly. When Gu Mingzhou saw the other party's face clearly, an extreme killing intent burst out from Gu Mingzhou's body. Without the slightest hesitation, the long spear appeared instantly and suddenly stabbed out. The long spear with a monstrous killing intent broke through the void and instantly stabbed at the figure that was flying over. Seeing that the sharp spear was about to hit the target, a shocking cry suddenly sounded from behind Gu Mingzhou. The bird's cry was clear and melodious, its pitch high as it soared into the nine heavens. The Kuanpeng, which seemed to cover the sky, shot out. Almost at the moment when the sharp spear was about to stab the figure, its sharp claws fell and grabbed the figure. The long spear missed, but the sharp sword light directly pierced the dense forest. In an instant, mountain rocks rolled down and fallen leaves filled the sky. 
Hundreds of towering trees were crushed into pieces by the sharp spear radiance. Gu Mingzhou put away his spear and looked up at the sky. The Kuanpeng, which had saved the figure at the critical moment, let out a cry again. The floating Jade Island master transformed back into his human form and held a middle-aged man in a green robe in his hand. Gu Mingzhou's gaze had been fixed on the middle-aged man in the green robe from the beginning to the end. Why are you still attacking us? If we had not reacted in time, I'm afraid our floating Jade Island would have lost more people. Floating Jade Island Master grumbled as he descended from the sky with the middle-aged man he had saved. In the eyes of the Island Master of Floating Jade Island, Gu Mingzhou must have thought the rogue cultivator of Floating Jade was an enemy sent by the other party to launch a sneak attack, which was why he had attacked. Therefore, even though he was complaining, he did not express his dissatisfaction. However, the reason why Gu Mingzhou wanted to kill this floating jade rogue cultivator was not that he had mistaken him for the enemy who had launched a sneak attack. Instead, it was because Gu Mingzhou was very familiar with this floating jade rogue cultivator's appearance. After all, Gu Mingzhou would never forget that face. The floating jade rogue cultivator was not afraid of a strong enemy in the face of danger and wanted to avenge his clan leader. The middle-aged man who was bashfully talking to him about the secret of floating Jade Island. Even more so, he couldn't forget the self-destruction on his face when he found out the island had been destroyed and his family had died. The face's original owner, Yi Xiu. The figure that suddenly flew out of the Zhou dynasty's army was Yi Xiu in Gu Mingzhou's memory. It was the reason why he attacked without hesitation the moment he saw his face. The person in front of him definitely wasn't Yi Xiu. The real Yi Xiu had died on the island. Gu Mingzhou, who was holding his spear, instantly approached the floating Jade Island master. With a flash of his spear, he thrust it at the middle-aged man behind the floating Jade Island master. The spear's light pierced through the bones as it flew past the island master and headed straight for the man who looked like Yi Xiu. Island master, save me. The middle-aged man's face immediately turned pale. The pressure of Spear's light made it impossible for him to dodge. He could only ask for help. Stop! Floating Jade Island Master cried out in alarm. At the same time, he wanted to block the sharp Spear Radiance and save the middle-aged man. He was still a step too slow. This was because Gu Mingzhou's spear was even more ferocious and sharp than before. Gu Mingzhou had obviously guessed the floating Jade Island Master would stop him. Without any hesitation, he thrust his spear forward and released the vast true core strength in his body. He shattered the void between him and the floating Jade Island Master and blocked him. The spear that was burning with monstrous flames pierced through the spatial storm that was pouring out and reached the chest of the panicking middle-aged man, instantly piercing through it. Blood splattered, and his life was extinguished. The endless energy storm was still wreaking havoc in the shattered void. The spear that had passed through it did not move at all as it pierced into the middle-aged man's chest. Blood dripped down the spear and into the cracks, swallowed by the raging spatial storm. The entire mountain range was silent, even the sound of falling leaves could be heard. Everything happened in the time it took for a spark to fly off a flint. Whether it was the thousand hundred floating Jade Island rogue cultivators or the nearly ten thousand Zhou dynasty cultivators. Even floating Jade Island Master could not help but be stunned and the spear pierced through the middle-aged man. If Gu Mingzhou's previous wave of his spear was because he thought Yi Xiu was the one who had ambushed him. The second time he waved his spear, it was obvious that he had killing intent. All the cultivators could see that Gu Mingzhou's intent for Yi Xiu was monstrous. What kind of enmity did Gu Mingzhou and Yi Xiu have that would make Gu Mingzhou have such a strong killing intent? Yi Xiu was a member of Floating Jade Island. If he was killed by Gu Mingzhou in front of everyone, Floating Jade Island would lose face. It would be equivalent to slapping the face of the island master of the Floating Jade Island. How could he not be angry? What are you doing? Floating Jade Island master, who had just recovered from his shock, said in a deep voice as he released a vast true core strength that was not weaker than Gu Mingzhou's. See for yourself. Gu Mingzhou did not answer directly. Instead, he lifted his long spear and brought the middle-aged man who had been pierced through to the front of the floating Jade Island Master. The simple words were said without the slightest emotion. 
the island master of floating Jade Island was a bit puzzled. He lowered his head and looked at Yi Xiu, who had been pierced in front of him. Chapter, 402 The hole in Yi Xiu's chest began to change. In the blink of an eye, he became a ten-meter-long fish. The fish scales were very bright under the sun. A bloodless human face slid down from the huge fish and floated towards the island master of floating Jade Island. The island master of floating Jade Island's expression became even gloomier. The changes in Yi Xiu's body made him understand what Gu Mingzhou meant. Reaching out to take the human face, he looked at the familiar face and suddenly felt pain in his heart. Fresh blood spurted out of the floating Jade Island master's mouth. The human skin mask proved the island master of floating Jade Island was protecting a fake Yi Xiu. It also proved Yi Xiu had suffered disfigurement before he died. This caused floating Jade Island Master to feel heartache. How did you know? Floating Jade Island Master wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and asked in a deep voice as he looked at Yi Xiu's face in his hand. The original vast true core strength started to be restrained. Because I buried him. Gu Mingzhou shook the body of the strange fish off the mountain stream, put away the burning blood spear, and looked up at the sky as he answered softly. Floating Jade Island Master did not say anything more. He turned around and flew toward the floating Jade Island rogue cultivators behind him. He knew why Gu Mingzhou wanted to kill the fake Yi Xiu, but the hundred thousand floating Jade independent cultivators behind him didn't know. He needed to explain. Otherwise, the rogue cultivator of floating Jade Island might feel estranged from Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou would not care about this kind of estrangement. However, this Earth Realm Master would distance himself from the floating jade. Just as the floating jade island master had thought, Gu Mingzhou's domineering behavior had made the hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators dissatisfied. He had just lost his home and saw his people being killed in front of him. Everyone, please calm down. The person brother Gu killed wasn't clan leader Yi Xiu, but a beast spy. Floating jade island master consoled. He raised the face of the strange green fish in his hand and showed it to the rogue cultivator of floating Jade Island. The skin peeled off Yi Xiu's face was undoubtedly the best evidence. This clan leader Yi Xiu is a fake. Those damned underwater beast cultivators, they actually skinned clan leader Yi Xiu's face in order to make him appear. We must kill all the underwater beast cultivators and avenge Chief Yi. Revenge for Chief Yi. Seeing Yi Xiu's human face, Rogue Cultivator Floating Jade's hatred shifted to the Underwater Beast Cultivator. Everyone, please be quiet. Seeing that his consoling words were effective, Floating Jade Island Master spoke again, suppressing the Rogue Cultivators who were in a heated discussion. No matter if it was Clan Leader Yi Xiu or the Floating Jade Island, he had to take revenge. However, they still needed to find a new home. Floating Jade Island Master knew what he had to do now. Revenge could be taken slowly, but losing their home meant that they could no longer return. The rogue cultivators expressed their agreement. The island master of floating Jade Island revealed a gratified expression and turned to fly toward Gu Mingzhou. Many thanks. Gu Mingzhou immediately said. The reason why floating Jade Island master did this was that he hoped there would not be any estrangement between the remaining hundred thousand rogue cultivators. What are you thanking me for? Floating Jade Island Master asked in confusion. If the fake Yi Xiu is killed, wouldn't it affect the alliance? Gu Mingzhou turned his gaze back to the other side. It's fine. The other party's delay in reinforcements has already caused a great impact. Naturally, this one more won't make a difference. Floating Jade Island Master said indifferently. Furthermore, the situation in the Zhou Dynasty was very complicated. Originally, this group of Zhou Dynasty's unaffiliated cultivators was not sent by the Imperial Court, but by a team formed by the New World. In their opinion, how many years had it been since the Zhou Dynasty entered the ranks of cultivation? They could not represent the cultivation alliance of the Zhou Dynasty. However, He Chuan had no interest in such matters. Everything was decided by Empress Changning. It was not the Imperial Court's army that had led to this battle along the coast. Furthermore, both the island master of floating Jade Island or Gu Mingzhou did not know much about Hichuan. 
they did not know he had killed the seventh elder of the Heavenly Sword sect. Otherwise, the island master of Floating Jade Island would definitely have bypassed the Cultivation Alliance and gone directly to the Zhou Dynasty's royal family. Therefore, Floating Jade Island Master could not tell what the New World Cultivation Alliance was thinking. You're still afraid of this? Gu Mingzhou knew what the Floating Jade Island Master meant. He was not blaming him but worried about the future of the Floating Jade Rogue Cultivator. Now that the Floating Jade Island had been destroyed, finding a new home was the top priority. After that was revenge. Originally, they were here to support the Zhou Dynasty. Logically speaking, after the crisis of the Zhou dynasty was resolved, they would naturally give up land for the floating jade rogue cultivator. However, the New World Alliance and the floating jade island had yet to form an alliance, and there was already a barrier between them. This was naturally very disadvantageous to floating jade island. I'm not afraid. It's just that based on the current situation, it'll be very difficult for us to get a piece of land. Floating Jade Island Master replied. The estrangement between the two sides had already been created. The Zhou Cultivation Alliance's earlier indifference must have made the hundred thousand floating jade cultivators furious. Although they did not say it now, there would definitely be a fight between the two sides after the war was over. If he had known earlier, he would have gone to the imperial court instead of forming an alliance with his old rivals from hundreds of years ago. The master of Floating Jade Island could suppress and restrain the rogue cultivators, but the cultivators of the New World Alliance might not think so. If the cultivators of the New World Alliance were to realize that the Floating Jade individual cultivator would harm them in the future, they might not be willing to let the Floating Jade live in the Zhou Dynasty. England had formed an alliance with the brutal underwater beast cultivators. In this way, the Zhou Dynasty could justifiably launch a crusade against England. If they won, the Zhou dynasty would definitely take the opportunity to unify the surrounding countries. It was a great opportunity. As the empress, it was impossible for Changning not to see it. At this time, even the officials of the Zhou dynasty would not agree to give up the land to the floating Jade Island rogue cultivators. Seeing this, floating Jade Island master was filled with worry. Why do you want territory from the New World Alliance? Gu Mingzhou turned to look at the island master of Floating Jade Island and said. The Floating Jade Island has already been destroyed. I want a piece of land in the Zhou Dynasty, where will everyone live? Don't tell me we're going to drift in the vast ocean. The Floating Jade Island master revealed a puzzled look. Brother Lu, you didn't understand what I meant. This is the territory of the Zhou Dynasty, not the territory of the New World Alliance. If he wanted to settle down in the Zhou dynasty, why did he have to ask them? Gu Mingzhou was flying somewhere. I request to see Duke He. Gu Mingzhou said very respectfully. Ever since he stepped onto the land of the Zhou dynasty, his heart had been palpitating. Even Zhao Qinkun and Jing Wudao had gone into hiding, not daring to show their faces. The space in front of him distorted and a spatial crack appeared. He Chuan, who had not seen him for a long time, suddenly appeared in front of Gu Mingzhou and swept his gaze over him. The world son of destiny. You have a strong killing intent but still know you are human. I can spare your life. He Chuan's words were very light as if they were emotionless. However, Gu Mingzhou broke out in a cold sweat. He had never felt this way before, not even when he was facing the world god Su Fenyu. He now understood why the Zhou dynasty's imperial court did not even look at the alliance between England and the underwater beast cultivators. It was because with this great god here, Su Feng Yu would not be a problem. Duke He, please be wise. I don't know what fate is, I only want to fulfill my own wishes. As for the young lord, it has nothing to do with me. I grew up in the Zhou dynasty. Gu Mingzhou bent over and cupped his hands, cold sweat dripping from his forehead. You want to help the people of the floating Jade Island get a piece of land? He Chuan placed his hands behind his back and glanced at Gu Mingzhou's Dantian. He seemed to have discovered something, but he did not point it out. Chapter, 403 Gu Mingzhou did not deny He Chuan's question. The world is so big, and not all of it belongs to the Zhou dynasty. You cannot touch the Xiongnu and Great Zhou, 
but you can do whatever you want with the other places, even if you want to establish a country. He Chuan's expression did not change. He discovered that the son of destiny before him, the young master of Sacred Soul Island, did not have the ambition he had imagined. Naturally, he didn't have to kill them. No matter what, Floating Jade Island had become like this because it had supported the Zhou dynasty. He Chuan would not be unreasonable. Moreover, it was better for the surrounding countries to have a close relationship with the Zhou dynasty. Many thanks, senior. Gu Ming Zhou, who had previously been under endless lights, was extremely respectful in front of Yi Chuan. You're welcome. This battle is up to you guys. If Su Fen Yu doesn't show up, I won't take action for the time being. After Yi Chuan finished speaking, he disappeared. Huffed. Gu Ming Zhou heaved a sigh of relief when he saw that Kazufu had disappeared. He was definitely not just in the low extreme realm. He was like a towering mountain pressing down on his chest. Even Zhao Qinkuan didn't dare to show up, which showed how powerful he was. Gu Mingzhou had other things to do now. Since he was back in the Zhou dynasty, he naturally had to find these people. After all, he could be considered a friend to some people in the Zhou dynasty. How is it? Which lord has agreed? If not, we will have to face the Zhou dynasty or the neighboring Zhao state. The floating Jade Island master said worriedly. You want to fight against the Zhou dynasty, but do you think that your hundred thousand rogue cultivators can be compared to the Zhou dynasty's million-strong army? Or are you Duki's opponent? Gu Mingzhou turned back to look at the island master of floating Jade Island, still smiling. That's why I'm thinking of ways to rope in the Zhou dynasty. Floating Jade Island Master Side In truth, the Floating Jade Island Master was also in a difficult position. After the destruction of Floating Jade Island, the situation of the rogue cultivators of Floating Jade was extremely difficult. Originally, they could still be regarded as allies by the Zhou dynasty, but now they were no longer in the eyes of the Zhou dynasty's cultivation alliance. The remaining hundred thousand floating Jade Island rogue cultivators were not important to the Zhou dynasty, which had a population of several million. If not for the powerful existence of the floating Jade Island master, the New World's Cultivation Alliance would have already violated the alliance agreement and attacked the rogue cultivators of floating Jade Island, devouring them. This was how the war was, benefits would always be the top priority. He Chuan didn't care about it, because it was an internal struggle and the level was too low. Sometimes, rather than groveling and begging, it's better to show your strong side and ask for it directly. Gu Mingzhou could tell the island master of Floating Jade Island was in a difficult position. He reached out and patted the island master's shoulder. That means that the lord has already agreed, but it's a bit difficult to do it. The master of Floating Jade Island was half happy and half sad. Even if Yichuan agreed on behalf of the Empress, they still had to face the difficulties of the New World's Cultivation Alliance. With the current strength of Floating Jade's independent cultivators, how could they display their powerful side? Don't beg the New World's Cultivation Alliance. Otherwise, you'll only be devoured by them in the end. Gu Mingzhou believed in people like Yichuan, but he knew the Cultivation Alliance of the New World too well. It was normal for them to turn hostile. After crossing this mountain range, we will reach the original territory of the state of Zhao. However, the state of Zhao has been destroyed and occupied by England. If we can take it back and establish a new country, what do you think? Gu Mingzhou raised his hand and pointed to the east of the mountain range. The floating jades have suffered heavy losses. If we attack rashly, even if we win in the end, I'm afraid there will only be more than 10,000 people left. It will be very difficult to rebuild a country. Lord of Floating Jade Island hurriedly shook his head in refusal. What if the old citizens of Zhao are willing to support you? Gu Mingzhou directly opened his mouth to continue the conversation. What did you just say? Floating Jade Island master was in disbelief. He even thought that he had misheard. The rogue cultivators of freezing cold land were not on good terms with the cultivators of the land, even if it was a war that the floating jade rogue cultivators had never participated in. However, this would not allow the cultivators of the new world, especially those of the chaotic state of Zhao, to choose to allow outsiders to build a country on their land. This was because thousands of years ago, 
grudges and grudges had been intertwined. If it was still possible for the people of the great world, the cultivators of the new world would never acknowledge them. If I can get the survivors of Zhao to support the floating jade rogue cultivators, would you dare to establish a new country on the old side of Zhao and set up camp on land? Gu Mingzhou said seriously. Of course, I dare. However, why would the survivors of Zhao support us? The island master of Floating Jade Island finally confirmed that he had not heard of it and immediately made a decision. After all, the Floating Jade Rogue Cultivator was an outsider. For the survivors of Zhao, it was much easier to accept a human occupation than a Floating Jade Rogue Cultivator occupation. No matter how much internal strife there was, the Rogue Cultivators of the New World were still Rogue Cultivators from the land. However, it was different for the Floating Jade Individual Cultivators. No matter how they expressed their goodwill, they were marked as invaders by the cultivators of the Zhou dynasty or Zhao state. If the survivors of Zhao resisted, it would be almost impossible to establish a new country in the territory of Zhao, even if the hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators could defeat the army of England. War was cruel. Not everyone was as powerful as floating jade island master. Floating Jade Island Master restricted the agreement of balance and could not go against the entire England army. If a war were to break out, it would mean that a large number of Floating Jade Rogue cultivators would die. There would be no follow-up support for the destruction of the Floating Jade Island, and the number of Floating Jade Rogue cultivators would only decrease. If they wanted to establish a new country, they would definitely encounter resistance from the Zhao survivors, which would cause the number of floating jade rogue cultivators to continue to decrease. Even if they were able to successfully establish a nation in the old Zhao state, it would be difficult to maintain it. The people were the foundation of the country. Without people, how could there be a country? Moreover, the state of Zhao was originally the most chaotic country, with various powers and constant conflicts. It was very difficult to unify. If a floating jade rogue cultivator wanted to win in a battle of various strengths and win their support, it was as difficult as ascending to heaven. After learning that the floating jade island had been destroyed, Liu Yoqing's reaction was to move closer to the Zhou dynasty. The Zhou dynasty was a thousand-year-old ancient country, and its foundation was unquestionable. If they could obtain the support of the Zhou dynasty, the floating jade rogue cultivator would naturally be able to occupy a place in the Zhou dynasty. The premise was they had to defeat the England army that had allied with the underwater beast cultivators, as well as the initiator, the terrifying world god Su Fengyu. The master of floating Jade Island could predict that when the real decisive battle began, the unaffiliated cultivators of floating Jade would definitely be used as the vanguard of the New World Alliance and become cannon fodder. Gu Mingzhou knew what the floating Jade Island master was thinking and decided to help the rogue cultivator. Although he had not been in contact with the floating Jade Island for a long time, he found that the floating Jade Island's rogue cultivators, who had been in closed-door cultivation for hundreds of years, were definitely the kindest existence in this world. The various clans could live in harmony with each other. When the floating Jade was in trouble, they could join hands and help each other, vowing to protect the floating Jade with their lives. It proved that the rogue cultivators of floating Jade were not bad in nature. They were much better than most of the cultivators in the Zhou dynasty who fought for fame and fortune. That was why he had asked He Chuan to give them a chance. He Chuan did not refuse. This was a heaven sent opportunity. Chapter 404 The reason why the survivors of the Zhao state are resistant to floating jade rogue cultivators is mainly because of your identity. If you are no longer floating jade rogue cultivators, but some other power, the estrangement will naturally be eliminated. Gu Mingzhou said. Fortunately, he had just received news that a certain power he knew was in trouble. As long as we rescue them and combine them into one family, we will naturally be able to establish a country in the old Zhao state. If you agree with me, it means you have lost your previous identity. The newly established country will not let a floating jade rogue cultivator be the king. Gu Mingzhou continued. Floating Jade Island Master did not dare to directly occupy the Zhou dynasty's vast land as he was worried the New World's Cultivation Alliance would resist. As Gu Mingzhou had said, when the Floating Jade Rogue Cultivators joined the forces and successfully established a new country, the first king could not be one of them. 
Floating Jade Island Master had lived for hundreds of years and understood what Gu Mingzhou meant. That's a good suggestion. What if they start a purge on Floating Jade Island after we establish our country? Floating Jade Island Master revealed what he was worried about. I have absolute trust in the leader of this force. Moreover, they don't have many people, not even one thousandth of the Floating Jade Rogue cultivators. Gu Mingzhou had obviously already thought of this. The number of people in the force is less than a hundred? Floating Jade Island Master asked. Not bad. However, their reputation is known by everyone. Could it be the trap organization? The Floating Jade Island Master asked with some uncertainty. Indeed. Gu Mingzhou nodded, confirming the other party's guess. Gu Mingzhou was not surprised the island master of Floating Jade Island could guess the trap. Lu Yuqing would definitely have some understanding of the various powers of the Zhou dynasty. The trap's primary goal was to resist foreign enemies. This included the rogue cultivators who opposed the freezing cold land. If it's of the trap, we can try it. However, the trap is specially set up to deal with rogue cultivators. Will they agree to merge? The floating Jade Island master was still a little worried. The leader of the trap net has some ties with me. From what I understand, he won't reject me. Gu Mingzhou said confidently. Zhao Gao was still fresh in Gu Mingzhou's memory. And with his personality, he would not refuse a suggestion. Zhao Gao's life goal was to destroy the rogue cultivators in freezing cold land. He could accomplish his goal by taking in the last of the rogue cultivators from freezing cold land. Gu Mingzhou knew this, which was why he could make such a solemn promise to the island master of Floating Jade Island. As long as the other party can ensure the continuation of my Floating Jade, I will accept any conditions. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's confident look, the island master of Floating Jade Island could only agree to Gu Mingzhou's proposal. I'll go to the Zhao state to find the trap. You lead the floating jade rogue cultivator over the mountain range. We'll meet again then. Gu Mingzhou was ready to leave. Then I'll leave it to you, brother Gu. The floating jade island master cupped his fists and said. Gu Mingzhou's speed was at full force as he sped towards the old Zhao residence. It was a boundless ocean that surrounded the area. The dividing line between the north and south was right in the middle of Handan city. As a result, the entire territory of Handan City was divided into the north and south. The headquarters of the trap, a terrorist organization that struck fear into the hearts of the cultivators, was located here. Handan City, Jiaxing Pavilion The Jiaxing Pavilion, which had been a place for information exchange, had become deserted after the destruction of the Zhao State. Seven to eight figures were standing in the box of the Jiaxing Pavilion. There were two men in white robes sitting at the square wooden table. One of them was wearing a silver mask. There was also a middle-aged man whose sideburns had already turned white. If Gu Mingzhou was here, he would instantly recognize them. They were the former murderous level killer of the trap, the current heaven level killer Zhen Gang, and the sect master Zhao Gao. Zhen Gang had already become a warrior of the mortal realm. He looked at Zhen Gang across from him and said. Is the information confirmed? Zhao Gao held a steaming cup of tea in his hand, brought it to his mouth, and took two sips. It's confirmed that the cultivators from England and the Immortal Foundation demonic cultivators from the sea of freezing cold land will lead them. There will be a total of ten people, all of whom have the cultivation of the mortal realm. Zhen Gang replied coldly. Where are they currently? Zhao Gao asked again. He should have entered Handan City. Zhen Gang calmly analyzed the situation. The other party was stronger and didn't dare to get too close. They have already contacted the England troops in Handan City, ready to surround and annihilate us. Zhao Gao said as he slowly stood up and walked to the window to observe the situation. To be more accurate, since last night, they have surrounded the entire Handan City. They have even surrounded Jiaxing Pavilion. Zhen Gang explained as he looked at Zhao Gao's back. I knew their target must be the trap, but I was confused. I ordered all the assassins to spread out and hide, so how did they lock onto us? Zhao Gao sighed as his gaze swept across everyone in the room. A chill burst out from Zhao Gao's body, causing the temperature in the room to drop. 
The only people who know about the internal operation plan of the net are the few of you here, Zhao Gao paused for a moment before speaking again. The gaze that swept across the crowd became even colder. Sect Master. I know what you're suspicious of, but I firmly believe the problem doesn't lie with us. Zhen Gang suddenly stood up and said. You're all people I brought up with my own hands, but the truth is right in front of my eyes. I can't help but doubt you. Zhao Gao walked back to the table and said. Sect Master. Zhen Gang's expression changed as he spoke again. I already have a clue. I still want to give him a chance. It's best for him to admit it himself. Before Zhen Gang could finish, Zhao Gao interrupted him. He said indifferently as he sized up the seven assassins behind Zhen Gang. Zhen Gang subconsciously looked behind him. Zhao Gao's gaze swept past him. It was obvious that the person who had betrayed the net was not Zhen Gang. His firm tone made Zhen Gang, who firmly believed there wouldn't be a mole, feel a little flustered. None of the seven killers spoke. When a certain murderous assassin heard Zhao Gao's words, he pursed his lips slightly due to nervousness and hesitation. I really didn't expect that the one who betrayed us would be you. We're acquaintances so I won't kill you. You can go. Zhao Gao instantly recalled the killer who had pursed his lips and sighed. Zhao Gao turned his back to the crowd and stood with his hands behind his back. The room fell into silence again. The killer who had pursed his lips earlier suddenly walked out and knelt behind Zhao Gao. You actually dared to betray the trap. Zhen Gang looked at the kneeling assassin and exclaimed in disbelief. Sect Master, I'm sorry. If I don't agree to his request, my pregnant wife will be killed by them. The killer didn't pay any attention to Zhen Gang but said to Zhao Gao in despair. I know you were forced to do this, so I won't kill you. You can go. Zhao Gao didn't turn around. Instead, he looked out the window and sighed. Thank you, sect master. When he received Zhao Gao's reply that he wouldn't kill him, he immediately kowtowed and thanked him with tears in his eyes. He stood up slowly, wiped away his tears, and bowed to his companions apologetically. Chapter 405 All the assassins, including Zhen Gang, chose to remain silent at this moment. However, their eyes were filled with pain and anger. They would never have thought there really was a spy. After all, they were brought up by Zhao Gao and carefully cultivated. The assassin knew that it was useless to explain the betrayal now. What he had done had deeply hurt his brothers. So he didn't say anything, but bowed to the crowd and apologized. To everyone's surprise, after the third bow, the killer's remorseful and guilty eyes suddenly turned cold. Under everyone's gaze, he suddenly turned around and thrust his right hand at Zhao Gao, who had his back facing him. A cold glint flashed and instantly stabbed into Zhao Gao's back. Sect Master. Almost at the same time, shouts rang out. The trap assassins, including Zhen Gang, jumped up almost at the same time and instantly attacked the betraying killers. They didn't expect that the traitor not only sold out the trap but also wanted to kill the Sect Master. This result was hard to accept. In their eyes, Zhao Gao seemed to be completely unaware of what was happening behind him as he was stabbed by the sharp dagger. Even if Zhao Gao knew about it, he would not be able to dodge such a close-range attack. The crowd had no time to stop the betraying killer. Zhao Gao might be heavily injured, or even die. To everyone's surprise, the dagger that was stabbed into Zhao Gao's back did not turn red. Instead, it stopped. How is that possible? The assassin's confident face turned into a frightened expression as he exclaimed in disbelief. The feeling from the dagger in his hand made the traitor killer clearly feel that the dagger had not pierced Zhao Gao's body. Nothing is impossible. Zhao Gao's face was filled with regret as he looked at the traitor. As he spoke softly, he raised his right hand and patted the assassin's forehead. Bang! The betraying killer flew backward like a broken zither blood rippling. He brushed past several people who had jumped at him and fell hard on the door. The wooden door was broken, and wood chips flew everywhere. Blood flowed from the traitor's forehead. His face was filled with disbelief and his eyes were ashen. The betraying assassin was dead. Why do you have to do this? 
Zhao Gao said with a pained expression as he slowly retracted his palm. Sect Master. Are you all right? The nervous crowd gathered around Zhao Gao and asked him about the situation. Jin Gang didn't open his mouth to ask. Instead, the moment he landed, he looked at the corpse of the traitor and remained silent. Others might not know this, but Jin Gang knew that Zhao Gao had become an Earth Realm cultivator three years ago. However, Zhao Gao chose to hide the truth. He even forcefully suppressed his cultivation. He predicted that the Zhao state was about to face a huge crisis. Hence, Zhao Gao chose to stay behind and help the Zhao state through this crisis. Only Zhen Gang knew about this. Don't worry, his killing intent is too strong. There's no way he can ambush me. Now that the Zhai Xing pavilion has been exposed, we have to retreat as soon as possible. I'll draw them away later. You guys go and inform the other brothers to spread out and hide, Zhao Gao continued. Sect Master. The six top assassins shouted in unison. They knew what Zhao Gao meant. He was prepared to sacrifice himself in order to protect the assassins. This is an order. Besides, it won't be that easy to kill me. Zhao Gao interrupted the crowd and shouted coldly. The situation has changed, so I hope that you can temporarily take over the sect master's position. Zhao Gao turned to Zhen Gang and continued. I'll go with you. Zhen Gang said in a low voice. Everyone was pushing the idea of following Zhao Gao to attract the enemy. They knew that the ten cultivators led by the beast cultivator were not something Zhao Gao could fight against. There were also tens of thousands of England troops stationed there. Zhao Gao's decision was undoubtedly to use his life in exchange for an opportunity for the assassins trapped in the trap to escape. Don't fight, just do as I say. Zhao Gao made his decision. Sect Master, let's go together. Before they arrive, we can hide our identities and escape. There's still hope. Zhen Gang suddenly suggested. Your identities are hidden, so they don't know. You can hide by changing your clothes, but my identity is well known. Zhao Gao shook his head and said. But Zhen Gang was unwilling to give up and wanted to continue explaining. Zhen Gang is acting as the sect master and is in charge of the escape of the killer trap. We must leave safely. Zhao Gao interrupted him and looked at the crowd with an unquestionable gaze. Yes. Zhen Gang's entire body trembled as he cupped his hands and bowed. He led the other six assassins out of the door in a hurry and left the Zhai Xing pavilion through a secret passage. Since someone had betrayed them, no matter how much information he had leaked, the Zhai Xing pavilion was no longer safe. Thus, Zhen Gang and the others couldn't leave through the door and could only leave through a secret passage. After everyone left, Zhao Gao sat back down at the wooden table. Since you've already come, why hide? Zhao Gao looked at the cold body at the door and said indifferently. The window behind him suddenly opened, and a cold breeze blew past. A skinny old man wearing a white robe with blue patterns appeared behind Zhao Gao. The scrawny old man was the great guardian of the freezing cold sea, Soul Destroyer, who had a terrifying body clone. It's cold in Handan City, please have a cup of hot tea to keep warm. Zhao Gao seemed to have anticipated Soul Destroyer's appearance. He did not turn around. Instead, he picked up the teapot on the wooden table and poured himself a cup of tea. The teacup that had just been filled with tea flew out and quickly flew toward Soul Destroyer. Soul Destroyer smiled and grabbed the teacup as it approached. He raised his head and drank it all in one gulp. Good tea. Too bad it's cold. Soul Destroyer threw out his right hand and the teacup in his hand flew toward Zhao Gao. The teacup that was approaching Zhao Gao shattered in midair. We haven't seen each other for a hundred years, but you're still the same. Soul Destroyer shook his head helplessly. I haven't changed, and you're the same. Zhao Gao stood up and turned to Soul Destroyer. The trap is a poisonous nail hanging in Master's plan, we have to pull it out. Soul Destroyer said as he looked at Zhao Gao. Many thanks. Zhao Gao smiled and said something he shouldn't have said. Zhao Gao was expressing his gratitude to Soul Destroyer. In fact, Soul Destroyer had already arrived before the people from the trap had left. Zhao Gao had also noticed him, 
but the two of them had a tacit understanding not to expose it. Soul Destroyer chose to let the trap assassins leave, and Zhao Gao chose to give up on leading the trap assassins to fight to the death. No need to thank me. I'll let the others go on account of our old acquaintances. As for you, I'm sorry. Soul Destroyer said apologetically. You took the risk to let the others go, so you've already paid off the favor you owe me. Zhao Gao raised his hand at Soul Destroyer. Soul Destroyer's old face revealed helplessness and nostalgia. However, the two of them did not move. Because they were all accumulating power and waiting for the right moment. Two terrifying auras shot up into the sky. The two of them moved almost at the same time, and their fists and palms collided instantly. A huge wave of air swept out from between the two of them, directly lifting the roof of the Zhai Xing Pavilion. Chapter 406 The two of them leaped into the sky at the same time and exchanged blows again. Endless amounts of spiritual energy collided with each other. In an instant, the two of them had exchanged dozens of blows, and they were evenly matched. The weather above Handan City changed, and the sun lost its light. Countless clashing sounds exploded in the sky. The air above Handan City trembled, as if it was about to shatter. The two of them, who were constantly fighting, separated again and each retreated a hundred meters. Soul Destroyer's long hair was spread out, and his cultivation was obviously at its peak. Invisible sword intent quickly condensed in front of him, and like a rain of rain, it shot toward Zhao Gao. Zhao Gao no longer suppressed his cultivation and released it. Boundless spiritual energy poured out like a vast ocean and turned into a sea of spiritual energy. It instantly swallowed the invisible lightsaber and madly slapped toward Soul Destroyer. However, Soul Destroyer's expression did not change at all. Even if the vast ocean of spiritual energy poured down, it was not enough to make him fear. You're indeed suppressing your cultivation. However, you're destined to fail. Soul Destroyer's right hand shook his long robe and blocked the sea of spiritual energy. So many years have passed. Have you really become stronger? Zhao Gao's long robe fluttered as he approached Soul Destroyer. Zhao Gao raised his right hand, and a vast amount of spiritual energy poured out. Boom! The spiritual energy ocean that had been blocked earlier instantly trembled and broke through the invisible barrier, instantly swallowing Soul Destroyer. Like a flood breaking a dam, not only did the elemental energy ocean swallow the souls, but it also smashed down a portion of the city walls. In an instant, countless houses were reduced to ruins, and sand and dust filled the air. Zhao Gao, who seemed to have won, frowned. He was not happy at all. He turned around and struck out with his palm. A muffled sound, like thunder on a clear day, exploded in the void. The shock wave caused Zhao Gao to stagger back in mid-air. Soul Destroyer, who had been swallowed by the sea of spiritual energy, suddenly floated in front of Zhao Gao and stared at him. You're still so alert. Soul Destroyer stepped into the void as he spoke. In the blink of an eye, he appeared in front of Zhao Gao and struck down with his right palm. Zhao Gao's expression changed slightly as he realized the power of Soul Destroyer. Boundless spiritual energy poured out once more as he met the attack with his fist. A huge amount of energy shot into the sky. The two were evenly matched. The palm and fist seemed to be motionless in the void. The void around them began to explode. The void collapsed and a terrifying spatial storm swept out, surrounding the two of them and wreaking havoc in all directions. Hondan City's sky seemed like it was about to collapse. You've become stronger. However, it's still not enough. Zhao Gao's face was pale as he looked at Soul Destroyer. Oh, really? You seem to have forgotten something. Soul Destroyer smiled when he heard this. The scene from a hundred years ago appeared in Zhao Gao's mind. The first time he had encountered Soul Destroyer, he had fought with him. Zhao Gao was heavily injured and had almost lost. Just like now, when Zhao Gao was about to win, he was suddenly attacked from behind. A body clone. The moment Soul Destroyer spoke, Zhao Gao thought of Soul Destroyer's special technique, his body clone. Not good. Zhao Gao thought to himself as a strong sense of danger welled up in his heart. 
Pure Yuan power once again poured into his right arm, shaking Soul Destroyer away. He hurriedly turned to dodge, but he was too slow. The moment Zhao Gao turned around, the figure suddenly appeared in front of the referee. The grey-robed elder, who looked like Soul Destroyer, had eyes that glowed with a cold light. Zhao Gao recognized that the one who had ambushed him was Soul Destroyer's life clone, Spirit Destroyer. Even if he recognized her, it was useless. A cold light suddenly appeared. A sharp, slender sword appeared before Zhao Gao's chest. Pfft! Blood spurted out. A vast ocean of spiritual energy gushed forth from Zhao Gao's arms, instantly striking the thin sword that had pierced through his chest. The thin and sharp longsword shattered and fell to the ground. Spirit Destroyer, who was attacking Zhao Gao with his sword, retreated to avoid Zhao Gao's counterattack. Soul Destroyer, who had been knocked away, attacked Zhao Gao again. Taking advantage of the gap between Zhao Gao's attack and Spirit Destroyer's, he reached out his skinny right hand and slapped Zhao Gao's back. Blood spurted out of Zhao Gao's mouth, making him look even more listless. Zhao Gao's body fell to the ground like a meteor. The two consecutive heavy blows caused Zhao Gao's body to be heavily injured. He lost the ability to fight and could no longer fly. He fell to the ground. Just as Zhao Gao was about to fall to the ground, a white figure suddenly shot up from the ruins of Handan City. A white-robed man wearing a silver mask rushed forward with a sword in his hand. He caught the falling Zhao Gao and landed on the ground. Sect Master The silver-masked man in white hugged Zhao Gao and called out worriedly. Didn't I tell you to leave? Zhao Gao weakly opened his eyes and looked at the silver-masked man in white. Don't worry, Sect Master. All the disciples of the trap will retreat. We'll come back and take you away now. Without waiting for Zhao Gao's reply, the sword in Zhen Gang's hand drew a pattern in the air before stabbing into the ground. Set up the formation. Before he finished speaking, six white figures flew out from the ruins and scattered around Jin Gang, forming a protective barrier. What are you all doing back here? Hurry up and run. Zhao Gao let out a weak cry. We swear to protect the sect master with our lives. The voice came from the six assassins around him. Soul Destroyer and his clone descended from the void and floated above everyone's heads. Hee hee, your subordinates are all very loyal. The victory seemed to make Soul Destroyer extremely happy. I can only let them go once, I can't let them go a second time. So I don't know if I should be happy or sad for you. Soul Destroyer suddenly struck out with both hands. In the originally silent Handan city, hundreds of figures appeared. They floated in the air and surrounded Jin Gang and the others. There were armored England cultivators and five underwater monster cultivators. There's no need to be happy or sad because the trap has always valued friendship. One of them suddenly stepped forward, pointing his sword at Soul Destroyer, who was standing in the air and shouting fearlessly. Ignoring Zhao Gao's objection, Zhen Gang carried Zhao Gao on his back and held his sword in his right hand, ready to break out of the encirclement. Since you're so loyal, I'll send you off. Soul Destroyer clapped again. The cultivators who were floating in the air fell from the sky. He waved his sword and spiritual energy, rushing toward the trap assassins. These cultivators were the elites of the England army and were especially used to snipe cultivators. Not only were they strong in actual combat, but they also had great teamwork. They formed a formation and surrounded the people in the trap. He used his offensive spell techniques at the same time, and his killing intent filled the sky as he charged at the six assassins. Swords and sabers were cold, and spiritual energy filled the sky. The six assassins felt the terror of the attack, but they had no intention of retreating. Because behind them was their sect master, who had shown them kindness as heavy as a mountain. The trap assassin's long sword pierced through the air, aiming for the sky above his head. The other five trap assassins who occupied the other five positions stabbed their sharp swords above their heads in unison. Chapter 407 Zheng Gang, who was carrying Zhao Gao on his back, also stabbed out with the sword in his hand. The seven swords clashed in the air, creating countless sparks. His spiritual energy flowed continuously, 
and a huge and sharp sword shadow suddenly appeared from the place where the seven swords clashed. It surrounded the trap's assassins and swept in all directions. Sparks flew. The hundreds of cultivators who attacked were swept by the huge sword shadow. No one could resist it and were all knocked back. The formation was broken in an instant. Brother Jin Gang, let's go. The trap assassins pulled back their swords and stabbed at Soul Destroyer, who was floating in the air, at the same time. The huge sword shadow that surrounded the trap killer changed its direction and rushed toward Soul Destroyer. Zheng Gang also took this opportunity to quickly escape through the city gates with Zhao Gao on his back. As long as he left Handan City, he could temporarily avoid danger. You're overestimating yourself. Soul Destroyer's face flashed with disdain. Facing the sword shadow, his right hand suddenly struck out. The wind from his palm whistled as it brought along spiritual energy, and it instantly collided with the huge sword shadow. The huge sword shadow was instantly annihilated. The palm wind hit the six traps assassins without any damage. The six traps assassins immediately vomited blood and fell to the ground, all seriously injured. In the face of a strong practitioner in the low extreme, they were still unable to resist. Seeing this, Jin Gang, who was about to escape, had an ugly expression. However, the speed at which it flew out of the city did not slow down at all. This was because Jin Gang knew that the Six Traps assassins were fighting Soul Destroyer with their lives to fight for his survival. Thus, even though his heart was filled with hatred, he quickly flew out of the city. This was their only chance. You think you can leave? After seriously injuring the Six Assassins, Soul Destroyer looked at Jin Gang, who had flown out of the city wall, and didn't pursue him. Instead, he sneered. A grey figure suddenly appeared beside Jin Gang silently. It was Soul Destroyer's life clone, Spirit Destroyer. Spirit Destroyer didn't give Jin Gang any chance to react. His spiritual energy surged and his right hand turned into a claw. Jin Gang, who was caught off guard, was hit in the chest. Jin Gang and Zhao Gao, who was on his back, were instantly sent flying. Jin Gang, who was at the same level as him, found it hard to withstand the attack of the spirit destroyer. Kill him. Soul destroyer shouted coldly. Spirit destroyer disappeared into thin air. He appeared in front of Jin Gang, and his palms suddenly smacked down on Jin Gang's chest. It was like it wanted to tear the void as it attacked Jin Gang. If he was hit, it would definitely pierce through Jin Gang's chest. Just as Spirit Destroyer's right hand was about to hit Jing Gang, a flame suddenly shot out and instantly pierced through Spirit Destroyer's grey figure. Spirit Destruction's grey figure stopped moving. His outstretched palm flickered with an endless chill, but it suddenly stopped three inches away from Jing Gang's chest. Soul Destroyer's face turned pale and he spat out blood. The annihilation of the Soul Destroyer's clone caused great damage to him. Jing Gang, who had just escaped death, had no time to be surprised. He endured his injuries and caught the flying Zhao Gao. He staggered to the ground and looked at the fire that had saved him. The long spear was burning with flames, and its entire body was as black as ink. The spear pierced through Spirit Destroyer's body and changed direction in the void. You want to leave? The dispirited Soul Destroyer looked at the spear and snorted. The death of his life clone not only caused him to be seriously injured but also caused him to lose his trump card. If he wanted to create another clone, who knew how many years and months it would take? Such an outcome naturally caused Soul Destroyer's anger to rise. Soul Destroyer approached the long spear. His sleeves fluttered and he suddenly stretched out his hands. He wanted to grab the long spear and find the person who sneaked an attack on him from behind to take revenge for his life clone. The Long Spear seemed to be aware of Soul Destroyer's intention. When Soul Destroyer stretched out his hand, it suddenly advanced instead of retreating and stabbed toward Soul Destroyer. You're looking for death. Soul Destroyer's face revealed a disdainful expression. Soul Destroyer thought that the spear could kill the Avatar because of a sneak attack. He did not sense any powerful aura from the spear. His right hand turned into a claw and suddenly slapped down on the spear. The wind from his palm whistled out and drowned the long spear. In his opinion, his palm strike was enough to destroy the spear. 
However, the sneer on Soul Destroyer's face disappeared as soon as it appeared. The long spear rushed out of the sealed spiritual energy and instantly stabbed in front of him. Soul Destroyer subconsciously dodged to the side. However, his right palm was still pierced by the spear. Fortunately, Soul Destroyer dodged in time, so the sharp spear only pierced his right palm and brushed past his shoulder. Even so, Soul Destroyer's right hand was crippled. Without any hesitation, the spear that had pierced through the Soul Destroyer circled in the void and then flew into the distance, disappearing into the horizon. Who is it? The intense pain caused Soul Destroyer to let out a long howl that spread throughout Hondon City. Me. The white shadow floated over. The young man, who was at a young age, stepped into the void and arrived. What seemed to be a hundred miles of distance, with just a few steps, the man arrived in the air above Hondon City. Long time no see, Guardian Soul Destroyer. The man stood with his spear, floating in the air. He looked at Soul Destroyer with a smile. It's you. Soul Destroyer looked at the white-robed man and spoke in disbelief. Soul Destroyer had not only seen this white-robed man before, but his memory of him was still fresh. Gu Mingzhou. Soul Destroyer suppressed his anger and gritted his teeth as he shouted the name of the man in white. It was Gu Mingzhou, who had gone to the old location of Zhao State to find the trap. I'm really flattered you still remember my name. Guardian Soul Destroyer. Gu Mingzhou said as he stood with his spear. He looked down, his gaze sweeping past the six heavily injured traps assassins on the ground, and finally stopping on Zhao Gao and Zheng Gang. Three years passed, but Zheng Gang did not recognize Gu Mingzhou. Even though Gu Mingzhou had just saved them, Elder Zheng Gang still remained vigilant. This was a killer's instinct. Gu Mingzhou did not mind. He confirmed Zheng Gang and Zhao Gao's situation. Seeing their lives were not in danger for the time being, he retracted his gaze. I didn't expect you to appear here alive. Soul Destroyer was very surprised by Gu Mingzhou's appearance. What's wrong? You've also joined that person. Gu Mingzhou was naturally referring to the world god, Su Fengyu. Gu Mingzhou thought Su Fengyu had only unified the underwater beast cultivators. As for Soul Destroyer and the others, they would definitely not compromise. However, the recent appearance of a few people, as well as Soul Destroyer, had clearly changed Gu Mingzhou's view. Su Fengyu's goal was not as simple as unifying the underwater beast cultivators. Master's Divine Might is like a prison. It's my great honor to be able to pledge my loyalty to Master. Soul Destroyer's face was filled with pride. Since we know each other, I'll let you go. Please tell Su Fengyu that Gu Mingzhou is a member of the trap. Gu Mingzhou's voice was filled with spiritual energy. His voice spread throughout the entire Handan city and spread out in all directions. Whether it was Zhao Gao, Zheng Gang, who was carefully sizing up his surroundings, or the six trap assassins who were seriously injured. They looked at Gu Mingzhou in the air with disbelief. Everyone in the trap knew him. However, they never expected the young man who had fought alongside them to be so powerful he could instantly kill Soul Destroyer. Chapter, 408 In the eyes of the six assassins in the trap, Soul Destroyer's clone, Spirit Destroyer, was also an unparalleled expert. Not only was Trap Assassin surprised, but Soul Destroyer was also. You want to join the trap? Soul Destroyer said in disbelief. Right. Gu Mingzhou confirmed. You've already been listed as someone who must be killed. Joining the trap might not save them, but harm them. Soul Destroyer calmed down. As he thinks, he did not care about his life at first. Instead, he was the one who sent the message that Gu Mingzhou had asked him to. As for the idea of taking revenge for his clone, he had already given up when Gu Mingzhou appeared. Although this was the second time Soul Destroyer and Gu Mingzhou had met, Soul Destroyer had some understanding of Gu Mingzhou's situation. Soul Destroyer was able to make his lord unable to forget him and instantly kill a first-rank Earth Realm cultivator. This made Soul Destroyer aware of the gap between the two. These are not questions you should be concerned about. Go back to the bottom of your freezing cold land and tell your master what I just said. Gu Mingzhou said directly. 
Soul Destroyer's gaze flickered as he looked at Gu Mingzhou. In the end, he turned his head and headed south. Unless Su Fengyu came, it would be difficult to kill Zhao Gao in front of him. Gu Mingzhou looked at Soul Destroyer's disappearing back and was silent for a long time. Then, he turned around and looked at the England's cultivators who were still surrounding the assassins. A terrifying aura seeped out and instantly enveloped the entire Handan city. The troops of England, listen up. From today onwards, Handan city will be the headquarters of the trap. If any troops dare to step in, they will be like this mountain. With that, Gu Mingzhou's spear suddenly flew out, hitting a mountain outside of Handan city. Boom! The mountain range that stretched for a hundred miles suddenly exploded. The mountain disappeared. Go back and tell your king of England that my name is Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou looked around Handan city and shouted with his spiritual energy-infused voice, ensuring that his voice would reach the ears of every English army. These two simple sentences, deliberately emphasized, instantly resounded throughout the entire Handan city, the sound lingering for a long time. In addition to the terrifying pressure, the faces of the England cultivators in Handan city turned pale. Their legs went soft, and their foreheads were covered in sweat. I heard that Gu Mingzhou single-handedly challenged the entire underwater world of beast cultivators and killed many strong people. Gu Mingzhou's experience in the world of beast cultivators was revealed, and all kinds of rumors swept through Handan city. The rumors were exaggerated among the England army that had allied with the underwater beast cultivators. At this moment, everything else was attached to Gu Mingzhou. At this moment, one of the England cultivators who surrounded the assassin could not withstand the pressure. He could not suppress the fear in his heart. Suddenly, his weapon fell to the ground and he turned to run. Starting from the cultivators who surrounded the assassins, all the soldiers inside and outside of Handan lost their will to fight. They turned around and ran. Tens of thousands of troops retreated out of Handan city, retreating a hundred miles, but they did not dare to stop. Among them, there were some who were lucky and hid in the houses in Handan city, trying to escape from Gu Mingzhou's sight. Gu Mingzhou stretched out his left hand in the air and clenched it tightly. The England cultivators who were hiding in Handan city were directly blown apart, their souls scattered. He had already sent out his spiritual sense and covered Handan city. No cultivator could escape from his control. Of course, Gu Mingzhou only targeted cultivators. He did not care about the ordinary England soldiers. The normal soldiers did not pose a threat to Gu Mingzhou or even the assassins in the trap. If they were to massacre wantonly, it would cause the people in Handan city to feel fear. This would not be good for their future plans of establishing a country. After killing the English cultivators and underwater beast cultivators in the city, he put away his spear and floated down from the sky, landing in front of Gang and Zhao Gao. The England cultivators and underwater beast cultivators had all been cleared out of Handan city. The danger of being caught was temporarily removed. Brother, is it really you? Zhen Gang looked at Gu Mingzhou landing in front of him and said in disbelief and excitement. Not only Zhen Gang. It's really you, kid. Even Zhao Gao, who was seriously injured and on the verge of death, seemed to have regained consciousness as he sized up Gu Mingzhou with wide eyes. I'm back, Gu Mingzhou was a little excited. He walked to Zhen Gang's side and gave him a hug. You disappeared for so long, I thought you wouldn't come back. I didn't expect you to become so strong. I can't thank you enough for your great kindness. Zhen Gang patted Gu Mingzhou's shoulder and cupped his hands in respect excitedly. You're welcome. But you're not bad either. You've already built your Dao Foundation. I'm afraid it won't be long before you ascend to the heavenly realm, right? Gu Mingzhou saw through Zhen Gang's cultivation and said. In a few months, I will find a way to ascend. A smile appeared on Zhen Gang's pale face as he nodded. Congratulations. It seems that I've come back at the right time. I'm lucky to see you ascend. Gu Mingzhou laughed out loud. If Gu Mingzhou, who had not undergone the tribulation, wanted to ascend, he would have to follow the method of the floating Jade Island Master and find someone to undergo the tribulation. The process would take time. Now that Su Fengyu had destroyed three major islands in succession, it was obvious that his target was the mainland. 
Gu Mingzhou didn't know the reason, but he knew that Su Fengyu was preparing to make a move on the land. What happened to the three major rogue cultivator islands would be the same as what happened to the neighboring countries. He wouldn't let such a thing happen. At the very least, he had to deal with this matter before he went to seize the tribulation and ascend to the heavenly realm in peace. No one could estimate how long it would take. Zhen Gang didn't notice the glint in Gu Mingzhou's eyes when he spoke. Immersed in her joy, she thought Gu Mingzhou's ascension date was only a little longer than his own, so he didn't think too much about it. Sect Head Zhao, how are you? Gu Mingzhou squatted down in front of Zhao Gao and asked with concern. Even though Zhao Gao had regained some of his strength before he died, he was now dispirited and looked even weaker than before. It was as if the flame of his life was about to be extinguished. Spirit Destroyer's sneak attack had dealt Zhao Gao a heavy blow. In addition, Soul Destroyer had almost crippled Zhao Gao's meridians, causing his body to suffer even more severe injuries. Fortunately, these two attacks weren't fatal and weren't enough to kill Zhao Gao. I'm fine, but I didn't expect your cultivation to be so strong. Zhao Gao looked at Gu Mingzhou and smiled weakly, but he couldn't help but cough. Sect Master, this is not the place to talk. Let's change to another place. Zhen Gang suddenly cupped his hands and said. You're all injured now, so it's more important to heal first. Gu Mingzhou nodded in agreement. Zhen Gang hurriedly went to check on the other six seriously injured net assassins. Even though they were severely injured, their injuries were not as severe as Zhao Gao's. At least, he could still walk on his own, although his speed was slow. Please follow me. Zhen Gang supported the seriously injured assassin and headed north of Handan City. The rest of the assassins followed closely. Chapter 409 Gu Mingzhou carried Zhao Gao on his back and quickly followed. Due to the invasion by the England army, the Zhao state was destroyed. This caused the originally prosperous Handan City to become cold and lifeless. Many of the residents had left the city when the war started. This was because the city would become a battlefield for killing. The battle had caused Handan City to be extremely desolate. No one walked on the wide streets, and it was like a dead city. The Xing Pavilion had already been destroyed and was inhabitable. The place that Jin Gang brought them to was a branch in the north. At this time, the branch had long been empty. Before Soul Destroyer attacked, Zhao Gao had ordered the assassins in the trap to retreat. Hence, they left Handan City. The North City branch used a special messenger method to inform the assassins to return. They found some healing pills and bandaged Zhao Gao and the other six assassins. Although Zhao Gao's life was not in danger, his injuries were still too severe. When Gu Mingzhou brought him to the trap branch, he fainted. Zhen Gang was treating Zhao Gao's injuries. The process was extremely slow. Zhao Gao's unconscious state meant that he was unable to circulate his spiritual energy and use pills to heal himself, so he could only rely on the help of Zhen Gang and the others. Gu Mingzhou didn't stop either. He was constantly instilling spiritual energy into Zhao Gao to assist in his recovery. It was not difficult for cultivators of his realm. While helping Zhao Gao heal his injuries, the assassins gradually returned to the city. There were not many people in the trap. The core members were Heaven, Earth, and Ju level assassins, and there were only about 200 of them. Besides Zhao Gao, there was only Jin Gang among the Heaven rank assassins. There were more than 70 Earth rank assassins left, most of whom were Saint cultivators. Most of them were Ju rank assassins, about 100. Jin Gang's injuries were the lightest. With Gu Mingzhou's help, he quickly recovered and immediately went to deal with the trap. Time passed by quietly. Because of Gu Mingzhou's threat, the England army retreated from Handan City in three days. The underwater beast cultivators did not come either. It looked as if the dust had settled and everything was calm. But Gu Mingzhou knew that this was the calm before the storm. Far away from the Zhao state, the armies of the England kingdom and the Zhou dynasty were still fighting. In the face of the England soldiers who had allied with the underwater beast cultivators, the Zhou dynasty could only temporarily defend itself. He Chuan had never intervened in this kind of war. During this period of time, there were only confrontations between the armies. 
There were no high-level cultivators from the Zhou dynasty, England, or the powerful demon cultivators from the bottom of the sea. Both sides seemed to be waiting for something. The matter that Gu Mingzhou had previously discussed with the floating Jade Island master could only be put on hold because Zhao Gao was still in a coma. Worried that problems might arise, he did not let the hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators that had rushed to Zhao move into Handan city. Instead, he stationed them at the foot of the mountain and waited for news. After making arrangements for floating jade island, he waited for Zhao Gao to wake up. Zhao Gao, who had passed out, finally regained consciousness after his injuries had mostly recovered. Zhao Gao's status was special, and he was placed in a secret room. Apart from Zhen Gang and a small number of the trap's core members, they could enter. The secret room's corridors were full of twists and turns, and there were many traps. If they defended this place, even a cultivator like Gu Mingzhou would need a long time to find them. It could be seen that the defense of the trap was very strong. He followed Zhen Gang into the underground stone house and saw Zhao Gao. Zhao Gao had recovered slightly, but he looked extremely haggard and weak. He could not even get out of bed. I've embarrassed myself in front of Brother Gu, please take a seat. When he saw Gu Mingzhou enter, a smile appeared on Zhao Gao's dispirited face. Gu Mingzhou didn't say anything. He sat down on a chair next to him. The weak Zhao Gao suddenly sat up, trembling. Sect Master. Zhen Gang was shocked and hurriedly went to the bed to support Zhao Gao. Sect Master Zhao, you're not feeling well, why sit up? Gu Mingzhou stood up and said. I'm a little tired from lying down, it's better to sit. Zhao Gao straightened his body with Zhen Gang's help and waved his hand. Gu Mingzhou immediately stopped talking and sat down again. Brother Gu, you're so talented. It seems like you've gained a lot in the past few years. Zhao Gao said again. Not at all, I just had a chance encounter. Gu Mingzhou said very humbly. Even if you have good luck, you can't achieve great things without talent. I heard that Brother Gu is looking for me for something. Zhao Gao recalled what Chen Gang had said and asked. This was also good. Anyway, Gu Mingzhou had told Chen Gang about this in their chat, so he naturally wasn't going to hide it. That's right, I do have a request. Gu Mingzhou immediately replied. He was only making a suggestion. Whether he agreed or not would be up to Zhao Gao to decide. With his current cultivation and status, Zhao Gao wouldn't refuse if he was forced to. However, that would be mixed with coercion, which might affect the floating jade rogue cultivators and the trap in the future. Gu Mingzhou was not willing to see this. Brother Gu, are you talking about taking in a hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators? Zhao Gao asked. A hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators came to support us, but they were ambushed. Hence, we hope that sect master Zhao can give them a place to stay. Gu Mingzhou didn't mention the destruction of the three major rogue cultivator islands because he thought Zhao Gao would have received the news. A trap was not only an assassin organization but also a place for information. Brother Gu saved the trap's life, there's no reason not to agree to your request, but Sect Master Zhao said after a moment of silence. Sect Master Zhao, if you have something to say, just say it. I have no objections. Gu Mingzhou saw Zhao Gao's hesitation and immediately said. He made it clear it was only a suggestion, not a decision. He still wanted Zhao Gao to make the decision. Zhao Gao was an experienced and astute man, so he naturally understood what Gu Mingzhou meant. It was because of this that Zhao Gao was in a difficult position. To be honest, it's possible to capture a hundred thousand floating jade wandering cultivators, but there's a condition. Zhao Gao seemed to have made up his mind and looked at Gu Mingzhou. Just say it. Gu Mingzhou quickly replied. The original intention of the trap was to fight against the rogue cultivators of the freezing cold land. Even though the three major islands are no longer around, the floating jade rogue cultivators are still rogue cultivators. Therefore, once the trap takes them in, they can no longer be called rogue cultivators of the freezing cold land. Zhao Gao said. No problem, there's no place for the freezing cold land's people in this world. Gu Mingzhou had already thought of this before he came and had already discussed it with the floating jade island master. 
The trap itself is a very strict assassin organization, and the control of its subordinates is particularly strict. If they want to take in floating jade rogue cultivators, they must also promise to obey the trap unconditionally. Zhao Gao said again. Unconditionally? Gu Mingzhou was confused. They'll have to obey unconditionally. But don't worry, this is to prevent internal strife and management. They won't be asked to do anything out of line. Zhao Gao said weakly. No problem. Gu Mingzhou nodded and motioned for the other party to continue. I'm afraid it's impossible to let floating jade rogue cultivators enter the core of the trap in a short time. They can only serve as the outer disciple. Moreover, floating jade loose cultivators can't have any right to speak. Zhao Gao continued. Chapter, 410 It's understandable to not give the floating jade rogue cultivators take up positions in the upper echelons of the trap. But I'm afraid it's not possible if they don't have the right to speak. Gu Mingzhou shook his head. The floating jade rogue cultivators had just lost their home. If someone with ill intentions appeared in the trap and wanted to harm the floating jade rogue cultivator, the floating jade rogue cultivator, who had no right to speak, would not have the power to fight back at all. This was something that floating jade island master would never allow. Zhao Gao knew what Gu Mingzhou meant, but he was also considerate, so he didn't point it out. However, in order to ensure the benefits of the trap and prevent the floating jade rogue cultivator from doing evil on land, he would not give the floating jade rogue cultivator the right to speak. It was a bit difficult. In my opinion, why don't we split the trap into two sects? The ones in charge of the internal affairs are the trap assassins, and the ones in charge of the external affairs are the floating jade rogue cultivators. The two sects will manage each other and restrict each other. What do you think? At this moment, Zhen Gang, who was beside him, suddenly spoke. I think it's a good suggestion, Gu Mingzhou did not wait for Zhao Gao's reply and agreed first. Zhen Gang's suggestion was undoubtedly to separate the trap from the floating jade individual cultivators but also perfectly integrate them into one. Not only did it bring equal status to the floating jade rogue cultivators, but the sect master was also the absolute core of the trap, so there would be no internal strife. Let's do as Zhen Gang said. We'll manage the trap separately and restrict each other. Zhao Gao didn't say much and said after some thought. Does sect master Zhao agree to accept the floating jade rogue cultivator? Gu Mingzhou was very happy. This matter was finally settled. Since brother Gu has spoken, how can I not agree? Zhao Gao said with a bitter smile. You can't just say things like that. I'm just giving a suggestion. Gu Mingzhou said with a smile. There's no problem with accepting floating jade rogue cultivators, but forget about building a kingdom. Before he could finish his sentence, Zhao Gao suddenly changed the topic. The main reason why Gu Mingzhou wanted the floating jade rogue cultivators to join the trap was that he wanted to rely on the trap to establish a country in the old territory of the state of Zhao. It could ensure the long-term stability of the floating jade rogue cultivator. It was also to keep the Zhou dynasty in check, which could become the overlord in the future. However, Zhao Gao had agreed to accept a hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators but rejected the idea of becoming a nation. This made Gu Mingzhou very surprised. To be honest, he had thought that Zhao Gao would refuse to accept the floating jade rogue cultivator, but he had never thought that Zhao Gao would refuse to form his own country and become the great emperor. The fact Zhao Gao didn't care that the founding of a nation was a matter that would go down in history was enough to show Zhao Gao's character. If they did not establish an independent country, how could the Zhou dynasty tolerate the trap with a hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators after defeating the underwater demon cultivators and Su Funyu? Why? Gu Mingzhou asked doubtfully. The founding of a country was not only beneficial to the floating jade rogue cultivators, but also to the trap. It could even make the assassins in the trap come out from the dark. No matter how noble Zhao Gao was, he should still consider the future of the trap assassin. Assassins were existences that could never see the light of day. Assassins can't be exposed to the light and don't understand politics. I'm afraid that building a country will be difficult for the people. Zhao Gao's weak face revealed a bitter smile as he replied. Gu Mingzhou did not know what to say. The trap's work was well known, 
but it only existed through assassination. It would be a problem to manage the country. It was indeed worrying that the power of killing was in the hands of the assassins. I was the one who created the trap and trained the assassins. I know that some people's minds are not simple. It may seem glorious to start a country, but who can understand the responsibility? Zhao Gao continued. If they formed their own country, where would the trap go? A hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators was not a small number. If we defeat the underwater beast cultivators, England will definitely be destroyed. At that time, the Zhou dynasty will definitely become the overlord. Their target may be the trap. Gu Mingzhou said. Just as he was worried. If the trap only had a few hundred people, the powerful Zhou dynasty might not have taken it seriously. However, they had taken in a hundred thousand floating jade individual cultivators, which was enough to threaten the Zhou dynasty. When the time came, the Zhou dynasty would naturally not leave them be. He Chuan would indeed not make a move, but the empress would not be a pushover. How many strong cultivators had the Zhou dynasty cultivated over the years? The New World Cultivation Alliance had also joined. Gu Mingzhou was well aware of the strength of the Central Plains. If Gu Mingzhou and the floating jade island master ascended to the heavenly realm or passed away, waiting for the floating jade rogue cultivators would undoubtedly be a disaster. Even if we don't kill our way to the bottom of the sea, Su Fengyu will still severely injure or even exterminate the demonic cultivators at the bottom of the sea. No matter who wins, they will become the overlord of the world. Gu Mingzhou voiced his worries. You said that the three great rogue cultivator islands have been destroyed? Zhao Gao's face was filled with shock as he spoke in disbelief. Not only Zhao Gao but Zhen Gang was also shocked by Gu Mingzhou's words. They were inclined to believe that the Zhou dynasty would win. After all, they were all cultivators. If the Zhou dynasty won, the cultivators on land would be more united, which would be very beneficial to resist the rogue cultivators in freezing cold land and the demonic cultivators in the sea. Neither Zhao Gao nor Zhen Gang knew the three islands had been destroyed, nor did they know the outcome of this battle would affect the entire world. In fact, Gu Mingzhou's guess was wrong. The speed of the underwater beast cultivators in freezing cold land was too fast. It was so fast that before it could reach the land countries, England had already raised their flags and started a war. Sect Master Zhao, you don't seem to know anything about the freezing cold land. Gu Mingzhou said. He didn't speak quickly. Although he omitted many things, Su Fengyu's identity, his escape from suppression, his unification of the underwater demon cultivators, and the destruction of three major rogue cultivator islands took nearly two hours. If the Zhou dynasty wins, we can still restrict them. Even if the restrictions aren't that strong, it's better than nothing. Gu Mingzhou, who had finished recounting the entire incident, finally said. Zhao Gao didn't expect so many things to happen in the ocean of freezing cold land. It was truly inconceivable that the rogue cultivators who had racked their brains to defend against the freezing cold land had gone extinct just like that. Even though they had a long-standing feud with the rogue cultivators in the freezing cold land, they still felt sorry when they heard they were exterminated without leaving any survivors. If that's the case, then your suggestion is good. Zhao Gao knew the severity of the matter. What exactly did Su Fengyu want to do? Since Su Fengyu's appearance, everything he had done up until now seemed to be out of order. It was confusing, and no one knew what he was going to do. Take revenge on all the living beings in this world. According to what Gu Mingzhou had seen earlier, Su Fengyu had directly plundered the blood essence of living creatures. Why did he need to start a war? Unifying the world and rebuilding a world that belonged to the world god. Su Fengyu should have chosen to conquer the three major rogue cultivator islands instead of directly destroying them. From the way the underwater demonic cultivators destroyed the floating jade island, it seemed like they were carrying out some kind of sacrifice. Gu Mingzhou couldn't tell what Su Fengyu was trying to do. It isn't a good thing. Shouldn't our main goal now be to deal with Su Fengyu? As long as we kill or capture Su Fengyu, everything will be solved. Zhao Gao asked. It was all because of Su Fengyu. If Su Fengyu were to be suppressed again, wouldn't the problem be solved? Chapter, 411
let's not talk about how terrifying Su Fengyu is. Even if we can defeat him, where can we find him now? As a world god, he can sense the entire world. Who knows, he might be monitoring us right now. Gu Mingzhou shook his head and said. Zhao Gao and Zhen Gang trembled at the same time, and they immediately became alert as they observed their surroundings. Don't be so nervous. If he wants to monitor us, we won't be able to find him. Gu Mingzhou gestured to them not to be too nervous. It might be difficult to detect him in other places, but no matter how high his cultivation is, he can't hide from us. Zhao Gao's expression was extremely grim as he stared at the door and said sternly. Zhen Gang immediately stood up, and a vast amount of spiritual energy howled out. His right hand formed a sword and pointed towards the stone door. The blue light instantly landed on the stone door. A bright blue light appeared on the stone wall and suddenly gathered on the roof. A huge eye suddenly appeared there. An eye the size of a cow was strangely suspended on the stone roof. In the blink of an eye, it burst out with a sharp light that could see the world, making people's hearts palpitate. Almost at the same time as the giant eye appeared, Gu Mingzhou, who was sitting firmly on the stone chair, jumped up. A long spear flickering with flames appeared in his hand. He pierced through the void and attacked the giant eye on the roof. In the stone house, Zhao Gao was heavily injured and had no strength to fight back. Although Xin Gang had built his Dao foundation, he was only good at assassination and not at attacking. In the secret chamber, Gu Mingzhou had undoubtedly become the person who could protect Zhao Gao. Whether or not the giant eye was Su Fengyu's doing, as long as it could endanger Zhao Gao's safety, Gu Mingzhou had no choice but to take action. If Zhao Gao died, the trap would fall into chaos, and the floating jade rogue cultivators merging would undoubtedly be delayed. Gu Mingzhou would definitely not allow that to happen. The spear's radiance brought along a terrifying pressure as it instantly approached the giant eye. Just as the spear was about to hit the eye, the eye suddenly disappeared. The spear radiance pierced the stone house. The entire stone house emitted a dazzling light that was hard to open. It was the light that was emitted when the defensive formation was activated. Gu Mingzhou had guessed there was a defensive formation here, which was why he had dared to attack with all his might. Otherwise, even if he could defeat the giant eye, the stone house deep underground would definitely collapse, and Zhao Gao and Zhen Gang would undoubtedly be buried. It wouldn't have much of an effect on Zhen Gang, but it could be fatal to the heavily injured Zhao Gao. He was not wrong. The secret underground room was heavily guarded and had the ability to withstand Gu Mingzhou's powerful attacks. When the spear was missed, Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate at all. He immediately pulled back his spear and retreated to Zhao Gao's side. His spiritual sense covered the entire stone house. If it wasn't for the fact that this stone house was specially made, he wouldn't have been able to discover the giant eye. If the other party attacked Zhao Gao, Gu Mingzhou, who was completely unprepared, might not be able to stop him in time, and Zhao Gao would die. The dazzling light gradually dissipated as Gu Mingzhou retreated. Its power was dispelled, and the entire stone house returned to silence. The dark night devoured all the light like a demon. There were only a few luminous pearls embedded in the walls, giving off a faint blue light that illuminated the entire stone house. The huge eye disappeared. Gu Mingzhou held his spear and stood beside Zhao Gao. His spiritual energy revolved around him as he prepared to attack. His eyes shone with a sharp light as he carefully observed his surroundings. Zhen Gang was the same. He was much weaker than Gu Mingzhou, but at this critical moment, he subconsciously released the spiritual energy in his body. Zhen Gang chose to defend and protect Zhao Gao with all his might. There's no need to panic. If he wants to harm me, I'm afraid he'll take action before we even notice. In contrast to the two of them, Zhao Gao, who was being protected, was not worried or cautious at all. It didn't matter if the giant eye was Su Fengyu's doing. However, since it could avoid Gu Mingzhou's perception and silently float in the stone house, it would have done so long ago if it wanted to harm Zhao Gao. It was obvious that it had never intended to harm Zhao Gao. It was possible that the giant eye could only peep and not launch a sneak attack. However, compared to this reason, Zhao Gao believed in the former's deduction more. 
To be able to open the detection of a cultivator of the earth realm and two cultivators at the peak of the mortal realm, and to secretly spy on him, there was no doubt that he was powerful. A pervert's mind is always the hardest to guess. Who knows what he's planning? It's better to be careful. Gu Mingzhou did not believe Zhao Gao's speculation. Instead, he believed in himself more. He had fought with Su Fenyu before. Although he couldn't be sure the giant eye was Su Fenyu's doing, he knew Su Fenyu had a brutal personality and was unpredictable. If the giant eye belonged to Su Fenyu, it didn't mean he wouldn't attack Zhao Gao in the future, regardless of the reason why he didn't attack Zhao Gao earlier. Besides, other than Su Fenyu, Gu Mingzhou really couldn't think of anyone else in the world who could avoid his perception without a hitch. Perhaps it was because no one knew the true level of cultivation of the famous Duke He. But Gu Mingzhou would rather believe that the giant I belonged to Su Fenyu. After all, he had met He Chuan before. He was almost in the realm of having no desires. He said he would give them a chance to build a country, but why would he monitor them from behind? It would have saved him a lot of trouble if he had killed him back then. Since Brother Gu is so afraid of him, it seems that Su Fenyu is not ordinary. Zhao Gao looked at Gu Mingzhou's cautious expression and sighed. Zhao Gao's original intention was only to make fun of Gu Mingzhou and Zhen Gang to ease their tension. No matter how powerful I am, I'm just a drop in the ocean. Compared to Brother Gu's true identity, I'm not even a tiny bit weaker. To Zhao Gao's surprise, just as he finished speaking, an echo suddenly rang out from within the secret chamber. A blood-red light suddenly bloomed in front of the stone door, turning the entire stone house red. A handsome man in a dark red robe suddenly emerged from the red light. His face was as white as jade, and his long eyebrows and phoenix eyes had a devilish charm. There was a smile on his mouth as he floated in the air. Su Fenyu. Gu Mingzhou could not help but become serious. He clenched the long spear in his hand and shouted coldly. The red-robed handsome man who had suddenly appeared was none other than Su Fenyu, the world god. This is fellow Daoist Su Fenyu. Zhao Gao said in surprise. Zhen Gang's entire body tensed up. He could sense a dangerous aura from Su Fenyu. I didn't expect us to meet so soon. It seems that our fate isn't shallow. Su Fenyu said softly with a smile on his face. It was like a reunion of old friends, without the slightest hostility. As a world god, you still believe in fate. I should have kept you on the floating jade island. The hundreds of thousands of living beings on the floating jade island won't be killed. Gu Mingzhou continued to sneer. Back then, Su Fengyu had used Lu Dong's body to launch a strong attack on the floating jade island. However, they happened to run into Gu Mingzhou and the floating jade island master. Not only did they fail to attack the island, but they were also almost left on the floating jade island. Unfortunately, he had been too careless at that time. He did not expect Su Fenyu to abandon Lu Dong's body and leave with the blood shield. This caused the tragedy of floating Jade Island, and he regretted it. Do you think you can fight me just because you've broken through the shackles of your Dao Foundation? Su Fenyu suddenly laughed as if he had heard a joke. Chapter 412 Gu Mingzhou didn't say anything. According to Su Fenyu's words, he didn't seem to know about He Chuan's existence or how powerful He Chuan was, which was why he was so arrogant. In that case, Duke He was actually paying attention to the world god's movements at all times. As for He Chuan's thoughts, he wasn't sure. However, he would definitely not tell Su Fenyu about this. You ran pretty fast back then. He said in disdain. What I left on the floating Jade Island that day was just a divine sense in Lu Dong's body. At most, it can only destroy the divine sense, but it can't cause any harm to me. Su Fenyu didn't care about Gu Mingzhou's anger at all and said indifferently. What about now? A vast amount of spiritual energy immediately surged out of Gu Mingzhou's body. The divine sense he had left on Su Fenyu that day was unable to cause any substantial harm to Su Fenyu. However, if he had been able to leave behind that wisp of divine sense back then, it would have made Su Fenyu apprehensive. At least, he would not have made a comeback so quickly and destroyed floating Jade Island. You want to attack this lord now? 
the smile on Su Fenyu's face disappeared and was replaced by a cold chill. He could sense killing intent from Gu Mingzhou, as well as a hint of danger. This feeling made Su Fenyu, who was high and mighty, very uncomfortable. So what if I am? The flames burning on the long spear were filled with killing intent. Gu Mingzhou was about to attack. Brother Gu, don't be in such a hurry to make a move. Since fellow Daoist Su Fenyu dares to show himself, I'm afraid he has come for something. Why don't we listen to him first? Zhao Gao weakly poked his head out and said softly. Gu Mingzhou retracted his aura. Sect Master Zhao knows how to treat his guests. After hearing Zhao Gao's words, Su Fenyu revealed an evil smile again. One doesn't come here without a reason. Fellow Daoist Su Fenyu didn't come all the way here just to kill me, Zhao Gao looked at Su Fenyu and said with a smile. Gu Mingzhou gave up his seat and remained silent. He fixed his attention on Su Fenyu and was ready to attack at any time. Even though Su Fenyu had made it clear he had no ill intentions, Gu Mingzhou was still a little worried because of his understanding of Su Fenyu. Sect Master Zhao, you worry too much. Although my personality is a little weird, this lord disdains despicable things like sneak attacks. Su Fenyu put his hands behind his back and completely retracted the red light around him. I don't know why fellow Daoist Su Fenyu has come, but please tell me. Zhao Gao remained calm and said with a smile. This lord is here to cooperate with sect master Zhao. Su Fenyu replied. Su Fenyu's voice was not loud, but it was enough to be clearly heard by Zhao Gao, Gu Mingzhou, and Zhen Gang in this secret chamber. The three of them could not help but be stunned. Cooperation. Zhao Gao asked in surprise. You want to work with sect master Zhao? Gu Mingzhou was also very surprised and asked. Although Zhen Gang was also confused, he didn't say anything. Instead, he moved closer to Zhao Gao so that he could better protect him. What's wrong? Are you very surprised that this lord wants to cooperate with you? With a smile on his face, Su Fengyu glanced at Zhen Gang, Zhao Gao, and Gu Mingzhou with an evil and charming gaze. I'm not just surprised, I'm scared. Gu Mingzhou held the spear with both hands and stood in front of Zhao Gao. He said coldly. His words were sharp, and it was obvious he didn't believe Su Fengyu's words. Other people might not know about people like Su Fengyu. However, Gu Mingzhou, who had seen how terrifying he was, had every reason to believe Su Fengyu could do what he wanted by himself. Why would he need to find someone to cooperate with? This was what Gu Mingzhou was puzzled about. In Brother Gu's heart, I don't need to work with anyone to do what I want to do. Su Fengyu could obviously tell what Gu Mingzhou was thinking. He didn't mind the impolite words at all. With this lord's identity, there's nothing I can't do in this world. However, there are some things that I can't choose. For example, a person's life and death. Su Fengyu continued. What do you mean by that? Gu Mingzhou was very confused by Su Fengyu's words. Zhao Gao's eyes flashed, but he remained silent. This lord can destroy the entire mainland as easily as destroying the three rogue cultivator islands. However, this lord only wants to destroy the Zhou dynasty and get rid of the Morong family of the Heavenly Sword sect. So you want us not to interfere in the war between the Zhou dynasty and England? Zhao Gao seemed to have guessed something and interrupted Su Fengyu's words, saying the conclusion in his heart. Sect Master Zhao is indeed intelligent. If this lord cooperate with you, we'll mind our own business. Su Fengyu clapped his hands and laughed. Why should we believe you? Gu Mingzhou said coldly. The premise of a gentleman's agreement is that you must be a gentleman. But you're a brutal tyrant. Zhen Gang's words were even more direct than Gu Mingzhou's, directly pointing out Su Fengyu's actions. Zhen Gang had heard everything about Su Fengyu from Gu Mingzhou. However, when he heard that the millions of lives on the three major rogue cultivator islands had all died at the hands of this world god, he couldn't help but be furious. In particular, the bloody smell on Su Fengyu's body was not something that could be obtained by killing hundreds of people. This lord is the world god of this world. I can kill all of you and everyone in Handan City with a single wave of my hand. 
Su Fengyu suddenly raised his right hand and pointed at Gu Mingzhou and the other two. Don't you dare! Jin Gang shouted in a cold voice as he released a vast amount of spiritual energy that surrounded Zhao Gao and himself. Gu Mingzhou also stood in front of Zhao Gao, and the long spear in his hand suddenly burst into flames. His spiritual sense had directly locked onto Su Fengyu. As long as the other party made the slightest move, he would not hesitate to attack. This lord has backed down again and again, don't you dare be ungrateful. This lord might not be able to do anything to you right now. However, you are only qualified to watch me do what I want to do. The blood-red light that had been restrained earlier suddenly burst out from Su Fengyu's body, instantly illuminating the entire stone house red. The pressure of spiritual energy, which reeked of blood, then descended on Gu Mingzhou and the other two. Gu Mingzhou subconsciously activated his spell, and a vast amount of spiritual energy poured out, enveloping Zhao Gao and Zhen Gang behind him and helping them resist Su Fengyu's pressure. The spear glowed brightly again as it prepared to attack. Wait a moment. I agree to cooperate with fellow Daoist Su Fengyu. A weak and aged voice suddenly came from behind Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou turned around in disbelief. Su Fengyu stopped what he was doing. Can you let this old man say a few words? Zhao Gao stood in front of the bed and patted Gu Mingzhou's shoulder as he asked in a low voice. Although Gu Mingzhou was confused, he knew Zhao Gao would not be careless about this matter. He put away his spear and made his way. What do you think of my decision? Zhao Gao cupped his hands and said. Su Fengyu was silent. Zhao Gao's actions shocked even him. He had thought Zhao Gao would object, but he didn't expect him to agree. Sect Master Zhao is indeed capable of achieving great things. However, I'm afraid you can't make a decision. The hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators have yet to merge into the trap. Su Fengyu quickly regained his senses, and a smile appeared on his gloomy face. He shifted his gaze away from Zhao Gao and looked at Gu Mingzhou. Chapter, 413 Su Fengyu said that he wanted to cooperate with Zhao Gao, but the main purpose of the cooperation was not to cooperate with the trap but to cooperate with Gu Mingzhou, or rather, the Lord of Floating Jade Island, and the Hundred Thousand Floating Jade Rogue Cultivators. After all, the combination of two Earth Realm Warriors and Hundred Thousand Powerhouses would have a great impact on the entire battlefield. Since the Hundred Thousand Floating Jade Rogue Cultivators have decided to join the trap, do I have the right to make the decision? Zhao Gao turned to look at Gu Mingzhou with a smile. Naturally. Gu Mingzhou subconsciously tightened his grip on the long spear in his hand. He really wanted to refute, but he trusted Zhao Gao. In the end, he nodded and said. Fellow Daoist Su Fengyu, how are things now? Zhao Gao said with a smile. Sect Master Zhao is able to make the decision of a floating jade rogue cultivator. Our cooperation is a success. Su Fengyu retracted his gaze from Gu Mingzhou. If that's the case, can I ask a few questions? Zhao Gao continued. Just say it. Su Fengyu had some doubts in his heart, but he didn't refuse. This time, it's only against the royal family of the Zhou dynasty and not the entire continent. I wonder if it's true. Zhao Gao asked as he stared at Su Fengyu. It's definitely true. This lord has no need to lie to you. Su Fengyu answered without hesitation. The so-called cooperation, are you referring to fellow Daoist Su Fengyu alone, or are you referring to the underwater beast cultivators, including England? Zhao Gao continued to ask. I represent the three parties. As long as sect master Zhao agrees to cooperate, I, the underwater beast cultivators, and England will stay out of the trap. Su Fengyu replied. What is the purpose of targeting the Zhou dynasty's royal family? After destroying three big rogue cultivator islands in succession, you're now attacking the most ancient Zhou dynasty on the continent. What are you trying to do? Zhao Gao seemed to be very satisfied with Su Fengyu's answer, so he continued to ask. When Zhao Gao asked the third question, Zhen Gang's pupils quivered. Gu Mingzhou finally understood why Zhao Gao had suddenly agreed to work with Su Fengyu. He was trying to find out Su Fengyu's purpose. Would Su Fengyu tell Zhao Gao's question? 
Su Fengyu didn't answer Zhao Gao's question immediately. Instead, his expression suddenly turned serious, and the smile on his face disappeared. Do you not trust me, or does fellow Daoist not want to answer? It was as if Xiao Gao's question was reasonable. What if I say that there are both? Su Fengyu stared at Xiao Gao for a long time before he suddenly said. Since fellow Daoist Su Fengyu is not sincere in cooperating, I'm afraid I can't do as you say even if I die. Zhao Gao's expression changed immediately. He was not satisfied with Su Fengyu's concealment. You're not afraid of death. Gu Mingzhou wanted to save you, but I'm afraid he won't make it in time. If you disagree, I'll kill you. Su Fengyu said it in a very relaxed manner, as if he did not care about killing Zhao Gao at all. Don't you dare. Gu Mingzhou immediately raised his right arm, and the long spear in his hand flashed with a cold light as he pointed it at Su Fengyu. There is no one in the world who is not afraid of death, and I am no different. However, if fellow Daoist Su Fengyu wants to kill me, no matter how afraid I am of death, it will be of no use. Zhao Gao looked calm as he pushed away the spear Gu Mingzhou was pointing at and looked at Su Fengyu. It's good that you know. Su Fengyu said coldly, but he had no intention of attacking Zhao Gao. He knew Zhao Gao still had something to say. With fellow Daoist Su Fengyu's strength, he can kill ten million of me. Before Su Fengyu could finish his sentence, Zhao Gao had already spoken. However, I hope fellow Daoist Su Fengyu doesn't forget that there's still Gu Mingzhou, the floating jade island master, and hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators. I'm afraid that no one else would agree to cooperate with you. Zhao Gao suddenly raised his voice. Are you threatening me? Su Fengyu narrowed his eyes and stared at Zhao Gao as he spoke coldly. I'm just telling the truth, not threatening you. Zhao Gao said without fear. Very good. Su Fengyu's eyes narrowed even more fiercely, almost forming a line. It was hard to tell whether he was happy or angry at the two simple words. Zhao Gao chose to remain silent at the right time. He stopped talking and stared at Su Fengyu with a smile. Gu Mingzhou put away his spear again and chose to remain silent. Beside him, Zhen Gang was supporting Zhao Gao with his head lowered. No one knew what he was thinking. The entire stone house seemed to have fallen into silence. It was so quiet that one could even hear a pin drop. A heavy and oppressive aura filled the surroundings and the stone house. Since Sec Master Zhao wants to know so much, there's no harm in telling you. Su Fengyu's squinted eyes suddenly opened and he made a sound. I'm all ears. Zhao Gao seemed to have expected that Su Fengyu would answer his question. He was not surprised as he cupped his hands and replied indifferently. You all know my identity. You also know that a long time ago, there was an ancient race that was favored by the heavenly Tao. They were known as the World God and were the World Cultivation Branch. Su Fengyu said. Not only were the world cultivators born powerful, but they also had unique talents. Moreover, he had a body that was close to the heavenly Tao and could fuse with it. It could be said that he was the most compatible existence with heaven and earth. It was also because of this that world cultivators became the most powerful existences in this world and the supreme rulers. This was because it represented heavenly Tao. All living beings should bow down to him. That was known as the ancient era. Su Fengyu's face was filled with pride as he looked around at Gu Mingzhou and the others. Gu Mingzhou had heard about the legends of the realm cultivators from Zhao Qianquan, while Zhao Gao, who had lived for hundreds of years, had read about them from ancient books. Due to his age and experience, Zhen Gang didn't know much about the era of realm cultivators. After hearing Su Fengyu's words, he realized that the human race wasn't the most powerful at the beginning of the world. Although world cultivators are talented, they also have flaws. Su Fengyu continued. The birth of a world cultivator required more than ten years. Even from childhood to adulthood, it would take a long hundred years, or even nearly a thousand years. Most of the world cultivators would go against the heavenly Tao not long after they were born, and they would die young. As a result, there were not many world cultivators and they could not be compared to the reproduction and evolution of living beings. 
Very soon, the world cultivators became the race with the least number of people in this world. At this time, the human race suddenly rose, and their reproduction speed was simply astonishing. Powerful people appeared one after another, and countless strong people ascended to the heavenly realm. Originally, ascension was the will of the heavenly Tao, and the world cultivators would not object to or stop it. However, when the humans who ascended to the upper realm, as well as the humans who became rulers of the upper realm, discovered the world was under the control of the world cultivators, they began to think of ways to break through the barriers and descend. The purpose of the humans from the upper realm descending to this world was to destroy the world cultivators and make the human race the ruler of this world. Hence, a world-ending battle began. The more Su Fen Yu spoke, the more excited he became, and even his red robe swayed with his excitement. Although realm cultivators were powerful, they were still within the limits of the heavenly Tao. However, the cultivators of the upper realm had already exceeded the scope of the heavenly Tao's restrictions. Although their cultivation base was suppressed, they were still terrifying. The world cultivators found it hard to resist, and in order to preserve their survival, they could only choose to retreat. Chapter 414 The place where the world cultivators had retreated to was the ancestral land of the world cultivators, the Tianyuan continent. It was rumored that the Tianyuan continent was the place closest to the heavenly Tao, and it was also the largest continent in the entire world. The Tianyuan continent had quite a bit of suppression on the cultivation world, but they also had exceptional support that allowed them to block the attacks of the cultivators from the upper realm. However, at this time, the human race on the Tianyuan continent suddenly rebelled and launched a sneak attack. Not only did they severely injure the world cultivators, but they also introduced cultivators from the upper realm to the Tianyuan continent, causing the world cultivators to go extinct. Su Fengyu's eyes suddenly burst out with strong killing intent, and his voice suddenly rose. The Murong clan is the leader of the human clan's rebellion. After the world god was killed, they allied with the Zhou dynasty's royal family to take over the continent. Later on, they even established the Heavenly Sword sect and the human race became the strongest faction in the world. How can I not take revenge for such a great enmity? Su Fengyu looked at Zhao Gao again and said coldly. I see. Zhao Gao nodded slightly. If Su Fengyu was telling the truth, then it was indeed believable that he was leading the underwater beast cultivators to join forces with England to attack the Zhou dynasty and work together with the Trap and the Floating Jade Islands rogue cultivators to ensure the human race would not be destroyed. Since you have a grudge against the Heavenly Sword sect and the Zhou dynasty's royal family, why did you destroy the three rogue cultivator islands? At this moment, Gu Mingzhou suddenly looked at Su Fengyu and raised his doubts. If what Su Fengyu said was true, and his purpose was only to take revenge on the Zhou dynasty, why would he need to destroy the three major rogue cultivator islands in succession? The three great rogue cultivator islands had deep grudges with the cultivators of the mainland. With your cultivation, if you just want to take revenge, you can kill your way into the Heavenly Sword sect. They should be unable to stop you, right? Gu Mingzhou didn't wait for Su Fengyu's reply and continued to ask questions. Gu Mingzhou had once seen Su Fengyu kill people, causing hundreds of people to self-destruct, and his method of sucking their blood essence was unforgettable. If Su Fengyu, who had such means, wanted to take revenge, he could charge into the mysterious Heavenly Sword sect directly. The other party would probably not be able to resist. However, Su Fengyu didn't do this. Instead, he went to great lengths and chose the most time-consuming battle, which was very puzzling. In the face of doubt, Su Fengyu's gaze turned into disdain. What do you know? With this lord's ability, the Murong clan absolutely can't resist, but the continent not only has a special auxiliary function for the cultivation world, but it also has a strong suppression. Su Fengyu said coldly. Gu Mingzhou didn't expect that the Tianyuan continent would suppress Su Fengyu. Is everyone satisfied with this explanation? Su Fengyu's face regained its calm as he said softly. Zhao Gao nodded and looked at Gu Mingzhou as if asking for his opinion. Su Fengyu's words had indeed cleared up a lot of his doubts. It seems like you didn't answer my question. Gu Mingzhou, who had just lowered his head, suddenly felt Su Fengyu seem to be avoiding something. His sudden words not only caused Su Fengyu to frown, but even Zhao Gao and Zhen Gang, 
who was standing beside him, were also a little confused. You didn't seem to answer me why you wanted to destroy the three great wandering cultivator islands. Especially the strange formation you used when you attacked the floating jade island. Gu Mingzhou said as he stared at Su Fengyu. The image of the mutated floating jade array that he had seen when he first came out and the strange aura it emitted still appeared in his mind. If it was during normal times, perhaps this strange aura would only be filled with disgust and fear. However, after cultivating the heavenly devouring technique, he was very familiar with this strange aura. It was a hundred times more powerful than the heavenly devouring technique. It could directly affect the blood essence of living beings and make them self-destruct. It was terrifying to the extreme. Back then, the other two rogue cultivator islands were also attacked by the same method. They were captured by the underwater demonic cultivators, and all the living beings on the island were annihilated and turned into ashes. To Gu Mingzhou, who also cultivated the devouring technique, this kind of hand was not as simple as killing enemies, because it was more like an evil cultivation method. Su Fengyu seemed to have a bigger motive. It was definitely not like what he had said, which was to take revenge on the Heavenly Sword sect and the Zhou dynasty's royal family. His eyes glowed as he stared at Gu Mingzhou, just like how he did at Zhao Gao. It was unknown if it was because of Gu Mingzhou's words or some other reason, but Su Fengyu seemed a little gloomy and cold, which made people's hearts palpitate. It's not a big deal, but it involves me. Su Fengyu suddenly rolled up his right sleeve. When Su Fengyu lifted his sleeves, whether it was Gu Mingzhou, Zhao Gao, or Zhen Gang, they all couldn't help but gasp. After the white and slender palm, the entire arm suddenly shriveled up, like pale and bloodless skin, tightly wrinkled on the bones. It had really reached the level of skin and bones, which was simply terrifying. The three of them were shocked. Although I have returned to this world, my life has come to an end. I destroyed three rogue cultivator islands in a row to absorb their blood essence to extend my life. It's hard for me to live past this year. Su Fengyu, however, appeared to be indifferent, and a devilish smile appeared on his face. So you're so anxious to conquer the Zhou dynasty that you're even willing to cooperate with us. Zhao Gao raised his head and continued Su Fengyu's sentence. I didn't expect Gu Mingzhou's sudden appearance and that giant Kuanpang. Su Fengyu sighed with some regret. Without Gu Mingzhou and the trap, the hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators that floating jade island master brought to the mainland would definitely choose to side with the Zhou dynasty and become cannon fodder against the united forces of England and the underwater beast cultivators. This way, there would naturally be fewer obstacles in Su Fengyu's revenge plan. Unfortunately, Gu Mingzhou's appearance changed Su Fengyu's plan and forced him to launch an attack on the Zhou dynasty in advance. Floating Jade Island Master changed his mind and no longer sought refuge with the Zhou dynasty. Instead, he was preparing to establish a kingdom with the help of the trap. If the trap successfully established a kingdom, it would definitely protect the continent and form an alliance with the Zhou dynasty. The number of people in the trap with a hundred thousand Tianyuan stage cultivators was not much, but it was enough to pose a threat to England. Even a pincer attack from the left and right was likely to directly destroy England. If England was destroyed, then the base of the underwater beast cultivators would be destroyed. Su Fengyu naturally didn't want to see such a thing happen, which was why he chose to cooperate. I've already shown my sincerity. Now, it's up to you to choose. Su Fengyu asked. Gu Mingzhou didn't answer. He looked at Zhao Gao. The hatred of annihilating the clan was absolutely irreconcilable. It was understandable that Su Fengyu wanted to fulfill his wish before the end of his life. However, Gu Mingzhou did not think that the Murong clan and the Zhou dynasty's emperor had made the wrong choice. There were some things that one couldn't comment on. The best choice would be to remain neutral. After all, Su Fengyu's target was the Zhou dynasty's royal family and the mysterious Heavenly Sword sect. For some reason, Gu Mingzhou felt things were not as simple as they made them out to be. He could only leave the decision to Zhao Gao. Zhao Gao was considering. Su Fengyu's purpose was to avenge the destruction of the clan. I believe in fellow cultivator Su Fengyu. The cooperation is settled, but I have a small request. Zhao Gao seemed to have finally decided. 
the things that happened one after another had already made Su Fen Yu dissatisfied. Chapter, 415 The trap is taking in a hundred thousand cultivators of the floating Jade Island. They need to build a country. I hope that the troops of England and the underwater beast cultivators stationed here will evacuate as soon as possible and never set foot in the new kingdom again. Based on Xiao Gao's words, he was undoubtedly preparing to build a new country and launch a war against the Zhou dynasty. This was to form an alliance with England and fight against the Zhou dynasty at the same time. Although Su Fengyu's previous words had convinced Gu Mingzhou, it still made him feel suspicious. If a new kingdom suddenly reneged and it declared war on the Zhou dynasty, it would undoubtedly be a fatal blow to the new kingdom or even complete destruction. Declaring war on the Zhou dynasty was undoubtedly cutting off all ties with the Zhou dynasty and becoming enemies. In the future, whether it was the Zhou dynasty or England that won, it would pose a huge threat to the trap. If Zhou dynasty won, the trap would definitely be destroyed. England was an ally, but who could guarantee Su Fengyu's words? Hence, from Gu Mingzhou and Zhen Gang's point of view, Zhao Gao should remain neutral and quickly stabilize his regime and strengthen his army in case of an emergency. They would maintain a neutral relationship with the two countries and wait for the results. Declaring war on the Zhou dynasty was undoubtedly the worst plan. If your plan succeeds, then with the mountain range as the boundary, you can divide into two countries and form an eternal alliance with each other. Zhao Gao was extremely calm. Su Fengyu didn't have any doubts. The new kingdom's declaration of war against the Zhou dynasty was undoubtedly pulling them to their side and standing on the opposite side of the Zhou dynasty. Although it was a newly established kingdom, it had an army of a hundred thousand rogue cultivators, which was a huge hidden danger to the Zhou dynasty. Zhao Gao's actions were undoubtedly beneficial to Su Fengyu's plan to take over the Zhou dynasty. If sect master Zhao needs it, I'll send the army of England and underwater beast cultivators to assist sect master Zhao and take over the western region of the Zhou dynasty. What do you think? A signature smile appeared on Su Fengyu's face as he nodded. If we really can't do it, we'll definitely ask for your help. I hope you won't refuse when the time comes. Zhao Gao said calmly. Sect Master Zhao, don't worry. The army of England and the beast cultivators will definitely arrive at any time to help you. Su Fengyu laughed out loud. Zhao Gao's actions were beyond his expectations, and it was exactly what he wanted. Since you have agreed, I hope that fellow Daoist and your subordinates, England, and the underwater beast cultivators will abide by it. If you violate it, it will be regarded as a breach of contract. Zhao Gao cupped his hands and said. I've already made a promise, and I won't go back on it. Su Fengyu said. It's a pleasure working with you and me. Please don't use the giant eye again, or I'm afraid I'll overthink it. It was the method Su Fengyu had used to spy on and eavesdrop on them. He was warning Su Fengyu since they were working together, it was best not to spy on the trap again. Otherwise, Zhao Gao would think it was a breach of contract. How could Su Fengyu not understand the meaning behind Zhao Gao's words? An endless amount of blood red light shot out and instantly dyed the entire stone house red. The wind suddenly blew, and Su Fengyu, who was in front of the stone door, disappeared. Sect Master Zhao Gu Mingzhou heaved a sigh of relief and hurriedly walked towards Zhao Gao, wanting to ask about the war with the Zhou dynasty. Zhao Gao waved his hand to interrupt and turned to give Zhen Gang a look. Zhen Gang walked in front of the stone door, made a hand seal, and pointed at the stone door. When his finger touched the stone door, a powerful invisible wave of air instantly filled the entire stone house, emitting an aura of isolation. This was an isolation formation. Gu Mingzhou looked up and sized up the entire stone house. Zhao Gao interrupted him because he was worried Su Fengyu was still spying on them. He staggered towards the bed. His injuries were still not healed and it was indeed a big burden. Gu Mingzhou hurriedly went forward to help Zhao Gao up and sent him back to bed. You're thinking about why you agreed to Su Fengyu's request and why you declared war on the Zhou dynasty. Zhao Gao, who sat back on the bed, looked at the silent Gu Mingzhou. I can understand why sect master Zhao agreed to work with Su Fengyu, but why did you declare war on the Zhou dynasty? Gu Mingzhou pursed his lips and replied. I don't understand either. 
we can't fight against the Zhou dynasty at all. It's very disadvantageous for us. Zhen Gang also said doubtfully. Before I answer you, can you answer my question first? Faced with the two's confusion, Zhao Gao calmly said. How much of Su Fenyu's explanation that he's approaching the end of his life and is only here for revenge do you believe? Zhao Gao continued to ask. Gu Mingzhou fell silent. If you asked him how much he believed Su Fenyu's explanation, he didn't even believe 30% of it. He was very familiar with his brutal style. However, they didn't know what kind of person Su Fenyu was, so they naturally couldn't make a final judgment. Even though Su Fenyu's words were impeccable, Gu Mingzhou still felt something was wrong, even if he could not find the problem. They all chose to remain silent. They could not answer this question. Actually, I think Su Fenyu didn't tell the truth. Zhao Gao had already anticipated their reactions. What? Gu Mingzhou and Zhen Gang were very surprised. Zhao Gao, who had agreed to cooperate with Su Fenyu and was prepared to declare war on the Zhou dynasty, suddenly said that Su Fenyu was not telling the truth, which shocked them. He didn't tell the whole truth. Zhao Gao explained. He didn't tell the whole truth. Gu Mingzhou asked, puzzled. The destruction of the world cultivators is true, the sneak attack of the Murong clan is true, and Su Fenyu's revenge is also true. However, what he said about his time limit and his pure revenge may not be true. Zhao Gao explained. A world cultivator's lifespan would not exceed 10,000 years. However, it had been tens of millions of years since Su Fengyu had been suppressed. If his time was up, he would have died long ago. It wasn't because he just happened to break the seal and enter the end of his life. Moreover, his right arm didn't look like it had dried up due to the end of his life. Instead, it looked like it had suffered some kind of heavy injury. Therefore, Su Fengyu was actually carrying out some kind of conspiracy. This secret was extremely harmful to one's essence, energy, and spirit. Therefore, he had no choice but to destroy the three major rogue cultivator islands to replenish his essence and blood. The Su Fengyu just now felt a lot more reserved. Although I still felt a dangerous aura from him, it didn't seem to be strong. Gu Mingzhou muttered. The last two times you saw Su Fengyu, what kind of feeling did he give you? Zhao Gao said. Gu Mingzhou kept recalling when he first met Su Fengyu and how he felt when he faced him just now. Su Fengyu's change. It's like I'm seeing a fake Su Fengyu. He didn't know if he was right, but he still said it. Tell me about it. Zhao Gao became interested and asked. The first time he met Su Fengyu, the world god was peerless and magnificent. It was as if he was above the heavens and earth, looking down on all living things. With a raise of his hand, hundreds of rogue cultivators from the heavenly spirit realm died. The person who had helped him escape was also killed by him. He was extremely decisive and had the intention to kill Gu Mingzhou. Later, when he saw Su Fengyu, his aura was obviously much weaker, perhaps because he was possessing Lu Dong. However, his domineering aura had completely disappeared. Not only did he not attack Gu Mingzhou, but he also wanted to use Lu Dong's body to escape. Chapter, 416 Just now, although Su Fengyu had regained his usual overbearing manner and even released that terrifying pressure. But he didn't make a move from beginning to end. This was completely different from when Gu Mingzhou first met Su Fengyu. According to Su Fengyu's temper, he would not allow Zhao Gao to bargain. In the end, not only did he answer Zhao Gao's question, he even chose to answer Zhao Gao's question. He didn't even take action when Zhao Gao openly asked about his privacy. His impression of Su Fengyu, who was extremely arrogant, lawless, and unbridled, seemed to be very different. If it wasn't for the fact that Gu Mingzhou was familiar with the terrifying pressure, he even felt that Su Fengyu was a fake person. After explaining the feeling of comparison, he could not help but question what was going on. The reason why I had my suspicions was that the story you told me about the world god was completely different. Zhao Gao said. Could it be that the Su Fengyu I saw was a fake? Gu Mingzhou asked in surprise. Su Fengyu has reached the peak, but he won't lower his status and show weakness to us. I guess this world god's strength has weakened. Zhao Gao continued. 
How is it possible for Su Funyu to become weak? Jin Gang didn't quite believe it. That was the world cultivation lineage. Nothing is impossible. Once a cultivator's realm rose, it was indeed very difficult to fall back. However, what if it wasn't a drop in his cultivation level, but some other reason that caused his strength to drop? Zhao Gao said. For example, getting injured. Gu Mingzhou and Zhen Gang were shocked, and Su Fengyu's withered right arm subconsciously appeared in their minds. Just as you all think, Su Fengyu's right arm is the proof of his injury. Zhao Gao seemed to have seen through Gu Mingzhou and Zhen Gang's thoughts and said calmly. Gu Mingzhou was in disbelief. It was indeed incredible. Who could seriously injure an existence like Su Fengyu? Could it be He Chuan? However, if He Chuan was the one who made the move, no matter who won or lost, someone from both sides would die. Moreover, the two of them had probably not met in their previous conversation. I'm guessing that Su Fengyu has other plans, and that secret of his is also the cause of his body drying up. Zhao Gao concluded. Gu Mingzhou and Zhen Gang didn't expect that their short conversation with Su Fengyu would cause Zhao Gao to think about it carefully. Since it's to gain trust, we should choose to cooperate directly. Why declare war on the Zhou dynasty? Zhen Gang paused and asked the question he had at the beginning. If we simply agree, I'm afraid he will have some scruples and distrust us. After all, we can form an alliance with the Zhou dynasty after this. If we declare war on the Zhou dynasty, Su Fengyu will definitely believe us completely. Zhao Gao said. This is indeed doable, but have you ever thought if we declare war on the Zhou dynasty, we will definitely not be able to form an alliance. Then, in the end, we will know Su Fengyu's true plan, and it will be difficult for us to stop it with our strength. Gu Mingzhou said. I've already considered this point. So, Brother Gu, I'm afraid I'll have to trouble you for the next step. Zhao Gao nodded and said. Please speak, Sect Master Zhao. Gu Mingzhou said. Go and invite rogue cultivator Floating Jade into the city first. We'll discuss the merger and the founding of a country, then we'll talk about that. In the face of Gu Mingzhou's question, Zhao Gao suddenly changed his tune and kept him in suspense. Gu Mingzhou looked at Zhao Gao's smiling face and could only nod in agreement. Sect Master, do you have other plans? After Gu Mingzhou's back view had completely disappeared, Zhen Gang turned to look at Zhao Gao, cupped his hands, and said. Why do you ask? Zhao Gao looked at Zhen Gang and asked. The Sect Master today gives me a very different feeling than before. Zhen Gang said honestly. The most terrifying people are always the people around you. The Murong clan has too many secrets. Compared to Su Fengyu, who is out in the open, they are more terrifying. Zhao Gao's pale face suddenly turned gloomy. Gu Mingzhou, who came out of the secret room, didn't stop at all. He left the branch and flew into the air without hesitation. He flew at full speed towards the mountains outside of Handan City. Floating Jade Island Master led a hundred thousand rogue jade cultivators across the Changbai Mountains and arrived in the state of Zhao on the second day after Zhao Gao fell unconscious. However, because Zhao Gao had not woken up, Gu Mingzhou did not bring the hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators into Handan City. Instead, he had them stationed at the foot of the Changbai Mountain Range within the borders of Zhao. Gu Mingzhou's speed was very fast. He covered the distance of hundreds of miles in a few breaths. At this moment, the hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators had already set up camp at the foot of the Changbai mountain range. Two days had allowed them to walk out of their grief. They were still in low spirits, but their morale was no longer low. They were holding a sacrifice to pay tribute to their deceased compatriots and to commemorate their loved ones. Gu Mingzhou did not interrupt their ceremony. Instead, he quietly bypassed the ceremony and came to the temporary tent where the Floating Jade Island Master was resting. The Island Master of Floating Jade Island did not host the ceremony too much. After opening the ceremony, he retreated behind the curtain and lay down in his tent to drink tea alone. He had obviously noticed Gu Mingzhou's arrival. The Island Master of Floating Jade Island was pouring tea for the teacup opposite him. Gu Mingzhou could not help but be stunned. For a moment, 
Gu Mingzhou suddenly felt he did not understand Floating Jade Island Master at all. He was a powerful cultivator who had been able to control Floating Jade Island for hundreds of years. He was a high-level demonic cultivator who was a divine beast, Kuen Peng. In order to stop Su Fenyu, he resolutely traveled thousands of miles to the Tianyuan continent, which he had a grudge against, to support the island master in the Zhou dynasty. While everyone was reminiscing about their old friends in pain and sorrow, he could lie on his bed alone and drink tea leisurely. The various images of floating Jade Island Master appeared in Gu Mingzhou's mind one after another, causing him to involuntarily stop in his tracks as he stepped into the tent. Brother Gu, you've worked hard. Have some tea to warm your body. The Island Master of Floating Jade Island saw Gu Mingzhou stop, but he didn't think much about it. He reached out and pushed the teacup full of tea to the opposite side. I'm here to bring Floating Jade Island's rogue cultivators to Handan City. Gu Mingzhou suppressed the doubts in his heart and said directly. Let's have a cup of tea and talk slowly. Floating Jade Island Master said with a smile on his face. He had no intention of being nervous as he reached out to touch the teacup again. Not in a hurry. Gu Mingzhou was a little puzzled. He walked to the side of the Island Master of Floating Jade Island and sat down on the bed. There's no hurry. I have something to tell you. Floating Jade Island Master said calmly. Even though he had already made it clear that he would not drink, Floating Jade Island Master still refused. This made Gu Mingzhou's suspicions, which he had just suppressed, rise again. It seems like Floating Jade Island Master has prepared tea. Gu Mingzhou no longer urged him. He immediately reached out and lifted the teacup, put it to his nose, and sniffed it slightly. He sighed. Gu Mingzhou didn't say anything and put the teacup down. This was tea with added medicine. Although he didn't know if it was poison or something else, he could vaguely sense the problem, so he directly exposed it. Fellow Daoist Gu really lives up to his reputation. You're extremely cautious. Before he could finish his words, a meaningful expression appeared on the face of the floating Jade Island Master. Chapter 417 it's not that I'm being cautious, but you're not acting well. Who are you and why are you impersonating the floating Jade Island Master? Gu Mingzhou's tone suddenly changed, and his pitch rose. Floating Jade Island Master sitting in front of Gu Mingzhou was not the real floating Jade Island Master. From the moment Gu Mingzhou stepped into the tent to the other party pushing the tea away one after another, the abnormal behavior made Gu Mingzhou suspicious. It was only when he pointed out the secret in the tea that he was certain that the floating Jade Island master sitting in front of him was a fake. A cold wind blew in the simple tent. As the wind blew, the face of the floating Jade Island master sitting in front of Gu Mingzhou began to change at a speed visible to the naked eye. His frontal bone enlarged, and his cheeks elongated. In the blink of an eye, he actually turned into a slightly older square face. Murong Tian with the appearance of this square face, Gu Mingzhou subconsciously exclaimed. As the floating Jade Island Master's face changed, it gradually formed a square face, which was exactly the same as Gu Mingzhou's cold square-faced Morong Tian. The only difference was that this square face had a full beard, which made him look more domineering and fierce than Morong Tian. You're not Morong Tian. Who are you? Gu Mingzhou refuted his own words and said with a frown. He learned that Murong Tian had ascended to the heavenly realm. Even though Murong Tian had not ascended to the heavenly realm and had grown a beard in the past three years, he was still a genius. However, Murong Tian's aura and pressure were completely different from what he had seen before. He overturned the conclusion he had subconsciously reached earlier. At this moment, before the square-faced floating Jade Island master could speak, an extremely familiar voice sounded from behind the tent. How was it? I said that little tricks can't hide from Brother Gu. The floating Jade Island Master, who was wearing a golden dragon robe, stepped forward and stood in front of Gu Mingzhou. Floating Jade Island Master Floating Jade Island Master, who walked out from behind the tent, gave Gu Mingzhou a very familiar feeling. He immediately confirmed that he was the real island floating Jade Island Master. From the current situation, it was obvious that the fake floating Jade Island Master and the real floating Jade Island Master knew each other. You tell me. 
the fake floating jade island master looked at the real floating jade island master and said. Brother Gu, let me introduce you to the fifth elder of the heavenly sword sect, Morong Yen. So it's the fifth elder of the heavenly sword sect, Senior Morong Yen. I've been disrespectful. Gu Ming recalled. When he went to the new world, he had heard of the fifth elder of the heavenly sword sect, Morong Yen and Morong Fu, as well as met Morong Tian, who had ascended to the heavenly realm. At that time, they would already be extremely powerful and would be the guarantee to stabilize the new world. Morong Tian had already ascended. Morong Yen had also established his Tao Foundation and was probably not far from ascending. But what was the meaning of appearing here at this time? He's just a boorish fellow, what's there to be concerned about? On the other hand, little brother Gu is indeed worthy of his reputation. Morong Yen cupped his hands and said. Island Master, what is the meaning of this? Gu Mingzhou looked at the floating jade island master and asked. He pushed the teacup in front of him. Although he didn't say anything, the fact that the floating jade island master had colluded with Morong Yen to trick him into drinking poison tea made him feel dissatisfied. After returning to the Tianyuan continent, he had been busy with the rogue cultivators of floating jade island. Not only did the floating jade island master not thank him, but he also colluded with outsiders to deceive him. He was extremely angry. Brother Gu, please don't misunderstand. Although there are some ingredients added to the tea, they are all elixirs to strengthen one's foundation and cultivate one's vitality. They are definitely not poisonous. The island master of Floating Jade Island naturally understood Gu Mingzhou's meaning. He knew Gu Mingzhou was still dissatisfied, so he quickly reached out to grab the teacup in front of Gu Mingzhou and drank it all in one gulp. That's right. Little brother, please don't misunderstand. It's my fault for making a bet with Brother Lu to trick you into drinking this cup of tea. Murong Yen also quickly apologized and explained. I'm just joking. I hope Brother Gu doesn't take it to heart. As the island master of Floating Jade Island spoke, he silently gave Gu Mingzhou a look. Does the floating jade island master have something that he can't disclose? So that's how it is. It seems that the fifth elder didn't come all the way here just to make a bet with the island master, right? Gu Mingzhou instantly understood the look in floating jade island master's eyes and directly avoided this topic. Of course not. The bet was just a spur of the moment. Actually, the main purpose of my visit this time is to follow the sect master's orders and invite brother Gu Mingzhou to the Heavenly Sword sect. Murong Yen said. Fifth Elder Murong Yan's words stunned Gu Mingzhou. He was stunned. There was no doubt about the strength of the Heavenly Sword sect. As for the sect master, Murong Fu, he was very famous in the New World. He had only heard of him and rarely saw him. Gu Mingzhou could not help but be surprised that such a person would suddenly send out an invitation. Although Gu Mingzhou's cultivation had advanced into the earth realm, why would Morong Fu, who was not even afraid of Su Fengyu, care about him? Moreover, Morong Fu probably didn't know that he was in the earth realm. After all, Gu Mingzhou had just returned to the mainland and had yet to display his true strength. It was obviously abnormal for Morong Fu to meet him and unreasonable. Sect Master Morong, you're inviting me to the Heavenly Sword sect. Gu Mingzhou said in disbelief. Not bad. The sect master has heard of little brother Gu's deeds, so he wants to meet you. Morong Yen said. I came from a humble background, what deeds do I have to speak of? To be able to disturb sect master Morong. Gu Mingzhou subconsciously glanced at the floating jade island master beside him and replied. Little brother, you're really humble. Actually, when we were in the New World, the sect master had already wanted to see you, Morong Yen explained. So that's how it is. Did sect master Morong specifically ask you to capture me? Gu Mingzhou was a little confused about this. After all, Morong Fu didn't look for him earlier or later but chose to look for him at this time, which was thought-provoking. Little brother, you've misunderstood. Before I came, the sect master specifically told me that this time, he was purely inviting little brother to the heavenly sword sect for a gathering. Whether you agree or not is entirely up to little brother. Murong Yen quickly explained. If I don't go, 
the fifth elder will use the sect master to ask me, right? Gu Mingzhou replied to Murong Yen. This was the way immortal cultivation sects did things. Even if they removed their domineering aura on the surface, they would still move it to the dark. Little brother is indeed intelligent. Having been exposed by Gu Mingzhou, Murong Yen appeared a little embarrassed as he cupped his hands and said. Let's not talk about formalities. Since sect master Murong has invited me, how could Gu Mingzhou dare to refuse? However, I still have some matters to attend to. I'll definitely arrive at the Heavenly Sword sect in three days. Gu Mingzhou waved his hand and said. This old master has nothing better to do, so why don't I wait here for little brother to deal with things, maybe I can help. Murong Yan smiled and his square face with a full beard made him look a little funny. Gu Mingzhou was a little speechless. Whether it was the merging with the trap and the floating jade rogue cultivators, the re-establishment of a new kingdom, or Zhao Gao's preparation to declare war on the Zhou dynasty, all of these things had to be kept a secret for the time being. They absolutely could not be leaked. Especially Zhao Gao's plan to declare war on the Zhou dynasty. Chapter 418 Before it was implemented, it had to be kept absolutely confidential. Otherwise, if the Zhou dynasty strengthened its west defenses, it would greatly affect Zhao Gao's plan, and it might even cause Zhao Gao's plan to fail. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's displeasure, the island master of Floating Jade Island knew that he did not want Murong Yen to stay. Furthermore, the island master of Floating Jade Island also had something to discuss with Gu Mingzhou in private. It was not convenient for Murong Yen to be here. You go back to the Heavenly Sword sect first. I will accompany Brother Gu to the Heavenly Sword sect. Floating Jade Island Master said. I'll go back and report to the sect master. I'll wait for three days to welcome you two at the Heavenly Sword sect. Murong Yen stood up and took his leave. Gu Mingzhou did not say much. Floating Jade Island Master sent him out of the tent and watched him leave. Do you know the consequences of having dealings with the Zhou dynasty? Gu Mingzhou shook his head as he watched the floating Jade Island Master send Murong Yen off. I'm sorry, I didn't know this guy would come, so I had no choice floating Jade Island Master hurriedly explained. He understood that Zhao Gao would be suspicious if he suddenly contacted the Zhou dynasty. Is there anything special about Murong Yen? Gu Mingzhou asked, puzzled. Brother Gu, you might not know. The island master of Floating Jade Island walked to the bed and sat down. He began to explain to Gu Mingzhou about Murong Yen. A hundred years ago, the young Murong Yen had been to the three great rogue cultivator islands. At that time, Floating Jade Island master was searching for the lightning tribulation and trying to resist the heavenly tribulation. In the end, not only did he fail, he was even severely injured by the lightning. He was drifting into the depths of the sea in the freezing cold land and was saved by Murong Yen by chance. As a result, the floating Jade Island master owed Murong Yen a favor, and the two of them became good friends. He could refuse the other people, but Murong Fu sent Murong Yen, and he couldn't refuse him, so he could only invite him in. Originally, the floating Jade Island master had wanted to use Gu Mingzhou's absence as an excuse to avoid Murong Yen. Gu Mingzhou suddenly appeared. Then Murong Yen said I lied to him and had to make a bet with him. Hence, there was the matter of Murong Yen impersonating me. After floating Jade Island Master finished recounting his experience with Murong Yen, he smiled bitterly and helplessly. So when Island Master was searching for the way to ascend, he could even withstand the tribulation during the rain. Gu Mingzhou looked at the floating Jade Island Master and asked with an incredulous smile. At that time, I was really at my wit's end. Besides, I have to try to know if it works or not. The snatching technique was created from experiments. Floating Jade Island Master laughed awkwardly. It's a pity you still didn't succeed. Gu Mingzhou said. There's a possibility. Floating Jade Island Master replied helplessly. You said that when Murong Yen was young, he went to the three great rogue cultivator islands. What did he do there? Gu Mingzhou no longer discussed this with the island lord of Floating Jade Island. Instead, he asked about what had just happened. What else can he do? He must be checking Su Fenyu's seal. 
Floating Jade Island Master said. Check the seal. Does that mean that the Heavenly Sword sect knew about Su Fenyu's existence? Gu Mingzhou seemed to have caught on to something and said excitedly. When Su Fenyu was suppressed, the Heavenly Sword sect was the main force. How could they not know that the Zhou dynasty's royal family borrowed the nine prefectures' cauldrons? Floating Jade Island Master said. The Heavenly Sword sect is suppressing Su Fenyu. You can't joke about this, are you sure? After hearing this news, Gu Mingzhou took a long time to calm down. After a long while, he finally said, Brother Gu, did you lose your memory after going to Handan City? I've been through the world cultivation era. The island master of Floating Jade Island kept sizing Gu Mingzhou up. Floating Jade Island master had indeed said he did not participate in the ambush against Su Fenyu back then. The Floating Jade Island master was a witness to the evolution of the world from the world cultivation era to the current human world. Island master, you should know a lot about Su Fenyu, right? Gu Mingzhou suppressed the excitement in his heart and stared at the Floating Jade Island master. Brother Gu, you've asked the right person. Except for those who have ascended to the upper realm, no one would dare to say they know Su Fenyu better than I do, including that old man Morong Yinshang. The floating Jade Island master said with a smile. Murong Yinshang was Murong Fu's real name. In that case, can you tell me about Su Fengyu, Island Master? Gu Mingzhou quickly asked. Of course, I can. The floating Jade Island master reached out for the teacup in front of him and drank it in one gulp. It was said that when heaven and earth were first separated and the world was first formed, the heavenly Tao gave birth to races and lives before all living things were born. At that time, although the world was rich in all kinds of resources, the environment was very harsh and not suitable for the survival of living creatures. Therefore, the heavenly Tao was merciful and gave this race super talents, allowing them to survive in this new world despite the harsh environment and gradually begin to change the world. Thus, there was a world environment suitable for the growth of all living things. And the people of that race were later worshipped as masters by all living beings and were called the world gods. They were the world cultivators. People were proud, and so were world cultivators. After being worshipped by all living beings for a long time, the world cultivators were born with a high and mighty perception, looking down on all living beings and looking down on them. In the eyes of world cultivators, other than their own kind, all other living beings were lowly lives, just like ants. The new generation of world cultivators even claimed to be their masters and started to enslave all living things. They were arrogant and despotic and did all kinds of evil. He was a hundred times more arrogant than the current children of officials. This caused the originally peaceful world to be filled with complaints and wails. The Ten Thousand Races sent a letter to denounce the world cultivator's evil deeds. The denouncement by all the races in the world this time had completely infuriated the world cultivators. The slaughter began, and a hundred tribes were exterminated one after another. Tens of thousands of living beings were killed. The world fell into chaos, and the aura of death filled the air. In order to protect themselves, all the races formed an alliance in an attempt to fight against the world cultivators. Unfortunately, not only were world cultivators gifted but they were also born with a terrifying suppression of all living beings. They could directly trigger the blood essence of weaker living beings and make them self-destruct, turning it into their own nourishment. The result was predictable. The resistance of all living beings ended in failure. In the end, they were completely enslaved by the world cultivators and became slaves. From then on, the era of world cultivators began to flourish. However, due to their own problems, the number of world cultivators was always in the thousands and could not increase. However, other creatures were completely different. Even if their death rate was extremely high, their numbers would still increase greatly. Especially the human race. In less than a thousand years, they had become the largest race in the world. Due to the lack of world cultivator clans, many human cultivators were able to cultivate. The number of cultivators who silently transcended tribulations and ascended gradually increased. Due to the long period of slavery, not only had the respect and worship of all living beings toward the world cultivators turned into hatred, but many races had also secretly thought of ways to eradicate them. 
this included the human cultivators who had ascended to the upper realm. It was said that after the human cultivators ascended to the upper realm, they still hated the world cultivators. Therefore, they formed an alliance in the upper realm and spent a hundred years breaking down the barrier between the two realms. Chapter 419 The human cultivators returned to the lower realm and began their revenge on the world cultivators. The cultivators who descended would no longer be suppressed by the world cultivators because they were no longer under the control of the heavenly Tao. Furthermore, his cultivation base was extremely powerful. Even though he was being suppressed, it was still extremely terrifying. The powerful world cultivators were completely helpless against these visitors from the upper realm. They could only retreat to the Tianyuan continent and rely on natural formations to communicate with the heavenly Tao to defend themselves, preventing the cultivators from attacking. The battle was in a difficult situation. As the passageway between the two worlds had been opened, it was not stable and was rapidly healing. Therefore, there was not much time left for the visitors from the upper realm. If they could not eliminate the world cultivators as soon as possible, this plan would fail completely. At this moment, the Murong clan, which had been enslaved on the Tianyuan continent, suddenly raised their flag. Not only did they unite all the races on the continent, but they also launched a frenzied attack on the world cultivators. Before the world cultivators could react, the formation was destroyed. The cultivators from the upper realm who were blocking the outside rushed in, and the world cultivators were destroyed. All living things in the world regained their freedom. The cultivators of the upper realm would return to the upper realm before the passage closed. However, what no one expected was that after the passage to the upper world closed and all living beings celebrated their freedom, a world cultivator would suddenly appear on the Tianyuan continent and begin his revenge and slaughter. The world cultivator who was lucky enough to survive was Su Fengyu. At that time, Su Fengyu was lucky to survive, but he was seriously injured. After massacring the Tianyuan continent, he fled in a panic and hid. While healing his injuries, he planned to destroy the world. Su Fengyu's revenge was shrouded in a layer of haze, causing everyone to be in a state of panic. Therefore, the Murong clan began to invite all the heroes in the world to ambush and kill Su Fengyu. At that time, the floating Jade Island Master had received an invitation. Lu Yucheng wasn't the island master but a cultivator who wandered the world. He didn't have much ambition, so he didn't go to the appointment. Although he did not participate at the time, he had heard of it. At a certain location in the Zhou dynasty, Su Fengyu was ambushed. As Su Fengyu had not recovered from his serious injuries, he was unable to use his talent to suppress his opponent, so he was eventually defeated. However, the cultivators who ambushed Su Fengyu didn't manage to kill him and were instead suppressed outside the regional wall. Most of the cultivators who participated in the ambush chose to guard the seal. Later on, due to suppression, it resulted in a lack of spiritual energy. The Murong clan and most of the self-cultivation sects chose to open up a new world for cultivation and gave up the macro world. Every once in a while, they would send people from the sect to Heaven Spirit Island to check on the seal. The closest seal to this point was the one that was sent by Murong Yen a hundred years ago. If the cultivators of the new world didn't become enemies with the rogue cultivators of the freezing cold land, would those guys have been bewitched by Su Feng Yu and unlocked the seal in order to fight against the cultivators of the new world? Floating Jade Island Master shook his head and looked out of the tent. It's just the human heart. Gu Mingzhou already had some understanding of what had happened 10,000 years ago. Just like the change of dynasties, the world cultivators in the early stage were respected as living beings in the world so that they could better survive and change the world. Later on, the status of the world cultivators became higher and higher. The new generation of world cultivators forgot their original intentions and focused on power. Gradually, they aroused the anger of the people, but in the end, they did not repent. Instead, they suppressed it by force and acted tyrannically. That was why the world's anti-world cultivators were attracted, which led to the extermination of the clan. Gu Mingzhou didn't know what had happened between the sects in the New World and the cultivators who had stayed behind on the three major islands. However, it must be related to their interests, which led to the complete break between the two sides, triggering a thousand-year hatred, which led to the current trouble. 
the human heart did not only refer to cultivators, but also the hearts of all living creatures in the world. It wasn't a sigh, but more of a helplessness. Sometimes, it was the most helpless when one could not change anything and could only watch some things happen. Yeah, but you didn't come back in a hurry just to ask about Su Feng Yu, did you? Floating Jade Island Master asked. Su Feng Yu's incident was just an accident. In fact, I came back this time to join the trap. Gu Mingzhou quickly waved his hand and said. He rushed over from Handan City without stopping. He had even almost fallen into Murong Yan's trap, which was to let the floating jade rogue cultivator join the trap. Originally, Gu Mingzhou should have brought the floating jade island master and rushed to Handan City as soon as possible. After all, this was the reason why Zhao Gao had asked Gu Mingzhou to come back. Sect Master Zhao has agreed to take in the wandering jade cultivator and is preparing to establish a new country. Gu Mingzhou continued. This is great. Floating Jade Island Master said happily. With the floating jade rogue cultivator joining the trap, the problem of accommodation was naturally solved. Gu Mingzhou saw the island master of floating jade's excited expression and also smiled in relief. Everything he had done for such a long time was actually to give the floating jade island's rogue cultivator a new home. As for why he wanted to do this, he actually didn't know. Perhaps he didn't want to see a hundred thousand floating jade wandering cultivators lose their lives. As I mentioned to you before, although they agreed to accept the floating jade rogue cultivator, they have a conditin. Gu Mingzhou paused and smiled. What condition? Floating Jade Island Master did not show much surprise. After all, joining the traps above snares below and establishing a new country were two important matters. It was impossible for Zhao Gao to not have any requirements. Gu Mingzhou told him about Zhao Gao's requests. To change the way they addressed the island's people, the outer region, divide the management system, and so on. I can accept these conditions. After hearing Gu Mingzhou's story, the floating Jade Island Master immediately nodded. Zhao Gao's requests were mostly discussed with the Island Master, and the Island Master of Floating Jade Island could understand. He would also make the corresponding request for a change of position. What is Sect Master Zhao's plan for building a country? Floating Jade Island Master asked. Sect Master Zhao didn't say anything. He only told me to bring floating jade into Handan City and then we will discuss it in detail. Gu Mingzhou shrugged his shoulders helplessly. Didn't something happen? I'm not familiar with Sect Master Zhao, so he should have discussed with you in advance before letting the floating jade rogue cultivator enter the city, right? The floating jade island master asked in confusion. Gu Mingzhou had gone to find Zhao Gao on behalf of the floating jade island's rogue cultivator. Zhao Gao should have at least told Gu Mingzhou about the general situation, but he did not say anything now. Instead, he wanted to see the floating Jade Island Master. It was indeed a little strange. Actually, I'm also quite curious. Maybe it has something to do with Su Fenyu. Thinking of how Zhao Gao had deliberately kept him in suspense, Gu Mingzhou did not feel that there was anything wrong with it. You guys saw Su Fenyu. Floating Jade Island Master guessed. Gu Mingzhou immediately explained everything to the Island Master in detail, from Zhao Gao's refusal to establish a country to Su Feng Yu's sudden appearance and offer to cooperate, to Zhao Gao's choice to cooperate. Damn that Su Feng Yu! He killed hundreds of thousands of people on floating Jade Island, and he said it was just to extend his life. How shameless! Anger flashed across floating Jade Island Master's face. Why is the Island Master so angry? Gu Mingzhou did not understand why the island master of Floating Jade Island was suddenly so angry and hurriedly asked. Chapter, 420 Su Feng Yu is so shameless. How could he lie to me? Floating Jade Island Master said angrily. Island Master, you already have a conclusion. Gu Mingzhou cupped his hands and said. Back then, Su Feng Yu wanted to destroy the world. Now his resentment must be even deeper since he has been suppressed for so many years could he only take revenge on the Morong clan and the Zhou dynasty's royal family? The floating Jade Island master said with his hands behind his back. World cultivators were not only talented but their lifespans were also blessed by the heavens. 
They were close to eternal life, so how could there be a limit? Even if there was, it was the five curses of heaven and man unique to world cultivators. However, Su Feng Yu had already overcome the five decays of heaven and man before he was suppressed. As expected, Sect Master Zhao and I had already guessed that Su Feng Yu was lying to us. Now it seems that Su Feng Yu is indeed plotting something big. Gu Mingzhou nodded. Let's go to Handan now. Please wait here for a moment. Floating Jade Island Master walked out of the tent and ended the ceremony. It took the time to finish a few cups of tea. After the island master of Floating Jade had arranged everything, he took Gu Mingzhou and flew toward Handan. The hundred thousand Floating Jade cultivators followed and headed to Handan. The speed of the earth rank cultivators was much faster than a hundred thousand individual cultivators. They could naturally arrive faster, or else their speed would be too slow and it would waste time. Of course, the floating Jade Island Master could directly transform into a Kuen Pang and lift up the hundred thousand rogue cultivators, landing in front of Handan City. However, the floating Jade Island Master felt something was amiss, so he chose to go first with Gu Mingzhou and left the army behind. The distance between the Changbai Mountain Range and Handan City was a few hundred miles. To floating Jade Island Master, who had transformed into a golden winged bird, he only needed to flap his wings a few times to arrive at Handan City. Handan City, which had been washed clean by the flames of war, looked empty and broken. Broken walls and ruins could be seen everywhere, making it look very desolate. At this moment, there were more than a hundred people standing on the city wall, watching. The person in the lead was the traps Jing Gang. It was clear that Jing Gang had been waiting here for a long time. There was some dust on his body, and his face was extremely anxious. He was pacing back and forth on the city wall. When he saw Kuen Peng flying over from the distance, he immediately flew up to meet it. The soaring Kuen Peng saw someone flying out of Handan City and stopped in midair. The sky covering figure shook in the air and transformed into two figures. They were floating Jade Island Master and Gu Mingzhou. What's the matter? Gu Mingzhou looked at Jing Gang, who had come in a hurry, and asked in confusion. The floating Jade Island Master also looked at Jing Gang in confusion. Jing Gang's flustered actions had already attracted the attention of Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master. It's bad. The sect master has been captured by the people of the Heavenly Sword sect. The flustered Jing Gang impatiently shouted. What did you say? Gu Mingzhou stepped into the air and instantly landed in front of Jing Gang. He said coldly. Gu Mingzhou's voice was filled with endless coldness. He was obviously shocked by the news. What happened? How did Sect Master Zhao get caught and brought to the Heavenly Sword Sect? The human-shaped floating Jade Island Master looked at Jing Gang and asked with a frown. Gu Mingzhou and the Island Master of Floating Jade Island had rushed over to see Zhao Gao. The sudden capture of Zhao Gao by the Heavenly Sword Sect shocked the two. Jin Gang was frightened by Gu Mingzhou's coldness. When he heard the question, he quickly explained what had happened. Not long after Gu Mingzhou left Handan City, the fifth elder of the Heavenly Sword Sect, Morong Yen, suddenly came to Handan City to visit Zhao Gao. Zhao Gao agreed to meet. Jin Gang then brought Morong Yen into the secret room where Zhao Gao was recuperating. Originally, it was very dangerous for the two sides to meet. However, Zhao Gao had actually agreed to let Jing Gang leave the secret chamber to talk to Morong Yen in private. Helpless, Jing Gang could only obey and leave the secret room. For some reason, Morong Yen had suddenly taken Zhao Gao hostage and fled back to the Heavenly Sword Sect. You all just watched as Sect Master Zhao was held hostage by Morong Yen. Asked Floating Jade Island Master as he looked at Jing Gang in disbelief. At that time, the sect master was in a very bad state and was held hostage by Morong Yen. We didn't dare to stop him. Zheng Gang said, feeling wronged. What message did Morong Yen leave behind? Gu Mingzhou asked. Morong Yen would have left a request. Morong Yen said that the sect master of the Heavenly Sword sect wants to see the sect master. He promised to ensure the sect master's safety. However, before the sect master left, he used his spiritual sense to tell me that you must go to the Heavenly Sword sect. 
Zheng Dang shook his head and said. Sect Master Zhao wants me to save him. Based on Gu Mingzhou's understanding of Zhao Gao, if he went to the Heavenly Sword sect, he would be in deep trouble. He should be dissuading him from going. Zhao Gao didn't say he didn't want to take revenge for him, or that he wanted Jing Gang to stop Gu Mingzhou. Instead, he told Jing Gang to ask Gu Mingzhou to go to the Heavenly Sword sect to save him. He seemed to be hinting at something. Is he hinting at me to go to the Heavenly Sword sect? Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. That was all he could think of now. However, Zhao Gao should have known that he would definitely return to the Heavenly Sword sect to save him. Why didn't he stop him? Instead, he made it clear. Only this sentence. Gu Mingzhou wanted to get some clues from Zheng Gang. Zhao Gao didn't say much, but Zheng Gang shook his head. First, he invited me to the Heavenly Sword sect, and then Murong Yen captured sect master Zhao. Was there a connection between the two? Actually, their goal is very obvious. It's you. Gu Mingzhou nodded in agreement with his guess. Why did Murong Yen want to capture sect master Zhao? Gu Mingzhou was confused. If he was to invite him, why did he hold Zhao Gao as a hostage? Gu Mingzhou could not figure this out. Coupled with Zhao Gao's unnecessary request for help, the whole matter was not as simple as it seemed. What's the point of thinking so much? We'll just go to the Heavenly Sword sect and ask him. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's worried expression, the island master of Floating Jade Island immediately said. Two Earth World cultivators were enough to shake the Heavenly Sword sect. I just don't understand. Murong Fu and I don't know each other. Why does he want to see me? Gu Mingzhou asked, puzzled. Murong Fu's method of holding Zhao Gao hostage had obviously angered him. There's no time to lose. It's best to stop Murong Yen before he reaches the Heavenly Sword sect. Floating Jade Island Master said angrily. The beast cultivators who advocated peace and lived in seclusion in the deep sea were very dissatisfied with Moron Yan's act of holding Zhao Gao hostage. Brother Zheng Gang, I'll have to trouble you to wait for the hundred thousand floating jade cultivators and settle them down. Leave sect master Zhao to me. Gu Mingzhou didn't think too much about it. He decided to go to the Heavenly Sword sect first. Floating Jade Island Master transformed into a Kuanpeng that blotted out the sky and let out a long howl. The cry pierced through the clouds. Gu Mingzhou jumped onto the bird's back and stood firm. The hundred-meter-long wings of the Kuanpeng flapped slightly. The wings whistled out, stirring up Handan. The Kuanpeng, which was hundreds of meters long, disappeared into the sky like lightning. Its hundred-meter-long wings flapped in the air. The Kuanpeng flew through the clouds under the sky. After traveling a thousand miles, they arrived at the capital of the Heavenly Sword sect. Even if Gu Mingzhou used his full strength, he might not be able to do it. The mountain gate of the Heavenly Sword sect was not big. In front of the Kuanpeng that was soaring in the sky, it was like a low fence. Chapter 421 it was obvious that this was not the first time the floating Jade Island Master had come to the Heavenly Sword sect. When he approached the sect, he flapped his wings twice and his huge bird body shot into the sect like an arrow, flying above the main hull. Of course, the Island Master of Floating Jade Island did not overstep his boundaries. He stopped in front of the hall and transformed back into his human form. As a large sect, the Heavenly Sword sect's defense was naturally not weak. Buzz. Gu Mingzhou is here to pay his respects to the sect leader of the Heavenly Sword sect. Gu Mingzhou shouted as he hovered in the air. His voice was intentionally infused with spiritual energy and instantly resounded throughout the entire Heavenly Sword sect. How dare you break into the Heavenly Sword sect? Activate the formation. However, what answered them was an angry roar. A faint golden ripple appeared. The light golden barrier was split into two layers. The inner layer covered the entire hall while the outer layer covered the entire Heavenly Sword sect. The two faint golden barriers happened to isolate Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master within them. They were trapped inside and were in a dilemma. The arrow, which had been enhanced by a spell technique, was shot out from the Heavenly Sword sect without any warning. The arrows covered the sky and the earth, 
instantly enveloping Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master. The arrows that fell from the sky, each of them glimmering with a cold light, were like a rain of light as they headed towards Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master. It was not an ordinary arrow. It was obviously imbued with a special spell and spiritual energy. It was specially made for cultivators, and Gu Mingzhou could sense danger. Did they just crack the whip? In the air, Gu Mingzhou's brows were tightly furrowed as he spoke coldly. He had already reported his name. Even if Murong Kuang and Murong Yen had not returned, Murong Fu must have known he had arrived. However, he did not give any reply and instead allowed the guards to shoot at Gu Mingzhou and the island master of Floating Jade Island. He most likely wanted to show Gu Mingzhou and the island master their might and kill their morale. It was obvious that Murong Fu already knew the purpose of Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master coming to the Heavenly Sword sect. Therefore, Murong Fu also knew Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master would be angry because of Zhao Gao's matter. Now, he had to first kill their momentum and extinguish their baleful auras. However, Murong Fu had underestimated Gu Mingzhou, or rather, he had underestimated the Island Master of Floating Jade Island. Crack the whip. Just a few arrows and they want to give us a show of power. Isn't Sect Master Morong looking down on us too much? Before the sky full of arrows could approach, floating Jade Island Master, who had transformed back into his human form, took two steps forward and instantly stood in front of Gu Mingzhou. A look of disdain flashed across his eyes as he stared at the arrows that filled the sky. Before he could finish his sentence, floating Jade Island Master raised his arms and slapped them out at the arrows that filled the sky. Whoosh! Two resplendent rays of golden light immediately flickered from the body of the Island Master of Floating Jade Island. They suddenly exploded tens of meters in front of him and turned into a rain of light. It was like a heavy downpour that fell from the sky and instantly splashed on the arrows that filled the sky. The arrows were instantly drowned by the rain of light, losing their color and falling to the ground. Not only that but the arrows that engulfed the sky were not hindered at all. Like torrential rain, they fell on the golden barrier that enveloped the hall and exploded. It shook the entire defensive barrier until it flickered and flickered. Set up the formation. The second group, fire the arrows. However, at this moment, the voice that came from the hall earlier was heard again. Before he could finish his sentence, a sky full of arrows shot out from the main hall again. They were accompanied by flames and were more powerful than the previous arrows. In the void, they drew a red ribbon and headed straight for Gu Mingzhou. The whistling arrow was not aimed at the island master of floating Jade Island, who was standing at the front. Instead, it was aimed at Gu Mingzhou, who was a few meters behind the island master. Are you testing me? Gu Mingzhou chuckled and immediately saw through the other party's scheme. It was obvious that floating Jade Island Master's actions had convinced everyone in the hall. Now, they were testing Gu Mingzhou's strength. Should we make a move? The Island Master of Floating Jade Island naturally saw through the other party's intentions. He immediately looked at Gu Mingzhou and asked. Gu Mingzhou knew even if he did not make a move, the floating Jade Island Master would help him block the attack and even directly attack the barrier of the hall. However, he didn't do that because he wanted to take the opportunity to establish his prestige and make his position in Morong Fu's heart even more important. Only then would Gu Mingzhou have the right to speak in front of Morong Fu. No need. Gu Mingzhou replied. Before he finished speaking, he immediately flew up and looked at the flame arrow whistling toward him. The corner of his mouth could not help but rise slightly. He had never been afraid of numbers. The next moment, a burning spear appeared in front of Gu Mingzhou. He waved his right arm and stabbed at the arrows that filled the sky. In an instant, countless pitch black spear shadows shot out from the long spear, similarly covering the sky and the sun as they met the whistling arrows that filled the sky. The sound of an explosion rang out in the sky above the heavenly sword sect. The flaming arrow collided with the spear shadow and exploded like fireworks. All of a sudden, the arrows that filled the sky exploded in midair, and the sparks were dazzling as they turned into dust. Unlike the engulfing suppression of floating Jade Island Master, Gu Mingzhou's attack directly destroyed all the arrows in the sky. 
Not only that, but since the other party wanted to test his strength, he could use this opportunity to establish his prestige and increase his bargaining chip. Of course, he would not let go of this opportunity easily. Gu Mingzhou did not stop after destroying all the feather arrows with his spear technique. Instead, he stepped out into the void and stabbed again with his blazing blood spear. He used the spear technique again. The spear shadows that filled the sky quickly gathered and condensed into a 100-foot-long spear shadow. Gu Mingzhou waved his right arm and stabbed the pale golden barrier that enveloped the hull. An earth-shattering explosion followed. It was like a bolt of lightning on a clear day, as if the sky had collapsed. The sun and moon above the heavenly sword sect lost their radiance and the heavens and earth darkened. The entire ground started to tremble violently. The defensive barrier that enveloped the main hall shone with a brilliant golden light. In the end, it was difficult to resist. The cracks increased, and the turtle patterns became dense. They swayed and turned into specks of crystal light, scattering onto the imperial city and floating between heaven and earth. Two shots. A single spear could destroy ten thousand arrows, and a single spear could destroy one's defense. In just two breaths, Gu Mingzhou seemed to casually wave his spear, but he directly dissolved the other party's attack and broke through the defense of the hull. His strength was self-evident. After the two shots, Gu Mingzhou put the spear back into his body and stood with his hands behind his back. He turned his head to look at Floating Jade Island Master. Floating Jade Island Master smiled and gave Gu Mingzhou a thumbs up. Although the defense of the main hall of the Heavenly Sword sect was strong, it was still vulnerable to Floating Jade Island Master, who had broken through the shackles and entered Earth Realm. When Floating Jade Island Master attacked earlier, he only shook the defensive barrier but did not destroy it directly. A large part of it was because he was worried that he would fall out with Morong Fu and offend him. After all, anyone who barged into the gate and broke the great formation protecting the mountain gate would make the other party unhappy. However, Gu Mingzhou completely ignored this. In the face of the other party's probing, he retaliated strongly. Not only did it destroy the tens of thousands of arrows, but it also broke the defensive formation of the hull. Chapter 422 In fact, his meaning was very obvious. He was showing off to the person who gave the order, the people in the Great Hall of the Heavenly Sword sect, and Murong Fu, who was paying close attention to this place. Gu Mingzhou isn't someone you can test as you wish. Of course, such an undisguised display of power would definitely incur the dissatisfaction of the entire Heavenly Sword sect. As the hall's defensive array shattered, hundreds of figures immediately flew out of the hall and floated around Gu Mingzhou and floating Jade Island Master, forming an encirclement. The Heavenly Sword sect is indeed a large sect. They are indeed powerful. Gu Mingzhou still stood with his hands behind his back. He glanced at the hundreds of cultivators from the Heavenly Sword sect and sighed. Among the hundreds of people who flew out of the hall, there were four in the Earth Realm, and the remaining hundreds were all in the mortal realm. If these venerables were placed in the Zhou and Zhao states, it would be enough to shake the entire country. The power of the Heavenly Sword sect was self-evident. How dare you come to my Heavenly Sword sect and destroy my hall's barrier? If you know what's good for you, you'd better surrender. Otherwise an older man shouted angrily. Otherwise what? You want to kill me? The island master of Floating Jade Island was displeased and interrupted the other party's words with a cold voice. No matter what, he was still the island master of the Floating Jade Island from the freezing cold land. Whether it was status or cultivation, he was on the same level as Morong Fu. Even if Floating Jade Island had been destroyed, not everyone had the right to threaten him. Especially in front of the main hall of the Heavenly Sword sect, he had hit a wall one after another which made Floating Jade Island Master unhappy. His original overbearing aura immediately overflowed. Murong Fu, you're so mighty. It's fine if you don't come out to welcome me, but what's the meaning of this now? Floating Jade Island Master did not look at the cultivator. Instead, he looked into the depths of the hull. How audacious! Before the Floating Jade Island Master could finish his sentence, the surrounding cultivators roared in unison. Is the sect master's name something you can call out directly? I think you're looking for death. 
The older Earth Realm cultivator shouted angrily. The white haired Earth Realm cultivator immediately waved the sword in his hand and a sharp sword intent slashed out, directly attacking the floating Jade Island Master. As the Earth Realm cultivator made his move, hundreds of cultivators around him also made their moves. Their spiritual energy soared into the sky and formed an array that trapped Gu Mingzhou and the island master of Floating Jade Island. The powerful array formation had no effect on Gu Mingzhou and the Floating Jade Island master. You reckless fellow! Murong Fu, do you really think that I have a good temper and wouldn't dare to kill these people? Floating Jade Island master furrowed his brows tightly, his anger already surfacing. Floating Jade Island master was not affected by the surrounding array. He directly passed through the whistling sword energy and appeared in front of the white-haired earth realm cultivator in an instant. He directly struck out with his palm. The wind from the palm strike was swift and fierce. He didn't give the earth realm cultivator any time to react and hit his chest. Pfft. With a muffled sound, blood spurted out of the white-haired earth realm cultivator's mouth, and he was sent flying. Hundreds of cultivators in the surroundings exclaimed. The other cultivators of the Earth Realm hurriedly flew over, trying to catch the older cultivator of the Earth Realm. The rest of the people were furious as they glared at the island master of Floating Jade Island. At the same time, they activated their spell techniques and attacked the island master. Gu Mingzhou retreated and had no intention of stopping the cultivator from the Heavenly Sword sect. This was because he knew these cultivators would not be able to harm Floating Jade Island master. Floating Jade Island Master was unperturbed, but the chill on his face grew even more sinister. He turned to look at the hundreds of cultivators and raised his right hand, about to push out his palm. Stop, don't be rude. A slightly tired but majestic voice suddenly came from the hall. The voice was a little old, with a bit of fatigue, and full of majesty. Like a great bell, it rumbled in the sky above the hall and pierced through the clouds. As this voice rang out, the hundreds of cultivators from the Heavenly Sword sect who had been preparing to charge at Floating Jade Island Master withdrew their spell techniques and retreated to their original positions. In the void, he cupped his hands towards the depths of the hull. Old man, you're finally willing to show your face. Floating Jade Island Master lowered his raised right hand and his spiritual energy quickly dissipated. He turned his head to look into the depths of the hall and shouted in dissatisfaction. Brother Lu, it's been so many years, but your temper is still so short. This lord is ill and can't get up to welcome you, sorry for neglecting you too. The majestic voice came from the depths of the hall again, but it was clearly much friendlier. He seemed to be expressing his apology. In fact, Murong Fu's short words had skipped over the matter of the cultivators of the Heavenly Sword sect attacking Gu Mingzhou and floating Jade Island Master. Just a slight. If it weren't for the fact that Brother Gu and I have some skills, I'm afraid you would be talking to two corpses now. The island master of Floating Jade Island heard Murong Fu's glib words and immediately exposed him. The island master of Floating Jade Island's merciless words caused Murong Fu to fall into silence. Perhaps he had not expected Floating Jade Island master to not give him any face. As the Floating Jade Island master, he had always been high and mighty, and his status was not inferior to Morong Fu's. However, he had been rejected by Morong Fu and attacked by the cultivators of the Heavenly Sword sect. It was impossible for him not to be angry. How dare you speak to the sect master like that? Are you looking for death? One of the cultivators who had retreated was enraged upon hearing this. He pointed at the island master of Floating Jade Island and shouted angrily. Silly! Gu Mingzhou said with a pitiful expression. In the current situation, Murong Fu was obviously being threatened by Floating Jade Island Master. He was frowning and was thinking about how to deal with it. At this time, he suddenly jumped out to show his loyalty and defend Murong Fu. In reality, he was just looking for trouble. This lord is courting death, do you dare to attack me? Floating Jade Island Master revealed a smile. You dare to be rude to the sect master. I'll make you pay even if I have to risk my life. The cultivator pulled out his sharp sword and slashed at floating Jade Island master. Old man, since you're not strict enough, I'll teach him a lesson. A chill shot out from the eyes of the floating Jade Island master. 
his right hand clenched in the air towards the venerable who was slashing at him. The sword in the hands of the cultivator from the heavenly sword sect suddenly shattered, turning into fragments that fell down. The other party didn't have time to react. He immediately spat out blood and staggered back in the void. The powerful cultivator from the heavenly sword sect was severely injured by the seemingly casual attack of floating Jade Island Master. Floating Jade Island Master raised his right hand again and pointed at the ashen-faced cultivator, as if he wanted to kill him. Brother Lu, please give me some face and stop. Murong Fu no longer referred to himself as this lord, but called himself me. The proud Murong Fu chose to surrender. Gu Mingzhou was impressed by this. Since sect master Murong has spoken, how would this lord dare to not give face? But I really didn't expect the great sect master Murong would actually put down his dignity for his disciples. The floating Jade Island master retracted his right hand. How about we let this matter go if you blame me for not noticing Brother Lu's arrival and neglecting the two of you? Murong Fu's voice was heard again, begging for peace. Floating Jade Island Master revealed a smile, as if he had no intention of ending things here. Just as she was about to retort, Gu Mingzhou spoke first. Island Master Lu, Murong Fu is very busy every day. We came here abruptly, so it's inevitable that something will happen. Don't argue any more. Gu Mingzhou tried to persuade him. Chapter, 423 The island master of Floating Jade Island looked back at Gu Mingzhou, as if asking why he didn't take the opportunity to exploit Morong Fu. Gu Mingzhou sensed Floating Jade Island master's gaze and immediately shook his head silently, indicating for Floating Jade Island master to stop. After all, the main purpose of this trip was to rescue Zhao Gao, and it was not good to fall out with Morong Fu. Sect Master Morong is so busy every day, if we enter the main hall without any notice, wouldn't we be treated as traitors? Floating Jade Island Master understood what he meant and nodded slightly. He turned to look into the depths of the hall again. Brother Lu, don't point at the mulberry tree and mock the locust. How about I drink three cups of wine as a punishment? Morong Fu's voice was heard again. A rainbow bridge suddenly appeared in the depths of the main hall and quickly spread to the front of Floating Jade Island Master and Gu Mingzhou. The Floating Jade Island Master stepped onto the rainbow bridge. Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate and followed the Island Master of Floating Jade Island onto the rainbow bridge. You may leave in addition, inform the fifth elder and the first elder that we have an important guest. Murong Fu's voice came. Farewell, Sect Master. The hundreds of cultivators from the Heavenly Sword sect who were left behind hurriedly cupped their hands and bowed towards the depths of the hall. Murong Fu didn't reply. Instead, as the hundreds of cultivators from the Heavenly Sword sect cowed out, the rainbow bridge under Gu Mingzhou and the island master of Floating Jade Island carried the two of them into the depths of the hall. The rainbow bridge moved very quickly. What seemed to be a distance of several thousand meters was crossed in the blink of an eye. It should be a disguised form of some kind of spell technique that could activate spiritual energy to form a rainbow bridge to transport the goods. Although it looked simple, it actually required very strict control of spiritual energy. Even Gu Mingzhou could not guarantee that he could do it. This showed Murong Fu's ability to control his spiritual energy. In front of the side hall. There was no sign hanging on it. The door of the hall was opened, and inside was a study room. Gu Mingzhou followed behind the island master of Floating Jade Island and came down from the Rainbow Bridge. He saw a man in a luxurious robe sitting in front of a desk in the side hall and looking up. He wasn't that old, and his sideburns were a little white. He was no different from an ordinary middle-aged man, but his eyes gave people the feeling that he had experienced many vicissitudes of life. Murong Fu Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. Brother Lu, little brother Gu, Please come in. Morong Fu said with a smile. Inform the dining room to prepare some wine and food. Today, this seat wants to drink to my heart's content with my old friend. Morong Fu ordered the female disciples behind him. Yes, sect master. The female disciple hurriedly bowed and hurried out of the hall. Gu Mingzhou followed behind the island master of Floating Jade Island and walked into the side hall. The master of Floating Jade Island was as domineering as before. 
He directly sat down in front of the desk opposite Morong Fu. Gu Mingzhou nodded slightly at Morong Fu. I've long heard of little brother Gu's great name, and you truly live up to your reputation. Please take a seat. Morong Fu stretched out his hand and said. Thank you, sect master. Gu Mingzhou sat down beside floating Jade Island master. I've long heard of little brother Gu's deeds. He failed to transcend the tribulation and recultivated. This lord is truly shocked. Morong Fu waited for Gu Mingzhou to sit down before speaking again with a smile. I was just lucky. Gu Mingzhou said. If we're lucky enough to succeed, I wonder how many cultivators will ascend to the upper realm. Morong Fu said with a smile. It seems Morong Fu doesn't know I have reached the earth realm. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. First, Morong Yen used his relationship with Floating Jade Island Master to invite Gu Mingzhou to the Heavenly Sword sect. Then, he held Xiao Gao hostage and forced Gu Mingzhou to go to the Heavenly Sword sect. The two events that happened in succession were enough to prove Morong Fu's great determination to see Gu Mingzhou. They had no contact with each other, even if they had nothing to do with the Heavenly Sword sect. From the beginning to the end, Gu Mingzhou had never interacted with the Heavenly Sword sect, especially Morong Fu. What was the reason for Morong Fu to notice him? Not to mention that he had just returned to the Great World, even if he had fought Su Fengyu on the floating Jade Island and were evenly matched with him. Many thoughts appeared in his mind, but he still couldn't figure out how he could attract Morong Fu's attention. Little brother Gu, I'm afraid you've already broken through to the Earth Realm. Morong Fu was obviously testing the waters. His words seemed to be a deduction, but in fact, he threw the question back. A smile appeared on Gu Mingzhou's face. Just as he had guessed, Morong Fu didn't know he had advanced to the earth realm. The reason why Morong Fu noticed him was not because of his cultivation. Sect Master Morong had gone through so much trouble to lure me and Brother Gu here. Could it be you only want to know Brother Gu's cultivation level? Floating Jade Island Master suddenly interjected, interrupting their conversation. Brother Lu, aren't you too worried? I'm treating you guys to a drink, don't think too much. Morong Fu laughed. If Sect Master Morong were to invite someone for a drink, who in this world would dare to not come? What do you mean by threatening me? Floating Jade Island Master said disdainfully. His words were full of blame. The Sect Master of the Heavenly Sword Sect, who was sitting across from the floating Jade Island Master, was stunned. Other than the lawless Su Fengyu and the Zhou Dynasty's He Chuan, no one else would dare to speak to Morong Fu like this. You can't say things like that. Although I've sent two of my elders to invite Brother Gu, it was a sincere invitation. How can you say that I'm threatening him? Morong Fu did not feel the slightest bit of displeasure at the island master of floating Jade Island's impolite question. Instead, he revealed a puzzled expression and said. It seems that your great elder has not returned to the Heavenly Sword sect. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. From the confusion on Morong Fu's face, it could be seen that he didn't know about Zhao Gao's kidnapping. However, even if Gu Mingzhou thought so, the floating Jade Island master did not think so. Morong Fu, you're still pretending. Could it be that you weren't the one who ordered sect master Zhao Gao's kidnapping? Before Morong Fu could finish his sentence, Floating Jade Island Master snorted coldly. How is that possible? I heard that little brother Gu was trying to set up the trap, so I sent the Great Elder to invite him. How could I let him kidnap Sect Master Zhao? Morong Fu asked in surprise. You'll know when you call the Great Elder over. Floating Jade Island Master said coldly. Morong Fu's gaze shifted to Gu Mingzhou as if asking for his opinion. Island Master Lu is not lying. The first elder is indeed holding sect master Zhao hostage in Handan city. Gu Mingzhou immediately said. So that's the case. No wonder brother Lu is so angry. Go and urge the first elder to come in as soon as possible. Morong Fu said with sudden realization. Yes. A response came from outside the side hall. It seems like he really doesn't know the great elder is acting on his own. Seeing that Morong Fu didn't know to hold Zhao Gao hostage, 
the anger in the master of floating Jade Island's heart dissipated a lot, and smile finally appeared on his face. If Murong Fu didn't know about Zhao Gao's kidnapping, then the great elder acted on his own. It looked like an accident, but in fact, he was looking down on the power of the sect master and ignoring Murong Fu's will. Especially for a sect like the Heavenly Sword sect, which had been around for a thousand years, it was extremely serious. Brother Lu, don't be in such a hurry to make a conclusion. We haven't found out anything yet. Let me call the first elder over and ask him. Murong Fu's face was a bit gloomy, but he forced a smile and said. Since it's not sect master Murong's order, we'll wait for the first elder to return before we talk. Gu Mingzhou said. That's the only way. The floating Jade Island master nodded. Chapter, 424 Reporting to sect master, dinner is ready. Sect master, please go. The female disciple who had left earlier hurried back into the side hall. You can leave first. How about the two of you eat while you wait? Murong Fu turned to look at Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master. All right, I'm a little hungry. Floating Jade Island Master said as he rubbed his stomach. Gu Mingzhou also stood up and nodded slightly at Murong Fu. Even though they could already abstain from eating. However, he still didn't forget the habit of having three meals. Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master rushed over from Handan City. When they arrived at the Heavenly Sword sect, night had fallen, and it was time for dinner. Follow me. Murong Fu stood up and walked out of the side hall. Gu Mingzhou and the Island Master of Floating Jade Island followed closely behind and soon entered the Clearwater Palace in the main hall of the Heavenly Sword sect. The Clearwater Palace was rich and magnificent. It was very spacious and could accommodate thousands of people. There were only a few seats left in the Clearwater Palace. The wooden tables in front of three of the seats were already filled with all kinds of delicious food, waiting to be tasted. Murong Fu sat on the main seat, while the floating Jade Island Lord and Gu Mingzhou sat beside him. The three people settled down. Murong Fu said a few polite words and everyone began to taste the food. After three rounds of wine, five dishes. Throughout the whole process, Murong Fu ate heartily and didn't say anything. Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master did not speak either. They also buried their heads in the delicious food. The Clearwater Palace was filled with a heavy atmosphere. It was obvious that Murong Fu was very angry about the first elder holding Zhao Gao hostage and wanted to ask for the reason. The first elder's actions were completely against Murong Fu's will. It was no different from looking down on Murong Fu. Time passed quietly, and the night grew darker. Sect Master, First Elder and Fifth Elder are here. Just as Gu Mingzhou thought that the First Elder would not appear today, a disciple rushed in and bowed to Murong Fu. Let him in. Murong Fu, who was eating heartily, raised his head and said coldly without any expression. Two burly figures strode into the hall from the night. Greetings, Sect Master. The First Elder Murong Kuang and the Fifth Elder Murong Yen bowed to Murong Fu. Quickly, Take your seats. Murong Fu sat up straight and waved his hand. Thank you, sect master. The first elder and the fifth elder replied in unison again before turning around and taking their seats. Big brother Lu. Little brother Gu. Murong Yen cupped his hands at floating Jade Island master and Gu Mingzhou after he sat down. Floating Jade Island master and Gu Mingzhou smiled and nodded in response. Everyone turned their attention to Murong Kuang, the first elder. Gu Mingzhou and floating Jade Island Master had rushed here from Handan to find Murong Kuang. Now that he had seen him, he couldn't help but feel anxious. He wanted to ask about Zhao Gao's condition. First elder, I heard that you've captured sect master Zhao, is that true? There is such a thing. The first elder immediately cupped his hands and said to Murong Fu. Then explain. I asked you to go to Handan to invite Brother Gu, why did you hold sect Master Zhao as a hostage? Murong Yen said. The first elder's expression made him very displeased. Actually, sect Master Zhao didn't come to the Heavenly Sword sect as a hostage. He wanted to come here. The first elder raised his wine cup and spoke in an indifferent voice. 
Gu Mingzhou and Floating Jade Island Master looked at each other, both clearly surprised. They weren't shocked by the first elder's words, but rather, that his expression when he spoke was completely different from his previous respectful appearance. It was as if Murong Fu was no different from Gu Mingzhou and the others in the eyes of the first elder. You holding sect master Zhao hostage was his idea. Murong Fu naturally noticed the first elder's expression. He frowned and was obviously suppressing the anger in his heart. He was so angry that he laughed. Sect master, don't forget that sect master Zhao has already established his Tao foundation. There's also something else I want to tell you. The first elder stood up with a cup of wine in his hand and continued. Speak. Murong Fu looked at the first elder and said. Today, I respectfully ask sect master to abdicate. The first elder spilled the wine in his cup on the wooden table as if he was paying his respects. A dense aura filled the entire Clearwater Palace. No matter how stupid Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master were, it was impossible for them not to understand the meaning behind the first elder's words. He was obviously trying to usurp the throne. Bang! Murong Kuang, do you know what you're saying? The moment Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island Master were stunned by the first elder's words, Murong Fu, who was sitting on the main seat, slammed the table and stood up. He glared at the first elder and shouted coldly. Of course, I know. It's something I've wanted to do for a hundred years. The first elder was not afraid at all. He looked at Murong Fu arrogantly and replied loudly. As expected, you're one of the people who covet this lord's position. Murong Fu was so angry that he shook his head and laughed. Your position? Could it be that sect master has forgotten how he took that position back then? The first elder threw away the wine cup and pointed at Murong Fu as he sneered. Shut up! Murong Fu interrupted the first elder's words as if the following words were very unfavorable to Murong Fu. His expression changed greatly and he shouted loudly. If you knew this would happen, why did you do it? Are you afraid the dirty things you've done back then will be exposed? The first elder's lips curled into a mocking smile. When has this lord ever been afraid? Do you think you can shake this lord? Simply delusional. This lord would really like to know, what makes you dare to do this? Murong Fu said. That's right, what makes the first elder have so much courage? At most, he was the first elder of the Heavenly Sword sect, an Earthrealm warrior. Even if he had some subordinates, how could they compare to Murong Fu? What was this compared to Murong Fu, who had a deep foundation? Because of me. The fifth elder Murong Yen, who had been silent all this while, suddenly stood up and shouted at Murong Fu. You're not interested in power, but you're actually coveting this lord's position. Murong Fu looked at the fifth elder in disbelief. I'm not interested in the position of sect master, but I'm very interested in your actions. The fifth elder shouted. It seems that you've been planning this for a long time. However, this lord is very curious about what other means you have to make yourself so confident. Why don't you show them now? Murong Fu slowly retracted his smile and looked at the fifth elder and first elder again as he spoke in a cold voice. Since sect master has spoken, this old man will no longer hide. Before Murong Fu could finish his sentence, a familiar voice suddenly came from outside the palace. Countless cultivators in armor quickly rushed in through the palace gates. The first person to rush into the palace was the pale-faced sect master of the trap, Zhao Gao. The familiar voice just now was naturally from Zhao Gao. Sect master. Gu Mingzhou's expression changed. The island master of floating Jade Island was also a little dumbfounded. He sized up Zhao Gao, who was leading the army to Clearwater Palace and was filled with disbelief. He and Gu Mingzhou had come to the Heavenly Sword sect to save Zhao Gao. However, they did not expect that Zhao Gao would not only not be kidnapped, but also form an alliance with the First Elder and participate in the battle for the throne. Chapter, 425 Zhao Gao Murong Fu said with a gloomy face. By now, he had already figured out what was going on. Gu Mingzhou and Floating Jade Island Master almost instantly understood the general situation. The First Elder holding Zhao Gao hostage was fake. 
joining forces with the first elder to put on a show and sneak into the Heavenly Sword sect to start a coup was the real thing. Zhao Gao deceived Murong Fu and entered the Heavenly Sword sect, so why did he ask Gu Mingzhou to come? Gu Mingzhou didn't know, Floating Jade Island Master didn't know, and Murong Fu might not know either. Murong Fu's gaze shifted from Zhao Gao to Gu Mingzhou and the Floating Jade Island Master. They obviously suspected that their arrival was also a trap. Murong Fu had to pay attention to this. If it was the fifth elder or the first elder, Murong Fu would be able to protect himself even with a net. However, the situation would be very different between Floating Jade Island Master and Gu Mingzhou, whose cultivation was not any weaker than Floating Jade Island Master. Murong Fu's guards were helpless against Floating Jade Island Master and Gu Mingzhou. Murong Fu's expression became serious as Zhao Gao appeared. His eyes darted back and forth between Gu Mingzhou, the island master of Floating Jade Island, and Zhao Gao, as if he was trying to guess the connection between the three. This was extremely important to him. Did Brother Lu and Little Brother Gu also join their side? Murong Fu voiced his doubts. Sect Master, please don't misunderstand. You can treat me as a bystander. Floating Jade Island Master glanced at Zhao Gao and said in a self-deprecating manner. Little Brother Gu, what about you? The Island Master of Floating Jade Island quickly clarified his relationship with Murong Fu. Murong Fu immediately heaved a sigh of relief and turned to look at Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou fell into silence. Of course, he didn't know Zhao Gao and the First Elder had incited a rebellion. However, he couldn't deny his relationship with Zhao Gao, who had saved his life. He couldn't just ignore him. He turned his gaze to Zhao Gao. Sect Master, I need a reason. Gu Mingzhou said. He needed to know what Zhao Gao was up to. It was not a wise choice to start a civil war when there were still powerful enemies. It was very likely that they would be wiped out by Su Funyu and become the final winner. He could not figure out what Zhao Gao was trying to do. We'll discuss some things in detail later. Let's deal with the matter at hand first. Zhao Gao didn't answer Gu Mingzhou's question. Instead, he looked at Murong Fu. You want to interfere in the internal affairs of my Heavenly Sword sect even with the trap? Murong Fu looked at Zhao Gao. Although he'd already guessed this possibility when Zhao Gao had appeared, he still wanted to hear the answer from Zhao Gao. The internal affairs of the Heavenly Sword sect. You really know how to joke. Zhao Gao was not affected by Murong Fu's words. You colluded with Su Fengyu and attempted to harm the entire great world. How can you face your ancestors? The smile on Zhao Gao's face suddenly disappeared, and he raised his voice. What? Colluding with Su Fengyu? Gu Mingzhou and Floating Jade Island Master could not help but feel an earthquake in their eyes. It was simply a fantasy. The enmity between Su Fengyu and the Murong clan could not be resolved overnight. Moreover, Su Fengyu had led the underwater beast cultivators to launch a fierce attack on the Heavenly Sword sect. This was evident. Was the Heavenly Sword sect going to fight with the underwater demon cultivators? How could Murong Fu be in contact with Su Fengyu? However, both the First Elder and the Fifth Elder had known about this matter. Because there was not a single ripple of emotion on the faces of these two. No wonder you dared to instigate a rebellion. You already know about that matter. Murong Fu's gloomy face suddenly revealed a smile. If you don't want people to know, then don't do it. As the sect master of the Heavenly Sword sect, are you still not satisfied? Zhao Gao sighed. Do you think you can understand what I've done? Murong Fu laughed. The position of the Heavenly Sword sect sect master is nothing but a burden to me. Murong Fu shouted. Why didn't you say that when you took the position of sect master? The first elder pointed at Murong Fu and mocked. Don't say any more. The fifth elder walked in front of the first elder, trying to stop him from continuing. You don't have to stop him. I want to know what kind of person I am in your hearts. At this time, Murong Fu opened his mouth and said, Today, I will reveal your evil deeds. The first elder pushed away the fifth elder's hand and walked towards Murong Fu. 
As an ancient sect that had stood in the outside world for thousands of years, the successive sect masters were naturally not short of great talents who maintained the strength and immortality of the Heavenly Sword sect. Muron Lin might not have been the greatest sect master in the history of the Heavenly Sword sect, but he was definitely the most unique sect master. It was mainly because Muron Lin didn't have a full house of children. Muron Lin only had five sons, and one of them had died. Perhaps it was because Muron Lin's death was too sudden, so there was no time to decide who would inherit the position of sect master. The Heavenly Sword sect had started a war for the position of sect master. Murong Fu killed his two brothers and took the opportunity to gain power and become the new sect master. However, we didn't expect you would collude with our nemesis, the world cultivators, to kill all the living beings in the great world in order to get higher cultivation and more power. As he spoke, the first elder suddenly raised his voice and pointed at Murong Fu, the sect master, and shouted angrily. Murong Fu, don't you have any sense of shame? Don't you have a conscience? Don't you feel guilty? The fifth elder also questioned. Gu Mingzhou was tall, and floating Jade Island master fell silent. They didn't know what to say. He never thought the revered sect master Murong Fu would actually use so many despicable means to compete for the position of sect master. A devil who betrays his ancestors for glory and is unscrupulous for profit. How can we not rebel against you? The first elder looked at Murong Fu with tears in his eyes and roared ferociously. What a bummer. It's just an old matter, and you have the nerve to bring it up. Murong Fu said with a smile. Murong Fu, you colluded with the world cultivators and plotted against the common people. You still don't know how to repent. Zhao Gao saw Murong Fu's nonchalant expression and scolded him angrily. What crime have I committed? Let's not talk about your nonsense, so what if it's true? Murong Fu said disdainfully. You're so stubborn. Zhao Gao shook his head as he unsheathed the sword from his waist. The thousands of cultivators behind Zhao Gao immediately pointed their weapons at Murong Fu, ready to attack at any moment. Follow me to kill the traitors and return peace to the great world. Zhao Gao rushed towards Murong Fu. Kill. Thousands of cultivators shouted in anger and rushed forward. Do you really think I'm arguing with you? I was just stalling for time. Where are the holy guards of the sword sect? Murong Fu suddenly burst out laughing. Before he finished his words, countless figures suddenly rushed out from the back hall and instantly blocked Murong Fu. Gu Mingzhou and the floating Jade Island master furrowed their brows. The holy guards of the sword sect who had suddenly appeared were all cultivators at the peak of the mortal realm, and there were more than a hundred of them. Among them, there was no lack of earth realm warriors. There were about ten of them, standing at the back of the crowd, protecting Murong Fu. The heavenly sword sect indeed had a deep foundation. Murong Fu's eyes turned cold when he saw the holy guards. He looked at Zhao Gao and the cultivators who were charging at him and waved his right arm. Chapter, 426. Kill them. At the same time, Murong Fu's voice rang out, hundreds of mortal realm warriors jumped up and faced Zhao Gao and the thousands of cultivators. The entire Clearwater Pavilion began to be filled with fights. As for the Ten Dao Foundation cultivators, they didn't make a move. Instead, they quickly moved in front of Murong Fu. They were obviously setting up a formation. Murong Fu, die. At this moment, the first elder had already moved and jumped up. Before he finished his words, countless spiritual energy emerged from the first elder's body. The sharp blade was suddenly raised high by the first elder and suddenly slashed at Murong Fu. Two Dao Foundation stage cultivators jumped out from the group blocking Murong Fu. The two Dao Foundation cultivators held their swords and directly blocked the first elder's fierce blade. The sound of collision rang out, and sparks flew in all directions. The first elder's attack was blocked and he fell into a melee. He was surrounded by two Dao Foundation cultivators and it was difficult for him to resist. I'll help you. The fifth elder also made his move. At the same time, he swung his sword and killed a holy guard of the sword sect in the mortal realm, forcing the other holy guards to retreat. He jumped up and joined the battle in the air, trying to help the first elder resist the two holy guards of the sword sect who were in the earth realm. 
However, two more holy guards of the sword sect jumped out from Morong Fu's side and instantly joined the battle in the air, fighting with the fifth elder. This caused the fifth elder and first elder to be in a difficult situation. The Clearwater Palace fell into chaos. Spiritual energy shot out of the hall, and a cold light flashed. Fresh blood spurted out continuously, dyeing the ground red. Although Zhao Gao had brought many cultivators, they were all at the first level of the mortal realm, which was far inferior to Murong Fu's holy guards. If it wasn't for the huge difference in numbers and the limited area of the palace, the sword sect's holy guards would have suffered almost no damage. However, even though there were many restrictions, the rogue cultivators that Zhao Gao had brought with him could temporarily suppress the sword sect's holy guards with their numbers. However, they could only suppress them, not kill them. On the other hand, the holy guards of the sword sect, who did not have many people, could still kill their enemies continuously even if they were restricted. Most of the fresh blood that had dyed the entire Clearwater Palace red had come from the cultivators that Zhao Gao had brought with him. Only Zhao Gao had killed dozens of the sword sect's holy guards. Zhao Gao's strength quickly attracted the attention of the other sword sect's holy guards, and they focused most of their attacks on Zhao Gao, making him unable to split up. He had been severely injured earlier, so he had been unable to cast any powerful spell techniques. The battle at the Clearwater Palace quickly reached a stalemate. The cultivators who tried to overthrow Murong Fu were unable to kill the holy guards of the sword sect, and the holy guards were also unable to kill Zhao Gao. Zhao Gao, who was surrounded, was unable to escape, causing the fighting in the palace to become more intense, and the blood flow gradually decreased. The first elder and the fifth elder were fighting with two cultivators of the earth realm respectively. Their cultivation was stronger than the holy guards of the sword sect, but it was still difficult for two fists to fight against four hands. The gap had been pulled to a draw. After an intense battle, some sort of balance seemed to have been achieved. However, this balance was destined to be short-lived. This was because all the tricks that had been used to incite the rebellion had been used, but Murong Fu was still coldly watching from the side. The six holy guards of the sword sect in front of him had not made a move. Zhao Gao, the first elder, and the fifth elder had planned everything, but in the end, they couldn't win against Murong Fu, who had a deep foundation. The battle with Murong Fu in the main hall gradually reached a stagnant. He did not let the six holy guards of the sword sect in front of him attack. Instead, he turned his attention to Gu Mingzhou and the island master of floating Jade Island. These two were the existences that Murong Fu was most afraid of. Powerful cultivators could change the outcome of the entire battlefield. In a corner of the Clearwater Palace, Gu Mingzhou's brows were tightly furrowed. Long before the battle began, he had already retreated to the side. While observing the situation, he also looked at the floating Jade Island master. Regardless of whether Zhao Gao's words were true or not, Gu Mingzhou would definitely stand on Zhao Gao's side at this time. However, floating Jade Island Master was different. Although the relationship between the Island Master of Floating Jade and Gu Mingzhou was closer, the relationship between the Island Master of Floating Jade and Zhao Gao was not good. In fact, today was the first time they had met, so the possibility of him helping was not high. If the fifth elder Morong Yen were to speak up, the chances of the floating Jade Island Master helping out would increase significantly. However, as floating Jade Island Master had said earlier, he was completely unaware of what had happened and might choose to stand by and do nothing. There was also another possibility. Morong Fu might not hesitate to attack Zhao Gao's side when the final winner was Morong Fu. If Zhao Gao won in the end and floating Jade Island Master did not make a move, it would not affect the cooperation between the two parties. At most, after the trap absorbed a hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators, the authority of the floating jade island master would be weakened. On the contrary, if the final winner was Morong Fu, Zhao Gao, the first elder, the fifth elder, and the others would all be executed by Morong Fu. If floating jade island master had not stepped in to help, the hundred thousand rogue cultivators would have returned to the path of cannon fodder. If they chose to help Morong Fu suppress the rebellion, Morong Fu might discuss with Zhao State and Zhou Dynasty to directly reward the floating Jade Island Master with land or merge with the Heavenly Sword Sect. Therefore, floating Jade Island Master, 
who had retreated to the corner, was not unwilling to make a move. Instead, he was observing the battle. Gu Mingzhou's decision only represented himself. However, the decision of the floating Jade Island Master would affect the life and death of the hundred thousand rogue cultivators behind him. He had to be careful. Therefore, Gu Mingzhou did not make a move. Instead, he set his eyes on the island master of floating Jade Island, just in case. Gu Mingzhou was also in the Earth Realm, so he knew how terrifying a fourth-rank Earth Realm cultivator could be. He regretted bringing floating Jade Island master to the Heavenly Sword sect, but he could do nothing to change that. If Xiao Gao had informed them of this matter in advance, the situation would not have turned out like this, and the floating Jade Island master would not have appeared. Murong Fu saw this point, so he didn't let the remaining holy guards of the sword sect join the battle. Of course, leaving behind the sword sect's holy guards was not purely for protection. It was to tilt the balance of victory and, in turn, affect the judgment of the floating Jade Island master. This was the only way he could get the island master of floating Jade Island to come to his side. Just as Gu Mingzhou had expected, Murong Fu did not know his cultivation level, so he was very afraid of him and wanted to use the floating Jade Island Master to hold him back. If he was really caught, Zhao Gao, the first elder, and the fifth elder would not be able to shake Murong Fu, who had a deep foundation. The treason will naturally fail. Gu Mingzhou's body glowed as he released the spiritual energy in his body. He was waiting for the floating Jade Island Master to agree. He wanted to eliminate the remaining sword sect holy guards around Morong Fu in the shortest time possible. Only in this way could the plan succeed. You can promise that you won't affect my quelling of the rebellion. When I control the whole world, I'll be able to get you a bigger piece of land, and you'll also be able to hold your own power without being under anyone's jurisdiction. Morong Fu looked at the floating Jade Island Master and said. Floating Jade Island Master, you must not believe him. His words have no credibility at all. Before Murong Fu could finish his words, the first elder who was fighting against the holy guards of the sword sect shouted loudly. Chapter, 427 Floating Jade Island Master subconsciously looked at the fifth elder in silence. If the fifth elder had said this, Floating Jade Island Master would have hesitated. The first elder's influence wasn't that great, but he had to consider the fifth elder's situation. He had fought for better benefits for the hundred thousand floating jade rogue cultivators. He did not care about his previous friendship with Gu Mingzhou, but he could not ignore his relationship with the fifth elder. The relationship between them was extraordinary. But for some reason. The fifth elder noticed the floating jade island master's gaze but was stunned. He focused on fighting against the sword sect's holy guards in front of him and didn't say anything. Murong Yen was not willing to make things difficult for Floating Jade Island Master because of his own situation. Island Master of Floating Jade Island, don't forget that Murong Fu colluded with Su Fengyu, who destroyed the Floating Jade Island. Helping him is equivalent to helping the enemy of the Floating Jade itinerant cultivators. At this moment, Zhao Gao, who was being surrounded, spoke in a loud and clear voice. If you help Su Fengyu, how will you face the hundred thousand floating Jade Islands compatriots in the future? As long as you help us, when the great world gets through its difficulties, the trap will definitely help the hundred thousand floating Jade rogue cultivators build a new country. Zhao Gao waved his sword and continued. Is this true? The floating Jade Island master was slightly moved. The trap will form an alliance with floating Jade Island forever. In the future, when we establish a country, the trap will still be an assassin organization and will not interfere with you. Zhao Gao once again threw out the benefits and said in a clear voice. You think you have a chance. As long as I'm willing, you'll all die without a burial place. In the future, I will completely eradicate the trap. Murong Fu suddenly interjected with a cold tone that made people shudder. Don't you dare. Zhao Gao wanted to break out of the encirclement, but he was instantly blocked, unable to break through. Brother Lu, you have to see the current situation clearly. They're just low-level guys who can't do anything. The best choice is to cooperate with me. Murong Fu's gaze returned to the floating Jade Island Master. Floating Jade Island Master did not reply. Obviously, Murong Fu was right. 
according to the current situation, if the remaining six holy guards of the sword sect joined the battle, they would definitely crush Zhao Gao and become the final winner. Murong Fu had a smile on his face. The silence of the floating Jade Island Master made him subconsciously think that the floating Jade Island Master acquiesced to his cooperation. His original fear disappeared. This boring farce should end here. Murong Fu raised his right hand and waved at the six holy guards of the swordsmanship sect. The six holy guards of the sword sect who were standing in front of him immediately jumped up and split into two groups. They charged toward the first elder and surrounded Zhao Gao. Perhaps out of concern for the floating Jade Island Master, Morong Fu did not let the sword sect's holy guards attack the fifth elder. It's time to end it. Morong Fu laughed out loud. Gu Mingzhou, who had not made a move, finally moved. Almost at the same time as the six Dao Foundation stage holy guards jumped out, the long spear that was flickering with flames had already stabbed out. Whoosh! The sharp spear radiance was like a white radiance in the dark night. It instantly pierced through the void. He didn't attack the six holy guards of the sword sect who were at the Dao Foundation stage. Instead, he pointed at Morong Fu. Humph! Morong Fu snorted coldly, and his spiritual energy overflowed from his body to meet the spear light. Brother Lu. Just as the spear light was about to collide with Morong Fu, the golden light suddenly appeared in front of Morong Fu. The island master of floating Jade Island did not say anything. He landed in front of Morong Fu and his dragon robe immediately fluttered. A vast amount of spiritual energy soared into the sky and he slapped out. Bang! The whistling spear was immediately slapped back by the floating Jade Island master and sent flying backward. A smile appeared on Morong Fu's face and he put down his right hand. Floating Jade Island Master's initiative to protect him clearly showed his stance. With the support of this fourth-rank Earth Realm cultivator, he was almost sure to win. Gu Mingzhou took the spear that was flickering with flames and flipped it in the air. Without even looking at the Island Master of Floating Jade Island, he turned around and thrust his spear forward, instantly landing behind the Holy Guards surrounding Zhao Gao. The sharp spear pierced through the chest of the Holy Guard, and blood spurted out. Then, he exerted strength in his arms and used the long spear to lift his entire body up and throw him out. The huge force instantly knocked down the four holy guards of the sword sect. When Gu Mingzhou killed a holy guard of the sword sect, the six holy guards with Dao Foundation cultivation immediately changed directions and surrounded Gu Mingzhou. Kill. Without any words or fancy moves, a simple word came out of the mouths of the six holy guards. The six holy guards of the sword sect gathered around Gu Mingzhou, and as if they were copies, they made hand seals in front of their chests at the same time. His six palms shot out dense spiritual energy, carrying a terrifying power as they attacked Gu Mingzhou. Their spiritual energy was connected and supplemented each other, greatly increasing their power. Gu Mingzhou's expression was grim as he held the spear with both hands. His body was as agile as a swan as he jumped up and swept away thousands of soldiers with his spear. The spear ray whistled, its power vast. The vast spiritual energy was like a vast ocean, pouring out. It collided with the palm wind formed by six resplendent spiritual energy and was swallowed. Rumble. A huge heat wave rose to the sky, and the entire palace was shaking. The attacks from the six holy guards of the sword sect, who were at the Dao Foundation stage, exploded at the same time as Gu Mingzhou's shoot. They were equally matched. Gu Mingzhou's spear swept away the terrifying six traces of spiritual energy. He landed from the air and could not help but frown. The cultivation of these holy guards of the sword sect was indeed powerful. The combined magic of the six palms was enough to seriously injure cultivators below the third rank earth realm. If Gu Mingzhou hadn't made a move, the first elder, the fifth elder, and even the injured Zhao Gao would have died. If they were to face the combined attacks of these six Dao Foundation cultivators, they would probably be heavily injured and defeated in an instant. If the ten holy guards of the sword sect with Dao Foundation cultivation bases gathered together, Zhao Gao would definitely be unable to fight back and die. Could this be the reason why Murong Fu has been so calm from the beginning? Gu Mingzhou thought to himself, but he did not stop at all. 
his body which had just landed on the ground flew up once again. With a jump of nearly a hundred meters, he reached the top of the palace and broke out of the encirclement of the six holy guards of the sword sect. It flipped in the air above the palace and aimed at one of the holy guards of the sword sect with its spear. Close. The holy guard of the sword sect, who Gu Mingzhou targeted, immediately let out a soft cry and formed a seal with his hands in front of his chest. As the word close rang out, the other five holy guards immediately formed hand seals at the same time and stepped into the void, instantly standing behind the holy guard. Like a long snake formation, starting from the last holy guard, he stretched out his right hand sword fingers and instantly tapped on the back of the holy guards in front. Then, the second last person also stretched out his sword finger and pointed at the back of the third holy guard. It seemed slow, but in reality, it was only an instant. The last holy guard of the sword sect, who had been targeted by the long spear, extended his sword fingers and pointed at the long spear that was whistling toward him. The void began to tremble uncontrollably, and the wind howled. It was no weaker than Gu Mingzhou's vast spiritual energy. It whizzed out like a white dragon and attacked the long spear. Chapter, 428 At this moment, Gu Mingzhou, who was brandishing his spear, had a cold look in his eyes as his body swayed. The spear, which had collided with the white-colored core energy, changed direction at the last moment. As fast as lightning, it arrived in front of the island master of floating Jade Island in an instant and stabbed out with a whistling spear light. Shoot the horse before shooting the man, capture the king before capturing the bandits. Gu Mingzhou's sudden change in attitude was beyond everyone's expectations. The six Dao Foundation Holy Guards of Sword Sect who were working together to block the attack were dumbfounded. They wanted to jump forward to block the attack, but it was too late. Gu Mingzhou's goal was very obvious. He would first capture and kill Murong Fu. The situation at Clearwater Palace was obvious. Zhao Gao's side was at a disadvantage. Even if Gu Mingzhou joined them, he would not be able to do anything due to the restraint of floating Jade Island Master. It was very important to capture Murong Fu. If Murong Fu was captured or even killed, they would naturally win. The spear radiance was sharp and carried great power. The void was shattered by the whistling spear, and cracks appeared. Black smoke-like claws and teeth appeared. It quickly spread to where Murong Fu was. However, the spear was also pointed at the floating Jade Island master, Lu Yucheng. Gu Mingzhou wanted to capture the leader first and take down Murong Fu. However, his primary goal was not Murong Fu. Instead, it was the floating Jade Island Master. It was not that he wanted to target the floating Jade Island Master. Instead, it was the floating Jade Island Master who stood in front of Murong Fu and did not leave at all. If he wanted to attack Murong Fu, he had to get past the Island Master of the floating Jade Island first. Floating Jade Island Master's expression was extremely grave as he looked at the long spear that was whistling toward him and shattering the void. He waved his right arm. The sharp sword, which seemed to be formed by the connection of golden feathers, was blocked in front of Kong Kong's chest, as if it was ready to resist the long spear. Murong Fu didn't show any fear, as if he wasn't the target of Gu Mingzhou's attack. Instead, he reached out to pick up the glass in front of him and calmly took two sips of wine. With the support of the floating Jade Island Master, Murong Fu was very confident and did not care about any attacks. When Gu Mingzhou encountered the floating Jade Island Master, who was of the same level, it would be very difficult to defeat him. It would only be an evenly matched battle. The Golden Feather Sword, which was surrounded by a vast amount of spiritual energy, was extremely terrifying. As floating Jade Island Master slashed out, the void in front of him was torn apart and it collided with the spear that was fiercely piercing him. Boom! Like a thunderbolt from a clear sky, the sound reverberated throughout the entire Clearwater Palace. The void collapsed, and debris flew everywhere. A powerful wave of air swept across Clearwater Hall, breaking through the roof and shaking the people who were fighting. The six holy guards of the sword sect who had flown over to save their lord was thrown over by the air wave and staggered backward in the air because they were too close to their lord. Gu Mingzhou was also thrown into the air and barely managed to stay suspended. The floating Jade Island master was shaken to the point that he staggered backward and directly charged toward Morong Fu. 
This lord's guess is right. Little brother Gu has indeed reached the fourth rank earth realm. Murong Fu reached out his palm in time and gently patted the island master of floating jade island on the back, helping him to dissolve the force. The floating jade island master nodded at Murong Fu to express his gratitude. He looked at Gu Mingzhou again. Gu Mingzhou didn't reply to Murong Fu. Instead, he turned around and swung his spear, instantly slashing it in front of Zhao Gao. Whoosh! A sharp spear radiance flew out from the spear and instantly landed around the sword sect's holy guards who were surrounding Zhao Gao. He had no power to fight back, it was even difficult for him to block. More than a dozen holy guards of the swordsmanship sect who had surrounded Zhao Gao were cut into two by Gu Mingzhou's spear light like tofu, dying on the spot. Since he couldn't capture Murong Fu, he could only try his best to weaken his strength. After killing more than ten holy guards, he continued to move forward. He raised his long spear and prepared to kill the other low-level holy guards. However, the six holy guards of the sword sect who were at the foundation Dao cultivation level that had been shaken off earlier had obviously noticed Gu Mingzhou's attempt. They attacked without hesitation and suddenly slapped out with their six palms. Just like before, six resplendent streaks of spiritual energy immediately whizzed out like six flood dragons. They broke through the air and attacked Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou could only temporarily give up on the idea of killing low-level sword sect holy guards. He stopped in the air and turned his long spear around to sweep out. Dust and dirt rustled, and the wind howled. Spiritual energy as thick as a thumb shot out in all directions in the air above the hall. The Clearwater Palace instantly turned murky as dust and dirt churned and filled the air. Gu Mingzhou, who was covered in dust, moved again. He used all his strength from the fourth rank earth realm and flew out almost instantly when the dust was everywhere, approaching one of the six holy guards of the sword sect. Before the holy guards of the sword sect could even recover from the collision, Gu Mingzhou suddenly appeared in front of them. His majestic spiritual energy poured out as he pushed out his palm, trying to block. However, since Gu Mingzhou had decided to make a move, how could he give him the power to fight back? Die! Gu Mingzhou shouted angrily. The long spear instantly pierced through the sword sect holy guard's body. Flying swords of blood fell from the sky like rain, drenching the crowd that was fighting below. The holy guard of the sword sect was in disbelief, and his hands dropped to the ground. He didn't even manage to block it, and he had already died. After killing a sword sect holy guard of the Dao Foundation realm, Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate at all. He instantly pulled back his long spear, tapped his toes, and directly approached the other sword sect's holy guards. He waved his long spear again. However, the other party was clearly prepared. Before the long spear reached him, he had already retreated and escaped quickly. The other four holy guards of the sword sect also attacked Gu Mingzhou and came to help. Gu Mingzhou did not stop. He swept his long spear horizontally, and his spiritual energy soared into the sky. The shadow of the spear shot out toward the four holy guards of the sword sect. The sharp spear radiance pierced through the void. The four holy guards of the swordsmanship sect stopped in the air and waved their palms at the same time. Four waves of spiritual energy whizzed out and instantly collided with the sky full of spear shadows. The spiritual energy and the spear shadows that filled the sky collided with each other and were both shattered. Taking advantage of the fact that the four holy guards had stopped, Gu Mingzhou broke free from their obstruction and instantly caught up with the fleeing holy guard. He thrust his long spear forward. The spear radiance descended ferociously. The sword sex holy guard pushed out his palm, and countless pure elemental force gushed out to meet the spear's radiance. The sharp spear radiance pierced through the pure elemental energy and landed on the sword sex holy guard's chest. Blood spurted out again. Gu Mingzhou calmly pulled back his long spear and allowed the sword sect holy guard, whose life force had been extinguished, to fall from the void. He stood proudly in the air and stared at the remaining four holy guards of the sword sect with Dao Foundation cultivation. In just a few breaths, Gu Mingzhou had killed two holy guards of the sword sect with Dao Foundation cultivation. The remaining four holy guards of the sword sect started to feel fear. They hesitated in the air and did not dare to continue attacking Gu Mingzhou. 
this was too terrifying. Gu Mingzhou still managed to kill two of the six Dao Foundation cultivators who could complement each other instantly, shocking the remaining four holy guards. The gap between the two of them was too great. A fourth rank Earth Realm cultivator is indeed powerful. It seems that this lord still has to trouble Brother Lu in the end. Murong Fu looked at Gu Mingzhou, who was standing proudly with his spear and side. Chapter 429 don't worry sect master Murong, he won't be able to do much. The master of floating Jade Island's golden feather sword trembled and immediately emitted a murderous intent. Gu Mingzhou looked away from the four hesitant holy guards of the sword sect and turned to look at the island master of floating Jade Island. His right hand subconsciously clenched the handle of his spear. He did not want to fight with the floating Jade Island master, but now that things had come to this, he had no choice but to do so. Gu Mingzhou, on account of our friendship, as long as you don't get involved in this, we're still friends. The island master of Floating Jade Island did not attack immediately. Instead, he looked at Gu Mingzhou and spoke. Island master has disappointed me. As the first elder said earlier, you are helping the evildoer. By doing this, are you worthy of the tens of thousands of Floating Jade compatriots who were buried with the Floating Jade Island? Gu Mingzhou shook his head and said. I'm doing this for the sake of my fellow brothers of the floating Jade Island. Since you insist on this, we can only meet with our swords. The island master of floating Jade Island interrupted Gu Mingzhou. The smile on Murong Fu's face grew wider. The attitude of the floating Jade Island master made him more confident. Let me experience the strength of the floating Jade Island master. Gu Mingzhou slowly raised his spear and pointed it at floating Jade Island master. Gu Mingzhou was like an arrow that had left the bow. He quickly rushed toward floating Jade Island Master and thrust his spear before he even got close. Sect Master Murong, you must be careful. The master of floating Jade Island's expression was extremely grim. His golden feather sword trembled as he reminded Murong Fu. Brother Lu, you can deal with Gu Mingzhou. Don't worry Murong Fu raised the wine cup in his hand. The concern of the floating Jade Island master made him feel even more relaxed. Before Murong Fu could finish his sentence, the floating Jade Island master, who had his back on him, suddenly turned around. Before Murong Fu could react, the golden light appeared in front of him. The sword, which was connected like feathers, emitted a bone-piercing cold light and stabbed into Murong Fu's chest. Blood spurted out. In an instant, Murong Fu's golden robe was dyed red, making the flying dragon embroidered on it look ferocious and terrifying. Why? Murong Fu was in disbelief. He lowered his head and looked at the master of floating Jade Island, who had stabbed his chest with a sword, and asked in confusion. The floating Jade Island suddenly waved its sword and stabbed Murong Fu, who was completely defenseless, causing everyone to be surprised. Gu Mingzhou, who was diving down, stopped. The expressions of the four holy guards changed drastically. Gu Mingzhou, the four holy guards of the sword sect who were at the Dao Foundation stage, the first elder, the fifth elder, and Zhao Gao, who were in the middle of a fierce battle, all stopped fighting. Everything happened in a flash. The floating Jade Island master, who had vowed to help Morong Fu, had suddenly changed sides when Morong Fu was unprepared. The reason is very simple. You colluded with Su Fengyu so we're destined to fight to the death. Floating Jade Island Master stared at Murong Fu and said coldly. It's time to end this. The golden feather sword that had pierced into Murong Fu's chest from the floating Jade Island continued to move forward and pierced through his chest. Murong Fu immediately became dispirited and slumped on the chair behind him, his body dyed red with blood. Just when everyone thought that Murong Fu had lost his life, a smile suddenly appeared on Morong Fu's face. Yup. It's time to end this. A ghastly voice came out of Morong Fu's bleeding mouth. Morong Fu, who was originally dispirited, suddenly reached out his right hand and instantly hit the chest of the floating Jade Island Master. With a muffled sound, fresh blood spurted out of floating Jade Island Master's mouth. The floating Jade Island Master was sent flying backward and crashed heavily into the main hall. What? Gu Mingzhou, the first elder, the fifth elder, Zhao Gao, 
and all the cultivators in the hall looked at Murong Fu in disbelief and surprise. Murong Fu, who was originally dispirited, slowly stood up. He casually pulled out the golden feather sword and allowed the blood to flow out. The wound quickly healed. In the blink of an eye, it was as good as new. His dispirited face turned into a pale sneer. The warrior of level 4 of the earth realm was pierced through the chest. If he did not die, he would be seriously injured and would not have the power to fight back. However, Murong Fu was completely different. Not only did he not die, but even the hole in his chest healed in an instant. This was simply unbelievable. Do you think you can kill me like this? Ignorant ants, you failed to live up to my trust. Murong Fu looked at the golden feather sword in his hand and said disdainfully. Murong Fu threw out his right hand and the golden feather sword was as fast as lightning. He didn't give the floating Jade Island Master any chance to react. Just as the sharp sword was about to pierce through the heart of floating Jade Island Master, a spear burning with flames suddenly appeared. It hit the golden feather sword precisely. The treasured sword was instantly jolted away by the long spear and stabbed into the ground diagonally, buzzing non-stop. Gu Mingzhou descended from the sky and reached out to help the floating Jade Island Master up. Floating Jade Island Master's actions had clearly shown that he was on his side. Even though she was moved by Murong Fu's words earlier, she had already forsaken darkness for light now. He even thought that the floating Jade Island Master had only pretended to surrender in order to sneak an attack on Murong Fu. However, Murong Fu was not that easy to kill. Are you alright? Gu Mingzhou looked at the pale-faced floating Jade Island Master and asked. No problem. It's a pity that it wasn't enough to kill this fellow. The island master of Floating Jade Island reached out to wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth and broke free from Gu Mingzhou's support. He pulled out the golden feather sword from the ground and looked at Murong Fu with a frown. If he could be killed so easily, he wouldn't be Murong Fu. Gu Mingzhou tightened his grip on the long spear in his hand and replied coldly. Floating Jade Island Master had pretended to surrender from the start and waited for an opportunity to launch a sneak attack. His plan was indeed very thorough. Anyone else would have fallen for it and died. But Murong Fu would not. After all, he had been the sect master for a hundred years and had the most abundant resources in the world. It would be abnormal if he was easily assassinated by Floating Jade Island Master. On the contrary, the current situation was very normal. Lu Yucheng, I promise you that you will regret your actions just now. Holy Guards of the Sword Sect, follow me to kill the enemies and exterminate the traitors. Murong Lang shouted. Murong Fu's long robe fluttered in the wind as a vast amount of spiritual energy poured out and filled the entire Clearwater Palace. He then struck out with his right palm. Extremely pure spiritual energy whizzed out from Murong Fu's palm and condensed into a ferocious giant dragon. Its body was covered in golden scales and it carried a terrifying power as it attacked the floating Jade Island Master. I'll leave the remaining Holy Guards of the Sword sect to you. I'll deal with Murong Fu. After Gu Mingzhou finished speaking, he immediately brandished his gun to meet the attack. The spear's radiance was sharp and carried a terrifying might as it collided with the roaring golden dragon. Boom! The sound of an explosion reverberated throughout the Clearwater Palace as countless spiritual energy shot out in all directions like arrows. The Clearwater Palace was riddled with holes from the impact of this burst of spiritual energy. The sword sect's holy guards and the cultivators that Zhao Gao had brought along were slightly closer to Gu Mingzhou. Their bodies were pierced by the flowing spiritual energy, and they died on the spot. Floating Jade Island Master had the fastest reaction among the crowd. The moment the spear and the golden dragon collided, he had already pulled himself out of the way and distanced himself from the explosion. The sword slashed at the four Dao Foundation holy guards floating in the air. The battle that had stopped instantly resumed. In the heavily damaged Clearwater Palace, an intense battle began once again. Chapter 430 Zhao Gao was surrounded by nearly 100 mortal realm warriors and became the main target of their attacks. The first elder and the fifth elder's fighting spirits were reignited, and they each fought against the two holy guards of the sword sect who were at the Dao Foundation realm. The rebellious holy guards of the Jade Sword School began to move. 
Their swords and sabers kept clashing. Their techniques were gorgeous, and their spiritual energy shot out. In mid-air, Gu Mingzhou, who had pierced the golden dragon with his long spear, dashed out from the billowing air waves and instantly arrived in front of Morong Fu. His long spear stabbed out. Countless spear shadows shot out from the long spear, like a continuous crossbow. The sky was filled with arrows that headed straight for Morong Fu. Little tricks. Morong Fu's face was full of disdain. He stood still and struck out at the spear shadows that filled the sky. The spear shadow exploded in front of Morong Fu, turning into a fine powder and scattering in the air. What? Gu Mingzhou was shocked by Morong Fu's methods. Even so, he didn't stop at all. He stepped in the air and his long spear stabbed toward Morong Fu again. A huge spear shadow appeared and shattered the void in front of it. It arrived in front of Morong Fu. Morong Fu put his hands behind his back and returned to his original position, proudly staring at the spear shadow. The huge spear shadow pierced through the void and landed on Morong Fu. The area around Morong Fu's position exploded continuously, turning into a fine powder that scattered in the air. Wood chips flew everywhere and dust filled the air. The palace wall behind Morong Fu had collapsed, revealing a gap. The cracks on the bluestone floor of the main hall spread in all directions. How is that possible? Gu Mingzhou, who was floating in the air, was not happy at all. A surprised expression flashed across his face as he watched the dust gradually settle. The figure in the dust had his hands behind his back and a disdainful look on his face. Faced with Gu Mingzhou's all-out attack, Morong Fu, who didn't even block, was unscathed. It was simply unimaginable. Gu Mingzhou was not the only one who was surprised. The island master of Floating Jade Island, Zhao Gao, the first elder, and fifth elder, who were fighting bravely, also had expressions of disbelief. The battle on Gu Mingzhou's side had already alarmed them. When they realized that their sect master Morong Fu had ignored Gu Mingzhou's powerful attack, they couldn't help but feel a little excited. Gu Mingzhou was a standard fourth-level Earth Realm cultivator. Even cultivators of the same level would be seriously injured if not killed by his all-out attack. They would lose their fighting power immediately. However, Morong Fu didn't even block the attack. He was standing there unscathed. How powerful was he? In everyone's eyes, Morong Fu was just a third-rank Earth Realm cultivator. It was surprising that he could ignore Gu Mingzhou's attack. You're strong, but not enough. The dust gradually settled. Morong Fu didn't give Gu Mingzhou a chance to answer and had already jumped up. When he opened and closed his arms, a golden light shone brightly, and there was a faint cry of a true dragon. It was originally the aura of the third rank earth realm, but it was rising rapidly. Fourth rank, fifth rank. He only stopped when he crossed the gap and reached the sixth rank. What? Gu Mingzhou looked at Morong Fu in disbelief, and his heart was in turmoil. Morong Fu didn't give Gu Mingzhou too much time to be shocked. He flew up like a kung pang spreading its wings, his fists suddenly punching the void. The void collapsed, and the cracks and space storm spread upward like a vast ocean, directly swallowing the entire roof of the palace, and revealing the stars in the sky. The spatial crack continued to spread and covered the sky above the heavenly sword sect. Everyone's eyes looked in Gu Mingzhou's direction, and they subconsciously stopped their attacks. The scene was too terrifying. Countless spatial cracks crisscrossed and surrounded Gu Mingzhou. The terrifying spatial storm was like a demon from hell. It roared and wanted to swallow Gu Mingzhou. Be careful. The island master of Floating Jade Island looked nervous. He warned Gu Mingzhou while guarding against the four holy guards of the sword sect who were in the earth realm. He floated in the air and felt the power of Morong Fu's punch. He understood how terrifying it was. Gu Mingzhou, be careful. Zhao Gao's pale face was filled with worry as he warned. Although the first elder and fifth elder didn't say anything, they also focused their attention on Gu Mingzhou. Judging from the strength that sect master Morong Fu had displayed, if Gu Mingzhou was unable to resist. This operation would end in complete failure. Morong Fu was too powerful. This was something that they had not expected. 
because Murong Fu's usual performance was only at the peak of the third rank of the earth realm. It was obvious that Murong Fu had hidden his cultivation and released it at this important moment, shocking everyone. The crack in the void was obviously where Murong Fu's main power lay, but it did not attack Gu Mingzhou. Instead, it rose into the sky and spread towards the dome of the sky, as if it was going to break the entire sky. It was extremely strange. The countless void cracks that crisscrossed around Gu Mingzhou looked terrifying, but they were just bluffing. It was no threat to him at all. Gu Mingzhou didn't have the time to wonder why Murong Fu had directed his main attack at the sky. He waved his long spear. The crisscrossing cracks in the void had already arrived in front of him. Although the spatial storm was not a threat to him, being sucked into the spatial rift was a very terrifying thing. Gu Mingzhou was not willing to be caught up in it. He thrust his spear into the void in front of him. The spear's shadow spread out and shattered the cracks in the air. Taking advantage of the crisscrossing cracks in the void, he jumped out of the encirclement and continued to attack Morong Fu. The flame on the long spear suddenly grew as if it was going to burn the sky. It was pointed at Murong Fu. A firefly dares to compete for brightness with a bright jade. Murong Fu reached out his right hand and grabbed the long spear in the air. The long spear stopped three feet in front of Murong Fu, unable to advance any further. This is the real earth realm. Murong Fu's extended right hand shook. An extremely powerful force landed on the long spear that had stopped in the air. Gu Mingzhou didn't have time to react. As the long spear was thrown out, it crashed into the void where the sky collapsed. Gu Mingzhou. Floating Jade Island Master and Zhao Gao exclaimed at the same time. He wanted to go and help Gu Mingzhou. However, Zhao Gao's injuries were too heavy, and there were too many sword sex holy guards around him. He was instantly pushed back and could only fight with the sword sect holy guard in front of him. On the other hand, the floating Jade Island Master attacked the sword sect holy guards beside him. The golden feather sword, which was emitting a bright golden light, instantly landed on the shoulder of the sword sect's holy guard and swept out. The head flew up and blood spurted out. The holy guard of the sword sect, who was at the second level of the earth pole realm, was buried. Floating Jade Island Master was clearly thoroughly enraged and no longer held back. The powerful strength of a fourth-rank Earth Realm cultivator was revealed without reservation. With Kung Peng's speed, he moved between the remaining three holy guards and launched fierce attacks. Zhao Gao, the first elder, the fifth elder, and the others continued to attack with all their might. Gu Mingzhou, who had been thrown up, turned his body when he was close to the spatial crack that enveloped the sky. His long spear stabbed towards the sky. The long spear stabbed at the edge of the crack in the void and produced a rebound force. It was just enough for Gu Mingzhou to stabilize his body and stop in the air. Chapter 431 Before Gu Mingzhou could catch his breath, a deep voice suddenly came from underneath. Die! Before he finished his words, Murong Fu flew over with his long hair and brocade robe fluttering in the wind. He threw a punch. The fist wind whistled, carrying a cold killing intent and bursting with a bright golden light. It was extremely gorgeous as if it was going to collapse the sky, and it headed straight for Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou hurriedly retreated, temporarily avoiding the sharp edge. Boom! The ferocious fist struck the crack in the sky with a deafening sound, causing the crack to expand once more. A vast spatial storm poured out from it like a flood breaking through a dam, crashing down on the profound heavenly sword sect. Are you crazy? Gu Mingzhou was shocked and roared in disbelief. Murong Fu's punch overturned the cracks in the void that covered the sky, causing the space storm inside to pour out. It no longer spread to the sky but fell to the ground. The terrifying spatial storms continued to pour out in greater and greater numbers as if they were about to engulf the entire heavenly sword sect. If this continued, the entire heavenly sword sect would be wiped out. Those who achieve great things must know how to give and take. As long as I can kill you, so what if I have to sacrifice the heavenly sword sect? In the future, the world will be mine, and I can have as many heavenly sword sects as I want. Murong Fu said with a cold smile. He did not care about the spatial storm that was pouring down. 
Instead, he stepped into the void and attacked Gu Mingzhou again with monstrous pressure. There was another strong collision, and Gu Mingzhou was once again forced to retreat. However, his mind was on the Heavenly Sword sect below. The cultivators of the Heavenly Sword sect and the people at the foot of the mountain had already noticed the change in the sky and the rolling spatial storm that was pouring down. They were already in a mess and were wailing in fear. Heavenly Sword sect would be destroyed by the spatial storm and tens of thousands of people would die. This made Gu Mingzhou's heart ache, and he definitely did not want to see this. He stopped fighting with Murong Fu and shouted for Jing Wudao. Before he could finish his sentence, a red glow shot out from Gu Mingzhou's Dantian, revealing Jing Wudao's figure. As his cultivation improved, Jing Wudao also became a powerful cultivator who was not weaker than the fourth rank Earth Realm. Their strength was almost the same. Wudao, save them. Gu Mingzhou couldn't catch up with Jing Wudao after not seeing him for such a long time. Jing Wudao knew the situation was urgent, so he didn't say much. He nodded slightly at Gu Mingzhou and immediately flew towards the Heavenly Sword sect. He didn't go into detail, but Jing Wudao understood what Gu Mingzhou meant. Gu Mingzhou wanted Jing Wudao to stop the spatial storm from reaching the Heavenly Sword sect. This was the only solution Gu Mingzhou could think of at the moment. False benevolence and righteousness, you all have to die. Murong Fu looked at Jing Wudao's departure and sneered. Murong Fu's body shone with a brilliant golden light, carrying an incomparable power. He instantly landed in front of Gu Mingzhou, and his fist, which was bursting with brilliant light, suddenly landed. Murong Fu's fist hit the handle of the burning blood spear. The light burst out with a loud sound, shattering the surrounding void. The spatial storm whistled, and Gu Mingzhou was forced to take a few steps back. His long spear trembled and whistled, and his hand holding it hurt. Murong Fu was determined to kill Gu Mingzhou. Carrying a monstrous light, he stepped into the void and approached Gu Mingzhou, swinging his fist again. His fist was extremely terrifying. Every time it landed, it would shatter the void. Gu Mingzhou didn't dare to face it head on and kept retreating. At the same time, he was looking for an opportunity to attack Murong Fu with his spear. Do you know why I changed my name? Murong Fu was like a god, exuding a bright light. Gu Mingzhou didn't answer, as if he didn't hear Murong Fu's words. He only focused on dodging and occasionally retaliating. This was not because he was pretending to be arrogant, but because Murong Fu was too powerful. Although the two of them were both in the earth realm, Murong Fu was not suppressed by the heavenly Tao, and his strength was firmly above Gu Mingzhou's. Gu Mingzhou had to focus on dealing with him because he could die if he was not careful. Because I want to be the heavens, control the earth, rule the world, and stand at the highest peak. Murong Fu saw that Gu Mingzhou didn't answer, but he wasn't angry. He continued to sneer and mock. The speed of his fist was even faster, and the air in front of Gu Mingzhou started to shatter. The crack in the void expanded rapidly, and a terrifying storm kept spilling out. Very quickly, most of the void in the spatial crack that covered the sky of the Heavenly Sword sect had been shattered by Murong Fu. Even if Gu Mingzhou could dodge Murong Fu's attack, he would probably fall into the spatial rift and be swept up by it. Gu Mingzhou, who was constantly dodging, had a grave expression on his face. Because the current situation did not allow him to continue to retreat. If this continued, he would be forced to the end by Murong Fu sooner or later, or even fall into the broken void. Aren't you very powerful? The group of traders below is counting on you. If they dare to escape, they won't be able to live. Murong Fu seemed to see through Gu Mingzhou's thoughts. He kept waving his fists and said mockingly. Murong Fu was right. Whether it was the island master of floating Jade Island, Zhao Gao, the first elder, the fifth elder, or the cultivators who had rebelled, Murong Fu was right. None of them was Murong Fu's match. If Gu Mingzhou chose to escape or die in battle, they would also lose their lives. Gu Mingzhou's life was already tied to those peoples. The reason why Murong Fu said this was because he saw this, so he wanted to use words to restrain Gu Mingzhou. If Gu Mingzhou wanted to escape, it would be easy. Murong Fu could see the situation after he dodged such a long time of fierce attacks. 
It was easy for Murong Fu to win, but it would be difficult to kill Gu Mingzhou. These words had undoubtedly sealed off Gu Mingzhou's path of retreat. Because Murong Fu clearly knew that Gu Mingzhou would never abandon his friends and escape alone. Gu Mingzhou still did not speak, but his expression became even more serious. Of course, he knew the meaning of Murong Fu's words. But just as Murong Fu thought, these words completely cut off his retreat. In fact, from the beginning to the end, he had never thought of escaping alone. But could he really stop Murong Fu? His heart was pounding as he frowned. His eyes glanced up at the sky. From the moment Murong Fu revealed his cultivation and covered the crack in the void above the Heavenly Sword sect, a light flashed in his eyes. Zhao Qinkuan's voice rang out in his mind. Murong Fu's karma aura clearly shows he hasn't gone through the lightning tribulation. The spatial storm can isolate the heavenly Tao's detection and form a natural barrier. The other party is using the spatial storm to block the lightning tribulation. Zhao Qinkuan said slowly. Since the lightning tribulation had not disappeared and still belonged to the people of this world, the heavenly Tao would not suppress him. Chapter 432 You need to think of a way to break open the crack in the void and let the heavenly Tao detect Morong Fu's aura and send down the thunder punishment. Zhao Qinkuan concluded. Murong Fu didn't go through the thunder tribulation to build his Tao foundation, but broke through the shackles and entered the earth realm. How was this possible? Gu Mingzhou's brows were tightly knitted, making him even more incredulous. In the past, the master of floating Jade Island used an array to conceal his aura during the lightning tribulation due to his fear of the lightning tribulation. However, he had been trapped in a great world since then and could no longer ascend. He could no longer draw out lightning tribulations. Murong Fu had not gone through the thunder tribulation for such a long time, how could he still attract the thunder tribulation? Gu Mingzhou asked in his heart. Murong Fu has never attracted the thunder tribulation. If his aura exceeds the thunder tribulation, it will naturally attract the thunder tribulation. Zhao Qinkuan explained. So it was like this. Gu Mingzhou suddenly realized. His eyes immediately focused on Murong Fu. I'll give you two options now. Either you surrender or you die. Murong Fu looked at Gu Mingzhou, who was frowning, and thought that he was in a dilemma. Actually, I'm very curious. With Sect Master's current cultivation, you should have ascended a long time ago. Why don't you? Gu Mingzhou didn't reply to Murong Fu. What do you want to say? The smile on Murong Fu's face gradually disappeared as he said in a cold voice. He seemed to be afraid of something. Murong Fu, whose body was emitting a brilliant light, stopped attacking. He stood in the air and stopped attacking. He seemed to be waiting for Gu Mingzhou's answer. I'm just confused. After Sek Master revealed his cultivation, his target wasn't me, but the sky and void. Gu Mingzhou hovered in the air and stood still in the collapsed void. He looked at Murong Fu and said. You've already guessed it. Murong Fu looked at Gu Mingzhou with a dark expression. His hands that were behind his back clenched into fists, and his body shone brightly. It was just a guess, but seeing Sect Master's expression, I think my guess was correct. Gu Mingzhou continued. He had doubts about Zhao Qianquan's words before, but after seeing Murong Fu's performance, he was convinced it was the truth. He didn't say what he guessed, but Murong Fu was flustered. He was obviously afraid. If you agree to retreat, I can let Zhao Gao, Lu Yucheng, and the traps members go. Murong Fu's panicked expression disappeared in an instant. Very good conditions. I'm sorry, but I can't agree to them. Gu Mingzhou caught the panic on Murong Fu's face and immediately made a decision. Before he could finish his sentence, Gu Mingzhou suddenly rose from the sky and instantly approached the huge crack in the void above his head. His long spear suddenly stabbed out. A frighteningly cold aura immediately burst from the spear and instantly pierced the rift constantly spewing out spatial storms. Stop! Murong Fu turned pale with fright. He originally wanted to make a deal with Gu Mingzhou, but he didn't expect the other party to be so decisive. He didn't have time to stop him. The light around Murong Fu's body brightened as he tried to stop Gu Mingzhou. 
but it was too late. When Murong Fu rushed into the sky, the long spear in Gu Mingzhou's hand had already pierced the ferocious and terrifying huge void crack. Buzz! The sky trembled, and the countless spatial storms immediately stopped. The crack in the spear's radiance was cut off, revealing the starry night sky. No! Murong Fu was furious. The speed of his charge was even faster. He instantly approached Gu Mingzhou and swung his fist, bringing with it a brilliant light. Gu Mingzhou didn't want to be exposed. He tapped the air with the tip of his foot and quickly retreated. Murong Fu stepped into the void and stepped on the spatial storm. He directly crossed the spatial crack and attacked Gu Mingzhou again. At this moment, the sky had been torn apart by Gu Mingzhou, revealing the starry night sky that flashed with thunder arcs. Then, countless thunder arcs appeared and quickly spread in all directions. The night sky seemed to be torn apart. The golden light filled the crack and a terrifying aura descended, instantly locking onto Murong Fu. Murong Fu stopped and gave up on chasing Gu Mingzhou. He stood in the air and looked up at the sky. A golden light appeared in the cracks in the void and a large number of terrifying thunderclouds gathered together, rolling endlessly. Lightning flashed and thunder rumbled. The lightning arcs continued to fall, instantly scattering the violent spatial storm around them and directly filling up the shattered void. They carried unparalleled ferocity and suddenly hit Murong Fu. Murong Fu subconsciously wanted to run away. As a result, his body trembled violently, and his brocade robe was torn on the spot. His body bled, and blood splashed into the void. This wasn't a cultivator spell, nor was it a powerful attack. This was the true might of the heavens, the supreme lightning tribulation. Kacha. The thunder arc fell again, and it was obviously thicker, more terrifying, and faster than the previous one. Similarly, it did not give Murong Fu a chance to dodge and instantly landed on his bloody body. A large area of silver light drowned Murong Fu. Terrifying thunder arcs quickly spread across his body, making sizzling sounds. It was as if it was going to burn Murong Fu. Gu Mingzhou's brows were tightly furrowed. He did not dare to stop at all and quickly retreated to avoid the area covered by the thunderclouds to prevent them from getting him in. Otherwise, the lightning tribulation would be extremely terrifying. Just as Zhao Qinkuan had guessed, the huge crack in the void that covered the sky had indeed attracted Murong Fu's thunder tribulation. The third lightning arc fell, but it was no longer golden. Instead, it was red, which made it look very demonic. It also hit Murong Fu's body, which was covered in smoke. His already bloodied chest was instantly torn open, and blood splashed everywhere. Ah! Murong Fu let out a heart-wrenching cry that reverberated through the entire Heavenly Sword sect. His voice rose to the sky and seemed to be comparable to the sound of thunder. A vast amount of spiritual energy poured out from Murong Fu's body, shining brightly and dazzling. He, who was in a sorry state, regained his glory like a god looking up at the thunderclouds in the sky. Again. When I rule this world, I'll destroy your lightning tribulation. Murong Fu had obviously recovered. He forcefully withstood the three lightning bolts and was no longer afraid. He reached out to wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth and shouted arrogantly at the sky thunder. It was domineering and peerless. As if feeling Murong Fu's provocation, the thunderclouds in the sky rolled more violently. Crackling sounds rang out as the lightning spread rapidly. Very quickly, it suppressed all the cracks in the void and engulfed the spatial storm, engulfing the entire Heavenly Sword sect. The thunder arc descended. It was even more terrifying than the first three. It was as thick as a person's waist and was completely blood-red in color, like a condensed blood pillar. It carried a majestic silver light and attacked Murong Fu. Do you really think I'm afraid of you? Murong Fu let out a long roar, his body emitting a brilliant light. He rose to the sky and punched the thunder arc. The deafening sound was deafening. The entire sky seemed to be shaken, the sun and moon lost their light, and the thunderclouds rolled. The silver light mixed with blood-red light instantly drowned Murong Fu. The light around Murong Fu's body dimmed. His skin was torn and his flesh was torn. His body was covered in smoke. Countless thunder arcs spread across his body, 
constantly eroding it and not dissipating for a long time. Chapter, 433 The lightning tribulation seemed to be in a riot, as if it was responding to his provocation and wanted to teach him a lesson. The blinding lightning quickly suppressed the light on Murong Fu's body and entered his body. The crackling sound was continuous, and blood was dripping. Murong Fu's hair was disheveled and he looked extremely miserable. The lightning gradually faded away, and Murong Fu, whose hair was disheveled, kept twitching. Every inch of his skin was still covered in thunder arcs, stimulating his nerves. Although the damage was great, the injury was not fatal, allowing Murong Fu to withstand it again. He gritted his teeth and looked at the thunderclouds above his head with a bitter smile. Huh, come again. I'm still alive, I'm still safe. Murong Fu let out a furious roar and provoked the lightning tribulation. The four lightning tribulations had torn his flesh into pieces, and he was in extreme pain. Most of the pain came from his soul. It was unbearable, but he had to grit his teeth and endure it. He had already overcome four, almost half of them. There were only five more lightning tribulations left before he could successfully transcend the tribulation. Wait until he passes the eighth lightning tribulation, or when he's about to die from the lightning tribulation, then directly enter the lightning tribulation. At this moment, Zhao Qianquan's voice suddenly sounded in Gu Mingzhou's mind. You've studied that formation. Gu Mingzhou instantly understood what Zhao Qianquan meant. With Zhao Qianquan's personality, he would definitely not let Gu Mingzhou take the risk to save Morong Fu. The only possibility was that he wanted him to seize the tribulation. Previously, Floating Jade Island Master had told Gu Mingzhou that if cultivators like them who had been abandoned by the Thunder Tribulation wanted to transcend the Tribulation and ascend, they could only use the array formation created over a hundred years to seize the Thunder Tribulation of others. Although he hesitated at that time, just in case, he still chose to let Zhao Qianquan copy the array formation. In case of emergency. Now that Zhao Qianquan had suddenly opened his mouth and asked him to enter Murong Fu's Lightning Tribulation, his intention was self-evident. That's right, the formation has been specially researched. Now is the best time for you to seize the tribulation. Zhao Qianquan confirmed. I understand. Gu Mingzhou replied. The lightning tribulation could not allow the presence of a second person. Otherwise, it would cause the lightning tribulation to become violent and multiply. After receiving a response, Zhao Qianquan hid and began to focus on setting up the array formation, no longer leaking his aura. While Gu Mingzhou and Zhao Qianquan were talking for a short while, the remaining five thunderclouds rolled down from the sky. In the terrifying thunderclouds, five thick thunder arcs descended from the sky almost at the same time, as if they wanted to destroy all obstacles in front of them. They instantly landed on Murong Fu's body. Boom! Five lightning struck Murong Fu's head, causing him to bleed from his seven orifices. His entire body flickered with blazing lightning as he flew away. Just one bolt of lightning was enough to make Murong Fu look crispy on the outside and tender on the inside, let alone five bolts striking down at the same time. Motherfker! Gu Mingzhou could not help but curse in his heart. Unexpectedly, just as he discussed the tribulation with Zhao Qianquan, the remaining five lightning tribulations descended at the same time. The terrifying lightning tribulation descended with the power of five thunderbolts. Who could block it? Please don't die. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. He instantly flew into the lightning tribulation and caught Morong Fu with his spear. The thunder arc followed the spear and spread to Gu Mingzhou's arm. He felt a bone-biting pain. He circulated the spiritual energy in his body and suppressed it. The vast spiritual energy entered Morong Fu's body. Now that he had stepped into the lightning tribulation, he had to ensure that Morong Fu did not die before he could trigger the lightning tribulation. If Morong Fu's aura was extinguished, the lightning tribulation would definitely dissipate. He's still breathing. When the spiritual energy entered Morong Fu's body, Gu Mingzhou immediately realized Morong Fu was still breathing. Although it was weak, it had not disappeared. The scattered thunderclouds suddenly gathered again, as if they were investigating something. Thunderclouds rolled and moved, causing the entire Heavenly Sword sect to feel highly stifled. Without warning, 
the thunder arc suddenly whistled out from the descending thunderclouds. This time, its target was changed from Murong Fu to Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou, who was not prepared at all, was instantly slashed open and blood spurted out. A large number of thunder arcs wrapped around him, and countless lightning sparks spread around his body. His hair stood on end, and goosebumps appeared all over his body. It hurts. Gu Mingzhou said through gritted teeth. His body retreated into the void, and his heart was entangled by the dense aura of death. His previous speculation was correct. If he rashly seized the lightning tribulation, it would increase the power of the lightning tribulation by several times. He felt the power of the lightning tribulation just now and felt a little afraid. Gu Mingzhou looked at Murong Fu. He had to settle down Murong Fu first, or else the tribulation might fail. He did not care about his injuries and tried to contact Zhao Qinkuan to see if the array formation was successful. A circular formation was guided by Gu Mingzhou's spiritual sense and instantly landed around Murong Fu. The formation was completed, and the void trembled. Murong Fu and the formation disappeared at the same time as if they had disappeared into thin air. As the person who set up the array, Gu Mingzhou could clearly sense the floating array. The preparations were complete. He shook his numb arms and looked at the powerful thunderclouds in the sky. The thunderclouds were gathering, and the blazing lightning flashed like the rolling of the vast sea. It seemed to be nurturing an even more terrifying lightning tribulation. What? Is little brother Gu planning to ascend? At this moment, a devilish voice suddenly sounded in Gu Mingzhou's ear. The red light flew over from the sky and instantly landed at the edge of the lightning tribulation. However, it did not cross the lightning tribulation and the blood light dyed the sky red. Su Feng Yu Even though Gu Mingzhou did not see the person, he could guess who it was. The red light that filled the sky faded away, gradually revealing a handsome man wearing a dark red robe with a straight posture. His jade-like face was white and flawless, and his long eyebrows and phoenix-like eyes carried a demonic charm. It was Su Feng Yu. We haven't seen each other for many days. Are you preparing to transcend the tribulation and ascend? Su Feng Yu placed his hands behind his back and floated in the air outside the lightning tribulation as he smiled wickedly. What are you doing here? Not only did Gu Mingzhou have to be wary of the thunderclouds above his head, but he also had to be wary of Su Feng Yu. Compared to Murong Fu, Su Feng Yu was even more dangerous and terrifying. This venerable self is an old friend of Murong. Now that his life is at stake, this venerable self has to come and see him one last time. Su Feng Yu's gaze swept past Gu Mingzhou and looked at Murong Fu, who was hiding. Are you going to interfere? Gu Mingzhou used his body to block Su Feng Yu's gaze and said coldly. Anyone who gets involved will cause the lightning tribulation to rage. If I go in again, I will lose my life in vain. Su Feng Yu seemed to be certain Gu Mingzhou would die in the lightning tribulation and said with disdain. Gu Mingzhou did not say anything. He knew how terrifying the tribulation was. However, with his cultivation of the fourth rank earth realm, he should be able to resist the suppression of the heavenly Tao. You seem to have forgotten that the lightning tribulation is based on the strength of the person undergoing the tribulation. It can be increased at any time. You violated the rules of the heavenly Tao and rashly interfered with the heavenly tribulation. This has already caused the lightning tribulation to mutate, Su Feng Yu said lightly. It was as if Gu Mingzhou was just a dead man. Gu Mingzhou's expression turned solemn. Chapter, 434 He did not think Su Feng Yu was scaring him because he had already felt the changes in the thunderclouds. It had been some time since the first lightning tribulation descended, but the second tribulation cloud did not descend. Instead, it continued to accumulate power. Under his perception, the huge tribulation clouds above his head rolled in the sky. Moreover, the thunderclouds became larger and larger. Lightning arcs flashed, and low thunder sounds continued to ring out. It was obvious they were nurturing an even greater and more terrifying power. I won't play with you anymore. It's time to clean up those useless little fish. Su Feng Yu looked at the Heavenly Sword sect. The appearance of the lightning tribulation caused the collapsed void to heal. The terrifying spatial storm also disappeared, 
and the Heavenly Sword sect survived the crisis. Even so, the Heavenly Sword sect was still in a state of panic. The flames reached the sky, and the damage caused by the aftershock of the lightning tribulation fell. People fled in panic, wailing incessantly. The most obvious one was the main hall of the Heavenly Sword sect, which was originally the most admired. The main hall was definitely the most dangerous and chaotic place in the entire Heavenly Sword sect. Even Gu Mingzhou, who was high up in the sky, could still see the intense battle in the palace. Sparks kept flickering from the collisions. Large areas of the palace had collapsed, and the flames flickered. The sounds of fighting continued for a long time. It was obvious that Gu Mingzhou and Murong Fu's shift on the battlefield did not stop the fighting in Clearwater Palace. Instead, it became even more intense. What do you mean? Gu Mingzhou's face was a little pale. He already knew what Su Funyu meant, but he still asked. If the other party was really prepared to do that, it would be too terrifying. Don't you understand what I mean? Although these ants are weak, a group of them is still troublesome. Previously, you and that big bird were there, but now it's time to end their lives. Su Fengyu's body suddenly turned into a blood-red light. Like a demon harvesting souls in the middle of the night, he quickly landed on the Heavenly Sword sect. Gu Mingzhou clenched his fists and looked at the red light that quickly landed on the Heavenly Sword sect with an ugly expression. The other party was behind the scene, sitting and reaping the benefits. He was now enveloped by the lightning tribulation and could not escape at all. Floating Jade Island Master alone was definitely not Su Fengyu's match. Floating Jade Island Master and the others would probably be killed. Now, he was somewhat regretful about seizing the tribulation. If he didn't seize the tribulation, he would naturally be able to stop Su Fengyu. Unfortunately, he could only watch helplessly. The second thunder arc finally fell from the tribulation clouds that had been rolling in the sky for a long time. Thunder boomed and lightning flashed. The blood-like electric arc instantly struck Gu Mingzhou's body. He immediately vomited blood and his body was covered in charred smoke. Even the long spear in his hand was struck so hard that it trembled and crackled with lightning. As expected, it had become even more terrifying. The second bolt of lightning turned red, reaching the terrifying level of Murong Fu's last three bolts. Gu Mingzhou wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and looked up at the tribulation clouds with sparkling eyes. When Murong Fu was undergoing his tribulation, the first three lightning bolts were silver, and the last one turned red. But when it's his turn, other than the first lightning bolt which was a red and silver lightning arc. The second one that descended had already turned red. There were also differences between the lightning tribulations. They were divided into silver, red, and purple. Silver lightning was common, red lightning was terrifying, and purple lightning could destroy the world. He had just started his tribulation and had already provoked the red lightning. The last three bolts that descended would probably be the world-destroying purple lightning. No wonder Su Fengyu was so sure that I would die. Gu Mingzhou, who had sensed the abnormality, shook his numb body and continuously released his spiritual energy to heal his injuries as quickly as possible. At the same time, he stared at the thunderclouds in the sky. How powerful was the legendary purple lightning that could destroy the world? At this moment, his fighting spirit was high, and vast spiritual energy continuously gushed out from his body. He held the spear in one hand and walked into the void, heading straight for the tribulation cloud. Su Fengyu had entered the Heavenly Sword sect. Without his help, it would be difficult for everyone to resist. They would be like fish on a chopping board. Therefore, Gu Mingzhou had to overcome the lightning tribulation as soon as possible and successfully seize it. Either that or he failed to transcend the tribulation and died. Since the terrifying Su Fengyu had made his move, there was not much time left for him. As if sensing Gu Mingzhou's provocation, the rolling tribulation cloud did not continue to accumulate power. It directly struck the third heavenly lightning bolt, and a blood-red electric arc instantly struck. The terrifying electric arc instantly struck Gu Mingzhou's raised spear and spread to his body. Blood flowed out of his seven orifices, and the blazing electric light spread to every inch of his skin, turning his entire body black. Ah! The intense pain made Gu Mingzhou roar angrily and roar into the sky. 
the power of this attack was much stronger, and cracks appeared on the spear. He didn't dare to use the spear to resist, so he quickly put it away and used his spiritual energy to eliminate the aftershock in his body. Before Gu Mingzhou could react, the thunder fell again. Before the lightning in front of him could strike Gu Mingzhou, the tribulation clouds rolled again, and another electric arc followed closely behind. Five arcs of lightning descended one after another. The last two arcs of lightning were already flickering with purple light. Surrounded by lightning, Gu Mingzhou felt a little dizzy. Five beams descended at the same time, connecting into one. The lightning bolts fell from the sky like a waterfall of thunder, making a deafening sound. They shattered a large area of the void and smashed toward Gu Mingzhou. It was extremely fast, not giving Gu Mingzhou any time to react. Gu Mingzhou resisted with all his might. He cast all kinds of spells crazily and pushed them to the limit. The Tao foundation in his body directly appeared from his Dantian, emitting a brilliant light and gushing out vast spiritual energy. However, he was instantly struck until his hair was disheveled and blood spurted out. A large area of his body was covered in charred smoke, and his hair was charred and falling off. His appearance was simply unbearable to look at, and he was in a sorry state. In the end, Gu Mingzhou's skin cracked and emitted a burnt smell. Like dry land, it kept falling off. His soul started to throb, and his consciousness started to blur. Cracks appeared on the Tao Foundation that floated out of his body under the fierce five lightning tribulations. The turtle pattern spread along the traces of Gu Mingzhou's previously copied inscription as if they were about to shatter. However, Gu Mingzhou managed to hold on in the end. This was because these five bolts of lightning were not purple lightning. However, it was within his tolerance range, so he could leave behind a chance to live and not be directly killed. He discovered that his Tao Foundation had changed. The cracks in his Tao Foundation that had been struck by the lightning tribulation were formed along the traces of the inscription he had copied earlier. Now, more than half of the runes were engraved on the Tao Foundation, forming a connection with each other. This was something he had racked his brains to do before, but he had actually succeeded at this moment. He could not help but feel a surge of excitement in his heart. Although the crack on the Tao Foundation is a little deep, it should be usable. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. He immediately activated the inscription spell taught by Zhao Qinkuan and tried to break through to the fifth rank earth realm. The runes formed by the cracks flickered with dazzling light, and a huge aura quickly spread out from the Tao Foundation. Not only was it terrifying, but it was also vast. The runes that were formed by the cracks overflowed like a spatial storm, wreaking havoc around the Tao Foundation and crazily plundering the surrounding lightning ripples. He had accomplished what he had been trying to do for a long time. He had broken through the fourth rank earth realm and entered the fifth rank. Chapter 435. Now that the spell formation was about to be completed, it was already connected to the vast universe and could absorb the essence of heaven and earth. The essence of heaven and earth was the origin of the world. Using it to resist lightning was the best choice. Moreover, the essence entered his body and immediately healed his injuries. Gu Mingzhou was excited, but his fighting spirit was even higher. Because he saw the hope of passing the lightning tribulation. Even if there was only the remaining heavenly lightning, it was very likely that the most terrifying world-destroying purple lightning, he still had the confidence to resist. This was the confidence of a five-rank earth realm's cultivator. He would never admit defeat. Gu Mingzhou shouted in his heart, forcing his blood to surge as he looked up at the tribulation clouds in the sky. My life is sad and tragic, but I'm unwilling to be an ant. I will control my own life. Gu Mingzhou roared into the sky again. His surging fighting spirit soared into the sky and he immediately rushed toward the tribulation clouds. He wanted to use his strongest stance to resist the heavenly tribulation, to resist the last bolt of lightning tribulation. The tribulation clouds in the sky rolled even more ferociously, like ancient ferocious beasts roaring as they stepped on the clouds and rebuked all living beings. The purple electric arc as thick as an arm shot out like an ocean of lightning. The storm dodged, and the sky was torn apart. It instantly slashed down at Gu Mingzhou. Break! Gu Mingzhou's entire body burst out with a dazzling light. 
He faced the sky full of lightning and punched forward with unparalleled power. He was like an ancient immortal emperor who was furious and fought against the heavens. Boom! The world rumbled as endless lightning flashed. The fist radiance collided with the lightning, and the lightning that filled the sky instantly swallowed Gu Mingzhou. The sky turned into a sea of lightning, and the lightning was as bright as day. The stars and the moon were dim. Gu Mingzhou roared and fought like a bloody god of war. His head was bleeding and he was heavily injured. His clothes had long been turned into dust, and there was no cloth left on his body. Large patches of dry and cracked skin were constantly falling off, making one's heart palpitate. It was more terrifying than any danger Gu Mingzhou had encountered before. If he was not careful, his body and soul might be destroyed, and his body and Dao might be destroyed. His spiritual sense was highly condensed, and he tried his best to resist and fight for a chance of survival. The Tao Foundation floated above his head, stabilizing his consciousness so that it would not be destroyed by lightning. The essence of heaven and earth gushed out from the Tao Foundation and resisted the surrounding lightning. This was truly a world-destroying battle, extremely terrifying. The rolling lightning seemed to be refining Gu Mingzhou's body. If he could divert his attention now, he could clearly see that the impurities in his body had been expelled and his karma had been severed. Transcending the tribulation was also a form of tempering. Wandering between life and death, tempering thousands of times, expelling impurities, breaking karma, and allowing living beings to achieve true transformation. This was the true meaning of transcending the tribulation. The pain in his body was unbearable, and blood kept flowing out. He was smashed into powder by the whistling lightning and disappeared. At this moment, he was fearless. His glabella glowed, and vast spiritual energy mixed with the essence of heaven and earth continued to resist the lightning. His flesh and blood quickly dried up, his old skin fell off, and his vitality gradually disappeared. His fists kept swinging, bursting with brilliant light, smashing the lightning into the shattered void. When he reached his limit, the lightning that filled the sky began to gradually recede. Like a receding tide, it scattered in all directions and finally disappeared into the void. Only purple thunder arcs were left, constantly attacking Gu Mingzhou's body, as if they wanted to take away Gu Mingzhou's spiritual sense. Sensing the retreat of the lightning, he quickly approached the purple electric arc and punched it with both fists. Heaven and earth shook, and the firmament trembled. The ocean of lightning was shaken and scattered in all directions. The purple thunder arc disintegrated under Gu Mingzhou's full-powered attack and quickly disappeared into the void. The lightning that filled the sky retreated quickly, and the huge tribulation clouds in the sky began to dissipate. In the blink of an eye, it disappeared. The night returned to its usual calm, revealing the stars. The Dao Foundation floating above Gu Mingzhou's head was overflowing with starlight. The essence of heaven and earth healed Gu Mingzhou, causing his body to swell and glow. His flesh and blood quickly recovered, changing his withered and weak state. Gu Mingzhou looked up at the stars in the sky. The corners of his dry lips parted, revealing his white teeth. He had successfully seized the tribulation. Ha! Huh. Gu Mingzhou laughed heartily. He was so excited that he could hardly suppress it. Not only did he transcend the tribulation again, but he also cleansed his body in severed karma. He even took the opportunity to break through to the fifth-rank earth realm and enter a higher realm. How could Gu Mingzhou not be excited? It was simply a double blessing. However, Gu Mingzhou was not happy for long. His gaze landed on the spot where Murong Fu was hidden by the array. Murong Fu disappeared. Gu Mingzhou shook his head helplessly. This was because he could not sense the aura of the array. The last lightning bolt was too terrifying. It brought with it lightning that filled the sky and directly drowned the entire void. Although Murong Fu was covered by the array, he still existed in the void. It was very likely he would be affected by the lightning and turn into dust. He didn't expect Murong Fu to disappear in such a manner. Murong Fu had brought this upon himself. Gu Mingzhou waited for his body to heal in the essence of heaven and earth. He then retracted his Tao Foundation into his body and quickly flew toward the Heavenly Sword Sect. Su Fengyu had already entered the Heavenly Sword Sect for a long time. 
Everyone was probably doomed. Kill them. His shouts shook the sky and his might was vast. Gu Mingzhou could not help but stop in the air and look up into the distance. Under the night sky, countless torches lit up outside the heavenly sword sect, and figures appeared swaying. There were millions of them, stretching for hundreds of miles. They almost surrounded the entire mysterious heavenly sword sect and charged over. This is the England army. Gu Mingzhou's newly changed robe swayed in the wind as he said in surprise. In the midst of the flames, the words England could be vaguely seen on the flag of the army. The million-strong army that suddenly appeared outside the Heavenly Sword sect was the army of the Wu Kingdom and the Underwater Beast Cultivator Alliance. They were wearing armor, and their fighting spirit was high, carrying a murderous intent. Like a dark cloud that covered the sky, it quickly attacked the Heavenly Sword sect. How is that possible? Aren't the England army in Xinjiang City? Gu Mingzhou was still very puzzled when he saw the flag of the British army. Everyone knew the Wu country's army, which had allied with the underwater beast cultivators, was fighting in Xinjiang City, which was on the border. Even if the New World Cultivation Alliance was defeated and hadn't left Xinjiang City. Moreover, Xinjiang City was a million miles away from the Heavenly Sword sect. The England army could easily defeat the army, but it was impossible for them to cross a million miles in two days. Perhaps these armies had been hiding here for a long time. Gu Mingzhou thought of a possibility and felt a chill in his heart. If the million-strong army had been lurking in the Heavenly Sword sect for a long time. It was impossible for First Elder, Fifth Elder, and the others not to know, unless Sect Master Murong Fu deliberately hid it. If that was really the case, then it would be too terrifying. Gu Mingzhou even began to suspect that the two armies that were constantly fighting in Xinjiang City were simply a cover. In fact, when they found out Murong Fu had chosen to cooperate with Su Fengyu, it already meant that the Heavenly Sword sect had lost. We must inform the Fifth Elder and the First Elder as soon as possible. As Gu Mingzhou spoke, he no longer paid attention to the million-strong army charging over from afar and continued to fly toward the Heavenly Sword sect. If the Heavenly Sword sect was conquered, it would be destroyed and the world would be ravaged by the flames of war. If he Chuan personally took care of it. At that time, regardless of who was right or wrong, there would be no hope of establishing a country. Chapter, 436 Gu Mingzhou was very fast. He had entered the fifth rank earth realm. Even though he had just experienced a terrible battle, he still had super combat strength. He arrived at the Heavenly Sword sect in a few breaths and flew directly into the hall. His spiritual sense spread out and he instantly found Su Fengyu's location. Just as Gu Mingzhou had guessed, the first thing Su Fengyu did after entering the Heavenly Sword sect was to ambush Zhao Gao and the others. However, Su Fengyu still failed. Besides floating Jade Island Master, there was another cultivator in the Earth Realm, Jing Wudao. Gu Mingzhou's anxious heart finally relaxed. He saw the heavily injured Zhao Gao, as well as the first elder and fifth elder who was guarding Zhao Gao. Now, everyone was safe and sound. It seemed that Su Fengyu did not manage to act violently after entering the Heavenly Sword sect. Instead, he was entangled by the floating Jade Island Master and Jing Wudao. This was also something Su Fengyu did not expect. He had thought Gu Mingzhou would not be able to stop him in a short period of time since he was trapped in the Lightning Tribulation. The only remaining Earth Realm cultivator in the Heavenly Sword sect, Floating Jade Island Master, could not stop him. Therefore, he charged forward with full confidence and even wanted to kill the Floating Jade Island Master, who might pose a threat. Su Fengyu did not expect although Gu Mingzhou was not in the Heavenly Sword sect, the Earth Realm cultivators were not only the Floating Jade Island Master, but also Jing Wudao. Jing Wudao's spiritual sense should be on par with Zhao Qianquan's at his peak. Even though it caused Jing Wudao's divine soul to be severely injured previously. However, with long term nourishment and the continuous improvement of Gu Mingzhou's cultivation, he had the strength of a cultivator in the earth realm. Because Jing Wudao possessed a spiritual sense, as long as he did not exert his full cultivation, no one would be able to sense that he was a terrifying existence that was no weaker than a cultivator of the earth realm. It was precisely because of this that Su Fengyu had fallen here. 
he did not expect when he was about to kill the floating Jade Island Master, this existence with a divine soul would suddenly jump out and possess the same strength as him. This was not Su Fengyu's first time meeting Jing Wudao. Back then, in the depths of the freezing cold land, when Gu Mingzhou had no way to escape, it was Jing Wudao who blocked Su Fengyu's fatal attack and allowed Gu Mingzhou to escape. However, the two of them only met for a moment and did not exchange many blows before they parted ways. Therefore, Su Fengyu did not know much about Jing Wudao. He only knew that he was related to Gu Mingzhou. It was precisely because Jing Wudao was related to Gu Mingzhou that Su Fengyu had no choice but to be cautious. He temporarily gave up on attacking and began to deal with the joint attack of floating Jade Island Master and Jing Wudao. He wanted to test Jing Wudao's strength. Gu Mingzhou's sudden rise from a powerless cultivator to a cultivator of the Earth Realm who could shake Su Fengyu made Su Fengyu's heart palpitate. He couldn't help but worry about the extent of the improvement of the soul body that was originally stronger than Gu Mingzhou and had disappeared with him. Su Fengyu was even more surprised that Gu Mingzhou, who he had determined would not survive, had successfully seized the tribulation and returned before he could probe Jing Wudao's depth. Gu Mingzhou's speed was very fast. When he noticed Su Fengyu, floating Jade Island Master, and Jing Wudao fighting each other, he did not stop at all. Instead, he directly flew past them. He instantly landed in front of Zhao Gao, who was surrounded by the crowd. Gu Mingzhou. Zhao Gao shouted excitedly. Earlier, Murong Fu had suddenly erupted with terrifying cultivation. Then, he fought with Gu Mingzhou in the heavenly void, causing countless strange noises. It was difficult to tell whether he was dead or alive. Zhao Gao had always been worried about him. Now that he saw Gu Mingzhou was fine, he was immediately excited. Little brother Gu. The first elder and the fifth elder also shouted. He seemed to have something he wanted to ask, but he was afraid to ask. Don't worry, Murong Fu no longer exist in this world. Gu Mingzhou knew what the first elder and the fifth elder wanted to ask, so he said with a smile on his face. What he meant was that Murong Fu had died. The fifth elder and the first elder became excited at the same time. Thank you for your help, Brother Gu. The fifth elder hurriedly cupped his hands and bowed deeply to Gu Mingzhou, thanking him. Thank you for your help, Brother Gu. First elder followed closely behind and bowed. Without Gu Mingzhou, the fifth elder and the great elder would have been doomed if they wanted to fight Morong Fu alone. Gu Mingzhou waved his hand, indicating that there was no need to thank him. Sect Master Zhao, are you all right? He walked toward Zhao Gao and asked. Don't worry, I won't take my last breath until I get through this calamity. On the other hand, you're unkempt and have suffered a lot. Zhao Gao said with a pale face. Although Gu Mingzhou had changed into new clothes, his hair and face were still burned by the thunder. Zhao Gao subconsciously thought it had something to do with Murong Fu. This was caused by the lightning tribulation just now. Gu Mingzhou stood up and explained. He looked at Su Fengyu, floating Jade Island Master, and Jing Wudao, who were engaged in a fierce battle in midair. He knew there would not be any problems for the time being, so he turned to Fifth Elder. When I came back just now, I saw a million England army outside the Heavenly Sword sect. I'm afraid they will soon attack the Heavenly Sword sect. I hope the two of you can go and stop them. Gu Mingzhou cupped his hands and said. What? When the fifth elder and the first elder heard the news, they were just as surprised as Gu Mingzhou at that time. The weak Xiao Gao was also very shocked. I should have guessed it long ago. Since Murong Fu lured Su Fengyu, how could he not have left behind a foreshadowing? Immediately close the city gates and mobilize the army to prepare for resistance. He stood up shakily from the ground and said. I'll go right away. First Elder Murong Kuang took the lead and flew out of the hall. Brother Gu, now that the Sky Sword sect is in danger, I won't accompany you here. Fifth Elder Murong Yen was about to leave. I'll go with you. Zhao Gao suddenly called out to Murong Yen. Sect Master Zhao, your body. Gu Mingzhou quickly said. I've already informed Jin Gang. The reinforcements from the trap will arrive at dawn at the earliest. Before that, we have to defend the Heavenly Sword sect. 
Zhao Gao walked to Murong Yan's side and said. The situation was urgent. Fifth Elder Murong Yan nodded at Gu Mingzhou. Without saying anything else, he grabbed Zhao Gao's arm and quickly left. As the fifth elder left, the cultivators who were originally standing there also chased after the fifth elder. Gu Mingzhou looked worried. It would be very difficult for these defeated soldiers to defend the Heavenly Sword sect and resist the million-strong England army and the underwater demon cultivators. If the Heavenly Sword sect failed, the people would definitely be plunged into misery. However, at this point, Gu Mingzhou could not go and help because there were more important things that he needed to deal with. He turned around and looked at Su Fengyu, who was facing the joint attack of floating Jade Island Master and Jing Wudao. His gaze immediately burst out with coldness. Chapter, 437 Su Fengyu, who seemed to have sensed Gu Mingzhou's gaze and was facing the floating Jade Island Master and Jing Wudao, suddenly waved his palm and pushed the two of them away. He immediately retreated and rose into the air, turning to look at Gu Mingzhou. You really made me look at you in a new light. You actually survived the terrifying world-destroying purple lightning. However, you can be this lord stepping stone. Endless blood-red light burst out from Su Fengyu's body and soared into the sky, instantly enveloping the entire hall. Su Fengyu, who was originally a hundred meters away, suddenly disappeared into thin air. He suddenly appeared in front of Gu Mingzhou. His eyes were cold, and his right hand reached out like a claw. Give me your soul. The red light instantly enveloped Gu Mingzhou. A powerful pressure filled the hall and locked onto him. What? Gu Mingzhou exclaimed. The moment he was enveloped by the blood light, he felt the blood flowing in his body go berserk. The pressure that descended suppressed his Tao foundation at the same time preventing him from circulating his spell techniques and activating his essence force to resist. This was too terrifying. He could not help but recall the scene of hundreds of rogue cultivators exploding. A huge aura of death immediately filled Gu Mingzhou's heart. He wants to detonate my bloodline and absorb my blood essence. Gu Mingzhou was shocked and instantly knew Su Fengyu's motive. The powerful pressure caused him to be unable to activate his spiritual energy. He could only watch helplessly as Su Fengyu's palm slapped his chest. Gu Mingzhou roared angrily, his tone filled with unwillingness. He had just successfully seized the tribulation and stepped into the fifth rank earth realm. He should have been above Su Fengyu. He did not expect he would turn into nutrients and become a stepping stone for the enemy before he could even fight back. This was hard for Gu Mingzhou to accept. The veins all over his body bulged as he forcefully withstood the pressure. He circulated his essence force with great difficulty, wanting to fight against it. However, he was still a step too late. He had just activated his essence force when Su Fengyu's sharp palm had already approached and instantly slapped Gu Mingzhou's chest. A bright purple light suddenly shot out from behind Su Fengyu. It was so fast that a palm-sized little person appeared above Gu Mingzhou's head almost instantly. Endless purple light fell from the sky, blocking Su Fengyu's fierce attack and then enveloping Gu Mingzhou. The violent blood in Gu Mingzhou's body instantly calmed down. Even the powerful pressure was isolated by the purple light. Su Fengyu's right hand broke through the purple light and continued to grab at Gu Mingzhou. Get lost! Gu Mingzhou roared into the sky. The purple light was shattered by Su Fengyu's fierce palm, but the short moment he had fought for was enough. Vast spiritual energy soared into the sky, and a huge wave of air swept out. When Su Fengyu's fierce attack was only half an inch away from Gu Mingzhou's chest, Gu Mingzhou finally completely removed his white robe. He reached out his right hand and instantly grabbed Su Fengyu's forearm. A faint golden halo appeared on Gu Mingzhou's hand. It came from the essence of the talisman on the Tao Foundation. He directly deflected Su Fengyu's attack and punched out with his left hand. Su Fengyu's handsome face changed slightly. He subconsciously waved his left fist to block. Bang! The two fists collided in midair, and a wave of air whistled out, sweeping towards the left and right of the two of them. It actually directly collapsed the palaces on both sides, raising waves of dust. Su Fengyu flipped in the air, broke free from Gu Mingzhou's right hand, and retreated. Die! 
At this moment, the floating Jade Island Master had already arrived. The golden feathered wings on his back suddenly spread out, bringing with it the sound of the wind. In an instant, he appeared behind Su Feng Yu, blocking his path of retreat. The golden feather sword in his hand slashed out. The sword was sharp, and it directly slashed a pitch black crack in the void as it slashed toward Su Feng Yu. Humph! Su Feng Yu let out a cold snort and slapped out with his palm. With a muffled sound, the seemingly mighty golden feather sword was blocked by Su Feng Yu. Go to hell! A fierce light shot out from Su Feng Yu's eyes. His right hand, which had just blocked the golden feather sword, swung out once again, instantly slapping the chest of floating Jade Island Master. Blood spurted out of floating Jade Island Master's mouth as his body flew backward. With a bang, the palace wall was knocked down, raising dust. The distance between the two was too close. Floating Jade Island Master did not have time to block before he was struck by Su Fen Yu. Without waiting for Su Fen Yu to catch his breath, a sharp sword as thin as a cicada's wing slashed down. Jing Wudao rushed over and unleashed the power unique to his divine soul. He suppressed the software sword, causing the sword to buzz and shine with a cold light. How can a light of a firefly dare to compete with the bright moon? Su Feng Yu said disdainfully. His left fist carried a force of 10,000 jin as he punched out. Previously, he had failed to win against floating Jade Island Master and Jing Wudao because he was testing the waters. Now that Gu Mingzhou had joined in, there was no time to continue probing. He had to go all out and kill the other party as quickly as possible. The flexible sword was blocked by Su Feng Yu's fist and could not advance an inch. However, Jing Wudao's reaction speed was clearly faster than floating Jade Island Masters. Seeing that his attack was blocked, he immediately retreated, not giving Su Feng Yu any time to counterattack. You want to leave? However, Su Feng Yu did not intend to let Jing Wudao off. He snorted coldly again. Before he finished speaking, Su Feng Yu instantly closed in on Jing Wudao and punched out with his right hand. Jing Wudao's expression was solemn. As he retreated, he drew his sword to block, wanting to block Su Feng Yu's attack. The moment the flexible sword came into contact with Su Feng Yu's fist wind, a crisp sound rang out. The sword was immediately covered in cracks and shattered. Su Feng Yu's fist did not stop in the slightest. It went straight for the dragon and instantly smashed into Jing Wudao's chest. Blood spurted out from Jing Wudao's mouth and turned into specks of light in the air. However, Jing Wudao was not sent flying. After spurting out fresh blood, Jing Wudao staggered into the void. He stabilized his body and quickly retreated, wanting to pull away from Su Feng Yu. Su Feng Yu's cultivation was too terrifying. The speed of each attack far exceeded that of others. The closer he was to him, the more dangerous it was. I said that you can't leave. Su Feng Yu caught up to Jing Wudao once again and was about to punch out with his right fist. Gu Mingzhou finally arrived at a breakneck speed. His flaming spear came at Su Feng Yu. Su Feng Yu's expression changed slightly. Gu Mingzhou's spear had actually made him sense the aura of death. He could only give up on attacking Jing Wudao and turn around to meet Gu Mingzhou's attack with a punch. Cracks appeared in the void. Gu Mingzhou and Su Feng Yu took two steps back at the same time. Their strength was equal. Jing Wudao's right hand extended diagonally downwards and grabbed an ordinary sword. Spiritual energy surged out as he stared at Su Feng Yu, ready to attack at any moment. Floating Jade Island Master returned. Although his hair and face were unkempt, they still emitted a dazzling golden light. He spread his wings and was like a god descending to the mortal world. He held the golden feather sword and stood opposite Jing Wudao from afar, forming a three-way encirclement. They surrounded the retreating Su Feng Yu. Floating Jade Island Master, Jing Wudao, and Gu Mingzhou, the three strongest existences, surrounded Su Feng Yu. Chapter, 438 You've broken through to the fifth rank earth realm. Su Feng Yu didn't seem to care about being surrounded by three masters. Instead, he stared at Gu Ming and said. Gu Mingzhou's spear attack just now had made Su Feng Yu feel the aura of death. It was too terrifying. Su Feng Yu was a world cultivator, 
a favored child of the heavenly Tao. He had reached the peak 10,000 years ago and claimed to be the number one person under the heavenly Tao, an incomparably supreme existence. Su Fenyu found it hard to believe that he could sense the aura of death from Gu Mingzhou's attack. The only explanation was that Gu Mingzhou had broken through the shackles again and advanced to a higher realm. Regardless of whether Su Fenyu believed it or not, Gu Mingzhou's actions convinced him completely. Void Attraction Gu Mingzhou, who was surrounded by the floating Jade Island Master and Jing Wudao, did not answer Su Fenyu's question. Instead, he shouted coldly in the void. A green platform appeared. A hundred meter wide foundation platform soared into the sky and floated in the sky. It spewed out golden light and enveloped Su Fenyu and the other four. The power of essence was extremely heavy. It was like a regional wall that imprisoned the void and isolated it from the outside world. Su Fenyu's brows were almost twisted into a fried dough twist, causing his originally handsome face to appear somewhat ferocious and terrifying. From the essence of power that sprayed out from the sky, it could be seen that Gu Mingzhou's cultivation had increased. Gu Mingzhou was trying to restrict Su Fenyu's movements to prevent him from escaping. Su Fenyu came and went easily, and this had a huge impact on the upcoming battle. Therefore, Gu Mingzhou had no choice but to seal this place first. With the confinement of the essential power, if Su Fenyu was no match for it, it was completely impossible for him to leave. This was what worried Su Fenyu. Brother Gu, have you really broken through the fourth rank earth realm and advanced to a higher realm? Floating Jade Island Master looked at Gu Mingzhou excitedly. Gu Mingzhou nodded in response to Floating Jade Island Master's question. Ha, huh, there's hope for us to survive the Great Tribulation. Floating Jade Island Master said excitedly. He didn't contact any cultivators of a higher level. He didn't know the realms above the fourth rank earth realm. The stronger Gu Mingzhou was, the higher the possibility of them defeating Su Fengyu. Jing Wudao also smiled. It was obvious Gu Mingzhou's rapid increase in cultivation had made him very satisfied. Master Qin, who had just helped Gu Mingzhou resist Su Fengyu's terrifying bloodlight, was shaking his body when he learned that Gu Mingzhou had entered the fifth rank earth realm. He seemed to be happy. Master Qin did not say anything this time. He just floated quietly above Gu Mingzhou's head and treated his injuries to prevent Su Fengyu from drawing Gu Mingzhou's blood again. In contrast to the excitement of floating Jade Island Master, Jing Wudao, and Master Qin, Su Fengyu's eyes immediately narrowed, and his face was extremely gloomy. Do you think you can compete with me like this? You overestimate yourself. Su Fengyu said coldly. The blood red light on Su Fengyu's body shone brightly, reflecting the red sky. It quickly condensed in his right hand. In the blink of an eye, it turned into a red spear as if it was condensed from blood. It was bright red and its blood chi soared into the sky. When the regional wall was broken, the two realms were connected. Countless mighty people came to this realm to besiege our race. How many cultivators of the fifth rank earth realm were there? He looked at the blood red spear in his hand, and his face revealed endless nostalgia as he slowly said. The long spear seemed to understand Su Fenyu's words. Jing Wudao's gaze was extremely glaring, like a blood-red sun that covered the sky, and the red light it emitted was even more dazzling. Su Fenyu stood there like a demon emperor that had appeared. He had the aura of transcending heaven and earth. Especially the spear in his hand. Although it was similar to Gu Mingzhou's spear, it was obviously more ferocious and smelled of blood. It emitted a demonic light as if it wanted to devour the souls of all living beings, causing people's hearts to waver. Kill. Floating Jade Island Master Island was agitated by the spear, and he let out a furious roar as he attacked first. The Golden Feather Sword once again burst out with a dazzling light, trying to resist the blood light that filled the sky. You overestimate yourself. Su Fengyu slashed out with the spear in his hand. The tip of the spear brought with it endless blood light as it whistled out and instantly collided with the golden feather sword. The spear and the sword collided with a loud noise. The void shook with endless light as if it wanted to pierce through the sky. Floating Jade Island Master was no match for him. He immediately spat out blood and retreated into the void. 
Su Feng Yu summoned the blood spear, and it became even more terrifying. With just one thrust, floating Jade Island Master Island was heavily injured, and he spat out blood as he retreated. Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao attacked at the same time without waiting for Su Feng Yu to initiate the attack. Jing Wudao was the closest to Su Feng Yu, and the sword in his hand slashed down. There were no gorgeous sword techniques, nor were there any strange slashes. This ordinary looking sharp sword emitted a terrifying sharpness in Jing Wudao's hand as it attacked Su Feng Yu. The long spear in Gu Mingzhou's hand, which was burning with monstrous flames, once again shone with a terrifying spear light. It pierced through the void and stabbed toward Su Feng Yu with an invincible aura. The sword and spear attacked at the same time, carrying the power to destroy everything. It was extremely terrifying. However, Su Feng Yu was still calm and composed, as if he did not care at all. The blood spear waved, and the sharp light that shot out shattered Jing Wudao's sharp sword. Then, it collided with Gu Mingzhou's spear. A deafening collision sounded, and sparks flew in all directions. Su Feng Yu and Gu Mingzhou were once again in a draw. Their spears clashed, and it was difficult to determine who was better. Immediately after, Su Feng Yu's blood spear shook the spear away and stabbed at Gu Mingzhou again. Gu Mingzhou's expression was grim. He did not dare to be careless at all. He immediately waved his spear to block the blood spear. Sharp sounds of weapons clashing rang out continuously, and a large area of the void began to shatter and collapse. It seemed like a simple collision, but each attack contained extremely terrifying power. Jing Wudao attacked once again. A sharp sword had appeared in his hand at some point in time. It emitted a sharp edge as it streaked across the void, taking the opportunity to appear behind Su Feng Yu. Break! ING Wudao let out a furious roar and directly executed his strongest sword move, wanting to give Su Feng Yu a fatal blow. Retreat! Su Feng Yu sensed something. The blood spear that was colliding with the spear immediately shook off the spear and turned around to meet Jing Wudao. The blood spear carried a peerless power and displayed its incomparably sharp posture. It directly pierced through the sharp sword and instantly pierced through Jing Wudao's left shoulder without stopping. Blood splattered from Jing Wudao's left shoulder. Brother Wudao! Gu Mingzhou shouted. He quickly approached Su Feng Yu and stabbed his spear down. If I had a divine artifact, how could you hurt me? Jing Wudao said helplessly. Even if it's a divine artifact, I can break it. Su Feng Yu sent Jing Wudao flying and met the incoming spear in time. The sound of spears colliding rang out once again. This time, Su Feng Yu staggered back a few steps from the impact before he finally stopped. Before Su Feng Yu could recover from his shock, Gu Mingzhou's spear stabbed down. He was completely enraged. Jing Wudao's injury was something he found hard to accept, and his entire person went berserk. What Gu Mingzhou could not tolerate the most was the people around him getting hurt. Gu Mingzhou shouted angrily. He didn't have the slightest bit of defense left. He came up with an invincible posture, suppressing Su Feng Yu until he didn't have the strength to retaliate. Chapter 439 A pitch black spear shadow appeared out of thin air and shot out from the tip of the spear. It covered the sky and covered the earth as it attacked Su Feng Yu. This was the first time Gu Mingzhou had performed a spear execution after reaching the fifth rank earth realm. The spear light was even mixed with the power of essence. Although it was only a small amount, it increased the power of these spear shadows by several times. It was sharper, fiercer, and more ferocious than before. Small tricks. Su Feng Yu's face was filled with caution as he roared angrily. The spear that was emitting a brilliant bloody light swept out like a bloody whip, swinging past Su Feng Yu's body. Countless blood-red lights burst out and actually shattered the pitch-black spear light that filled the sky. Gu Mingzhou launched a second attack, his spear sweeping through everything. He gathered all the spear shadows in front of the spear tip and condensed them on the spear, causing the spear to shatter the void. It passed through the spatial storm that poured out and approached Su Feng Yu. Su Feng Yu sensed the danger and his expression was extremely gloomy. The blood spear emitted a dazzling blood light and met the long spear. The spear collided without making any sound. 
This was no longer a simple clash of weapons, but a battle of terrifying power. It produced a deafening sound that shook the entire sky. The void shattered and spread out from the point of collision. It penetrated the area covered by the Dow Foundation and swept across a radius of 100 miles. The entire sky of the Heavenly Sword sect began to collapse. Fortunately, with Gu Mingzhou's Dao Foundation, the power of essence that burst out suppressed the violent spatial storm, preventing the crisis caused by Murong Fu from happening. Even so, the unparalleled collision force instantly destroyed the hall under Gu Mingzhou and Su Fengyu, turning it into ruins. The fifth rank Earth realm is nothing more than this. A cold smile appeared on Su Fengyu's face. After blocking Gu Mingzhou's crazy attack again, he was no longer afraid. The so-called world cultivators are only a so, so A dazzling golden light suddenly lit up behind Su Fengyu, and the golden feather wings whistled. Floating Jade Island Master took advantage of Su Fengyu's focus on fighting Gu Mingzhou. Relying on his own speed, he instantly flew behind Su Fengyu and slashed his back with a cold light. His red robe was torn apart, and his skin and flesh were torn apart. Blood spurted out. A terrifying and hideous wound appeared on Su Fengyu's back. It was a full four inches long and deep into his bones. When the wound split open, one could even see the white bones. Island Floating Jade Island Master's sneak attack was clearly using all his strength to cut Su Fengyu open from the back. Damn it! Su Fengyu let out a painful groan, and his expression became ferocious. Floating Jade Island Master's sneak attack was too vicious, causing him great damage. Su Fengyu turned around and brandished his blood spear, striking the right wing of Floating Jade Island Master. The huge golden wings were shattered by the blood spear and turned into nothingness. The whistling blood spear didn't stop at all and continued to lash at Floating Jade Island Master's body. Floating Jade Island Master flew out like an arrow that had just left the bow and crashed into the collapsed walls. The earth trembled slightly, and dust rose everywhere. Go to hell. Su Fengyu was extremely furious. His monstrous killing intent filled the sky. He stepped on a blood red light and quickly flew toward the place where Floating Jade Island Master had fallen. He stabbed out with his blood spear. Floating Jade Island Master's sneak attack had completely infuriated Su Fengyu, causing him to have the intention to kill Floating Jade Island Master. Gu Mingzhou naturally wouldn't let him do that. When Su Fengyu raised his spear, he stabbed it again. Countless sparks flew from the spear. Su Fengyu's attack was stopped. He could only temporarily give up on chasing after Floating Jade Island Master and turn to Gu Mingzhou. Su Fengyu's momentum was like a rainbow. His cultivation quickly rose to the fifth rank earth realm, which was no weaker than Gu Mingzhou's. Then, he waved his blood spear and threw it at Gu Mingzhou. Su Fengyu was obviously going all out. Floating Jade Island Master's sneak attack had severely injured him. He did not dare to delay any longer and was prepared to end the battle quickly. The blood spear pierced through the void with unparalleled power, as if it was going to pierce through the sky. The sky shook, and a huge red hand materialized out of thin air and slapped toward Gu Mingzhou. This was not a simple spell, but a powerful killing move. It perfectly displayed Su Fengyu's terrifying extent. Even the heavens and the earth trembled. It carried an unparalleled might and was bound to kill the other party. Gu Mingzhou did not expect the injured Su Fengyu could unleash a strength weaker than the fifth rank earth realm. Although he had succeeded in seizing the tribulation, he was suppressed by the heavenly Tao and could not exert the terrifying strength of the fifth rank earth realm. How could he resist Su Fengyu who was going all out? Unable to retreat, he could only receive it head on. With nowhere to retreat, he brandished his long spear, creating a sky full of spear shadows to resist the blood spear. With the support of the spiritual energy, he did not use any technique. He only used the simplest method to smash his fist in front of him to meet the blood red hand. Fist and palm collided, spear and spear clashed. It burst forth with peerless power, dazzling and eye catching, and the chi waves surged into the sky. The sky above the heavenly sword sect started to shake. It was as if the end of the world had descended. Gu Mingzhou roared into the sky and rushed out of the brilliant light. 
the huge collision caused his entire body to be stained with blood, making him look like a bloody man. Even so, he was still fearless. As soon as he rushed out of the airwave, he stepped on the shattered void and passed through the spatial storm. He waved his unyielding fist and attacked Su Fenyu. Su Fenyu also struck out with his palm. Palm wind against fist radiance. It once again produced a huge wave of air that swept in all directions. It almost destroyed everything. The entire hall of the Heavenly Sword sect was razed to the ground. The surrounding spatial storm was engulfed by the terrifying airwaves and was destroyed on the spot. Kill. Gu Mingzhou's eyes were bloodshot as he roared angrily. Completely disregarding his injuries, he swung his fist again and engaged in close combat with Su Fenyu, punching and kicking. The two of them continued to fight, all the way to the sky, straight into the clouds, it was difficult to tell who was who. The terrifying spatial storm that burst out from the shattered void could not affect them. Instead, it dissipated under the intense collision. Blood surged out. Gu Mingzhou was no match for Su Fenyu. His lower abdomen was pierced and torn, and his intestines were almost flowing out. Gu Mingzhou was still holding on. His messy hair hung loosely behind his back, and blood kept flowing from all over his body. His footsteps were a little unsteady, but he was still fighting bravely. In the end, your efforts are futile. Su Fenyu was also in a very sorry state, but it was obvious that he was in a much better state. This venerable self is a world god, the number one person in this world. And you're just an ant. How can you fight me? Su Fenyu was constantly stirring Gu Mingzhou's mind, trying to destroy his unyielding will. So what if you're a world god? I can even destroy this world. Gu Mingzhou's gaze was firm as he looked straight at Su Fenyu. An ant trying to shake a tree, overestimating his own strength. Su Fenyu's gaze became even sharper. Not far away from where the void was shattered, an explosion suddenly sounded, and a bloody light surged into the sky. The collision between the long spear and the blood spear ended. Similarly, they did not separate. A dazzling light burst out, illuminating the entire night. The two streaks of red light separated. Gu Mingzhou retreated and grabbed the spear first. He swung it in the air and stabbed at Su Fenyu. Su Fenyu extended his hand to receive the blood spear and brandished it fearlessly. Golden light flashed, and Jing Wudao took the opportunity to attack. Chapter, 440 He held floating Jade Island Master's golden feather sword in his hand and shot out sword lights that filled the sky. He pierced through the spatial storm that filled the sky and stabbed toward Su Fenyu. Ants, get lost. Su Fenyu said disdainfully. The blood spear stabbed out, and the sword light that filled the sky was instantly destroyed. The sharp blood spear collided with the golden feather sword. An earth-shaking explosion sounded once again. Before the aftershock could spread, Jing Wudao had already swung his sword once again. The sword instantly wrapped around the blood spear. A long clashing sound rang out, and the blood spear continuously let out a low hum. However, it was unable to break free from the control of the golden feather sword. Gu Mingzhou Jing Wudao gripped his sword with both hands and used all his strength to control the violently trembling sword hilt. He restrained the blood spear and roared angrily. This was the best opportunity to kill Su Fenyu. The blood spear was restrained, making it impossible for Su Fenyu to escape. Attacking at this time would definitely cause damage. At the same time Jing Wudao spoke, Gu Mingzhou used all his strength and released all his might as he stabbed his spear at Su Fenyu. This opportunity was very important to him. It gave him the possibility of defeating or even killing Su Fenyu. The spear light arrived in the blink of an eye. Su Fenyu did not have the time to react at all. The spear instantly pierced through his chest. The flames of the spear burned and instantly scorched Su Fenyu's chest causing the wound to be unable to heal. It was extremely ferocious. Ah! Su Fengyu let out a furious roar. Even in the Great War 10 years ago, he had never suffered such a defeat when he was besieged by many human cultivators in the Heaven Realm. He found it hard to accept that he had been seriously injured one after another. 
this venerable self will definitely burn your bones and scatter your ashes. He directly abandoned the blood spear and no longer entangled himself with Jing Wudao. He reached out his hands at the same time, trying to pull the spear out of his chest through the raging flames. The essence of the spiritual energy was instantly added to the spear. Gu Mingzhou raised his arms. The long spear directly slashed across Su Fengyu's chest, tearing open his skin and flesh, and his internal organs could be vaguely seen. Su Fengyu was once again severely injured, and his entire face was pale. Gu Mingzhou admits that you are very strong, but the final winner is me. Su Fengyu said coldly as blood flowed from his body. Where did you get your confidence from? You were just lucky enough to survive. Today, I'll send you back to your clan. Gu Mingzhou directly passed through the void crack and stepped on the terrifying storm to kill him. Flames surged into the sky, and the spear's radiance flourished. At the same time, Jing Wudao attacked again. He brandished the golden feather sword and burst out with a dazzling golden light. He was like a heavenly golden immortal, flying in the air. Faced with the simultaneous attacks of the two experts, Su Fengyu suddenly raised his head and laughed loudly. No matter how hard you try, the final victor of this battle is still me. Su Fengyu's pale face suddenly became ferocious, revealing his skinny arms, which seemed out of place with his body. His withered arms suddenly crossed in front of his chest and he roared toward the sky. As Su Fengyu roared, the million strong army attacking the Heavenly Sword sect suddenly exploded without any warning. Blood mist spread out and turned into streaks of blood light that shot toward Su Fengyu. The self-destruction did not stop there. It was like a violent wind sweeping through the million-strong army. Their lives were destroyed one after another, turning into a bloody mist that flew toward Su Fengyu. Su Fengyu displayed his terrifying talent. It didn't give any living beings any power to resist. Their bodies died and their Tao vanished, turning into nutrients for Su Fengyu. Master Qin. Gu Mingzhou had no choice but to ask Master Qin for help. Su Fengyu had once used this talent on Gu Mingzhou in an attempt to draw Gu Mingzhou's blood. In the end, it was blocked by Master Qin who suddenly appeared. In the face of Su Fengyu's large-scale slaughter of living beings and the absorption of their bloodline power, the only person who had a chance of stopping him was Master Qin. Master Qin flew out from Gu Mingzhou's chest. He transformed into a giant that towered into the clouds. He shook off the purple light and enveloped the continent, trying to block the blood mist. It was a pity that they were unable to isolate the sacrifice. There were living beings that constantly self-destructed, providing blood to Su Fengyu. Gu Mingzhou was greatly disappointed. He waved his spear and attacked, wanting to kill Su Fengyu directly and eliminate this crisis from the root. Jing Wudao rushed in front of Su Fengyu, and the golden feather sword burst out with a dazzling light as it slashed down at Su Fengyu. The killing intent was dense and the fighting spirit was high. Su Fengyu waved his fists and attacked Jing Wudao. The seemingly withered arm burst forth with terrifying power. Not only did it block Jing Wudao's attack, but it even shattered the golden feather sword. The aftershock of the violent collision caused the sky to completely shatter. A terrifying spatial storm whistled, and Su Fengyu and Jing Wudao were sucked into the spatial rift almost at the same time. Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate at all. He raised his spear and followed the two of them into the spatial rift at the same time. The chaotic space that filled the sky was gray. Terrifying spatial storms continued to churn, wreaking havoc and destroying everything. Jing Wudao, who had lost his golden feather sword, was currently engaged in close combat with Su Fengyu. The entire primal chaos began to shake. Storms were constantly being dissipated by the aftershocks. Gu Mingzhou brandished his spear and charged at Su Fengyu. At this moment, there was no way out. Only by killing Su Fengyu could they avoid the great disaster. He took advantage of the intense battle between Su Fengyu and Jing Wudao. His spear burned with monstrous flames and pierced through the endless storm. With an invincible posture, he instantly stabbed his opponent's back. Blood splattered everywhere. The sharp spear pierced through the hideous wound and stabbed into the beating heart. The fire spread through Su Fengyu's body and burned his chest. Su Fengyu's internal organs were destroyed, 
and his life force was almost cut off. However, his shriveled right arm suddenly emitted a dazzling light that directly shook Jing Wudao away and turned to bombard the spear. An invincible and terrifying power instantly swept through the world, overturning all the spatial storms, and directly sending Gu Mingzhou flying backward, spitting blood. Damn it! Su Fengyu was furious. The burning flames in his chest continuously consumed his vitality. Even the terrifying him was helpless. He could only continuously circulate his spiritual energy to suppress the flames. Soon, Su Fengyu's entire body was burning. The flames that were augmented by the power of essence were too terrifying and could burn everything. As a prodigy of the heavenly Tao, Su Fengyu was unable to stop him. I want to bury the entire world. Su Fengyu gave up on suppressing the flames and roared at the sky. Faint blue flames rose from Su Fengyu's body. He directly burned his soul and chose to give up on himself. He intended to destroy the entire world and let billions of living beings die with him. Gu Mingzhou's expression was extremely dispirited, revealing a look of despair. Su Fengyu, who was burning his soul, was too terrifying. The dark blue flames emitted from his body instantly turned into ashes and disappeared even if the spatial storm came into contact with him. Su Fengyu stepped into the collapsed void in the distance, wanting to destroy that world before his body self-destructed. Jing Wudao and Gu Mingzhou looked at each other from afar, their eyes filled with despair. They could not stop Su Fengyu at all. That was too terrifying. Anyone who came into contact with him would be burned to ashes. Did we fail? Gu Mingzhou looked unwilling. Just like what Su Fengyu had said earlier, no matter how hard they tried, no matter how hard they struggled, it was ultimately difficult to change the final outcome. At this moment, a dazzling purple light suddenly flew out from the collapsed void crack and instantly collided with Su Fengyu, who was wrapped in dark blue flames. Countless purple splendor enveloped Su Fengyu, causing him to stop in his tracks. The chaotic space trembled, and the storm turned into dust. Brother Wu Dao. Do it. Master Qin finally spoke. This was the only sentence he had shouted since the start of the battle. Chapter, 441. He Chuan was cultivating in the palace. His spiritual consciousness spread out as if it had touched a mysterious domain. His spiritual consciousness shook as if it had left his body. He stood in front of the huge space and looked at the mountain formed by countless books. It was like a golden ocean. When he looked carefully, it was a sea created by countless strange runes. He casually picked up a book. However, it was actually made up of blank spaces. Could it be the wordless heavenly book? This made him believe it, and he picked up another book. It was also a blank book. What's going on? He Chuan was very puzzled. He stopped reading the books and flew directly toward the sea of books. Countless golden runes danced around him, but they were invisible as if they were not in the same space. He Chuan wanted to test his idea, so he put the blank book into the floating runes in front of him. Something magical happened. The characters that were wandering around seemed to be attracted by something and kept gathering in the empty book in the air. However, when they were about to absorb it, they were blocked by some unknown force and could not continue to move forward. So it was like this. He pondered for a while and recalled the Taishian scripture he had read before. He had a vague understanding in his heart. The book in his hand suddenly shook, and countless runes entered the blank book. About ten breaths later, all kinds of strange symbols appeared on the book. It was like astronomy. Although there were words, they still could not understand the meaning. It should be a language that has been passed down from ancient times. Every word contained a supreme mystery as if it wanted to explode his sea of consciousness. To prevent his sea of consciousness from exploding, he stopped reading. Instead, he threw the blank book directly into the golden runes. Colorful light descended from the sky and shone on He Chuan's body, transforming his fragile soul. The comfortable feeling almost made him whimper. His divine soul was constantly strengthening under the shower of light, which made He Chuan feel extremely emotional. Could this be the legendary inheritance of Emperor Zi Wei? The consciousness of the soul was the origin of life. It was extremely difficult to increase it even by the slightest bit. 
the soul almost determined the essence of life. The strength of a cultivator must rely on the divine soul to strengthen. He didn't expect Emperor Zi Wei's inheritance to strengthen his consciousness. It was too unbelievable. This meant that his talent, comprehension, and bloodline had all been enhanced. The benefits were too great. Something that he didn't even dare to imagine actually happened. Even the system had never given him such great benefits. While he was immersed in his joy, a powerful aura soared into the sky and erupted throughout the entire Zhou dynasty. Even the entire great world was about to collapse, which forced him to come out of seclusion in advance. He withdrew his sea of consciousness and returned to the library. He Chuan let out a long breath. He felt comfortable all over, and his spirit seemed to have been greatly strengthened. As long as his mind moved slightly, a kind of fire would collide. In a short period of time, he probably wouldn't be able to get such benefits again. He immediately began to observe his own situation, and the feedback he received made him ecstatic. Because he had reached the 8th rank earth realm, he was only one step away from the peak of the 9th rank. As for the reaction of the heavenly Tao, it was forcibly covered by his powerful strength. The heavenly Tao could not attract him to fly to the heaven realm. He Chuan didn't want to go now. Suppressing the joy in his heart, He Chuan immediately placed his divine sense in the large fluctuation. Looks like they've already exchanged blows. It's just that we don't know who will win or lose. He Chuan shook his head and said. With He Chuan's current strength, he could easily suppress Gu Mingzhou, Su Fengyu, and others. However, the reason why he did not attack was that he wanted them to kill each other. He would not interfere with some grudges, but if it touched the Zhou dynasty or the entire world, he had to interfere. After all, his family was still here. He walked out of the library and saw Zhou Shui practicing her sword in the courtyard. Her ordinary three-foot-long sword had a sharp cold light. Her figure was as swift as a swan and as graceful as a swimming dragon. She was agile but did not have any killing intent. It was the evil warding sword technique. Zhou Shui's martial arts talent was very strong, but her strength was too weak. After all, she was still a child and was only at the Xientian Grandmaster level. If she wanted to become a true expert, there were still many paths to take. However, with He Chuan's nurturing, her future achievements would definitely not be too low. Father. When she saw He Chuan appear, she immediately stopped practicing and jumped into He Chuan's arms. He Chuan looked at the boiling world as countless spatial storms raged above his head. It was like the end of the world. It wanted to swallow the entire great world. It seems like world god Su Fengyu has a deep grudge against the human race. Before he died, he actually wanted to drag the human race down with him. He Chuan sighed helplessly. Back then, world cultivators were the favored ones of the world and were worshipped by the human race. They had a glorious past. If not for the change in mentality, perhaps the world cultivator lineage would not have disappeared. Su Fengyu did not have such a deep grudge against the human race. Unfortunately, they chose to enslave the human race and became high and mighty. They thought they could do whatever they wanted with the help of the Heavenly Tao, but they did not know that the Heavenly Tao was truly heartless. No one could be blamed for the current situation. Father. The sky is so scary. Is it going to collapse? Zhou Shui blinked her big innocent eyes and looked at the sky above her head nervously. As long as I'm here, the sky won't collapse. He Chuan waved his hand, and a huge amount of true essence energy shot into the sky. Purple gold light illuminated the world. The void rift created by Su Fengyu gradually disappeared. The sky above the capital of the Zhou dynasty was once again filled with stars. However, other places were still being invaded by space. It was as if the world would be torn apart soon. The human race would perish in the dust of history. Schwer, go back and find mother first. Father will go and settle the matter. It's time to end this farce and reshuffle the world. He Chuan rubbed Zhou Shue's head lovingly and soared into the sky. Zhou Shue looked at He Chuan's figure excitedly and waved her little fists to encourage her father. She admired her father the most. No matter what happened, as long as He Chuan was around, he could solve it well. Heavenly Sword Sect. 
Due to the invasion of the spatial storm, the void shattered. Countless cultivators were swept into that terrifying space. Su Fengyu and Jing Wudao, who were at the center of the explosion, had disappeared. They were swept away by the terrifying turbulence. Out of the million-strong army of England and underwater beast cultivators, less than 500 zero zero were left. The rest had all become nourishment for the world god Su Fengyu. You don't know what's going on. The territory of the Zhou dynasty is not a place where you can come and go as you please. He Chuan, who appeared in his Dharma phase, was like a giant that reached the sky as he looked at the people who were fleeing in all directions. The spatial storm caused by Su Fengyu's self-destruction was too terrifying. They hoped to escape to the ends of the earth to avoid this terrifying storm. They wanted to use all his spiritual energy to escape. They had no interest in He Chuan's appearance at all. Chapter, 442 The Great Elder of the Heavenly Sword Sect frowned. He had never seen He Chuan before, but he was still very familiar with him. Because Murong Fu's disciple, Shen Changyi, and the sect's seventh elder, Fei Chang, had all died in his hands. However, he did not know that even the left and right protectors of the Heavenly Sword sect were He Chuan spies. Therefore, He Chuan knew every move of the Heavenly Sword sect very well. Duke He. It's fine if you just stand by and watch the Central Plains suffer, but at this moment, you're here to reap the benefits. Isn't that a little despicable? Murong Yen, the fifth elder, did not have such a good temper. He had wanted to leave with the remaining disciples of the Heavenly Sword sect. However, she did not expect He Chuan to suddenly appear. Powerful. He was extremely powerful. It was so heavy that everyone could not breathe. Be it sect master Murong Fu, whose life and death were unknown, or the hot shot Gu Mingzhou, or even world god Su Fengyu, none of them were as powerful as He Chuan's aura. How arrogant! Since when have I ever interfered with your heavenly sword sect wanting to become the master of the great world? Instead, you sent people to the capital to provoke them one after another. Also, the invasion of England and the undersea monster cultivators was something the Cultivation Alliance took the initiative to do. Didn't they want to become the lord of the world? He Chuan was very disdainful of the fifth elder's questioning. Murong Fu's ambition was not small. Even if the fifth elder and the great elder did not collude, it was still a problem for the heavenly sword sect. Why did He Chuan become a villain now? The imperial court doesn't care about what they do. He did not destroy the heavenly sword sect because he was a human. Otherwise, how could the Heavenly Sword sect have the right to jump around in the Zhou dynasty? He Chuan had also agreed to Gu Mingzhou's request to establish a country. He Chuan was definitely broad-minded enough. As for world god Su Fengyu, he was the last bloodline of a world cultivator. He didn't want to kill him and let the Heavenly Tao target him. Moreover, the upper limit of this world was actually closely related to the world god. However, Su Fengyu's hatred was too great. He actually chose to self-destruct to wipe out the human race. This the Heavenly Sword sect was indeed at fault first, but the Heavenly Sword sect will soon cease to exist. The great elder Murong Kuang shook his head. He disapproved of provoking the Zhou dynasty. However, Murong Fu was stubborn, which led to his current state. Most importantly, he even colluded with the world god Su Fengyu. He had completely thrown away the face of the Heavenly Sword sect. Now that a great calamity is before us, but all the grudges from before are in the past. I hope that Duke he can give us a way out. Floating Jade Island Master looked at the wailing cultivators around him and went forward to persuade them. He learned from Gu Mingzhou that He Chuan was very powerful. He only had a chance to establish a new kingdom because he agreed. Who said I'm here to kill? He Chuan snorted in disdain, and a golden light flew out of his body. Countless runes filled the air. Freeze. He continued to raise his hands into the sky, and the collapsed space continued to repair itself. As the spatial storm continued to dissipate. A celestial being. He's really strong. What the hell is going on? At this moment, everyone gave up on escaping and looked at He Chuan, who was showing his might in the sky. They had forgotten about the disaster just now. Using such power, it can actually isolate the summoning of the heavenly Tao. 
what's going on? Floating Jade Island Master was confused. Because he Chuan's situation was far from what he had imagined. He really couldn't figure it out. Murong Fu had to block the Heavenly Dao before he could attack, but he Chuan was not afraid. Moreover, the other party was obviously not only at the fifth rank. Perhaps it was the sixth, seventh, or even the highest level that floating Jade Island Master did not dare to think about, because such a powerful cultivator should ascend to the Heaven Realm and receive the call of the Heavenly Tao. First Elder and Fifth Elder also looked at each other, the surprise in their eyes could not be concealed no matter what. He was much stronger than Murong Fu. Fortunately, the Heavenly Sword sect chose to endure for the time being and did not continue to cause trouble. Otherwise, He Chuan could have broken the Heavenly Sword sect with a wave of his hand. How could he have stayed until now? So many things had happened. Retract. He Chuan opened his right hand and retracted all the golden light. The sky regained its tranquility. The night sky was so beautiful. In the past, they had never realized that the night scene would look like this. Only after losing it would one know how to cherish it. The great world was almost destroyed, and the human race was about to die. How could they have the time to enjoy the beautiful night scenery? At this moment, everything seemed to be less important. Power, money, beauties, and even the world were not as important as life. Retreat to the extremely cold sea and never step into the continent again. Otherwise, I will destroy the demon race. If anyone dares to step into the central plains again, this will be your end. He Chuan waved his hand in the air, and a powerful spiritual energy swept across, blowing hundreds of thousands of troops back to the sea. The distance of 10,000 miles was crossed with a wave of his hand. Moreover, hundreds of thousands of people were unharmed. What kind of strength could do this? What do we do now? The England army muttered to themselves. Let's go back. The demons were originally coerced. I didn't expect Su Fenyu to actually treat us as nourishment. A demon cultivator leader said with lingering fear. At that time, his companions exploded one by one, turning into the blood that flowed into Su Fenyu's body. After this battle, the entire place of the freezing cold land had been destroyed. The three great rogue cultivator islands had disappeared, and less than 10% of the underwater beast cultivators had survived. It was all because of Su Fenyu's scheme. Sai. It seems that the Zhou dynasty will become the overlord of the world. England can only retreat and defend. Let's part ways here. The England general knew that retreating was the best choice. And this group of demon cultivators did not have the conviction to take revenge. In the end, it was all Su Fenyu's fault. Even if they wanted to revenge, they did not have the strength. He Chuan's strength was deeply rooted in their hearts. They did not have the courage to face He Chuan at all. Instead of staying here, it was better to go home. The mighty England army was defeated, and there were also the undersea demon cultivators who had a strong start but a weak finish. He Chuan landed in front of the main hall of the Heavenly Sword sect. The place was already in ruins. The once glorious number one cultivation sect was destroyed because of Murong Fu's wrong choice. The other cultivation sects would definitely not allow the Heavenly Sword sect to rise again. They also wanted to replace them and become the number one sect. Thank you for your help, Duke He. No matter what, the crisis had been averted. The Great Elder thanked him. Zhao Gao looked anxiously at the closed void crack in the sky, wondering how Gu Mingzhou was doing. Entering the spatial storm might not necessarily mean death. Gu Mingzhou is a hot shot. He won't die just like that. He Chuan seemed to see Zhao Gao's worry and said. He didn't think Gu Mingzhou would die so easily. This was because this hot shot had great luck. How could he die? When Zhao Gao heard that Gu Mingzhou might be fine, he felt relieved. Even if he was anxious, it was useless. He could not help much. Chapter, 443 This group of people was indeed very worried about Gu Mingzhou's situation, but no one knew where the spatial storm was. After He Chuan solved the crisis, he looked coldly at the group of people around him. You came to help the Zhou dynasty at a critical moment which resulted in the destruction of floating Jade Island. 
Even if Gu Mingzhou is missing, I promise that you can build a new country and the Zhou dynasty will not attack you. He Chuan knew the change of dynasties was an eternal truth. No one could truly become the empire on which the sun never sets. The war would not stop. If the Zhou dynasty was too powerful, it would hinder the world's progress. Moreover, if he killed too many, it would not do him any good. This was because his cultivation was especially slow now. Whether it was Emperor Zi Wei's inheritance or the Taishan scripture, both seemed to have reached a bottleneck. His strength was not affected by the world's rules. He guessed that it was the system's credit. But now that he knew about the Heaven Realm, he was ready to go up and take a look. Why don't you explain the situation in the Heaven Realm to me? He Chuan said indifferently. Floating Jade Island Master had the absolute right to speak. He began to explain to He Chuan about the Heaven Realm. To put it bluntly, the Heaven Realm was another great world. However, the spiritual energy there was denser. His cultivation speed would also be faster. The suppression of the Heavenly Tao would increase in level. For example, the fifth rank Earth Realm in this world would begin when they went to the Heaven Realm. The lower the level, the faster the cultivation. When one cultivated to a certain level, they would also encounter barriers. Then, cultivators needed to go to higher places, such as the second heaven. If that's the case, I can understand it as a parallel world. Can I return? He Chuan had more things to consider. In the past, when he had no worries, he could go anywhere he wanted. If he couldn't come back, he would have to consider it carefully. However, ascending to the heaven realm was still necessary. There weren't many places to sign in in this world. The check-in system also needed a brand new place to give him better things. Moreover, he wanted to see how strong the cultivators of the Heaven Realm were. Parallel world isn't the accurate word. To put it bluntly, it's just an ordinary person going to the other side of the sea. It's more difficult to go there, and it's also difficult to come back. However, we can confirm that those who are powerful can open a passage. Floating Jade Island Master said. If the Heaven Realm cultivators couldn't return, then how could the world cultivator lineage be destroyed? However, the passage's duration was determined by one strength. The cultivators of the Heaven Realm had to return to the Heaven Realm before the passage closed. Because in this world, the Heavenly Tao would have corresponding suppression. There was not enough spiritual energy at all, and it might even cause one's cultivation to regress. Therefore, if the cultivators of the Heaven Realm had nothing to do, they would not come to the lower realm. It was like living in the slums and going to live in the rich district. How could they think about going back? I can come back. He Chuan thought of the realm-breaking talisman rewarded by the system and wondered if it could open the passage. Even if it didn't work, he would think of other ways. After all, with the system around, it shouldn't be a problem for him to break through the passage back. Therefore, he decided to ascend as soon as possible. This great world was no longer suitable for him to cultivate. The great world is the foundation of your existence. I won't care about your small fights, but I hope you don't have any thoughts about the Zhou dynasty. Otherwise. He Chuan's eyes shot out two rays of golden light that flattened the mountain peak not far away. Hiss. Everyone couldn't help but gasp. To be able to cause such a huge commotion with his eyes, how terrifying was He Chuan's true strength. However, this disaster was finally over. As you wish, sir. Floating Jade Island Master, Zhao Gao, the first elder of the Heavenly Sword Sect, and the fifth elder took the lead and bowed. He Chuan had indirectly saved their lives. It's fine. Regardless of whether it's the human race or the demon race, we're all living beings in this world. I hope that your goal is to ascend to the Heaven Realm and not engage in meaningless struggles for power. In the end, it'll all be for nothing. After He Chuan finished speaking, he broke through space and disappeared. Everyone was left behind. He Chuan brought Lia and his youngest daughter to the palace of the Zhou dynasty. He was prepared to ascend to the Heaven Realm after two days of reunion. If husband wants to ascend to the Heaven Realm, then wouldn't we tears flickered in Kai Lian's eyes, and she was somewhat unwilling to part. Although Empress Changning and Liat did not say anything, they were clearly upset. 
people have their joys and sorrows, and the moon has its ups and downs. However, we will soon be reunited in the heaven realm. He Chuan held his three daughters in his arms and looked at his son, Zhou Ming, beside him. We can still reunite in the heaven realm. Sister Lia and I aren't very talented. If it's Sister Kai Lian, she still has a chance. Empress Changning thought he was comforting her and said in disbelief. I can come and go freely in the heaven realm. When I get back, I'll get the heavenly materials and earthly treasures of the heaven realm for you to cultivate, it will definitely be twice the result with half the effort. He Chuan let them know they could forget about ascending even if they cultivated for a hundred years. However, the treasures of the heaven realm were priceless in the lower realm. Soon, they would be able to ascend. As for the four children, they could choose their own lives. It was a short happy life. Whether they wanted to be the ruler of a country or to cultivate. It was up to them to decide. Will it be dangerous? The cultivators of the heaven realm should be very powerful. Husband, if fight with them for treasures Lia said worriedly. Don't worry, I won't joke around with my life. If it's impossible, I definitely won't do it. He Chuan had his own thoughts. He had to keep a low profile when he went to the heaven realm. He had to find a place to sign in and get some good things first. Then, he opened the passage and returned the items he had obtained. After half a month of reunion, He Chuan decided to ascend. He had experienced the lightning tribulation before, so he naturally did not need to experience it again. He brought the women and children to a secret place. Because he heard that there were benefits to ascending, and his family must benefit from it. He Chuan relaxed his mind and comprehended the guidance of the heavenly Tao. A huge pillar of light with a diameter of ten miles descended from the sky. Empress Changning, Lia, Kai Lian, and the four children were all in the huge white pillar of light. All of them had greedy expressions on their faces. The white pillar of light contained endless high-level energy. With just one breath, he could feel his entire body floating. Whether it was the spiritual energy or their body, it was as if they had received a great tonic. They crazily swallowed and absorbed it, instinctively wanting to evolve to a higher level. He Chuan was the same. At this moment, apart from guarding his mind, he completely let go of his body. It was as if he was soaking in a hot spring, and his entire body felt warm and comfortable. He could clearly feel every cell in his body cheering and crazily devouring the white light pillar that enveloped his body. Because of his powerful soul and his deliberate actions, he kept the subtle changes in his body in mind. At this moment, he felt the wonderful feeling of absorbing spiritual energy during the recovery of spiritual energy. At that time, the spiritual energy was more targeted at the Dantian, while the white pillar of light was directly targeted at the body. Chapter 44 at this moment, he was in a wonderful state of ascension. The white light pillar that covered his body was the passage to the heaven realm. It was all formed by the spiritual energy from the heaven and earth of the heaven realm. Naturally, it had a fatal attraction to a lower realm existence like him. Not only his body, but his soul was also in conflict. He wanted to crazily absorb the spiritual energy from heaven and earth in the white pillar of light and completely sublimate his body and soul. According to cultivators, it was the process of ascending to the immortal world and completely transforming one's body into an immortal. However, he had to grasp this process well. It would not directly help him turn from a mortal to an immortal. Fortunately, his understanding and control of his body had already reached a shocking level. It was not an exaggeration to observe the patterns on the palm. It could actively guide the spiritual energy from the heaven and earth outside and actively pour it into certain important parts of the body to speed up the evolution. With the strength of his body, it was not easy for him to evolve completely. It was said that the ascension passageway only opened for an hour. It was already good enough for him to absorb the spiritual energy from heaven and earth and cover every part of his body in an hour. He still wanted more. At the same time, he had to be prepared. After ascending to the heaven realm, he would be able to react immediately if he encountered any trouble. After reading and understanding the martial arts inheritance, He Chuan's strength had already reached an unbelievable level. He only needed a single thought to shatter the void. It was even easier to open it, 
and he could already enter the realm of perfect Dan realm at any time. Previously, he had encouraged many warriors and cultivators from the Central Plains to develop in the outer region and expand the living space of the warriors from the Central Plains. During this period, he collected countless divine techniques from other regions, especially those from India and Arabia. His gains were extremely shocking. He could clearly feel the excitement of the world as it slowly advanced to a larger and stronger world. Until he Chuan left, he could even clearly feel that the great world had given him some unknown benefits. If he needed to, he could release it directly, allowing his body and strength in the origin world to rapidly increase. However, he Chuan did not do so. The environment in the upper world was much stronger than that in the great world. As long as he was given a certain amount of time, he would be able to completely recover to his peak state in the great world. When the time came, it would return with the divine soul and transform into spiritual energy. It would be able to play a huge role at a critical moment. For example, when the body evolved to a critical moment if it suddenly received the nourishment of spiritual energy, it might be able to quickly achieve the goal of evolution. When he encountered a bottleneck in his cultivation, absorbing the spiritual energy stored in the depths of his soul could also play a huge role. An hour was neither long nor short. Just as he Chuan was crazily absorbing the spiritual energy of the heaven realm in the white pillar of light and his mind was spinning non-stop, he went over. His ears buzzed softly as if something was chirping non-stop. His body could feel the unfriendliness of the outside world. He Chuan only felt his vision blur and his surroundings change. He instantly restrained his aura, and even his heart and mind stopped moving. He was no different from a stone without any signs of life. However, his eyes subconsciously sized up his surroundings. The mountains were green. The trees were extremely tall, and the mountain range stretched for an unknown length. It was as if there was a huge stone pressing down on his body and soul. It seemed that it was troublesome and exhausting to circulate the power of the soul and the strength of the body. It was as if he had suddenly gone from a place with a gravity of one to a place with a gravity of ten. He was quite uncomfortable. He Chuan knew it should be because the heaven-earth law in the heaven realm was more rigorous and perfect, causing him to need more energy to use his power. He was still unclear about the specific situation of the surrounding environment, so it was not good for him to forcefully release his powerful spiritual power. What if he attracted some powerful but unfriendly creatures? After all, he knew too little about the situation in the heaven realm. Right now, he could only take one step at a time. However, he seemed to be the only one around. An inexplicable uneasiness and irritation suddenly rose in his heart. Although he was unhappy, he was not too flustered. He was quite confident in his strength. Although his cultivation was not as high as his peak in the heaven realm, it was not something that ordinary heaven realm experts could compare to. He only needed to understand the surrounding environment, familiarize himself with and adapt to some of the rules of the heaven realm, and it was not difficult for him to live comfortably. As he carefully observed his surroundings, he suddenly felt a sense of danger. A strong wind with a foul smell blew from the dense forest. Whoosh! The branches of the tree fell and a black shadow shot out like a sharp arrow. It opened its bloody mouth and bit toward He Chuan. He Chuan's figure was like a willow leaf, following the whistling phoenix and flying backward. He maintained a distance of more than ten feet from the black shadow that suddenly shot out. At this moment, he had already seen the black shadow clearly. It turned out to be a giant python that was more than ten feet long. Its entire body was as black as ink and it was very concealed in the dim light. It had a ferocious head with a very obvious bulge on the top of its head. It was as if a skull was struggling to break free. He Chuan's pupils could not help but shrink. This was a sign that it was about to transform into a flood dragon. The black python could not bite He Chuan at all. Just as its huge body was about to fall, its huge tail suddenly tapped the ground. When it smashed into a deep pit, its body shot out like an arrow again. Bang! This time, before the black python could take action, its huge head was kicked by He Chuan. It suddenly changed its direction and its head hit the soft ground. Dust flew into the air, and broken branches and leaves scattered all over the sky. A huge pit appeared on the ground of the forest. 
Without waiting for the python to raise its head, He Chuan's body was in midair, as if he was dancing. One after another, sharp leg force whistled continuously, falling like raindrops. The giant python seemed to have suffered a continuous heavy blow. Pits kept appearing on its dark body, and stinky blood whistled like a fountain. However, the python's vitality was unexpectedly strong. After suffering more than a hundred kicks from He Chuan, his long body was covered in bloody holes, but his life force was still as strong as a raging fire. Sensing the strongest aura in the python's body, which was the seventh inch of its body, he swung his fist down from the sky. A fist shadow that was visible to the naked eye whistled out. The giant python seemed to have sensed that its life was in danger. It suddenly shot up like a spring, but it was still a step too late. A clear fist print suddenly appeared at its vital point. His body, which had originally soared into the sky, lost its momentum and suddenly fell to the ground. With a loud boom, the ferocious black python had lost its life force and lay quietly in the forest. The stinky blood gushed out from the countless bloody holes on his body, dyeing the surrounding ground red. He Chuan landed far away and looked at the huge python's body. His expression was a little ugly. Something was wrong, something was really wrong. Judging from the aura of the black python that had been easily killed, it was at most in the mortal realm of the great world. Would the mortal realm experts of the great world be able to withstand his continuous kick attacks? They probably wouldn't even be able to withstand a single attack. Chapter 445 The black python, on the other hand, was unharmed. If it had not gone straight for its vital point, its life would not have been in danger. The black python's body had a huge advantage, but it was not so great that it could ignore the difference in realms. How high was He Chuan's realm? He had reached the eighth rank earth realm. He could break through the atmosphere, soar freely in the starry sky, and even dominate the experts of the star field. Not to mention the kick force, even his casual gaze was not something that a mortal realm expert could withstand. At the same time, he also felt that he was somewhat out of place with his surroundings. It wasn't that the surrounding environment rejected him, but that the strength of his body seemed to be much weaker than the surrounding environment. It was obvious that he had stayed in the Ascension Passage for too short a time. His body and soul had not completely transformed. The special situation of the Black Python in front of him could also be explained. He subconsciously grabbed at the air, and the blood from one of the bloody holes on the Black Python's body suddenly flew in front of He Chuan like a fountain. His right hand formed a palm and held the extremely stinky python blood in front of him. A fiery red flame visible to the naked eye rose and instantly enveloped the blood ball condensed from the python's blood. If there were any top martialists from the great world present, they would be able to recognize He Chuan's technique at a glance. It was the star sucking technique. However, the star sucking technique that He Chuan used was completely different from the others. Whether it was in terms of power or control, it was completely different. At this moment, his five senses were all sealed. The blood ball in his palm quickly shrank in the blink of an eye, and blood-colored smoke floated. The area within a few miles was filled with the thick smell of blood, which carried the unique stench of the black python's blood. The surrounding area was silent. All the sounds unique to the forest had disappeared as if they were a forbidden zone. As the ball of blood in his hand rapidly shrank and its color gradually darkened, the range of the sound forbidden zone also gradually increased. When the blood ball was only the size of a fist, and there was even a faint golden light flashing, He Chuan suddenly stopped his purification. At that moment, he had a special feeling of palpitation. It was as if he had a premonition that if this continued, there might be unpredictable and serious consequences. He Chuan's heart trembled slightly and his spiritual power subconsciously shot toward the blood ball in his hand. Boom! There seemed to be a thunderous explosion in his soul, and the phantom of a python with a single horn suddenly appeared. Although it was only a phantom, it gave He Chuan an indescribable sense of oppression. It was completely different from the feeling the black python gave him. He Chuan saw the problem. The bulge on the phantom head of the python turned into a grayish-black horn. Flood Dragon the name of a powerful creature instantly appeared in his mind. The phantom of the python's head, which had already grown a single horn, 
suddenly opened its mouth and let out a silent roar. Although it was only a silent roar, He Chuan's divine soul was disturbed, as if the entire space was in chaos. Break! He Chuan said. Instantly, his spiritual space returned to normal. As for the black flood dragon's head, it had already disappeared. Looking at the blood essence in his hand, the faint golden lines on it had disappeared. He felt something in his heart, and cold sweat oozed out from his back. He even had the urge to turn around and run. It was too risky to play such a trick when he had just arrived in the heaven realm. He could feel the boundless energy contained in the ball of blood in his hand. His expression changed, but he didn't throw it away in the end. His divine soul kept scanning the blood ball in his hand, and an indescribable feeling kept surging into his heart. It seemed like the blood ball in his hand was quite beneficial to him. All kinds of medicinal recipes suddenly flashed through He Chuan's mind. He pondered how to match the medicinal ingredients to maximize the effect of the python blood essence condensed in his hand. If he had enough utensils, he could collect more python blood and do some research. The dead python's flesh and bones were probably rare materials. However, when he glanced at the corpse of the giant python that was more than ten feet long, he was afraid that it weighed dozens of tons. It was a little troublesome for him to deal with it alone, but it was not a problem. The key was, was there a need to go through so much trouble? He already understood the current situation. Because the spiritual energy of the heaven realm he had absorbed and digested was too little, his body had yet to completely adapt to the environment. His physical strength might be very high, but his own quality was not as good as the heaven realm natives. The environment was different, so the strength and quality of the origin were different. Right now, he needed to find a safe place to slowly absorb and digest the spiritual energy of the heaven realm, allowing his foundation to gradually improve. Otherwise, if they encountered a powerful existence, they would be at a disadvantage in battle. In a battle between experts of the same level, He Chuan punched his opponent 18 times in a row, but his opponent was only injured and spat out blood. However, the other party had casually attacked. He was immediately heavily injured. This kind of competition was really too disadvantageous. Just as he was considering how to adapt to the environment of the heavenly realm, he suddenly heard the sound of faint footsteps. He immediately activated his divine sense and instantly captured three auras. This time, the aura was somewhat familiar. It was the aura of a human. His heart skipped a beat. He didn't expect to meet a cultivator from the heaven realm so quickly. He tapped his toes lightly in the air, and his body rose up like a cloud, quietly hiding in the tree crown not far away. The majestic and pure blood essence energy just now suddenly disappeared. The muttering of a young man was particularly abrupt in the quiet forest. Don't talk. We'll talk after we investigate. Another calm voice deliberately lowered its tone to remind him. The surrounding forest fell into a strange and peaceful atmosphere again. Following the sound of extremely soft footsteps, three muscular bodies slowly appeared. They were all dressed in animal skins, their muscles were all knotted, and their hair was tied behind their heads with thin grass. They gave off a valiant aura. Holding a rather primitive bow and short spear in his hands, he stood at the edge of the forest where the aftermath of the battle had swept out. He looked at the corpse of the black python that had been dead for a long time without making a sound. Is this the giant python that is about to transform into a flood dragon that is rampaging through the nearby forest? After a long time, the youngest of the three hunters couldn't help but blurt out in shock. It should be. The tone of the muscular man beside him changed. They subconsciously looked left and right, trying to find some clues, afraid that the existence that could kill the black python would suddenly appear. The other two muscular men did the same. Are you looking for me? He Chuan floated down from the tree crown and spoke leisurely. Under the sunlight, the blood ball in his hand emitted a blood-red light, which looked quite strange. Who is it? The three muscular men were shocked. They hurriedly formed the simplest defensive formation and looked at He Chuan with vigilance. But immediately, their gazes all shifted to the blood ball that He Chuan was holding. Their gazes revealed unconcealed greed. Are you guys interested in this? He Chuan smiled lightly. 
The blood ball in his hand spun in the air, emitting a blood-colored beauty. Who are you? Why are you here? The leader forcefully restrained the greed in his eyes and asked in a deep voice. The short spear in his hand, which was made of unknown wood, shook slightly, emitting a kind of hardness and sharpness that was similar to metal. Chapter, 446 What, does this mountain forest have an owner? He Chuan asked curiously. From your appearance, you should be from the canyon, right? You guys are very cunning. You must have some purpose for suddenly coming here. The leader of the burly men snorted coldly and tightened his grip on the spear in his hand. He said unhappily. He Chuan frowned slightly. He could hear a lot of information from the other party's words. I'm a human who just ascended from the lower realm. He did not pay much attention to this information and said directly. Impossible. How can a cultivator who ascended from the lower realm be as strong as you? The youngest one spoke, his face full of disbelief. Although the other two burly men did not speak, the acknowledgement on their faces already explained many things. Are you looking down on the cultivators of the lower realm? The strength of the three of you is just as so, so in the lower realm. He Chuan revealed a playful smile and said disdainfully. With his strength and realm, he could see through the strength of the three burly men at a glance. They were all in the fourth rank earth realm, at least judging from their auras. As for whether it was accurate or not, he was still very confident. Perhaps their body and appearance could deceive others, but their aura rarely did. The aura of the human body was the manifestation of the body's essence, spiritual energy, and spirit. If one's strength did not reach a certain level, there was no way to interfere or hide. Of course, although he spoke rudely, he did not look down on others in his heart. The three muscular men were obviously ordinary hunters from some tribe or village in the forest. An ordinary hunter had the strength of the fourth-rank earth realm, which showed the environment in the heaven realm was very suitable for cultivation. The expressions of the three burly men became extremely ugly. As the saying went, one should not hit the face when hitting someone. He Chuan's words were simply a slap to their faces mercilessly. Unfortunately, they did not have the courage to attack He Chuan, a powerhouse who had ascended from the lower realm. It was mainly because of the bleeding corpse of the Black Python not far away that they were suspicious. The Black Python was extraordinarily powerful, and it was not something a lower realm ascendant could easily kill. At the very least, it would not be so easy. With Yi Chuan's eloquence, it was relatively easy for him to make the three muscular men accept his words. They had no choice but to trust him. They still wanted to share the Black Python's corpse, which was a rare good thing for them. Moreover, it was absolutely necessary to maintain the necessary respect when facing a powerful expert like Yi Chuan. Soon, Yi Chuan and the three muscular men in animal skins lit a bonfire in an open space not far away. He sat beside the bonfire and silently watched the three muscular men in animal skins, excitedly handling the black python's corpse. According to the three strong men, the black python was the overlord of the forest and was a difficult monster to deal with. Monster? He Chuan glanced at the bulge on the black python's head and seemed to understand. Just as he had guessed, the corpse of the black python weighed dozens of tons. It would be quite complicated to cut it up. However, the three muscular men didn't complain at all. They worked like hotcakes and couldn't help but sing and wail. Surely not. He Chuan was a little speechless. The singing of the natives of the heaven realm was a little unpleasant. As night fell, the three muscular men in animal skins finished their work and gathered around the bonfire with excited faces. Even if the flesh and bones of this giant python are beneficial to you, you shouldn't be so excited. He Chuan laughed. Without a high-quality alchemy technique, it would be rather difficult to use the flesh, blood, bones, and tendons of the black python to make a herbal dish. Of course, for He Chuan, this was nothing, but some things were not easy to expose. He was holding the freshly roasted snake meat that was emitting a strong fragrance. He had simply processed the roast meat. After taking a bite, the taste was fragrant and delicious. After entering his stomach, it was quickly digested and turned into a hot stream that soaked his entire body. His body felt as comfortable as if he was soaking in a hot spring. 
the cells in his body seemed to be cheering and jumping for joy as if he was in an ascension passage. Even He Chuan felt the energy contained in the snake meat with simple ingredients was a little too abundant. His body seemed to be less out of place with his surroundings. As for the three muscular men, they had already turned into hungry ghosts. They quickly wiped out the roasted meat on the bonfire like the autumn wind sweeping away the fallen leaves. When they were done eating, they lay on the grass, their faces filled with indescribable satisfaction. You don't know. With the flesh and blood of this giant python that is about to transform into a flood dragon, it is enough for the young and middle-aged men in our tribe to increase their strength by a level. As the saying goes, the mouth that eats other people's food should help in return. The youngest burly man opened his mouth to explain. If you want to kill this python, it shouldn't be too difficult, right? He Chuan still didn't know much about the situation in the heaven realm, but with their strength, it shouldn't be difficult to kill the giant python. The three muscular men looked at each other awkwardly. You may not know this, but our village has no powerful experts. The strength of the three of us is one of the best in the village. It won't be easy to surround and kill the python that's about to transform into a flood dragon. The youngest brawny man said helplessly. This beast is very smart. It immediately ran away when it sensed something was wrong. It's not easy to capture or kill it. At this point, the oldest man smiled awkwardly. If we had your strength and the ability to purify blood easily, I'm afraid we would have soared long ago. As if he felt that this was not convincing, he pointed at the exquisite blood ball in He Chuan's hand and continued. This blood essence only has a higher energy density. You don't have to be so surprised. He Chuan said calmly. The burly men looked at each other and did not say anything. They only shook their heads and sighed. Their reaction was naturally to tell He Chuan that the ball of purified python blood in his hand was of great use to them. As for what use it was, there was no need to explain it clearly. After all, they had just met, so everyone understood the principle of making friends. He Chuan didn't waste any time and directly changed the topic. He asked about the surrounding forest environment and some general information about the heaven realm. Unfortunately, he was disappointed. This group of natives didn't know much, they only knew that within a hundred thousand miles, it was all forest. The villages they were in were the natives of the forest. Because there were many dangers in the forest, it was rather inconvenient to communicate with the outside world. Therefore, they did not know much. However, he had heard from the elders of the village that after leaving the forest and passing through the narrow canyon, it was a rather prosperous area. As for what region it was, they had never even heard of it. There were very few cultivators who ascended from the lower realm where they were. They were also quickly eaten by the monsters in the forest. The mountain forest was definitely not a friendly place for new ascenders from the lower realm. Chapter, 447 As for the fact that He Chuan could easily deal with the flood dragon, although the three burly men didn't say it explicitly, their faces were filled with surprise. It was obvious that they still couldn't believe it. Since when did the ascended cultivators of the great world become so powerful? He Chuan immediately realized there was an unexpected situation during the ascension process. He was sent to an unknown area. Fortunately, his strength was strong and his adaptability was quite good. Otherwise, he would have encountered life-threatening danger as soon as he ascended to the heaven realm. He Chuan could do nothing about this. He didn't know the general situation of the heaven realm. If he accidentally encountered a powerful character, it was easy to encounter a dangerous situation. He requested to temporarily head to the village where the three muscular men were staying and settle down. The three muscular men in animal skins agreed without a word. According to them, it was their village's honor that a powerhouse like He Chuan was willing to go over as a guest. One of the main reasons why they welcomed He Chuan's generous gift of the Black Python's corpse was that he had given it to them. The next day, he followed the three muscular men who were carrying dozens of tons of black python corpses to their village. Clearly, they were all experienced mountain forest survival experts. Without needing He Chuan to solve the problem, they arrived at the village where they were born. During this period of time, they ate the simple roasted meat He Chuan made, and their strength increased significantly, making He Chuan feel surprised. 
did it have to be so exaggerated? Just eating some meat with rich energy could directly increase one's strength. The heaven realm was indeed mysterious. He Chuan didn't care too much about it. Even if the three muscular men in animal skins could upgrade to the fifth rank earth realm by eating, they still posed no threat to him. Wutong Village The village was not big, but there were less than a hundred households and less than four hundred people. He basically understood the basic situation of the village temporarily. Wutong Village gave him a strange feeling. There was nothing strange about it. It looked like an ordinary village in the state of Slash and Burn farming. The villagers wore very little clothing and were basically all wearing animal skin clothes. The tools used were also quite primitive. They were either stone tools or wooden tools. It was rare to see metal tools. However, the way the villagers talked and behaved gave him a sense of civilization. At least He Chuan didn't feel uncomfortable. He soon understood why the three fur-clad men and the black python's corpse were so beneficial to the village. Soon, the villagers had finished eating the black python's corpse. The strength of the villagers, especially the bodies of the young and strong, had been significantly improved. He saw through it at a glance. It was no wonder that the strength of the three young and strong men could increase significantly after eating simple roasted meat. It turned out that the villagers' lives were quite difficult. They must have been suffering from malnutrition. Or perhaps it was not appropriate to say that they were malnourished. It should be said that they lacked the necessary biological energy to support their body to become stronger. After all, without a good cultivation technique, how strong could one's body be without absorbing and digesting the rich spiritual energy of heaven and earth? He Chuan noticed the villagers knew some simple martial arts, but there were obvious traces of military martial arts. Living in the village, He Chuan naturally did not need the villagers' offerings. He had to settle his own food and clothing, and he lived quite comfortably. Wutong village was located in a mountainous region that stretched for hundreds of thousands of miles. What kind of birds and beasts did it not have? Not to mention, there were all kinds of medicinal herbs and plants. To others, the forest might be a nightmare, but to He Chuan, it was an inexhaustible treasure. He could simply catch some grass or carnivores and process them with various simple medicinal herbs. They would become quite delicious food. Every time it was mealtime, the thatched cottage he lived in was the place the village's children yearned for the most. He was not stingy either. He distributed more food that contained rich energy, quickly becoming the most popular existence in the entire village. During this period, he obtained many good things, such as cultivation techniques and cultivation pills. It was enough for him to break through the peak of the earth realm and enter a new realm. However, one might not know a person's heart from their appearance. He also did not know if this group of native villagers from the heaven realm would take advantage of his breakthrough to attack. Therefore, breaking through was a matter that had to be temporarily postponed. Sometimes, He Chuan would go out with the village's hunting team. He had seen many types of spiritual monsters. There were giant wolves that ran as fast as flying and could even spit out wind blades to attack. There were tall and strong apes that were shockingly strong. They could easily break a tree that was as thick and needed several people to surround it. There were also golden eagles with wings that were nearly ten meters wide. The power of their claws was comparable to the combat strength of the peak of the mortal realm in a macro world. It was quite exaggerated. The young men in the village were scared out of their wits, afraid that these powerful monsters would discover them. He Chuan naturally did not care, nor did he have the intention to rashly attack. Since the monsters had come out, would there be even more powerful monster cultivators? If they went too far in killing, who knew what kind of powerful existence they would attract? The most important thing now was to absorb and digest the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, allowing his body to completely adapt to the environment of the heaven realm. Only in this way could he grow by leaps and bounds in the special environment of the heaven realm. Although he didn't make a move, nor did he show any particularly powerful methods, the living conditions of Wudong village were slowly improving. He would not act rashly before he understood the specific situation of the heaven realm. As for physical training, he only needed to give a few casual pointers to improve the strength of the young hunters in the village. 
according to their physical fitness, if they could fully develop it, they would at least be equivalent to the mortal realm of the great world. Based on what He Chuan had seen and heard in the nearby forest, at least maintaining the stability of the village was not a problem, and they could live quite freely. Since the Wutong village villagers practiced martial arts and had obvious traces of military martial arts, it was easy to teach them. No one noticed, or rather, no expert in the village had such a high martial arts realm. They couldn't tell how much He Chuan's casual pointers would help them improve their martial arts. The number of prey that could be caught increased, and the living standards of the village improved. In addition, He Chuan guided the villagers to pick medicinal herbs and edible wild vegetables, as well as brewing methods. At least they did not have to worry about food. He restrained his aura quite thoroughly. If it wasn't an existence whose strength and realm were much higher than his, he wouldn't be able to detect any clues at all. Obviously, He Chuan's cautious approach was necessary. One day, he suddenly felt a terrifying aura sweep across his body. He only felt his heart palpitate, and he did not have the slightest strength in his body. He could not even think of resisting. In just an instant, this feeling completely disappeared. If it was an ordinary martial artist, they would probably not give him any sense at all. Chapter 448 He Chuan did not dare to relax. He secretly patrolled and investigated, but he could not figure out what was going on. In the end, he guessed that it might be a powerful expert passing by. He was completely awake. The strength of the Heaven Realm experts was far beyond his imagination. There was nothing much to say. Wasn't he just going to keep a low profile? Just like that, he spent three peaceful months. During these three months, he carefully cultivated and then searched for a way to break through the realm and return to the great world. However, once his body had completely transformed, it would still be too slow to rely solely on absorbing and digesting the spiritual energy. According to his estimation, it would take less than three years to achieve complete success. Although three years was not a long time, He Chuan did not want to stay in Wudong village. After coming to the Heaven Realm, he would at least become one of the most influential experts, not to mention the arrogant idea of becoming the supreme of the Heaven Realm. Before he could leave Wudong village, he had to transform his body completely. At the very least, he would not be inferior to ordinary Heaven Realm creatures. If the efficiency of absorbing and digesting the spiritual energy of Heaven and Earth was too low, then he would have to start the body tempering process again. In any case, the absorption and digestion of the spiritual energy would eventually be used to improve the various functions of the body. Instead of passively improving, it was better to take the initiative. Unfortunately, the check-in system didn't give him anything in this area, so he could only rely on his own experience. After trying it out, the effect was indeed not bad. By directly absorbing the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, the various parts of the body that were undergoing the body tempering process quickly completed the most basic training. He Chuan felt a huge improvement in his physical fitness just from the initial success of body refinement. In terms of strength, it reached an astonishing 50 pounds. In the great world, He Chuan's strength had reached a terrifying 10 pounds. He could carry a small mountain on his shoulders. He didn't expect that in such a short period of time after ascending to the heaven realm, the strength of his single hand had doubled. When his bones, muscles, and internal organs were completely replaced, he did not know how terrifying it would be. This was the difference in the origin of the body brought about by the difference in the environment of the world. With the experience of completing his body refinement, he estimated that it would take more than half a year before he could complete his body refinement. He had already made his preparations. He could still endure for a year. However, the tree wanted to be calm, but the wind did not stop. Some things were not something he could control. After three months of peaceful life, it was completely broken by a few foreign hunters who suddenly came to Wudong village. As a new resident of the village, He Chuan was unwilling to pay attention to matters involving the village. What was so special about a village in the forest? A few unfamiliar hunters announced in the small square of the village that the once-in-a-decade hunt was about to begin. Wutong village needed to send more than 30 young and strong people to participate. The originally peaceful atmosphere in the village instantly became oppressive and uncomfortable. 
the unfamiliar hunters were not surprised and left with the village chief. The villagers who were gathered together looked gloomy and did not say a word. He Chuan was a little curious, so he went to the youngest of the three strong men he first met and asked what was going on. The youngest hunter explained the reason to He Chuan in dependence. It turned out that Wudong village was not an independent mountain village, but a settlement under the command of a large sect. Every ten years, a portion of the village's young and strong people would be transferred to participate in the hunting operations organized by the sect. None of them could come back alive. It could be said that participating in hunting activities was equivalent to sending oneself to death. The sudden hunting activity disrupted He Chuan's peaceful life. He was not a native of Wudong village, so he could stay out of it. However, the village chief knew that he had the ability and would definitely not let him rule it out. The village chief took him to a temple for sacrifice and told him that the ancestral temple had the inheritance that their village had guarded for many years. Unfortunately, the villagers were disappointing and could not cultivate at all. They could only put it on the shelf. As long as He Chuan went, he could use the inheritance stone tablet. He Chuan picked up the inheritance stone tablet. Under village chief's guidance, he directly released his divine soul power and made contact. Immediately, the secret cultivation technique appeared in his mind. Baleful aura tempered the body, the general star entering life. These words could completely encompass this secret cultivation technique. This secret technique was a cultivation technique unique to generals. He Chuan was very familiar with the baleful aura. The baleful aura on the battlefield was the purest, especially the baleful aura of a kingdom war. It was definitely the best target for this cultivation technique to absorb. Killing people indiscriminately to gather a baleful aura, it was very easy for the baleful aura to cover one's mind and become a pure killing lunatic. As for the general star entering life, it was the most mysterious part of this secret cultivation technique. He Chuan discovered that the so-called general star entering life actually required one to first open the body's acupuncture points and then receive the corresponding star power into the body. When the power of the stars had infected all of his acupoints and tempered his body to a certain level, he would have divine powers. After mastering the secret technique, one could be called a star general. In his opinion, this secret cultivation technique was definitely a rather profound and orthodox cultivation method for generals. He Chuan's current state was perfect for cultivation. At the same time, he also understood why no one in Wudong village could cultivate this secret technique. Opening the acupoints in one's body wasn't something that the village youths could do. They also had to draw in the power of the stars to nourish the body. The power of the stars was extremely violent. If one's physical fitness did not reach a certain level, directly receiving the power of the stars would be suicide. Most importantly, he needed to know how to observe the stars. Otherwise, how could he know which star was the corresponding one? He Chuan was greatly inspired after seeing this secret cultivation technique. It was obvious that this secret cultivation technique suited him quite well as if it was tailor-made for him. Even though he hadn't had the time to open the acupoints in his body, it wasn't difficult for him to do so. Emperor Zi Wei's cultivation technique allowed him to open his body's acupoints. Although he had no plans to open his body's acupoints, it was only a matter of time. With Yi Chuan's realm, how could he not see the inheritance of the ancestral temple still had a lot of room for improvement? There were so many apertures in his body, and so were the corresponding stars. Each star emitted a different amount of power, and it was possible that the so-called star body could be created in the end. The inheritance of the ancestral temple was very suitable for He Chuan. However, to the villagers of Wudong village, it was a secret cultivation technique that was impossible to learn. After staying in the village for more than three months, how could he not understand the specific situation of Wudong village? Through the existence of the ancestral temple, it could be confirmed that the ancestors of Wudong village had a rather extraordinary civilization inheritance. But now, Wudong village had already degenerated into the Slash and Burn era. How could he cultivate the secret cultivation technique of the ancestral temple in such a situation? Although he understood, He Chuan still had to be grateful. After all, the inheritance of the ancestral temple was quite suitable for him. It could even be said to be seamless so he did not have to explore the path and direction alone. 
No matter what world it was, creating skills was a dangerous and energy-consuming thing. The village chief's meaning was very clear. He hoped He Chuan could help to ensure the safety of the villagers who participated in the hunt. He Chuan was not in a hurry to agree. Instead, he asked about the hunting activities. Chapter 449 The village chief explained helplessly. The so-called hunting activity was initiated by the sect that controlled the mountain village. It was a hunting activity aimed at the powerful monsters in the mountain forest. According to him, the monsters in the depths of the forest were terrifyingly strong. Even the top experts of the sect might not be a match for him. In addition, the environment in the depths of the mountain forest was very dangerous. The young and strong people in the village could not withstand it at all. The young men who were recruited for hunting activities were the bait. The spiritual monsters were very smart. If they did not spend a lot of effort to lure them out of their nests, the top experts of the sect would not dare to directly enter their nests. As for the specific strength of the monsters in the forest, however, the village chief was not very clear about this. With his current strength, as long as he did not encounter powerful demon cultivators, he could deal with any kind of demon. If it really didn't work out, it was still very easy to retreat. He Chuan set off with the thirty young men in the village. Under the command of the sex experts, they went deep into the forest and encountered many dangers and troubles. He Chuan didn't reveal his skills directly. Instead, he used his identity as an apothecary to help the village brawny man treat his injuries. Casualties kept appearing along the way. The spiritual monsters they encountered were also more powerful than the last. The sect master who led this hunting activity was also an eye-opener for He Chuan. Their bodies could actually temporarily transform into monsters. They were half-human and half-demon. Their strength and methods were quite impressive. When they encountered a powerful demon, several people could take it down. It could be seen that they had mastered quite powerful hunting methods, specifically targeting the monsters in the forest. Especially the experts of the sex who had the body of a half-bird, their strength was extremely powerful. There were some cultivators who were particularly powerful and could use divine arts to fight their enemies. The divine power spells of the five elements appeared in front of He Chuan. With his strength, he could only care about the safety of the young men of Wudong village. As for the young men from the other villages, if they were smart enough to follow Wudong village, they could still keep their lives. If they were to run around randomly, He Chuan would not expose himself for their safety. After spending some time together, he realized the disciples who controlled the mountain village were quite extreme. He wondered if they were influenced by the semi-monster. He felt that they seemed to hate a certain group. He Chuan didn't care too much. He was more curious about the half-witted methods of these sect experts. According to Xuan Huan Point, he had an immature transformation technique. No matter what, after these sect experts transformed into half-monsters, they possessed a portion of the strength of a monster, which was quite exaggerated. He Chuan didn't reveal any extraordinary strength. Instead, he brought out the limits of his physical fitness. With the long stick that was harder than gold and iron in hand, no matter what kind of strength or form the spiritual monster attacked, it would not be able to break through the attack area of the long stick. Coupled with the strength of his single hand, he was a rather powerful existence that no one dared to underestimate. Because he did not show any signs of divine power spells, although he attracted the attention of the sect experts leading the team, they did not investigate too much. Perhaps it was because he had been deep in the forest for too long, or because they had fought together, the experts of the sect trusted him enough. After fighting for almost two months, they did not avoid He Chuan's gaze and personally demonstrated how to turn into a half-monster. The hidden tattoos on their bodies shone like totems, and the tattoos covered in the blood of monsters seemed to open a certain barrier. He could clearly sense that some incredible changes were happening in the body of the sect expert who was about to turn into a half-monster. A certain part of his body gradually turned into a demon, and his strength increased rapidly. He Chuan felt that this method was not perfect enough. This was because there was a huge difference between a human body and a spiritual monster. The combination of half-human and half-monster not only gave him a strange sight but also gave him a rather chaotic feeling. The stronger the semi-monster, the more inappropriate it felt. 
He Chuan used an excuse to reject the invitation from the sect leader, but he knew that such an excuse would not last long. These guys' personalities were too extreme. They would use the method of mutual destruction at the drop of a hat. He Chuan did not want to get too close to them. After this hunting event ended, and sent the young men of Wudong village back safely, he had to leave quietly. He didn't want to look for trouble. Who would have thought that they would encounter a four-clawed flood dragon in the end? Just the dragon's might alone was not something that hunters could withstand. The four-clawed flood dragon also had divine powers. Frost fell from the sky within a hundred miles. The rapidly falling temperature could freeze the spiritual energy in their bodies, causing the sect experts who were hunting to become weak shrimps. The flood dragon's dragon might have a rather obvious suppressive effect on their half-monster bodies. Even He Chuan was very surprised at first. He was not affected much, but he did not have any intention of attacking the four-clawed flood dragon. He picked up Wudong village and the young men from the other villages and flew out of the range affected by the four-clawed flood dragon at his fastest speed. He Chuan could clearly sense he was locked onto by the four-clawed flood dragon. He didn't have the intention to continue running away with his men. He instructed them to quickly escape along the original path, then turned around and flew away. His three months in Wudong village had not been in vain. His physical fitness gradually adapted to the environment of the heaven realm, and his flying speed was astonishing. When flying, his skin rippled like water. Streams of force that were difficult to discern with the naked eye lifted him up into the sky. Flying at the speed of sound. Feeling the aura of the four-clawed flood dragon behind him, he was depressed. At the same time, he pointed at the void behind him. An incredible power formed a barrier for the four-clawed flood dragon chasing after him. The four-clawed flood dragon crashed into the barrier and lost its direction. He Chuan took this opportunity to fly out of the forest. He could not help but heave a sigh of relief when he landed on the ground. The heaven realm was indeed dangerous. He had only been here for less than half a year and he had already encountered a four-clawed flood dragon. Even though he didn't fight directly, the strong premonition in his heart and the heavy heart he felt when facing the four-clawed flood dragon were rather disadvantageous to him. With his powerful soul strength, he could even fight against a four-clawed flood dragon. The accumulation in the great world was He Chuan's greatest confidence. His cultivation had already reached a terrifying level. When facing the four-clawed flood dragon, although he felt pressured, he did not feel suppressed. However, he was not confident that he could take on the four-clawed flood dragon head-on. He Chuan's understanding of the heaven realm was still too little. After landing, he carefully observed the desolate environment around him and casually found a direction to walk in. He had to find a place with people as soon as possible. It would be best if it was a crowded place. That way, he could hide in the city. He had to complete the tempering of his body as soon as possible and then start a higher level of cultivation. Who knew how deep the water in the heaven realm was? Time passed, and in the blink of an eye, half a year had passed. He Chuan mingled with the human race's residents and traveled back and forth to various large cities as a wanderer. Chapter, 450 His body had adapted to the environment of the heavenly realm and had even been strengthened to a certain extent. He had mingled in the mercenary world mainly because it was convenient for him to gather information. After half a year of searching, he had a clearer understanding of the general situation of the Heaven Realm. The Heaven Realm was quite vast. It was unknown how large the land and ocean area was. It also included the starry sky above his head and the many small worlds attached to the Heaven Realm. The information about the small world was not a secret in the Heaven Realm. The great world that He Chuan came from was actually just one of many small worlds. As for the specific situation of these small worlds, he did not know much. There were not only humans in the heaven realm. There were also all kinds of demons, and there were even evil cultivators and spirit body cultivators. The human forces were mainly dependent on the sex, and the great divine arts practitioners survived. There were also empires below, and there were also family-style territories. Humans were not the rulers of the heaven realm. They had to fight for living space with the demon race. All kinds of fierce battles and killings often occurred. The heaven realm was not peaceful. 
he didn't have much interest in participating and didn't have the mood to care. It was just that the cultivation resources of the humans in the heaven realm, including cultivation techniques and various spiritual medicines and magical treasures, were basically monopolized by those large sects and divine arts practitioners. The so-called small world he was born in and the cultivation techniques he had learned were considered cultivation resources that could be considered eye-catching in his current environment. How would each one view this situation? To put it bluntly, the inheritance he obtained from the Wudong village ancestral temple when he first arrived could cause a bloody storm if it was released. According to the secret cultivation technique of the Star General, if one cultivated it to the peak, they could become an existence guarding a region of the human race. A great war had broken out many years ago, forcing them to adopt the extreme cultivation method of demonization, barely stopping the terrifying demon army. Later on, the human race stabilized the front line and reached an agreement. The human race, which used extreme demonization methods, was completely abandoned. Because of their cultivation methods, they were no longer tolerated by the human race. He could only retreat into the forest and struggle to survive. He Chuan was extremely lucky when he first arrived, and he actually obtained the highest level of cultivation method. However, he believed in the check-in system. It was his greatest reliance. Perhaps a better cultivation technique would drop somewhere. Many regions of the heaven realm were divided into three, six, and nine grades. If one could cultivate to the celestial realm, they would be qualified to enjoy the best cultivation environment in the heaven realm. Above the mortal realm was the celestial realm. It was the gathering place of the ascendance of the scorching sun empire. It had jurisdiction of a hundred thousand miles. In the past few years, a rather fierce expert had suddenly appeared in the unremarkable scorching sun region of the surrounding human territory. He Chuan had already stepped into a celestial realm. With his impressive battle results, he quickly became the most famous powerhouse in the scorching sun. He Chuan had no other choice. In the scorching sun region, there was a need to fight for everything, so he might as well go all out to fight for the resources he needed. After all, he still had to bring his wife and children to the upper realm. They could not live in the forest, right? The heaven realm needed to work harder on cultivation. He needed to help his family lay the foundation. He had reached the sixth rank celestial realm and possessed extraordinary strength. Without fighting him personally, no one had any idea what level He Chuan's strength and realm had reached. He Chuan had obtained a considerable amount of cultivation resources and all kinds of natural treasures to assist in his cultivation. When He Chuan came to the heaven realm, his strength increased by leaps and bounds, but he encountered trouble that he was unprepared for. His cultivation technique had encountered a bottleneck and was actually unable to continue improving. Emperor Zi Wei's legacy cultivation technique allowed his essence, spiritual energy, and spirit to form a perfect state of fusion. It could even form the effect of a paradise. Whether it was for his own cultivation or for the improvement of his close friends, it had a rather shocking effect. When he first arrived, he had been adapting to the environment. After leaving the hundreds of thousands of mountains and forests, he had wandered around a human settlement with a radius of a million miles. For safety reasons, he hadn't revealed such an ability. When he reached the Scorching Sun Empire, he would be able to rely on his powerful strength to successfully establish himself. He would then want to improve his strength. Activating Emperor Zi Wei's legacy cultivation technique and interacting with the spiritual energy of heaven and earth in the surroundings would be beneficial to him no matter which aspect he could improve in. However, He Chuan realized he had reached a bottleneck. After careful study, he discovered there was a problem with the soul. His physical fitness had already completely adapted to the environment of the heaven realm, but his soul had not reached the standard. His divine soul power was absolutely astonishing. It could even be said that it was not inferior to an ordinary celestial sovereign. However, he was surprised to find that his own spiritual power was indeed as vast as the sea. The quantity was absolutely astonishing, but the quality was somewhat lacking. After all, his spiritual power was slowly improving in the world below through the system's enhancement. He Chuan's current divine soul was not pure enough. He needed to reach a level that was compatible with the heaven realm's environment. He had a specialized divine soul cultivation technique, so it was not a big problem. 
however, he did not know if his family could cultivate it. He would first find some low-quality divine soul cultivation techniques. However, even the founder of the Scorching Sun Empire did not have such a thing. If he sought refuge with a major faction or a powerful expert, he would have a chance to obtain a divine soul cultivation technique. However, he Chuan could not be inferior to others. With his strength and system, it was only a matter of time before he stood at the peak of the heaven realm. He had other ideas, but he wasn't very confident. All sorts of thoughts surged in his mind, but he did not show any signs of revealing them. In the scorching sun region, there was a forbidden area that belonged to one's own cultivation. If one concentrated on cultivating, they basically did not have to worry about being disturbed by the outside world. It was located at the border between the East Sea and the North region. It started from the depths of the desert in the West State and stretched for thousands of miles. It went east to the East Sea and went deep into it. There was a broken valley in the middle, and the source of the two ends could not be seen. However, it was like two worlds on the left and right of the mountain range. The border of the East Sea was a vast grassland that was full of vitality. There were many herder tribes. The border of the North region was a glacier valley, filled with only savage beasts. At this moment, at the border of the Northern Ice region, a youth was lying on the thick layer of ice. This was a man in his twenties, but his face was full of stubble and he looked very haggard. He seemed to be dead but was actually alive. His breathing was weak but never stopped. He lay on the ice like a living dead. The only thing that was slightly clean on his body was his flawless, thin face. However, it was now slightly purple from the cold. The pendant in front of his chest emitted wisps of purple energy. Most of it entered the man's body and nourished his broken body. There was also a small portion that flowed out and spread out from the man's body. It seemed ordinary, but it scared off all the beasts. A few huge vultures were circling in the sky, chirping. However, it was afraid and did not dare to land. Under the night sky, the man's surroundings were lit up by fireflies. It was the greedy gaze of many hibernating beasts, coveting the flesh and blood of humans. Finally, one of the berserk beasts could no longer endure it and took the lead to walk toward the body. This was a ferocious beast unique to the northern ice region. Its entire body was covered in white fur, and it looked like a tiger or a green ox. There was a horn on its forehead that was crystal clear. It bared its sharp fangs and approached the corpse, but it was also extremely careful. His eyes were fixed on the aura that was leaking out. That was because the seemingly harmless aura made it feel great pressure and the aura of death. Chapter 451 he Chuan received news a treasure had appeared in a vain death city in the heaven realm, which could quickly increase his strength. There were some things in the heaven realm that were indeed not inferior to the things rewarded by the system. After all, the spiritual energy in this place was especially dense. He was prepared to try his luck. However, he was quite famous in Scorching Sun City now, so he had to be careful. This was because old foxes who had lived for 10,000 years were really too difficult to deal with. If he was not careful, he would fall into their trap. Perhaps someone was secretly watching him now. He had to pay more attention in the future. Knock knock knock. Someone knocked on the door. A red-haired woman entered. The woman had long eyebrows and eyes, and her vertical pupils revealed a trace of timidity. Young master, the things are ready. Wang Mengxi said shyly. Wang Mengxi was a female cultivator from the Scorching Sun realm. At that time, she was being pursued by demons, and He Chuan happened to save her. From then on, Wang Mengxi insisted on following him. This is a blood essence pill. Consuming it can stimulate one's bloodline. He Chuan took out a jade bottle from his storage bag. There were five crimson red pills inside. The blood essence pill was an essential pill for cultivators. It could stimulate and strengthen one's bloodline. Wang Mengxi was a native of the heaven realm, but her bloodline had not been activated. He Chuan's wisdom I looked over and showed that her potential was not bad. After sending Wang Mengxi away, He Chuan heaved a sigh of relief. The woman was pretty, but He Chuan didn't like most of the beast race. Unless it was an innate elf or some divine beast. 
this kind of divine beast had a noble bloodline and a strict hierarchy. It did not have the messy and dirty things that other demons did. Scorching Sun City was rich in resources. Even if they couldn't find any treasures, they could still collect ordinary resources. Those that were not needed could be exchanged with each other. As he absorbed the origin, more and more information surged into his mind. The Vain Death City was vast and boundless. It was the place where the living beings of the various worlds lived after they died. It was the place where the Lord of the Dead Area reigned. The Vain Death City is divided into ten regions. The Reincarnation Palace Realm, one of the ten realms, was where the Judge lived. The Judge was the guardian of the Reincarnation Palace when the undead entered the Reincarnation Palace. He guarded the Bridge of Helplessness to prevent demons from causing trouble. He Chuan didn't know why he had ended up here, and the message didn't make it clear. Just knowing this was enough to shock everyone. It turned out that the Heaven Realm did not refer to a single world. However, each world was separated by trillions of miles. Without a specific array or divine power, crossing a realm was probably more complicated than ascending to the heavens. Experts who could travel freely between the various realms were very desirable. He Chuan was only in a celestial realm now and was still a long way from becoming an immortal venerate. It was better to deal with the current situation first. In the past three days, he had finally completely digested this item. Ding! Congratulations to the host for obtaining the black and white impermanence blood sacrifice technique and the northern Yin purgatory forging technique. He Chuan was surprised. These two cultivation techniques actually appeared. Wasn't the black and white impermanence the legendary ability of the mighty figures of the vain death city? Why would the judge have such a thing? There was only the first volume of the northern Yin purgatory mountain, which was the forging technique of the long snake spitting flames and the metal dog spitting smoke. The prerequisite for cultivating the northern Yin Purgatory Mountain was to become an immortal venerate. Immortal venerates had domains. After cultivating this technique, the domain they would unleash would be the northern Yin Purgatory Mountain. There were many kinds of punishments in the northern Yin Purgatory Mountain. When a domain reached peak immortal venerate, it would evolve into a paradise. What He Chuan had entered was actually the judge's inner paradise. A cultivation method that only immortal venerables can use He Chuan pondered endlessly in his heart. He was not qualified to become an immortal venerable yet. After becoming an immortal venerable, he cultivated this technique and transformed his domain into the northern Yin Purgatory Mountain. The black and white impermanence Yin soldiers in front could be refined. Just as he was thinking, the jade token in He Chuan's arms suddenly lit up. This was the Scorching Sun Empire's transmission token. The heat of this card meant he was about to be teleported out. Wen Chao Chu. He Chuan hurriedly called Wen Chao Chu over. Greetings, my lord. The white-haired middle-aged man ran over. How many resources have you collected? He Chuan asked. My lord, there are five hundred caddies of young god grass, ten vermilion fruits as he spoke, Wen Chao Chu opened his storage space. These were all rare and precious medicinal herbs, but they could actually be weighed by caddy here. I estimate that it's worth about five zero zero spirit stones. Barely enough. It was opened once every hundred years and he only gained five zero zero spirit stones. It could only be said that it was barely worth it. He did not know if it was enough for cultivation. He Chuan then walked out and appeared on the city wall in a flash. Screech. This fiery red phoenix. The moment the phoenix appeared, birds of various colors flew over from the treehouse below. These winged birdmen flew around the phoenix with respectful expressions. This came from the worship of the strong. No matter what these people were thinking, this kind of reverence that originated from the depths of their bloodline was something they could not resist. I'm going to look for opportunities. During this period, Wang Mengxi will be in charge of internal and external affairs. Search for opportunities. Has the city lord's cultivation reached this level? Everyone was shocked. They only had admiration and respect for He Chuan. Of course, there were still many who did not believe it. Finding opportunities was not that easy, especially in the heaven realm. A series of loud sounds came from the void. 
In an instant, the situation changed. The dark clouds formed a vortex under some unknown force. He Chuan stood below the vortex. In less than ten years, this lord will definitely return. He Chuan's figure was sucked into the vortex and disappeared. Before he left, he asked everyone to plant some precious plants. The more they planted, the better. He could harvest them when he came back. For the sake of his family in the lower realm, he had to work harder so they could have a better environment to survive. He Chuan's figure appeared in the vortex. Three thousand feet below his feet was the golden palace on the top of the mountain. Seeing that there was no one below, He Chuan landed on the ground. More and more vortexes appeared in the sky, and one of them suddenly exploded. The fellow Taoists that were about to come out were blasted into pieces. Two streaks of light flew out from within and disappeared into the horizon. He didn't expect there would be so many people who came to snatch the opportunity. How could they be so accurate? They use his strength to cross space. It seemed that there were many spies in the Scorching Sun Empire. From time to time, people would come out of the vortex. Some people fought fiercely because they were fighting for positions. Seeing this, He Chuan retreated a few miles. He didn't want to get involved in these things. A total of five streaks of light flew by. Finally, another one appeared. Huh, fellow Daoist Emperor Yuan. There's still a long way to go. King Qian laughed loudly and his figure also disappeared. Bastard. Stay there. A loud roar sounded, and a giant that was ten zero zero feet tall flew out of the vortex. The square-headed, round-eyed giant bared his teeth and roared. He pulled up the palace on the mountaintop and threw it at the departing King Qian. The domain spread out, and the world changed. It was as if everyone had been teleported to the vast wilderness. There was nothing in the surroundings except for the giant in front of him. Just a glance at it gave off a strong sense of oppression. The ghostly hand held on to the palace as it took two steps forward, crossing tens of thousands of miles and arriving in front of King Qian. King Qian, who was full of confidence just now, froze when he saw Emperor Yuan. King Qian's reaction was extremely fast. The moment the giant appeared in front of him, he immediately grew to twenty zero zero feet tall. This was a giant statue in a purple robe. Chapter 452 The statue was holding the flaming divine spear. The spear collided with the palace. With the two of them as the center, the crack spread in all directions, covering a radius of a thousand miles. When the aftereffects came, the entire earth was turned upside down. The mountain peak collapsed, and rocks flew into the air. A radius of a thousand miles became a land of peril. This was not the end. The two of them exchanged three moves in a row. Every time they exchanged blows, the power emitted would affect the surrounding thousands of miles. He Chuan used his divine eyes to observe and was extremely shocked. The fight between the two was like the collision of two worlds. Emperor Yuan's Grey Domain and the statue's Scarlet Domain. Every move they made was followed by the power of heaven and earth. They weren't fighting as humans, but with the power of heaven and earth. That was why their destructive power was so powerful. No wonder people called them the Celestial Lord. They were suitable to fight outside the planet. Fortunately, this place was large enough, or else it would not be able to withstand their battle. If it was a great world, these few strikes would probably cause the end of the world. The battle continued. King Qian parried as he ran. Facing the furious Emperor Yuan, he could only retreat a little. Do you feel shocked? This is the power of the immortal venerable domain. A bell-like voice came from behind He Chuan. A beautiful and enchanting woman appeared behind him at some point, and He Chuan's figure was reflected in her blood-red eyes. So it's Goddess Sixiao. He Chuan cupped his hands, this is the first time I've seen a battle between immortal venerable. I'm truly amazed. Many experts chose to watch. There was no way they could interfere in a battle of this level. Just the collision of domains was enough to make them suffer. Immortal venerables borrow the power of heaven and earth. If not, how could they fight in the boundless void? Goddess Sixia said with a smile. 
The void was easily measured by tens of thousands of miles. Furthermore, the void didn't even have the essence of heaven and earth. Ordinary experts would simply be courting death if they went up there. After using up their magic power, they would never be able to recover. They were no different from mortals. Immortal Venerable could open up their domains. It could extract the essence of heaven and earth from the vast void to recover. I see. He Chuan nodded and the two of them started chatting. The Scorching Sun Empire only had the peak Immortal Venerable, Emperor Yuan. The remaining five were all Celestial Masters or Peak Celestial Masters. The only one who had a chance of becoming an Immortal Venerable was Eastern Monarch. You don't have to belittle yourself. I've heard Xin Yue talk about your deeds. It's not easy for you to grow to where you are now. Goddess Xixia smiled flirtatiously. The Shura clan was cruel and cunning. She had long seen that Xin Yue was passionate about power and was loyal. This kind of woman was very rare. Subduing their hearts would allow them to gain loyal and capable subordinates. For the Shura clan, which was dominated by females but lacked talents. Such a female talent was indeed rare. Rather than being a maid, it was better to contribute to the West Palace and control power. During the time when everyone had entered the vain death city, Goddess Zixia had specifically instructed her subordinates to take down the Xinyue sisters by coercion and bribery. Be it being a servant or being the master of the house, the future would be brighter. With Xinyue's personality, she knew what to choose. I've learned my lesson. Hearing Goddess Zixia's words, He Chuan pretended to be surprised. The surprise flashed across his face and then disappeared. He smiled bitterly. It seemed that Xin Yue had already entered the enemy's core. Goddess Sixia would never have thought that the so-called prohibition was just a cover, and the Xin Yue Yin God was just a subsidiary. If one wasn't a cultivator proficient in the Tao of the mind, they really wouldn't be able to discover the secret. The two of them communicated with each other with ulterior motives. The battle on the other side finally came to an end. King Qian took out an imperial edict. He threw it into the air, and the golden imperial edict flew away, covering the sky and the sun. A huge golden hand stretched out from it. The golden hand covered the sky, and behind it was an even larger torso. Just his palm alone was as big as Emperor Yuan's body. Boom! The giant hand pressed down. The invisible airwave pressed down on the ground, causing it to drop by three feet. There was a white compressed airflow on his palm. God King? Emperor Yuan's expression changed drastically. He quickly put away the palace and retreated. The giant hand missed its target and smashed a deep hole in a radius of a thousand miles. As time passed, the rainwater gathered and turned into an ocean. Countless lives were lost in this battle, but no one cared about it. King Qian fled far away and did not dare to stay. If this dragged on, who knew what they would do? Strictly investigate. Emperor Yuan's face was as dark as water as he looked at King Qian's departing back and gritted his teeth. With King Qian's smug look, he must have gotten a lot of benefits. This was the accumulation of the vain death city for a hundred years. If they had a share, the others would have a smaller share. Fortunately, they did not find the corpse of the Yin Lord. Emperor Yuan's eyes were like torches as he swept across the crowd with dense killing intent. Who leaked the news? Everyone looked at each other with some doubt in their eyes. There were even people who stood up and prepared to trip their opponents. Slow down. You guys go back first. I will find you. No one can escape. Emperor Yuan sneered. It was getting harder and harder to lead a team. The Scorching Sun Empire and the Vain Death City were mortal enemies. The two sides were equally matched. After King Dianxing broke through to the peak of the Immortal Venerable Realm, the situation began to shift to his side. Someone couldn't stand it anymore. Emperor Yuan's gaze made everyone's hair stand on end. Some of the elders recalled the capricious, vicious, and ruthless Emperor Yuan. These few years, Emperor Yuan had been focusing on cultivation and concealing his sharpness. Now that the tiger had awakened, it opened its eyes to kill. Emperor Yuan was not a reasonable person. He would rather kill the wrong person than let them go. 
As long as they had doubts about you, they would definitely die. Everyone went back in a perturbed mood. Only Emperor Yuan was left. The indomitable figure seemed a little desolate at this moment. He Chuan came to Yin Mountain. All these years, he had an identity in the vain death city, but he was not a spy. Yin Mountain was cold and cheerless. There was a mystery in He Chuan's heart that could not be solved. Who was the one who caused the judge to fall into such a situation? What made the judge hide instead of contacting Dead River? He Chuan was the most confused about this trip to the vain death city. Logically speaking, the judge would have contacted the River of Death for reinforcements. After all, the judge still had quite a bit of strength left. He Chuan didn't know if he could return to Dead River, but at least he should be able to contact Dead River. However, he had been hiding in the vain death city. The conclusion he came to was that something had happened in the Dead River, or that the Dead River had put this guy on the wanted list. As for the reason. He was even more curious. The biggest gain this time was the source of the Dead River. It increased his cultivation by another 60 years, and now his total cultivation was about 2,500 years. He Chuan's cultivation was much higher than theirs. It was no exaggeration to say that there were not many celestial masters who could defeat him. Now, he had more confidence in transcending the tribulation. At the same time, he would use the resources he had collected to improve his Dharma treasure restrictions. With a thought, a green figure appeared in front of him. Star-like eyes, white teeth, a beautiful young lady from a small family. No one would have thought she was the original soul of the Golden Bridge of Helplessness from the Dead River, the existence that suppressed countless demons. Master. The little dragon girl bowed. Prepare the seventh metal, red copper, human blood, and the human fetus he Chuan said. The vain death city was very interesting. There were large-scale demon factions in other worlds. However, there was none here. It was almost the world of the human race. Chapter, 453 The demon race was only a scattered territory and had no organization. Due to the 28 talismans, there were about 100 square kilometers of land in addition to the palace. He Chuan rebuilt the palace outside the Nainin Palace. In front of him was a 200-foot-tall building. Yellow tiles, white walls, carved beams, and painted pillars. At the entrance of the hall, there was a golden signboard that read, Military Altar. He Chuan named this place the Military Altar, which would be his future training ground. He arrived at the inner part of the hall. The entire hall was made of white marble that was as smooth as a mirror. It was spotless and carved with dust removal arrays, meditation arrays, and energy gathering arrays. A research was needed to eliminate all external influences. Dust, soil, and foul air were not allowed to exist. On the left side of the hall was a prison, which held about twenty people. Other than humans, there were also other strange creatures. Dragon-headed people, three-headed people, cat people, and so on. Most of them were mutants, while mortals were the minority. There was no need to catch them personally. There were similar trading companies in the ghost market under the jurisdiction of the vain death city. As long as you gave them spirit stones, they could even capture the emperor and empress of a small world dynasty. The prison environment was not too bad. The floor was clean, there was water and food. In order to avoid the stench, he was wearing a special dust cleaning suit. Further in was an even more luxurious prison cell. The people living inside were not ordinary. Firstly, they were a cultivator. Secondly, they were a cultivator born in the Yin era, the Yin sun, the Yin moon, and the Yin year. Extreme Yin physique required males, and extreme Yang physique required females. He Chuan spent a lot of spirit stones to find these three people. In the middle was a clean high platform. He Chuan sat on the chair next to him, took out a clean booklet from his pocket, and read it carefully. This was the secret manual rewarded by the system. It was a special secret manual that he had signed in at the Vain Death City. There was black and white impermanence in every hall of the Vain Death City. They were essentially the incarnations of these two people. The soul-seducing power these two possessed was extremely powerful. Ordinary people would not be able to compete with them just by relying on cultivation. 
the book described the refining method of the black and white impermanence. As long as one artificially created a bloodline and used special methods, they could create something to replace them. Moreover, the black and white impermanence could also clone themselves. He Chuan felt that it was strange why one wanted to replace the black and white impermanence. Could it be that they wanted to establish their own sect? He Chuan thought of a possibility. First, he created his own northern In Purgatory Mountain, and then he created the black and white impermanence that was not controlled by the headquarters. This guy might have the idea of overstepping his authority. No matter what, he had to research the black and white impermanence first. Black and white impermanence were skilled in soul seizing, and when they worked together with the golden bridge of helplessness, they would be much more powerful. This thing was not a Tao soldier rather, it was equivalent to creating a mutant human, a brand new race, with descendants of this type of bloodline. He Chuan sat at the edge of the platform. At the same time, he took out strange herbs and animal limbs and put them into the cauldron to refine. Black and white corresponded to yin and yang. Humans in the world were divided into men and women. Men had yin spirits and yang souls, while women had yang spirits and yin souls. Any ghost would not be able to move when they saw the black and white impermanence. This was because yin and yang attracted each other, the same sex repelled each other, and the opposite sex attracted each other. When the male ghost saw white impermanence, he was actually sucked in. It was the same for women when they met black impermanence. When the two of them became one, no matter what ghosts encountered them, they would be lured away obediently. This was a restraint that came from the soul, and it wasn't something ordinary spells and divine arts could compare to. Therefore, the key to creating the black and white impermanence was to artificially create this extreme yin and yang physique. The judge's method was to artificially remove the yin and yang of their souls without letting them die, thus creating the extreme yin and yang of impermanence. What he Chuan was brewing now was something that would take a long time. He had stayed in the military altar for half a month. The medicine was refined, but the effect was not very good. Perhaps it was because he had used too many substitutes. After all, some of the materials could only be found in the vain death city. Helplessly, he could only settle for the second best, but the effect was greatly reduced. Therefore, the most important thing now was to refine it. What would happen if the northern In Hell Mountain was built in the form of a magical treasure? A thought flashed through He Chuan's mind. If he couldn't cultivate divine powers, he could use magic treasures. At the very least, he could create a magical treasure space that was like hell and could take people in. This space could not only hold people, but more importantly, it could also hold huge things. The heaven and earth millstone could do it, but it would lose its flavor. He would go back and flip through the books to see if there were any storage restrictions that could be compared. Three days later. The yellow talisman turned into ashes in front of He Chuan. He Chuan frowned. This was a letter from the little dragon girl. Someone should be visiting. He Chuan's figure appeared in the main hall of the cave abode. Sir, Emperor Yuan Palace Master is here to visit. The little dragon girl stepped forward and said. As soon as he finished speaking, a hearty laugh came from outside the door. They came with ill intentions. During this period of time, Emperor Yuan had been searching for the mole and had already killed six people, all of whom were celestial masters. Ha! Judge he! Emperor Yuan's hearty laughter came from outside the door. A figure suddenly appeared in front of He Chuan. Emperor Yuan now looked like a five foot tall boy. His voice was tender, but he pretended to be deep, giving people a funny feeling. However, no one dared to joke around. Especially these few days when Emperor Yuan went on a killing spree and six Emperian powerhouses died. As long as they caught evidence of communicating with the enemy, they would face endless torture. If you didn't confess and refuse to admit it, he would continue torturing you. If you confessed, you would be sentenced to death immediately. Why didn't I sense your aura just now? Where did you go? Emperor Yuan picked up the teacup and took a sip. I'm in seclusion. He Chuan's expression was normal. He took the initiative to show the other party the small world he had created, or rather, the small space. Inside was a pitch-black world. 
At the center of the world was a palace with yellow tiles and white walls. Emperor Yuan didn't say anything and entered in a flash. Nothing could escape his eyes. What is this? Then, he entered the military altar and saw the prisoners. Emperor Yuan asked in puzzlement. I'm researching a new type of Tao soldier, imitating the black and white impermanence of the Dead River. Any results? Cough, no. I managed to find a few prescriptions by accident. One asked and one answered. Emperor Yuan walked in front of the glass jar. The jar was as thick as a human's elbow, and it contained the head of a black cat. It was soaked in green liquid, and there was a talisman on it. The cat blinked. Interesting. Emperor Yuan saw the magical effect of this item and could not help but sigh at He Chuan's wonderful ideas. Different from ordinary corpse refinement techniques, this method guaranteed the vitality of the materials. Even if soaked for hundreds of years, they would still be brand new. The imitation black and white impermanence is at best called a soul-seizing Tao soldier. The real black and white impermanence isn't like this. You can go to the library to read some books some other day. Emperor Yuan paced around with He Chuan following behind him. Emperor Yuan looked at the thin piece of paper on the stage. On it, there was a mess of Death River Yin Seal script. Long snake, poisonous fire, iron dog, hell, restrictions, magic treasures what are you doing? Emperor Yuan barely recognized a few terms. Chapter, 454 I've read about the serpent hell in the underworld classics. I plan to create a hell in the form of a magic treasure. He Chuan was glad it was just an ordinary manuscript. Hell treasure. The idea is not bad, but the inside of the magic treasure needs to have enough space to accommodate others. As expected of a veteran expert, Emperor Yuan could see the essence of the problem. It was the most difficult to forge a magic treasure that could take in people and had a space inside. There was no universal method of making it, it had always been a magic tool. You used the star jade fragments as the raw material and then refined it with the divine gourd. It should be about the same. Emperor Yuan thought for a moment and said. It was a high-level formation commonly used by sects. Many magic treasures with internal spaces used this method. The disadvantage was that it was not very stable and was not suitable for offensive magic treasures. Usually, people used it for storage. The stone in the sky was the foundation of the small grotto heaven, but he did not know what the star jade fragment was. I wonder what the star jade fragments are. He Chuan asked. Star jade fragments are the fragments left when a star is destroyed. Due to the high temperature, many origins and the earth have been compressed into tiny particles. These particles are crystal clear, and they are also called jade fragments. Emperor Yuan gestured with his two thumbs. 500 zero, zero caddies with just this. He Chuan said in shock. How high is the pressure of star destruction? Even a rock the size of a cave abode can be compressed into a grain of rice. Emperor Yuan laughed. He had once unintentionally witnessed the stars being destroyed, and the scene was truly unforgettable. Whether it was immortal venerable or peak immortal venerable, they were as tiny as ants in front of the power of the star destruction. Star jade fragments are about 100 million spirit stones. Everyone knew that spirit stones were the energy of heaven realm cultivators. One spirit stone was equivalent to several days of cultivation. The higher the level of a cultivator, the more spirit stones they used. I have a mission for you. Emperor Yuan suddenly thought of something and patted He Chuan's shoulder. What mission? He Chuan asked with some doubt. The Scorching Sun Empire has recently broken off diplomatic relations with the Vain Death City. Many trade routes have been cut off. You are in charge of opening up new trade routes. After saying that, Emperor Yuan threw over a map. It's actually in the sky. He Chuan took it and immediately frowned. This city was called Sky City, and it circled around the Vain Death City. It was about 300,000 feet away from the ground. This place gathers resources from all directions and is one of the ten great cities of the Vain Death City. It's controlled by God King Tian Huang. I've already contacted Emperor God King's people. After Emperor Yuan said that, he walked out of the small space. 
the two of them stood in the middle of the main hall and looked at each other. This lord won't kill people randomly. Don't be too nervous. Did you hear that I'm temperamental? Emperor Yuan smiled mysteriously. This lord know it in my heart. The left side is the value of everyone, and the right side is the value of everyone's uselessness. When your left side is greater than your right side, you can make fun of me at will and call me brother. If you make a mistake, you can forgive me. Without waiting for He Chuan's reply, Emperor Yuan stretched out his hands, palms facing up, palms level. I understand. He Chuan pondered for a moment, and the smile on his face gradually widened. Emperor Yuan jumped into the void and left. He Chuan watched him leave silently and heaved a sigh of relief. Today's words made him understand the limits of these people in the vain death city. It was because he had value and was needed by others. On this basis, he did not care about doing things that went overboard. Why were the other six celestial masters killed, but he Chuan, the judge who had just joined the vain death city, the most suspicious person, was not killed? Because he Chuan was valuable, he would not suffer from Emperor Yuan's iron fist. This kind of exchange of benefits made him feel very comfortable. The relationship between people was the strongest. Although many people were unwilling to admit that the world of adults was about interests. After Emperor Yuan left, He Chuan calmed down and carefully thought about his next cultivation path. If the expenses of refining magic treasures and other aspects were included, the spirit stones would probably take at most ten years. Not to mention the black and white impermanences and the northern Yin Hell Mountain, which were the main sources of resources. He had to think of a way to bring his family over. However, staying in the vain death city was fine. He wouldn't consider it. The cultivators here were too dark. It seemed that he still had to earn more spirit stones. After Emperor Yuan's reminder, He Chuan felt getting more star jade fragments was the right way. The only thing in him that was probably useful to immortal venerates was probably what the system gave him. He Chuan planned to delve deeper into it and improve his eight-hold golden core. Especially the spirit birth pill and the spiritual elixir, which had the effect of increasing the efficiency of immortal venerate. The first two could injure an immortal venerate and should be sold for a good price. Since he had the formula, he couldn't turn it into a pill formula. He just had to change the refining method. Little dragon girl, give me another thirty sets of materials. They would leave the day after tomorrow. There were still two days left. He should be able to refine quite a few things, and he would have time to refine them on the way. Three days later, He Chuan came out of seclusion with the small box. Yu Mingzi were waiting in front of the judge's cave abode. Fellow Daoist judge He. Yu Mingzi bowed to He Chuan. Fellow Daoist, are you going too? He Chuan was puzzled. That's not it. I'm here to lead the way for you. You have to take the God King's flying shuttle to the Sky City. Yu Ming Zi reminded him. It's almost time to go. He actually didn't have much to pack. Most of the important items were kept in his own palace. The two of them arrived at the top of the mountain. Emperor Yuan squatted on the stool and looked at the two of them. When he saw their gazes, he even smiled and nodded. An hour later. A red meteor flew over from the horizon with a long flaming tail. His target was the golden palace below. The meteor was extremely fast. It was still on the horizon a second ago, but it was almost below the golden palace in the next moment. The meteor tore through the void with a violent roar, its sound reverberating for a hundred miles. This is the God King's Emperor Star Shuttle. It's made of fuso wood. It was said that fuso wood was energy in the extreme east, where the sun rose. This wood was resistant to high temperatures and could be used as a material for the Emperor Star Shuttle. The loud noise disappeared, and a scarlet shuttle slowly descended from above. Rocket? He Chuan blurted out. The thing in front of him was too similar. Its entire body was crimson red, with dense veins. The top was sharp, and the bottom was flat. It was placed straight on the ground. The shuttle wasn't big, about two zhang in diameter. Fellow Daoist, you have a good imagination. The cabin door opened, and a sage-like old man with a long beard walked out. 
The old man was wearing a purple gold Daoist robe. Fellow Daoist Wumu. Yu Mingzi smiled as he stepped forward and greeted the old Daoist. The old Daoist was an elder of the God King and had the cultivation of a celestial realm. The two of them had a close personal relationship and had come here today to receive him. Ha, huh, is this fellow Daoist Judge He? Wu Mu's narrowed eyes suddenly opened. It was a pair of terrifying eyes. There were no pupils in his eyes. His pupils were like stars scattered around the white of his eyes. The black spots were like stars, flashing with sparkling light from time to time. Greetings, Daoist Brother Wu Mu. He Chuan bowed. Greetings, Lord Emperor Yuan. Wu Mu smiled and nodded. Then, he looked at Emperor Yuan and bowed respectfully. Stand up. How is Hades's health? Yuan Emperor regained his adult voice. Lord Hades is currently in seclusion. He can't come this time, so he asked me to send his regards. No worries. Emperor Yuan waved his hand, indicating that he didn't care. Chapter 455 Hades' palace was a major power on the same level as the Vain Death City. They also had peak immortal venerable experts. The God King was a subordinate faction of the Hades' palace. That was why he went into seclusion at the Hades' palace. I'll bring fellow Daoist Judge He over first. We'll meet again when we're free. The few of them chatted for a while before the Daoist Wumu bade farewell. The two of them stepped into the shuttle. As he walked in, he realized how extraordinary this Emperor Star Shuttle was. The blood-red wood grain was actually formed by countless miniature arrays, and the miniature arrays formed the wood grain. The complexity of the array made Hichuan feel inferior. At the very least, he was unable to complete such a precise miniature array. The internal space was relatively large. In front of him was a rather luxurious hall. Both sides were filled with people. Judging from the clothes they were wearing, they should not be from the same sect. He Chuan didn't say anything and sat down. The Emperor Star Shuttle was launched. Sky City was only a few thousand miles away from the ground. This city was not facing the scorching Sun Empire, so they had to reach the bottom of the city before they could go over. During this period, he had to pass through the clouds, the astral winds, and the 10 year lightning sea. If one was not careful, they would turn into ashes. Therefore, although the distance was short, it could be fatal if one was not careful. As it took a long time, everyone began to chat. On He Chuan's left was a ghastly old man. His red eyes were cold and evil. One look and one could tell that this person had killed many people. I'm Ghost Priest, may I know where you are? The crimson-eyed old man cupped his hands and smiled. Judge He of the Vain Death City. He Chuan said softly. The red-eyed old man looked a little embarrassed when he heard the words, Vain Death City. So it's the experts from the Vain Death City. You've captured quite a number of ghost faction disciples. The ghost priest didn't dare to say anything harsh. The sects and factions that dealt with ghosts and in demons all knew about the Vain Death City. He hated him to the core, but he didn't dare to say anything. Hellgate? He Chuan thought of a few people. When he first came here, he killed a few people. They seemed to be from some ghost faction. When the surrounding people heard that it was the vain death city, their expressions changed. Some were afraid, some were disgusted, and some were indifferent. He Chuan didn't expect the reputation of the vain death city to be so bad. It wasn't that they were bad, but they were probably feared by others. After all, what the vain death city did could easily offend people. Capture the wicked, detain the ghosts, punish the evil, and promote the good. Which cultivator hadn't done evil things before? If they captured their disciples for no reason, wouldn't it make people hate them? Thinking of this, He Chuan did not say anything and continued to drink his tea. He didn't want to run into someone with a feud with the vain death city. Five days later. The hall shook as the shuttle landed. Everyone. We've arrived at the Sky City. The Daoist Wumu stood up and said to the crowd. Everyone walked out one by one. The scene in front of them made people unable to help but exclaim. 
the dark and boundless void was dotted with stars that emitted pale white light. It was right in front of him, but thousands of miles away. From time to time, the meteors streaked across the sky. Everyone could clearly see the craters on the surface of the meteors. It turned out that the beautiful meteors on the surface of the Earth actually looked like this. Right in front of them was a floating continent that was 500 miles long and wide. A majestic city stood there. This was a city that only belonged to cultivators. There was no air in the boundless void, and there were no resources that were beneficial to life. The ground where the sky city was located was covered by a transparent cover. Isolated from the outside world. From time to time, a star fragment would smash into the sky, but it would be bounced off. The Emperor Star Shuttle was just outside the transparent barrier, and a long circular golden light extended out of the barrier. At this moment, a few fish swam over from the void. They were indeed fish. These fish were very big, at least 10,000 feet. They had no scales on their backs and were black with star spots. Perhaps it was the environment without gravity that caused their bodies to grow crazily. The five fish surrounded the Emperor Star Shuttle, eyeing it like tigers. Wudao's expression remained the same as he took out the token. When the strange fish saw this token, they all dispersed. At this moment, a gap appeared in the transparent barrier, connecting it to the Emperor Star Shuttle. Everyone followed the passage to the Eternity Absolute City. You would feel cold as you landed on the Earth. The cold was bone piercing, and the air was surrounded by a faint mist that emitted a dark green light. Shadows came and went in the mist, like the underworld. On both sides of the road, there were Daoist stalls and shops selling cultivation resources. Hanged ghost flew past He Chuan with his tongue out. The flames in the dark mist flashed by quickly, and the three thousand black crow soldiers flew into the air, transforming into bird beak priests. There were actually so many experts here. Big discount. 30% discount on bulk goods. To forge a Dao soldier, you need to prepare the materials and pay for the labor. This Dao soldier can fly in the void. There was a long queue in front of this Dao soldier refining stall. Isn't there nothing in the boundless void? Why are you refining this Dao soldier? There are meteorites and meteor fragments. These things contain rare treasures from the stars. A Daoist once picked up a meteorite filled with aged metal. It weighs 10 billion tons and is enough for the sect to use for hundreds of years. The two disciples beside him whispered to each other. Outside the sky city, the corpses of ancient experts floated by from time to time. On the meteors, there were Dharma treasures left behind by Taoists. It was a place where many cultivators sought gold and treasures. If you find it dangerous, you can go to a specialized shop to buy meteorites. The price is fixed. As for what you get, it depends on your luck. Meteorite shop. He Chuan's interest was piqued. Then, he asked a few people and went to a place that specialized in selling meteorites. In front of him was a large square. The center of the square was filled with all kinds of strangely shaped stones. Everyone gathered in a circle and stared at the stone in the center. A Daoist held a special golden knife and cut open the surface of the meteorite that was as hard as steel. Treasure light leaked out, and everyone exclaimed. A treasure has appeared. Suddenly, the treasure light turned into a scarlet ghost head. Biting off the head of a spectator. It's the void ancient corpse, come. The Daoist with a golden saber exclaimed. A few people jumped out and formed a formation to suppress the ancient corpse. The ancient corpse instantly turned into pus and blood. The man next to the Daoist with the golden saber looked ashen. It seemed that he had failed the bet. He Chuan slowly walked into the square and activated his divine eye of insight. He could actually see through the surface of the meteorite and could vaguely see the outline of its interior. He Chuan's eyes emitted a golden light. He didn't dare to open his third eye, afraid that others would see him cheating and see countless colorful lines in the world in his divine eye. Not only was the outer shell of the meteorite hard, but it also seemed to isolate all auras. His divine eyes could barely see the internal outline. There was nothing inside the meteorite the size of a house, only iron and diamonds. There was no value to it. 
there was a three-foot-tall human silhouette inside the stone that was half the height of a person. It seemed to be a person. Natural mutants. It shouldn't be a human baby. Fellow Daoist, do you want to buy one? At this moment, the purple-robed man with a golden saber hanging from his waist walked over. Do you have anything good here? It can't be fake, right? He Chuan pretended not to understand. Fellow Daoist, this is your first time here, right? The purple-robed man pointed at the wall on the right. The walls were made of jade, and the images of the treasures were constantly reflected on them. Some of them took out Dharma treasures, the corpse of ancient people, ancient spiritual fruits, and cultivation methods of other stars. What's an ancient void corpse? He Chuan recalled the scene just now. Chapter 456 Ancient void corpses were the evil spirits that ancient cultivators transformed into after they died. They didn't recognize their relatives, had no intelligence, and had no value at all. Therefore, they could only be destroyed. Some cultivators who were proficient in the art of corpse hunting and ghost controlling didn't dare to touch the ancient void corpse. This object had wandered in the void for countless years and was stained with many strange and evil substances. There were even extraterrestrial devils hidden in it. Every five hundred years, there would be an otherworldly demon hiding in the ancient corpse in the void. Everyone in Sky City fell into a hallucinatory dream, and countless cultivators went berserk. Sky City almost fell. The city lord had specially ordered that any ancient void corpses that appeared should be destroyed immediately. Then open this one. He Chuan pointed at the stone that was half the height of a person and said. Are you sure you want to open this 50000 spirit stone? The purple-robed man pulled out his golden saber and asked. Of course. The commotion here attracted the attention of the onlookers. The world always liked to watch the excitement. Even if it was someone else gambling, he would be more excited than the other party. This fellow Daoist is a newbie, right? There can't be anything good seeing how this stone's appearance. He's probably here to try his luck again. Everyone stood at the side and whispered. Open. The purple-robed man deliberately waited for everyone to arrive before attacking. Hurry up and don't dawdle. From the looks of it, he was the boss of this place. All right. The purple-robed man pulled out his golden knife and scraped off the outer skin. There seems to be something good. Suddenly, a golden light appeared. The purple-robed man was shocked. His expression became more serious as he quickly cut open the meteorite's skin. Everyone's expressions became serious. He didn't expect this kid to be so lucky. He could win a prize with just a random stone. Finally, the golden saber reached the inside. Crack! A small hole appeared on the meteorite. Inside the cave was a green-skinned baby. The baby closed his eyes slightly, and his nose moved slightly as if he was breathing. If it weren't for the strange green color of his skin, he would have looked quite cute. Jade Infant It was actually the Jade Infant fruit. This kid has struck it rich. The Jade Infant is worth 50 million spirit stones. It's ten times more than that. He's really earned a profit. The Jade Infant was not a living creature, but a plant that grew in the vain death city. It got its name because it looks like a baby. This item has a miraculous effect on ghosts or ghost cultivators. Congratulations, fellow Daoist. You had obtained a jade infant fruit. What are you waiting for? Hurry up and pick up the leftovers. Seeing He Chuan pick up the loot, the others couldn't help it either. Some people started to buy meteorites. Unfortunately, other than a small number of people breaking even, most of them were still losing money. If this fellow Daoist doesn't need this treasure, you can sell it to us. The purple-robed man put the jade infant into the box and handed it to He Chuan. He Chuan nodded, his eyes scanning the surroundings. He had seen everything in the square, but there was nothing good. Fellow Daoist, follow me. Under the lead of the purple-robed man, He Chuan came to a large hall at the back. A fat man in luxurious clothes walked out. My name is Wang Lei. May I know your name, fellow Daoist? The fat man wore a jade ring on his ten fingers and had two small mustaches. 
Just call me judge. He Chuan said lightly. Wang Lei handed over a card. This is fifty million spirit stones. Any force in the vain death city can exchange for it. Do you have any meteorites of better quality? He Chuan asked calmly. Of course. Fellow Daoist, follow me. Wang Lei liked this kind of newcomer the most. He had just entered the industry and had some benefits, but he didn't know how to stop while he was ahead. He often spat out what he had earned. The appraiser firm even had a loan service specially prepared for such people. Soon, Wang Lei brought He Chuan. Seeing He Chuan make a return, everyone immediately surrounded him. Wang Lei brought He Chuan to the depths of the square. There were fewer meteorites here, but each of them looked decent and shone with treasure light. That's about it. It's a little more expensive than the outside price. What do you want, fellow Daoist? Wang Lei patted his fat belly and asked softly. A faint light appeared in He Chuan's eyes. The outer layer of these meteorites was even thicker, and it was even more difficult to see with the divine eyes. There were only hazy shadows, and one could not see the details inside. However, this was enough. He just needed to confirm that there was something inside. Not everything could be preserved inside the meteorite. It had to be resistant to high temperatures and high pressures to be preserved. Having such a characteristic was undoubtedly a treasure. This, and this He Chuan chose five in one go. When he walked to the innermost one, he suddenly stopped. This stone was ordinary and similar to those in the square. The weight was the weight of a normal meteorite, but when He Chuan looked inside, a black hole suddenly attracted his gaze. In the eyes of the divine eyes, it was pure black. During this period of time, he gained some insights. The denser the treasure, the darker it was. This thing was extremely black. What was it? Just these six. He Chuan finally chose. A total of eighty-five million. Fellow Daoist doesn't have enough money Wang Lei looked troubled. This should be enough. He Chuan casually took out fifty million spirit stones. Of course, it's enough. Wang Lei snickered in his heart. It seemed like there was another big order. He Chuan's straightforward purchase once again attracted everyone's attention. At the top of the appraiser hall, an old man and a young man sat by the window. The old man stood behind the young man. The young man was handsome, with red lips and white teeth. He had beautiful eyebrows and phoenix eyes. If it wasn't for his Adam's apple, one would really think that he was a woman. This person had a scarlet heaven ascension mark on his forehead. This was the symbol of the nobility of Sky City, representing the bloodline of the city lord. There were two factions here. One was led by Hades, and the other was led by the Blood Emperor. Li Bo, do you think this person will suffer a loss? The young man said with interest. In my opinion, this person will definitely suffer a loss. Old Daoist Li Bo smiled and said. I don't think so. Did you see his eyes? Every time he looks at a meteorite, his eyes light up. This person must have some secret technique. The man pointed at He Chuan's eyes. Impossible, the outer shell of the meteorite can't even be seen through by the city lord's magic treasure. Young Master Qi must have seen wrongly. Let's wait and see. After this, invite him over for a chat. Qi Yi lazily leaned back in his chair and took a sip from his teacup. Inside the teacup was a jade liquid that was flowing with light. It was the star essence, a high-grade treasure that was especially used to supply blood to the nobles of the Jade Emperor sect. The jade liquid that others treated as a treasure was just clear water to them. How about we bet on something? Qi Yi continued. What do you want to bet on, young master? Bet on the moon locust tree you're planting. If you lose, I'll give you ten star fragments. I knew that young master was staring at this tree. Good. The two of them chatted. The moon locust tree was planted on the comet, absorbing the essence of the moon and approaching Sky City for a hundred years. It was undoubtedly an extremely precious item. No matter who asked for it, he would not take it out. Li Bo was sure He Chuan would not make money, so he said casually. Normally, even if you killed him, he wouldn't take it out. 
Below, Yi Chuan chose strange stones and was surrounded by people. It's that kid from earlier. Someone's on cloud nine again. This time, they're probably going home crying. Ha! The spectators were gloating. Chapter, 457 They had seen this kind of thing many times. The newcomer was full of confidence, but then he slapped his face on the spot and owed a huge debt. Those with bad luck might be captured and sent to the boundless void to mine. Fellow Daoist, why don't I open it myself? My nickname is Skyblade. I won't damage anything inside. Wan Lei said. Good. He Chuan didn't care. Anyway, he knew the general gist of these things. He was now curious about what the last part was. Of course, he wouldn't take the initiative to remind them. If someone found out that he could see through the meteorite's skin, it would be troublesome. Wan Lei immediately drew the golden knife from his waist and cleanly cut off the outer shell of the meteorite. His speed was fast and steady, several times faster than the purple-robed man from before. The meteorite that was the size of a house had shrunk several times and was only half the height of a person. There was nothing for a long time. The surrounding spectators had long been complaining, but Wan Lei was unmoved. He would not give up until the end. This was his duty. Hmm. Wan Lei immediately stopped. Blood flowed out from the place where the knife was cut. The blood was dark red and a fishy smell assaulted his face. Ancient Void Corpse. No. If it was the Void Ancient Corpse, it would have attacked long ago. The sharp-eyed spectators noticed the problem. Soon, Wan Lei dug out the corpse. There was a big hole in the dantian of the corpse. It was obvious that the golden core had been dug out. Other than the bloodstains on his body, there were no signs of decay anywhere else. There was a broken sword stabbed into his chest, and he was holding a broken jade scepter in his hand. The corpse of an ancient man. Wang Lei said loudly. It's a pity that the golden core is gone. The two damaged Dharma treasures aren't worth much. The Qingyi sex elder's uniform is indeed not a loss. He might even earn three to five million. Wang Lei looked at the corpse and said. In order to prevent the secrets of the sect from being leaked, large sects would usually buy the corpses of their disciples at a high price. This was a celestial realm cultivator and a broken Dharma treasure fragment. It should be able to sell for seven to eight million. It would basically not be a loss, and it might even be a small profit. Next, he opened it again, and two treasures appeared in a row. They were the blood essence of the flying snake and the dragon wood. The wood in the shape of a true dragon was blood red. The moment it appeared, blood red smoke rushed into the clouds. The roar of a true dragon rang in everyone's ears. Everyone was already numb to this. How was this a newcomer? He was clearly an experienced veteran. When the last piece was cut off, a white pillar of light shot into the sky. Boom! The entire square was filled with dense essence energy. When the light dissipated, everyone saw a transparent cube that was one and a half inches in length and width floating in the air. The moment this item appeared, everyone felt a sense of pressure. Star Jade Fragments Three Star Jade Fragments He's made a killing. The spectators were in an uproar, their hearts filled with envy and jealousy. The two people on the top floor couldn't sit still. This kid's luck is too good. Li Bo was flabbergasted. The moon locust tree was going to be lost. Three pieces of star jade fragments, each worth 120 million spirit stones on the black market. Not counting the other treasures, this fellow directly opened up nearly 400 million good items. Li Bo. Please invite him up. Qi Yi said seriously. The remaining two meteorites flew into the sky. After He Chuan sold the true dragon wood and deducted the cost, he only had the star jade fragments and the flying snake blood essence left. Currently, he had earned more than 300 million spirit stones. He couldn't sell the star jade fragments. He had a use for them. Fellow Daoist, do you have any sky stone here? He Chuan asked Wang Lei. Five million spirit stones per inch. Ten inches. 
He Chuan exchanged for half a square star jade fragment on the spot. When it came to the realm of immortal venerate, the prices would skyrocket. Ordinary spirit stones were no longer enough to measure the value of these things. Wan Lei handed over the jade box, and the stone in the air was placed inside. The stone in the air was the foundation of the small paradise, and could only be mined from the small paradise. It was not as precious as the star jade fragment. After all, star jade fragments were the product of the destruction of stars. They came from the boundless void, and the difficulty of mining them was higher than that of the stone in the air. Fellow Daoist, our shopkeeper wants to see you. At this time, Wang Lei said softly. Shopkeeper. Bring me there. In the end, He Chuan agreed. The construction of the Northern Yin Hell would cost an unknown amount of sky stones. It would be more convenient to buy sky stones by befriending these big merchants. Under Wang Lei's lead, He Chuan arrived at the beautifully decorated top floor. There was an old man and a young man sitting in front of him. This young man gave He Chuan a very strange feeling. There was a sense of androgynous in his masculinity. He had a temperament that was neither male nor female. This is the thirteenth young master, Qi Yi. I am Li Bo. Greetings, fellow Daoist judge. The old Daoist cupped his hands. So you are the young master of the Sky City. I've heard a lot about you. He Chuan did not expect the person in front of him to have such a high status. Fellow Daoist is very capable. Qi Yi praised. What ability! I was just lucky. Qi Yi didn't say anything, but he gave Li Bo a look. Li Bo immediately presented a jade plate. In the middle of the jade plate were tea leaves and a jade pendant that was neither gold nor wood. This is a token from the appraiser's shop. You can get a 30% discount on all purchases. This is a moon locust flower. It's not bad to soak it in the water. Don't worry, fellow Daoist. We're not afraid of customers making money. The more you earn, the more popular our trading company will be. Perhaps to dispel He Chuan's wariness, Qi Yi added. The meteorite shop's main source of profit was selling meteorites, which were sold at sky high prices. He Chuan earned a lot, and gamblers would also come to his shop. The price of meteorites in the shop would also rise. This was a win win situation, and Qi Yi understood this very well. I have the same idea. It seemed that this Qi Yi was not good for nothing. He Chuan had thought they could not afford to play with him. The few of them chatted for a while. There are still some things to do in the sect. We'll talk again in the future. In the future, He Chuan would be in charge of this trade route, so there would be plenty of trading opportunities. Qi Yi didn't stop him, but his eyes flickered. It was obvious that he was thinking about something. Although Sky City was in the boundless void, it was much safer than other places. Because they were in the sky, everyone would die if anything happened, so the management of public security was very strict. Basically, there would not be any fights between cultivators. If they were caught, they would be severely punished. If it was light, they would be sent to mine. If it was serious, they would be killed on the spot. He Chuan turned into a beam of light and flew to the north of the Sky City. He wanted to find a trading company. He was responsible for the rental of shuttles, storage of goods, mission release, meals, and lodging. The Reincarnation Palace was cooperating with this trading company. Their office was in the Soul Crystal Trading Company, and the station personnel were in charge of purchasing. He Chuan was now in charge of the inspection and release of the new purchase list. Sky City had a requirement for flying speed, so He Chuan did not dare to fly too fast. At this moment, several streaks of light flew over and stopped in front of He Chuan. You are Reincarnation Palace's Judge He. My young master has invited you. The black haired middle aged man laughed as he blocked the way. Your young master. Could it be that the Reincarnation Palace had arranged for this person in advance? Although He Chuan felt it was rude, he still left with the middle-aged man. They arrived in front of the restaurant that was decorated with red lanterns. The women were all extremely beautiful, both fat and slim, greeting the passing guests. These women were all cultivators, and the lowest cultivation level was at the Dao Foundation realm. 
Had the brothel world been dragged into such a mess? Even a female cultivator went up. Chapter, 458 They are cultivators of the Hahuan sect. Their cultivation can only increase through intercourse. They can also earn money, so why not? The middle-aged Taoist smiled. Soon, the two of them entered a cubicle in the building. Among them was the ghost priest he had met on the Emperor Star Flying Shuttle. His red eyes were extremely eye-catching. Among the crowd was a young man. This person also had a heaven ascension mark on his forehead. Reincarnation Palace's judge. The man put down the wine glass in his hand and leaned back in his chair. Don't you know that Old Thirteenth is a transvestite? Before he Chuan could answer, the man said. Transvestite. Hearing this, he Chuan became interested. A female body and a male soul. If it's not a transvestite, then what is it? Who doesn't know the name of the Old Thirteenth was a giant among people? What conditions does he have for you? I'll pay double. The man sneered. He had already understood He Chuan's ability to identify the things inside the meteorite. Not only for stone gambling, but the exploration of the boundless void also required such talents. They weren't immortal monarch cultivators and had to pay a high price every time they went out to explore. The meteorite that was painstakingly salvaged was only a broken rock in the end. This kind of feeling made people vomit blood. If He Chuan joined, the cost would be reduced by a lot. I don't want to join any faction. He Chuan said. Are you afraid of the reincarnation palace? As long as you swear to be loyal to me for life, I guarantee that Emperor Yuan won't dare to touch you. The man thought that He Chuan was afraid of the power of the reincarnation palace. Fellow Daoist judge He, hurry up and agree. The reincarnation Yuan is not a good place to go. Ghost priest advised. Just now, the second young master Lu Dao had asked for information, and Ghost Priest had immediately sold He Chuan's information when he saw an opportunity to get close to him. Ghost Priest was both envious and jealous of He Chuan. The second young master obviously valued this guy more. He actually didn't appreciate it. Didn't he know how great the benefits were? Any small mistake could cause the sect to prosper. He Chuan remained silent. The second young master was full of confidence. His father was also an immortal venerable. Compared to the powerless and recently suppressed reincarnation palace, their conditions were many times better. Not interested. He Chuan then walked out. Bang! The wine glass smashed against the wall, and the second young master's face contorted. How dare you reject me? Let them play some tricks. The second young master said to the middle-aged Taoist. He Chuan didn't know that the other party was a major shareholder of the Soul Crystal Trading Company. Young master, don't be angry. People from small places don't know what's good for them. Everyone explained. Get lost. The second young master's face was as dark as muddy water. If it wasn't for the fact that fighting was forbidden in the city, he would have already ordered people to take down He Chuan. He didn't dare to challenge his father's authority. The rule that he couldn't fight was established after his ninth brother died. Young master, I've already asked the people from the Crystal Soul Trading Company to take action. I guarantee that this person will not appear in this world. The middle-aged Taoist appeared. The second young master has once again fallen into a drunken stupor. Killing someone is nothing. The reincarnation palace was not as famous as it used to be. The times were progressing, and the number of cultivators was ten times more than before. Meanwhile, Emperor Yuan was still walking on the spot. Recently, he had been suppressed by the Scorching Sun Empire and betrayed by his other allies. The other forces that had been bullied in the past were ready to make a move. This sect would not be able to survive for long. He Chuan came to the Crystal Soul Trading Company. He rented a flying shuttle and looked at the account book while he was at it. Most of the materials were very precious. Star Jade Fragments, 100,00 Year Old Meteor Ice, Void Corpses, and so on. It was worth more than a billion. These were the resources that the sect's internal experts needed. He Chuan sized up the flying shuttle in front of him. 
This flying shuttle was slightly smaller than the previous one, and its outer shell was made of fuso wood. He Chuan looked around and used his divine eyes to check. Although the Crystal Soul Trading Company had been the Reincarnation Palace's partner for hundreds of years, he did not have the habit of putting his life on others. The flying shuttle had to fly through the vacuum, lightning sea, and astral wind zone. If he were not careful, he would die. This kind of flying shuttle was very precious. Just the fuso wood alone was worth a lot, not to mention the precise array formation on it. All the materials were assembled, and the space of ten feet in length and width was filled to the brim. Sir, please check. The manager took out a picture. This was a route map with the destination marked. The array was activated by He Chuan. Once it was activated, one would walk along this path. During this period, one could control this map to change the route. There was a miniature array formation on it. If anything went wrong, he could return to the Crystal Soul Trading Company through the array formation. After confirming that there was no mistake, He Chuan boarded the flying shuttle. It was about 10 feet in length and width, and the interior space was filled with goods. Moreover, there was only a small stool. The comfort level could not be compared to a shuttle that was especially used to carry people. Boom! The flying shuttle broke through the protective shield of the Sky City and arrived at the boundless void. Then, it landed in the direction of the Earth. He sat in the flying shuttle, and a black shadow appeared in the middle of the path above the array. There was actually a meteorite in the shuttle's path. The formation map suddenly lit up. The meteorite appeared within the flying range of the shuttle. According to the shuttle's current speed, it wouldn't be long before it hit the meteorite. The flying shuttle seemed to be of a high grade, but in reality, it was not very sturdy. The streamlined shuttle was windproof, and the wooden trunk was fireproof and lightningproof, but its anti-collision ability was lacking. The flying shuttle moved forward at an extremely fast speed, and the huge black meteorite slowly floated over. Before long, the two objects would collide. Why is my luck so bad? It was obviously illogical. Due to the gravitational pull of the stars, meteorites had a pattern and could predict their path. He Chuan controlled the array and changed the shuttle's route to avoid the meteorite. Changing the direction of the shuttle required a slight adjustment, which was to circle around the orbit. The meteorite was moving very fast now, and it wouldn't be long before it crashed into it. It seemed like he couldn't hide. If a crack appeared on the shuttle, the pressure would continue to expand until the entire shuttle disintegrated. He Chuan still decided to abandon the goods and use the teleportation array to return. He immediately activated the formation. He activated the formation, but nothing happened. Who was it? Second young master. Or an enemy of the reincarnation palace. He Chuan knew that an insider had done something, it was more likely that the second young master was an enemy of the reincarnation palace. At this point, he could only control the flying shuttle to dodge. The meteorite was getting closer and closer to the shuttle. 3,000 feet, 10,000 feet, 5,000 feet. The shuttle also slowly moved to the side, trying to avoid a head-on collision. However, there were still some that were about to brush past the meteorites. He Chuan thought of a plan. Just as they were about to collide, the shuttle's hatch opened. The air inside was sprayed out, forming a powerful driving force, and causing the shuttle to move horizontally. Due to the pressure, a lot of the goods inside the shuttle were also sprayed out. However, it was a close save. The cabin door closed again, and the air and essence of heaven and earth inside became extremely thin. He found that the cabin door had many cracks, and these cracks were constantly expanding. Soon, this shuttle would disintegrate. Even if it didn't disintegrate, the flying shuttle would suffer a destructive blow after passing through the lightning sea and the astral wind belt. There was no spiritual energy to replenish in the void, and the depletion of the magic power in his body was also a situation of death. Crack. The crack continued to expand, and the entire flying shuttle began to tremble. Chapter, 459. He Chuan pulled out a strand of hair. A golden light flashed. The hair turned into fuso wood and filled the hole. Although it wasn't too tight, 
it should be able to withstand the lightning sea and the astral wind belt. Reincarnation Palace Emperor Yuan sat in the middle of the hall, meditating and circulating his energy. He never cared about his cultivation technique being known by others. Time passed. He slowly opened his eyes. His pupils were like the deepest vortex, attracting all things in the world. It was as if thousands of stars were in his eyes. Why isn't the judge back yet? Emperor Yuan frowned. The moment He Chuan boarded the shuttle, someone sent a message. According to the speed of the shuttle, it should have arrived very early. Boom! At this moment, a loud noise came from the sky. Emperor Yuan looked up and saw a streak of fire in the sky with thick black smoke. Judging from the style, it looked like a flying shuttle. Not good. Emperor Yuan's figure flashed and he appeared in the air. It was indeed the Crystal Soul Trading Company's shuttle. Before he could get close, the shuttle exploded, and the goods were scattered everywhere. After the smoke dispersed, He Chuan's figure appeared in front of Emperor Yuan. I was plotted against. Seeing Emperor Yuan, He Chuan smiled bitterly and said. Then, he told him what had happened. He talked about how he had offended the second young master and suspected that the people from the Crystal Soul Trading Company had done something. Motherfker. Emperor Yuan's eyes widened in anger as pitch black demonic energy emanated from his body, causing the void to emit a sound of being overwhelmed. Palace Master, please don't be angry. It might be someone else's doing. He Chuan advised. It must be because they feel that it's a good thing. Now that they see that my reincarnation palace is in trouble, they can't help but extend their hands. Do they think that I'm easy to bully? Killing intent appeared in Emperor Yuan's eyes as he sneered. Where do you want to go? He Chuan saw Emperor Yuan move and asked in confusion. Kill them all. But we don't have any evidence. What evidence do you need? Who will uphold justice for the dead? Emperor Yuan pulled with both hands and tore a hole in the void before jumping into it. This was what He Chuan wanted to say. Even a clay figurine had 30% fire. Did he really think that he had no temper? The two of them entered the spatial rift. He felt the world spinning. When he opened his eyes, he saw a lake in front of him. The lake water glowed with fluorescent light. Through the light, one could vaguely see the corpses floating up and down. This was the location of the Nether Ghost sect. This sect was good at controlling ghosts and often used living people to sacrifice ghosts. They were often attacked by the iron fists of the reincarnation palace. Watch the correct way to use the Yama avatar. Yuan Emperor said as he stood at the edge of the lake. Yuan Emperor's body grew to a hundred thousand feet tall. He opened his domain and everything exploded under pressure. Only He Chuan was fine. Yuan Emperor must have deliberately avoided him. What happened? Enemy attack. Where's the sect master? Where is the sect master? The sect master is in the sky city. Countless streaks of light appeared in the lake below. When these people saw the 100 meter tall, malevolent ghost, they were so scared that they almost collapsed to the ground. The palm of the high heaven 10,000 feet ghost slammed down. Countless magic treasures that rose into the sky were shattered, and divine arts and spells could not even break the skin of the ghost. His palm slapped down firmly. Water gushed out, and the powerful water pressure even penetrated the surrounding mountains. The dust settled. The lake disappeared, and in front of them was a huge pit that was dozens of miles wide. The bottom of the pit was as smooth as a mirror as if it was made of diamond. Pinching the stars with your bare hands. What a powerful force. He Chuan clicked his tongue in wonder. Under such a huge force, any technique was useless. It was not even as good as a slap. Hatred cannot last overnight. Go to the headquarters of the Crystal Soul Trading Company now and kill his entire family. The Crystal Soul Trading Company was located in the central region of the Northern Ocean. It was in the center of the Scorching Sun Dynasty and the Vain Death City, which was a buffer zone between the two regions. Relying on this, he had no idea how much profit he could make. The reincarnation palace had a good relationship with the shopkeeper of the Crystal Soul Trading Company. 
He did not expect that when the reincarnation palace was in trouble, it would be this group of people who defected first. Palace master, why don't we bring more people? He Chuan asked. No matter what, the shopkeeper of the Crystal Soul Trading Company was an immortal venerable. In addition, it was their nest, so He Chuan felt a little unsafe. No need. The shadow of the void shone on Yuan Emperor's face. His expression was gloomy and evil. The usually amiable Yuan Emperor revealed his fierce and overbearing fangs at this moment. It is said that Emperor Yuan lived for six zero zero years and ruled thirty zero zero ghosts and gods. Long lifespan. He was temperamental, killed people like flies, and was domineering and mighty. Although the era had passed and the glory of the Yuan Emperor was no longer there, it was not something that ordinary people could easily humiliate. At this moment, He Chuan seemed to understand what Yuan Emperor was thinking. Revenge wasn't the key. Yuan Emperor's real intention was to establish his might. During this period of time, the reincarnation palace had been too low-key. The outsiders thought the reincarnation palace really could not do it. Now, they needed to kill so that the world would realize that the reincarnation palace was still the powerful reincarnation palace from back then. Soon, the two of them entered the spatial rift one after another. This time, he also observed the aftermath of the Yama Avatar. The Yama Avatar walked the path of the strongest. The gods and demons were all powerful. If he wanted to suppress them, he would have to be stronger than them. Therefore, the Yama Avatar was extremely tyrannical. It attacked steadily and ruthlessly, suppressing the demons with absolute power. The headquarters of the Crystal Soul Trading Company was built in a city at the foot of the mountain. It belonged to a relatively large chamber of commerce. The opening of trade routes in this place was not that simple. The trade route was at least 100 miles. In the middle, they passed through the territories of the various righteous and evil forces. The elves and ghosts in the forest, the ghost kings in the mountains, and the demon kings were all obstacles to transportation. Therefore, almost all the forces that solved these difficulties and successfully reduced their costs could make a lot of money. Relying on these accumulations, Qingmu Emperor was able to build a huge family business. The city was bustling with noise, and from time to time, there would be flying lights descending. There was a magnificent palace in the center of the city. In front of the palace was a square paved with white marble. The floor was carved with dragon and phoenix embossed, as well as a dust-repelling and energy-gathering array, making it look very luxurious. The square was filled with hundreds of red tables. Handsome red-robed maids continuously served immortal pills, sycamore, fine wine, beast meat, demon pills, and other delicacies. The fragrance assailed the nose, and the auspicious aura washed away. The white gas gathered by the energy-gathering formation lingered around the square. This place was like a fairyland. At this moment, most of the people were already seated at the table. From time to time, someone would fly down from the sky. Sect Master Dao Qing has come to congratulate us. An old Daoist descended from the sky, holding a jade box in his hand. He strolled to the center of the banquet. At the end of the golden red carpet was an old man wearing a yellow crown, with white hair and a youthful face, holding a horsetail whisk in his hand. This person was Qingmu Emperor. There were nine seats beside him, and only five people sat there. They all looked similar. The Taoist carried the jade box to a place a thousand feet away from Qingmu Emperor. I, Qing Yu, am here to congratulate you on your 500 year birthday. I wish you the same glory as the sun and the moon, and the same longevity as heaven and earth. With that, he handed the box to the servant beside him. Opening the box, there were two purple Lingji inside. Sect Master Qing Yu, 2000 year old Lingji. The servant shouted. Fellow Daoist Qing Yu, please take a seat, Qingmu Emperor said with a smile. People kept coming. Chapter, 460 Qingmu didn't lack these gifts, but they gave him a great sense of satisfaction. The nine seats next to him were his sons. There were still a few who hadn't made it on the way. Qingmu had nine sons. They were all celestial cultivators. The world also called them the Nine Dragons. 
Master, our Crystal Soul Trading Company is getting more and more prosperous. Many large factions have come to celebrate. The subordinate said respectfully. Huh, nonsense. Ching Mu feigned anger, but the joy on his face couldn't be wiped away. Father, the deacon of the Sky City sent news that they killed the middle-level management of the Reincarnation Palace. At this moment, the eldest son stood up and spoke about He Chuan. Ching Mu frowned when he heard this. Deacon Wang is trying to curry favor with the second young master of the Sky City. I think the Reincarnation Palace is nothing compared to Sky City. This deal is more cost-effective. I hope father won't punish Deacon Wang. The eldest son said. Don't do it again. Ching Mu pondered for a while and said. Whether it was allies or prospects, the Crystal Soul Trading Company had completely replaced the Reincarnation Palace. Not to mention that the Reincarnation Palace had offended the Scorching Sun Dynasty. However, a lean camel was still bigger than a horse. It was better to be more careful. Otherwise, it would not be worth it if others risked their lives to drag him down with them. Father, I think we can use this as a test. The second son was proficient in strategy and came up with a wonderful plan. What do you mean? Ching Mu asked, puzzled. Now that Emperor Yuan is being suppressed by the Scorching Sun Dynasty, he definitely won't dare to show his face. We can test their bottom line through this incident. The second son continued. Ching Mu's eyes lit up when he heard that. It did make sense. The Reincarnation Palace had suffered great losses last time. After that, there was a great purge, causing some allies to leave. However, the people of the Reincarnation Palace had sealed off the news, so they did not know the exact losses they had suffered. It would be good if he could find out the truth about the Reincarnation Palace through this incident. Why isn't Xiao Jiu here yet? Qin Mu frowned. All eight of his sons had arrived, except for the ninth brother. The sect leader of the Nether Ghost sect has arrived. The subordinate's voice came from afar. Ching Mu's ninth son and the ghost priest walked over together. Father, there was a delay on the way. Xiao Jiu said apologetically and then sat down. The ghost walked to a place not far from Ching Mu, holding a jade box in his hands. Before his subordinate could take it, the ghost priest opened the box. Elder ghost priest has sent a generous gift. The box slowly opened, and inside was a bloody head. Everyone was shocked. It looked like Xiao Jiu. Who was the person beside them? Dai. Xiao Jiu turned into a young man, waving the black and white sword in his hand. The sword instantly pierced through his eldest son's head and went straight through his glabella. The eldest son's soul was destroyed with a confused mood. He did not even know what was going on when he died. Then, the man's skin turned golden. He grabbed the heads of his other two sons with both hands and slammed them into each other. The two heads exploded as watermelons, and fresh blood mixed with the white brains splattered all over the ground. His three sons died instantly. Stop! Ching Mu's eyes widened, and the horsetail whisk in his hand was about to strike down. He attacked with hatred and used all his strength, causing the air to emit a sound of being overwhelmed. The horsetail whisk was made of 10,000-year-old ice silk. It was impervious to water and fire and was known for its toughness. Other than strength, the moves of immortal venerables also contained absolute suppression. Is this the power of an immortal venerable? He Chuan felt that it was difficult to move as if he was tightly bound by silk threads. The golden skin of the Yama avatar was strangled, and fine blood stains appeared. He didn't even need to make a move. Just the power of the domain alone was enough to make him suffer. He didn't know if Yuan Emperor would make it in time. Seeing that the horsetail whisk was getting closer and closer, He Chuan could only forcefully resist. He wouldn't die, but he would definitely be injured. An invisible force spread out the horsetail whisk. Old dog Ching Mu. Your opponent is me. Nether Ghost Priest laughed and transformed into Yuan Emperor. The moment Yuan Emperor appeared, his shadow slowly covered the ground below. A giant hand descended from the sky. At the same time, the ground within a radius of a thousand miles suddenly sank. 
everyone instantly felt a huge force pressing down on their shoulders. His body weight increased by dozens of times as if he was pressing down on a huge mountain. What is this? Yuan Emperor's Dharma Domain. It's none of my business. This old man was also invited. The spectators in the square cried out in panic. However, Yuan Emperor did not let these people off either. His palm slapped down firmly. The entire square sank a hundred feet under this terrifying force. Most of the people's divine souls could not escape and were reduced to ashes on the spot. A small number of people only had their divine souls left, and then they fled this place. Emperor Yuan didn't kill them all. He allowed them to leave. Because his target was Qingmu. Yuan Emperor's body was surrounded by a thick black aura. As if it had a life of its own, it transformed into various forms. The wails of malevolent ghosts, demons, yikshas, and tens of thousands of ghosts echoed endlessly. It made the scalps of those who heard it go numb, and their hearts wavered. Old man Qingmu, long time no see. Yuan Emperor restored his 30 meter dharma. On the other side was Qingmu's immortal venerate dharma, which was only one-tenth of the Yuan Emperor's height. The horsetail whisk stretched long. May I know how I have offended you? Qingmu's face was ashen as he spoke word by word. You don't know. Today, I'll kill you as an example to the monkeys. Emperor Yuan did not believe that the other party did not know. Good. Bring it on. Qingmu was furious. Did he really think that he was still that small businessman from back then? The domains of the two immortal venerables collided. A sound came from the void, and countless pitch-black cracks appeared in the void where their auras met. When the two different powers clashed, it was the people nearby were injured. He Chuan reacted quickly. As soon as the two of them were ready to attack, he had already hidden ten thousand miles away. The others were not so lucky. The huge impact directly sent them flying. After a long time, He Chuan walked out of the small world. The city was in ruins and smoke filled the air. The ground was littered with the corpses of cultivators. Qingmu intentionally guided them to the boundless void. These cities were Qingmu's blood, sweat, and tears. They couldn't be destroyed here. Moreover, he had helpers in the boundless void. Ha, huh, there's still one who's alone. Qing Mu's remaining five sons and the Crystal Soul Trading Company's celestial cultivator surrounded He Chuan. A total of twelve celestial cultivators. I want to use your head to pay homage to Big Brother, Xiao Jiu, and the others. The second son had a vicious smile on his face. He hated this scum who killed his brother and brother to the bone. Everyone, attack together. Out of caution, he still let people surround him. The twelve celestial cultivators took out their magic treasures at the same time, and the spiritual light of their spells dyed the sky colorful. Countless spells were aimed at He Chuan. Under the powerful pressure, the air exploded and compressed into white crystals. He Chuan was unmoved as if he was scared silly. Die! The second son held the Vajra spirit connection sword, and the blade carried the intent of annihilation. The void in front of the sword blade turned into nothingness. This was a magic treasure with a supreme annihilation treasure restriction. Even a magic treasure of the same level could not withstand the attack of a sword blade. Surrounded by everyone, He Chuan's expression did not change. In everyone's eyes, he seemed to have lost all resistance. Chapter, 461 10,000 feet, 5,000 feet, 100 feet As the distance got closer and closer, he Chuan could clearly feel the stinging sensation on his skin. Just right, I can test the power of the body transformation pill. He Chuan thought to himself that the pill he had spent a long time refining had yet to show its effect. The ground where he was standing suddenly exploded. Heavenly Law Phenomenon His entire body turned into a double-horned flood dragon with yellow scales, golden horns, and the claws of an eagle. The golden dragon was ten thousand feet long. Even from thousands of miles away, they could see this huge thing clearly. Imperial Order The golden dragon shouted softly, and a dazzling golden light flashed in its eyes. It opened its mouth and spat out a scarlet flame. 
The flames engulfed the three people in front of him, and his tail swept across the person behind him. The impact of the weight and speed of the 30.00 meter tall body was not something that ordinary people could withstand. That person turned into a bloody mist on the spot. His second son, Ching Hu's Vajra spirit connection sword was sent flying. In front of him was a huge black and white sword, which was still stabbing toward Ching Hu's head. He knew that this was the magic treasure that killed his brother, so he didn't dare to take it head on. His body formed a strange arc in the air and dodged it. The blade brushed past him, leaving a faint bloody mark on his face. Ching Hu turned pale with fright. Half of his face was like dried tree bark. It was lusterless and full of wrinkles. What sorcery is this? Ching Hu still had a lingering fear. He felt as if his life force had been sucked away. The right side of his face had become the appearance of an old man and could no longer return to its original state. This was the loss of lifespan, or rather, it was a few thousand years faster. Fortunately, it didn't pierce his body, or else he would have turned into ashes on the spot. Boundless Void Yuan Emperor also noticed the scene below. Seeing He Chuan's huge body, Yuan Emperor's pupils constricted. Where did this kid get his secret technique from? They were both celestial cultivators, but his bodies were similar to his. It would be dangerous if he advanced to the immortal venerable realm. However, despite its large size, there were still two peak celestial cultivators below. He Chuan might not be able to hold on for long. At this moment, when Yuan Emperor wasn't paying attention, the horsetail whisk wrapped around a ten-mile-wide meteorite and smashed down. Humph! Still dared to resist. I'll kill you in three moves. Yuan Emperor dodged the attack at the last moment and spoke arrogantly. With that, he raised his right hand. The golden palace rose from the ground. They flew into the void that was far away. In the boundless void, a beautiful palace appeared in Yuan Emperor's palm. Rise! Yuan Emperor then tossed the golden palace to Qingmu. With the support of the immortal monarch domain, the golden palace ignored the vacuum and moved extremely fast. Qingmu wasn't slow either. He waved the horsetail whisk in his hand. Dermic powers filled a radius of thousands of miles. His immortal venerable domain was called the Absolute Origin Cold Silk Domain. This was a domain that lingered between heaven and earth like a thread. Everything entering the domain could be cut open. Qingmu controlled the fragments in a radius of several thousand miles to form a ball that was a hundred miles in length and width. The ball collided with the Golden Palace. There was no sound in the vacuum, but everyone within a thousand miles could feel the void trembling. The huge stone ball exploded, and thousands of broken stones flew in all directions, shattering all the surrounding meteorites into pieces. Countless rocks collided under the guidance of their domains. The sky was filled with debris, and most of the meteorites contained metal. The metal reflected the starlight in the boundless void, presenting a colorful light. The scene was gorgeous. However, it was filled with danger. Any fragment was enough to turn an immortal venerable into ashes. The meteorite successfully blocked the Golden Palace's steps. Qingmu hadn't had the chance to heave a sigh of relief. Ten-sided hell. The boundless void disappeared, and in its place was a dark green and eerie hellish world. Ghost fog filled the entire space, and the shadows of ghosts and gods could be seen faintly in the fog. There were ten halls in all four directions. Pulling out the tongue, digging out the heart, digging out the meat, frying. Every hall was guarded by ghosts and gods, and countless evil spirits and demons lined up to be tortured. At the center was a golden palace. Yuan Emperor sat in the middle of the golden palace, his eyes shining as he surveyed the surroundings. The wails of the ghosts resounded through the sky, making people shudder. This is not a real paradise. You don't even have enough spiritual energy so where did you get this paradise? Qingmu was shocked and subconsciously turned to flee. Regardless of whether it was a real paradise or not, the domain had evolved to such an extent that he could not resist it. The domain of an immortal venerable was incomparably powerful. Only a domain could resist a domain. Qingmu hadn't run far when a large hand grabbed his body. It directly threw him into the pot of oil. 
Ah! Ching Mu cried out in pain as soon as he entered. His soul, physical body, and magic power were all in intense pain. The pain was unbearable and spread to the depths of his heart. Misunderstanding. It was all a misunderstanding. When I return, I will definitely punish the mastermind. Ching Mu finally knew fear. If he had the chance to do it all over again, he would not dare to provoke the reincarnation palace. It's too late now. What I want are your foundation and your head. It was too late for Ching Mu to regret it. Following Yuan Emperor's final attack, Ching Mu's body and soul were destroyed. Below. Nine of the twelve celestial cultivators had instantly died under He Chuan's attack. He Chuan returned to his human form and nimbly traversed the sky and earth. Die. The Vijra spirit child sword drew a long line in the air. He Chuan was pincered from both front and back, so he would definitely die. The moment it pierced his forehead, He Chuan turned into smoke and disappeared. What a sinister transformation technique. Continue to chase him. Split up. Ching Hu was anxious and angry. They didn't know where the other party's transformation technique came from, but he was simply playing them like monkeys. Ching Hu had just left when the gravel on the ground turned into He Chuan's appearance. Idiots, you've searched the wrong place. He Chuan shouted. When Ching Hu came over to attack, he became a strand of hair again. This way. The fish in the lake spoke in human language. Another fake body. Ching Hu's hair stood on end and he was completely driven mad. He grabbed the Vajra sword and slashed at anything he saw. This move was really useful. This time, He Chuan's true body was cut out. Ha, huh, let's see where you can run to. The person in front of him was bleeding and seemed to be on the verge of death. He must have very little magic power left. Thinking of this, Ching Hu grabbed his sword and flew over. The sword slashed at He Chuan's back. The Annihilation Sword intent shattered this person's body, but he didn't expect it to be a fake body. At this moment, the old Taoist flew over. Uncle Zhang. Have you found him? Ching Hu suppressed his anger. Found it. Where? Here. Uncle Zhang instantly transformed into He Chuan and stabbed his sword over. The sword in his hand chopped off Ching Hu's right arm. What a pity. Before Ching Hu could fight back, He Chuan ran away again. The two of them, one chased and one fled. In front of him was Uncle Zhang. This was the real Uncle Zhang. Uncle Zhang. Stop him. He Chuan turned into smoke and disappeared. Uncle Zhang transformed into He Chuan with a faint smile on his face. The sword had cut Ching Hu's thigh. His entire thigh instantly aged. He Chuan fled again. Ching Hu swallowed a blood red pill. Ching Hu's eyes and hair turned red. The blood energy was like smoke, and the immortal venerable was attached to the smoke. The smoke changed and formed a three headed and six armed red devil. Its body grew larger, and its speed increased by several times. In the blink of an eye, he was near He Chuan. Chapter 462 The Vajra Spirit Connection Sword, which was dozens of times stronger, stabbed He Chuan's back again. As expected, it was another smokescreen. Ching Hu gradually calmed down and carefully sensed the surroundings. He was too impatient just now. Although He Chuan's transformation technique was strong, it was not untraceable. The transformation technique was strong, but its weakness was the details. Stones would grow moss, birds would have their nest near them, and insects would have colonies around them. As long as he calmed down and thought about it, he would definitely be able to discover the mystery. Got it. Ching Hu opened his eyes and a bright light flashed in them. He swung his sword at the blue stone on the lower right. Before the sword landed, He Chuan fled far away with a look of surprise on his face. You're dead. Ching Hu said confidently. He had already seen through the other party's transformation technique, so he immediately gave chase. Suddenly, the area ahead darkened. Ching Hu raised his head subconsciously. Yuan Emperor's 30 meter tall avatar appeared in front of him. You've run out of tricks, this transformation is very similar. How could Yuan Emperor appear just like that? 
Qin Hu laughed maniacally as he charged forward. Yuan Emperor's palms were like swatting flies, and Qing Hu turned into meat paste and stuck to his palms. You seem to have made him crazy. Emperor Yuan wiped his hands in disgust and then looked at He Chuan. Only then did He Chuan emerge from the shadows. Your transformation technique is not bad. Emperor Yuan praised. Unless one were an immortal venerable, one really wouldn't be able to see through this transformation technique. Transformation was not changing. Many people didn't understand this concept, so it was easy to confuse them. The former had the appearance of a transformation object and had the ability of this object. The latter was merely similar in appearance. However, this transformation technique could only replicate innate abilities such as bloodlines. If one cultivated to a high level, they might even be able to completely replicate humans' divine powers and spells. Small tricks. He Chuan smiled. This wasn't the most precious part. This technique could avoid calamities and tribulations. Of course, he didn't dare to say this casually. The art of avoiding tribulation was extremely rare. If he said it, even Yuan Emperor would be tempted. It was better to have his own secret. Yuan Emperor's body shrunk and he became a normal person. He looked around. The city where the Crystal Soul Trading Company was located was in ruins, and there were not many living people left. You can take away the things of those people just now. The assets of the Crystal Soul Trading Company will be handed over to the sect. Yes, sir. He Chuan cupped his hands. In fact, he did not contribute much. Apart from killing his eldest son, the rest of the experts were dealt with by Yuan Emperor. Emperor Yuan took out a talisman. With a slight movement, the paper talisman burned. They should be informing the people from the reincarnation palace to come over and clean up the battlefield. Seeing this, He Chuan quickly packed up his spoils of war. First, he took Qing Hu's Vajra spirit connection sword, then the other treasures and storage rings. In the end, there were even corpses. The corpses of these people who had passed the tribulation could not melt for 10,000 years. They were good materials for research. He obtained nine magic treasures and fifteen storage bags. This time, he could go into seclusion for a period of time. What a pity! Emperor Yuan muttered to himself. The people from the Crystal Soul Trading Company haven't all died? He Chuan asked doubtfully. I'm saying that my cultivation is still lacking. Yuan Emperor shook his head. He was at the peak of Immortal Venerable Realm, his domain had reached completion and his paradise was in its embryonic form. However, he could not take that step. The cultivation of the Yama avatar consumes a lot of energy, it requires countless essence origins. Yuan Emperor continued. What is the essence origin? He Chuan asked knowingly. Every kind of essence has a corresponding origin. This lord needs the origin of the devil energy, the nine netherworld devil energy. To break through to the god realm, one needed to absorb spiritual energy to achieve the realm of self-sustaining divine energy and longevity. Yuan Emperor had calculated that if he wanted to break through to the god realm, he would need to consume at least twenty continents origin. Where could he find so many continents? The continents within a radius of millions of miles basically all had owners. The ownerless ones were either very barren or had lost all their essence. Or perhaps it was a land of peril. If there was a star that could directly absorb the essence of the origin, then one could step into the god realm. Unfortunately, no new stars have been discovered yet. A few streaks of light flew over from the horizon. Yao Yue and Xing Yue followed closely behind the bloody pagoda. He Chuan secretly told the two women not to greet him. Palace Lord. Qin Shuang bowed with cupped hands. A few envoys followed beside him. When they saw the Crystal Soul Trading Company's headquarters in front of them, they were extremely shocked. The palace master was still the domineering palace master from back then. She wanted to borrow someone else's head just because she didn't agree. Seize all the battleships, shuttles, and carriages of the Crystal Soul Trading Company as quickly as possible. Seize all the routes as much as possible. Emperor Yuan's face was full of joy. The reincarnation palace finally had its own route. 
The destruction of the Crystal Soul Trading Company also showed the other forces the toughness of the Reincarnation Palace. He Chuan did not participate in the follow-up. After returning to Judge Hall, he instructed the first Boundless and Little Dragon Girl to take stock of the materials. He returned to the small world. This trip was quite fruitful. The 200 million spirit stones from the Sky City and the nine magic treasures from the Crystal Soul Trading Company. It was enough for him to use it for a long time. The next step was to upgrade the Dharma treasure restrictions, then cultivate and transcend the tribulation. He had to consider upgrading the true talisman as well. It was not at the magic treasure level yet. His overall cultivation would be greatly enhanced. I wonder when Yao Yue and Xin Yue will become celestial cultivators. He Chuan thought to himself. Treasure light flickered, and the nine magic treasures flickered with light. Among them, there were four layered restrictions, and two of them had three layered restrictions. He Chuan picked up the Golden Vitra Spirit Connection Sword, and there was a sharp pain between his eyebrows. Looking at it for a while longer, he felt his soul sting. The sword vibrated continuously, and the spirituality within it repelled external touch. If He Chuan hadn't forcefully used his mana to suppress it, he would probably have already exploded and killed someone. Dharma Breaking, Sword Chi, Annihilation, and Vitra Four Treasures The combination of the four was the Vitra Spirit Connection Sword. The restrictions released also destroyed everything. He Chuan took out the Tianzi Sword. The black and white sword body looked very mysterious. The divine item concealed itself, although it did not have the golden light of the Vajra sword. However, the moment he came out, he suppressed the aura of the sword. It was like a high and mighty emperor who looked weak but had many powerful generals under him. The Tianzi sword had three powerful restrictions, mountain and river, land and grain, and heaven's will. The spirit connection sword had a high level, but the quality of the restriction was much lower than Tianzi sword. For weapons like magic treasures, not only did the level of the restriction matter, but the power of the restriction was also very important. The Tianzi sword was the king of swords, and it had an innate suppression over sword-type weapons. At the same time, it could devour their precious restrictions. When the Tianzi sword saw the spirit connection sword, it immediately trembled in excitement. The sword was also shaking, but it was just scared. He Chuan let go of his sword. The Tianzi sword immediately pounced forward and cut the spirit connection sword in half. Boundless golden energy continuously surged into the Tianzi sword. A breeze blew past, and the sword turned into dust. The swords in the remaining magic treasures trembled, but in the end, these swords could not escape the fate of being devoured. After the absorption, the Tianzi sword dimmed. He Chuan roughly sensed it and destroyed the restriction. It seemed that the Tianzi sword did not care about other miscellaneous restrictions. He Chuan also went into seclusion to cultivate. Chapter, 463 Undercurrents were surging in the scorching Sun Dynasty, and danger was invading Vain Death City from all directions. The scorching Sun God King was in the boundless light, and below him were the civil and military officials. The ministers did not even dare to breathe loudly. Only King Qian's voice echoed in the vast hall. Emperor Yuan's cultivation base is close to that of a god realm expert. I feel that there's no need to delay any longer. It's time to take over the foundation of the Reincarnation Palace. Apart from its own territory, the Reincarnation Palace also had three overseas territories. The population under its rule was as high as 50 million. How can I let others occupy my land? The ministers rubbed their fists and rubbed their palms, ready to bite off a piece of meat from this old wolf. Because the benefits of taking down the reincarnation palace were immeasurable. Seeing the excited officials, it was as if they had already taken down the reincarnation palace. Humph. Scorching Sun God King snorted coldly. The atmosphere instantly froze, and the temperature dropped. Ice crystals even formed in the air. Who gave you the confidence? Are you admitting your victory in advance? Scorching Sun God King's words made everyone feel as if they had fallen into an ice cave. The few officials who were excitedly discussing how to use the spoils of war were so frightened that they knelt on the ground and kowtowed. 
even a lion uses its full strength to hunt a rabbit. Everyone must be present the day after tomorrow. There must be no mistakes. Scorching Sun God King's style was fast, accurate, and ruthless. He would use an open and aboveboard scheme to tell the other party with absolute confidence. I just want to hit you. You could either run away like stray dogs or come to beg for forgiveness. Resistance didn't matter. No matter how you resisted, it was useless. He was the winner. Scorching Sun God King looked in the direction of the Reincarnation Palace as if he could see Emperor Yuan, who was thousands of miles away. Old rival, this king just want you to know. So what if you know? Reincarnation Palace. It was as dark and deep as ever. There was a seriousness in his deep voice. The leaders of thousands of ghosts and gods came from all directions, riding ghost fires, ghost horses, cranes, and dark clouds. In the Golden Palace. Yuan Emperor sat in the depths of the hall. His body was huge and was two hundred feet tall. Everyone was only as tall as his feet. Looking down at everyone from above, gave off a great sense of oppression. Beneath Yuan Emperor's feet were five spirit lords. From left to right, the first middle-aged man with black hair and black eyes was a Rakshasa who rarely showed his face. This ghost rarely showed itself and had broken through to the immortal venerable realm a few days ago. He was an immortal venerable expert of the reincarnation palace other than the Yuan Emperor. Beside him were the soul-capturing ghost, wandering star, city god, and black-faced in god. These five people were the upper echelons of the reincarnation palace. Six thousand ghosts and gods. I'm sure everyone knows what the Scorching Sun dynasty is doing. Yuan Emperor's majestic voice spread in all directions. Different scenes, the same way of dealing with them. There might be a mole in the reincarnation palace, but Yuan Emperor didn't care. It didn't matter if the other party knew his secret. It wasn't his style to hide when fighting. As he spoke, Yuan Emperor secretly observed everyone. Some of them were obviously already timid. Their gazes were evasive as if they had already thought of a way out. There were also some people with fanatical expressions, clearly eager to fight. These people were oddly shaped. They had green faces and sharp fangs, and their horns were prominent. Most of them were ghosts and gods. To them, they have died once anyway. What was there to be afraid of in a war? Most of them were as indifferent as he Chuan. Anyway, they had a trump card. If they couldn't win, they would just run. Before anyone could reply. The air rumbled and the energy boiled. Yuan Emperor, hand over your life. This was King Qian's voice from last time. As soon as he finished speaking. The giant hand covered the entire Yin Mountain. The palm covered a radius of hundreds of miles. The hand of heaven, no matter where one was. As long as he stretched out his hand and reached into the void, he could appear anywhere. Just in time. Yuan Emperor lifted the Golden Palace to meet the attack. The giant hand collided with the Golden Palace, and a loud boom erupted. The energy rumbled and the clouds dissipated. Countless people from the Scorching Sun Dynasty and the Reincarnation Palace had died. They gradually fought into the boundless void, perhaps not wanting the aftershocks to hurt their subordinates. The thousands of ghosts and gods below were fighting against Scorching Sun's divine weapon. The red light was dazzling, and the yellow sand was ten thousand feet tall. The chain reaction caused by the clash of thousands of spells instantly caused most of the formations in Yin Mountain to fail. The earth churned, and the seawater poured in. The screams and wails of the ghosts and gods and the excitement and roars of the humans intertwined. Blood and fire dyed the earth red. Such a big scene, the big scenes that He Chuan had seen in the past could not compare to these. The two immortal venerables, King Sun and King Moon targeted the five experts of the Reincarnation Palace. The Rakshasa smiled disdainfully. He was a ghost born from the netherworld and represented the world's plague. His immortal venerable's Dharma domain was activated. The five-colored plague domain filled the surroundings. Except for the ghosts and deities of the Reincarnation Palace, those who came into contact with the plague were foaming at the mouth and died on the spot. Some people's skin festered, 
pus flowed from the top of their heads, and sores formed on the soles of their feet. How dare you! Sun King was furious and frowned. He and the Moon King activated their magic domains to resist this vicious plague domain. The Rakshasa started fighting with the Sun and Moon Kings. The other ghosts and deities fought each other. He Chuan transformed into an official of the Scorching Sun Dynasty and blended into their camp. The little lady is really hot. This official likes this. How about you come back with me to be a concubine? The one who spoke was a middle-aged Confucian scholar with a decent appearance. This person's attack method was quite strange. His fingers turned into sword fingers, shooting out colorful sword intent, some strange, some fierce. Coupled with his powerful magic power, the two women in front of him were completely defenseless. The two women in front of him were extremely beautiful. One of them had black hair and the other had white hair. Their appearances were shockingly similar. No wonder he was tempted. As time passed, the two women were gradually forced into a dead end. Although the Shura clan was powerful, their opponent was someone from a celestial realm. He was an entire realm higher than them. Don't resist. Another scholar descended from the sky. The city lord subconsciously raised his head. The Confucian scholar had unknowingly become an unfamiliar young man. Not good. The city lord had a bad feeling. A golden light appeared, and the Shaoshang city lord vanished into thin air. Master, another fool died. The two girls smiled sweetly when they saw He Chuan. Just now, the two women were pretending. He Chuan immediately let the two women continue to fight and guide others over. The three of them followed this routine and lured people to a remote place. Then, He Chuan transformed and killed the people from the Scorching Sun dynasty. As time passed, more than thirty experts, unfortunately, died at their hands. The Shura clan was cultivating through slaughter, and the two women gradually approached the peak of the Shura realm. The Netherworld River also condensed the second level of the Precious Seal, which was called Bewitching. The Bewitching Soup of the Bridge of Helplessness was the incarnation of the treasure. Apart from condensing different types of restrictions, one could also condense the same type of restrictions, making the restrictions of the same nature stronger. The Netherworld River relied on suppressing ghosts, gods, demons, and devils to obtain power. If he continued to strengthen the restriction, perhaps a drop of bewitching soup in the future would be able to purify the gods and devils in the sky. He Chuan returned to his original form and the Netherworld River pressed down. The priest's body collapsed. The Yin spirit wailed and drank the bewitching soup, instantly washing away his memories. The Yin spirit and the body became nutrients, and the Netherworld River merged into one. Perhaps He Chuan had killed too many people. Chapter, 464 He Chuan had killed too many people and attracted the attention of a city lord of the Scorching Sun dynasty. How dare you! How dare you impersonate me! A crimson cloud of fire descended from the sky, and an old Taoist descended while laughing maniacally. Fireballs the size of millstones attacked from all directions. The temperature suddenly rose. The temperature was very high. The soil under his feet turned into red lava and then turned into diamonds under high temperature and high pressure. He Chuan could clearly smell the burning smell of his hair. The person in front of him was exactly the same as the person he had transformed into. It seemed that he had met the real person. Ha, huh, I didn't expect you to find out. He Chuan laughed loudly, his body growing ten thousand feet tall. His golden body reflected the sun's light. The Dharma treasures of the people beside him hit his body, making clear knocking sounds, and then bounced off. He Chuan opened his mouth and spat out even bigger flames. The demonic fire split into eight fireballs. When it collided with the fireball of the city lord of Yangming City, the same kind of flame would awaken differently, producing an extremely intense reaction. The lava splashed in all directions and stained the others. Ah! The unlucky cultivator's arm was stained with a little flame. The veins on his forehead bulged as he cried out in pain. The fire spread in less than three breaths. This person was reduced to ashes. The Yama avatar held the emperor's sword and faced the sun-like wheel in the sky. Bang! 
the moment the two avatars came into contact. Impossible. The city lord of Yangming City was shocked. The huge force sent the sun fire will flying, and the remaining force did not decrease as it shattered his immortal venerable. As soon as the two of them fought, the city lord of Yangming City thought he had been defeated. He Chuan followed up with a victorious pursuit. The void split open, bringing with it the concept of time flowing and yin and yang reversing. The city lord of Yangming City felt that his lifespan was rapidly depleting. He did not dare to fight head on and retreated rapidly. If he was struck by the sword, not only would his lifespan be lost, but his cultivation would also be greatly reduced. He narrowly dodged this attack. The earth below seemed to have been sucked dry by something, and the two sides of the ravine created by the sword intent had become a land of death. How can there be such a powerful wind calamity? The city lord of Yangming City clicked his tongue. He didn't say that he had to kill this person, but at the very least, he had suppressed him. He didn't expect it would be the other way around. The two immortal cultivators Dharma appeared and fought from the sky to the ground, then from the ground to the sky. The city lord of Yangming City was suppressed in all aspects. Now. He Chuan opened his third eye and caught the flaw under the endless flames. The Tianzi sword flew out by itself and expanded with the wind. The ten-mile-long sword seemed to tear through the sky and break the flame barrier. With a crisp sound, the red flames receded like a tide. City Lord of Yangming City's true body was exposed in front of Yichuan. He held the spinning sun flame wheel in his right hand. His expression was complicated, filled with regret and anger. Finally, there was endless unwillingness. The City Lord of Yangming City exploded into a puddle of blood mist, and the area within a radius of several hundred feet was filled with shattered internal organs and fresh blood. He would never have thought that he would fall into the hands of a stranger, and a cultivator with a lower cultivation level than him. He Chuan collected the fire wheel. After Tianzi Sword and the Netherworld River were upgraded, his combat strength once again approached the peak of the celestial realm. This was not the end. When he had the time, he would go into seclusion and realized the idea of the long snake iron dog purgatory. His combat power would increase by a large margin, and killing people two realms above him would not be a problem. He Chuan came back to his senses and looked around the battlefield. His victory did not mean that the reincarnation palace had gained an advantage. They were no match for the scorching sun dynasty in terms of both numbers and the quality of their experts. The Rakshasa gradually couldn't hold on under the joint attack of the two immortal cultivators. Half of the six thousand ghosts and gods were dead or injured. The scale of victory was completely in the Scorching Sun Dynasty's favor. Yuan Emperor probably wasn't having a good time either. He Chuan looked up at the boundless void that flashed with dazzling light from time to time. The gap between Immortal Venerable was too great. Even if Yuan Emperor had a trump card, it was still not enough to deal with God King Scorching Sun who was a peak Immortal Venerable inside. In the boundless void. Yuan Emperor's body grew to 300 feet tall, almost the same size as the giant hand. The giant hand would occasionally attack him from all directions in the void. Behind the void, a faint shadow could be seen. The heaven hand clenched its fist and smashed into Yuan Emperor's body. Yuan Emperor flew out uncontrollably and only stopped after smashing a few meteorites. I'll give you one more chance. Surrender and I won't kill you. God King Scorching Sun's heaven's hand floated above Yuan Emperor's head. As long as the other party was unwilling, he would be turned into ashes on the spot. Old friend, don't be so heartless. I'll just surrender. However, you've stuffed a lot of people into my side over the years, right? Yuan Emperor said with a smile. Aren't you the same? God King Scorching Sun replied noncommittally. Peace breeds wealth. From the beginning to the end, I have never thought of killing you, but to eat you. A wicked smile appeared on Yuan Emperor's face. His dark pupils reflected the scenes of hell. A hint of foreboding flashed through God King Scorching Sun's heart. He directly infused his mana into heaven's hand, and all the power of a peak immortal venerable was added to it. It turned Yuan Emperor and the void here into chaos. 
Yuan Emperor turned into ashes, and the last incantation he left behind echoed in the void. Yama's Palace of the Yellow Springs, the serene prison is everywhere. All the mighty spirits of the netherworld are willing to be merciful and release this undead to obtain incredible merit. The danger in God King Scorching Sun's heart became clearer and clearer. A sentence echoed in the ears of the reincarnation palace members who were fighting below. North Village's Changel Wuyang Saint Congregation. Five primal spirit emperors give the order. The ghosts and gods, including He Chuan, turned into starlight and scattered in all directions. The direction was the Scorching Sun Dynasty. As expected of you. I lost. God King Scorching Sun, who was in the boundless void, spat out these words helplessly and in despair. The remaining ghosts and deities were divided into 365 rays of light. They flew in different directions. They were all in the main cities of the Scorching Sun dynasty. God King Scorching Sun could sense that the ghost and god had completely merged with the vital energy veins of the main city. If he wanted to get rid of these ghosts and gods, he could do so. But the city would lose more than half of its essence. This price was no less than scraping the bones to cure the poison, or even more serious, it was called cutting off the wrist of a strong man. Seeing the ghosts and deities of the reincarnation palace leave, the sun and moon kings were confused. At this moment, a round ball of light descended beside the two of them. Your Majesty, what's going on? Should we chase after them? Ren Wan was a man full of yin energy, with a pale face and no beard. He felt that there was something wrong with God King Scorching Sun. There's no need to chase. The one who spoke was not God King Scorching Sun. A giant that was five feet tall appeared from the void beside him. He had a square head and a round head, looking very imposing. This person was actually the Yuan Emperor. The moment they saw this person, everyone immediately prepared to attack. In the future, Yuan Emperor will be the Heavenly Emperor of Yin Manor. He will control the ghosts and spirits of the ghosts, punish evil, promote good, and record merit. God King Scorching Sun waved his hand to stop everyone. His words almost made everyone's jaws drop. This is against the rules. God King Scorching Sun had actually given all the authority of the netherworld to the reincarnation palace. They had worked so hard previously because they wanted to take down the reincarnation palace and obtain the power of good and evil in the netherworld at the same time to perfect the cultivation of the Scorching Sun God King. In the end, not only did he die, but he also gave away the authority of his territory. What rules? We'll be a family in the future. There's no need to differentiate between us. You're so insensible. Yuan Emperor giggled as he looked at God King Scorching Sun and said. God King Scorching Sun was in the ball of light, and his expression could not be seen clearly. Chapter, 465 However, everyone present understood that God King Scorching Sun's face was definitely ashen. This was indeed the case. This matter seemed like child's play, but the relationship was too complicated. Everything started from the invasion back then. Back then, God King Scorching Sun was in the Immortal Venerable Realm, just like Yuan Emperor. Later on, God King Scorching Sun was lucky enough to comprehend a more profound dermic formulation. It was a supreme Immortal Venerable Pinnacle secret technique that used the country as the body, the city as the acupuncture points, and the state as the meridians. This method cannot allow one to cultivate to the peak of Immortal Reverend. The entire country was a peak Immortal Reverend. A man is a country. The people are the blood tendons, the ministers are the five internal organs, and the cities are the meridians and acupoints. If one cultivated to the highest level, they could even rise from the ground and soar into the boundless void, turning into a new star. God King Scorching Sun had become a god realm cultivator through this method, and his every move carried the power of a nation suppression. He gradually suppressed Yuan Emperor. He did not expect the other party to hide it so deeply. He had already done something before he became a god realm expert. He had been hiding for nearly a thousand years, and only now did he make a move. It was simply outrageous. Brothers of God King Scorching Sun, I'll be staying in Danjong City from now on. Feel free to call me if you need anything. 
It was only now that God-looking scorching sun realized that the situation was far worse than he had imagined. The ghosts and gods of the reincarnation palace happened to fill the gap in the scorching sun dynasty. Ghosts and gods were the flesh and blood of the god-king scorching sun, and the commanders were the leaders of the god-king scorching sun's meridians. Yuan Emperor even occupied the position of the five internal organs and Shan Zhong. This was not something that could be solved by simply cutting off one's wrist. I'm afraid, most of the internal organs would probably have to be replaced. You want to swallow me? I want to see who will swallow who. God King Scorching Sun made up his mind. Since they couldn't resolve this peacefully, then they would hurt each other. Let's see who has the last laugh. Now, he could only brace himself and endure it. The next day. The news shocked the entire central great land. The reincarnation palace and the scorching sun dynasty, two old rivals, had officially merged. People had thought that they would fight to the death and one of them would be finished. They didn't expect such an ending. For a time, the various factions were discussing animatedly. The scorching sun dynasty had officially entered the category of a top force. They were also ranked in the top 10 in the entire central great land. He Chuan was now the netherworld guardian of Divine Gate City and the surrounding five cities. He was also the king of Yin City. He didn't have much to do. The matters of the netherworld were basically handled by the city lords below. He had been studying magic treasures for the past few days. The battle between the two sides actually ended in this way. Yuan Emperor was truly a genius. His thinking was also very clear. Since he couldn't beat him, he would join in and lie on someone else's body to suck blood. Of course, this did not mean that it was safe. If one was not careful, one would be sucked back. Therefore, strengthening one's own strength was the way to go. He Chuan didn't have high requirements. His goal was to break through to Immortal Reverend and cultivate the first level of the Northern Yin Purgatory. The combination of Purgatory and Netherworld River was even more powerful. After He Chuan entered the immortal venerable stage, with these magic treasures and divine arts, his combat strength should be close to peak immortal venerable. He had to wait until the next time the underworld opened. In this way, the probability of obtaining the Earth Bodhisattva God card would increase. The days after that were unusually dull. Every day, he would study the first level of the Northern Yin Hell and then cultivate the Yama Avatar Heavenly Venerate chapter. The main mission still had to be done. He Chuan received a summons from Emperor Yuan. Danzhong City. The reincarnation palace was no different from before, except that they moved their headquarters to Danzhong City. The two forces minded their own business. They were not as close as the rumor said. Some parties had indeed cooperated, but as for whether they were sincere or not, it was probably unknown. They arrived at the Golden Palace. Yuan Emperor was five feet tall and looked rather cute. Beside him stood a petite, timid, and straight young girl with black hair. Judge of Yin, are you going to Sky City tomorrow? Emperor Yuan remembered that He Chuan was the one who controlled this route. Yes. This is Princess Taiping. You two can go together tomorrow. Princess Taiping. He Chuan was surprised. This timid little girl was actually called Princess Taiping. However, judging from her figure, she was indeed quite peaceful. Then whose princess was she? Could she be the illegitimate daughter of Emperor Yuan? Such a person could give birth to such a petite and cute daughter. This is the daughter of God King Scorching Sun. Bring her out to see the world. Yuan Emperor saw through his thoughts and said unhappily. All right. He Chuan nodded in agreement and then looked at Princess Taiping. When she met He Chuan's gaze, the girl immediately lowered her head in fear. It was hard to imagine that she was the daughter of the God King Scorching Sun, who had unparalleled divine techniques. She was actually like this. You guys go out. Be careful. Yuan Emperor said with a strange tone. Although they were mortal enemies, Yuan Emperor didn't have much malice toward juniors. However, he felt that it was a little funny. God King Scorching Sun did not pay any attention to it either. He should be very relieved. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but sigh in his heart. 
his old opponent knew him best. In the future, when he killed God King Scorching Sun, he would try his best to choose a better way to die. It could also be considered a form of respect for his confidant. Yes. He Chuan said. He didn't understand what Yuan Emperor meant by being careful, so he turned around and walked out of the door. The little girl followed behind him without saying a word. When there was no one around, He Chuan suddenly felt a chill coming from behind him. Can you help me seize the throne? Princess Taiping stared at He Chuan with her big black eyes and said in a shocking sound. He Chuan couldn't believe his ears. If I become the emperor, you will be the great general. Princess Taiping looked serious. You have to have the cultivation of a god realm. He Chuan couldn't help but laugh. He ignored this spoiled little girl. The princess's words reminded him of Empress Changning from the lower realm and female King Liao. He was the one who supported them. Could it be that he was destined to be the man beside the empress? Become stronger. Yuan Emperor said so too, you must have a way. Princess Taiping shouted loudly. Then follow me to the Sky City first. He Chuan understood what the two big shots meant. It was nothing more than seeing the world. Since he had nothing to do anyway, there was no harm in bringing her around. The two of them rode the shuttle of the Crystal Soul Trading Company and headed to the boundless void. The Crystal Soul Trading Company was destroyed, and the shuttle and route were controlled by He Chuan. He didn't have to worry about others doing anything. The journey was smooth. Not long after, the two of them arrived at the Sky City in the boundless void. In the vast void, a majestic city was floating quietly. Beneath his feet was an endless land. This scene was truly spectacular. Princess Taiping exclaimed repeatedly. Princess, Sky City is just ahead. The fish in the void is the guard of Sky City. He Chuan pointed at these huge whales and said. These whales lived in the void like trash and looked harmless. However, once they provoked these guys, they would know what cruelty was. He Chuan took out the token. The whale looked at it and exchanged glances with each other. Then, it flapped its tail and left. The flying shuttle connected with the array, and the two of them arrived at the Crystal Soul Trading Company's office. Chapter, 466 All the people here were members of the Reincarnation Palace. He Chuan handed over the mission as usual, while Princess Taiping looked around curiously. From time to time, she would touch here and there. Lord Judge, young Master Qi Yi is looking for you. He said it's the same old place. The shopkeeper said. I'll be there in a while. He Chuan nodded and replied. The two of them had already reached a deep cooperative relationship. Qi Yi was responsible for collecting meteorite resources and selling goods. He Chuan was in charge of observing the inside of the meteorite, so he would get a 30 to 70 split of the loot. After all, without his eyes, no matter how many resources Qi Yi had, he would not be able to get anything good. After arranging his work, He Chuan walked out of the door. Princess Taiping was still curiously looking at the things inside. Whether it was the bloody beast bones or the demonic core with dense demonic energy, they were all treasures that she had never seen before. Princess, we have to go. He Chuan said with a smile. Don't call me princess. Just call me Qing Shuang. Princess Taiping patted her flat chest and said. Qing Shuang, your name sounds nice. He Chuan thought to himself. The little girl was not as unruly as he had imagined. She did not have any bad intentions. She could also take a joke. He Chuan brought her to the appraiser chamber of commerce. As the two of them traveled, a square suddenly appeared in front of them. The square was littered with pitch black stones, and the surface of the stones emitted a metallic luster. The moment He Chuan entered, someone immediately came up to welcome him. Someone immediately went in to report. Judge of Ian, I finally meet for you. A peal of hearty laughter came from not far away, and a handsome young master slowly walked over. This fellow is so strange. Qing Shuang said softly. The thirteenth young master of the Sky City, Qi Yi. Don't call him wrong. He Chuan was not afraid of offending this person. 
After this period of communication, this person's personality was quite good. He wasn't arrogant. Chi Ye's second brother didn't seem to have made any big moves recently. It was probably Yuan Emperor's protective behavior that scared him. He would directly annihilate the entire clan. Although the second young master had someone backing him up, he couldn't stand this kind of lunatic coming to find trouble. Daoist of Yin City, these are the new goods. Take a look at which ones are suitable. If there aren't any, I'll return them. Chi Yi did not mind Taiping's gaze. He had seen this kind of thing many times. He Chuan looked around and chose eight stones. Return the rest. There's still no star jade fragment. He Chuan looked at these things and could not help but sigh. The bigger the space in hell, the better. Although the later stages would be very difficult, at least the power would increase. Do you really need star jade fragments? I still have ten cubes here. I can lend them to you first. Are there any jade scraps of higher quality? I'm not too sure. I'll bring you to the Sky Trading Company in a while and see what you need. He Chuan and Chi Yi chatted. Each of the eight meteorites had valuable treasures. Chi Yi looked at him with envy and jealousy. He didn't know where this guy got his special ability from, but he was able to see through the meteorite skin that even magic treasures and formations couldn't. The total value of the items was around 120 million spirit stones. Other than special items, everything else was exchanged for spirit stones. Among them, the most valuable was the blood red, transparent immortal peach. Legend has it that this immortal peach was formed from the essence of ancient gods and devils. Consuming it can transform one's body into a pure young innate body. It's very useful for cultivators with young type cultivation techniques. For cultivators who didn't fit the requirements, it seemed a little redundant. He Chuan accepted it. There were many items that could not be exchanged with spirit stones in the auction house of Sky City. Everyone packed up their things and flew towards the Sky Trading Company in the center of the city. The clouds are steaming, and the auspicious air is thousands of miles away. It was more like a small floating island than a trading firm. Floating in the sky above the Sky City, enjoying the light, those who didn't know better would think that it was a star. The interior of the building had an exotic feel to it. The white dome wall was like a flying shuttle that was about to fly into the sky. There was ample space at the entrance of the building. This is the official chamber of commerce of Sky City. Everything is auctioned here. Your privacy is protected by the city lord. Chi Yi introduced. Two strange gray-skinned people stood at the door. The strange man's eyes lit up as he scanned the guests entering and leaving, just in case they had contraband on them. Halt, show me your token. The eccentric stopped a white-haired old man. The white-haired elder took out the bronze token. The strange man's eyes shone with starlight as he scanned the area, then he let them pass. This is the proof of property. You can't enter without thirty million spirit stones. Of course, I don't need it. After Chi Yi walked through the strange man kept kneeling and kowtowing. Greetings, thirteenth young master. Chi Yi had a very low status in the clan due to his birth defects, but he was not someone who could be bullied by servants. Even if Chi Yi was kind enough not to pursue the matter, if the other young masters and princesses found out, they would kill them. A servant was a servant, and a master was a master. No matter how low their status was, they would not allow their servants to insult them. The strange man led everyone into a small private room. In the middle of the private room was a round jade wall. From time to time, advertisements for products flashed, and discussions could be heard from all directions. The sound had been processed. I heard that there's something good today. What good stuff? Didn't you see the jade wall? It seems to have something to do with the world god. Didn't you see that so many people came here because of this? The three of them heard the discussion. At this moment, a bell rang. The jade wall flashed with golden light and a huge stage appeared. On the stage was a shrewd businessman in a purple robe. Everyone, the auction has officially begun. The Sky Trading Company will guarantee your personal safety in Sky City. You can choose to remain anonymous or use your real name. 
The merchant clapped his hands, and two Dao soldiers came out carrying a big box. The box opened abruptly. A cold blue air gushed out, but it was blocked by the magic formation outside the box. What a powerful cold air! He Chuan's pupils constricted, and there was a faint frost at the end of his hair. Just a glance at it almost froze his soul and his body. Northern dark extreme arctic frost is suitable for refining magic treasures. The Sky Chamber of Commerce's estimated starting price is 30 million, and each bid must not be lower than a million. The Star Jade Fragments are worth 120 million. 30 million. 35 million. Daoist Priest He San bid 35 million. Are there any higher bids? The product was finally sold for 40 million. This treasure was very powerful. Its coldness could even be transmitted through one's eyes. However, they were only raw materials and could not be sold at a high price. The auction continued. He Chuan wasn't interested in them and just watched the show. People from big forces were not anonymous. When people heard their names, they would give them faces. An outer space strange stone, 18 feet tall and 10 feet wide. The merchant's shout attracted He Chuan's attention. It was a black meteorite that was shining with light. It looked extraordinary. Anyone who could enter the auction would basically have a vision. A meteorite on the flaming flame star. The flaming flame star burns with eternal flames. People call it the little sun. It said that there might be an ancient golden crow egg inside. A third eye opened between He Chuan's eyebrows. Qing Shuang was curious. This was the first time she had seen He Chuan's strange appearance. Chapter 467 It wasn't a golden crow egg inside, but a strange fire creature. It looked like a fire crow, and it didn't look bad. Thinking of this, He Chuan was the first to bid. 10 million. As it was an uncertain stone gambling, the price was not that high. A red-haired middle-aged man sat on a seat in the secret room. This person had a strange appearance. He had no white eyes, only pitch-black pupils that occupied his entire eye. Behind him stood two or three young men, and one of them was the second young master Lu Dao. In front of them were several jade boards that clearly displayed the scenes in each private room. The red-haired middle-aged man in front of him was Qi Ye's father, the leader of Sky City, Qing Tian. As an intermediate immortal venerable, Qing Tian was definitely at the peak of the Sky City. Who is he? Why is Qi Yi with this person? Qing Tian frowned. This person has a great ability. He can see through meteorites and stars. Lu Dao said. The person who caused the Crystal Soul Trading Company to be destroyed that day. Qing Tian had also heard of this matter, but he did not pay much attention to it. Father, you have to help me. Qi Yi colluded with outsiders and betrayed me. The second young master was angry and resentful. He recalled the destruction of the Crystal Soul Trading Company that day. This matter caused his prestige to be completely swept away, and some of his subordinates were alienated. Since you said that this person has a special ability, the stone should have another secret. Take the stone. Qing Tian waved his hand and looked carefully at He Chuan in the picture. Yes, sir. The second young master ordered his subordinates. The price reached 16 million, and no one increased the bid. Just when He Chuan thought that he was in the bag. Second young master bids 20 million. Anyone else? The merchant suddenly shouted. The meteorite was eventually taken by the second young master. Second young master. Does he know it's us? He Chuan felt that it was not worth it, so he did not continue to raise the price. That's impossible. I remember that the private room wouldn't leak information. Qi Yi shook his head in denial. You're really stupid. You said they wouldn't leak it, so it didn't leak. They might be watching us right now. Qing Shuang turned her head and looked around. Qing Shuang's guess was right. He Chuan knew it was impossible not to monitor them. It was just that it sounded good on the surface. He Chuan thought that he would go back after a casual stroll, but before that, he could trick them. In the secret chamber. Everyone cut open the meteorite, and the flames flew into the sky. 
Qin Tian reached out and grabbed the flame in his palm. There really is something. Continue to keep an eye on him. Can we recruit this person? Qin Tian suddenly asked. No, this guy won't be persuaded. The second young master replied respectfully. He Chuan once again auctioned off the meteorites. This time, he had dug out a sword treasure and earned another profit. Invite him over later. Qin Tian was delighted to see the prey. At this moment, He Chuan stood up on the screen and stared at the ordinary meteorite on the stage with an excited expression. Everyone's attention was drawn over. Could there be a secret here? The strange movements in the private room attracted everyone's attention. The lowest value of these two items was 30 million. Even so, he couldn't see He Chuan so excited. Now that it had become like this, it could be seen that the value of this thing was definitely not low. No matter what, we must take this item, Qing Tian ordered everyone to see what made him so excited. Qing Tian was not worried He Chuan would trick him. Other than some of his sons, no one knew there were people peeping in the private room at all times. This was to investigate the strength of each clan. They definitely could not be easily exposed. Meteorite from Outer Space According to the owner of the magic treasure, he saw this stone exuding an extraordinary light when he picked it up. It's worth five million, and each bid must be no less than a hundred thousand. Seeing this stone, everyone could not help but shake their heads. What extraordinary light, it was just talking. Which meteorite shop didn't say that the stone had extraordinary splendor? Five, five million. He Chuan was the first to raise the bid. Number 88 bids 5, 5 million. Who else wants to bid? The auctioneer said. 6 million. A bid came from the second young master's private room. He Chuan gritted his teeth and immediately bid 10 million. Second young master bids 11 million. In a short span of 10 breaths, the price had doubled, scaring the other spectators. The two of them were at loggerheads. They didn't look like dogs. Could it be that this stone had a secret? At this moment, someone could not help but bid. When the price was raised to 80 million, most people started to retreat. 80 million was not a small amount, so there was no need to bet on this. 100 million. He Chuan added 20 million. The second young master chased after him and continued to raise the bid by 10 million. In the private room, He Chuan and the other two discussed and finally made a difficult decision. Two Star Jade Fragments Number 88 bids two cubes of star jade fragments. The host raised his voice excitedly. The biggest order today was actually an ordinary stone. Everyone was in an uproar. The two pieces of star jade fragments were worth 240 million on the black market. Ordinary medium-sized forces might not even have that much liquid capital. For this small stone. This is all the money they have do you want to take it? The second young master also became nervous. I think the risk is too great. It's not worth paying so many spirit stones. Two cubes of star jade fragments could be used to buy a magic treasure with three layers of restrictions. Was there an ancient magic treasure inside? Or the bloodline of a certain divine beast? Otherwise, it really wasn't worth it. Add 10 million. Qin Tian pondered for a moment and said. The second young master raised the bid by another 10 million. In the private room, He Chuan's face was ashen. He muttered to himself as if he was wondering why someone was going against him. Deal. Congratulations, second young master, for obtaining a treasure. Second young master, can you show us what it is? That's right. Let us broaden our horizons and see what exactly is worth such a price. The voices of the crowd came from each private room. Everyone was really curious. Shopkeeper Song, help me open it. The second young master's voice sounded and carried a hint of pride. He Chuan was still crying. He even took out his family background. It was impossible for him to dig a hole deliberately. There should be treasures inside. All right. The merchant on the stage took out his golden knife and began to cut the pieces piece by piece. The object inside the meteorite slowly appeared. It seemed to be a fruit with scales. 
Snake Fruit. The second young master and the others' faces stiffened, and Ching Tian frowned. There should be something behind it. Unfortunately, reality disappointed them again. There was nothing. One snake fruit is worth eight million. The snake fruit that had transformed into a dragon scale fruit for a thousand years was very rare. Compared to the sky high price of more than two hundred million, it seemed a little ironic. Shopkeeper Song's expression was a little unnatural. He couldn't bring himself to congratulate them. It sounded sarcastic. Hmm. Ching Tian's eyes shone with killing intent. The surrounding temperature suddenly dropped by several degrees. He Chuan's depressed expression suddenly calmed down, and his eyes looked straight ahead. He seemed to be communicating with everyone with his eyes. Good boy, you actually saw through my spell. Ching Tian laughed loudly, his tone carrying unconcealable killing intent. Many spells that his peers couldn't see through were actually seen through by this guy. Chapter, 468 This pair of eyes was really not bad. Don't invite him. Later, dig out that pair of eyes. I want to refine a magic weapon. Thinking of this, Ching Tian turned to look at his son and said. Seeing He Chuan's eyes, Ching Tian suddenly had the idea of refining a magic weapon. Instead of trying to recruit them, it was better to kill and take his eyes. Anyway, they were all of the same nature. In fact, He Chuan's deception was very easy to see through, but everyone's subconscious contempt made them ignore the probability of peeping spells being seen through. Good. This is good. The second young master Lu Dao looked at He Chuan on the screen and a trace of joy flashed in his heart. The girl beside He Chuan was not bad either. Such an innocent and cute woman was rare in the world. He would capture her and torture her slowly. It's fun. They've been tricked by you. Ching Shuang's little face was filled with excitement. Personally participating and hearing about it were two different things. Judge of Yin, do you think this person will be very angry? Ching Shuang chuckled. I don't think this is a good idea. Qi Yi was very happy, but he was afraid they would take revenge. After He Chuan's ruckus, there were indeed people monitoring this private room. If the other forces knew about this, they would definitely cause trouble. He Chuan did not answer. His gaze was completely attracted by the things inside the jade wall. This was a beautiful human, making it difficult to distinguish between male and female. Their skin was as white as snow, and her hair was as white as snow. Their skin was clean without a single pore, and their body was emitting a faint white light. They looked like a descended immortal. They were over 1,500 years old and were a Taoist who came from a meteorite. World God were from a void race, they were born to traverse the void and were Tao soldiers forged from blood. There were even other uses. The starting bid was 80 million, and each bid must be no less than 5 million. This species did look good. Unfortunately, it was not of much use to He Chuan at this stage. There was no need to spend time studying these things. At this stage, there were more spells and divine powers that were worth studying. The item was bought by a large sect for 200 million. The second last item was a seven colored meteorite. Seven colored godstone, 80 million no less than five million each time. I want to bid for this. He Chuan pointed at the seven-colored divine stone and said to the two of them. In his eyes, the interior of the stone was like a pitch-black vortex, firmly attracting his gaze. This was more than ten times stronger than the star jade fragment from before. If it was a star jade fragment, it would be worth at least fifteen cubes. He Chuan didn't care about being watched by others. His eyes revealed a look of desire. It was to confuse the other party psychologically. A star jade fragment. He Chuan immediately raised the bid by 40 million. Everyone saw that it was this fellow again. When they thought of the second young master's tragic deeds, most of them cowered. In the end, He Chuan won the bid for 20 million yuan each. During this period, the second young master and the others did not compete. Because in their eyes, he Chuan was already dead. If Sky City didn't let you go, who could leave? Deal. As the shopkeeper's hammer fell. A crisp sound rang out. 
the meteorite disappeared and an item appeared in He Chuan's private room. He Chuan held the jade box, and on the soft cushion lay a head sized seven colored meteorite. It looked small, but the things inside were terrifying. He finally saw it clearly. This item was indeed a star jade fragment, or rather, something of a higher grade than star jade fragment. The star jade fragments were fragments after all. If there was a more complete one, the energy contained inside would be much stronger than the star jade fragments. There might even be essence energy. This complete version was called the star jade annulus. Jade annulus was a kind of semicircular jade ware, like a circle with a missing piece. Its volume was 15 times that of the square-shaped object. If he Chuan guessed correctly, the object inside should be a star jade. He wouldn't open it here. Essence origin was something that even immortal venerables would be tempted by. Opening it here was simply courting death. What is this? Qi Yi asked. Qing Shuan also looked over curiously. Good stuff. He Chuan smiled and put the things into the small space. Originally, he wanted to teleport to the branch on the ground, but the distance was too far, so he could not complete it. Otherwise, he wouldn't have to take the flying shuttle. In the end, the restrictions were too low. The auction's final treasure had arrived. The shopkeeper slowly took out a jade handle scroll and placed it on the stage. These are the coordinates of Maple Leaf Country. In the Book of Ten Relics written by the ancient god realm Celestial Lord, it is said that Maple Leaf Country is honest and peaceful, and people can live for 300 years. There is a forest of longevity trees, a tree thousands of miles away, the sun and moon are hidden by it. If you fall under this tree, you won't get sick or die. This person had a lifespan of 300, and was considered a long-lived species among the various races. There was also the legendary longevity tree, which was tall and tall. It was 7 feet tall, which was 7,000 feet. Under the longevity tree, one could extend one's lifespan and not get sick or die. If he could obtain this tree, it would be a great help to his sect and power. Even if they had to wait for a long time, they would still be able to create a top sect. This country may be an overseas continent or a star in outer space. Currently, we are only providing the coordinates and cannot provide the specific route. The starting price is 200 million, and each increment must not be less than 10 million. The coordinates alone were worth so much. If it was confirmed that there was a continent, even if it was just news, the price would be ten times higher. 230 million. Everyone, please give me some face. Our sect is in dire need of this treasure land. I will definitely repay you in the future. Who the hell are you? Why should I give you a face? 300 million. How could he let the duck fly away after getting it? The final price was the five star jade fragments. It was equivalent to 600 million spirit stones. After all, it was a coordinate, and the exploration would cost a lot of spirit stones. Only wealthy sects would be willing to burn this money. If they succeeded in taking down this country, it would be a foundation for tens of thousands of years. However, if they couldn't get it, they would lose everything. He Chuan could only watch. In the past few years, he had earned four to five pieces of star jade fragments by using his divine eye of insight. Compared to these rich people who had stars at home, he was still far from it. If only I have stars. He Chuan thought to himself. The resources of the stars were enough to support the consumption of all his spells and magic treasures, as well as the origin essence needed to enter God realm. Before that, it was better to obtain the inheritance of the underworld first. He Chuan remembered that there was a lot of essence energy inside. Let's go back. He Chuan stood up and said to Qing Shuang. Going back now. Fellow Daoist, you want to sit longer? Qi Yi said in astonishment. Any later and something would have happened. He Chuan had a hidden meaning. That's impossible. Fighting is not allowed here. The city lord has personally spoken. Although Qi Ye's status was low, he still respected his father. What if it's the city lord? Without waiting for Qi Ye's reply, He Chuan left the room with Qing Chuan. This spying formation was extremely secretive. If it wasn't for his divine eye, 
it would have been hard to notice. Ordinary pill tribulations didn't have such a formation. It should be an intermediate immortal venerable expert or above. The immortal venerable of the Sky City was the city lord of the Sky City. Since this person had done such a thing, there was no reason not to take revenge on him. Void had no one to rely on, and his life was in the hands of others. He had to be on guard in a dangerous place. The two of them flew to the Crystal Soul Trading Company's office. On the way, Qingxuang did not ask much and followed closely behind He Chuan. Chapter 469 Princess Taiping understood what was going on. This time, someone might take revenge. The two boarded the shuttle. The city lord of Sky City was still in the secret chamber. He opened the jade box in front of him. Inside was a piece of paper with complicated patterns drawn on it. These were the coordinates of Maple Leaf Country. The coordinates were not something that could be written on paper. It was a complicated formation. It contained space, time, latitude, and altitude, and it would change according to the movement of the star. Usually, there was only one copy. Other than the person who wrote the coordinates, no one else could make a second copy. Thank you. The city lord of Sky City said to the Netherworld Mountain Elder beside him. It's my duty. The elders were not as arrogant as those from the big sects. Father, they have left the city. At this time, the second young master hurriedly ran over and said. There's no hurry. I'll take action personally. The city lord of the Sky City said calmly. Killing someone in the city, and killing someone who had just finished auctioning the treasures. If word got out, they wouldn't be able to do business anymore. The boundless void was easy to deal with, and it could be faked as a spaceship disappearing. Can you spare that woman's life? It should be able to sell for a good price. Greed flashed in the second young master's eyes. He thought of Ching Shuang's sweet face and his heart burned. Don't do it again. You can do business, but can't be addicted to it, understand? Your son understands. The city lord of the Sky City closed his eyes and sensed for a moment before disappearing. In the boundless void, the shuttle traveled along the route that had been set in advance. I'm so bored. Didn't you have a rock just now? Open it and take a look. Ching Shuang frowned and looked at the void. He Chuan entered an unknown place. Boom! The spaceship shook violently, and flames filled the sky. In the center of the flames was a golden crow with a crow's head and a human body. It had red wings and a sun pattern on its chest that emitted golden light. The real body of the city lord of the city in the sky, the three-legged golden crow. The moment he saw the flying shuttle, the flames condensed into a huge sword and slashed down at the flying shuttle. There was no nonsense in between. Because he Chuan wasn't worth his harsh words. The boundless grand sun primordial fire condensed into a material form, forming a giant sword. The giant flaming sword cut through the air and slashed down at the flying shuttle. The flood dragon's claw reaches out from the flying shuttle. Clang golden flood dragon's claw collided with the giant sword, and sparks flew everywhere. There was no sound in the vacuum, but the vibrations shattered the meteorites within a radius of a thousand miles. The flaming sword shattered on the spot. A hint of surprise flashed through the golden crow's blood-red eyes. His appearance was similar to the city lord of the Sky City in human form, except for a pair of wings. Take another move from me. The three-legged golden crow sneered. It opened its mouth and spat out a light. This light was blood-red and extremely fast. In the blink of an eye, it crossed a thousand miles and smashed into the flood dragon palm. The flood dragon seal shattered, and the light that splashed out made the flying shuttle full of holes. It almost broke its outer shell. Countless wisps of nether demonic energy flew out from the shuttle. The dark golden dragon's body was faintly discernible, and its golden eyes stared at the three-legged golden crow. The blood-red demonic sun fire spread in all directions, resisting the flames that were constantly pouring in. What a beautiful bloodline! The city lord of the Sky City was delighted to see the prey. Then, he roared loudly, and his voice actually broke through the limits of the vacuum. The golden crow's body continued to grow. Blood rushed to the clouds. 
It was 50 feet tall, and the boiling blood energy caused the surrounding temperature to rise by more than 1 degrees. It could even melt steel. His magic power was hundreds of times that of a golden dragon. The sword internet from the Tianzi sword was weakened by 90% when it reached the Golden Crow's domain and was sent flying. The two of them began to fight in the boundless void. As soon as Yichuan entered the three-legged Golden Crow's domain, he felt as if a mountain was pressing down on his body. The flow of his soul and magic power suddenly slowed down. It was as if he was running in water with help everywhere. Not to mention, there was also the omnipresent power of flames. This was the first time he had entered the realm of experts. The domain of an immortal venerable was indeed worthy of its reputation. He had lost 80% of his strength before he even made a move. The golden dragon roared into the sky. The dragon fought in the wild, and its blood was black and yellow. Blood energy shot through the clouds like smoke. The pressure on his body suddenly weakened. For a moment, he was actually on par with the three-legged golden crow. Compared to He Chuan, the city lord of the Sky City was even more surprised. He did not expect this little flag in front of him to be able to resist the Sun God domain. Moreover, his physical body and bloodline were not inferior to his three-legged golden crow. Just as he was thinking, the sword intent slashed down. The three-legged golden crow summoned a fire shield to block the sword intent. You really gave me a big surprise. The city lord of Sky City praised. Initially, he only wanted He Chuan's eyes to refine weapons. Now, he realized this person had too many things to dig out. Blood could be used to refine pills, scales could be used as armor, and the body could replenish blood essence. The two of them fought for thirty rounds. In the end, He Chuan still couldn't hold on. After all, he wasn't an immortal venerable. Unable to absorb the vital energy of the endless void of the world through the Dharma domain, his magic power was constantly decreasing and never recovered. After the Tianzi sword blocked the flames, He Chuan suddenly returned to the flying shuttle. The flying shuttle spewed out flames, and its speed soared, trying to bypass the city lord of the city in the sky. Can you run? The city lord of Sky City smiled disdainfully and then flashed in front of the shuttle. The sun symbol in the center of his chest erupted with golden light. A sun will flew out and was about to cut the shuttle open. He did not care about the girl's life at all and threw his son's words to the back of his mind. He Chuan did not resist inside the shuttle, nor did he panic because his life was threatened. We're dead this time. With a faint smile on his face, he turned to look at Qing Shuang. Qing Shuang's face turned pale. She learned a lot from this trip. She understood some things were not done by words but by fists. It was just that the price to pay for understanding these principles was too huge. She was only an early stage celestial realm. If she returned alive, she would definitely make good use of the resources of the Scorching Sun Empire to cultivate. Unfortunately, it was too late. The flame that had just ignited in Qing Shuang's heart was instantly extinguished. The city lord of Sky City held the spaceship with a smile on his face. He was about to pinch it. Kacha. The void above his head split open, and a huge hand as white as jade appeared. The giant hand broke through the sun god's magical domain and slammed down on the head of the city lord of the Sky City. The city lord of Sky City was so scared that his face turned pale. Misunderstanding. I'm the city lord of the Sky City, Qing Tian. God King of Scorching Sun couldn't be bothered with it and directly slapped him. The three-legged golden crow's wings were twisted at a strange angle. It seemed like they were broken. The avatar was broken on the spot, revealing the red-haired middle-aged man's true form. The heaven's hand continued to shoot down. God King. I'm from Netherworld Mountain, you can't kill me. The city lord of Sky City looked terrified. He had no idea how he had provoked this guy. Netherworld Mountain. How dare you kill my daughter? Let Heavenly Emperor Tian Fong come and say it himself. Who do you think you are? God King of Scorching Sun snorted coldly. The daughter of the Scorching Sun God King. Could it be? The City Lord of Sky City finally remembered there was a woman in the flying shuttle. Could she be the daughter of the Scorching Sun God King? 
Everyone knew that Princess Taiping was the flesh and blood of the scorching sun god king. Who dares to touch the head of the dragon? Chapter, 470 The heavenly hand shrunk dozens of times and grabbed the body of the city lord of Sky City. Qingtian's internal organs were ruptured, and he spat out blood. His eyes almost popped out. Your majesty, it's my fault for disturbing your daughter. We're willing to compensate. As soon as he finished speaking, the pitch-black starry sky lit up. It quickly dyed the boundless void a purple world. With the purple glow in the sky, a supreme and wonderful concept lingered in everyone's hearts. God King, the junior is insensible. This old man apologizes to you. The voice came from all directions. Father, save me. Hearing the voice, the city lord of Sky City was overjoyed. The owner of this voice was Emperor Tian Fang, a peak stage immortal venerable from the Netherworld Mountain. Apologize. This old man wants to kill. As soon as he finished speaking before Emperor Tian Fang could say anything, he exerted a little strength in his palm and crushed the city lord's body. Blood mist floated in the void. Qingtian's primordial spirit was taken away by the purple glow. Fortunately, it did not turn into ashes. When I attained my Tao, you weren't even born yet. Let's have a round. As soon as he finished speaking, purple light erupted. Endless scorching energy poured down. Taking advantage of your seniority. God King of Scorching Sun flicked his finger and repelled the flying shuttle. Then, the heavenly hand met the purple glow. The battle between peak immortal venerables was about to start. He Chuan landed safely. Explosions could be heard from time to time in the boundless void, like the twinkling stars. The void could not transmit sound. This was the sound of a battle between experts that spread to the atmosphere. He Chuan walked out of the flying shuttle and saw the rolling clouds in the sky. This was the power of a peak immortal venerable. The aftershocks of their battle could affect the ecology of the area. If the domain were fully activated, it would be equivalent to two spaces colliding. The power of the spell was even stronger. In addition, the domain could absorb essence energy to recover magic power in the void, so the main battlefield of the immortal venerables was usually in the boundless void. A peak immortal venerable was equivalent to the power of a small world. Only the boundless void was their battlefield. No one would agree to fight on land. The forces that had experts of this level had basically occupied the stars from the void. Only the resources of the small stars could supply such experts. He Chuan looked at the battle in the sky and wanted to go back and start cultivating. After refining the northern Yin Purgatory Mountain, he would find the legendary Maple Leaf Country. Thinking of this, He Chuan looked at the box inside the small world. When the city lord's body shattered, many things dropped, and he collected them all. Including this jade box. He Chuan could tell that it was the Maple Leaf Country address that had just sold the five-star jade fragments at a high price. This was an undeveloped place. If he took down this country, it would be equivalent to having the world continuously supply him with resources. This way, he would not have to worry about cultivation resources. Thinking of this, He Chuan turned around and wanted to fly away. Wait for me. A small green sword flew out from Ching Shuang's sleeve. She stepped on the flying sword and flew behind He Chuan, her face flushed with excitement. When Emperor Yuan handed Ching Shuang over to him, He Chuan inquired about Princess Taiping's name. He realized that Princess Taiping's status was quite high. As the only daughter of the scorching sun god king, she was doted on by thousands of people. He Chuan had once used his divine eye of insight to observe his surroundings. He realized that there were no secret guards in the surroundings. This kind of status was obviously not logical. It should be God King of Scorching Sun protecting her personally. That was why He Chuan was so domineering in the Sky City and dared to provoke the people of the Sky City. As expected, the City Lord of the Sky City was crushed on the spot. Although his primordial spirit had escaped, it would not be able to cause much trouble without decades or centuries. A light appeared in front of them. The void seemed to have solidified and the two figures were frozen. There was a figure in the light. His gaze was fixed on He Chuan, and his entire body seemed to be seen. 
It was definitely God King Scorching Sun. He did not expect the battle to end so quickly. Father. Ching Shuang flew over. How old are you? How can you still act like this? God King Scorching Sun's appearance couldn't be seen, but you could hear a hint of affection in his tone. Greetings, God King of Scorching Sun. He Chuan cupped his hands and bowed. This was a ruthless person. Because his daughter was bullied, he crushed an immortal venerable expert and even fought with Heavenly Emperor Tian Fang, almost causing a war between the two forces. No matter what grudges he had against Scorching Sun, he still had to show some courtesy. You are Judge He. To be able to fight with an immortal venerable for dozens of rounds, evil people are stronger. The light shadow nodded slightly. God King of Scorching Sun was a golden dragon with Xian Huang Emperor's aura, giving him a sense of closeness to his fellow creatures. Just now, God King Scorching Sun had carefully observed He Chuan. He found that He Chuan's aura was very pure. It was the highest and most upright, vast, and majestic. It was not even inferior to his own emperor's aura. It was a waste to cultivate the netherworld technique with this emperor aura. He Chuan is very powerful, Ching Shuang recalled the interesting incident in the private room and smiled. Brat, what's so good about the reincarnation palace? Come to the scorching sun empire and be the prince consort. I'll teach you the god king technique. Scorching sun god king finally said after a long time. This was not a joke. Qing Shuang wasn't suitable for cultivating the god king technique, and this ability had to be passed down. He can be the heavenly emperor. He couldn't be the emperor forever. Otherwise, there wouldn't be an endless stream of dragon energy for him to harvest. All right. Prince Khan Qing Shuang was originally very happy, but when she heard the word, Prince Consort, her face instantly turned red. I don't have any feelings for the princess. He Chuan didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Are you saying that my daughter isn't worthy of you? The atmosphere froze, and the void let out a sound that could not bear the weight. It's true that I'm not worthy. I still have to transcend tribulation. Forgive me for not accompanying you. As soon as he finished speaking, He Chuan ran away, afraid that this daughter Khan would capture him and make him his son-in-law. What's so good about being a son-in-law? He had to live under someone else's roof and has no freedom. Daddy, what nonsense are you talking about? Ching Shuang flew away angrily. Guardian's residence. The patrol officer under him patrolled the cities, and he basically did not know how to do any work. Arrange the tribulation transcending formation. He Chuan called over the little dragon girl. The power of a peak celestial realm's heavenly tribulation was at least twice as powerful as before. However, He Chuan was confident that he would definitely pass this time. He had the Yama avatar and other divine abilities even his tribulation transcending array was made of top-notch materials. There was no reason to worry about failure. After giving his orders, He Chuan hid the coordinates of Maple Leaf Country and took out the Star Jade Wall to study the Northern Yin Purgatory Mountain. The idea in his heart was almost formed. Only the forging method of the Long Snake Iron Dog Purgatory and the foundation of the entire mountain had to be laid well. This would be a portable Dharma treasure in the God Realms. He planned to fuse the Dharma treasure's divine power into it. The treasure was more comprehensive than a small world, and the flow of time was three times faster than the outside world. It had sufficient essence energy to provide for his cultivation, and there was a boundless hell to torture his opponents. This was because the star jade fragments and the sky stone could be self-sufficient to a certain extent. If the idea was successful, he might be able to cross the void ahead of time and carry out interstellar exploration. The name of the Northern Yin Purgatory Mountain was not enough to describe such a comprehensive mountain. He Chuan named it Northern Yin Judge Mountain. In the days that followed, He Chuan devoted himself to the refinement of the Northern Yin Judge Mountain. He would not go to Sky City for the time being. Chapter 471 When He Chuan returned, he gave a simple report of the situation. Yuan Emperor also expressed that he would not go there for the time being. Knowing that He Chuan was about to transcend the tribulation, he simply handed the task of managing the place to others. In the days to come, he just had to transcend the tribulation in peace. 
In his sea of consciousness, the golden dragon was swimming in the long netherworld holy river. He Chuan's figure appeared beside the golden dragon. The dragon king's huge head came over and rubbed against his feet, looking very obedient. He Chuan ignored him and closed his eyes to sense the things in the dark. There were two stars twinkling in the depths of his sea of consciousness as if they were breathing. He placed his mind on the stars. Young master. Star's puzzled voice came from the other end of the star. How have you been recently? Their yin yang ghost's consciousness was attached to the golden dragon. No matter where they were, they could sense it clearly with their minds. Bloody Rosa gave us the right to enter the Shura bloodbath cave we are now little god cultivators, and should be able to enter the Azura realm very soon. The voice followed. The great Azura realm was equivalent to a celestial realm. With their aptitude and Hichuan's intentional or unintentional help, they should be able to enter this realm very quickly. After confirming the situation, Hichuan retracted his divine sense and focused on the wordless heavenly book. The wordless heavenly book was rather useless in the early stages of cultivation. After all, this thing required time. Mortals had limited lives. However, after his cultivation level increased, time was the least valuable thing. Even if he did not do anything now, he could live for a thousand years. If he transcended the heavenly tribulation, he could live for another thousand years. Therefore, this kind of golden finger that relied on time became the biggest advantage because there was no need to pay any price. Thinking of this, He Chuan took out a piece of white jade. The white jade wasn't big. It was half a palm wide and round. This was a star jade annulus, fifteen times the size of a star jade fragment, and it was worth one, six billion magic coins. When He Chuan took it out, his arm trembled slightly as if he could not hold it. Materials such as star jade fragments were concentrated forms of high energy. He Chuan had once calculated that a cubic centimeter of star jade fragment weighed about 10,000 pounds. The star jade annulus was about 15 cubic meters in size. With such a huge weight in his hands, without using the Yama avatar, he would naturally feel a little tired. With the stone in the sky as the foundation and the star jade fragment as the core. It was like a star. The soil was the stone in the sky, and the star jade fragments were the star cores. The combination of the two would create a self-sufficient supreme god realm expert or an artificial star. This was He Chuan's train of thought. After mastering the northern Yin Judge Mountain, one could unleash a domain like an immortal venerable expert and travel in the void. He Chuan planned to wait until he successfully refine it before heading to the coordinates of Maple Leaf Country to explore. Time passed. The tribulation transcending formation was completed. In the wilderness, the wind and clouds changed. Dark clouds covered the sky, and red spots of light appeared in the clouds. The specks of light grew larger and larger until they finally spread to the entire area. Colorful clouds appeared in the sky like burning flames. Soon, the scorching energy spread in all directions. The plants on the ground below instantly turned into ashes, and the soil melted into lava. The tribulation transcending formation was in the desolate wilderness. The nearest city was more than four zero zero miles away. A thousand miles away, two figures floated above the city. They were the Rakshasa and the black faced Dean God. The two of them looked in the direction of Hichuan's tribulation thoughtfully. The Rakshasa turned into an ordinary old man, not as domineering as when he controlled the plague last time. I didn't expect the judge to have already begun to transcend the fire tribulation. Said the Rakshasa. Judge he is very talented. Palace master thinks highly of him. The black-faced Yin God smiled, his eyes never leaving He Chuan. He was afraid that He Chuan would be in danger. After all, he had to take responsibility for accepting other people's gifts. His talent is indeed high, but I'm afraid it's a little difficult for him to transcend the tribulation now. The Rakshasa stroked its beard, shook its head, and sighed. After all, he was still young and impetuous. Others hoped that the heavenly tribulation would come as late as possible, wishing that it could be delayed until a thousand years later. Even a genius would need to spend at least a hundred years to build a solid foundation. Unlike He Chuan, who transcended the tribulation in a few years. Boundless flames fell. 
Other than the external fire, there was also the demonic fire that came from his internal organs. From the inside out, it burned the person, along with their physical body, soul, and magic power, into ashes. It was like a world of flames within a thousand miles. The air was distorted under the high temperature. How can the fire tribulation be so powerful? The Rakshasa was so surprised that it accidentally tore off its beard. It didn't make sense. He had never seen such a powerful fire tribulation before. It seems to be a double cause. How dare he cultivate the dual cultivation? The black-faced Ean God was shocked. Double cores was very powerful, but not many people practiced it. Not only was it a waste of time, but the difficulty of the heavenly tribulation was also very high. He Chuan was originally a little impatient. Coupled with the double cores, this heavenly tribulation would probably be a little difficult. However, what surprised them even more was yet to come. The golden body rose from the ground. The golden body looked like He Chuan, and there was a third eye between his eyebrows. Flames as red as blood burst out from his seven orifices. The flames attached themselves to Gold's body as if he was bathing in a sea of flames. Raging fire Golden Body. What boldness! The black-faced Ean God praised. Even the Rakshasa could not help but nod slightly. This person was very smart and bold. The Tribulation Transcending Array had not been fully activated yet. There were nine heavenly tribulations. He Chuan's current plan should be to absorb the weaker ones first before activating the Tribulation Transcendence Array. In order to achieve the goal of refining the Golden Body with fire. After successfully transcending the Heavenly Tribulation, his Yama Avatar must be incomparably pure, even purer than the others. In the distant Danjong City and the central purple mansion of the Scorching Sun Empire. Two pairs of eyes stared at He Chuan in the Heavenly Tribulation. He Chuan's tribulation caused such a commotion, so there was no reason not to attract the attention of experts. Seeing He Chuan's bold and meticulous display, they could not help but nod slightly. One heavenly tribulation, two, three, five. The Yama avatar's golden body was charred black. The light lit up around He Chuan. The moment the tribulation transcending array was activated, even Yuan Emperor in the distance cried out in surprise. It's not a tribulation transcending array, but a healing array. Is he trying to take it head on? Emperor Yuan was shocked. This was not a tribulation transcending array that weakened the heavenly tribulation, but a grand array that healed the physical body and soul. Was this what he was preparing? After the array was activated, He Chuan's physical body immediately recovered to its peak. His charred skin and flesh returned to normal, and his soul and mana returned to their original state. The flames continued to burn He Chuan's body. The Yama avatar was pure gold in color. It was originally dark gold, but now it had transformed into pure gold. The golden light seemed to be blinding others' eyes. Not using the tribulation transcending formation meant that he had to rely on his body to withstand it. Yuan Emperor and the others clicked their tongues in wonder. They had never seen such a fierce and overbearing person. He was indeed too bold. The shock on the Rakshasa's face could not be erased. As a newly advanced immortal venerable, he definitely had enough energy, but he still couldn't believe what he was seeing. Other people were careful when transcending the tribulation, but this guy chose to directly resist. Although this would allow the body to absorb more energy, the danger would simply increase exponentially. If one was not careful, one would be reduced to ashes. This brat god king of scorching sun peered into the void. No matter what kind of emotions everyone had, He Chuan, who was bathed in endless tribulation fire, did not know about this. He closed his eyes. The tribulation fire was like an ocean, constantly washing over every part of his body. Chapter, 472 From the outside to the inside, from the inside to the outside, an intense pain swept over him. This was the pain that seeped into his soul. The pain that could not be ignored was accompanied by a burning sensation. It was as if someone had placed him in a frying pan. Fortunately, the Yama avatar had already suffered many tortures from hell before it was cultivated, so it still had some endurance. What He Chuan had to do was to prevent the tribulation fire from turning him into ashes. 
The pain was nothing. Dermic powers continued to flow out, and at the same time, the array continued to make him recover. It could be said that he had barely maintained the balance of power. His body had become firm under the endless tribulation fire, and every cell, muscle tissue, and internal organ had been fully trained. True gold fears no fire. The density of the Yama avatar was more than 20 times that of gold, and each cubic meter weighed 50,000 gene. If he used his magic to transform into a golden body, he could crush the enemy with just his weight. Yuan Emperor saw this scene. This Yama avatar is comparable to a peak heavenly venerable. TSK TSK. He could no longer imagine He Chuan breaking through to the immortal venerable realm. The Yama avatar's domain was related to gravity. When cultivated to a high level, it could even affect the trajectory of a star. Of course, Yuan Emperor couldn't do it. He might have reached the God Realm and could use the power of a God Realm expert to influence the trajectory of the stars. However, with Yi Chuan's current situation, he might really be able to do this. Yuan Emperor continued to observe. Another string of tribulation flames descended. He had already endured the eighth strike and was only one strike away from achieving the right result. Yi Chuan's Yama avatar was covered in injuries. The array was not enough to support such a huge consumption. The emperor could tell that He Chuan's cultivation was a little high. If he absorbed it smoothly, his cultivation would be equivalent to an expert who had just entered the immortal venerable realm. This was the correct way to deal with the tribulation. The heavenly tribulation itself was used to temper people. It was just that most people did not pass the test, so they used the tribulation transcending array, this kind of opportunistic method. He Chuan, who had been absorbing the heavenly tribulation from the beginning to the end, could naturally make his cultivation advance by leaps and bounds. Boom! Fire clouds surged, and countless fire essence formed ferocious divine beasts. They bared their fangs and brandished their claws, pouncing toward He Chuan. All the experts watching could not help but hold their breaths and focus, afraid of disturbing He Chuan. The tribulation of the double cores, no array, and the physical body to withstand it. It gathered many fatal points. When the eighth heavenly tribulation struck, He Chuan showed signs of being unable to hold on. It might be dangerous. Going too far is as bad as falling short. If he does this, he might absorb too much of the power of the heavenly tribulation, causing his body to explode and die. The Rakshasa was telling the truth. He Chuan was not the only smart person in the world. Most people knew that absorbing the heavenly tribulation was beneficial. Back then, many people chose to resist it head on. Most of them did not die from the tribulation power, but they could not absorb the tribulation power and explode it. Actually, the tribulation energy that was filtered by the tribulation transcending formation is the best amount for most people to absorb. That's wrong. People can't be treated the same. The black faced Dean God, Gu Tsangtian, didn't think so. Their gazes once again gathered on He Chuan. They wanted to see how He Chuan was going to get through this crisis. The flames completely engulfed He Chuan. He Chuan felt an uncontrollable pain. He had almost failed. The star jade fragments in the small world provided energy to relieve the pressure. After calming himself down, He Chuan guided the energy to train his body, and at the same time, he diverted a portion of it to his eyes. He wanted to refine his divine eyes with fire, to create eyes that could break through anything. Everything was exposed. He was probably the first person in the central land to use the heavenly tribulation to refine his eyes. As time passed, the tribulation power that lingered around He Chuan became more and more terrifying. Yuan Emperor's expression turned serious. He was originally very confident in He Chuan. Seeing this, he could not help but think that there was danger. The external conditions did not allow him to absorb it forcefully, or else it would explode like an explosive. The tribulation power that lingered around He Chuan rapidly decreased. In the end, it disappeared. Under everyone's shocked gazes, he successfully transcended the tribulation. The fire cloud dispersed, leaving behind a thousand miles of scorched earth and a cultivator floating in the air. The moment everyone saw it, they instantly felt the majestic and domineering emperor dragon pouncing toward them. 
the dermic powers on his body were immediately activated to protect his body. Just his aura alone could hurt people. It was really terrifying. He Chuan had officially entered the eyes of the big shots from his initial invisibility. If this person didn't die young, he would definitely be the future pillar of the reincarnation palace. He Chuan absorbed the tribulation power and almost exploded. After all, this wasn't an ordinary fire tribulation. It was a double cores fire tribulation that was several times more powerful. He had an idea and guided the foundation of the Northern Yin Judge Mountain to absorb the power of tribulation, using the heavenly tribulation to build the foundation. When he returned this time, he would wait until the foundation had completely absorbed the energy before completing the prototype of the magic treasure. Thinking of this, He Chuan slowly landed. In front of him was Yuan Emperor. Congratulations. Congratulations on completing the fire tribulation. The others from the reincarnation palace also gathered around. He Chuan greeted them one by one. After transcending the fire tribulation and absorbing all the power of the heavenly tribulation, he had an additional thousand years of cultivation. With the addition of other divine arts and spells, his current battle prowess was comparable to peak immortal venerable. The others couldn't tell. To He Chuan, it was a way to hide his cultivation. Everyone saw that he was absent-minded and thought he was a little tired from just transcending the tribulation. They casually encouraged him and left. After everyone left, He Chuan suddenly raised his head and looked into the distance. A third eye opened between his eyebrows. A dazzling light flashed through his divine eye of insight. The light was profound as if it could see through the three worlds and nine netherworlds. The mysterious existence met his gaze. The gaze of the unknown existence froze for a moment before disappearing. He seemed to be muttering that this kid had such sharp senses. He Chuan retracted his gaze. After the divine eye of insight had been cleansed by the heavenly tribulation, its senses had become much sharper. He could sense it from tens of thousands of miles away. As long as they found the target, they could lock onto it from tens of thousands of miles away. This time, there was not much transformation. To be precise, he could see further and more accurately. Could it be God King of Scorching Sun just now? It should be this person. After all, the commotion caused by his tribulation was so huge that it was normal for it to attract attention. He packed his things. The stones and wood that had not been completely burned out from the fire tribulation were all very good refining materials. Some of them could even be used as medicine. He might not be able to use it, but at least he could sell it for money. After returning, He Chuan went into seclusion again. Other than stabilizing his realm, he also needed to refine the fire tribulation power and complete the long snake iron dog purgatory of the northern Yin Judge Mountain. The sky was as red as blood, and blood kept gushing out of the ground. In the middle of the blood pool, there were two women in armor. The woman on the left had black hair, while the woman on the right had snow white hair. Their appearances were extremely similar, and the two of them were like yin and yang. Endless blood surged toward them. The blood-red killing intent materialized and formed a slowly squirming blood mist. Once the blood mist was touched, the killing intent would turn it into powder on the spot. This was the tyranny of the Shura's killing intent. The murderous blood mist even formed into ferocious demons that roared and pounced at them. Before he could get close, he was torn apart by the murderous aura from the two of them and transformed into the purest power that entered their bodies. The red-eyed beautiful woman stared at the two of them with a satisfied expression. Chapter, 473 Behind the beautiful woman were two ugly Shura men. These two were Shue Luasha's sons. Black and white Yin and Yang killing intent. If the two of them combine, their cultivation will be comparable to the fire tribulation. Shue Luosha could not help but sigh. Although ordinary twins were very similar, there were differences in their Yin spirits and souls. However, these two women were different. Their souls seemed to have originated from the same source. The body integration secret technique was even more top-notch. They did not need to spend many resources to nurture them. They just needed to cultivate for a period of time. After reaching the fire tribulation stage, they would become celestial cultivators, which would be enough to support the Shura Palace. 
these two are the future Azura Lords. What about you? The slightly older man beside him said. I'm planning to go into closed door cultivation after a while. The Shura Palace will listen to their arrangement in the future. Shue Luosha made up her mind. This time, she had to break through to the immortal venerable realm. When they successfully come out of seclusion, I will arrange for the four of you to get married. That way, I will be at ease. Shue Luosha added. But what if they don't agree? The elder brother, Shue Zun, who spoke just now, was a little worried. The younger brother, Shue Yu, had an excited look on his face. When he heard his older brother's words, his heart was also perturbed. Even if they don't agree, they have to. If it wasn't for you, why would I give so many benefits to outsiders? It was for the sake of their descendants. Otherwise, Shue Luosha wouldn't have given them her secret technique and the Shura Palace. Moreover, the bloodline that was born would definitely be even stronger. The hope of the Shura clan was on them. At the thought of this, Shue Luosha thought of Hichuan. She was not that anxious at first. After all, a melon that was forced was not sweet. Moreover, she was not dead yet, so she was not willing to force him. A few days ago, he Chuan had transcended his tribulation in front of everyone. If he displayed his extraordinary talent, she would definitely be in trouble in the future. That day, I used some means to remove the blood curse of the two women and made a feud with He Chuan. He might be resentful in his heart. I'm afraid that he will find trouble in the future. The two of them didn't understand what Shue Luosha was saying. No way. How could a mere judge dare to go against you? Shue Zun couldn't believe it. Things are different now. Shue Luosha shook her head and sighed. If it weren't for her two disappointing sons, she wouldn't have spent so much effort. When he took away the two women that day, she did not put He Chuan in her eyes at all. After all, he was just a kid who had not even reached the celestial realm. Who would have thought that in just a few years, he would have a cultivation level that was about to pass the immortal reverent realm? The next time he came out of seclusion, his cultivation might be about the same as her. Moreover, this person cultivated the Yama avatar. In time, he might really take over Yuan Emperor's position. This is the Six Desires Demonic Divine Pill. When they come out of seclusion, trick them into taking it and then have sex with them. At that time, they will be completely loyal to you. Shue Luosha thought for a long time and finally made up her mind. She took out a jade bottle from her bosom. There were two pink pills in the bottle. When the rice was cooked, there would be an explanation even if it was brought up to the Yuan Emperor. The two brothers were overjoyed. They took the pills from their mother's hands and thanked her profusely. In the judge's mansion. He Chuan came out of the small world with a white jade square in front of him. The jade block was not big, about five feet square. There was starlight brewing inside. The jade seal was engraved with countless complicated netherworldine seals. He had finally integrated the formation into the foundation. These formations included qi gathering, soul summoning, protection, regeneration, detention, and so on. The most important thing was still the long snake iron dog formation. There were more than 600 compound formations just to summon these two things. He carefully examined the foundation in the northern Yin and finally completed the preliminary construction. Next was the fusion of divine powers and magic treasures. He Chuan's eyes flashed. The flame disappeared and immortal flame's figure appeared. I will reconstruct the 28 true scrolls. From now on, you will be the mountain god of Judge Mountain. The immortal flames couldn't help but feel an uncontrollable sadness. This was a farewell to the past. Get ready. He Chuan spat out a golden light. Within the golden light was a mysterious talisman. The talismans were like stars as they moved around the main scroll. He Chuan planned to keep the immortal flames and use the other things as nourishment to increase the immortal flames' cultivation. He didn't feel reluctant to part with it, the artifact spirit had just returned to its original state. It was not a life and death separation. Moreover, this matter was beneficial to him. He focused on his cultivation technique, and other things seemed unimportant. 
looking at the true scroll floating in the air, it spat out demonic fire again. The demonic fire continued to burn the surface of the true scroll. After an unknown period of time, the true scroll began to melt, and the essence energy entered the foundation of the northern Yin Judge Mountain. The soil appeared on the surface of the jade-like smooth foundation, and there were uneven hills and mountains. A golden palace appeared on the highest mountain. From the outside, the golden palace was smaller than a thumb. The interior had everything. When his spiritual will entered the interior, he saw a vast hall. In the middle of the hall was a dragon throne. The surface of the dragon throne was carved with a lifelike dragon shape. The dragon's eyes were shining as if they would fly out in the next second. The side halls on the left and right were the cultivation hall, pill refinery hall, and weapon refinery hall. There was also a spiritual garden, a corral, and so on. Surrounding the center of the hall was a long river. He Chuan then continued to refine the next step, fusing with the bridge of helplessness. Golden light flashed in the air. The golden bridge crossed the void and arrived. It was on both sides of the river, mottled with blood, and a wild aura assaulted his face. After the bridge of helplessness was refined, the next step was the world. Heaven and earth reversed Yin and Yang, and all things were destroyed. If he wanted the northern Yin Judge Mountain to achieve such an effect, he had to integrate it as a whole. Perhaps I can add divine powers into it. He Chuan thought to himself. However, he had to be extremely careful. Otherwise, everything would go to waste and even the foundation would be destroyed. The black gas soared into the sky. The baleful aura soared into the sky, and dark clouds covered the sky. The rumbling thunder sounded like the wails of ghosts and gods. The weather within a thousand miles changed drastically, and the city below turned from day to night. What happened? Is it dark? The cultivators in the city raised their heads in shock and saw an unforgettable scene. The tall Taoist stood in the air. His eyes were like torches and cold stars. His left hand was holding the huge mountain, and it carried an extremely powerful pressure. The moment they saw this person, the hearts of all the cultivators trembled. It was as if they saw a majestic god-king supporting the imperial city and suppressing the world. Is this a Taoist from the Reincarnation Palace? When did such an expert appear in the Reincarnation Palace? The city lord of the Scorching Sun Dynasty was extremely shocked. This was the first time they had seen such a tall cultivator. The next second, he disappeared. He Chuan carefully sized up the object in his palm. This object was three inches long and wide, with white jade as its base. There were countless huge mountains on it, and in the middle was a golden palace. He felt that he was particularly domineering just now. He had a golden body that was 10,000 feet tall. He held the Bayin mountain in one hand and the Tianzi sword in the other. He didn't know how to control the power of the treasure just now, so he wouldn't easily expose it now. Thinking of this, He Chuan entered Bayin mountain again. The world suddenly darkened. Standing on the ground, he was surrounded by mountains that reached into the clouds. In the dark night, one could not see the true face of the mountain peak. The heavy shadows made it look like a tall god. Bayin Mountain wasn't big. This mountain could produce demonic energy without absorbing external energy. Chapter, 474 He now had a small immortal venerable domain, but the price was a certain amount of star jade fragments. A single jade fragment could last for about a year. However, the flow rate inside was three times that of the outside world. Theoretically, it could last for three years. Other than that, there was also the long snake iron dog purgatory. Thinking of this, He Chuan's heart moved. The sound of breathing came from all directions, and the top of countless mountains lit up with a red light as big as a millstone. The ground began to shake. A twenty-foot-tall iron dog, which was breathing poisonous smoke, crawled out. The entire Bayin mountain seemed to have entered doomsday. Boom! He Chuan's thoughts moved again, and the long snake iron dog disappeared. This purgatory was not an ordinary divine art, but a real replica of hell. Its power was more than ten times that of divine power spells. Spells also required magic power, but this didn't. 
As long as the enemy entered, unless their cultivation was powerful enough to break through the entire space, there was no possibility of them leaving. On the other side, the Golden Palace had completely inherited the abilities of the 28 True Scrolls. Crash! A cold wind swept out, and two beautiful women appeared in front of Hichuan. One had red hair and red eyes, while the other had black hair and black eyes. They were the immortal flames and the little dragon girl, who were now mountain gods. You'll be staying here from now on. Get familiar with it first. If there's anything you don't understand, tell me. He Chuan said. Yes, master. The two of them replied respectfully. He Chuan flew into the golden palace. He was sitting on the praying mat in the cultivation hall, his mind wandering, thinking about something. The mottled light shone on his face, making him look a little mysterious. The long snake iron dog purgatory has been completed. I hope I can obtain the follow-up the next time the netherworld opens. However, He Chuan was not satisfied with this. Now, his cultivation had increased greatly. The fire tribulation realm had 600 years of cultivation. In addition to the Yama avatar refined from the northern Yin mountain and the fire tribulation, he had at least the combat strength of a peak celestial cultivator. Other than the immortal venerable's black emperor and eastern monarch, He Chuan was not afraid of anyone else. There were still a few decades before the netherworld realm opened. Before that, there were still many things to do. At the thought of this, He Chuan called Nether Earth over. Walala. Greetings, my lord. Nether Earth had possessed the city lord of Honghu city in the netherworld realm and had been in seclusion ever since. Now, he had finally returned to the celestial realm. Do you have a way to find stars? He Chuan remembered that Nether Earth had said this before. However, you have to prepare the coordinates. The coordinates needed a special method to be deciphered. Otherwise, it would be useless for He Chuan to hold it in his hands. These are the coordinates of Maple Leaf Country. You are in charge of deciphering the coordinates. We will fully cooperate with you if you need any materials. We must crack it. Nether Earth looked at the coordinates map and revealed an excited expression. If he really obtained a piece of land, Lord He Chuan could casually give him some and let him transcend the heavenly tribulation. Just as he was about to say something, he suddenly sensed a dangerous aura. It came from Xinyue and Xie. Advance to Great Azura. You even dare to touch my people, humph. Killing intent flashed in He Chuan's eyes. The danger signal had come from Xinyue and Xie. He Chuan sensed that the two girls had completed the transformation from Azura to Great Azura. He was currently facing some difficulties. Thinking of this, He Chuan quickly rushed over. Shura Palace. The gloomy and cold hall was now decorated with lanterns and streamers. The black iron gate was decorated with festive lanterns, giving it a sense of warmth. The ugly men and beautiful women of the Shura clan were dressed in gorgeous clothes, moving things back and forth. This was a joyous day for the two young masters so that they couldn't be careless. From time to time, a streak of light would fly over from the sky. Sect Master Daoist Shue congratulates the ancestor on your great joy. Congratulations, bloody slave sect. Most of them were Shura branches, and some of them were business partners. The hall was filled with banquets. Seventy to eighty percent of the seats were filled. Other than the representative sent by the Yuan Emperor, the other four spirit lords personally came to congratulate them. Opposite the four of them were Prince Xing and Prince Yu of the Scorching Sun Dynasty. It was hard to imagine that the two groups of people who had fought to the death a while ago were actually at the same dinner party. Both sides were polite on the surface, but no one knew what they were thinking. In the depths of the hall, in the Shura cave. The two women were forced to consume the Six Desires Demon Divine Pill. After consuming this pill, the two of them instantly lost their ability to resist, and they became like mortals. The medicine hasn't taken effect yet. You guys go to the wedding hall first. Shue Luosha instructed her two sons and chased them away. What are you doing? Xinyue frowned slightly. It's nothing. I won't harm you. You're one of us from now on. Shue Luosha told him the whole story. No, sir. 
Xinyue widened her beautiful eyes and hurriedly refused. The two of us want to go into seclusion. We'll talk about it when the time comes. Siya said tactfully, wanting to stall for time. I have to be willing today. Shue Luosha flicked her sleeves and left, handing them over to a few maids. Outside the hall, the flirtatious Shue Luosha greeted everyone. Were the two brides originally judge his personal maids? Someone drank a little wine and suddenly thought of something. He seemed to have heard the names of these two people when he visited Hichuan. It's these two. It seems Shue Luosha used some methods to stole of them. Fong Tong thought for a moment and realized that there was such a thing. No wonder I couldn't see Judge He. Lu Yisho was enlightened. So what if he comes? I don't believe that he would go against Shue Luosha. I don't think so. A personal maid is no less than a wife. I don't believe that he'll take this lying down. The Eastern monarch, who had never been optimistic about He Chuan, was now singing a different tune. No matter what, Shue Luosha is at the peak of the celestial realm and has Shura bloodline. I don't believe he would dare to come here. Southern monarch was not convinced. While everyone was discussing, the two kings of the Scorching Sun dynasty seemed indifferent, but they were actually eavesdropping. Welcome to my humble abode. At this moment, Shue Luosha walked out. As soon as he finished speaking, a violent tremor suddenly came from the square in front of the hall. What happened? Who is it? Everyone was discussing animatedly. Only Eastern Monarch had a smug look on his face. Another violent tremor came. The hall collapsed. Everyone had magic power and easily dodged it. When he arrived outside, he saw a giant that was 10,000 feet tall and held a strange land in his hands. Judge He Chuan has come to seek advice from the Western Monarch. How dare you! Do you know what you're doing? Shue Luasha's face turned pale. He thought that He Chuan would swallow his anger or complain to the palace master in private. In any case, what was done was done. No matter how much Yuan Emperor thought of this person, it didn't matter. He did not expect this person to come straight to his door and not give him any face. This was intolerable. The dark red killing intent materialized. Shue Luasha's body grew thousands of feet tall, forming the image of a woman with a graceful figure and a thin veil in the blood mist. The moment they saw the beautiful woman, the cultivators who were not proficient in cultivation knelt down and worshipped her. What a dignified woman! Shue Luosha stood on a red lotus, had three heads and six arms, and her three faces showed her three natures of good and evil. Six arms were holding treasures. Her figure was graceful and seductive with a dignified look, making people unable to help but worship her. This was the three-headed and six-armed Shura Avatar. Chapter, 475 The six treasures were all used together, and the attack was a killing move. A cold wind blew, and a murderous aura flowed like a river. The sky was as red as blood. Shura killing intent was indeed fierce and aggressive. Its killing intent was like sword intent, and everything would be pulverized wherever it went. Everyone looked at He Chuan, not knowing how this 10 0, 0 meter tall expert would respond. The golden avatar was entirely pure gold, and it was particularly eye-catching under the contrast of the blood energy that filled the sky. Looking at the murderous aura that was like a river of blood in the air, He Chuan chuckled. He Chuan threw the Bayin mountain out. It swelled up with the wind and was about a hundred miles in length and width. The golden palace in the middle of the sky was dazzling. The mountain easily shattered the murderous aura, and the six magic treasures flew back. Not only that but the killing intent would also be consumed by a mysterious force into the most basic essence. Not only did it expend a lot of magic power, but it also recovered a lot. The six-armed Shura closed in on him. Shura specialized in close combat. And He Chuan transformed into a double horned divine dragon. The divine dragon swung its tail and struck at the three heads of the six armed Shura. The three headed man spat out three colored demonic flames. Shue Luosha raised her six arms and bent her elbows to block. The divine dragon's tail scattered the demonic fire and struck the six arms. The mist like killing intent had no effect on the Yama golden avatar. 
how can this person be so strong? Shui Luosha was shocked. Her six arms were broken and she twisted at an unbelievable angle. Her entire body involuntarily flew back. She had really miscalculated this time. She had already overestimated He Chuan as much as possible. But she didn't put them on the same level. The reason why they valued him was because of the rumors that the palace lord favored him. Now it seemed that she was wrong. This person's Yama avatar had actually been cultivated to such a level. Lu Yisho was probably just as so so. He Chuan continued to pursue the northern Yin mountain, and Shui Luosha would be the first to die. The purpose of this trip was to become famous. Fame could bring countless benefits to people. Shui Luosha still didn't know that an even greater danger was coming. The shadow of the giant mountain covered her dharma. Just as it was about to be covered, a pair of large hands pressed down on the falling Bayin mountain. Enough. It was Yuan Emperor. Yuan Emperor was ten thousand feet tall, his black eyes were like stars, his round eyes were big ears, and his facial features were like ghosts. It was his hands that blocked the falling Bayin mountain. It ends here. The corners of Emperor Yuan's mouth twitched and he felt his hands go numb. Why was this thing in front of him so heavy? Just now, he almost failed, but fortunately, he reacted in time and stopped steadily. Shui Luosha stopped retreating. The three-headed and six-armed Dharma idol stopped in the air, then turned into a bloody light and rushed over. The air emitted a sharp explosive sound. Stop! Yuan Emperor released his right hand and punched the Shura killing intent. His fist stopped in front of Shui Luosha's head. I refuse to accept this. Palace Master, you're being biased. Shui Luosha roared angrily. The way she looked at He Chuan was as if she wanted to eat his flesh and sleep with his skin. He had slapped her face in front of so many people, but not only was he not punished, he had even let it pass by like this. How could she accept this? Then what do you want? Emperor Yuan understood the cause and effect. This matter was Shui Luosha's fault at first. But it was not good for He Chuan to slap her in the face, so it was considered even. I request a death match. Shui Luosha said fiercely. A death match? Everyone was in an uproar. Death match was a loose alliance like the reincarnation palace, prepared for those whose interests were irreconcilable. As the name implied, only one side would survive in a death match. They could fight one on one or in groups. The survivors could inherit all the assets of the dead. Aren't you bullying people? Hearing Shui Luosha's words, Yuan Emperor didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I only use one magic tool. Shui Luosha took back the five magic treasures, leaving behind a strange looking blood banner with thousands of demons carved on it. I agree. He Chuan's words were shocking. Fellow Daoist, be careful. A death match isn't that fun. Lu Yisho advised. After all, he was a genius from the same bloodline as him. The achievements of the Yama Golden Avatar were not inferior to his. His future was very bright. He would have a long life in the future and would not have to fight with others. It's okay. I've thought it through. He Chuan rejected Lu Yisho's offer. This time, he didn't just come to bring the two girls back. The most important thing was to gain fame. When it was time to hide, he would hide and when it was time to attack, he would attack. Carrying the title of a genius was far more beneficial than pretending to be a loser. Life and death are determined by fate. You guys go in. Emperor Yuan didn't comment and waved his hands. The space in front of him split open, revealing a pitch black hole. This was Yuan Emperor's own small paradise. Shui Luosha flew in first, followed by He Chuan. What greeted their eyes was a pitch black world. As soon as he entered the world, Shui Luosha's avatar expanded. It was 3,000 feet tall. However, it was still much weaker compared to He Chuan's golden avatar. The golden avatar was so heavy that the ground sank dozens of feet. The blood banner fluttered in the wind. Killing intent gushed out like blood. The Shura killing intent materialized and formed thousands of blades that rained down. He Chuan was expressionless, 
and there was no fluctuation in his heart. Through the news sent back by Shinyue and Siya, he knew many secrets regarding Shura killing intent. Shura was especially strong when their killing intent was strong. Killing someone of a higher level was not a problem. As long as the other party had a flaw in his heart, the power of the killing intent would be infinitely magnified. Even his own killing intent could materialize and attack him. If he could calm his mind, the killing intent would have a limited effect and it wouldn't be able to unleash much power. Murderous Aura and Blades Attacked He Chuan's golden avatar flew out of the golden bridge. The golden bridge crossed the sky and stopped in front of the golden avatar. The void shook and the aura boiled. The swords and sabers landed on the golden bridge, making a series of crisp sounds. After all, he was a celestial realm expert. The netherworld golden bridge shook continuously, and fine patterns appeared on its surface. The Dharma avatar of the two also began to fight in close combat. He Chuan retreated from the six-armed Shura. After all, the other party had three heads and six arms moreover, he was a genuine celestial cultivator. His magic power had the explosive nature of lightning. A meteor of blood energy descended from the sky. It hit the North E mountain hard. The mountain, which weighed millions of June, shook violently, and a faint light film appeared on its surface. The light membrane was a divine art that reversed yin and yang. The killing intent was constantly worn down, turning into the purest energy that was absorbed. He Chuan then used this energy to suppress Shui Luoshao. It made her miserable. Her strength decreased as she fought, while He Chuan's strength increased. A mirror appeared in the void outside. Everyone stood around and looked at the scene in paradise. Shui Luo Sha is at a disadvantage. How is He Chuan so powerful? The Eastern Monarch sighed. This is the successor of our Yama lineage. His abilities are not fake. Lu Yisho stroked his beard and was secretly surprised. The refinement of this Yama avatar was really not inferior to his. What kind of magic treasure was this strange mountain? He had never seen such a difficult magic treasure. It looked like the shadow of heaven and earth. During this period of time, He Chuan had been in seclusion all day. He must have been building this magic treasure. Southern Monarch, you are going to lose. Thinking of this, Lu Yisho looked at the malicious Southern Monarch and said mischievously. It's too early to be happy. Do you know the origin of the blood banner in her hand? Southern Monarch's words attracted everyone's attention. Shui Luosha, who was at a disadvantage just now, waved her blood banner repeatedly. Chapter, 476 Boundless killing intent surged out, accompanied by countless figures. The banner of Shui Luosha had actually summoned all the Shuras and three zero zero demons of the Shura Palace. Apart from the two sisters, everyone else had arrived. Attacked together. Including the seven great Shuras and the three zero zero demons, they charged toward He Chuan. The murderous aura that filled the sky instantly broke through the radius of the Golden Bridge. There was too much killing intent, so the Northern Yin Mountain was temporarily unable to convert it. A large amount of killing intent drowned the Golden Avatar. The killing intent was like a knife that broke through the defense of the Golden Avatar and left bloody marks. Isn't that a foul? Lu Yisho was stunned. How is it considered a foul? Was it a one on one fight just now? You don't allow others to summon Dao soldiers. Southern Monarch asked in return. Then, he smiled leisurely and said. At this moment, something unexpected happened. The Northern Yin Mountain, which had been sent flying, flew back at some point, bursting with golden light. The golden light was resplendent and drowned the entire small paradise. When the light dissipated, only the seven-foot-tall giant was left. He held a palm-sized piece of land in his palm, and there seemed to be ants running around inside it, trying to escape from the palm-sized piece of land. Huh, so this is the killer move. Lu Yisho laughed. The spectators did not understand, with such a killer move, why did he not use it earlier? Wouldn't it be better to end the battle earlier? They did not know what trump card the other party had, if the killer move did not work, the effect would be reduced. Just now, when he relaxed, they thought that he would die, 
but the result was reversed. Lu Yixiu explained. The battle ended. In the small paradise, He Chuan returned to his original form, and the northern Yin mountain also became the size of a jade seal. The long snake in the mountains breathed fire, and the iron dog breathed smoke. It spat out the bone-burning fire and the bewitching smoke. Countless long snakes attacked everyone crazily. The iron dog puffed out poisonous smoke from the ground and bared its sharp fangs. What is this? Shue Luasha's eyes were about to split open. Seeing her sons and subordinates die one after another, her heart was about to split open. No matter what method she used, she could not leave this space. The long snake and the iron dog could not be killed no matter how hard they tried. Moreover, this world was the same as the outside world. It could dissolve the attacks of others and turn them into the purest power. I want to see how long you can last. Rather than wasting his strength, he might as well persevere for a while. Such a huge array would definitely consume a lot of energy. As long as he could hold on until the opponent's magic power was insufficient, it would be a victory. The three-headed and six-armed Shura kept killing the hundred-mile-long snake. He didn't care even if the flames burned a hole in his perfect Dharma avatar. At this moment, a shadow covered her, and Shue Luosha subconsciously raised her head. She instantly fell into despair. Tens of thousands of flood dragons floated in the air. Gritting their teeth and spitting blood, it looked ferocious and terrifying. Shue Luosha only had time to say this before her flesh was eaten clean on the spot. Her soul was suppressed under the netherworld golden bridge of helplessness, never to be reincarnated. In the outside world. Judge he wins. Yuan Emperor said after thinking for a moment. Everyone was in an uproar. Everyone else is dead. Lu Yixiu looked at Yuan Emperor. Not a single elite of the Shura Palace was left, and the Shura sect was destroyed today. There were also the sisters, Xingyue and Siya. The others felt bad. It wasn't that they had a deep friendship with Shue Luoshao. There might still be some friction between them. However, seeing the Shura lineage decline, they felt a little sad. The reincarnation palace had a total of four branches. The helplessness of the netherworld, Emperor Yama, Hell King Avicii, and Sura's killing intent. They were not considered to be trustworthy internally. After all, the difference was not big. Now that Shue Luosha was dead, it had directly crippled one of its branches. He Chuan received all the inheritance according to the regulations. The Emperor of Hell would occupy three seats. Perhaps in a few years, they would completely become a small subordinate sect and would not even have the right to discuss matters in the palace. According to the rules, Judge He will take over the position of the Western Monarch. Does anyone have any objections? Emperor Yuan looked around. This was still Shue Luosha's hall, and people from other sects had also come to participate in the banquet. Seeing Yuan Emperor's gaze, the Star Dan Moon Kings cupped their hands and left. The reincarnation palace was in chaos. The old forces were reshuffled, and the new forces took over. They were watching the scene. This important information had to be reported to God King Scorching Sun. We have no objections. What was done was done. No matter how worried they were, it was useless. Palace Master, I have something to say. At this moment, He Chuan spoke. What's the matter? Emperor Yuan looked at He Chuan. The four lineages of the netherworld are made up of one emperor and five lords. If I become Western monarch, then the Shura killing intent general will have no successor, and many places will be leaderless. The Western monarch's position will be taken by Shura's people. I recommend Xingyue. He Chuan added again. Xingyue is the Western monarch, leading the ancient country of the Shura's descendants. Everything else is as usual. Yuan Emperor felt this was a brilliant plan. Not only did it stabilize the hearts of the people, but it could also completely control the Shura lineage in the hands of the Nether Emperor. Who didn't know that Xingyue and Siye were He Chuan's maids? The matter was settled. He Chuan called out the two sisters and asked Yuan Emperor to remove the medicinal effects of the two of them. I'll be the Western Monarch. Xingyue's beautiful eyes widened. 
she did not know whether she was happy or panicked. We have unanimously decided that it is you. He Chuan said. Thank you, palace master. Thank you, sirs. Xing Yue was truly afraid and terrified. The Shura Palace governed fifteen ancient countries and twenty-eight affiliated factions of the Shura Orthodoxy, with a population of over a million. She was in charge of all these things, and it felt like a dream. After making the arrangements, Yuan Emperor left without holding He Chuan accountable. In a battle of life and death, even if one died, it would be over. I'll go back first. Tell me if you need anything. He Chuan pretended to be polite to everyone and then left. It wasn't that he didn't want to be a part of it, but it was too difficult to handle the aftermath. He might as well let the two sisters take responsibility. After all, they were his maidservants. Now that he had successfully transcended the tribulation, he had to explore Maple Leaf Country. He did not know how many resources he would need. Now that he could not go to Sky City, he could only rely on Xin Yue and Si Ye to help him collect materials. Back in the mansion. This mansion was located in the Scorching Sun Dynasty. When the two sects merged, they moved here. Even the Yuan Emperor's Changle Palace was now in Donjong City. He Chuan immediately moved to the inner part of Beiyin Mountain. He was searching for the star formation and didn't want the news to leak. Nether Earth commanded the many Oxhead and Horseface Dao soldiers. In front of him was a complex array formation that was 100 feet wide. The Dao soldiers were all created by the divine general manifestation talismans that had fused into the Golden Palace, so there was no shortage of people to do odd jobs. How far has the formation construction progressed? He Chuan asked. It's about time. The array will be activated in a few days. However Nether Earth suddenly thought of something. Is there anything else? He Chuan asked. This formation ignores distance teleportation. However, the foundation of the formation requires star jade fragments as its source. Activating the formation requires energy. Nether Earth said. He didn't want to waste the star jade fragments or else it would be too extravagant. The star jade fragments were like a battery that used other things in the outside world to replenish its other consumption. About 300 spirit stones and the star jade fragments are exchanged every year. This is the most basic. If the distance is too far away, the consumption may be even higher. The total cost was at least 200 million. Chapter, 477 No wonder star exploration costs so much money. If it failed, it would be a loss of hundreds of millions. This excluded labor costs, miscellaneous expenses, and time and energy. The two coordinates I gave you last time. He Chuan was referring to the coordinates of the Great Darkness region and the Southern Spiritual region. It's done. We'll go to the Southern Spiritual region you mentioned in a few days. It's not far from here, so the energy consumption should be low. Nether Earth replied respectfully. I'll go and take a look when the time comes. He Chuan nodded. Although this place was barren, it shouldn't be a problem for them to recover their capital. Seven days later, the formation was completed. In front of everyone was a golden ball floating in the air. Below it was a complicated talisman pattern. Gold threads, copper wires, and blood ink jade were used as the skeleton. They formed a complex array. Lord He Chuan, I didn't fail you. They didn't go to the Great Darkness region, this place would be even smaller than the Southern Spiritual region. When He Chuan left, he had almost taken everything in the Great Darkness region. It was not good to take advantage of it now. The Southern Spiritual region was different. There were still many good things there. The time in the Southern Spiritual region should be about the same as here, right? The time in the same world can be different. He Chuan said in surprise. Some continents are underground or in some strange space. Due to the terrain, the time flow rate in these places may be different from here. It was fine if the flow was fast, but if it were a little slower, the cost would be high. For example, if they stayed there for a day, a month would pass here. The array was still maintained. According to the 300 yuan that was given to him, that would be nearly 10 million yuan. 
If it were not a rare treasure land, then the cost would be too high. This was also the common cost of star exploration. Not only did they invest hundreds of millions in the construction of the magic circle in the early stages, but they also spent a lot of money on development in the later stages. The most obvious example was a certain top force. Everyone had just entered through the array and had not come out for more than 20 years. Every second of the array cost money, and it had cost billions of spirit stones in the past 20 years. They didn't dare to rashly dismantle the array. If they encountered danger there and couldn't return in time, wouldn't the few experts of the sect die there? Later, when the group of experts came out, everyone found out that they were only staying there for two days. It should be about the same. He Chuan thought for a moment and said. It's okay if you don't know. You'll know after the test. Nether Earth said with a smile. He chanted an incantation, and the array lit up with a red light. Nether Earth chanted and quickly wrote patterns in the air. These were the coordinates he had made based on the direction He Chuan had given him and the pattern of the array formation he had memorized when he left the southern spiritual region. In a short moment, the formation was completed. The white pillar of light shot into the sky. Fortunately, they were in Bain Mountain. If they were in the outside world, they might be discovered. The formation was activated, and the white ball of light slowly spun. Nether Earth lit the white candle and slowly placed it into the ball of light. The moment the external object entered, the ball of light immediately emitted a bright light. Then, he withdrew his hand, and only a portion of the candle burned. The flow of time is the same. According to the consumption of the candles in the array, he could calculate the flow of time in that world and here. Sir, you can enter now. Nether Earth was the first to enter. He Chuan also entered the array. Before he left, he even lowered his body to guard the array. If the formation malfunctioned and he couldn't return, everything would go back to square one. He felt the world spinning. His vision went black at first, but when it lit up, he had already arrived in another world. He Chuan looked around. The vegetation was lush, and the mountains rose and fell. Other than the ball of light behind him that seemed a little out of place, it was still a relatively quiet blessed land. Can't this ball of light be hidden? He Chuan looked at Nether Earth. I can hide it, but we still have to come here to return. Nether Earth handed He Chuan a jade pendant. He Chuan's mind moved slightly, and the ball of light slowly disappeared. The two of them split up. Nether Earth took his token and went to visit Jiang Ming in the Qianquan treasure store. As for He Chuan, he went to the Tong Tian River and prepared to go to the Dragon Vein below to take a look. It was the place where the Tianha Daoist was buried. Back then, when the Tianha Daoist fused with the Tong Tian River, He Chuan happened to take the Dragon Pearl from the river. By chance, the Tianha Daoist lost his consciousness and became a substitute for the Dragon Vein forever. He Chuan wondered if he should wake this guy up. After all, Tianha had many secrets. He did not know where he had obtained the netherworld's orthodoxy. Although it was incomplete, it could not compare to the reincarnation palace. But it was still a clue. There was a river of unknown length in front of them, and the water was turbulent. The widest part of the river was thousands of miles wide. The sky above the river was covered in black clouds all year round, and violent thunderstorms flashed from time to time. He Chuan looked at the thunderstorm in the sky and could not help but miss it. There were islands in the middle of the Tong Tian River. He Chuan came to one of the reefs. Guest. This old man is familiar with this place. Shall I lead the way for you? Only three hundred spirit stones. The surface of the water broke open, and an old man with gills on both sides of his cheeks slowly came over in a small boat. Go to Myriad Island in the middle of the lake. He Chuan smiled and flew onto the boat. Only then did he realize there were three cultivators sitting on the ship with strange decorations. They were all wearing cloaks, afraid that others would see their faces. Sir, this should be your first time coming to the Tong Tian River. Myriad Island has been shattered. There is no Myriad Island anymore. Now, it is Myriad Archipelago. The boatman explained. Hearing that it was He Chuan's first time here, the other three people looked over intentionally or unintentionally. 
This was a no man's land, and those who came here basically wanted criminals or traitors from various sects. One of them lifted his cloak and revealed his bald head. I am Yang Kong. Where are you from, fellow Daoist? How come you don't even know about this? The burly man had dark skin and a fierce face, but he had a kind smile on his face. When the war began, our sect hid from the world and only came out in the past few years. I didn't expect the changes to be so great. He Chuan did not care about the gazes of others. Back then, the battle of hell and the demon race's calamity had indeed caused the southern spiritual region to suffer a great loss. It has only recovered after these few years. Yang Kong tried to get close. He secretly sized up He Chuan. This kid looked delicate and tender. He was swaggering around here. He was either an expert or a rookie. The latter was more likely. Wait for him to cheat a little, he will certainly kill the fat sheep. I see. What's the situation in the world today? He Chuan calculated the time. It had been several years since he had left. I wonder where my old friend is. The southern side is still dominated by the Chinkuan treasure house, followed by the Eternal Yin Grave and the Yudu Sword Tower. The northern side is occupied by the Fansuan Demon Kingdom. A skinny camel is still bigger than a horse. Although the three main demon gods have fallen, they are still not comparable to ordinary sects. Yang Kong introduced. Where was the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance from back then? He Chuan continued to ask. It's already declined. Now that its power has shrunk, it can't even be considered a big sect. The boatman interrupted. Back then, He Chuan killed many people. The demons and humans wanted revenge. If it weren't for Swordmaster Jiang Ming's protection, they would have been destroyed long ago. Yang Kong sneered. Fellow Daoist isn't very well informed. At this moment, the strange voice sneered. What do you mean? Yang Kang's expression was grim. Chapter 478 Swordmaster Jiang Ming went into seclusion the day before yesterday. It said that the righteous and demonic sects are working together to settle scores with the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. The three royal families of the Fangzhou and Fei Kingdom have all come. They went to look for the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. Fangzhou and Demon Kingdom still dares to head south. Aren't they afraid of being surrounded? Yang Kong couldn't believe it. This is to comply with the will of the people. No one will stand up against the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. The mysterious man laughed. The Nine Cloud Dao Alliance was in the limelight during the underworld and demon tribulations. Daoist Taiyu had planned for a thousand years to draw in the earth energy of the southern spiritual region. He Chuan controlled the southern spirit earth energy and was known as the master of earth energy. Back then, He Chuan only needed a single thought to cause the southern spiritual region to enter a state of eternal damnation. However, who knew how many people he had offended? Not only the demon race, but the righteous path also suffered countless casualties from this indiscriminate earthquake. Later, He Chuan, the Flood Dragon Daoist Master, the Golden Rock Daoist Master, and the others disappeared. The White Elephant Daoist Master was killed by the new sword master, Jiang Ming. Because of their friendship, Jiang Ming protected the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. Even though the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance had declined to this day, no one dared to touch it. However, Jiang Ming was in seclusion today. Someone wanted to use the demons to get rid of the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. I see. How do you know so much? Yang Kong reacted. Because I'm a member of the Fangzuan Demon Kingdom. The cloak was lifted, revealing a ferocious and terrifying face. This person had a black horn on his head and white dragon scales on both sides of his cheeks. The vertical pupil stared at everyone with murderous intent. The other person beside him looked similar to him. It's a demon. Yang Kong suddenly jumped up, and two dark green poisonous snakes flew out of his sleeves. The venomous snake spat out poisonous flames and pounced at the dragon clan with its head raised. The boatman did not move. He was not a living person, and his Yin spirit was bound to the Tong Tian River. He could never leave the river, nor could he die. Therefore, there was nothing to be afraid of. The flood dragon roared. 
the visible sound waves shattered the two dark green snakes. The moment the dragon roared, lightning tore through the sky and heavy rain fell. Two illusory flood dragons could be faintly seen rippling in the clouds. These were the conjured bodies of two flood dragons. Yang Kang's clothes were torn and he spat out blood mixed with his internal organs. You guys are actually Dao Foundation experts. Yang Kong was shocked. Just the power of the roar made him lose the strength to resist. Of course. The white-scaled flood dragon walked over with a cynical smile on its face. Yang Kong sat on the ground and kept retreating. What do you want? I'm fine. I'm just hungry and want to eat someone. As the white-scaled flood dragon approached, Yang Kong slowly retreated. Unknowingly, he reached the stern of the boat and bumped into a pair of legs. It was He Chuan. He Chuan looked straight ahead. Fellow Daoist, quickly attack. Or it will be too late. Yang Kong shouted. He Chuan was unmoved and watched the two flood dragons surround him. A foundation expert. It's been a long time since I've heard such a title. At this moment, he seemed to have regained his senses and said with a smile. Die. The leading flood dragon Dao soldier returned to its original form and opened its bloody mouth, wanting to swallow the two of them. He Chuan's eyes flashed. The two dragons stopped in their tracks, looking a little confused. A gentle breeze blew past, and the two dragons turned into a powder that filled the sky. Not only Yang Kong, but even the boatman was shocked. To be able to kill someone with just his gaze, how strong must the cultivation of the man in front of him be? Yang Kong was both afraid and glad. Just now, he was planning to slaughter this person, but now it seemed that he was the one who would be slaughtered. Thank you for your help, senior. Thinking of this, Yang Kong stood up with difficulty and bowed deeply. No worries. He Chuan looked around and confirmed that this was the place. Then, he dived into the water. Senior is truly bold. After a long time, Yang Kong came back to his senses. After the two great battles, the Tongtian River became more and more dangerous. Some people said that the souls of the experts who had died back then were causing trouble. Except for the big shots at the peak of the earth realm, almost no one dared to go into the water directly. So it's him. At this moment, the boatman slapped his head and came to a realization. Yang Kong was still puzzled and asked with his eyes. He's He Chuan, the master of the southern spirit earth energy. The boatman wad the one who had brought He Chuan to the Tong Tian River for the first time. It was really a coincidence. He Chuan had crossed the river three times, and each time, he would coincidentally meet this guy. So it's this expert. Looks like the world is about to change Yang Kong muttered to himself. It seemed that he had caught up with the changes of the times again. Night fell. The dark clouds were as black as ink, and there seemed to be thousands of soldiers and horses in the rolling clouds. Upon closer inspection, there were actually thousands of demons with different appearances. Under the leadership of a green-eyed man with a long beard and green dragon horns, these people silently moved forward. At this moment, the green-eyed man stopped and looked ahead with a serious expression. Come out. An old man in a golden eight trigrams robe appeared in front of him. And the sword-wielding scholar with sword-like eyebrows and starry eyes. Greetings, Daoist Master Horn Dragon. The two of them smiled and cupped their hands. Even you have entered the peak of the earth realm. Daoist Master Horn Dragon sneered. He was a survivor of the last war. When the demon race was exterminated by Jiang Ming, Horn Dragon, the demon lord, led the remaining tribes to flee to the north and settle down there. With the help of the demon race's inheritance, he successfully reduced his cultivation and broke through to the true core realm. He originally thought that he could revitalize the demon race, but he didn't expect to be beaten up by Jiang Ming again, so he retired until now. Let's not talk too much. We're all on the same side, so there's no need to shout slogans. Yudu and I will be in charge of Jiang Ming's side, and you guys will be in charge of the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. Old man Gu Jian said. They claimed that they were going to seek revenge from the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance for what had happened more than a hundred years ago, but that was just a lie. What was there to take revenge for? 
the people who entered Peng Lai Immortal Island that day either died or disappeared. Only Jiang Ming and some people from the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance knew. Their main goal this time was to obtain the teleportation array. At this level of cultivation, it was almost impossible to go any higher. Only by going to a higher world would there be a way out. I've already found out that this person's soul and body are both flawed, so he goes into seclusion every sixty years. Now is a perfect time. Gu Dian was full of confidence. Jiang Ming was different from the original Nine Tribulations Swordmaster. Both sides were not on the same path. Now, the two of them would not care about Jiang Ming, the so-called leader of the Righteous Path. The two of them disappeared. Thousands of light beams rose from below and headed to the Qinkuan treasure house. Follow me to the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. Daoist Master Horn Dragon laughed heartily. Unfortunately, He Chuan was not there. Otherwise, he would have taken the life of this despicable person. Since they were less than 500 kilometers away from the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance, the demons did not bother to conceal their presence and release their auras. In an instant, a thousand miles of blood red, demonic aura chaotic. Ambitionist flew through the air. Demon. Nether Earth raised his head in confusion, but he didn't care anymore and flew straight to his target. This time, not only did he have to visit Jiang Ming, but he also had to visit the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. He had many tasks to do and didn't have time to watch the show. Nether Earth continued to fly forward, not daring to delay for even a moment. After all, the array was spending money every minute and second. If he did a losing business, he would lose face. Nine Cloud Dao Alliance Ox-headed and horse-faced Dao soldiers stood on the city wall, and hundreds of cultivators in the uniform of the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance surrounded the hall. They were waiting for something. After a long time, the doors of the hall opened. Chapter, 479 A middle-aged cultivator with gray hair walked out. Greetings, Alliance Master. The cultivators cupped their fists and bowed. This was the Alliance Master of the Nine Heavens Dao Alliance, Li Bin. Back then, Dao is Taiyo's eldest disciple and He Chuan's eldest senior brother. Ever since He Chuan went missing, the responsibility of the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance had fallen on Li Bin. Without Taiyo's cultivation base or He Chuan's domineering strength, many allies began to leave the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. The Nine Cloud Dao Alliance relied on the Four Seasons Rotation Array to survive which controlled the four seasons of the entire south. In addition, the cultivation of the five alliance leaders was not bad, so the sect would not decline no matter what. However, after He Chuan and Taiyo's actions, not only was the array broken, but the other sects also became vigilant because of this matter and did not dare to rebuild the array. As a result, the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance had fallen to this day. Is everyone here? Li Bin was slightly lost in thought. The subordinate did not dare to speak, so Li Bin smiled bitterly. It was obvious that 60% of the people here were gone. We owe the Dao Alliance a debt of gratitude. We swear to follow it. Someone shouted. It was good that he had such intentions. Tens of thousands of demons descended from the sky and entered the city. Kill them. Li Bin's eyes were red as he released the nine nether demonic energy. The coldness swept out and froze the surrounding one zero zero miles. Humph! You overestimate yourself. The light flashed and disappeared. A horn dragon with two horns and four scaleless claws flew out of the dark clouds. Horn dragons have horns but no scales. It was raining heavily. The lightning was like a snake, twisting and twisting. It directly struck Li Bin's nine netherworld demonic energy. The frost domain of the nine nether demonic energy shattered on the spot. The remaining power of the lightning did not decrease, and it broke through Li Bin's protective magical power. While Li Bin spat out a mouthful of blood and fell to the ground like a broken kite. Alliance Master. The gap between the two of them was really too big, like the difference between cloud and mud. He couldn't even last one round. The demons had the advantage in numbers. In just a few moments, all the Dao soldiers were dead. There were only about fifty cultivators left from the Jiu Shao Dao Alliance. 
They surrounded the injured Li Bin. I'll give you one last chance. Where's he Chuan? What did he leave behind? At this moment, Daoist Master Horn Dragon returned to his human form. No comment. Li Bin sneered. In fact, he Chuan did not leave anything behind. He left in a hurry that day and did not have time to explain many things. Is that so? Daoist Master Horn Dragon stretched out his finger. A cultivator in front of Li Bin had his head pierced through and his corpse fell to the ground. I'll spare the life of whoever tells the truth. I'll let him off either way. Daoist Master Horn Dragon tried to break the hearts of the people. Unfortunately, he had miscalculated. There was no doubt about the loyalty of those who had stayed until now. When Alliance Master Lu returns, I will kill you all for revenge. Someone spat. I remember you. You were the one who was chased and killed by He Chuan back then. You're so promising now. Li Bin mocked. He couldn't beat them in a fight, but he could still satisfy his mouth. Very good. I won't let you die so easily. I'll extract your souls and burn them in the earth fire until you speak. As expected, the Horn Dragon Path Master sneered with a livid expression. As the dragon roared, Daoist Master Horn Dragon's body rapidly expanded. At this moment, a bird as white as a phoenix slowly flew over, attracting everyone's attention. The white bird landed on the ground and transformed into a middle-aged scholar with white hair and eyebrows. He was wearing a white feather cloak. Who are you? This person had appeared silently, alerting Dao Master Horn Dragon. The aura of this guy in front of him was a little like a demon, but he had never seen him before. It was a little like a demon with a phoenix bloodline. This person was Nether Earth. This is the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. Who knows Li Bin? Nether Earth did not answer. Instead, he looked at the people from the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. It seemed that the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance had encountered some difficulties. Senior, I am Li Bin. Li Bin stepped forward and cupped his fists. Come with me. Someone told me to look for you. Come with me to see Jiang Ming later. Nether Earth summoned dark clouds and lifted everyone in the encirclement. You want to leave after coming? Daoist Master Horn Dragon hurriedly stopped him. Who are you? Earth Nether stopped and glanced at Dao Master Horn Dragon. They are my targets. You can't take them away. Looking at this mysterious person before him, Daoist Master Horn Dragon resisted the urge to attack him directly. You. The peak of the Earth Realm. Nether Earth only noticed Dao Master Horn Dragon now and almost burst out laughing. His entire body had been shaved off, leaving only one divine power. He was no different from a half-crippled person. How dare you! Die! Daoist Master Horn Dragon was repeatedly mocked by him and immediately exploded. His Horn Dragon body appeared and he swung his divine dragon tail at Nether Earth. TSK Nether Earth sneered and immediately flew into the sky, transforming into a swan. Dragon Descendants vs Phoenixes The former had its flaws, but the latter had none. It was self-evident who would win. At the bottom of the Tong Tian River, he Chuan dove into the water and descended rapidly. The river water below was a strange green color, and from time to time, huge creatures could be seen swimming past. A female corpse in red appeared below. The female corpse floated in the water. Her skin was pale green, and her face was like a living person. Her long hair seemed to have a life of its own as it fluttered with the water. Anyone would know that something was wrong if such a strange thing suddenly appeared in the depths of the sea. However, He Chuan did not care and walked straight past the female corpse. When he passed by the female corpse, the female corpse's head strangely twisted to He Chuan's side. She opened her eyes. There was no white in her eyes, only pitch black eye sockets. The pitch black meridians around her bulged out like a spider web. There was an inexplicable attraction. He Chuan seemed to hear a woman's soft voice in his ears, tempting him to turn his head. He Chuan obediently turned his head to the left and met the female corpse's gaze. What's the matter? His voice pierced through the water. The moment the female corpse met He Chuan's gaze, she quickly turned her head back 
closed her pitch black eyes, and returned to the appearance of a corpse. Can't afford to offend. He Chuan continued to swim downwards. After some time, they finally reached the bottom. In front of him was a tall crystal demon pagoda. This pagoda had nine floors, and a transparent barrier had been set up to prevent water from entering. This was the head of the dragon vein. Disappeared. He Chuan found that the divine soul attached to the dragon vein of the Tong Tian River had disappeared. Tianhe's spirit was supposed to merge with the Tong Tian River and control this world. Because He Chuan took the dragon pearl back then, Tianhe's plan failed. This person lost his intelligence and completely fused with the dragon vein. Now that his soul had disappeared, did that mean that this guy had been resurrected? Interesting. He muttered to himself. It seemed like this person still had secrets. He was not worried that the other party would find trouble with him. He Chuan had a thousand years of cultivation, and the peak of the earth realm Tianhe was still a cripple. He just wanted to find this person and obtain information about the Yellow Springs Orthodoxy. Thinking of this, He Chuan formed a hand seal and muttered something. Now that his realm was higher than Tianhe, it should be easy to calculate the range of this guy. At this moment, he looked up to the south. It was the location of the Qianquan Treasure Store and the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. Tianhe is in the Qianquan Treasure Store. Interesting, the mantis stalks the cicada, unaware of the aureole behind. He Chuan thought to himself. Countless experts from both the righteous and evil sides went to cause trouble for the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. Tianhe was located in the south, so it was hard not to suspect that it was Tianhe behind the scenes. Chapter, 480 He Chuan flew out of the water and headed towards the Qianquan Treasure Store and the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance. I wonder how these guys are doing. Back then, he had left in a hurry, and many things had not been cleaned up before he left, leaving behind a mess. Just the matter of him controlling earth energy had offended many people. Fortunately, Jiang Ming was loyal enough. Now that he was in seclusion, he finally gave the little guy an opportunity. Nine Cloud Dao Alliance Tens of thousands of demon corpses were scattered all over the place, and Nether Earth was holding a head that had died with grievances. Everyone was dumbfounded. The leader of the demons was gone just like that. The scene in front of them was like a dream. Who was this person? They had never heard of this person before. Daoist Master Horn Dragon was an expert at the peak of the Earth Realm. To be able to deal with this person so easily, he had to be at least as powerful as the Daoist Jianhe. Thank you for your help, Senior. May I know why you are looking for me? Li Bin said carefully. Nothing much. I came on behalf of an old friend. An old friend is looking for me. You don't know He Chuan. So it's him. As the two of them conversed, Li Bin suddenly understood. The person in front of him was actually a helper invited by He Chuan. Senior, where is Junior Brother now? Li Bin asked impatiently. Don't call me Senior. Just call me Nether Earth. He'll be here soon. Let's go find Jiang Ming first. Nether Earth's attitude became somewhat respectful. No matter how strong the Lord Senior Brother was, he should at least show some respect. All right, son fellow Daoist. Under Nether Earth's strong request, Li Bin also changed his words and added the word, fellow Daoist. On the road. After chatting, Li Bin knew that the two of them had come to a bigger world. It was at least 10 million kilometers away from here. Li Bin couldn't help but click his tongue. It was actually so far away. My junior brother is lucky to know a master like you. He should be at the peak of the earth realm now, right? Li Bin said politely. I'm the one who's blessed. Nether Earth looked embarrassed. At this moment, an explosion came from the front. Smoke and dust rose for a thousand miles, and the sky was completely dark. The light of the stars in the sky faded, and one could not see their own fingers. A pure white light appeared in front of them. The weak light gradually enlarged, occupying the sky and making it difficult for people to open their eyes. Lord Jiang Ming! Li Bin exclaimed. This was Swordmaster's ultimate move, and using this move represented using all his strength. He might have encountered some trouble. 
swordsmen. Nether Earth no longer had a contemptuous attitude. Most of the warriors at the peak of the Earth realm here were disabled. For others, it was no different from wasting half of their strength. However, sword cultivators were different. They were originally extremely skilled in the sword path, so they were considered to be striving for perfection. His cultivation was far beyond that of the peak of the earth realm, or even close to his. Just now, there was a huge green snake in the light, and he seemed to be able to see the river. The auras of these two people were not inferior to his, and their cultivation was even deeper. Let's go up and take a look. Nether Earth turned into a swan, turned into a white light, and disappeared on the spot. Li Bin was stunned for a moment before he followed. Nether Earth flew to the edge of the battlefield. A giant snake with dark green scales and an eternal river surrounded a cultivator. The cultivator was handsome, and his green eyes made him look a little evil. Compared to the monster beside him, this person's figure seemed extremely small. At this moment, the dark green sky snake spat out black water. The black water was extremely corrosive. Wherever it went, everything withered, and the void darkened. The man's face was as white as paper, and there were bloodstains on his chest. He must have been injured. I didn't expect you to be with this person. Seeing the innate sunflower water serpent attack, Jiang Ming sneered. As he spoke, he activated his spell, and white light flew out of his head. The white light split into thousands of pieces, and countless sword intent flew toward the water ball in the air like raindrops. Before it could collide with the innate sunflower water ball, a river appeared out of thin air. The river that was connected from head to tail spun a few times and completely disintegrated the sword intent. The water ball crashed down and drowned Xiang Ming. A huge pit with a radius of a hundred miles appeared on the ground. The soil in the pit was black, and the corrosive innate water was everywhere. The innate sunflower water serpent turned into a green-eyed middle-aged Taoist. Beside him stood a sage-like old Taoist. The two of them were Tong Yu and Tian He. Same old rules, I'll take 70%, you take 60%. Tong Yu said with a smile. I only want the formation, Tian He replied calmly. It was a long story. When the demon race invaded, Tong Yu decided to hide from the world. With the help of Hades's legacy, he broke through to the peak of the earth realm and accidentally discovered the place where Tian He was buried. The two of them hit it off and decided to rule the southern spiritual region. Then, they would use the array to ascend. Eh. Why isn't he dead yet? The poisonous fog dispersed, and the white bird carried Jiang Ming's injured body out of the pit. Fellow Daoist, what are you the right half of Jiang Ming's head was gone, making him look hideous and terrifying. I came to help you under the orders of my lord, but I'm still too late. The swan carried Jiang Ming and flew away from the battlefield, heading toward the Tong Tian River. Tong Yu and Tian He blocked the front. You want to leave? Tong Yu said mockingly. Looks like it will be another bitter battle Nether Earth smiled bitterly. Fellow Daoist, who exactly is the lord you speak of? Jiang Ming asked in confusion. Who was this person? Why did he specifically come to find him? Judge He Chuan. After saying this, Tian He's magic weapon landed. With endless strangling power, no matter what spell it was, it would turn into nothingness under this eternal cycle. As for Tong Yu, he used the innate Ten Water Divine Art. The innate Ten Water transformed into all kinds of demons and ghosts. Nether Earth transformed into his white lotus throne avatar. The white jade-like avatar held the Vajra scepter and teleported behind the two of them. Die. The sharp Vajra scepter was aimed at the seven inches of the dark green sky snake. Nether Earth's Dharma body avatar was good at teleportation. Almost at the moment, the battle began, he arrived behind the innate ten water sky snake. The moment the Vajra scepter pierced its vital, the sky snake's tail suddenly rippled in the air and disappeared. The heaven and earth reincarnation disc appeared above his head. Thousands of living beings wailed in the clear river, never to be reincarnated. Crack. Nether Earth felt a huge force pressing down on his avatar, and spiderweb patterns appeared on his incomparably sturdy avatar. The sword light flew over from the void and passed through the river. 
Jiang Ming hid in the light and rushed out with Nether Earth. Such high cultivation. Nether Earth clicked his tongue in his heart. The other party's strength was several times stronger than he had imagined. Although the Tianha only had one divine power, it had survived four heavenly tribulations and had at least seven hundred years of cultivation. How much cultivation did Earth Nether have? He naturally could not compare to this guy. Go to the Tong Tian River to find Lord He Chuan. Nether Earth immediately decided to retreat. It was safer for these two old monsters who had lived for who knows how many years to go find the Lord. Nether Earth and Jiang Ming stepped on the sword in tent. He had originally wanted to use the divine art of instantly traveling 10,000 miles, but now this move had been busted. Daoist Tianha had long seen through Nether Earth's move. Under the suppression of the Heaven and Earth reincarnation disc, Nether Earth found it difficult even to walk, let alone break through space. Behind him, Tianha and the others were in hot pursuit. Fortunately, they kept their distance. Chapter 481 After all, Jiang Ming was a sword cultivator, so his sword intent was much faster than the light. He Chuan is back. Does he really have a way to deal with the Tianhe? Jiang Ming asked in confusion when he finally had some free time. Jiang Ming was very happy that He Chuan could return. Being able to go and return meant he had control of the passage to travel between worlds, which was undoubtedly good news. But he was a little worried. After all, he had only been away for a few years. He had only reached the Earth realm when he left. Even if he was talented, it was already very good to reach the peak of the Earth realm. Tianhe was an old monster who had been in the peak of the Earth realm for thousands of years. Talent could make up for the difference in realms, but cultivation could not. I'm my lord's subordinate. My lord's cultivation is definitely stronger than mine. Nether Earth explained. Suddenly, he saw Li Bin running away. When he passed by, he grabbed this guy. Jiang Ming's pupils trembled. He Chuan, this kid, had gotten to this point. At this moment, a figure appeared in front of them. My lord. Nether Earth's excited voice interrupted everyone's thoughts. He saw a white robed Daoist standing in front of him. The Daoist looked young and had proper facial features. There was a faint evil intent and sharpness between his brows, making people dare not look at him directly. Jiang Ming recognized He Chuan, whom he hadn't seen for many years. After reuniting with old friends from many years ago, he didn't know what to say. He vaguely remembered that he had killed the three Dao masters of the beast race and killed the nine tribulations of Sword Master. Long time no see, fellow Daoist Jiang Ming. He Chuan smiled. Long time no see. Jiang Ming sighed deeply. Two streaks of light surrounded the three of them from the front and back. So it's you, kid. Your wings have hardened now. When Tong Yu saw He Chuan, he was stunned for a moment before breaking out into laughter. Humph. Do you remember me? You didn't expect me to be resurrected, did you? Come over and obediently admit your guilt, or do you want me to personally take action? Tianhe couldn't hide the killing intent in his eyes. Don't hurt him. I still want to force him to reveal the location of the formation. Tong Yu appeared calm on the surface, but deep inside, he was filled with greed and desire. He thought the same as Jiang Ming. Since they could go back and forth, they must have opened a special passage. Moreover, the mysterious master beside He Chuan was actually at the peak of the earth realm, which meant that the spiritual energy in the other world was far more abundant than here. What if I don't plead guilty? He Chuan asked. I can only extract your soul and place it in the cycle of reincarnation, never to be reincarnated. Tianhe then extended his right hand, and the heaven and earth reincarnation disc slowly descended. Crack. The void couldn't withstand the gravity of the reincarnation disc. It let out a sound of being unable to withstand the weight and then collapsed. Tong Yu unleashed his dark green magic power. Innate water dyed the sky green. The surrounding space was locked down, and there was no way to escape. The reincarnation river slowly descended, and the pressure grew stronger and stronger. Everyone's weight seemed to have increased by a thousand times. Fellow Daoist, I'll break open the space first. I'll see what you can do then. 
Jian Ming looked at He Chuan with a serious expression. It wasn't that he didn't trust He Chuan, but their opponents this time were Tianhe and Tong Yu. He Chuan learned everything from these two people. When future disciples fought against the sect's founding grandmaster, they would be suppressed even if they were of the same realm. No worries. He Chuan was unmoved. The river was getting closer and closer. 10,000 feet, 5,000 feet, 1,000 feet. It wouldn't be long before their bodies and powers were washed away. Only their souls would live in Tianhe forever, never to be reincarnated. At this moment, something unexpected happened. He Chuan's body was 10,000 feet tall, his skin was pale gold, and a divine eye appeared between his eyebrows. His right hand held the North Yin Mountain, and his left hand held the supreme Tianzi sword. He was indomitable and majestic. The dark green world shattered and the reincarnation disc was sent flying thousands of miles away. Jiang Ming was stunned. What a tall giant! Just by standing on the spot, the ground could not withstand the violent tremors. If he stomped his foot, a huge earthquake would probably occur within a thousand miles. This was the first time everyone had seen such a tall Dharma avatar. The moment He Chuan transformed into his Dharma avatar, he stretched out his right hand and grabbed the seven inches of Tong Yu like he was grabbing a loach. Then, he flashed to Tianhe's side and stepped on him. Tianhe was like a monkey that was suppressed under the Five Elements Mountain, and it instantly lost the ability to resist. One move to subdue the enemy. Fellow Daoist He Chuan, what is your current cultivation level? Jiang Ming said in surprise. Just a celestial cultivator. He Chuan smiled. These words made Tong Yu and the others lose all thoughts of resisting. From the beginning to the end, He Chuan never paid attention to these people. As long as he wanted, he could destroy this world anytime. Let go of me. Release me. Tong Yu said angrily. Endless nether water surged out, and his body expanded by tens of thousands of feet. He Chuan clenched his fist. The force hit a vital point, and Tongyo's internal organs were about to explode. His eyes bulged and he spat out green blood. Its snake-like body fell limply without any strength to resist. The overbearing Tongyu from before had now turned into a soft little snake. The strong contrast shattered everyone's worldview. Especially He Chuan's former senior brother, Li Bin, who didn't know what to say. He remembered that the last time they met, He Chuan was just an insignificant ant in front of Tong Yu and Tianhe. Now that the situation had turned around, it was really like the tides were turning. You're actually a celestial cultivator. You've reached such a level in just a few years. Tong Yu didn't know, but after Tianhe knew He Chuan's strength, he didn't continue to attack. Tianhe knew that he had lost. Although his cultivation was very high, he did not have any advantage against an expert of He Chuan's realm. Yama Avatar. You actually found this absolute art. Tianhe saw the golden patterns on He Chuan's body and exclaimed again. I did find it. He Chuan said noncommittally. His body shrunk rapidly, turning into the appearance of a normal person. As for Tianhe and Tong Yu, they stood in front of him, at a loss, like criminals waiting to be punished. A few years passed. It was not considered a great change, but his status had changed. In the past, regardless of whether it was Tong Yu or Tianhe, He Chuan was just an insignificant ant to them. Greetings, Senior. Now that their roles had been reversed, they were all the same. They directly lowered their heads and admitted defeat, even changing the way they addressed each other. The two of them didn't count out three times or nine times. They only bowed. If they lowered their dignity, He Chuan would also suspect that they were up to something. Get up. How's the situation? He Chuan said. They're basically all dead. The last time, I sacrificed all of them. Tong Yu coughed awkwardly. He Chuan's old friends had not been sacrificed by him. Most of them had died in those few great battles back then, so he did not offend He Chuan. I see. He Chuan nodded. This world lacked the essence of heaven and earth, so there were no conditions to build a tribulation transcending formation. The simplest way was to transfer the tribulation to someone else. Back in the great world, the hot shot, Gu Mingzhou, 
was like this. He had snatched Murong Fu's lightning tribulation. What do you plan to do next? Are you going to stubbornly resist until the end, or are you going to fight with my central great land? He Chuan thought about it and finally decided to give the two of them a way out. The two sides actually did not have much conflict of interest, and they did not even violate much of their interests. He had gained quite a bit of advantage previously. When He Chuan came to this world, he killed Tongyo's son, destroyed his woman, and betrayed the sect. He killed many deacons and hall masters. Chapter 482 Tianhe was even more miserable. If it wasn't for He Chuan's interference back then, this fellow would have long ruled the entire southern mountain region. In the end, not only did they fail, but their orthodoxy was also taken away. We are willing. Tong Yu didn't even think about it. To the central land of the heaven realm? Tianhe said in disbelief. As the leader of a sect thousands of years ago, he naturally knew what this place meant. Even his orthodoxy was related to the central great land. In the past, in order to find the central great land, I accidentally entered a mystic realm and obtained the Yellow Springs Dao element there, Tianhe added. The indomitable golden giant suppressed the bridge of helplessness eternally. However, He Chuan was luckier than him and obtained the inheritance of the Yama Emperor. Secret Realm He Chuan pondered for a moment and confirmed that the secret realm was the Netherworld Realm. This fellow had once accidentally entered the mystic realm and obtained the inheritance. Thinking of this, He Chuan was a little disappointed. However, this trip was not considered a loss. At least there were benefits. Are you guys staying here or going with me? He Chuan looked at Jiang Ming and the others. I'll go with you. Jiang Ming made his choice. Li Bin pondered for a long time and finally chose to stay. He was shouldering too many things. His master's inheritance and everything in the Nine Cloud Dao Alliance were waiting for him to inherit. He could not leave so easily. If you're confident that you can break through to the peak of the Earth Realm in the future, crush the token and contact me. Not only that but there were also many elixirs and treasures that did not exist in this world. If he wanted to break through to the peak of the Earth Realm, He Chuan could also guide him to the Central Land to undergo tribulation through the formation. This could be considered a small repayment. Why didn't Junior Sister come with you? Li Bin asked. We got separated. He Chuan said. As his cultivation increased, he realized his Junior Sister was not simple. There must be a secret to her background. Although he had no clue now, he firmly believed he would find it in the future. If there's anything you need help with, just let me know. Li Bin patted He Chuan's shoulder. They went back to Nine Cloud to discuss. The three remaining warriors at the peak of the Earth Realm all chose to leave with Yichuan. Jiang Ming passed his position to Su Ying, who was also an old acquaintance. Yichuan, Nether Earth, and Tong Yu flew to the location of the array. Everyone was suspended high in the air, and the ground below them could be seen clearly. Beautiful mountains and rivers, rich environment. The beautiful scenery greeted their eyes, broadening their minds. We should be able to calm down a lot after we leave Tong Yu's side. The last hope of the demon race was gone. He and Tianhe were about to leave. This world should welcome a few thousand years of recuperation. The next time you came might be a thousand years later. He Chuan said with a smile. The cost of maintaining the array was too high. The barren world was not worth paying such a high price. Moreover, He Chuan did not want to mess around here. They were already miserable enough. Tianhe did not say anything. He squatted down and grabbed the soil of his homeland. Seeing this, Jiang Ming shook his head and grabbed a handful as well. Nether Earth muttered something, and a white ball of light appeared in front of everyone. The teleportation array was activated. The moment everyone was about to step in. The Netherworld is about to open. Should we explore it first? Tong Yu suddenly thought of something and raised his head to look at He Chuan. Netherworld. He Chuan had almost forgotten about this, and only now did he remember. This place was open every sixty years. Tong Yu came from this place. It was said that this place was connected to the Netherworld, which was also the place where people often said the soul went after death. 
judging from their inheritances, they might not be the Yellow Springs Orthodoxy, but they were the inheritances left behind by other Yama kings. The netherworld was controlled by Yama king, and there were ten kings of hell below him. Perhaps it was the inheritance of another king of hell. How many more days until it opens? He Chuan asked. There are still seven days before the netherworld opens again, Tong Yu said. A part of his strength was due to the netherworld. The netherworld could not be inhabited for a long time. However, he could take advantage of the opening of the netherworld to practice, which was why Tong Yu could enter the peak of the earth realm so quickly. Wait another seven days. He Chuan had almost forgotten about this place. Other than Jiang Ming, the other three were basically casting spells and were all He Chuan slaves. He Chuan gave them a chance to survive and the right to go to the central great land. It didn't mean that he had to give everything he had. The price was that they would become slaves and never be able to transcend. The number of Tianhe's inheritances was considerable. After all, it was a few thousand years of savings. This trip was still a huge profit. Seven days later. At the old site of the secluded temple. The demons have all been cleared. The five of them were surrounded by corpses. Nether Earth walked in front of He Chuan and cupped his hands. Ever since Tong Yu left, the north had become a vacuum zone of power. The demons took advantage of the situation to invade, and this place became a demon kingdom. After a few of them cleaned up, almost all the powerful demons were dead. Everyone arrived at the Tong Yu mountain range. This place was dark and gloomy, and the fog did not disperse all year round. The trees were tall and the shade of the trees covered the sky. It was clearly noon when the sun was high in the sky, but it was like the evening after the sun had set. It carried a hazy and terrifying vision. A series of crows cawed. The dark green crows formed a group and flew across the sky like a cloud of fire. Everyone came to the depths of the mountain range. Tong Yu stepped out, muttering something. As he chanted the incantation, the fog became thicker and darker. A mysterious aura spread out. Tong Yu only stopped after a long time. Inside the fog was the netherworld. He Chuan carefully sensed and did not find any danger. He walked in first, and the others followed closely behind. The world was covered in thick green fog, and visibility was no more than 300 feet. The fog seemed to be poisonous. When people were in it, their souls, magic power, and physical bodies would be corroded by some kind of power. It had the nature of the netherworld. If one stayed in there for too long, they might become a monster or be poisoned to death by this poison. This was the reason why they could not stay in the netherworld for long. A roar came from the fog. A tall figure ran over quickly. Three feet high, with two horns on his head. He quickly ran in front of everyone from several miles away. The black goat stepped on the pitch black flames, and two pale human heads that had died with grievances were on its horns. There was a human face in the middle of the goat's head. It came in front of everyone, and the two heads on top of it turned around strangely. The two heads opened their mouths and spat out green flames. The face spewed out black poisonous smoke. Jiang Ming calmly gathered his sword intent and slashed at the void. Sword intent surged. The black goat was instantly split into two, and even its soul could not escape. The group continued to move forward, and they encountered countless ghostly creatures of various shapes and sizes. Most of these demons and ghosts were not very strong, and they were almost killed by everyone in a single move. There were many things in the netherworld. Most of them could be sold for a good price, but they were not of much use to He Chuan. If he wanted to find the inheritance or the cave abode left behind by the ancient immortals, he could find the coordinates of this place. He had not determined the location yet, so he could not determine the coordinates at all. Let's split up and meet here. Whether we find anything or not, we'll meet back here in thirty days. Thinking of this, He Chuan turned around and looked at everyone. Chapter 483 Understood Jiang Ming left immediately. Then, a few of them disappeared one after another. He Chuan pondered for a moment and flew in the opposite direction. At the same time, he turned into a black goat and disappeared into the fog. 
The black goat was agile and could move freely in all kinds of terrain. Its skin could effectively resist the nether fog. When the surrounding demons saw the black goat, they quickly fled as if they had seen a demon. This made Yichuan very puzzled. Many demons seemed to be stronger than the black mountain goat, so why did they escape so quickly? Could this represent a special identity? Becoming a black goat was not just about changing shape, but also all the stats, including abilities. In the eyes of the black goat, the entire world was green. An invisible mountain appeared in his eyes. This mountain was 30 meters tall and was emitting green light. The light formed a ring and spread out, covering the entire world. This mountain was not simple. The black goat jumped a few times and arrived at the mountain. There were countless black goats at the foot of the mountain, and the air was filled with a faint smell of sulfur. Every black goat had a different companion. Some had poisonous snakes coiled around their horns, while others had wings. Surrounding the mountain was a ring-shaped river that was emitting hot steam, and the smell of sulfur came from it. The higher they went, the darker it became. Only green and red eyes flashed past. The scene was very sinister and terrifying. The black goat that he Chuan had transformed into was not seen through by the others. He carefully walked towards the top of the mountain. Long time no see, he Chuan. A green-black goat suddenly turned around and spoke in human language. His voice was low and hoarse, and he actually called out He Chuan's name. He Chuan was surprised to find that this voice was very familiar, but he had not heard it for a long time. The owner of the voice was Chui Su. It had been at least a few years since they had last met. He still recognized him. Welcome to Thunder Mountain. The one who spoke was the black goat beside him. Why are you here? This guy had been missing for a hundred years but had actually appeared here. No wonder he couldn't be found. This is my training ground. Why don't we go up and have a chat? Without waiting for He Chuan to answer, the black goat turned around and ran up the mountain. He Chuan followed closely behind. The further they went up the mountain, the more bizarre the surrounding scenery became. The cold wind howled, ghosts wailed, and wolves howled. The surrounding green mist seemed to have a life of its own. It squirmed and formed all kinds of strange demons and ghosts. The black goat suddenly stopped and ran to the bottom of the tree to graze. Just as He Chuan was puzzled, the black fog beside him condensed into a human face. He followed the guy to the top of the mountain. During this period, countless demons were guiding him, as if these demons were his incarnations. As expected of the formless heavenly demon. Formless and amorphous, bewitching all living beings. There were stone tables and chairs on the top of the mountain. A cultivator with sword-like eyebrows and starry eyes was sitting on a chair. He was wearing a white robe and a loose scarf. Compared to the dense demonic aura around him, he looked like a banished immortal. He looked like a younger version of Chui Su. Long time no see, he Chuan. Chui Su's eyes seemed to be able to see through people's hearts. However, Chui Su looked calm on the surface, but he was secretly surprised. He didn't expect He Chuan's cultivation to have already reached such a level. Even Tong Yu wouldn't be able to withstand him. Long time no see. He Chuan smiled. Although they were old acquaintances, they had gone through thick and thin together back then, and the two of them were testing each other. Chui Su wasn't the only one who was surprised. He Chuan was amazed by his mysterious ability. His divine eye couldn't see through this person's cultivation realm. Have you been in the netherworld all these years? I went to a lot of places. Later, I felt that this place was not bad, so I settled down. The clouds in the sky transformed into all kinds of shocking demonic images. Chui Su was like a demon king who controlled thousands of people. The two of them chatted for a while and told each other what had happened after they left. How about staying? Shall I bring you to more world? Chui Su suddenly looked at He Chuan with a strange light in his eyes. He Chuan met his gaze, and the surrounding environment changed drastically. His body rose rapidly, and the ground became smaller and smaller until it finally became a star. The stars continued to shrink. There were some living beings in the stars around him. Some of the stars only had one person. 
He was tall and indomitable, and he lived on the essence of the sun and moon. He Chuan passed by him, and this person did not even notice. I can take you to any world and visit many stars. Countless divine techniques and secret arts are within your reach. Are you willing? Chui Su's voice echoed in the air. I'm not willing. He Chuan was unmoved. Do you think I'm lying to you? Chui Su brought He Chuan to the fiery red star. The people on this planet all had goat horns and blood red skin. They lived in flames and breathed sulfur gas. He Chuan was currently possessing someone. His life story was revealed in his mind. In front of him was a city. The crowd was noisy and crowded. The hawkers on both sides of the street set up stalls and shouted slogans. The sound of tables and chairs moving, the sound of chopsticks knocking, the sound of greetings, the sound of fighting and shoving it was filled with the atmosphere of the city. Although they were of different races, their lives were similar. They are born with the ability to control fire. There is wind in their blood, and their abilities are invincible. The scene changed again. This time, they came to a world filled with immortal energy. The sun rose and purple clouds came from the east. The entire world was surrounded by white fog. The white mist was the rich essence of heaven and earth. These people were thin and long, with feathers all over their bodies. They had long hair and thin waists. They held knots in their hands and flew among the immortal grass and clouds like immortals. The moment he landed, the white feathers quickly retreated, and the wings turned into arms. This is a feather man. Innate cultivators, they were born with the body to cultivate. Chui Su's voice rang in her ears again, this time with a bewitching tone. And then? He Chuan asked back. What did it have to do with him? The scenery receded like the tide. He Chuan once again stood in the boundless void. Don't you understand? Chui Su sounded impatient. The world is vast and boundless. How many places can my body explore? I can only abandon my body and lead you to the great Tao. I have my own way. He Chuan said lightly. Heavenly demon was indeed good at bewitching, but unfortunately, these were not what he needed. He was strong without desire and it could not restrain himself at all. You want to do it the hard way. A crack appeared in space and time, and a hand as white as jade and as bright as stars pressed down on He Chuan. Crack. The surrounding ten million miles were reduced to ashes. He Chuan suddenly felt the weight of thousands of mountains pressing down on him. A trace of killing intent flashed in his eyes. Then, his body quickly rose to ten zero zero feet, and the Tianzi sword slashed down at his palm. The white light drowned the two of them, and He Chuan opened his eyes. It was still the same mountaintop as before, where the two of them were drinking face to face. Good divine ability. He realized that not much time had passed, so he said with a smile. Your mind is very firm. I can't do anything to you. Chui Su shook his head lightly. Was that true? He Chuan voiced out the question in his heart. Chui Su didn't attack him just now, so he didn't feel any killing intent. He could only say that they were testing each other. The mind is different from the physical body. It can ignore the void in any distance, jumping and shuttling as it pleases. This method of descent is also known as the prominent divinity. It is used to spread orthodoxy, and the otherworldly demons use it to bewitch their followers. Chui Su didn't hide anything and said it openly. Seeing He Chuan's achievements today, he was indeed moved by his love for talent. Chapter 484 Prominent Divinity Could he also do that? He could travel freely through the void and descend on anyone. In theory, he might not have a physical body, but he could use many abilities. The Tao of the heart was mysterious and unpredictable, it was indeed a good Tao. Forget it, I still don't like it. He Chuan shook his head. It was a little like fighting for justice. The strength of this Tao was very clear. If one said it was strong, it was strong. There would be no reversal. However, the aspect of the mind was truly unfathomable. One couldn't just judge whether he was strong or not based on his realm. It depended on one's heart. For example, He Chuan's mind was firm, 
and Chui Su's effect on him was greatly reduced. Some otherworldly demons that seemed very strong might not be able to deal with ordinary mortals. This mortal was a saint that only appeared once every thousand years. All right then. These are the coordinates of the netherworld. You can drop by when you're free. Chui Su handed over a jade token with complicated patterns carved on it. The netherworld was not the netherworld, but a paradise that belonged to the netherworld. However, this world probably had no master, so it was occupied by Chui Su as his base camp. The black mountain goats nearby were all his kin incarnations. These were all true human transformations. The people he had taken in and the places he had been to had submitted to Chui Su and were willing to become black goats. Thank you. He Chuan cupped his hands in thanks. Under Chui Su's lead, he collected many exotic flowers and herbs. Most of these exotic flowers and herbs were of the Yin attribute, which was more in line with Yi Chuan's cultivation technique. This type was relatively rare and could be sold for a good price. There's nothing good in this place. It's almost all developed. After sixty years of plundering, there was nothing precious in this world. Chui Su had covered some of the important places, and there were no resources worth mining in other places. Even Tong Yu is here. Do you want to take revenge for what happened back then? He Chuan said. Although Tong Yu was his subordinate now, He Chuan didn't mind using his head to exchange benefits with Chui Su. He Chuan's principle of doing things was to prioritize benefits. Since he's your subordinate, I don't care anymore. I'm no longer me of the past. My real name is Mo Luo, you can call me Mo Luo in the future. Chui Su laughed. Mind cultivators and otherworldly demons were on the same path. They all had extremely high spiritual realms these obstacles that they could not overcome in the past now seemed to be sparse and normal. He Chuan stayed here for more than ten days, and the two of them sat and discussed the Tao. He learned a lot about outer realm heavenly demons. Outer realm heavenly devils liked to destroy people's cultivation and gain strength from it. Some people did not even know that their inner demons were causing trouble until they died. Don't trust the outer realm heavenly demons easily, and don't doubt them easily either. Otherwise, you'll easily fall into the predicament of the inner demons. Chui Su said. I know. He Chuan nodded and accepted his advice. Chui Su might not know that his mental state was not low. The light glass heart cultivation technique had been cultivated to the great success stage of the light like torch realm. Coupled with his firm mind, ordinary cultivators really could not do anything to him. He Chuan got up and said goodbye to everyone. Fellow Daoist, we've been waiting for you for a long time. Jiang Ming said when he saw He Chuan. Tong Yu and Tianhe stood beside him, while Nether Earth stood on the left. My lord, we didn't find anything. Tong Yu stepped forward and said. They were basically all materials. After these two large scale searches, the things here were almost used up. Then let's go back. Hearing He Chuan's words, the natives of the southern spiritual region were filled with anticipation. What kind of scene was the central land? Were the experts as he imagined them to be everywhere? He Chuan's cultivation was only an ordinary master over there. For him to cultivate such a realm in the past few years, it should have something to do with that world, Jiang Ming thought to himself. The others felt the same. To cultivate to this realm, they were all geniuses among geniuses. It wasn't that they were dissatisfied with He Chuan, but they both had a competitive mentality. If it was he who went to the central great land, his realm might not be too low either. Everyone arrived at the location of the array formation. As he chanted the incantation, he entered the ball of light. The world started spinning. When he opened his eyes, he had already arrived at Bayin Mountain. He looked at the pitch black mountain range and the palace on the top of the mountain. What dense heaven earth spiritual energy! As expected of the central great land. Sensing the rich heaven earth spiritual energy, Tong Yu took a deep breath. Jiang Mingyi and the other two couldn't help but sigh. The environment here was really good. This is the reincarnation palace. Tianhan noticed the golden palace on the mountaintop. The palace was surrounded by huge mountains with terrifying giant snakes coiled on them. There seemed to be some creatures underground. 
they seemed to be quite powerful, and there were many of them. The appearance of a famous sect entered his sight. My training ground, the Bayin Mountain. He Chuan casually said this sentence. This place is yours. Tianhe was shocked beyond words. It was much stronger than hell. He had four to five thousand years of accumulation, but how many years had he Chuan spent? There was such a foundation. As expected, the environment shaped people. No matter how much effort he put into the southern spiritual region, the resources here would never be as abundant. Let's talk inside. He Chuan led everyone into the Golden Palace. Greetings, my lord. The ox head and horse faced Dao soldier beside him bowed. The quality of this Dao soldier is even better than mine. Tianhe looked at ox head and horse face from head to toe and sighed. Everyone sat down and drank tea while understanding the situation. He learned that the reincarnation palace had hundreds of millions of people, dozens of celestial cultivators, two immortal venerables, and three pieces of overseas land. To think that I boast of being knowledgeable. Now it seems that I'm just a frog in a well. The world is so big, and we're just floating. Tong Yu stroked his beard and laughed. Huh, fellow Taoists will definitely stand out in the future. No one was more excited than Tianhe when he learned of the existence of the reincarnation palace. It meant that there was hope for a way out. I'll bring you to see the Yuan Emperor in a while. Let's see what positions he'll arrange for you. If it really doesn't work, I'll get you a few. He Chuan had cursed them in their hearts, so it was only natural that he would fight for their benefit. In the future, Maple Leaf Country would be waiting for them to charge into the battlefield. How could they not be stronger? Are you talking about the Yuan Emperor of the Reincarnation Palace who rules over ghosts and gods? It would be best if you could recommend him. Tianhe's eyes lit up. He had thought that he had no chance to meet this person, but he didn't expect Lord He Chuan to have a channel. There's no time to lose. Let's go over now. He Chuan brought them over. He Chuan stepped out of Bayin Mountain and arrived at the city outside. Looking at the crowd coming and going, the two of them felt as if their horizons had been broadened. In the past, the peak of the earth realm was already considered an unattainable master, and there were quite a number of them in this city. The heaven and earth spiritual energy in the central land was about a hundred times more abundant, so it was reasonable for so many experts to be born. This city is a little strange. Tianhe could tell something was wrong with the city below. You will know in the future. He Chuan smiled mysteriously. They flew thousands of miles and arrived at central Shanzhong city. Chapter, 485 This place was where Yuan Emperor Chang'e Palace was located. What was imprinted in everyone's eyes was a huge mountain that pierced into the clouds. The endless palaces on the mountaintop were hidden in the endless Yin energy. In the sky and underground, there were wandering demons and ghosts. His body emitted a murderous aura that kept people away. The patrolling ghosts and deities had many experts of the same level as them, which gave everyone a clearer understanding of the reincarnation palace's strength. When everyone arrived at Chang'e Palace, Lu Yishou was already waiting in front of the door. This is Central Lord Lu Yishou. Greetings, Lord Gu. Everyone greeted him. He Chuan introduced them one by one. Lu Yishou nodded and did not say anything. He could tell that these people were only at the peak of the earth realm and seemed to have some flaws. Everyone walked into Chang'e Palace. The people on both sides kept greeting He Chuan with respectful expressions. Only then did Jiang Ming and the others know how high He Chuan's status was. It wasn't like what he had originally imagined, that he was only a middle to lower class in this world. The attitude of the other people from the reincarnation palace was no less than Lu Yishou's, which proved their status. His footsteps landed on the floor which was as smooth as a mirror, and a crisp sound echoed. In the depths of the hall, a figure was hidden in the darkness. The figure was extremely tall, and his eyes were like torches. He sized up everyone from head to toe, and everyone felt as if they could see all the secrets on their bodies. This must be the legendary Yuan Emperor. Greetings, Yuan Emperor. Everyone bowed. Get up. Yuan Emperor's figure slowly appeared in the shadows. His figure had shrunk several times, 
turning into a five-foot-tall boy. Is this your subordinate? Emperor Yuan looked at He Chuan and asked. Yes. He Chuan replied. Give them a few positions. Emperor Yuan didn't ask about their origins. Everyone had their own secrets. Sometimes, asking too much would be detrimental to unity. Jiang Ming was assigned the position of the Soulbringer, while Tianhe and the other two were assigned the roles of the God of Day and Night respectively. They were responsible for patrolling public security and received a monthly salary. Not only that, Yuan Emperor had specially allowed them to exchange for a cultivation technique for free. Tianhe had an improvement in his cultivation, Tong Tian considered it again and again and decided to switch to the netherworld lineage technique. Jiang Ming insisted on walking his own path and honing his swordsmanship. After arranging everyone's duties, Black Emperor specially asked He Chuan to stay. You should be careful during this period of time. Sky City has resurrected and threatened to find trouble with you. Did you take something from them? When God King Scorching Sun taught this fellow a lesson that day, I took his storage pouch. He Chuan was alert. It seemed that the other party did not tell about the coordinates, or perhaps he was not sure if the coordinates were with him. However, the people there would find trouble with him at any time. Thinking of this, He Chuan felt a sense of urgency. His cultivation was still a little too low. He had to find maple leaf country and take away the resources there. He had to improve his magic treasures and divine arts in all aspects. At the very least, he had to wait until the lightning tribulation to have the strength to protect himself. The other party definitely wouldn't come to seek revenge so soon. He should take advantage of this free time to prepare. Do you need help? Yuan Emperor's eager expression probably meant that he wanted to take the opportunity to plunder again. I plan to use this period of time to enter seclusion. He Chuan did not want to cause trouble during this period of time. He only wanted to quietly develop and improve his strength. It was recorded in ancient books that one could live for 300 years. There is a forest of longevity trees, a tree thousands of miles away, the sun and moon are hidden by it. You won't get sick or die if you fall under this tree. This proved that this place was rich in resources. Even if it wasn't an alien planet, it was worth He Chuan taking the risk. He Chuan bid farewell to Yuan Emperor and led everyone back to the mansion. In the depths of the Golden Hall was a sphere that was hundreds of feet in length and width, emitting a faint white light. How long will it take to change the coordinates to Maple Leaf? He Chuan looked at Nether Earth. Two days. The coordinates are more complicated. Nether Earth stared at the light ball. The coordinates were either far away or planets in the human realm upon heaven. All in all, the value was very high. Of course, the risks were correspondingly huge. In places with abundant resources, the experts there would not be weak. Taking advantage of the two days of free time, He Chuan made more preparations. Xing Yue's sisters were busy with the affairs of the Ashura race and could not get away for the time being. He could only bring a few of them with him. A majestic city was floating in the air 10,000 miles above the central continent. In the center of the city was the city lord's mansion. The mansion was filled with the faint smell of blood. In the backyard of the city lord's mansion. The water in the pond was blood red. Bubbles were popping up, and a pale corpse was floating in the water. As time passed, the water in the lake gradually faded. The corpse turned into blood and then faded into tiny particles that could not be seen. Crash! A red-haired man flew out of the blood pool. God King Scorching Sun, Judge He. If I don't take revenge, I swear I'm not human. This person was the city lord of the Sky City, Qin Tian. Back then, his body had been destroyed by God King Scorching Sun, leaving only his essence soul to escape. He had to pay a great price to repair his body. I'll start with you first. Towering Sky looked into the distance as if he could see through the void and see each one of the reincarnation palace. His father had something to do recently, so he could not find trouble with God King Scorching Sun for the time being. He could only pick on the weak. If his guess was correct, the coordinates of Maple Leaf Country should have been taken by this guy. Come out. A few figures appeared in front of him. 
Do your best to find Judge He's whereabouts, Qing Tian said coldly. Yes, father. Undercurrent surged. He Chuan did not know that danger was coming. A message came from the underworld. The coordinates had been locked. He Chuan stood in front of the ball of light and turned to look at Tianhe and Tong Yu. You guys go in and scout the way first. The two of them walked in carefully. After a while, they came out again, indicating that there was nothing unusual there. He Chuan stepped into the ball of light. When he opened his eyes, it was completely dark in front of him. There was no light in the world. Who is it? An old voice came from the void. It was filled with anger, and the world trembled. Towering trees covered the sun, and everyone surrounding seemed to be a primitive forest. The tree trunk was grayish-brown, straight, and smooth. Only the top had long branches, and the leaves were like needles, shining with a metallic light. These trees were very tall, and the shortest one was more than a thousand meters tall. He Chuan took a deep breath, and a cold aura entered his body through the tip of his nose. Be careful. He reminded. The essence of heaven and earth here was very dense, which meant that there was a high possibility that there were experts. There was no starlight in the sky, and the yin energy was dense. Perhaps it was a sealed small world. Coincidentally, as soon as He Chuan finished speaking, the entire ground shook. The cold wind whistled, and the sound of someone crying before death echoed in the air, making people's hair stand on end. The sky instantly turned white. Everyone subconsciously looked up and saw countless white Kongming lanterns floating in the air. The white light was emitted from this. Tens of thousands of Kongming lanterns instantly turned the world into daytime. As the light shone down, a powerful force appeared. This kind of power directly hit the divine soul. Just looking at it gave him a splitting headache. His soul felt like it was being cut. Immortal Venerable Domain. Retreat first. He Chuan's pupils suddenly constricted, and then he said to everyone. He did not expect to enter someone else's domain. Chapter, 486. Unfortunately, it was too late. Their speed was not faster than the speed of light. The white light shone down, making it difficult for everyone to move. His divine soul seemed to be placed in flames, being burned eternally. The two of you, block it. He Chuan looked at Tianhe and Tong Yu. What? Before Tian he could react, he realized his body had flown away involuntarily. Then, he transformed into his original form and blocked everyone's path. Tong Yu transformed into the Nether Sky Serpent. Its massive body covered the sky and blocked the white light that was constantly falling. Below, Yi Chuan, Jiang Ming, and Nether Earth immediately felt their souls relax, and the intense burning sensation disappeared. However, Tong Yu and Tianhe had to endure all the pain, but they couldn't decide because He Chuan controlled their bodies. He Chuan, you will die a horrible death. You don't keep your word. The river above the sky changed into the appearance of the Tianhe. His pained face melted like a burning candle. I won't let you off even if I die. You despicable and shameless scoundrel. Tong Yu gritted his teeth. Scales kept falling off, and flesh and blood festered. They wanted to escape, but their bodies were controlled. Cold laughter came from all directions, followed by boundless pressure. In less than a breath's time, Tianhe's soul was scattered. Corpses fell from the sky. However, he Chuan and the others were fighting for precious time. Let's go. He Chuan immediately stepped into the array. Before the second wave of attacks arrived, they were teleported back to Northern Yin Mountain. Boom! The spell missed and let out an angry roar. There were actually insects in his dojo. This place was transparent all night, and the light shone on every corner. Unfortunately, nothing was found. He Chuan and the others quickly dismantled the array formation at lightning speed to prevent that mysterious existence from entering through the ball of light. That was close. He heaved a sigh of relief. The exploration of the stars was indeed full of danger. They didn't know how dangerous the unknown place was. They were lucky. They heard that some sects were wiped out as soon as they came out. Is this the power of an immortal venerable? 
Unbelievable. Jiang Ming clicked his tongue in wonder. He couldn't believe that he had survived just now. That feeling of powerlessness was really terrifying. In the face of that powerful pressure, his abilities were no different from an ant. This person's cultivation shouldn't be comparable to Yuan Emperor, but he's still an old celestial cultivator. He Chuan pondered in his heart. Those sky lanterns just now should be the domain of the mysterious expert. Are you done dismantling it? He looked at the flustered Nether Earth. We're losing money this time. Nether Earth sighed. The array could not be closed. If it was forcibly removed, the internal structure would be destroyed, and the energy lost by the star jade fragment would not be replenished. Not only did they not gain anything, but also suffered a lot of losses. I'm fine. He Chuan looked at Tianha and Tomyo's corpses. These two guys are unlucky. Jiang Ming smiled evilly. He was still in a good mood. He knew He Chuan didn't have a good motive for taking in the two of them. Jiang Ming knew He Chuan's style very well. He did not want them to enjoy themselves, so he cooperated with the two of them. However, he did not expect retribution to come so quickly. He was killed by an expert on his first mission. I thought I could use them a few times. He Chuan had already planned it out. He would help him earn money normally and charge into the dungeon. Unfortunately, he had only charged once before turning into a corpse. He had not been able to play his role at all. That's not true. No matter what, he saved our lives just now. He can be considered to have shown his value. Isn't the corpse also useful? Jiang Ming said. He Chuan was suddenly enlightened. He looked at Tianhe's corpse, then at the rivers around the northern Yin mountain, as well as the giant snake circling the mountain peak. He suddenly thought of a brilliant idea. Perhaps he could really make use of the waste. The long snake iron dog purgatory strength was not bad, but it had its flaws. The long snake and iron dog's movements were not orderly. They were purely human wave tactics. It would be fine if they encountered ordinary cultivators, but the human wave tactic could kill them. If they encountered a strong enemy, they might fall into a battle of attrition and consume a large amount of their magic power. Even if they won, the price they paid was very heavy. Tomyo's corpse could be made into the leader of the long snakes. The main body of the Tianhe could be used as the moat around the Golden Palace, right under the Bridge of Helplessness. The remaining soul could be the leader of the Iron Dogs. I'll be in seclusion for a while. You guys continue to repair the array. He Chuan said to the others. This time, the location of the formation will be the Shura Cave. Maple Leaf Country was too dangerous. He Chuan planned to bring Judge He over, so the array could not be placed there. He placed it in Azura's little paradise and had the two sisters take care of it. The three of them were connected telepathically, so when necessary, they could transmit information faster. Yes, my lord. Nether Earth said. He Chuan went into seclusion to refine the hell of the long snake and iron dog. The forces mobilized by the Sky City were secretly searching for news of He Chuan. Sun Dynasty, Divine Gate City. Not far from He Chuan's training hall, a carriage came up the official road. A few well dressed merchants got off in front of the wine shop. There were a total of three people. One of them had red hair and a feminine appearance. If He Chuan was here, he would have realized that this person was the second young master Lu Dao. This is the place under the jurisdiction of Judge He. I asked someone to inquire about it. It seems that he has been in seclusion recently. Humph. It was probably not the coordinates. Lu Dao muttered to himself as he thought to himself. Then, he sneered. Others might not know, but as the son of the Sky City, he knew that the coordinates of Maple Leaf Country were likely to be taken by He Chuan. He Chuan's seclusion this time proved their thoughts. I heard that you have business in the Reincarnation Palace and the Scorching Sun Dynasty. Help me find out where this person is. Yes, sir. The two of them pretended to be chatting, but in reality, they were planning to kill experts who were no weaker than the five lords in the territory of these two major sects. The news of He Chuan killing Shue Luosha had already spread to the surrounding large factions. 
it would let people know that the reincarnation palace had another expert. However, to everyone's surprise, Judge He did not inherit everything from Shui Luo Sha. Instead, he handed it over to a nameless person. Whether it was the reincarnation palace or outsiders, they all regarded Judge He as an existence at the level of the five lords. Some people even called him the sixth monarch. The sects that were not on good terms with the reincarnation palace were known as the sixth demon king. The experts of the reincarnation palace were known as the demon kings. After all, the reincarnation palace was a sect that dealt with ghosts and gods. Just the name alone made one feel a little evil. Other than the second young master, his two sons also accepted the mission. Don't let eldest brother and third brother's people know. Lu Dao's goal this time was to find He Chuan's whereabouts, and then use a spell to bring his father over to finish him off. He had to show off in front of his father, but of course, he couldn't let his other brothers know. Cowering Sky's target was too big, and it was easy to be discovered. So they came over to play as the vanguard. Back then, when Qin Tian was crushed by God King Scorching Sun with his bare hands, he had already become the laughingstock of the world. He couldn't touch the Scorching Sun God King for now. At the very least, he could take Judge He's head to avenge himself. The humiliation was brought by He Chuan. Chapter, 487 In Judge He's Residence A palm-sized jade block floated in the middle of the secret chamber. There seemed to be soil on it, and there was an ant-like figure inside. This was the northern Yin mountain, in the pitch-black hell. The mountains rose and fell, and the cold wind rolled. Tens of thousands of mountains were a spectacular sight. At this moment, He Chuan was standing under one of the mountains. In front of him was a snake that was tightly wrapped around the mountain peak. This snake was a little thicker than an ordinary long snake. His eyes were dark green. Tong Yu greets my lord. A demonic wind blew on the spot. The long snake turned into Tong Yu and kowtowed to He Chuan three times and nine times. Its expression was respectful, but it was a little stiff and did not have the agility of the past. Get up. He Chuan sized up Tong Yu. The effect wasn't bad. He used the remaining spirituality of Tong Yu's body to cut off other memories, leaving only his battle experience to create the leader of the long snakes. He Chuan sent Tong Yu away, then flew to the larger mountain in the center. There was a golden palace at the top of the mountain. The golden palace was surrounded by a ring-shaped river, and the netherworld bridge of helplessness spanned across both sides. The river below was no longer just a decoration but was emitting an inexplicable aura. Through the clear river water, one could occasionally see painful faces flashing past. They were formed by countless living beings who would never be reincarnated. With the river here, outsiders would not be able to enter. Furthermore, the true spirit of Tianhe could control the steel dog. The northern Yin mountain was even more powerful. He had spent a lot of effort fighting Shui Luosha. If he fought again, he would probably be able to take her down easily. My lord, the formation is ready. At the same time, news came from the netherworld realm. He spent another star jade fragment to build the array, leaving nothing on He Chuan's body. Inform Xingyue to go to the ghost market to exchange for star jade fragments. Fortunately, he had plundered quite a number of spiritual stones from the southern spiritual region. The combined inheritance of the few of them was still worth 500 to 600 million. The star jade fragments were worth 100 million spiritual stones in name, but their actual value was even higher. In the black market, they could be bought for at least 20 million more. I'll exchange for five first. If it's really not enough, I'll ask Xin Yue to help me out. He Chuan thought for a moment and said. Following that, the two of them walked out of North Yin Mountain and entered the blood-colored Azura Paradise. Greetings, Master. The two girls were already waiting. He Chuan nodded and came to the front of the array. The magic formation was already activated. The ball of light floated in the air, and a milky white light spread out in all directions. I've re-anchored the coordinates, so we won't be teleported to the same place as last time. However, we should still be careful and hide the formation immediately, otherwise, we'll be discovered. 
The domain of an immortal venerable was a thousand miles in radius, so nether earth moved the coordinates to two thousand miles away. He shouldn't be discovered. Where's Zhang Ming? He Chuan looked around. He's been hit hard recently. He's been going on missions like crazy. Jiang Ming was interested in peerless swordsmanship. The reincarnation palace's techniques all had Dao skills. He could take this opportunity to go out and fight with the cultivators of this world to hone his swordsmanship. All right. He Chuan said. Jiang Ming was an extremely conceited person. When he was still a nine-headed willow, he was particularly arrogant and domineering. After becoming a sword master, he was also an extremely tough leader. No matter where he went, he would always be the backbone of his existence. Now that he had come to the central great land, he had become invisible. Just the aura of an immortal venerable was enough to scare him to the point where he couldn't move. Activate the formation. I'll go over myself. He Chuan said to Nether Earth. If he went alone, he would not be easily exposed if he used the transformation technique directly. Otherwise, if they were discovered, they would have to dismantle the array and waste the star jade fragments. After instructing everyone to stand guard outside the array, He Chuan stepped into the ball of light. Time and space were reversed, and Yin and Yang were in chaos. The moment the scene appeared in front of him, He Chuan immediately transformed into a beetle, and then the ball of light quickly disappeared. After doing all this, He Chuan finally had the time to look around. It was still a straight conifer. It was as if the entire world was filled with these trees. This should be a divine tree that could make people immortal and not sick. Something's wrong. If it was a divine tree, why didn't He Chuan feel the benefits? Instead, he felt extremely cold. The beetle slowly flew under the tree. According to the legends, living under a tree meant that one would not die. But now that He Chuan had come down, he did not feel any signs of being unsick or undying. Instead, he felt an extremely cold aura. The yin energy was pervasive. Even with Yichuan's current cultivation, he was unable to resist the pervasive cold. The icy cold yin energy entered his body through his pores and slowly affected his body. It was as if it wanted to turn humans into females, or rather, turn them into non-humans. Could this be immortality? If that was the case, then part of the legend was true. In such an environment, over the years, one's body would be frozen by the yin energy until it lost its vitality. One's flesh, blood, and soul would also begin to turn into ghosts. It was not easy to get sick, and he would definitely not die. After all, after leaving the mortal body, one would not get sick or die of old age. They could live for a long time. A sound came from above, and the ground seemed to be shaking. The silver-white light was like mercury leaking out of the ground, bringing a gentle color to this cold world. He raised his head, thinking that it was another mysterious expert. Upon closer inspection, he realized it wasn't. It turned out that the moon had risen. A slight sound came from the ground. The ground in front of them bulged as if something had broken out of the ground. Countless figures broke out of the ground. Most of these people had black, white, gray, and green faces. Their facial features were ferocious and terrifying. Zombies? When He Chuan, who had transformed into a beetle, saw this scene, he was secretly surprised. This was not a zombie. There were blood corpses that were fed with human blood. These zombies looked like normal people, but their faces were gray. There was also a fat man with a layer of green grease on his skin. It was a medicine that could revive the dead. There were skinned corpses without internal organs, armored corpses with armor, wooden corpses with human heads and wooden bodies, and demon corpses refined by all kinds of deformed humans. All kinds of strange zombies could be seen. The zombies looked at the full moon in the sky, stretched out their hands, and worshipped it. The zombie worships the moon. According to the legends, zombies were indeed indestructible. Seeing this, He Chuan understood everything. These trees should be some kind of yin trees, like locust trees or banyan trees. Perhaps someone had been here before. As the rumors spread, it became an immortal realm. He walked forward carefully. 
there were no other living creatures in this world except insects. If it had turned into something else just now, it would have been exposed on the spot. Zombies are supposed to suck blood. There are no living people here. How can zombies survive? He Chuan was a little puzzled. The deeper they went into the forest, the more complete the zombies' form became. Some of the zombies flew in the air, their faces green and fangs sharp, giving off a demonic aura. This was a flying zombie, as the name suggested, a zombie that could fly. The flying zombie's cultivation level changed according to its cultivation. Further up was the demon. This was an existence that was close to a devil and possessed incredible divine powers. The lowest level demon had the cultivation base of an immortal monarch. Soon, the road ahead was clear. The towering trees disappeared, replaced by grey stone mountains. The mountain range in front of him was made of grey granite, and it looked like a collapsed mountain. The mountain was surrounded by rivers on both sides. The river was dark green in color and emitted a rich moonlight essence. 